The lively sounds echoed through the crowded market as Yeek Sin enthusiastically called out to customers to buy her watermelons. Get your watermelons here. Top quality watermelons. At that moment, a red-haired guy with broken teeth approached and asked, Is this lovely watermelon guaranteed to be sweet? Yeek Sin, in her gentle manner, affirmed, Absolutely sweet, no sweetness, no payment. The guy skeptically took a piece to taste, chewed it thoughtfully, and then criticized, This watermelon is basically not sweet at all. Is this girl trying to deceive us? He opened his mouth wide, pointed directly at Yeek Sin, and shouted, Dare to deceive me. Quickly catch her and bring her back to me for punishment. Let me teach her a lesson. His gang of followers burst into laughter. First time seeing such a good catch, tonight could be enjoyable. Yeek Sin cried, Please don't. Other young people in the market, witnessing the scene, expressed their displeasure. These scoundrels dare to catch people on the street. Truly disrespectful, old man, Tam is from the Feng family. No one can mess with him. These young people felt helpless. Hateful. Nobody can deal with them, huh? Old man Tam became more outrageous. Scream louder, even if your voice is hoarse. No one will come to save you. At that moment, Yi Han rushed over and shouted loudly, Let go! Old man Tam, who was teasing, was hit on the buttocks by Yi Han's stick, his face contorted in pain. He quickly collapsed and cried out, Oh, my buttocks! His followers stood there with twisted expressions. It's over. Tam's third flower has been punctured. Yi Han glared at them and scolded, Dare to bully my sister. I'll risk my life against you. Old man Tan's disciples, upon seeing Yi Han, jeered, Where did this kid come from? Fed up with life. Ha! Huh. While tears streamed down old man Tan's face due to pain, he angrily ordered, Kill him for me. However, Yi Han disappointed him. After dealing with his followers, Yi Han stomped on them and then pressed the stick into old man Tam's mouth. He lay flattened on the ground, trembling and crying. While his followers could only stand by and watch, Tam's third is in deep trouble. Despite being near death, old man Tam still tried to give orders. Hurry up, everyone, attack. So, the gang of followers obeyed, advancing to surround and attack Yi Han. Kid, you're as good as dead. Yi Han swung the stick wildly, proclaiming, I'll risk my life against all of you. The other disciples looked puzzled at first, then unanimously rushed forward to kick and attack Yi Han, shouting, So, you're just an empty vessel making loud noises. Die, you little brat, how dare you threaten us? Yi Xin, standing weakly behind, pleaded, Stop, please stop. Suddenly, the disciples had to pull old man Tam Wong, panicking, The police are coming, let's run. Old man Tam, escorted away by his followers, shouted arrogantly, you're lucky this time, kid. Next time, you'll be dead for sure. Yi Han lay motionless on the ground after the beating, while Yi Sin held him, calling out, Yi Han, please wake up. At that moment, Yi Han woke up in an unfamiliar place, looking around and wondering, where am I? After a while, he panicked upon seeing his amulet. This is my amulet. The amulet approached Yi Han's face, transforming something into his eyes. In that world, he exclaimed, Oh, my eyes. The scene shifted to another hospital, and Yi Han suddenly woke up. Oh, my parents, in front of him, was the incredibly attractive figure of a nurse with an ample bosom. She was helping Yi Han bandage his wounds, but startled when he woke up, she instinctively moved away and asked with a stern tone, What were you planning to do? Yi Han quickly clarified, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. The nurse softened her tone. If you had any ill intentions, I would have called security. But Yi Han couldn't stay silent, continuing. But it's also because you're too alluring. Oh my. Yi Han pointed directly at the nurse's ample bosom. Yi Han scratched his head in confusion. What on earth is happening? Am I hallucinating? At that moment, Yi Xin rushed in, relieved to see Yi Han awake. Yi Han, are you okay? Yi Han replied cheerfully, Sis, I'm fine. Suddenly, his eyes lit up in amazement. He stared straight at Yi Xin's body and seemed perplexed. Now, it was even more difficult to understand what he was seeing. He quickly closed his eyes and said to Yi Xin, Sis, put on some clothes quickly. Yi Xin was puzzled, gently approached, and touched Yi Han's forehead, asking, What nonsense are you talking about? 
I'm already wearing clothes, aren't I? Yi Han just replied, yes. After checking Ni Han's forehead, Yi Xin seemed puzzled. No fever. Couldn't be a brain malfunction. Meanwhile, Yi Han remained motionless on the bed, also puzzled. Why is my clothing all exposed like this? Yi Han found it hard to believe, muttering, What on earth is happening? Just then, some information came to him. Left is Yin, right is Yang. Yin Yang divine eyes, penetrating the myriad beings. Yi Han contemplated, Yin Yang divine eyes. Could my eyes see through things? After thinking it through, he turned towards the door with the intention. Let me test this out. He then activated the divine eyes, gazing intensely towards Yi Xin and the nurse. He seemed excited after confirming the result. It really can see through. He then shifted his gaze further into the distance. Let me see. His eyes went down the hallway and focused on an office. Oh my goodness, some professor or doctor was embracing that young nurse. Witnessing that scene, Yi Han silently thought. Indeed, the older one is. The more experience they have. Next, he continued the examination. Let me see more. He cast his eyes towards another nurse holding a syringe. Yi Han chuckled. Seems like I can still see the nurse, even when lying down. He shifted his gaze around, saying, Let's look here for a bit, and there for a bit. Yi Han showed off a bit of his 3D boy style, and he spotted a nurse. However, she turned away, contrary to his line of sight. So he silently urged, Turn this way. Come on. Turn this way. Eventually, she turned around, and Yi Han's eyes lit up. Finally, she turned this way. But the nurse's facial features seemed a bit awkward. Yi Han was alarmed. I'm getting mad. After a while of using his eyes with the wrong intentions, Yi Han lay on the hospital bed, silently thinking, What's the use of these eyes of mine? While lost in thought, another nurse approached and called Yi Han. Yi Han, come over to settle a hospital bill. Upon hearing the announcement, Yi Xin quickly went out, saying, I'm coming. Yi Han attentively followed Yi Xin's figure as she went out to pay the hospital bill. Using his divine eyes again, he saw Yi Xin looking somewhat distressed. She held out a small amount of money and asked the nurse, Is this enough, or do I need more? The nurse replied, It's enough. Your brother has no major issues and can be discharged. At this moment, Yi Han silently made a determination. With the divine eyes, I must help her have a better life. After that, Yi Xin escorted Yi Han out of the hospital. Outside, Yi Han said to her, Sis, I have something to do. I'll go home later. Yi Xin reminded, Come back early. Yi Han walked alone in the city center, contemplating as he walked. How should I use the divine eyes to earn money? While thinking, he noticed something. Below a tunnel, a group of people were gambling, with an enthusiastic waitress shaking the dice, saying, Come on, place your bets, bait were small, place your bets, and once placed, hands off. The gamblers shouted, I bet 500 on big, 300 on small. Many times before, it landed on small. I don't believe it'll be big this time. I bet 600 on big. Dudu secretly rejoiced, a bunch of fools, go ahead and bet, everything will be mine. With money piled on the table, more bets seemed to be placed on the big side. Yi Han stood outside, silently commenting, so much money. Then he used the divine eyes to see the outcome, thinking, let's see if this is big or small. So he could see the result inside that tree trunk, and he thought to himself, a total score from 4 to 10 is small, from 11 to 17 is big. Here, the result is 2, 3, and 4, adding up to 9 points. The casino is about to make a big profit. Dudu quickly revealed the result. Two, three, four, small. The group of people who bet on big were helpless and complained. Small again. I'm done. It's only been an hour, and I lost 3,000 already. Some refused to give up, saying, I still don't believe it. Let's continue. Dudu collected the money, unable to contain her joy. Thanks for your support. Thank you. Then, she turned her attention to Yi Han. Newcomer. She invited him to join the game. You're handsome. Want to play around? Yi Han reminded Dudu again. Sis, you're exposing everything. Dudu playfully retorted. No, I'm not. You are. People chatted. Here comes another fool offering money. Dudu used her alluring eyes to entice. Want to play? 
Yi Han happily agreed. Sure, let's play. He thought to himself, she's telling me to play. I better not regret it later. Du Du quickly took her position. Place your bets. Once you've placed them, hands off. The crowd started placing bets. 300 on big, 1,000 on small. I bet 500 on small. Yi Han activated his clairvoyance ability. On Du Du's side, she was enthusiastically shaking the dice. The dice landed on 4, 5, and 6, but only Yi Han saw the results. Du Du urged Yi Han, Handsome, which side are you betting on? Without enjoying the moment, Yi Han said, I bet 10 coins on big. Du Du looked down on Yi Han. Turns out, he's a poor guy. Then, Du Du announced the results. 4, 5, 6, big. She happily collected the money. Thanks, everyone. She didn't forget to give Yi Han his winnings. Your winnings. Yi Han joyfully looked at the money. Earning this money is too easy. Watching Du Du inviting bets again, Yi Han secretly rejoiced. Today, I'm going to clean her out. So Yi Han placed another bet, and Du Du continued shaking the dice in her too. A moment later, Du Du appeared displeased when revealing the results. Two, five, six, big. Yi Han held a handful of money. Delighted, too easy. I've won again. Give me the money. The crowd surrounding Yi Han was buzzing. This young guy is really lucky. He's already won over a thousand yuan. He must be a master. Just by the sound of the dice, he knows the result. Yi Han was just enjoying the happiness of winning this amount of money. This is incredible. This amount is much higher than my monthly salary. Meanwhile, Du Du was extremely upset. This is miserable. Continuing like this, my efforts today will be in vain. Yi Han added to the taunt. Why so serious, beautiful lady? Can't handle it anymore. Du Du, furious, slammed her hand on the table and exclaimed, Let's bet, she said to Yi Han. But only you and I will bet a big round. Du Du seemed determined to defeat Yi Han. But Yi Han disagreed. No, I won't go on. Absolutely not. Before he could finish his sentence, Du Du interrupted him and shouted, Bet, she said to Yi Han. But this time, we're betting everything. Seeing Du Du so determined, Yi Han calmly asked, Hmm, how do you want to bet? Du Du excitedly replied, One round to decide the winner, betting all the money you have. Yi Han sensed something amiss, so he asked again, So what if you lose? Du Du confidently responded, If I lose, it's up to you to decide. Yi Han's eyes lit up with excitement, really, to let me decide. The onlookers were intrigued. This is getting too dramatic. Du Du firmly affirmed, I keep my word, but if you lose, you have to strip off all your clothes. Yi Han gritted his teeth and accepted. Let it be decided that way. Let's see who's afraid of whom. Du Du was equally unyielding. Fine. No regrets later. The two locked eyes, a tense atmosphere hanging between them. Seeing Du Du raise the wooden cup with three dice inside, the spectators eagerly watched her professional movements. With a swift shake, the three dice flew up and, in an instant, were back inside the cup. The audience cheered. That's awesome. Du Du demonstrated a martial arts move, and the crowd below exclaimed, Incredible. Her momentum is truly intimidating. She just used this technique, and we're already scared out of our wits. That young guy is probably done for. Du Du taunted again. What's the matter? Afraid of losing to this lady's technique? Yi Han paid no attention. He stood in a corner counting the money. Du Du, irritated, reminded him, Ha, huh, can you focus a little? Yi Han mocked Du Du, petty. This infuriated Du Du. She loudly challenged Yi Han. You're finished, daring to underestimate me. Witness my might. Then, she forcefully slammed the dice shaker onto the table, causing dust to scatter in the air. Du Du confidently declared, You're in trouble now. Yi Han remained unfazed, ridiculing her. Quite the flamboyant display. Du Du asked him, Big or small? As she asked this question, Du Du secretly rejoiced, thinking, The dice in the cup are still uncertain. Regardless of whether he chooses big or small, I can manipulate the outcome. I'm sure to win this time. Yi Han calmly made his choice. I choose. He nonchalantly continued. I choose three sixes. Simultaneously, 
Yi Han pressed down on Du Du's hand, preventing her from manipulating the result. Du Du, frustrated, thought, even though he seems foolish, he won't let me play tricks. Is he pretending to be foolish to deceive everyone? After that, Yi Han lifted the cup and said, take a closer look. The crowd was amazed. It's empty, and yet he guessed it correctly. That's incredible. Never seen anyone like him. Yi Han began to celebrate. I won, I won. Too powerful, a true card master. The crowd begged, Master, please accept me as your disciple. Yi Han hesitated and declined. It's just a little trick, not worth mentioning. Du Du felt uneasy and tried to escape. I should run away now. But Yi Han spotted her and called out loudly, Beautiful lady, do you agree to let me handle this? Du Du, sweating nervously, replied, Big brother, how do you want to handle me? Yi Han smirked and said, We can negotiate a bit, can't we? In the midst of the distraction caused by Du Du's antics, she pointed to the sky and said, Quick, look, there's a flying saucer. Taking advantage of the confusion, Du Du swiftly ran away, leaving everyone fooled. She taunted them, A bunch of fools, can't believe you fell for it. Yi Han realized she was escaping and shouted, You trickster, stop right there. Seeing Du Du running, Yi Han chased after her. Forget the rest, return the money you lost. Yi Han continued to chase Du Du from one street to another. He followed her into an alley and shouted loudly, Where do you think you're running to? However, in front of him was an empty alley, and he thought to himself, Ha, huh, she must have escaped. Nevertheless, Yi Han remained confident. She might think she can escape, but I won't lose her. Du Du, sitting exhausted in a corner, muttered, finally cut off the tail of that boy. But Yi Han had found her. Found you. Du Du panicked. Trouble is coming. She pushed Yi Han away and swiftly ran off. Yi Han calmly replied, In broad daylight, where can you hide? Quickly pay me back. Du Du evaded. This is hard-earned money. Don't even think about it. Yi Han sternly said, Your actions are dishonest. If you willingly engage in gambling, you should have the courage to face the consequences. If you don't pay me back, I'll... Before he could finish, someone intervened. Hold on, my friend. Yi Han turned to see a frail man on a wheelchair approaching. Surrounded by a swarm of souls, the man inquired with a laugh, Du Du, causing trouble again. Huh? Yi Han then let go of Du Du and tossed her aside upon seeing something terrifying, exclaiming, scaring people to death. He pointed towards the man and interrogated him. Who are you? Yi Han thought to himself, there are many demons attached to him, and this man's hands must be stained with the fresh blood of many. Zhao Hao Tian smiled and replied, I'm Du Du's older brother. What trouble did the little girl cause again? Du Du, defensive, clarified, Brother, I didn't provoke anything. It's this rotten kid here who doesn't follow the rules. Yi Han, with a sharp retort, said, You still have the nerve to say that. If not playing tricks, you find a way to be nasty. Quickly pay me back. Du Du, teasing, responded, Ha, huh, not paying back. If you have the guts, come here and fight me. Yi Han, infuriated, retorted loudly, Don't think you're a woman, or I wouldn't dare hit you. Du Du continued to provoke, Well then, Come over here. Both sides continued their verbal exchange, challenging each other with every word. Zhao Haotian could only ponder and feel displeased about these two individuals. Unable to tolerate it any longer, he exclaimed loudly, That's enough. Du Du, with confidence, retorted, My big brother is furious now. Just wait and see. To her surprise, she received a slap from her older brother. Haotian sternly ordered, Quickly shut your mouth, little sister. She, annoyed, questioned, Brother, why did you get me? Hao Tian, in a serious tone, admonished Du Du. I've told you many times, no gambling. Have you forgotten why my legs were amputated? Du Du, in a soft voice, explained her reason. Brother, it's only this way that I can earn enough money to treat your legs. I don't want you to live like this for the rest of your life. This response let Zhao Hao Tian in a contemplative silence. Seeing the sibling seeking help, it seemed like the issue was not insignificant. Yi Han furrowed his brow in contemplation for a while. Legs amputated. Ha! Huh. What's going on here? Not wanting to waste time, 
Yi Han immediately utilized the yin-yang divine eyes technique, a method that could see through all things in the world. Yi Han's divination proved correct. The yin-yang divine eyes revealed a strange object blocking the area around the leg. Moreover, the tendons at the heel had been cut, indicating a severe medical condition. Yi Han immediately spoke with evaluation. The leg tendons have been cut, and there seems to be something inside the leg. He paused, awaiting the patient's response. Hearing the diagnosis delivered with precision, Zhao Hao Tian and Du Du, each feeling a chill down their spines, broke into a cold sweat. It was truly unexpected that there could be such skilled medical expertise in the world, not a matter to be taken lightly. Zhao Hao Tian looked up to scrutinize Yi Han's appearance for a while before asking, Friend, can you really see my illness? With a nonchalant expression, Yi Han raised his eyebrows and replied, It's a small matter, just a glance, and I can see it. Having suffered from his ailment for a long time without finding a cure, Zhao Hao Tian approached Yi Han. With sparkling eyes, Du Du requested his assistance. Young man, you've seen my brother's condition. Can you treat him? It seemed that this Yi Han guy was also striking a pose, not inferior to a Korean idol. The term young man with a decayed personality didn't sound very pleasing to his ears, making him express dissatisfaction. However, Du Du, lively and clever, wouldn't easily back down. She immediately changed her tone to a coquettish one, fishing for the young man's favor. Hey, handsome, can you stop being so modest? Yi Han, feeling awkward, shook his head and said, That's enough, too comfortable. Du Du took five steps forward and skillfully employed her charming tactics, showcasing her perfect curves before saying, If you can cure my brother's leg, I'm willing to be yours forever. Yi Han almost had a heart attack hearing this. In Du Du's mind, she triumphantly thought, Dealing with a shrimp like you, I personally made my move, and I'm not afraid I won't catch you. But before she could celebrate, she found herself pushed away by Yi Han, shouting in disbelief, I can't believe this guy escaped my ultimate seduction trap. Yi Han shook his head in disapproval, not accepting this kind of market-style approach. Despite being a respectable man, he couldn't tolerate such behavior. He replied, sorry, but I have to give up on this. I'm at a loss here. He turned around and walked away, ignoring the two siblings who were watching with regret and longing. Regardless, he had more important matters to attend to at the moment. Plus, there was another reason in his mind. Don't like people I'm not close to. Helping him might expose my yin-yang divine eyes. I can't risk that. Sitting quietly all this time, Zhao Hao Tan had been closely observing Yi Han's actions. Seeming to grasp something about the way Yi Han operated, he quickly thought and called out, Wait, if you can cure my leg, let's make a deal. What do you think? Indeed, that's the case. The working style seems to be in line with Yi Han's usual approach. He immediately halted, turned around, but still maintained the cautious demeanor. Yi Han inquired, A deal? What kind of deal? Zhao Hao Tan decided to disclose a story that Yi Han was completely unaware of. He lowered his voice, as if not wanting anyone outside to know this discreet truth. I am originally the supreme art, divine techniques, and martial arts Southwest King. The three words Southwest King were something that Yi Han had heard many times before. Whenever this figure appeared in front of a crowd, all eyes and attention were drawn towards him. Saying so was enough to understand the power and influence of this person. After hearing this, Yi Han was momentarily speechless and mumbled, You, you are Zhao Hao Tian. Nodding coldly, Zhao Hao Tian replied, Exactly, I am Zhao Hao Tian. Looking at his current demeanor, it was evident that he wasn't joking. Yi Han, still astonished, contemplated and hesitated for a while. Zhao Hao Tian, back then, you were a prominent figure, a person who controlled the entire sky. Why have you ended up in such a situation? This situation left him incredibly puzzled. Seeing that Yi Han was aware of the matter but remained indecisive, Du Du couldn't help but lose her calm. She stepped forward to explain, my older brother back then. Before she could finish her sentence, Zhao Hao Tian promptly interrupted, ahem, do do, don't say anything. It seemed that this internal matter was not easy for Zhao Hao Tian to disclose to others. Now that he knew Yi Han possessed extraordinary medical skills, Zhao Hao Tian just wanted to make a deal, mainly to cure his crippled legs. He spoke up, young man, what do you think? Yi Han was still in contemplation, because in the end, 
he only possessed the yin-yang divine eyes as an extraordinary skill. He thought, I can only see the problem. Treating it is another matter. Unexpectedly, at this moment, streams of information from the Guiyu medical classic and Kaigong practice flowed incessantly within Yi Han's mind, gliding through these texts and making him extremely excited. He exclaimed inwardly, the Guiyu medical classic and Kaigong practice. These are the two secret books existing within the royal archives. Upon reflection, if I can grasp the techniques within these two books, then treating Zhao Hao Tian may not be a difficult task anymore. Observing the dumbfounded expression on Yi Han's face, Du Du became frustrated. She insisted on extracting a definitive answer from this ambiguous individual. Can you do it or not? Speak up quickly. Aware of the fact that no one had ever cured this peculiar leg condition before, Zhao Hao Tian with a consoling tone, advised Du Du. Forget it, Du Du. It's not easy to cure this leg. In the past, renowned physicians had exhausted all means, and now. However, before he could finish his sentence, the young man Yi Han promptly interjected, his face lighting up with enthusiasm. Wait a moment, I can treat it. Zhao Hao Tian, taken aback, stood still. Throughout history, none of the eminent physicians he had invited had ever expressed such confidence. Moreover, just now, this man accurately diagnosed his condition with a single glance. Dudu was overjoyed, finding it hard to believe what she heard. Really? With a determined expression, Yi Han nodded gently and responded, But I need some time to prepare. Only then can I be certain, 100%. Zhao Hao Tian was overjoyed, ecstatically exclaiming, Great! If you could truly cure it, I agree to work for you for three years. Indeed, he couldn't afford to miss such a once-in-a-thousand-year opportunity. Touched, Du Du rushed over, hugging Yi Han, as if embracing a close friend. Gratefully, she said, thank you so much. Observing this, Yi Han felt a sense of consolation, having alleviated some of their suffering. However, he couldn't ignore the fact that such opportunities seemed to be once-in-a-lifetime occurrences. Grasping such a delightful opportunity with a girl as charming as Ngok Train, Yi Han couldn't help but seize it eagerly, holding the girl tightly and responding with a playful indulgence. No need to thank me, he. With the agreement settled, the three of them headed their separate ways. On the way back home, Yi Han pondered incessantly, I've accepted the task of helping others with their illnesses. It's awkward to accept money, I still feel hesitant about it. However, his inner devil retorted immediately. Are you pretending to be noble? Ridiculous. As he walked through an antique street on the way home, the lively atmosphere of an antique fair echoed loudly. Antique fair here. Ming Dynasty porcelain. Only 3,000 yuan. Grab it before it's gone. The auctioneer's statement piqued Yi Han's curiosity. Ming Dynasty porcelain. I've heard of this type before. Well, it's still early. Might as well drop by and take a look. Hastening towards the crowd, Yi Han suggested, Let's check it out over there. We might find something interesting. The old man running the stall sat with excitement, enthusiastically advertising his goods. Come and have a look. Ming Dynasty porcelain. Landscape paintings on silk. Various warring states period bronze items. All at a very reasonable price. Buying here is like finding a treasure. Several interested customers crowded in, asking, How much for these warring states period bronze items? Observing from a distance for a while, Yi Han assessed, This shop owner is quite the smooth talker, but there's no need to rush. Let's listen a bit more and see how things unfold. The stall owner, proudly stroking his beard, replied, 320 coins. Take a look at some other items as well. He, Yi Han immediately used the yin-yang divine eyes to quickly scan through the displayed items in front of the old man, muttering, I don't see anything good here. The jade stones and jade tiles are made from translucent materials, and the ink on the calligraphy and painting hasn't dried yet. As for this bronze item, it's surprisingly made from plastic. I didn't expect the stall owner to be such a con artist in the black market dealing with cheap tricks, selling dog meat disguised as mutton. This childish game is outdated. Trying to expose his true intentions to keep people away, Yi Han, however, Worried that explaining might reveal his yin-yang divine eyes, he cursed inwardly. Do they really take me for a fool? Frustrated and unwilling to linger any longer, Yi Han turned to head back home. Just as he stepped out, he encountered familiar faces. 
It's Zhu Ming Xian and Du Wan Nai, probably drawn here by curiosity as well. The approaching individuals inquired, Aya Zhu Ming Shan, Mr. Zhu, why are you here? Mr. Zhu, renowned for discovering many valuable items with your discerning eyes. Is there something good here? Du and Ni, following closely behind, questioned, Grandpa, why don't we go to Ming Yu Pavilion? The chances of finding rare items are too low here. Zhu Ming Shan, wise and seasoned, replied, You don't understand, my child. To experience the thrill, one must go to the antique market for new discoveries. Ha ha ha. Reaching the stall owner, Zhu Ming Shan politely suggested, Let me see the famous Jiangsu province ceramics. Rarely witnessing a dignitary like him on the street, the onlookers admired him. Yi Hand, too, stood at a distance, curious, observing the scene. Activate the yin yang divine eyes. The shopkeeper presented Zhu Ming Shan with a ceramic vase renowned as the famous Jiangsu province. He said, Mr. Zhu, please have a look. Zhu Ming Shan's demeanor showed a hint of hesitation before this highly esteemed antique. It didn't take much time. Mr. Zhu held the vase in his hand and turned it around. He furrowed his brows and made a few disdainful sounds. A clear crack, along with childish paint strokes. Du and Nai approached and commented, Grandpa, you can tell it's a fake with just one look. Even if it were real, this crack already ruined its value. It's really not worth much. Zhu Ming Shan nodded. Yes, you're right. With a compassionate gesture, the old man returned the vase to the shopkeeper, making him twist his face in annoyance. Returning it is indeed the right thing to do. People may not believe it until someone like Zhu Ming Shan speaks out. When they saw Mr. Zhu leaving without showing any interest, the crowd immediately dispersed, saying, We thought Mr. Zhu would find something good. But since he shook his head, the items here must be fake. If there were truly valuable items, they would have been bought long ago and not left here. Old man Zhu Ming Shan let Du and Nai past Yi Han. The two relatives spoke to each other. Let's go. Du and Ni nodded obediently, but something seemed to miss. Yi Han stood silently for a while, then suddenly spoke loudly. I'll buy that Jiangsu province ceramic. Words were uttered with undeniable confidence leaving everyone, including Mr. Zhu and his granddaughter, Duan Ni, in utter astonishment. Both of them turned to look at this mysterious young man, their eyes filled with skepticism. Hard to believe that guy. Yi Han, with a composed expression, walked up to the shopkeeper and declared, I'll buy that Jiangsu province ceramic. His demeanor at this moment was certainly not a joke. Even the shopkeeper widened his eyes at Yi Han's assertiveness. The old man approached with enthusiasm handing the ceramic vase to Yi Han and cheerfully saying, This young man truly has an eye for things. This is indeed an antique from the Ming dynasty, and it only costs 3,000 he. The price seemed extremely favorable to Yi Han. He joyfully took out the money and replied, Thank you, sir. Just wait a moment. As Yi Han was counting the money, the shopkeeper swiftly grabbed the vase like a mouse and dashed away. Laughing heartily, he thanked Yi Han. No need for that. Little brother, thank you for your patronage. Yi Han watched in surprise. The shopkeeper grinned back, teasingly glancing at the puzzled young man. Ha 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 ha, what a foolish guy. It turned out that he had stolen that vase. Although it looked discarded, he thought it was worthless. Yi Han, holding the vase in his hands, cherished it, thinking, what a fool. Standing amidst the crowd, moments after intervening with the vendor's hand, people jeered and mocked Yi Han. Mr. Zhu, we said it's a fake, and this young man is truly foolish to buy it. You're really silly, clearly stated so earlier. If you get deceived, don't blame others, kid. Ha 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 ha. Maybe people will think they have a good eye for spotting merchandise. Dun and I stepped forward with sympathy, revealing the truth to Yi Han. Silly boy. You've been unfairly treated. Losing 3,000. Yi Han dropped the vase, chuckled defiantly, and replied, Ha 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 ha. I see now that everyone is truly foolish. His expression gave no indication that he was joking. Du An Nai looked at this young man, who not only received her comfort, but also responded with arrogance. Irritated, she pointed a finger at him. You dare call me foolish, you rotten kid. Mr. Zhu Ming Shan, intrigued by this young man, curiously inquired, Young man, did you think that this broken Jiangsu province ceramic is a valuable item? Contrary to the old man's expectations, 
Yi Han firmly contradicted. He raised two fingers to emphasize his points. There are two things I must make clear to you. Yi Han maintained the composed demeanor, articulating his words with precision, ensuring that the old man could hear clearly. Firstly, this Jiangsu province ceramic is not broken. Secondly, this Jiangsu province ceramic itself is a treasure. The crowd of onlookers, upon hearing my explanation to Mr. Zhu, burst into laughter. Ha 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 ha, is this young man out of his mind? This is the highest level of self-comfort, deceiving oneself. Speaking with such cunning, considering us fools, ha ha ha. Perhaps Doom and I thought the guy was really crazy and decided not to argue anymore. She chuckled and said, if you say it's real, then treat it as real. Who do you think you are? Mr. Zhu, having a similar opinion, gently advised, young man, don't be too impulsive in everything. Finding treasures is not as easy as you think. You still need to cultivate your insight for a few more years. However, Yi Han didn't need much explanation for those with narrow minds because, as the main character, he naturally possessed the author's divine tools. The young man took out a peculiar bottle, poured it slowly onto the ceramic vase, and said, Open your eyes wide and take a close look at this. In a moment, unbelievably, the Jiangsu province ceramic seemed to be adorned with a new layer. The paint and lines were perfectly exquisite following the standards of the Ming Dynasty's Jiangsu province craftsmanship. Holding the antique vase up for everyone to see, its extraordinary brilliance made the two Zhu cousins gasp in astonishment, exclaiming, How is this possible? The confident young man, Yi Han, asked boldly, Take a closer look. The area that appears to be broken is actually the painted pattern. It's just covered by clay. Zhu Mingshan, no longer as skeptical as before, widened his eyes in genuine amazement and responded, Young friend, your insight is truly remarkable. I admire you. The previously ridiculed individuals, now eager to save face, commented, Unexpectedly, this Jiangsu province ceramic is not broken. We are really inferior. If it's genuine, it must be worth at least a hundred thousand. Yi Han, feeling triumphant, chuckled and said, Ha 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 ha. With my yin-yang divine eyes, my insight is naturally superior to others. However, throughout the discussion, there was still one stubborn person who refused to yield. Duan Nai. Pointing her finger, she remarked, The incident just now doesn't prove that it's genuine. Seeing an opportunity, Yi Han, always up for a challenge, suggested, Let's make a bet then. If this Jiangsu province ceramic is genuine, what do you say? After some hesitation, Duan Nai replied, then I'll buy it at the market for double the price. But if it's fake. Without hesitation, Yi Han agreed. Then I'll take a small loss and owe you a favor. Duan Ni, with a slightly annoyed expression, pouted. If it's fake, you'll have to work for me for a year. The two bantered for a while, and it seemed that Yi Han appreciated the personality of the girl. He thought, teasing her a bit for fun won't hurt. I should maintain a good image in front of the crowd. With the agreement settled, they sealed the deal with a handshake. It's a deal. Zhu Mingshan, always interested in young talents like Yi Han, had silently praised him for his high insight. He thought, if Du Wan Nai recognizes him, it could be a significant help. Zhu Mingshan suggested, All right, all right, not far ahead is Ming Yu Tsuan. They have specialized appraisers. Let's go there and see who is right and who is wrong. Du Wan Ni agreed with the old man. Ming Yu Tsuan was known for trading and exchanging rare and valuable items. It had a high reputation for quality goods. Zhu Ming Shan led Duan Nai and Yi Han inside. For Zhu Ming Shan, this place was quite familiar. He was always a distinguished guest, and Lin Bai Mo quickly welcomed them. Esteemed guests, a sincere welcome from a distance. Seeing Duan Nai accompanying her grandfather to Ming Yu Tsuan, Lin Bai Mo greeted her as well. Duan Ne, long time no see. Please come in, everyone. Lin Bai Mo invited the three into a specially designated guest room, as was customary. After exchanging pleasantries, Zhu Ming Shan got straight to the point. Lin Bai Mo, this time we've come here to ask for your help in appraising an item. Upon hearing this, Duan Ne, still upset, commanded Yi Han, Humph, it's that thing. My grandfather said it's fake, but this young man here doesn't believe it and even made a bet with me. Lin Bai Mo, having heard part of the story, could make some educated guesses. However, 
Given the status of Mr. Zhu and Duan Ni, they had already made their conclusion, and he promptly spoke up, Ha ha, Mr. Zhu, if you determine it's fake, there's no need for an appraisal. Observing the self-confident demeanor of Ming Yuzhuan's owner, Yi Han couldn't help but roll his eyes. However, he maintained a polite exterior and asked, Without examining it, the owner himself has already made a judgment. Lin Baimo casually sipped his tea while glancing at Yi Han's appearance. He replied, Seeing you for the first time, my friend, and you don't seem very familiar. Perhaps it's our first encounter in the antique world. Yi Han wasn't particularly interested in discussing trivial matters. Feeling annoyed that this person wasn't addressing the main issue, he retorted, So what if it's the first time? Lin Bai Mo smeared, deliberately exerting his superiority as he spoke. Want to rely on a bit of intelligence to infiltrate the upper class? I've encountered many people like this. This guy is just wasting time. Yi Han, I don't have the leisure to engage in discussions with someone like you. Immediately, Yi stood up, holding the vase provocatively. If you don't want to help with the appraisal, just say it directly. I'll find someone else. Seeing this, Du Wen Nai was about to call the shameless Yi Han back, but Mr. Zhu calmly said, Don't rush. Let's see what he has to say. Apparently, the old man had a more insightful eye than usual. Lin Bai Mo, in his usual fashion of showing off his superiority, didn't reserve it just for Yi Han. He added, In any case, you are a guest introduced by Mr. Zhu, so you should be given the opportunity to be respectful. Lin Bai Mo then stood up, gesturing, Wait a moment. Although it's your first time here, out of respect for Mr. Zhu, I should give you a chance. Yi Han, not wanting to further engage with these snobbish people, turned back with a sharp look. What do you want to say finally? With a casual sweep of his hand across the room filled with his antiques, Lin Bai Mo hinted, Among the antiques here, there are three fakes. If you can identify one, I'll not only help you appraise for free, but also offer to buy the item at a high price. With this move, Lin Bai Mo knew that in the entire world, apart from Mr. Zhu, not many people could pull off such a stunt, especially not an arrogant young man like this one. Yi Han, upon hearing the challenge, responded with a feigned casualness. Doesn't sound that simple, does it? However, deep inside, the young man was chuckling. Ha ha ha. It's too simple, like going to the toilet and someone hands you the toilet paper. Lin Bai Mo sneered, planning to embarrass Yi Han, and spoke up. So do you dare. Yi Han couldn't let this opportunity slip away. In a stunning reversal, he pointed and retorted, I dare not. Today I will help you broaden your horizons. The banter between the two young men made Mr. Zhu find the situation amusing. He asked Yi Han, young friend, how much time do you need? Is an hour sufficient? With dinner waiting at home, who would waste such a precious hour in this monkey-like place? Yi Han confidently approached the showcased antiques and replied succinctly, I don't need an hour. Raising one finger, Yi Han pointed without turning to look at the dog-like Lin Bai Mo. One minute. Having said that, he casually scanned through the pile of junk that belonged to Lin Bai Mo. The latter thought Yi Han was joking and burst into laughter. Ha 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 ha. You seem to underestimate my Ming Yu Chuan. Even a quick glance won't be enough in ten minutes. Mr. Zhu and Duan Nai watched anxiously, standing up to observe how Yi Han would handle the situation. Mr. Zhu cautioned, Young friend, you should be cautious. Duan Nai still had a resentful look, muttering, This arrogant guy is really causing trouble. While they were still worried about Yi Han, the latter had already selected three items, placing them casually on the table. Yi Han, with a nonchalant demeanor, spoke with a teasing tone. Ten Ten, I found everything. Quite a scary story, indeed. He exclaimed, It's done so quickly, and I've already found them. Zhu Ming Xian and Du Wanlinli couldn't believe their eyes. Zhu Ming Xian exclaimed, This is an unbelievable story. How could he be so proficient? Yi Han was not playing a trick. He approached to explain each detail to them, clearly and decisively. Half of this vase is grafted, and inside this transparent bead, there are grains of sand. The Buddha statue sitting on this lotus tower is glued together. His words flowed smoothly without hesitation, as if these items were crafted by the young man himself. At this point, Lin Bai Mo was sweating profusely, shocked by the incredible revelation. He mumbled, in such a short time, even the top experts in the country couldn't do it. How could he possibly achieve this? But it didn't stop there. 
Yi Han also rewarded them with another item, a gemstone that Lin Bai Mo had never heard of. Yi Han said, Moreover, in reality, the fake antique doesn't consist of just three items but four. Yi Han placed this nocturnal pearl in front of them, surprising all three of them. Everyone, not just outside Ming Yu Xuan, knew that this was the nocturnal pearl, a treasure of the shop. Lin Bai Mo exclaimed, This is the nocturnal pearl, the treasure of Ming Yu Xuan. What nonsense are you talking about? For him, this was truly a bewildering situation. Yi Han's face was extremely serious as he grabbed the nocturnal pearl, determined to teach this fool a lesson. He said, then open your eyes wide and take a good look. Knowing that this young man intended to smash Ming Yu Chuan's precious gem, Lin Bai Mo widened his eyes and shouted, Don't. Yi Han's throw also astonished Zhu Ming Shan and Duan Nei. Is this guy crazy? Lin Bai Mo tried to run over to save it, but it was too late. The nocturnal pearl rolled and shattered into pieces. Indeed, a peculiar round object emerged from it. That ball rolled over to Mr. Zhu who picked it up and examined the strange thing. He said, inside the nocturnal pearl is a bronze sphere, this thing. The three of them were all astonished by this shocking revelation. So far, Ming Yu Chuan has always regarded this waste as their treasure. Yi Han said, now it seems I rely on a bit of cleverness. Lin Bai Mo self-blamed for being blind and respectfully bowed his head, apologizing. Senior, forgive this disrespectful junior and please consider our master disciple relationship. Yi Han waved it off as a trivial matter, speaking with the demeanor of an elder brother. Forget it, I don't want to brag like this, but my talent is like a naturally fragrant flower. Sooner or later, it will reveal itself. The young man chuckled inwardly, ha ha, I'm really awesome. Looking at his current demeanor, Lin Bai Mo dared not say another word, but there were still the two grandchildren of Zhu Duan. Such remarks from the young man were nothing. The two grandchildren had harbored resentment for a long time, letting him showcase himself without saying anything. Not discussing the matter further, Lin Bai Mo tactfully said, Master, please come inside. I will immediately arrange for someone to assist you in the appraisal. Lin Bai Mo led the two grandchildren and Yi Han into the appraisal room. Senior Zhu and Yi Han were not worried. The only anxious one was Du Ni, the stubborn girl. Without taking too much time, Lin Bai Mo's subordinates stepped out, holding the Jiangsu province ceramic jar. Ming Yu Chuan was always known for having the most renowned team of five experts in the region for appraising treasures. The appraiser confidently stated, Young master, this Jiangsu province ceramic jar is genuine, and its market value is around one million. Lin Bai Mo, once again, widened his eyes in amazement. Clearly, buying this precious item for only 3,000, you've truly outdone yourself. He ordered his subordinate. All right, you can step back now. Presenting the ceramic jar in front of Yi Han, Lin Bai Mo respectfully said, Respected master, your Jiangsu province jar is indeed authentic. With that settled, the truth became unclear in the black and white. Yi Han chuckled and turned to Du Wen Ni, saying, It seems I've won. The spirited younger sister retorted, Hemph, winning is winning, no need to show off. As promised, Du Wen Nai acknowledged defeat gracefully, took out a card, and handed it to Yi Han, saying, This card has two million, the password is eight consecutive eights. Although feeling a bit conflicted, Yi Han accepted the card. In his mind, he thought, This is unbelievable, two million just like that, ha! Huh. Old Mr. Zhu also laughed heartily and congratulated the young man, exchanging 3,000 for 2 million. This deal is truly beyond words. However, it seemed that in the old man's heart, he had a different perspective. His expression turned so dark and gloomy that it seemed almost severe and painful. The three young individuals immediately turned their attention to the old man. The elderly gentleman quickly collapsed, breathless, muttering a few words. Oh, my chest can't breathe. Just like many times before, do one knee, in fear hurriedly ran to support her grandfather Zhu, calling out loudly, Grandpa, are you okay? Grandpa, don't scare me like this. But her grandfather Zhu showed no signs of being conscious. Seeing the situation getting serious, Lin Bai Mo rushed forward and said, Someone, prepare a car to take him to the hospital. The two rushed to help the old man up, but this time, 
Mr. Zhu's face looked much stranger than ever before. The old man opened his eyes, reached out, and weakly called, Duan Ni, Duan. But after struggling for a moment, he lost consciousness again. Duan Ni was horrified, crying and shouting, not knowing what to do. Grandpa, Grandpa, you can't die. Lin Bai Mo also appeared worried, thinking to himself, Oh God, if Mr. Zhu dies here like this, no matter how I explain it, it won't make sense. He couldn't help but sympathize because Ming Yu Xuan had never experienced such a shocking incident before. At this moment, Yi Han stepped forward, looking curious. What's happening? Let me take a look. He immediately activated his yin yang divine eyes. Indeed, in moments like these, this technique often proved helpful in assisting others. Peering deep into Zhu Ming Shan's cardiac region, Yi Han immediately detected an anomaly. Mr. Zhu's heart had been infiltrated by poisonous qi, and it seemed to have been lingering for several days. His subordinate rushed in and reported, Young master, the car is ready. Lin Bai Mo hurriedly carried Mr. Zhu, who was still unconscious, and ran outside, saying, For now, let's get him out of Ming Yu Chuan. Yi Han spoke loudly, To the hospital, immediately to the hospital. We absolutely cannot let anything happen to Mr. Zhu. However, amidst the urgency, Yi Han unexpectedly jumped in front of him to block his way, saying, It's too late to go to the hospital now. Lin Bai Mo couldn't understand why this person was yelling so loudly. Get out of the way now. If anything happens to Mr. Zhu, are you going to take responsibility? Yi Han gently explained, I've studied medicine before. Let me try. Perhaps I can save Mr. Zhu. Yi Han's tone was firm, but Lin Ba Mo, not believing in Yi Han's emotional words, continued to try to get Mr. Zhu to the hospital. He said, This is a critical moment. You standing here and talking is not helping. But now, Du and Ni, who had been opposing every possibility, involving Yi Han from the beginning, suddenly did a 180-degree turn. She called out to Lin Ba Mo, Wait, let him try to save Grandpa. Lin Ban Mo couldn't believe his eyes and scolded, What's going on, Duan Ni? This is related to Mr. Zhu's life. You need to consider this very carefully. In Duan Ni's heart, there was a shared sentiment with Yi Han. At this point, even going to the hospital won't make it in time. It's a matter of life and death. She nodded and said to Lin Bai Mo, I trust him. Although extremely dissatisfied, Lin Bai Mo reluctantly laid the old man back on the ground. Yi Han approached, reassuring, Don't worry, trust me with the old man. Without hesitation, Yi Han, after careful consideration, immediately applied the extraordinary medical techniques of Guyu Medical Classic and Dai Luck Han Tram. Lin Bai Mo sat silently, watching in amazement. Turns out, this guy wasn't kidding at all. Yi Han continuously executed seven, seven, forty-nine finger techniques, striking repeatedly into Mr. Zhu's chest, utilizing spiritual pattern techniques, celestial impact techniques, and full body techniques. These surgical techniques were something ordinary people had never seen. Lin Bai Mo and Duan Nai couldn't take their eyes off for a moment, their hearts beating to the precise rhythm of Yi Han's adjustments. His medical skills are truly incredible. Anxious, Duan Nai pleaded. Please, Yi Han must save my grandfather. Finally, Yi Han carefully applied the last medical technique. After a session of treatment for Mr. Zhu, Yi Han, fatigued, wiped his sweat, sighed, and slumped into a chair, saying, It's done, all done. A few minutes later, Lin Bai Mo stood right next to Mr. Zhu, observing to see if the old man showed any signs of improvement. Duan Ni, at this point, felt less emotional. After regaining a bit of composure, she approached Yi Han. Seeing the young man still catching his breath, Du and I felt a bit sympathetic, but she still anxiously asked, Yi Han, will my grandfather wake up? Yi Han glanced at Mr. Zhu, comforting Du and Ni while speaking. I've done my best. We'll have to wait and see how the old man responds to his efforts. The two of them fell silent for a while, closely monitoring every breath of Mr. Zhu. Occasionally, Duan Nai called his name, showing deep affection for her grandfather. Fortunately, Mr. Zhu's vitality proved to be strong. Slowly opening his eyes, he looked around, spotted Duan Nai in the distance, and raised his hand to gently call, Duan Ni, my granddaughter, why are you crying? All three of them breathed a sigh of relief, realizing the danger had passed. 
Finally, Yi Han began to trust the medical techniques he had learned. Duan Nai, overjoyed, ran to embrace her grandfather, exclaiming, Grandpa, you finally woken up. Even Lin Bai Mo couldn't help but be moved, saying, This is wonderful. After a while, Zhu Ming Shan felt better and could move normally. He stepped forward to express gratitude to the young man, Yi Han. Yi, I truly appreciate your life-saving assistance. My chest no longer hurts, and even breathing feels much smoother now. Yi Han, delighted by the old man's recovery, responded, It's nothing. However, Mr. Zhu, you should pay more attention to your health in the future. Lin Ba Mo remained silent like a sheet of paper. But Yi Han once again surprised him, this extraordinary individual, unheard of before. Mr. Zhu's illness stumped renowned doctors, both nationally and internationally, yet Yi Han could cure it. If he's capable, it could pose a danger to the Lin family. After pondering for a while, Lin Bai Mo decided to approach Yi Han, bowing his head to express his intentions. Vai Han, I have a favor to ask. Please consider my request. Seeing the significance of this request, Yi Han felt that he had a great opportunity and thought to himself, both the Zhu family and the Lin family are powerful. Forming ties with them could benefit me. Thinking so, he quickly stepped forward, saying, Mr. Lin, I am more than willing to help. If there is anything I can do, I will certainly not stand idly by. Without hesitation, Lin Bai Mo revealed the long-standing secret of the Lin family. My father is suffering from an incurable disease. We have consulted many renowned doctors, but all have failed. I hope that Yi Han can lend a helping hand during this encounter, and we will definitely repay this kindness. Facing this situation, Yi Han felt awkward. While he enjoyed using medical techniques to help others, he thought, my Gu Yu medical classic is not yet perfected. Saving Mr. Zhu earlier was partly due to luck. However, this is an excellent opportunity to establish connections with the Lin family. After careful consideration and planning for what to do, Yi Han cautiously approached, responding to Lin Bai Mo's request. Mr. Lin, hear me out. Give me one month to prepare, and I will do my best to assist your father. Lin Bai Mo was deeply grateful never expecting that this incident would bring such a significant opportunity to the Lin family. He replied, Thank you. Yea. Whether successful or not, you will always be an esteemed guest of our Lin family. Yi Han pretended to be a humble guest, saying, Mr. Lin, you are too polite. Just call me Yi Han. Lin Bai Mo felt excited. Thanks to Yi Han saving Mr. Zhu's life and now having such a special connection, it's truly a double blessing. He then raised his arm and announced, Today is such a joyous occasion. I'll take the lead. And everyone, let's have a toast. Duan Nei and Mr. Zhu nodded in agreement. Sounds good. Duan Ni, with a playful thought, remarked, Great, it's an excellent opportunity to get closer to Yi Han. Later, I can pull him into my circle. The sky had darkened, and Lin Bai Mo treated them to a dinner at the city's most luxurious restaurant. The feast was filled with exquisite dishes, and An Zhu, Lin Bai Mo, and Yi Han had indulged themselves with drinks. The three of them had become more familiar and understanding of each other. Yi Han spoke up, excuse me for a moment. The young man wanted to find the restroom. After resolving his concerns, Yi Han strolled through the hotel lobby. He noticed that time was no longer early, thinking, I should let my sister know to avoid her worrying. As he was about to take out his phone to message his sister, he suddenly heard someone approaching him. Looking over, Yi Han was surprised. Oh, isn't that Zhu Duan Nai? The young woman looked uncomfortable in front of the persistence of a young man, Bai Lu Yuan, a wealthy and handsome playboy. He had been pursuing Duan Ni for quite some time, but she never paid him any attention. This time was no exception. Bai Lu Yuan spoke. Darling, you look stunning today. Duan Nai responded irritably. Bai Lu Yuan. Can't you see I'm bothered? I've told you I have a boyfriend. This wealthy young man always looked down on others. Whatever caught his eye, others shouldn't think of getting ahead. Arrogantly, he replied, Do one knee, don't deceive me. I've had someone investigate. You never had a boyfriend. The shameless named gazer looked at Do one Nai with lustful eyes, thinking to himself, Damn, her figure is truly beautiful. Once it's my turn, I must make sure to fully enjoy it. Reaching out to the young man, he said, Tell Duan Nai this. I am sincere towards her. Will she accept me? 
Suddenly, Yi Han approached from behind, grabbing Bai Lu Yuan's hand, his face cold as he spoke. Stop. Bai Lu Yuan jerked, looking at the unfamiliar face and asked, Who are you? A bodyguard. Yi Han furrowed his brows, staring at Bai Lu Yuan and asked, What did you say? His hand tightened, grinding against the guy's fragile fingers. Bai Lu Yuan exclaimed, Let go. Let go. Ah, it hurts. With a poker face, Yi Han mockingly asked, Let go. Okay then. He then forcefully swung his hand, sending Lu Yuan crashing into the wall with a thud. Unexpectedly, he was ruthlessly harassed in this place. He screamed in horror, Damn it. Duan Ni, the cunning girl, thought to herself, This is a perfect opportunity to get closer to Yi Han. She quickly leaned into Yi Han affectionately, speaking as if a genuine lover. Why did you arrive just now? Your girlfriend was teased by someone. Hicks kicks. Yi Han was genuinely surprised, only intending to lend a hand to help his little sister out, with no ulterior motive. Duan Ni's actions made him blush like a steamed bun, while Bai Lu Yuan's mouth hung open, unable to believe his eyes. What the heck is going on? Duan Nai looked straight at Yi Han with sparkling eyes, her cheeks blushing, and her lips pouted as she whispered, Handsome Yi Han, help me please. Yi Han suddenly felt amused, surprised at how easily she fell for it, and chuckled, clearly, she's offering herself on a silver platter. The young man hesitated for a moment, then cooperated immediately, his arms wrapped around Duan Ni's waist, and he gently pinched her chin, saying, Miss me already after such a short time, la. Bai Lu Yuan couldn't bear the sight and angrily approached, threatening, You rotten brat, dare to snatch my woman. He rushed forward, raising his fist, ready to teach that ignorant young man a lesson. Despicable guy, I'll beat you to death. Seeing the ruffian approaching from behind Yi Han, Duan Ni panicked and shouted, Vi Han, watch out behind you. Surprisingly, Yi Han swiftly turned around, a fierce glare in his eyes. With the grace of a dancer, he unleashed a powerful kick that sent the troublesome guy, Bai Lu Yuan, flying. He yelled loudly, get lost before I really lose my temper. The kick was so spectacular that it went straight to the heart of Duan Ni, who exclaimed, wow, that was impressive. Bai Lu Yuan was thrown to the ground, rolling in agony without uttering a sound. Yi Han was quite satisfied with his current martial arts prowess, saying, After acquiring Kaigon practice, these mediocre individuals like him are no match for me. Duan Ni admired him greatly, looking at Yi Han as if wanting to applaud him, saying, Vi Han, my hero. After dealing with the troublemaker, Yi Han turned his attention back to Duan Ni, gently placing his hand on her slender waist. Yi Han spoke, Duan Nai, let's not stay with these uncultured people. Saying that, the two affectionately embraced and left. As for Bai Lu Yuan, he spent the day embarrassed, not knowing where to hide. No one had dared to openly defy his status before. He cursed. Those bastards dare to snatch my woman. I will make sure you die a miserable death. Enjoying the touch of the beautiful woman's buttocks and back, Yi Han led Duan Nei out of the hotel's main hall. Duan Ni, now bold, gave Yi Han a playful look and straightforwardly asked, Do you want to date me? Yi Han, feeling incredulous even though they were already out of sight from the eavesdropper, was impressed by Duan Ni's performance. He awkwardly stepped back and responded in a teasing tone, Isn't that just acting? It seems so real. Ha ha ha. The young man did not expect Duan Ni to speak so candidly. Observing her indifferent demeanor, he also gradually became suspicious. As Duan Nai walked away, her voice sharp and disdainful, she remarked, Humph, you truly are detestable. Watching Duan Ni's departing figure, Yi Han couldn't take his eyes off her graceful silhouette. Why are those guys clinging to her like hungry leeches? There must be a reason. Recalling the recent incident where he had grabbed the girl's buttocks, Yi Han smirked to himself, thinking, Hey, that sensation was truly delightful. Unexpectedly, Du and I turned around and called out, Vi Han. The young man quickly jerked his hand down to his side, responding, Ah, yeah, what's up? Du and Ni's face, filled with allure, blushed. Not only that, but she also stuck out her moist red tongue, making Yi Han uneasy. She said, Tomorrow, I'll take you to experience something very exciting. Upon hearing this, 
Yi Han's father salivated with excitement. Oh, exciting you say. He immediately thought of pleasures akin to those in the movie Fifty Shades of Grey, sending shivers down his spine. Duan Nei added, quickly address me as your queen. Yi Han complied, yes, my queen, ha 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 ha. The next day, at the city's antique market, Yi Han and Duan Nai entered. The market was bustling with people, and inside, goods were being traded energetically. Clearly yesterday, Duan Nai had promised to take him somewhere extremely exciting, keeping the young man restless and sleepless all night. Yet this morning, Yi Han questioned, Antique market, is this the place you were talking about, the exciting one? Duan Nai enthusiastically replied, Don't you like antiques? There's even jade and canvas here. Observing Du Nee's innocent appearance, Yi Han felt like his soul was gradually slipping away. Excitedly, Du Wen Nai pulled the young man's hand, urging him to hurry, saying, Let's go quickly. A shipment of new fossils just arrived. Yi Han lamented, I wasted my night practicing Kaigong diligently, thinking I have a big battle today. Du Wen Nai pulled Yi Han into a room filled with a variety of fossils. Yi Han was astonished by the assortment of fossils available, ranging from color, shape, size, rarity, to price. He marveled. So many stones here. A familiar person greeted Duan Nai. Miss Du, you're here too. Duan Nai smiled in response, and an elderly lady approached, saying, Last time, you found Jade, truly worthy of being the granddaughter of the antique king, Duan Nai. Another person chimed in, if you make a profit, you should share some with us. Yi Han noticed everyone's warm reception of Duan Nei and quickly realized, it seems that this girl often comes here. Bringing me here must be to test her own influence. Meanwhile, Duan Nei, still happily greeting the crowd, responded, luckily, everyone is praising me too much. Unexpectedly, a rude and insolent figure protruded from the crowd, speaking with a sharp tone. Last time, the old man wasn't here. Otherwise, how could we let this upstart claim the top spot? The crowd started gossiping. Is it Master Wong? He came here too. I heard that Master Wang's jade has topped the charts. Master Wang is knowledgeable, so he's definitely not inferior to the antique king. Sensing something unusual, Yi Han whispered to Duan Nei. Duan Nei, this person smells strongly of gunpowder. He seems to be here to cause trouble for you. Duan Nai looked at him with a vigilant expression and explained, His treasure company is a competitor of ours, often snatching our sources. Master Wang, without any reservations, took advantage of this opportunity to confront them and challenged, Since you're representing the Zhu family here, why don't we have a duel to see who is truly worthier? Duan Nai originally disliked confronting this old man directly, except within the Zhu family, where only her grandfather had always had to deal with him. She thought, no, my influence is really not on par with his. If I lose, it will disgrace the Zhu family. Maybe I should call my grandfather. The provocateur didn't see any signs of response from Du and me, so he arrogantly laughed and taunted. Ha 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 ha, if you don't dare, it's best to leave early. Master Wang was determined to humiliate the reputation of the Zhu family today. While Du and I was still figuring out how to respond without getting upset, Yi Han eagerly stepped forward and spoke up who said we don't dare. I will duel with you. People in the crowd, especially those from the natural jade market, were astonished to see a young man they had never met before boldly challenging Master Wong. They commented, who is this guy daring to compete with Master Wong? It seems like his first time here. Ha 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 ha, he's quite young. Let's see how he fares. Master Wong looked at Yi Han with a disdainful eye and inquired, who are you to dare represent the Zhu family? At this point, Yi Han, unprepared for the situation, appeared somewhat puzzled. Seizing the moment, he quickly came up with a plausible excuse, scratching his head as he responded, Oh, well, I am. At this moment, Du Wen Nai cleverly stepped forward, taking Yi Han's hand, signaling him to remain calm. She then pulled off a crafty stunt, performing for the onlookers with the young man. She said, He, he is my boyfriend, the son-in-law of the Zhu family. Why can't he represent the Zhu family? Yi Han seemed to be getting accustomed to this situation. Duan Ni, on the other hand, clung to him, making the others believe their act. Some people gasped in amazement. Oh, Ju Miss has had a boyfriend since when? This young man looks simple and humble, yet he managed to win Ju Miss's heart. Wow, my goddess! 
Master Wang reluctantly agreed, but the cunning person he was, he still brought up a condition. Let him represent the Zhu family, but there must be a stake for this match. Du and Ni, always wary of this crafty character, feared he might use deceitful methods against the Zhu family. Carefully, she inquired, What's the wager? Master Wang slyly replied, I heard there's a jade shop in the center of the Zhu family market. The location is excellent, and I fancy it. A group of young people whispered and gossiped among themselves. The Zhu family must have spent a fortune to acquire that shop. By agreeing to this, aren't they practically giving it away? Master Wang takes advantage of Mr. Zhu's absence and uses a killer move. However, unlike the crowd of losers who only focused on what they had lost, Yi Han was completely different. He was enthusiastic about what he could gain and curiously asked, So what if you lose? The cunning guy burst into laughter, looking at him as if he were a complete fool. Some people whispered to each other behind him, Mr. Ju is not here. No one can match Master Wang. Some even sneered at Yi Han. This young man is daydreaming. He dares to think about defeating Master Wang. Master Wang quickly came up with an excuse, assuming he would win, and said, If I lose here, I will bark like a dog in the middle of this crowd. I'll also take out items equivalent to the value of the jade shop to compensate. He looked at Yi Han with a smirk. Your hair hasn't even grown, and you want to beat me in your next life. Du and I remained cautious of the cunning Wang, while expressing concern for Yi Han. She softly asked, Yi Han, how certain are you of winning? Yi Han didn't explain much. He summed it up with a concise statement, I am definitely winning. In his mind, he thought, I am a man with the ability to see through. Hearing Yi Han's confident words, Du and Nai could only put her full trust in this young man. She stepped forward, speaking seriously. All right, we accept this challenge. Master Wang, smirking, clasped his hands behind his back and stepped forward to signal. All right then, let those around be witnesses. Saying so, he proceeded to examine the jade in the guild hall. Yi Han, seemingly carefree, didn't show any seriousness. He approached and retreated, saying continuously, Let's go, let's choose a piece of jade together. Touching and examining, glancing back and forth, they took advantage of the remaining time. Yi Han enthusiastically explored the various natural jade specimens in the guild hall, seizing the opportunity to gain more knowledge. Following him like a tail, Du Wenmei advised Yi Han, Firstly, for antiques, you need to check the external crystallization of the jade. Secondly, look at the patterns on the surface of the jade. More crystallization with fewer flaws increases its value. Yi Han, surprised, turned back, showing it was the first time he had heard this. Scratching his head, he asked Duan Nai with innocence. Right, Duan Ni, which color of jade is the most valuable? Duan Ni, upon hearing this, felt like she was about to burst into frustration. The young men standing around sneered and laughed. This young man doesn't know anything. Mr. Ju has been kind all his life, and yet he managed to find such an incompetent son-in-law. This time, he's undoubtedly going to lose without a doubt. Duan Ni, infuriated, scolded the young man. You don't even know this basic point, yet you dare to compete. Yi Han shrugged confidently. As long as you tell me, we'll win. He. Duan and I carefully explained. The most valuable is the transparent type, as clear as crystal. She pointed to a sample. Yi Han gathered another crucial piece of information. He continued his Yin Yang Divine Eyes mission. Although Duan Nai had already given detailed instructions to the young man about the jade specimens, she had little hope when observing his demeanor. She said, forget it. Looking at your appearance, I can't trust you at all. Let me choose. At that moment, Yi Han exclaimed, this is it. Curious, Du and Nai approached and asked, have you made your choice? Let me see. Yi Han quietly revealed the mysterious jade, but when the peculiar stone was exposed, it had no crystallization and the surface was full of cracks. Looking at the price tag, Du and Nai was once again astonished. The price is only 500 coins. This is like a joke. Yi Han, still composed, responded, What's wrong? A good item at a low price, isn't it great? In a burst of anger, Du and I rushed over and smacked the guy on the head, scolding him vehemently. What kind of plaything did you choose? Bringing this kind of plaything out for bidding is only something a crazy person would do. The onlookers burst into laughter, gossiping among themselves. 
That original jade piece has been on display here for over a year, but because no one wanted to buy it, the price dropped so low. This little guy really lacked skill. Yet he chose such a worthless piece of jade. It seems unnecessary to continue. Master Wang is sure to win. On Master Wang's side, a few lackeys had already found their own jade pieces and approached him, saying, Young man, now that you've made your choice, start carving the jade. Yi Han didn't hesitate to nod in agreement, but Du Wan Nai couldn't accept it. Clearly, this was an important shop for the Zhu family to stake, with the added weight of the honor and reputation of the Zhu family's patriarch. Du Wan Nai spoke up. Wait, we want to exchange. Before she could finish, Yi Han stepped forward and grabbed her hand. The young man's demeanor was resolute, holding her hand firmly and looking directly into Du Wan Ni's eyes as if to reassure her, telling her not to worry. This noble and handsome son-in-law captivated Du Wan Nai. Believe me, if I lose, I'll use my own life to compensate you. Already feeling exasperated, Du Wan Ni, at this moment, couldn't be bothered to argue further with him. All right then, as you wish. Losing isn't a big deal. The group of guys who had been humiliated earlier couldn't hold back their resentment. Ha ha, I admire him so much. It's so sour, so bitter, so bitterly hilarious. That bastard is lucky. Why does Yu's Lil Miss treat him so well? Master Wang, with a mocking tone, approached arrogantly. Regardless, you guys are probably going to lose anyway. What a waste of time. Yi Han, holding the beautiful woman in his arms, exuded an air of royal authority, delivering a supremely confident line. The one who will lose is not me, but you. Duan Ni, nestled in his embrace, ignored the man's display, and the audience murmured with puzzled expressions. Where does this kid get such confidence? With two J pieces placed together, just one glance, and you'll know who wins or loses. I think he's gone mad. Wang's black-clad subordinates moved forward, and one of them informed, Master Wang, the tools are ready. Wang casually commanded, Be careful, there might be valuable jade worth hundreds of thousands inside. A black-clad youth responded, Rest assured, Master Wang, we are well-equipped and professional. In one go, they pulled out cutting-edge equipment, high-pressure water knives, various blackened metal tools, and a portable grinding machine. The three brothers with dyed hair bent over meticulously and carefully carved into Wang's master jade block. Seeing that her family's jade block had no name mentioned, Du and Ni, feeling irritated, exclaimed, Hey, over here needs cutting too. At this moment, a few rough-looking artisan uncles from outside the market suddenly appeared, shouting, Come here, come here. Duan and I looked around, and there were axes, saws, hammers, everything primitive. The appearance of these artisans drove Du and Ni nearly insane. Damn it, what kind of tools are you using to cut? The artisans innocently replied, Anyway, there's nothing precious inside this stone. Just cut and carve casually, and it'll be done. As Du Wan Nai was about to lose her temper and confront these disrespectful countrymen, Yi Han stepped forward and ordered, Leave the tools there. We'll do it ourselves. Upon hearing this, the artisans casually tossed their tools on the ground, saying, Haven't reached hell. Haven't lost heart. Indeed, a waste of time. Yi Han nonchalantly grabbed the hammer and started tapping on his stone. Duan Nai couldn't bear it anymore. She was about to retreat, saying, This way, it's hopeless. Should I call Grandpa to come and save the situation? On Wang's master's side, there was now a clamor of excitement. It's revealed, it's revealed. It's the second-ranked jade at Vane on the list. This time, we're going to strike it rich. Master Wang happily gave the order. Ha ha ha, continue to bid, I'm sure to win this match. The old swindler stood arrogantly, waiting for the comedic performance of the Zhu family. A person in black spoke up. It's out. A massive jadeite lay exposed among the shattered stones, sparkling and mesmerizing. Master Wang chuckled with satisfaction. The crowd at the auction hastily bid against each other. This piece of stone could make four bracelets. I bid three million. I bid 3.5 million. I, Master Wang, am willing to pay 3.5 million to buy it. The swindler gestured towards Yi Han and Duan Mi, who were eagerly discussing. Wait until the other side finishes bidding, then you can continue choosing. These individuals mock the Zhu family. They can only produce an iron hammer, really embarrassing us. Using a pick to mine the whole rock, it's truly laughable. Ha ha ha. 
Seeing Ni Han holding a pickaxe but struggling to break the stone, Du Wan Ni, impatient, urged him. Vlai Han, they finished over there. What are you still doing? The yin yang divine eyes, used by him until now, seemed to have identified the weak point. Only now did Yi Han raise the hammer and loudly say, I'm finding a suitable spot to avoid it hitting the fake jade inside. Master Wang found it amusing and sneered, speaking as if you could see through it all, ha. Huh? Yi Han, in high spirits, took a deep breath and then swung the hammer down, feeling triumphant. It's really embarrassing. I actually saw inside. He. The impact created a loud sound, powerful enough to crack through the outer layers of stone covering the javet. Light radiated, illuminating the entire room. Master Wang, squinting his eyes, dodged and retorted. What's the use of such a performance if there's no successful extraction? However, the truth, when he saw it, made his eyes widen, and his expression turned pale with shock. The onlookers outside also had to cover their eyes due to the dazzling brilliance of the gem. Oh, it's too bright. What kind of light is this? What exactly is it? Du and Nai exclaimed in astonishment. Astral Kai has appeared. She couldn't help but marvel at the gem. Yi Han smiled silently without saying a word, walked over, and held the large gem firmly in his hand, a size enough to rival the gem owned by Master Wong. Yi Han arrogantly said, It's a bit embarrassing. It seems like I've won. The audience gasped in amazement. Incredible. This javite is enormous. Moreover, it's the best quality of transparent, compared to Master Wang Stone. It's truly worlds apart. The swindler regained his composure, but couldn't believe his eyes as he exclaimed, This is impossible. That piece of worthless stone. How could it yield such high-quality javit? You must have played some trick. Yi Han found it amusing and asked, I used a trick? This swindler must have been scared out of his wits. After some contemplation, Yi Han decided to truly open the eyes of these seemingly useless individuals, twirling the pickaxe in his hand. Ready for Kaigong practice, Yi Han approached the table and piled up a bunch of raw javit, saying, Open your eyes and take a good look. Yi Han shouted forcefully, Come out for me. The enthusiastic young man was eager to prove himself. With one mighty blow, the room echoed with a sharp, intense sound. The stones that Yi Han selected lay scattered, and no one knew what terrifying things might be inside. A strike from the yin yang divine eyes hit the right weak spot causing the stone to crack open like a melon. As the gemstone protruded, the crowd exclaimed, Oh my God, it's out! After the first gem, Yi Han proceeded to the second one, the pickaxe striking with a rhythmic sound, reminiscent of cracking peanuts. With each strike, the crowd's excitement grew, as if witnessing some alien horror invading Earth. Oh, mother of God, it's coming out again. Clang, clang, clang! Yi Han performed a graceful Kaigong practice, shouting loudly, All come out for me! A heap of gemstones emerged one after another, sparkling and illuminating the entire hall like a knight with a full moon. The onlookers were wide-eyed mouths agape, some seemingly on the verge of going crazy, exclaiming, They've all come out! Master Wang, the swindler, widened his eyes, witnessing a supernatural scene he had never seen before. He shook his head in disbelief, as if he had lost his mind, muttering, How is this possible? Duan Ni, on the other hand, was the happiest at this moment. She joyfully called out, Vlai Han, you're too handsome, too extraordinary. Yi Han stood confidently before the crowd, without saying a word. They, in turn, approached and knelt down, as if paying homage to a king. Master, please accept me as your disciple. You are the true master. Even Master Wine cannot compare to you. Every stone you break has high-quality jibat inside. This is truly unheard of in the world. Yi Han, with a raised eyebrow, responded, You've praised me too much. Let's discuss these matters further after I and Master Wine determine the winner. Master Wine, full of resentment, stepped forward, his expression fierce. You rotten brat. Both Yi Han and Duan Ai curiously asked, A moment ago, when Master Wang broke a stone, how much was it worth? Duan Nai happily leaned in and replied, It seems to be 3.5 million. He. The wealthy individuals eagerly reached for their wallets, slamming cash onto the table in front of Yi Han. One of them boldly declared, I bid 500,000 for Master Yi Han's jailet. You have no shame raising the bid so much. 
I bid one million. Stop arguing, everyone. I bid two million for all the jaded master ye han, just extracted, 2.5 million. Hearing the enthusiastic bids from the wealthy, the old swindler couldn't help but be astonished. He hurriedly approached, seeking assistance from an acquaintance. Jew, please help me with the bidding. After it's over, I'll only take half of your money, just give me a bit of face. Zhu, a renowned wealthy figure, never let money influence him before, but this swindler, Wang, dared to use that to buy his honor. Hearing those words, Zhu was infuriated and delivered a punch. You damn scoundrel. Zhu and a few others leaned with the wind, voicing their opinions. What kind of dignity do you think you have challenging Master Yi like this? See how you'll learn a lesson shortly. Master Yi's influence is mighty now. There's no way you can hide after offending him. Observing my group of business colleagues before my scheduled meeting, all of them were arrogantly dominated by Yi Han's single-handed actions in just one afternoon. To add insult to injury, they huddled together, collectively sightlining me. The esteemed Wang, infuriated, desired nothing more than to immediately eliminate Yi Han. Disgusting. Matters have escalated to this point. First, the grasshoppers. And now it's every man for himself in the future. The slay fox silently walked away, cursing internally. Next time, I will settle a score with you. Unaware that Yi Han had approached from behind, Yin Yang divine eyes activated, seemingly mocking Wang with a sly and disdainful look. With a swift motion, Yi Han threw a spear that whizzed past the fox's head, embedding itself directly into the wall in front. Wang, kneeling down with a pounding heart, dared not resist, tremblingly pleading. Master Yi. Yi Han spoke up. If you have the courage to gamble, you must also have the courage to accept defeat. How does the saying go? Speak like a dog barking. Wang meekly responded. Yes, yes, I will immediately start barking. The cunning fox, now resembling a defeated dog, wagged its tail and crawled up to Yi Han, begging. Master Yi, I have barked enough, haven't I? Yi Han, holding his beloved Duan Ni, approached Wang directly and declared, Next time, if I see you bullying Duan Mag from my family again, I will not spare you. Get lost. Duan Ni, thanks to the handsome hero, finally found solace after harboring resentment for so long. The eccentric guy scurried away, still thinking he was a dog, barking nonsense along the way. People watching couldn't help but burst into laughter, saying, Ha 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 ha, even learning dog language, it seems this Wang guy is just like our family's dog. But with Wang, the dog imitator, gone, Yi Han suddenly remembered, forgot to make him compensate. Duan I stood by and responded confidently, It's okay, no one can escape the Zhu family's money. Perhaps she had considered the young man like family without realizing it. Yi Han, with sparkling eyes, turned back and asked precisely, What about the Zhu family? Mom. The mischievous face of the young man started to blush again. Duan Nai, still confused about what to say, the young man eagerly asked, I'm already this fast. Have I become a member of the Zhu family, or should I register for marriage first? When do I meet your parents and get married this year? Du and I suddenly felt embarrassed by Yi Han's words. Blushing, she turned away, making an excuse. You're talking nonsense. The crowd, eagerly anticipating Yi Han's response, anxiously interrupted the conversation between the two. Master Yi, are your Jadites still available for sale? I agreed to bid 25 million. Master Yi, in my place, there's a group of beautiful ladies. How about we schedule a meeting? When it came to money, Yi Han might still consider. But once the two words beauty were mentioned, oh, the images of alluring curves and tender thighs vividly appeared in the imagination, sending shivers down the spine of any lustful youth. Only one person remained unfazed by those words, transitioning from joy to being as hungry as a starving tiger ready to devour. Suddenly, Yi Han became motionless like a statue, sensing a presence behind him. The quick-witted youth immediately came up with a life-saving idea and declared, Let's see. Other jade ornaments can be sold to everyone, but that transparent jade piece will stay. Duan Ni, it's reserved. Upon hearing this, Duan Ni was surprised. What are you saying? The crowd of Yi's fans enthusiastically agreed, respecting both Yi Han and the Zhu family. So there were no objections regarding the jade piece that Duan Ni was entitled to. Since that's the case, we won't insist. 
Indeed, Du and I is very suitable for that J piece. They concurred. Moved and unsure how to express her gratitude, Du and I walked up, took Yi Han's hand, and said, Vlai Han, thank you. Yi Han looked at Du and Ni's flushed face, unable to guess her intentions. Unexpectedly, the beautiful Du Lan Nai planted a kiss on his cheek at her own discretion. The young man, forcibly losing his first kiss, was left in a daze like a turkey, his soul soaring to the nineteenth cloud, and blood gushing out like an unrestricted water fountain, experiencing unbridled joy with a goofy smile. A few young men, having tasted the bitterness of a dog meal, exclaimed, Oh my God, it's so cheesy that I can't stand it. A beautiful girl with money like that, if she doesn't demand a handsome and wealthy boyfriend, I'd even accept being her backup. Yes, who says that people with real skills and charisma can't unearth jade? After completing the auction and tallying up the total jade harvest for the day, Yi Han was overjoyed. He immediately took out his phone to send a triumphant message to his sister. He, a total of 30 million. I finally have money. Money. Sister, I can finally make your life comfortable. He. While standing there laughing happily, Du and I suddenly walked up from behind and reminded, don't stand there laughing foolishly. Let's go quickly. Her face looked cautious as she gently said, Otherwise, be careful of getting robbed in the middle of the road. Yi Han, surprised, asked, Robbed in the middle of the road? It was the first time the young man had heard of such a thing. Understanding the situation, Yi Han quickly grabbed Du Wan Ni's hand and swiftly pulled her away without any hesitation. Then let's run. Du Wan Ni responded hastily, Oh, you're slow. The two of them remained still in the car, but Yi Han was still extremely anxious. He suggested, Do you need to call your family to come pick you up? Having traveled this road many times, Du and I replied, No need, this small road is very safe. However, as soon as she finished speaking, a mysterious cargo van sped towards them from the front. Judging from its appearance, trouble was imminent. Du and Ni quickly glanced at the license plate and prepared for any situation. The cargo van blocked the road, stopping Du An Ni's car. It was clear that they had intentions toward them. Yi Han sensed the danger and stopped the car. Du An Ni sweated nervously, as if she had encountered such groups before. Yi Han, still unaware of what was happening, warned Du An Ni, Be careful. Du An Ni accelerated to try to pass the van, but the path was almost completely blocked. With no other option, she steered her car to turn around maintaining distance to observe what these strangers wanted. Yi Han looked up with a sneer. Hey, what kind of driving is that? Du and Nai remained seated, whispering, don't provoke them hastily. Be cautious and see what they intend to do. A group of young men, precisely three individuals, descended from the van, displaying a defiant attitude with green and red hair, clearly lacking in education. They menacingly spoke. He, this road is closed, little guy. Better get out of here quickly. Seeing that they seemed to be just a bunch of punks, and considering Yi Han's proficiency in martial arts, he didn't pay much attention. He replied, Luckily, there aren't too many of them. However, Du Wan Ni, who had been on high alert the whole time, looked at them and said, I think this car looks too ordinary. He is the legendary truck gang. From the ominous cargo van, people kept emerging one after another. Not only were there many of them, but each one also had a weapon ready. This group was clearly formidable. Yi Han exclaimed, Trouble, how many people are there here? Experiencing a road blockade for the first time, it seemed Yi Han lacked experience. A guy with a composed face stepped forward, hands in his pockets, his face sneering as if inflating a balloon. It's been a while, kid. Ah, now Yi Han finally recognized this group. The one leading them was actually an acquaintance. He confidently stepped down and called out the leader, Ju San. Du and Ni, somewhat surprised that Yi Han knew the red-haired guy, asked, It seems you know him. She then stepped down and inquired further, Do you know him? Yi Han, now no longer as panicked as before, calmly replied, Not only do I know him, but we also have a deep and complicated history. Yi Han called out to the red-haired guy again, his tone mocking, Hey Zhu San, had your thing recovered? Enraged by the enemy touching upon his hidden pain in front of his three younger brothers, Zhu San angrily retorted, Shut up, you damn bastard. His younger companions chuckled, surprising. Zhu San has this kind of pain. 
he quickly changed the subject to avoid embarrassment in front of his gang, brandishing his weapon to threaten. Don't stand there blabbering. You either obediently get on the car yourself, or do you want me to break your legs before you get on? His companions joined in with vulgar remarks. Look at this little guy, so frail, can he withstand a single kick from me? The girl next to him isn't bad either. Want to come home with me? I'm quite impressive. Any beauties want to follow me, huh? Seeing their aggressive demeanor and considering they were all burly types, Du and Nai became extremely worried for Yi Han. She asked softly, Yi Han, what about them? After grasping the background of these losers and realizing that Ju San was just a clueless leader, Yi Han treated them with disdain. He coldly reassured, Don't worry, I'm here. Saying so, he stepped forward, activating his Kaigong practice, preparing various martial arts moves in a ready stance. Yi Han's body was now filled with strength. Zhu San arrogantly spat out his cigarette and shouted, Charge, boys! Teach him a lesson! His gang rushed forward like hungry wolves, jumping in eagerly. Dare to offend San, kid, you're done. Beg for mercy obediently, and I'll go easy on you, one of them threatened. This gang mainly wielded batons and pepper spray. Yi Han observed their every move, storing the actions of these losers in his sight. Just enough for them to taste my key cultivation, to see how effective it is. Opening up his martial arts skills in his mind, Yi Han's hand filled with a surging energy, and the yin yang divine eyes sparkled with power. Yi Han stood firm and declared, Come at me with your best moves. These street fighters had never encountered such a legendary battle before, so they were still taken aback. Yi Han swiftly moved through the crowd like a tornado of blue and green. Each one of them was left dumbfounded their weapons and attacks useless. Each strike landed with devastating precision, penetrating deep into their bones. The chaotic group scattered, crying out, help, oh my god, there's a monster here, superhuman apocalypse. After a while, Yi Han walked forward, rubbing his numb hand. The crowd that was noisy just moments ago was now dispersed, each individual lying in silence. Seeing the image of the handsome Yi Han standing alone against the gangsters, some couldn't help but comment. Too handsome, incredibly so. Yi Han had to take advantage of the situation and casually replied, Just a small matter, he. However, the girl didn't know that Yi Han was now hiding his swollen hand behind his back, quietly groaning inwardly, used too much force accidentally. As for Zhu San, the turtle-like leader, he had crawled under the car and was trying to hide, too scared to move. He muttered to himself, Can't see me, can't see me. Zhu San lay on the ground, sweating profusely, waiting for Yi Han to get bored and leave so he could escape from this disaster. However, at that moment, Yi Han knocked on the car body and then with some terrifying strength lifted the car into the air, revealing Zhu San's confused red-haired head. Yi Han called out, Zhu San, where do you think you're going? The shadow of Yi Han cast over Zhu San and the frightened turtle muttered, I consider this part of my life over here. Yi Han frowned, facing the turtle still whimpering and crying. He reached out his hand of light to firmly grasp it. Please, Mr. Yi, oh Mr. Yi, I was wrong. Don't kill me, I won't dare any more next time, the turtle pleaded in fear. Without saying a word, Yi Han cut short the crying with a gentle lift of the turtle's collar as if it were a flower. Yi Han's voice was cold as he questioned, quickly speak, who sent you here? Zhu San the turtle still holding on to the light widened his eyes in bewilderment. This guy needed an important lead on the force behind this incident. Zhu San didn't dare to hide, answering immediately, It's Fang Jia. The crying turtle Zhu San continued in detail. He told us to come here and capture you and Miss Zhu. Actually, that's all I know. Who? Enraged, Yi Han tossed the dead dog aside into a corner. Du An Nai approached and said, Fang Jia, I've heard of this person. He is the most wicked in Shanghai City, daring to do anything. So we shouldn't get involved with someone like him. Seeing the situation seemed to be progressing better, Mr. Zhu San, ignoring his injuries, approached eagerly and asked, I've said what I should say, can I go now? Yi Han looked at this dead dog from head to toe, then asked, Go, let me help you go. Saying so, Yi Han delivered a sky-kicking blow to Mr. Zhu San, sending him flying like a cotton ball. The turtle soared to the ninth cloud, and his shoes and clothes fell haphazardly to the ground. Duan Nai stepped forward and asked, Ye Han, 
What do you plan to do next? Yi Han thought for a moment before responding. They come knocking on the door. No matter what, we have to respond a bit. Duan Mei knew that Feng Jie's influence was formidable, but she was surprised by Yi Han's unabashed answer. After parting ways with Duan Nai, Yi Han immediately went to the Gel Clan as agreed. He thought to himself, With my current techniques, I can only defeat a few small fries. If facing daring individuals like Feng Jie, my strength is still not enough. The issue related to Feng Jia remained the challenging puzzle for Yi Han. He remained calm, opening the door and entering the Zhao clan's courtyard. Zhao Hao Tan sat there as usual, and Yi Han greeted, Young Master Zhao, it seems you're still diligently cultivating. Yi Han immediately used the yin yang divine eyes to observe. Surprisingly, there was an eerie aura enveloping Zhao Hao Tian's body, radiating a strong presence. After the cultivation session ended, when Zhao Hao Tian opened his eyes, he noticed Yi Han's arrival and said, Your hero, ah. Not wanting to waste any more time, Yi Han promptly addressed the main issue. I've come to learn martial arts and check your legs. As Yi Han finished speaking, Zhao Hao Tian's eyes widened in astonishment as if he had discovered something extraordinary. Approaching him, Zhao Hao Tian grabbed Yi Han's hand and said, Wait a minute. Why is there internal energy in your body after just a few days? This was something Zhao Hao Tan had never seen before, even among the masters in the martial arts world. Yi Han couldn't reveal the true secret, so he quickly came up with a plausible excuse. He replied, Actually, last night I encountered an old beggar. He said my bone structure is especially talented for martial arts and asked me to protect world peace. He even gave me some elixirs. Hearing the fairy tale-like story, Zhao Hao Tan thought to himself, Are you trying to deceive children? Well, if you don't want to tell, I won't force you. He continued, I won't ask about your secrets anymore, but the internal energy in your body and countless techniques can't fully unleash your strength. Yi Han pleaded earnestly. That's why I sought out your clan. Without further ado, Zhao Hao Tan immediately extended his hand to demonstrate the martial arts technique for Yi Han to observe. He cautioned, Focus and watch carefully. What I'm going to teach you now is the five elements fist. In reality, it was a miraculous experience. The martial arts techniques of the Zhao clan, renowned as extraordinary in the martial world, were being unveiled today. Yi Han felt truly impressed. It's impossible to fully comprehend this martial art technique with just regular eyesight, and Yi Han made full use of his yin yang divine eyes. After a frenzy of jumba ethnic dances, Zhao Hao Tan shouted loudly and unleashed a powerful force forward. The strike was invisible, but the force that Yi Han felt was incredibly terrifying. Moreover, the technique blew away a large tree trunk as effortlessly as blowing out a candle. This left Yi Han astonished for a while. The excited young man exclaimed, Wow, this is amazing! Experiencing teachings from a master for the first time, he was ecstatic. I must use this move in real situations later. Zhao Hao Tan replied, It's just ordinary, just ordinary. This is only about three quarters of my strength. However, something seemed off between the two brothers. From inside the house, Du Du poked out and scolded the guy going up to the field. I just planted those trees. What are you guys doing? The two fellows remained silent, afraid to utter a word. Zhao Hao Tan signaled, All right, roughly that's it. You can practice it yourself. It was now Gi Han's turn to learn this new technique and he eagerly flexed his muscles and responded, Sure. Seeing the young man's enthusiasm for learning, Zhao Hao Tian recalled his own youthful training. Back then, I had to work hard and endure for three years to develop such skills. This kid, first, needs to taste the bitterness. Yi Han, focusing on the punches, responded with determination. Unable to wait any longer, Yi Han knew that he didn't have much time to continue practicing the martial arts dance. He furiously waved his hand forward, accompanied by a loud shout, Hey ya! Suddenly, a terrifying force surged forward. This time, instead of a tree as before, there was the wall surrounding the Zhao family's house in front of them. The tremendous impact knocked down an entire section of the wall, leaving Yi Han wide-eyed in disbelief. He couldn't believe the strength of his own martial arts, but he joyfully exclaimed, Success! Ha 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 ha! Zhao Hao Tian luckily leaning against a car, would have fallen to the ground otherwise due to the horrifying force. 
he couldn't help but gape in amazement. It's done. What a funny turn of events. Yi Han, with a triumphant stride, asked. So, did I do well? Zhao Hao Tian, recovering from his shock, jokingly scored him. Ahem, you reluctantly practiced, but it's acceptable. Who would foolishly speak loudly and break down the wall of the Zhao family residence? After saying that, Zhao Hao Tan took out a martial art manual and handed it to Yi Han, saying, This is my martial arts manual. If you don't understand anything, you can come ask me. Yi Han gratefully accepted it and began studying the contents of the manual attentively. Yi Han marveled, Ah, so it's like this. However, he had no idea that something more ominous than his recent strike was quietly approaching from behind. My hop's wall. Intuition immediately alerted Yi Han. There's an aura. He quickly turned around, but all he saw in time was fists as heavy as sledgehammers pounding down on him. Today, Doo Doo, as spirited as ever, exclaimed, Only after finishing the house wall repairs, then you can come. Truly living up to being the daughter of the Zhao family, even more fierce than her brother Zhao Hao Tian. Ha ha ha. Three days later, at Feng Jie's not so ancient bar, a handsome MC rapper greeted, Hey folks. All the bills tonight are covered by Mr. Zhao, so have a blast everyone. The crowd, ecstatic, cheered, and roared in excitement. Bikini-clad girls flaunted their curves, showcasing various skills performed in this bar. In the midst of our revelry, nothing can stop us, say yeah. At a glance, this bar seems to have everything one could desire. Yi Han, at some point, proactively made his way there. After observing everything, he chose a corner, leisurely sipping a glass of whiskey. In his thoughts, information from Du and Ni's source indicates that this is Feng Jia's major business. Having lost interest in this place, he muttered, Feng Jia, you cunning scoundrel. Emptying the bottle, Yi Han silently walked into the midst of the crowd. He thought even the Zhu family can't find him using their methods so. Turning towards the sound and light stage of the bar, Yi Han smiled sinisterly. He knew that if he wanted to lure out the tiger, he had to enter its den, so he took the initiative to throw the bottle directly, saying, Let's lure him out directly. A deafening explosion echoed through the room, and suddenly, the lights went out in fits and starts. The cheerful crowd sensed trouble and immediately scattered, shouting in panic, Oh, save us! What's happening? Fight! Run for your lives! Yi Han stood calmly, everything seemingly going according to plan. Immediately, the bar's security guards, hungry like a pack of wolves, surrounded Yi Han, menacingly taunting him. Daring to cause trouble in Feng Jia's territory, you must be tired of living. Dare to resist and we'll break your legs. Come with us right away. Yi Han smiled amusedly, crossing his arms without a hint of fear, relying on a bunch of shrimp-like guys, and you want to bully me? Call Feng Jia out here for me. The crazy-headed security guards scoffed. Never met a cocky skinny guy like this kid. They continued to mock him. How do you even deserve to meet Feng Jia? Get lost. Charge at this brat. I don't see you drinking the offered alcohol. Yet you want drink punishment alcohol. Find death yourself. Yi Han was ready to put his practiced martial arts into action. After a few days of study, I've preliminarily mastered the Wuxing martial arts. Today, let me demonstrate a bit of my training. Saying this, Yi Han lowered his posture, activating his internal force. The security guards charged in, a scene unfolding exactly as Yi Han had anticipated. Yi Han unleashed his techniques at an incredible speed, executing authoritative, all-encompassing strikes, combining agility and powerful attacks against the group. After kicking one person, he swiftly dodged to punch another in the face. They were unable to resist, only falling victim to Yi Han's blows. In less than a minute, all ten subordinates were completely defeated lying unconscious on the floor. Yi Han casually wiped his hands, looking down at the weak individuals beneath him, disdainfully saying, Hemph, it only took a moment to clean them up. Those inside the bar witnessed the scene in horror, exclaiming, Defeating ten in one strike, just a few seconds, too formidable. This senior brother is undoubtedly a master. Some still believed in Feng Jie's strength, telling those around them, Master my foot. Wait until Feng Jia shows up. This kit is finished. At this moment, on the second floor of the bar, a slow and deliberate step approached. A deep voice echoing. The young man's skills aren't bad. 
The person on the second floor was a man around 50 years old, a cane supporting him as he wore a suit. Behind him stood a group of tall, imposing figures, standing sternly behind the elderly man. He looked at Yi Han with a serious tone and continued, But daring to cause trouble in our territory, without any explanation, today you won't dream of leaving here. This old man is Feng Jia, the owner of the group of people in the bar. Yi Han looked at Feng Jia, coldly smiling as he questioned, I ask you, three days ago, you sent someone to block my way, who is the mastermind behind it? Feng Jia looked at Yi Han, his voice gradually turning colder as he sneered. So it's you, kid, come at me. He is the one Bei Young Master has targeted. Two subordinates of Feng Jia immediately followed orders, saying, understood. Hearing this reason, the onlookers exclaimed in shock, What? This kid actually offended Bai Young Master. After Feng Jia gave the order, his subordinates rushed down to surround Yi Han in the middle. They had menacing faces and taunted, Go and die. Surrounded, Yi Han easily dispatched Feng Jia's subordinates. He then ascended to the second floor, facing Feng Jia. Feng Jia, witnessing the power of Yi Han's strikes, opened his eyes wide in astonishment, saying, An internal energy expert. Yi Han, with a threatening grip on his hand, arrogantly warned, You're right. If you don't want to get hit, obediently answer my question. Feng Jia, looking at Yi Han showcasing his strength, gave a cold laugh. Afterward, the old man tossed the cane in his hand outside, saying it's been a long time since I used my full strength. With a cracking sound, Feng Jia's robust figure was fully revealed, muscles bulging, and veins prominent. The body of Feng Jia was burning, making it hard to believe that this physique belonged to a man over 50 years old. He said, I'm also an internal energy expert. Let's settle this today. Yi Han looked at Feng Jia, his face darkening, and said, Overconfidence. Yi Han's face turned serious, a smirk on his lips as he provocatively asked, Want to kill me? Come and try. Having said that, Yi Han's entire body was filled with internal energy, extending his hand towards Feng Jia provocatively. At this moment, the scene in the bar had two individuals facing each other. One large and one small, one in red and one in green, both with equally imposing momentum. The onlookers inside the bar huddled behind the pillars, gossiping. These two forces are terrifying. Who is that kid? How can he have strength equivalent to Feng Jia? Who will win? On the battlefield, Feng Jia extended a fist, launching a ferocious attack towards Yi Han. On the other side, Yi Han was not inferior using his martial arts to counter with immense strength. In an instant, the two techniques collided, creating a powerful whirlwind of force that was beyond imagination. The people in the bar were blown away by the impact of the two punches, clinging to walls and pillars for support. Some couldn't hold on and were blown outside, their clothes scattered in the wind. They screamed in terror. Too powerful. The impact is too strong. Help, I'm about to be blown away. I don't want to stay here. I want to go home. On this side, both Yi Han and Feng Jia were pushed back by the force of the punches. Feng Jia bore many injuries, staring silently at Yi Han. Yi Han, equally injured, struggled to breathe. Onlookers emerged cautiously, gazing at the two and asking, Who won? Someone supporting Feng Jia said, Feng Jia's internal strength is profound. He must have won. Others were unsure, saying, We'll see. On Yi Han's side, he knelt on the ground, blood trickling from his mouth. He stood up with difficulty, biting his lip. Feng Jia observed Yi Han standing up with difficulty and sneered, You're still too inexperienced, young man. Before Feng Jia could finish his words, a beam of light shot from behind him. Feng Jia's face turned horrifyingly pale, and he collapsed to the ground. Yi Han looked down at Feng Jia and sneered. Feng Jia raised his head, blood dripping from his mouth and said with difficulty, How? How is it possible? How could I lose to someone? Yi Han wiped away the blood from his lip disdainfully, and said, Your techniques were seen through by me a long time ago. But in Yi Han's heart, he thought, I used the yin yang divine eyes to see through the trajectory of the spiritual energy in his body, causing internal injuries. People in the bar, witnessing Feng Jia's strength, were astonished at his defeat. They retreated in fear, saying, he lost, he lost. Feng Jia, how could he lose? This kid is terrifying. Let's run while he's not paying attention. Meanwhile, 
Feng Jiao lying on the ground, hearing Yi Han's words, muttered, Despicable, how could I lose to a little brat with barely any experience? Feng Jia reached into his pocket, pulling out a pistol. He looked at Yi Han, who was approaching slowly. Yi Han questioned, Are you Bai Lu Yuan, also known as Bai Young Master? Feng Jia struggled to stand up, offering a condition to Yi Han. Yes, I am. Can you spare me? Yi Han crossed his arms, his expression emotionless, and coldly said, I can spare your life, but for the harm you've done to others, I will disable your martial arts skills. When Yi Han wasn't paying attention, Feng Jia quickly pulled out a gun from his pocket, aiming it at Yi Han. Looking at the barrel in front of him, Yi Han exclaimed, It's over. He has a gun. At that moment, a police siren sounded outside the bar. A beautiful policewoman entered, dressed in a tight-fitting uniform, with a perfect figure and a serious expression. This policewoman was Officer Ruan. She drew her gun and fired a shot towards Feng Jia, shouting at those inside, Drop your weapons. Everyone raise your hands. The bullet from Officer Ruan's gun pierced Feng Jia's hand, causing him to scream in pain. Ah, my hand. Consequently, the gun in his hand fell to the ground. Inwardly cursing, Feng Jia thought, why did the police have to show up here? Outside the door, many police officers entered, loudly commanding those inside, Police here. Everyone stand still and raise your hands. Organizing a fight here? You'll all come with me for investigation. After a while of cleaning up, the police gathered everyone, handcuffing those at the bar. The restrained group, frightened and tearful, pleaded, Officer, we were wrong. We're sorry. Police officer Ruin approached the place where Yi Han was resting after the fight. She placed one foot on a stool, hand on her hip, and with the other hand shaking the handcuffs, said to Yi Han, You can either handcuff yourself, or let me help you with that. Subsequently, Yi Han was taken to the interrogation room. Inside the interrogation room, Yi Han casually sat on the chair, playing with his earlobe and yawning. Officer Ruin walked in from outside, holding a piece of paper. Officer Ruin read aloud, Lai Han, 18 years old, height 1.8 meters, parents deceased, living with his older sister. Is that correct? Yi Han smiled brightly and cheerfully replied, Everything the police said is correct. This profile looks at a glance like that of an upright citizen, so you should quickly release me. Officer Ruwen, visibly irritated, slammed the table and stared at Yi Han, scolding, Enough with the nonsense. If you're such a good citizen, what happened a few days ago with you and Ju San's group? Yi Han tried to force a smile, diverting the topic. Well, you should ask Ju San about that. He actively blocked my way, and I was just defending myself. Officer Ruwen leaned in closer to Yi Han, looking straight into his eyes with anger, and interrogated over 30 people unconscious. Ju San seriously injured, and you dare tell me it was self defense. Yi Han paid no attention to Officer Ruwen's words, his focus was elsewhere. His eyes formed heart shapes, and blood from his nose flowed uncontrollably. Seeing Officer Ruin staring at him, Yi Han scratched his face weakly and said, So according to you, I have to stand still and take the hits without resisting. Officer Ruin, frustrated by Yi Han's attempt to justify himself, grabbed the collar of Yi Han's shirt, lifted him up, and through gritted teeth, said, In such a short time, you've transformed from a weak man to someone so powerful. Who is behind you? Foreign forces or an underground organization? Speak quickly. Yi Han, being pulled like that, had a horrified expression on his face. His gaze slowly lowered, but what met his eyes was Officer Ruin's chest. Drool continued to drip from Yi Han's mouth as he said with a lustful tone, big and firm. Officer Ruin followed Yi Han's gaze, her hand tightening into a fist in anger. She lifted Yi Han, her eyes resembling bullets, and extended her hand saying, tell me where. Just as Officer Ruin's foot was about to strike, Yi Han glanced over, surprising her, and said, Ha, huh, you want to attack. Yi Han swiftly pushed the arm grasping him away, looped around Officer Ruin's high-kicking leg, and sat down on the ground, letting out a sigh, relieved. Seeing Yi Han looking up from under her feet, Officer Ruin, infuriated and flushed, stomped her foot and shouted, Go to hell. Yi Han quickly raised both hands to block Officer Ruin's attack, sighed lightly, and said, Hicks Hicks, too dangerous. Yi Han smirked provocatively, 
Officer Ruan, if you want to test my strength, it's probably not the right place. Teased by Yi Han like that, Officer Ruan, furious, tried to push Yi Han away with her foot, saying, Wretched, quickly release your hands, and don't look with your eyes closed. Just as Officer Ruan threw a punch, her fist stopped right in front of Yi Han's face, but Yi Han's eyes were elsewhere, shining like stars. They lit up a glowing triangle, emitting a divine light. Officer Ruan released a burst of energy, knocking Yi Han off her leg, and Yi Han cried out, blood splattering as he fell to the floor. Lying on the ground, Yi Han's mind was fuzzy as he mumbled, It's over. I think I saw the edge of the universe. As Officer Ruin regained her composure, a sinister aura surrounded her. She clenched her fist and moved toward Yi Han, her voice like a demonic entity, angrily saying, Wretched, I have to kill you. Meanwhile, Yi Han, seeing the approaching figure, anxiously stepped back, hurriedly explaining, Beautiful lady, please don't get agitated. Actually, I didn't see the color of your underwear. The more Yi Han explained, the more embarrassed he became, quickly cut off by the furious Officer Ruin. Officer Ruin angrily shouted, Shut up! At that moment, another police officer opened the door and spoke loudly into the room. Captain, Chief Ju has arrived and is releasing the Feng Ju group. While Officer Ruan was still fuming with anger, she heard the sound from behind, glanced back, and asked, What? Officer Ruan then turned around, regained her composure, and calmly walked out, saying, I'll check on that. Yi Han, sitting in the corner, let out a sigh of relief. Saved. Before leaving, Officer Ruan didn't forget to instruct another police officer. Take this kid with me. The police officer nodded and said, Understood, Captain. Afterward, the police officer swiftly grabbed Yi Han and followed Officer Ruin outside. In another room, Chief Zhu, Zhu Sing Dong, was shaking hands with Feng Jia, smiling. Feng Jia said, Chief Zhu, thank you for this. Later, I'll send some local specialties to your home. Zhu Sing Dong laughed graciously. No need for such politeness among friends. At this moment, Officer Ruin and another police officer let Yi Han into the room. Officer Ruin had a tense expression and argued with Zhu Xing Dong. Chief, there was no intoxication at the bar. During the investigation, we found a firearm, and I suspect they were involved in illegal activities. We can't release them. Zhu Xing Dong turned to the teaching room and said, Officer Ruin, without evidence, you can't make baseless accusations. Mr. Feng is a legitimate businessman and the firearm is only for self-defense. They have the proper gun permit, completely legal. Then he pointed fiercely at Yi Han, saying, This kid is the focal point of our investigation, understand? It turned out that Zhu Xing Dong and Feng Jia were colluding. Feng Jia praised with a loud laugh, Chief Zhu, you are truly wise. With your guidance, I believe our law and order will improve day by day. Zhu Xing Dong echoed with a smirk, Of course, of course. Officer Ruin, not agreeing with the two, said, We should only release them after a thorough investigation. Releasing them now without a proper investigation is not appropriate. Zhu Sing Dong, angered by Officer Ruin's disobedience, pointed directly at her face and sternly said, Whether I'm the chief or you're the chief, I decide what to do. Quickly bring this Yi Han out and send him to the detention center. The group of police officers, following Zhu Sing Dong's command, rushed in to surround Yi Han inside. Yi Han, without a hint of worry or fear, casually said, Chief Zhu, I advise you to think carefully. In Yi Han's hand was a phone with a distress message from him. I am at the police station. Come quickly. Seeing that Yi Han wasn't afraid, Zhu Xing Dong clenched his fist and approached menacingly, saying, You rotten kid dare to talk to me about thinking. Take him away. I will personally interrogate him later. The police officers acknowledged, yes. Zhu Xing Dong's menacing face advanced towards Yi Han. At that moment, Officer Ruin quickly stepped forward to block Yi Han and said, Stop! Officer Ruin held up her phone and addressed everyone. I just received a report. From now on, I will take full responsibility for this case. Everyone step back and let me handle it. Zhu Xing Dong, furious, pointed at Officer Ruin and shouted, Nonsense! Captain Ruan, who are you talking to? Are you even aware of my authority as the chief? Officer Ruan, with a cold tone, stated, 
This is a direct order from higher-ups. Then she issued a command to everyone. Now, all police officers, follow orders and arrest Feng Tao. Meanwhile, Zhu Xing Dong, angry and gritting his teeth, glared at Officer Ruan. The group of police officers standing outside was caught in the middle, hesitating and saying, Who should we listen to in the end? Captain Ruan probably won't arbitrarily forge orders from higher-ups. It's a legal notification. Surely it's genuine. One officer looked at Officer Ruan and expressed trust. Captain Ruan holds orders from higher-ups. I believe everything she says is true. Seeing that the police officers were following Officer Ruan's lead, Zhu Sing Dong, furious, erupted, you guys, acting like normal police, how can you blindly believe in order without any basis? He pointed towards Officer Ruan and shouted angrily, Ruan Ling Kao, I must relieve you of your position as captain. At that moment, an angry voice echoed from outside the door, who you think you are, daring to dismiss Captain Ruan? Zhu Sing Dong, upon hearing this voice, froze and turned his head towards the source of the sound. Three individuals entered from outside. Two men and a woman. Leading the group was Tang Hai Bin, with Lin Bai and Zhu Duan Nai accompanying him. Hearing the commotion, Yi Han joyfully exclaimed, Duan Ni, Brother Lin. Lin Bai Mo and Duan Nai also expressed their excitement, saying, Yi Han. Seeing the three individuals enter, everyone turned towards them, showing respect and courtesy. The people inside were alarmed and exclaimed, Oh my! Why are there suddenly so many important figures here? Tang Hai Bin, the mayor's son, young master of the Lin family, and Miss Zhu from the Zhu family, all influential figures. Why have they come here? Observing the situation, Zhu Xing Dong had an uneasy feeling in his mind. He worried, don't make any rash moves. These people are probably here for Yi Han. Feng Tao shared similar concerns, silently cursing. Damn it, Bai Lu Yuan. Wasn't it said that this guy has no influential backing? Tang Hai Bin approached Zhu Xing Dong and Feng Tao, menacingly declaring, I heard that someone bullied my younger brother. I came to see who the old fool with such audacity is. Zhu Xing Dong and Feng Tao, like tortoises retracting into their shells, timidly stepped back, not daring to utter a word. Despite their fear, both seethed with anger, silently cursing. Damn, how dare he insult us like that? Zhu Sing Dong tightened his grip on the table. Trembling with a forced smile, he said, Young Master Tang is just joking. We are only acting in accordance with the law, ensuring justice for the innocent. Lin Bai Mo, looking at the furious Zhu Sing Dong, questioned Feng Tao as the leader of an underground gang. You avoid arrest. Instead, you arrest my innocent brother. Is this considered justice? Hearing this, Zhu Sing Dong's face stiffened, and he retorted with malice. Young Master Lin, you must present evidence. Deliberate defamation carries legal consequences. Seeing him persist, Tang Hai Bin sneered. Chief Ju, heaven has eyes. Don't think you can hide certain things. Zhu Xing Dong, startled, felt uneasy, but determined, confidently affirmed. I stand upright and fear no death. Tang Hai Bin took out his phone and placed it in front of Zhu Xing Dong, saying, if you want evidence, I'll provide it. Tang Hai Bin held the phone to his ear and said, Zhao, come over. The person on the other end, known as Zhao, nodded and replied, Sure, I've been waiting for this day. Chief Zhao entered with a document and angrily pointed at Zhu Xing Dong, saying, Zhu Xing Dong, you damn fellow. What evidence do you need? It's all in my possession. As soon as Zhu Xing Dong heard this, his face turned pale. Startled, he stepped back and stammered, Chief Zhao, why are you here? Chief Zhao, furious, threw the file at Zhu Xing Dong, saying, The directive just came down. Zhu Xing Dong colluded with the underworld forces, suspended from duty, pending investigation. Zhu Xing Dong was thrown into confusion by these documents, panicking and exclaiming, Investigation and suspension. Feng Tao hurriedly approached Zhu Xing Dong and whispered, Chief Zhu, take a good look at these. Stop engaging in wrongdoing or you might face suspension. Zhu Sing Dong, furious to the point of madness, turned directly to Feng Tao and shouted, It's all because of you. Feng Tao, scolded, retreated behind, and then Zhu Sing Dong and Feng Tao engaged in a physical altercation. 
Juke Sing Dong roared angrily. Feng Tao, you've harmed me. I'll risk my life against you. Feng Tao, under attack, also fought back, landing blows on Juke Sing Dong's face, saying, I don't know anything. Stop hitting, or I'll fight back. Seeing the brawl, Chief Zhao, embarrassed, covered his face and angrily ordered, separate them now. The police followed the order. Understood. They quickly intervened, pulling the two apart and escorting them outside. Yi Han stayed back, watching Fang Tao and Zhu Sing Dong leave. Yi Han snorted and commented, Serves them right. Who told them to oppress us day in and day out? Tang Hai Bin and the others stood behind, observing Yi Han's demeanor, sharing a common thought, considering himself a victim. With so many people coming to his aid, he still wants to deceive someone. Shameless. On that evening, the four of them, Yi Han, Tang Hai Bin, Lin Bai Mo, and Duan Ni, sat around the dining table to celebrate the occasion. Each held a glass of beer, toasting together. Yi Han clasped his hands and said to Tang Hai Bin, Big Brother Tang, Big Brother Lin, and also Duan Ni, thank you all for this occasion. Tang Hai Bin smiled warmly and said, It's a small matter. I heard from Bai Mo about you before and our elder brother has long wanted to be friends with you. Lin Bai Mo, upon hearing this, shuffled and said, You should thank Duan Ni for her kindness. For your matter, she directly used her family connections, issued orders, and that's why it was resolved so quickly. Yi Han blushed at this point, laughed awkwardly, and said, The relationship between Duan Nai and me doesn't need words of thanks. Duan Ni, feeling embarrassed, quickly pushed Yi Han away and said, Stop it. There's no relationship with him. Seeing Duan Nai so embarrassed, everyone burst into laughter. Later, Yi Han raised his beer again, addressing everyone loudly, Come on, let's continue drinking. After that, everyone raised their glasses, finishing them in one go. After a while, the table was filled with beer bottles. Yi Han lifted his glass again, his face now flushed, and said, Come on, Tang, Lin, let's keep drinking. Yi Han looked towards the table, where everyone was completely intoxicated, lying sprawled out on the table. Seeing them like this, Yi Han suspiciously asked, Why is everyone down already? We haven't even had that much to drink, have we? Lin Bai Mo, with a flushed face, admired Yi Han and said, Lai Han, you can handle your liquor. Yi Han, looking at everyone already drunk, thought to himself, it seems that after practicing Kaigong, my alcohol tolerance has increased a lot. After that, Yi Han lifted Du and Nai onto his shoulder and said to Lin Bai Mo, It's time to go now. Lin Bai Mo nodded in agreement and said, All right. Then, he helped Tang Hai Bin, who had passed out, to wake up. Lin Bai Mo took Tang Hai Bin home, reminding Yi Han before leaving, Lai Han, I'll take Tang Hai Bin home first. Du on Ni, she's in your care. Hearing this, Yi Han hurriedly raised his hand to protest, saying, Wait, what do you mean in your care? Lin Bai Mo, upon hearing this, winked meaningfully and said, Lai Han, hang in there. Yi Han, with a darkened face, helplessly said, What is this supposed to mean? Yi Han put his arm around Du An Ni's neck and helped her walk ahead. At this moment, Du An Ni, feeling uncomfortable, sweated profusely, tugging at her clothes and said, It's too hot. Seeing Duan Nai in this state, Yi Han panicked and didn't know where to put his hands, saying, No, 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 we're on the road now, my lady. After that, Duan Nai couldn't control herself and vomited a rainbow on Yi Han. All of it landed on Yi Han. Startled, Yi Han shouted, Hey, don't vomit. In the end, Yi Han had to take Duan Nai into the hotel to clean up. With the mess all over them, Going home was not an option. After finishing the shower, Yi Han opened the bathroom door and sighed, saying, Phew, finally done showering. Yi Han walked outside. On the bed, Duan Ni was sleeping like a log. Yi Han leaned against the wall, looking at Duan Ni, a smirk on his face, saying, Who says that someone will be well-behaved and pure when drunk is talking nonsense? However, Duan Ni lying on the bed was not as well-behaved, she was all hot, struggling to push the blanket off, groaning uncomfortably, saying, It's too hot. On the bed at this moment, Duan Nai with her fiery figure, her face flushed due to the heat. Yi Han, 
Witnessing this hot scene, couldn't help but brighten his eyes, his face flushing, saying, too beautiful. In his heart, Yi Han couldn't help but think, could it be that tonight marks the end of my single days? Du and I, lying on the bed, suddenly turned around, and her leg coincidentally kicked onto Yi Han's private part. Being kicked like that, Yi Han immediately stopped. The space around the bed seemed to freeze. Yi Han's place cracked, and his face became frozen. He turned pale and screamed in pain. After that, Yi Han curled up on the ground, holding one to his private parts, crying in his mind, I was wrong. Who? I shouldn't have had that thought. At this moment, Du An Ni's phone on the table rang. Yi Han struggled to crawl towards the table, grimacing in pain, and with a pale face, he said, It's this late. Who could be calling now? Seeing Zhu's name on the screen, Yi Han speculated in his mind, So it's Mr. Zhu. Probably couldn't find Du An Ni and got anxious. I'll explain things a bit to them. Yi Han picked up the phone and said, Hello, Mr. Zhu. It's Yi Han. On the other side, Mr. Zhu, upon hearing it was Yi Han, shuffled and said, Oh, Yi Han, just in time. I've been wanting to talk to you these past few days. Hearing this, Yi Han was suspicious and asked, What's the matter you want to talk to me about? On the other end, Mr. Zhu hesitated a bit and said, Let's discuss this when we meet. But then, Mr. Zhu realized something was wrong. He shouted into the phone, Wait, this isn't right. It's too late. Why are you answering Du An Ni's phone? Where is the girl? Yi Han hurriedly said, Mr. Zhu, please don't get agitated. Du An Ni is sleeping. On the other side, upon hearing the words is sleeping, Mr. Zhu angrily exclaimed, Sleeping? What? Realizing the misunderstanding, Yi Han panickedly explained, No, 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 please don't misunderstand. Du An Ni, and I haven't done anything. To add credibility to his words, Yi Han raised his hand in a sincere gesture and said, I swear. Mr. Zhu on the other end also understood that Yi Han wasn't that kind of person, and his tone softened. Mr. Zhu cautioned, All right, I won't object to your relationship. However, the gateway in my daughter's heart, you'll have to navigate that on your own. Time is running out, so for now, let it be. After saying this, Mr. Zhu hung up, not giving Yi Han a chance to say anything more. On his end, Yi Han listened to the phone's disconnecting sound, looking at the phone suspiciously, thinking, What strange business is this? What gateway do I have to pass through? That evening quickly passed. The next morning, the sun had risen high. In the hotel room, Du Annette was lying on the bed, and Yi Han was on the floor. Both were deeply immersed in sleep. Yi Han lay on the floor, lost in a dream, drooling uncontrollably with a flushed face and murmuring, Du An Nai. Mom. It turned out that Yi Han was dreaming about intimate moments with Duan Nai. Just then, a loud scream from Duan Nai echoed. Startled by the sound, Yi Han abruptly woke up from the dream, looking around in panic, asking, What happened? Is it an earthquake, a tsunami, or a fire? On the bed, Duan Nai clung tightly to the blanket, her face blushing with embarrassment as she screamed even louder. Seeing Yi Han in front of her, Duan Nai became furious and gave him the painful slap. Du An Nai shouted, Ye Han, you scoundrel. It was still early in the morning, and Ye Han had already received a slap, sitting in one place rubbing his face, bewildered, asking, What did I do? Seeing that Ye Han refused to admit Du An Ni, with tears streaming down her face, hugged herself and sobbed, You scoundrel, beast, how could you take advantage of me being drunk? I don't want live anymore. Yi Han stood up, trying to explain to the crying Duan Nai, Gorgeous lady, I didn't do anything. I just helped you undress from your dirty clothes. Duan Ni cried even more hysterically, saying, Even if you didn't force me, I'm sure you've seen everything, and you've touched me too. Yi Han immediately raised both hands, making a solemn gesture and said, When I helped you undress, I turned off the lights. I swear there was no inappropriate touch. Hearing this explanation, Du An Ni finally calmed down, blushing and asked, Really? You didn't deceive me? Yi Han quickly affirmed, saying, Absolutely true. Even truer than gold. Do you take me for that kind of person? However, deep in Yi Han's heart, he secretly thought, Well, maybe just a little touch. Of course, he wouldn't say such words out loud. Du An Nai stared into Yi Han's eyes and interrogated, 
Are you sure you didn't touch me inappropriately, didn't peep at me, and didn't engage in any indecent acts with me? Yi Han confidently stated, I'm 100% sure. Hearing this, Du and I became even more angry, giving Yi Han another slap. Furious, Du and I said, Such a good opportunity, and you let it slip away. Yi Han, you're not even as good as an animal. Yi Han was thrown into a corner, his face now resembling two huge steamed buns. Yi Han cried and lamented. Women's hearts are unpredictable. On the other side, after dealing with Yi Han, Du and I took out her phone and called, Hello, I'm in room 302 at Friendship Hotel. Quickly bring my clothes here. Seeing Du and Ni on the phone, Yi Han seized the opportunity to sneak out, whispering to himself. I better make a run for it now. Yi Han quickly crawled to the door, his trembling hand reaching for the door lock. Unfortunately, as soon as his hand touched the lock, a knife flew past Yi Han's face, embedding itself into the door. Seeing the sharp knife inches from his face, Yi Han's face turned pale, and he let out a sigh of relief, almost lost my life. Duan Ni, standing behind him like a ghost, coldly said, You've seen my body, and now you want to escape. Yi Han startled, looked back at Duan Nai nervously, and stammered, That, that's not what you think. Sitting on the bed, Duan Nai casually said, I haven't figured out what to do yet. Wait for me to come up with a plan. But one thing for sure, if I call you, you must show up. No refusal allowed. Yi Han heard this as if he had been granted clemency, saying, All right, I have something to do. Whatever it is, just call me. After that, Yi Han, as swift as lightning, rushed out of the hotel room, not daring to look back. Unbeknownst to him, Du and I sat behind, slowly raising her hand, her eyes filled with eerie charm as she said, Humph, Yi Han, you can't escape my grasp. After leaving the hotel, Yi Han breathed heavily, feeling relieved, thinking to himself, Huh, didn't expect to fall into Ju Du and Ni's hands. I wonder what demands she'll make next. Right at that moment, Tang Hai Bin zoomed up in his car, Spotting Yi Han, he waved and greeted, Yi Han. Yi Han turned to look at Tang Hai Bin, surprised, and asked, Tang, why are you here? Tang Hai Bin smiled mysteriously, saying, Last night must have been quite stimulating. Ha, huh, I even specially brought you six sets of Dia Wine Replenishing Vitality, just the right amount for a moderate workout. Yi Han stepped onto Tang Hai Bin's car, shaking his head in frustration, difficult to put into words. As if remembering something, Yi Han then inquired, By the way, where's Lin Bai Mo? Tang Hai Bin said there's something in his house, so he left first. I had nothing to do and came to find you for some company. Where shall we go? After some thought, Yi Han suggested, How about finding my sister? It's perfect. I had something to tell her. Tang Hai Bin happily nodded in agreement. Sure, with my driving skills, we can go anywhere. Swiftly, Yi Han and Tang Hai Bin arrived at the renowned National Fabric Weaving Workshop. The security guards, seeing the car approaching, anxiously glanced at each other and said, Oh God, another leader coming for an inspection. They quickly raised the barriers and respectfully greeted, Hello leaders. Yi Han, sitting in the car, directed a greeting towards them. You've been working hard, comrades. At this moment, the security guards just realized that the person sitting inside the car was indeed Yi Han. They looked at each other in shock and said, Wait, isn't the guy sitting in the car Yi Han? How is this possible? This kid has been absent from work for several days without permission. If it weren't for his sister begging, he would have been expelled long ago. Yi Han, standing in front of the workshop gate, said, We've arrived. Afterward, the two of them casually walked inside. In front of the astonished eyes of the workers in the workshop, one worker, upon seeing Yi Han, stood up and questioned, Yi Han. After so many days, now you decide to show up? Director Wine didn't approve your leave request. He insisted on expelling you. Your sister is in the office. You better go there quickly and seek her help. Hearing this, Yi Han turned back, smiled arrogantly, and said, No worries. I came back this time to resign. Then he turned to Tang Hai Bin and explained, Since childhood, my sister and I have relied on each other, working as factory workers. Tang, you won't mock me, will you? Tang Hai Bin, of course, wouldn't mock Yi Han. He even said, Nonsense. Am I that kind of person? Quickly, the two arrived in front of the director's office. 
At this moment, there was a pleading voice from inside the office. Director Wang, please don't come over here, or I'll scream. At this moment, Yi Han also realized that the pleading voice belonged to his sister. Inside the director's office, Yi Xin, disheveled and cowering in a corner, fearfully retreated and said, don't, please don't. The director paid no attention to this plea. With a lecherous face, he slowly approached, threatening Yi Xin. Try screaming, and I'll immediately fire both you and your sister. By then, let's see how the two of you survive on plain water and fresh air alone. Yi Xin, enraged, shouted, You, you're despicable. I'll report you to the workshop supervisor. He didn't care about her words, directly advancing and saying, The workshop supervisor is my brother-in-law. Your attempts are futile. Serve me obediently. Yi Xin's face flushed, terrified, and she screamed, Don't, please don't. At that moment, Yi Han kicked the door open, furious, and shouted, Stop, dare to harm my sister, I'll kill you. Yi Han kicked the door open and delivered a powerful kick to the director's face, sending him flying. Yi Han quickly took off his shirt, covering Yi Xin, and asked with concern, Sister, are you okay? Yi Xin, with glistening eyes, looked at Yi Han and said, I'm fine. The one not doing well at this moment was the director, lying crumpled against the wall, looking pitiful. Yi Xin's tears flowed out of fear as she asked, Han, why did you get Director Wang? He might fire you for that. Yi Han took his sister's hand, gently comforting her, and said, Sister, this time I came back to help you resign. I've earned a substantial amount of money, so you won't have to suffer anymore. On the other side, Director Wang, missing a few teeth, angrily pointed at Yi Han and shouted, Wretched, how dare you hit me? I'll kill you. He gave orders, saying, Someone, bring the personnel of these two to my office immediately. After making the call, he menacingly pointed at Yi Han and his sister, threatening, Punk, wait for your death. Yi Xin, frightened by Director Wang's threat, looked at Yi Han anxiously and said, Han, run away quickly and I'll try to hold them off. Yi Han confidently replied, Sister, don't worry. They won't dare to retaliate against me. Tang Hai Bin, standing with crossed arms against the wall, chuckled and said, Even Feng Jia, with all its prestige, isn't a match for Yi Han. These ruffians are just small fry. Yi Xin turned to look at Yi Han, still skeptical, and asked, Han, is what he said true? At this very moment, the group of enforcers summoned by Director Wang arrived. These thugs, armed with sticks and knives, menacingly declared, Boss, we're here. Whoever dared to cause trouble for you, we'll make sure he learns his lesson. Director Wang pointed towards Yi Han and said, It's him. Teach him a lesson. Upon receiving Director Wang's command, the gang of thugs swiftly advanced towards Yi Han, saying, Let's teach him a lesson. Kid, prepare yourself. If you kneel down and beg for mercy now, the boss might go easy on you. The scene unfolding for onlookers outside was a chaotic brawl, accompanied by desperate screams emanating from within. Workers outside, upon hearing the commotion, exchanged worried glances. One of them spoke up. What's happening in there? Why is it so intense? Another worker stepped forward and explained. It seems Yi Han attacked Director Wang. And now Director Wang has called these guys to settle the score with him. Upon hearing that Director Wang got attacked, someone chuckled, Well done. That old lecher harasses the girls in the factory every day. I've been wanting to see him get a beating. Concerned for Yi Han, another person remarked, Yi Han, you've stirred up too much trouble. How can he face off against all those people alone? Right at this moment, a group of people were forcefully expelled from the room, accompanied by a loud shout, Get lost. The interior of the room was no less chaotic. Yi Han stood defiantly in the middle, surrounded by Director Wang's subordinates. Yi Han sneered and said, Hamph, a bunch of cowards. Witnessing this scene, the onlookers outside were shocked, their mouths agape. Someone exclaimed, Li Han, is it just my imagination, or did he really take on the whole group alone? Yi Han, isn't that kid supposed to be frail? How did he become so strong? Yi Xin, standing beside them, was equally astonished holding her mouth in disbelief. Little Han, how did you become so formidable? Yi Han scratched his head and quickly found an excuse. 
I've studied under a master and learned a few tricks from him. Tang Hai Bin, sitting nonchalantly, remarked, I haven't taught you anything. Meanwhile, Director Wang, seizing the moment when everyone was distracted, quietly made his exit. In his mind, he muttered, It's over. I need to act quickly now. Yi Han decisively struck the wall with his hand. Director Wang, who was standing nearby, observed with a frightened expression as the punch caused the wall to crack. In a panic, Director Wang shouted loudly, Help! Someone save me! Yi Han's sharp eyes gleamed with mischief as he said, Where do you think you can run? Didn't you say you wanted to cripple me? Without finishing his words, Director Wang's face turned horrified, beads of sweat dripping down. He fixed his gaze on the motionless Yi Han, seemingly contemplating something. Suddenly, Director Wang immediately dropped to his knees, tightly embracing Yi Han's legs, crying and pleading. Big brother Yi Han, I was wrong. Please spare me, gently if you may, spare the life of this wretched dog. Watching the scene unfold, the three onlookers rejoiced. The woman in the bright blue dress chuckled and said, Even a haughty director Wang has to kneel and beg for mercy from Yi Han. The boy in the yellow shirt, overwhelmed by Yi Han's strength, kept marveling. This is unbelievable. The guy in the white shirt, wearing a proud expression, quickly added, Yi Han, you're incredible, beating up that old man so fiercely. Seeing director Wang remorseful, Yi Han's sister stepped forward gently holding Yi Han's hand, and said, Little Han, let it go. Spare him a way out. Upon hearing this, Yi Han glanced at his sister and replied coldly, Fine. Then he turned back to Director Wang and continued, Get lost. If there's a next time, I won't spare you. Hearing this, Director Wang immediately responded, Yes, yes. Thank you, big brother Yi Han. Without further ado, Director Wang quickly scrambled away using all his limbs to flee. Suddenly, a foot stepped in. It turned out to be Director Wang's brother-in-law. He angrily exclaimed, What's going on here? Under the watchful eyes of many onlookers, Director Wang hastily ran towards the workshop manager, asking, Has the workshop manager arrived? Seeing this, those behind them whispered amongst themselves, Yi Han, we're doomed this time. The workshop manager is related to Director Wang. Yi Han, no matter how capable you are, how can you compete with them? At this moment, the distressed director ran towards the workshop manager, tearfully informing him, Brother-in-law, you have to take charge. They're bullying me. Hearing this, the workshop manager calmly asked, Who did it? Even our own people dare to bully someone. Without a word, Director Wang, with a terrified expression, draped his arm over the workshop managers, pointing ahead and saying, It's this kid. Brother-in-law, you know many people, quickly get someone to apprehend him. Meanwhile, Yi Han, his sister, and Tang Haibin observed the situation calmly. Yi Han's sister, seeing them targeting her brother, immediately stepped forward, shielding and defending Yi Han. She shouted loudly, This has nothing to do with my brother. If there's an issue, come talk to me. Hearing this, the timid director Wang cowered behind the workshop manager, replying, You sisters, Neither of you can escape. Once this kid is caught, we'll settle our accounts slowly. Seeing Director Wang acting unreasonably, Tang Hai Ben immediately spoke up, saying, Do you think you're invincible? As soon as he finished speaking, a strong-smelling shoe flew straight towards Director Wang, hitting him hard on the head. Director Wang, bewildered, looked in the direction of the shoe, furrowing his brow and asking, What's this? Subsequently, Director Wang approached to pick up the shoe taking a deep breath to smell it. Enraged, he shouted, Who threw this rotten shoe at me? Then, Director Wang looked at the people around him. His expression puzzled and continued, Something seems not quite right here. The people around him were staring at him with fierce eyes, as if wanting to devour this arrogant director. Without waiting for Director Wang to ponder too long, he was bombarded by the crowd with brooms, mops, and eggshells. They shouted, It's me, wretched creature throwing a shoe at the wretched person, pressing our heads, and riding our necks every day. This despicable person thinks he's an emperor. Seeing the situation worsening, the old director Wang immediately ran for help, shouting, Brother-in-law, save me. Director Wang rushed straight to his brother-in-law, clinging desperately to the workshop manager. Witnessing this, the workshop manager, furious, 
yelled. What are you doing? Stop it. Seeing this, Yi Han quickly added, Director Wang has caused resentment among everyone, yet he still wants to shield him. Hearing this, the workshop manager hesitated and didn't say anything. At this moment, he silently cursed. This wretched guy causes trouble for himself every day, and if I don't protect him, he'll surely get scolded by his wife at home. In the workshop manager's internal struggle, he envisioned his furious curly-haired wife, a cigarette dangling from her mouth, a firm grip on a frying pan, angrily shouting, This useless person allows my little brother to suffer. Observing the workshop manager's lack of response, Director Wang immediately furrowed his brow and gently reminded, Brother-in-law, you must help me take control. Hearing this, the workshop manager promptly made a decision. All of you workers causing chaos, everyone. Before he could finish, the workshop manager was interrupted by a loud voice. Wait, it turned out to be Secretary Lai, who hastily rushed in front of the workshop manager. Seeing this, he furrowed his brow and asked, Secretary Lai, why do you look so panicked? Is there anything more to report? Without further ado, Secretary Lai leaned in close to the workshop manager's ear and whispered, I just heard this news from security. Yi Han, in a city police car, has arrived here and the chubby guy next to him seems to be the mayor's son. Hearing this, the workshop manager exclaimed in shock. What? Afterward, the workshop manager glanced at Yi Han, who was behind, chatting with Tang Hai Ben. At that moment, in the workshop manager's mind, he silently pondered. This person seems to be Mr. Tang. Could they be here to inspect their own little brother? The workshop manager imagined the conversation between Yi Han and Tang Hai Ben. Yi Kan asked Tang Hai Bin, when will the disciplinary envoy arrive? Tang Hai Bin replied, immediately, he'll come directly and arrest him at that time. However, in reality, Yi Han was discussing something else with Tang Hai Bin. Yi Han asked, where should we go for lunch later? Tang Hai Bin thought for a moment and replied, there's a good dumpling place nearby. We could go there. The workshop manager now observed Yi Han and Tang Hai Bin intently. He secretly thought, it seems desperate. The only way to save oneself is to appear cooperative. Concluding his thoughts, the workshop manager immediately walked forward. At this moment, Director Wang laughed loudly, saying, Ye Han, your end is near. Director Wang was secretly delighted, thinking, the workshop manager will avenge me. To everyone's surprise, the workshop manager slapped Director Wang hard on the head. The workshop manager, furious, shouted loudly, you wretched creature. Completely caught off guard, Director Wang felt the painful sting from the slap. The force of the slap made Director Wang kneel on the ground. In pain, he held his face, bewildered and asked, brother-in-law, why did you hit me? Not stopping there, the workshop manager immediately kicked Director Wang several more times with great force. While taking action, the workshop manager shouted, what's wrong with hitting you? Every day, you ruin my reputation, almost causing my death. Today, justice must be restored for everyone. Director Wang at this point could only cry loudly in a wailing tone. The observing workers outside were astonished by the workshop manager's actions. Bewildered, they wondered, has he changed? The workshop manager is now even hitting his own wife. Could it be that he's afraid of Yi Han? After a period of beating, Director Wang lay unconscious on the floor. The workshop manager, now exhausted, staggered away. Breathing heavily, he looked at Director Wang lying on the ground. Having finished the ordeal, the workshop manager wore a cunning smile and said, I declare the immediate dismissal of Director Wang. Someone like him cannot stay in the workshop. Hearing this, the workers cheered joyfully. Fantastic. After that, the workshop manager immediately approached Tang Hai Bin. Folding his hands, he showed respect and continued, Master Tang, have I pleased you in this way? Seeing this, Tang Hai Bin raised his hand to Yi Han's shoulder and laughed in response. This remains to be seen. My brothers need to be satisfied. Yi Han looked at the workshop manager with a skeptical expression. Seeing this, the workshop manager appeared displeased, muttering, and he had the nerve to ask me to beg that rotten kit Yi Han. Tang Hai Bin had waited patiently but didn't see the workshop manager. Therefore, he decided to take out his phone and continue speaking to Yi Han. If you're still unsatisfied, just a moment ago, coincidentally, I used my phone to record the entire incident. You mentioned that if I hand it over to the disciplinary committee, 
Then, upon hearing this, the workshop manager became terrified and hastily exclaimed, No, no. Then, he immediately knelt down, tightly embraced Yi Han's legs, and pleaded, Yi Han, I truly don't know what that wretched person did. Whether it's good or bad, I'm the one who provided jobs for your two sisters. Please, spare me and consider leniency. Witnessing the entire story, the people present were shocked by the workshop manager's actions. They gasped and exclaimed, The workshop manager is kneeling and begging Yi Han. It's not an illusion, right? The person accompanying Yi Han seems to be the mayor's son. Since when did Yi Han become so formidable? Seeing the workshop manager sincerely apologize, Yi Han's sister stepped forward gently and said, Wei Han, let it go. I'm no longer angry. Hearing this, Yi Han cast a tender look at his sister and replied, All right. Seeing that Yi Han's siblings have forgiven him, the workshop manager, with tears streaming down his face, knelt on the ground, bowed his head, and said, Thank you. Thank you so much. Hearing that, Yi Han continued, Starting today, my sister and I officially resign, and we won't be coming back in the future. With those words, Yi Han draped his sister's shoulders and, together with Tang Hai Bin, left the company. Yi Han's group immediately boarded their cars and drove away, leaving the workshop manager behind. Politely, he raised his hand to bid farewell. Once everything was settled, the workshop manager let out a sigh of relief, wiped the sweat from his forehead, and chuckled, saying, Finally, this shooting star has left. The people behind observed attentively, whispering among themselves. A day without seeing him feels like three years. Yi Han has truly made it. Who would have thought that the poor kid from before would amaze others like this? On the other side, Tang Hai Bin drove Yi Han's two sisters back home. Yi Han's sister expressed concern. Yi Han, now that you've resigned, how will we make a living? Hearing this, Yi Han's eyes reflected determination as he replied, Sis, don't worry. I recently sold an extremely high-grade jade, earned quite a bit of money. If you don't believe me, ask Tang. Upon hearing this, Tang Hai Bin smiled kindly and turned his head to respond from the back. Yes, I know about this. With the money Yi Han has now, it's enough to support you for a lifetime. After finishing speaking, Yi Han's older sister continued to inquire. Yi Han, did you make a lot of money selling that jade pendant of yours? Hearing this, Yi Han leisurely rested his hands on his head and replied, Not much, just a few hundred million. Finishing her words, Yi Han's sister couldn't believe her eyes. She gripped Yi Han's collar in astonishment and exclaimed loudly, A few hundred million. Feeling squeezed, Yi Han uncomfortably shouted, Let go, I can hardly breathe. Walking on the street, all three of them leisurely enjoyed the surroundings. Later, Yi Han led his sister and Tang Hai Bin into a shopping center for a stroll. Yi Han casually remarked, Big sister always buys new clothes and shoes for me. I haven't had a new outfit for years. This time, it's my turn to buy for you. Finishing his words, Yi Han led his sister into a clothing store. Yi Han walked ahead, and his sister followed hesitantly. When they reached a shoe store and saw two pairs of luxurious and colorful shoes, Yi Han suddenly stopped and carefully examined them. Seeing this, Yi Han's sister became anxious and quickly pulled Yi Han's hand, saying, Yi Han, things here are too expensive. Let's go to another store. Witnessing this, Tang Hai Bin approached, smiling warmly, and said, Don't worry, the money for this pile of clothes is just a drop in the bucket for Yi Han. Yi Han, standing beside them, quickly added, placing his hands on his sister's shoulders, Exactly, sis, feel free to buy. Without further ado, Yi Han immediately pushed his sister forcefully into the store. Observing for a moment, Yi Han's sister chose the most glamorous outfits and tried them on. Standing in front of the mirror, she hesitantly asked, Yi Han, is this set beautiful? Is it too revealing? This dress looks stunning. Yi Han's sister joyfully admired herself in the mirror, continuously praising the dress she was wearing. Yi Han, Standing beside her, added, No matter what you wear, it looks beautiful. Tang Hai Bin, standing nearby, gazed at Yi Han's sister as if enchanted by her beauty. Tang Hai Bin exclaimed, I'm telling you, Yi Han, your sister is really beautiful. How about I become your brother in law? Hearing this, Yi Han laughed and replied, This depends on my sister's decision. I always support her choices. 
Upon hearing this, Tang Hai Bin lowered his gaze to his own bulging belly with a melancholic expression, saying, Hmm. At this moment, Yi Han's sister was still enthusiastically choosing new clothes. After pondering for a while, Tang Hai Bin then raised his eyes to glance at Yi Han's sister and hesitantly continued, About this. Before he could finish speaking, Yi Han's sister had already changed into another outfit, happily stepping out. On this side, both Yi Han and Tang Hai Bin simultaneously placed their hands on their own bellies. Yi Han glanced at Tang Hai Bin, while Tang Hai Bin was now attentively looking at Yi Han's sister. Tang Hai Bin, with a dreamy look, said, Forget it, your sister is a great beauty. If she pairs up with me, I'll feel like a jasmine flower planted in a buffalo dung field. Hearing this, Yi Han raised his hand and patted Tang Hai Bin on the shoulder a few times, laughing in response. Tang, you lack confidence in yourself again. From a distance, Bai Lu Yuan casually observed Yi Han and Tang Hai Bin happily chatting. He mocked, saying, What a coincidence, Yi Han. A poor guy like you dares to come here for shopping. Hearing this, Yi Han quickly turned his head to look. He saw Bai Lu Yuan being affectionate with a purple-haired beauty. Yi Han exclaimed in astonishment, Bai Lu Yuan, without hesitation. Yi Han marched straight toward Bai Lu Yuan, angrily shouting, Bai Lu Yuan, you dare to appear in front of me. Seeing Yi Han's aggressive attitude, Bai Lu Yuan and his companion on the right side recoiled in fear, their faces frozen in terror. Witnessing this, Bai Lu Yuan, frightened, quickly hit behind the girl. Then, he glanced at the patrolling police and pointed with an awkward smile, saying, This shop is always patrolled by the police. Do you dare to make a move here? Hearing that, Yi Han thought to himself, If there are police here, I can't take action. Understanding Yi Han's thoughts, Tang Hai Ben approached him and whispered, How about I find someone to chase them away? As soon as he finished speaking, Yi Han quickly smiled and replied, No need, Tang. Let me see what he really wants to do. Bai Lu Yuan, seeing that Yi Han hesitated to take action, took advantage of the situation and boldly approached. He hurriedly ran straight to Yi Han's face and said, Step aside, I'm here to buy clothes. Are you trying to interfere with the shop's business? Hearing this, Yi Han coldly replied, I'm here to shop too. If you won't go in, go around to the side. As soon as he finished speaking, Bai Lu Yuan and the purple-haired girl burst into laughter. Mocking, he said, A poor guy like you can also come here to buy clothes. Don't make me laugh. The girl standing beside them added, Bai Yuan is right. Looking like that, even a pair of underwear there he can't afford. Hearing this, Tang Hai Bin and Yi Han showed disdain and looked at the Bai Lu Yuan couple with contempt. Yi Han muttered, Fool. Tang Hai Bin whispered, Lack of understanding. At this moment, Yi Han's sister had finished trying on clothes. She stepped out from behind the curtain and gently said, Yi Han, I've made my choices. Do I look pretty? Yi Han's sister emerged with both hands full of shopping bags, radiantly adorned in a bright yellow dress. Seeing this, not only Tang Hai Ben and Yi Han, but even Bai Lu Yuan was captivated by this beauty. They exclaimed, Beautiful, very beautiful. The only one not enchanted was the purple-haired girl, who appeared resentful. Observing this, the purple-haired girl approached Bai Lu Yuan, linked arms with him and said, Bai Yuan, why are you looking at her? I'm a thousand times more beautiful than her. Hearing this, Bai Lu Yuan scratched his head, chuckled, and reluctantly replied, Yeah, you're beautiful, very beautiful. Then, Bai Lu Yuan cast his menacing eyes towards Yi Han's family, angrily cursing. This poor devil has quite the luck. Just wait, not long from now, she'll be mine. After carefully selecting items, Yi Han promptly pulled out his black power card. He confidently declared, cashier. Hearing this, the store clerk immediately approached with the card reader, welcomingly saying, all set, sir. The total is 254,321 yuan. Standing nearby eavesdropping, Bai Lu Yuan raised his hand to mockingly scratch his nose, saying, being poor and still acting high and mighty. Let's see how you'll pay in a moment. Hearing that, the purple-haired girl, jealous and frustrated, added, if you don't have money, don't pretend. Just as she finished speaking, the card reader beeped, signaling, payment successful. 
Seeing that Bai Lu Yuan and his companion couldn't help but be surprised, Bai Lu Yuan opened his mouth in astonishment and exclaimed, Payment successful indeed. The purple-haired girl quickly added, Is this guy not a poor devil? Where did he get so much money? With the payment completed, Yi Han's sister cheerfully linked arms with her brother and said, Lai Han, let's go. Suddenly, Yi Han felt like he was missing something. He said, That's right, I haven't bought the necklace yet. Hearing this, the purple-haired girl quickly looked around, then immediately pointed towards the necklace lying over there. She gently said, Bai Yuan, I want that necklace. Buy it for me, please. Unable to resist the charm of the beautiful girl, Bai Lu Yuan immediately waved his hand and replied, Sure, I'll buy it. Hearing this, the purple-haired girl joyfully jumped up, flattering him. Bai Yuan, you're the best. I love you to death. Feeling adored like a deity, Bai Lu Yuan arrogantly ran his hand through his hair, displaying a majestic demeanor and continued, Buying a few sets of clothes is nothing. Someone like me, even if it's a diamond necklace, I'll buy it just because I like it. At this moment, Yi Han was attentively looking at the necklace, which had caught the eye of Bad Lu Yuan's companion. He exclaimed, This necklace seems to be quite special. Hearing Bad Lu Yuan finalize the purchase of the necklace, the store clerk approached with a cheerful smile and said, Greetings, sir. This diamond necklace is priced at 1.5 million TWD. Thank you for favoring our store. Upon hearing this, Bai Lu Yuan calmly responded, Hmm, just 1.5 million. Suddenly, Bai Lu Yuan rethought and exclaimed in shock, What did you say? The necklace is 1.5 million. Seeing Bai Lu Yuan hesitating, the purple-haired girl playfully continued, Honey, quickly make the payment. At this moment, Bai Lu Yuan silently thought, Just went out for a day and already wants me to spend so much. Does she think I'm a fool? After contemplating, Bai Lu Yuan pointed at the doll next to him, then gestured towards his throat, saying, My dear, actually, I think this suits you better. Hearing this, Yi Han turned to look. Suddenly, the doll spoke up, saying, Abracadabra, turn you into a piggy. Witnessing this, everyone in the store was left stunned and astonished. In response to the doll's action, Bai Lu Yuan's companion, seemingly infuriated, shouted angrily, Do you take me for a three-year-old child? I don't care, I want that diamond necklace. The store clerk couldn't pass up this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. He brought the payment machine in front of Bai Lu Yuan and said, Sir, you just mentioned wanting to buy it. Forced into a corner, Bai Lu Yuan angrily shouted, A gold digger like you, dare to suggest I buy a necklace for 1.5 million. Dream on. Seeing this, his companion looked horrified, and the store clerk could only stand silently. Yi Han, feeling fed up, used one foot to kick Bai Lu Yuan and his companion hard, causing them to fall to the ground in pain. Yi Han sternly said, Get out of here. After that, Yi Han immediately took out his black card and handed it to the store clerk, saying, I'll buy this necklace. Hearing this, the store clerk happily thought, He's quite handsome. Seeing this, Bai Lu Yuan, shocked by Yi Han's resolute action, muttered, Why did this guy suddenly become so wealthy? The purple-haired girl observed Yi Han and thought, Despite his wealth, this guy is so carefree. Compared to the men around me, he's much better. Without much ado, Yi Han directly placed the diamond necklace around his sister's neck, smiling and saying, Quick, put it on. Seeing that, Yi Han's sister joyfully responded, Ye Han. This is too extravagant for me. Hearing this, Yi Han quickly added, Sis, this necklace suits you very well. Bai Lu Yuan, standing nearby, observed the happiness and playful interaction between Yi Han's sister and him. Angrily, he said, Disgusting temporarily lifts your spirits, but we're not done yet. Let's go. Finishing his words, Bai Lu Yuan immediately led his companion out of the store. Hearing that, the purple-haired girl angrily rushed over, Delivering a painful kick to Bai Lu Yuan's sensitive area. Fuming, she said, Get lost, stingy jerk. Stop pretending to be rich with me. Go away quickly. After speaking, the purple haired girl ran to Yi Han's side, embraced him gently, and said, As long as the handsome guy gives me a diamond necklace, whatever he wants tonight is fine with me. Seeing his little brother being seduced, Yi Han's sister immediately rushed forward to give her a smack. 
Angered, she shouted, This vile woman dares to seduce my little brother. Go to hell. Tang Hai Bin stood nearby, observing with wide-eyed amazement, constantly marveling. Indeed, she is Yi Han's sister, and her combat strength is impressive. Yi Han was not to be outdone. He also showed surprise at his sister's strength. With everything settled, Yi Han's sister turned to look at Tang Hai Bin and Yi Han, smiling, and said, It's done. We finished chopping. Let's go home. Transitioning to the scene where Yi Han and his sister live, Yi Han sits on the bed, tired and contemplative, thinking, having learned some martial arts from Zhao Hao Tian, and agreed to help him with his leg condition, it's time to proceed. Yi Han immediately uses the Guyu medical classic. Suddenly, Yi Han's eyes light up. In front of him is a person replicating the martial arts he has learned. Yi Han silently says, Upper gate nine needles, based on the location of acupoints to treat current diseases. Lower gate three needles treat current diseases at the lower acupoint. Acupuncture until the illness is gone. After a period of research, Yi Han has finally been able to comprehend these extraordinary skills. Clenching his fist, his face shows determination. He thinks, after mastering these two medical techniques, Zhao Hao Tian's leg injury can be cured. Having finished his thoughts, Yi Han immediately closes his eyes. He sits calmly on the bed to deepen his understanding. At this moment, Yi Han's sister stands outside, slowly opening the door to peek at him. She stands there, staring at Yi Han with a worried expression. Silently, she thinks, Dad told me to wait until my little brother grows up, then marry him, become his wife. I... Yi Han's sister chokes up and doesn't finish her sentence. She recalls the time before their father fell seriously ill when he instructed her, Yi Sin, actually, you're not Yi Han's biological sister, but I hope you can promise me to take good care of Yi Han. At that moment, Yi Han's sister immediately agreed. Dad, rest assured, I will definitely do it. Returning to reality, Yi Han's sister looks at him with a sad expression. She continues to think to herself. Now, Yi Han has truly become a capable and determined man. It seems it's time for me to fulfill my promise. The next day Yi Han, stretching his tired body, yawns and steps out of his bedroom. He joyfully exclaims, After a night of enlightenment, I've finally mastered the techniques of upper gate nine needles and lower gate three needles in the Guiyu Medical Classic. On the other side, Yi Han's sister, having spent a sleepless night, tiredly rubs her face and tells Yi Han, I said we have to keep our promise, but how do we go about it? Yi Han, standing nearby, hears this and waves with a cheerful smile, saying sis. Hearing this, Yi Han's sister startles, then turns to look, reflexively, feeling embarrassed. She quickly runs into her room and forcefully closes the door, leaving Yi Han standing outside puzzled. He looks at his sister's closed door and wonders, what's going on? Why is she acting so scared? Without dwelling on it for too long, Yi Han immediately turns away, saying, never mind, I still need to help Zhao Hao Tan recover from his leg injury. At this moment, from inside the room, Yi Han's sister slowly opens the door. She looks at Yi Han affectionately and whispers to herself, Yi Han, don't blame your sister. Transitioning to Zhao Hao Tian's home, Yi Han approaches Zhao Hao Tian, who is struggling in his wheelchair. Yi Han, with a sharp gaze, quickly asks, Are you ready? Without hesitation, Zhao Hao Tian promptly replies, I'm ready. Without further delay, Yi Han immediately takes out three acupuncture needles. He exclaims loudly, I will be polite then. Let's continue with the acupuncture. On this side, Zhao Hao Tian, with a determined expression, shouts, Go ahead. Suddenly, a loud snap is heard. It turns out that the two needles have pierced through a chicken thigh. As Yi Han takes Zhao Hao Tian to eat by the sidewalk, their eccentric actions leave Du Du standing beside them speechless. Meanwhile, Yi Han and Zhao Hao Tian are still enjoying their meal. Yi Han happily says, Give me two pieces of chicken thigh. Without hesitation, Zhao Hao Tian responds, It smells so good, add a bit more. Observing this, Du Du, standing nearby with a puzzled expression, mutters to herself, Supposed to come here for treating my brother's leg, but not only haven't they treated it, they are eating roasted chicken thighs here. Frustrated, Du Du immediately rushes over to Yi Han and Zhao Hao Tian. In anger, she delivers a punch to each of them and decisively takes away their barbecue grill. Seeing this, 
Yi Han innocently looks and silently says, Isn't it just to ease her brother's tension that she did this? On the other side, Zhao Hao Tian, disgruntled and tearful, whispers, I just wanted to eat a skewer. Zhao Hao Tian appears dejected as he says, Yi Han, coming here today to find me, it's not just about wanting to eat barbecue right. Have you prepared everything? Upon hearing this, Yi Han immediately responds, You're right, big brother Zhao. I figured out a way to treat your leg. Finishing his sentence, Zhao Hao Tian, astonished, hurriedly asks, Gi Han, are you serious? Du Du, standing nearby, is delighted and quickly runs over to stand close to her brother, saying, Your leg might finally be healed. Hearing this, Yi Han closes his eyes, sighs, and then replies, Let me perform acupuncture. Theoretically, there shouldn't be any issues. Suddenly, Yi Han opens his eyes, and his gaze becomes sharp as he continues. But the wound on Big Brother Zhao's leg has been there for too long. The blood vessels have coagulated. Just a small mistake could lead to a lifetime of disability. Upon hearing this, Zhao Hao Tian falls into contemplation. Du Du can't help but worry. She stands silently for a while, and then says, This. She quickly turns to Zhao Hao Tian, and continues, Perhaps we should try another approach. Last night, I heard there's a new foreign expert at Tham Market. Maybe. Without waiting for her to finish her sentence, Zhao Hao Tian immediately raised his hand and cut her off, saying, No need. If there's truly another way, why wait until now? Three years ago, enemies plotted to disable both of my legs. Countless brothers who were with me at that time died tragically. Until now, I can only hide here and survive. Hearing this, Du Du, filled with sorrow, quickly hugged Zhao Hao Tian and said, Brother, isn't it good that we don't have to fight anymore? Yi Han stood beside them, observing, silently reflecting. Back then, Hexha Nan Wang, the ultimate power, and now a disabled person. It's truly a world of difference. Suddenly, Zhao Hao Tian became furious and shouted, No more fighting. I've waited for three years, just waiting for a chance. I want to become the pride of my family not to prove how formidable I am. I want to tell everyone that what I lost, I will reclaim it all. Seeing Zhao Hao Tian's determination, Yi Han quickly reassured, All right, brother Zhao, rest assured, I will do my best to heal you. Upon hearing this, Zhao Hao Tian smiled warmly and replied, Zhai Han, you don't need to feel too pressured. If it doesn't work out, it just means it's my fate, and I won't blame anyone. Du Du, standing beside them, bowed her head solemnly, and said, Lai Han, we rely on you for the care. After that, Du Du turned to look at Zhao Hao Tian and said, Brother, I believe you can definitely stand up again. With everything decided, Yi Han, with a serious expression, said, Let's begin. Finishing his words, Yi Han took out the acupuncture needles, gently pulling one out. In his mind, he thought, These needles, I bought them from a herbal medicine store, while not the best they should still be able to perform acupuncture techniques. On the other side, Du Du gently rolled up her brother's pant leg and Zhao Hao Tian, with a worried expression, said, What should I do? Brother Yi, just tell me. Hearing this, Yi Han quickly replied, Brother Zhao, in a moment, I will use the needles to draw out the stagnant blood in your leg and then nourish the muscles. It might be a bit painful, so try to bear with it. Hearing this, Zhao Hao Tian, with a thoughtful expression, said, Yes, Brother Yi, go ahead. Finishing his words, Yi Han immediately closed his eyes, with three acupuncture needles in hand. Yi Han then used the yin-yang divine eyes to clearly see the acupuncture points. Following the guidance of Guiyu Medical Classic, he inserted the needles at the Shu Poison Point, Lu Bone Point, and Earth Pivot Point. At this point, Yi Han had directly begun the acupuncture treatment on Zhao Hao Tian's leg. Zhao Hao Tian's face contorted in pain as he tried to endure. Yi Han shouted loudly, All the stagnant blood has gathered at one point. Quickly, bring the lamb knife and cotton cloth. Du Du hurriedly ran to fetch the tools, hastily saying, Here it is. Yi Han immediately took the lamb knife and forcefully made a long incision on Zhao Hao Tian's leg. He shouted, Stagnant blood, come out. Du Du stood by, observing the situation. Yi Han held a blood-soaked cloth, and Du Du quickly covered her nose with her hand, saying, It smells terrible. 
Hearing this, Yi Han promptly replied, After stagnant blood has been accumulated for so many years, it's naturally not pleasant. However, after removing the stagnant blood, Zhao's leg can be considered more than halfway improved. Hearing this, Du Du cheered and asked again, Is that true? That's amazing. Then Du Du quickly turned to Zhao Hao Tian and said, How do you feel now? Zhao Hao Tian joyfully responded, My leg seems a bit numb, and I can sense the feeling in my leg now. Yi Han continued, This is just the beginning. Now I have to help Brother Zhao nourish the leg. Hearing this, Du Du excitedly jumped up to cheer, Go, Yi Han. Zhao Hao Tian happily added, I believe in you, Yi Han. You will surely succeed. Without much ado, Yi Han immediately lifted Zhao Hao Tian's leg. Continuing to use three acupuncture needles along with his inherent energy, he said, Kao Fai. Zhao Hao Tan looked on, astonished and exclaimed, This is Yi Han's internal energy meridian. Though it's very small, at the same realm, I am definitely not his match. At this point, Yi Han focused on the treatment, silently evaluating, It's almost done. Afterwards, Yi Han forcefully struck Zhao Hao Tan's knee. Suddenly, there were positive signs in Zhao Hao Tan's leg. Zhao Hao Tan joyfully declared, It's working. Seeing this, Du Du excitedly added, He can move now. After the healing session, Yi Han, exhausted, sat on the ground, leaned back and said, It's done, finally. I'm so tired. Brother Zhao, try standing up just a little. With those words, Zhao Hao Tan slowly stood up. He was astonished by everything happening and exclaimed, All right, I can stand up now. This is incredible. It's amazing. Afterwards, Zhao Hao Tian eagerly tried walking a bit more. He joyfully said, Zhao Hao Tian, I'm back. Seeing this, Yi Han chuckled and advised, At most three days, Brother Zhao, you'll be able to walk like a normal person again. Hearing that, Zhao Hao Tian, sitting on the sofa, grinned and responded, Yi Han. I can never repay this great favor. From now on, my life belongs to you. Humbled Yi Han replied, Brother Zhao, no need for such formal words. Though we started as business partners, I've long considered you as my friend. No need for such seriousness. Finishing his words, Zhao Hao Tan chuckled and said, All right, I hear you. Then Zhao Hao Tan took out a book and handed it to Yi Han, continuing, This is a secret manual I've compiled. I hope it will be useful for you. Yi Han took the book in his hands and with gratitude said, Thank you, Brother Zhao. The scene shifts and Yi Han arrives with his sister in front of an elegant house. Yi Han proudly says, Sister, look at this magnificent villa I just bought. Isn't it impressive? Hearing that, Yi Han's sister joyfully ran around the mansion. She cheerfully replied, Yi Han, you're amazing. In the future, I'll have to rely on you to support me. She hesitated in her thoughts, thinking, how could I say such embarrassing things? Hearing this, Yi Han, with a determined expression, responded, don't worry, leave it to me. I'm very capable. In a while, Mr. Zhu, Mr. Lin, and Mr. Tang will be coming. Go to the door and welcome them. Finishing his words, Yi Han immediately turned and waved to his sister. His sister nodded, and suddenly, due to not paying attention, Yi Han accidentally bumped into a girl. Yi Han fell forward into her, and the girl's belongings scattered everywhere, including her bra, which ended up on Yi Han's head. The unexpected collision caused both of them to fall to the ground in pain. The angry girl exclaimed, Oh my goodness, my head hurts so much. You blind jerk. Afterward, their eyes locked onto each other. Yi Han, astonished, exclaimed, It's you. On the other side, Police officer Ruin was equally surprised. She muttered, and he's here too. Yi Han awkwardly stood up, wearing a face full of guilt, and said, Greetings, Officer Ruin. I didn't expect to see you in this area. Then, Yi Han felt something on his head, reached up and said, Oh, what's this? Seeing that, Police Chief Dao thought to himself, That's mine. Afterwards, Officer Ruin forcefully slapped Yi Han's ear. She shouted, you perverted scoundrel, just die. Yi Han, in pain and aggrieved, retorted, Hey, you clearly bumped into me, and yet you dare to hit me. Officer Ruin, undeterred, angrily replied, Why not? Who said you're not a scoundrel? 
acting shamelessly in broad daylight. Disgusting, despicable pervert. You've earned this lesson from me. Finishing her words, Officer Ruan immediately attacked Yi Han. She used her long legs to kick directly into Yi Han's face. Luckily, Yi Han was quick to dodge, exclaiming, You're a girl. Why are you so ruthless? Don't think I won't fight back. Hearing this, Officer Ruan showed no fear. She raised her eyebrows and replied firmly, Come on, who's afraid of whom? Today, we have to settle this matter properly. Detestable pervert, just die. Yi Han and Officer Ruan immediately engaged in a brawl. At this moment, Tang Hai Bin, Lin Bai Mo, and Zhu Ming Xiang arrived. They approached the mansion, and Tang Hai Bin, looking puzzled, asked, Is this Yi Han's new house? Why can't we see anyone around? Hearing that, Lin Bai Mo continued, Perhaps it's not wrong. The address is supposed to be here. Looking from a distance, they saw Yi Han and Officer Ruin fighting. Seeing this, Lin Bai Mo hastily said, Whose address is that? On the other side, Officer Ruin noticed someone approaching and quickly said, Let go, someone's coming. Yi Han refused to surrender and hastily replied, You let go first. Officer Ruin, in anger, retorted, No, you first. The people behind heard this and felt confused, wondering, What are those two doing? Seeing many people looking at them, Officer Ruin immediately released her grip. She picked up her belongings and raised her eyebrows, saying, Consider yourself lucky. With so many people here today, I'll let you off. After speaking, she immediately turned and left. Tang Hai Bin recognized her as Officer Ruan and said anxiously, Isn't that Officer Ruan? Why is she so angry? She's a very fierce person. Even I wouldn't dare to provoke her. Why did you start trouble with her? Hearing this, Yi Han replied, No need to explain everything here. Let's go inside and talk. Inside the mansion, Yi Han's sister had prepared water for them and cheerfully said, You must all be Yi Han's friends, right? Yi Han, noticing this, quickly responded, Come, have a seat. No need to be polite. Zhu Ming Xian stroked his beard and said, Yi Han, it's only been a short time, and our well behaved granddaughter has already been bullied by you. How is this? Du Wen Ni, sitting beside him, hurriedly held his hand and replied, Grandpa, what are you talking about? Hearing this, Yi Han chuckled and replied, Ju Grandpa, you misunderstood. There's nothing between me and Miss. If you don't believe it, you can ask Lin and Tang. Lin Bai Mo, avoiding eye contact, looked elsewhere and said, Yeah, Yi Han, your new house is not bad. Tang Hai Bin awkwardly added, Indeed you have this wall, these lights, and even multiple floors. Sensing something unusual between the two, Yi Han thought to himself, These two are not making any sense. Seeing this, Zhu Ming Shan continued, All right, the matter between you two is your own business. I can't manage it. Then, Zhu Ming Shan took out a jade pendant and said, Come in here this time. There are two things. First, congratulations on your new home. And this jade pendant is a gift from me to celebrate. Yi Han accepted the jade pendant and held it in his hand. He said solemnly, Thank you, Zhu Grandpa, for your generosity. Seated beside him, Lin Bai Mo, with his hands crossed in front of his chest, calmly said, Zhu Grandpa, what about the other matter? Hearing that, Zhu Ming Shan quickly replied, Ye Han, I want to accept you as my disciple. Do you agree? As soon as he finished speaking, Yi Han, Lin Bai Mo, and Tang Hai Bin were all surprised and exclaimed, What? Du Wan Ni, sitting beside them, couldn't believe her eyes and quickly asked, Grandpa, you want to take Yi Han as your disciple? Hearing this, Zhu Ming Shan stroked his beard and replied, Exactly. He can identify top quality jade, which proves he's a genius. Moreover, I'm currently lacking a successor. This young man is not only an exceptional talent, but also has a unique relationship with my granddaughter. The closer the relationship, the better. Duan Ni, he's by her grandfather, angrily shouted, Grandpa. Hearing this, Yi Han raised his hand to touch his chin, thinking, Ju Grandpa possesses experience and knowledge that even the yin yang divine eyes cannot obtain. This can only be beneficial, not harmful. After thinking it through, Yi Han immediately knelt down and solemnly said, I humbly request to become your disciple. Before he could finish, 
Zhu Ming Shan quickly supported Yi Han and continued, Wait, I haven't finished yet. If you want to accept me as your master, you must first pass a small test from me. Only then will I accept you as my disciple. Hearing this, Yi Han was perplexed and asked, What kind of test is that? Zhu Ming Shan quickly continued, On the 15th of next month, there's a provincial festival. By then, go there with Du Ni and establish your own reputation. Zhu Ming Shan looked at Yi Han sharply, contemplating, My grandson has prepared the way for you. How far you can develop depends on your own efforts. Upon hearing this, Yi Han immediately performed a formal gesture and said, All right, Ju Grandpa, I will definitely do it. Suddenly, a voice called out, Lei Han, I'm here. Hearing this, Yi Han looked in that direction, and it turned out to be Du Du and Zhao Hao Tan who had arrived. Du Du laughed and said, Lei Han, you've struck gold. How did you manage to get such a big house? Yi Han approached, pointing to Zhao Hao Tian's legs, and asked, Zhao, are you finally fully recovered? Zhao Hao Tan presented a gift and happily replied, All thanks to you. Congratulations on your new home. I brought you a small gift. Yi Han took the gift, slowly opened it, and exclaimed in surprise, Dragon Feather Dagger. Seeing this, Zhu Ming Shan, wide-eyed, said, This Dragon Feather Dagger is sharper than anything. It's said to be forged by El Shi Sai, known as the National Treasure. Hearing that, Zhao Hao Tian hesitated and replied, Zhu Grandpa's knowledge is profound, and I deeply admire it. Zhu Ming Shan, composed, quickly responded, Indeed you are. Why do you seem familiar? I'll remember in a moment. Suddenly, Zhu Ming Shan recalled something and exclaimed loudly, You are Xi Nan Wang, Zhao Hao Tian, who has been in seclusion for the past three years. Hearing this, Lin Ban Mo thought to himself, What? He is Zhao Hao Tian. Duan I also looked surprised, muttering. Back then, my father always praised Xi Nan Wang. Tang Hai Bin's eyes became sharp, silently thinking. I heard he relied on a single move and could defeat countless opponents. Lin Bai Mo stared at Zhao Hao Tian, contemplatively thinking. The reputation of Xi Nan Wang is known to everyone who hasn't heard of it. Seeing everyone looking at him, Zhao Hao Tian spoke shyly. It's just a false reputation, not worth mentioning. Curious, Du Nai hesitated and asked, But I heard you weren't disabled after being defeated by someone. Hearing that, Zhao Hao Tian walked over, draped his arm around Yi Han's shoulder, and replied, I can stand and walk again thanks to Yi Han. From now on, his business is my business too. Upon hearing that, Yi Han joyfully exclaimed, Why so serious? Come on, everyone. Take a seat and let's continue. At this moment, Zhu Ming Xiang was surprised, opening his mouth in amazement as he whispered, Lai Han, you're quite formidable. You can even impress Xi Nan Wang. Lin Bai Mo was equally astonished, staring intently at Yi Han and continuously exclaiming, Lai Han, this young man is truly mysterious, with the ability to make Zhao Hao willingly live and die for him. Zhu Ming Shan continued in a hushed tone. It seems that even without our assistance, Yi Han can still achieve widespread fame. To dispel the awkwardness in the atmosphere, everyone immediately burst into laughter. Suddenly, Lin Bai Mo received a phone call. With a concerned expression, he answered, Yes, he'll be arriving tomorrow. I know, I'll personally escort him when the time comes. Seeing this, Yi Han quickly inquired, Lin, what's going on? Lin Bai Mo replied, Well, Yi Han, it's not what I intended. I wanted to invite you to witness. But unexpectedly, the family decided to invite a disciple of the king of Western medicine. He'll be here tomorrow, and it's quite inconvenient. Hearing this, Yi Han approached, gently placing his hand on Lin Bai Mo's shoulder, and consoled him, saying, It's okay, Lin. Tomorrow, you can take me to visit their home and conveniently witness the medical skills of the king of Western medicine's disciple. Tang Hai Bin sitting nearby quickly added, I want to go too. I can't miss out on anything exciting. Hearing this, Lin Bai Mo laughed and replied, Tang, you can go. It's an honor for my family. The next day at the Lin family mansion, a welcoming banquet was organized. Those of high status were invited, all curious about the disciple of the king of Western medicine. They chattered eagerly, 
They say the disciple of Shen Tianel, the cane of Western medicine, will be here today, right? Lin's family specifically invited him to cure their patriarch. The illness of the Lin family's patriarch is truly peculiar. Even the king of southern medicine was of no use. However, this time, with the high disciple of the king of western medicine treating him, there might be a chance of recovery. Yi Han was also invited. As he observed the surroundings while sipping his drink, he couldn't help but wonder, isn't it just about diagnosing Mr. Lin's father? Why the need for so many people? Tang Hai Bin explained, the wealthier they are, the more afraid they are of death. They come here to acquaint themselves with renowned physicians, purely for their own benefit. In case they fall ill in the future, they'll know where to turn. Upon hearing this, Yi Han cracked a faint smile and remarked, that's how society works. At this moment, he looked in one direction and saw Bai Lu Yuan standing next to a man, presumably Bai Zhan Yi, his father. Yi Han asked Bai Lu Yuan, is that fiery fellow also here? Tang Hai Bin spat a mouthful of disdainful words. Of course, isn't it relying on his father Bai Zhan Ye? Let him be. Just hearing the name makes his face detestable. Right at that moment, the Lin family steward hurriedly ran in, announcing, The esteemed practitioner of the king of Western medicine, Shen Tianao, has arrived. The people in the hall, upon hearing this, rushed over eagerly, exclaiming, He's here! He's here! Let's go take a look. Entering from outside, Shen Tianao walked in with arrogance. Behind him, Lin Baimo was assisting him in holding a medical examination box. The crowd surrounded him, competing to introduce themselves, saying, Sir Shen, I'm Lai Shan He from Dragon Real Estate Hall, welcoming you to our city, Shan Hai. Sir Shen, I'm a colleague from Tian Yu Sun Kang Zhang Corporation, and your visit is an honor for our city. Sir Shen, I'm Bai Zhan Yi from Bad Shi Corporation, representing the corporation to welcome you. Seeing this, Tang Hai Bin couldn't help but gnash his teeth in anger, saying, This rotten kid, not only does he have some medical skills, but he also makes Lin look like my servant, carrying his luggage. Yi Han patted his shoulder soothingly, Tang, calm down. Let's see if the disciple of the king of Western medicine lives up to the rumors. Shen Tianao spoke loudly, there's nothing in this world for free. I appreciate the warm welcome from all of you, and I understand your intentions. However, I must be straightforward. Without money, there will be no examination. Hearing his assertive statement, Yi Han furrowed his brows, thinking to himself, charging for treatment is understandable, but openly demanding money like this is a bit too much. The wealthy crowd, however, didn't think similarly to Yi Han. They made every effort to ingratiate themselves, saying, Mr. Shen is absolutely right. Next time we meet, we will surely prepare a lavish offering. Mr. Shen is a talented individual among talented individuals, destined to surpass even the king of medicine and become the third most talented person in the world. This is truly a pride for our China. Indeed, someone with medical skills equivalent to Mr. Shen has yet to be born. Hearing their flattery, Shen Tianao, though pleased, remained modest in response. Too kind, too kind. Among the crowd, Bai Lu Yuan noticed Yi Han and had a sly smile as he thought, the waste has also arrived. Just wait. Sensing his gaze, Yi Han turned and pondered. What does Bai Lu Yuan want? Bai Lu Yuan suddenly pointed towards Yi Han and mockingly said, Of course, we admire the medical skills of Sir Shen. However, I heard that young master Lin of the Lin family had intended to invite an unknown junior, replacing Mr. Shen. Others, Hearing this, turned their curious eyes towards Yi Han, asking, Is there such a thing? What's the truth? Yi Han's expression darkened at this moment, holding a grudge in his heart. Bai Lu Yuan, Bai Zhan Yi beside him, also chuckled faintly and added, This person relies on a few medical tricks, deceives people everywhere. How can he be compared to Mr. Shen? It's just that Lin Yun Master nearly fell for it. His words carried even more weight and people began to turn their criticism towards Yi Han. This guy has disgraced the medical profession. He can't be compared to Mr. Shen, of course. Mr. Shen is outstanding, and he's just some insignificant character, merely a minor talent not worth mentioning. Yi Han clenched his fists in anger, repeatedly reminding himself, Patience, I must endure. I can't ruin Lin's plans. Before he could do anything, Tang Hai Bin, furious to the extreme, spoke out on his behalf, shouting, 
My brother is a medical student, and you miserable people here dare to speak ill. Believe me, I'll beat you to death. The crowd turned to each other and whispered, Isn't this Tang Jian Gu's son? What bad luck! This kid who came with him seems to be the one we mentioned earlier. Tang Yum Master, even if it's your father, he wouldn't dare to act like this with us. I need an apology from you. Tang Hai Bin, full of rage, greeted them with a sarcastic apology. Apologies, huh? Yi Han quickly intervened, advising, Tang, don't get agitated. However, Tang Hai Bin seemed not to hear him. He continued to approach and unleashed a barrage of insults. Even sparing you from a beating is quite generous of me. Bai John Yi smirked, turned to Lin Bai Mo, and said, Master Lin, as the host, you should say something. I think these two should leave. Lin Bai Mo found himself in a difficult situation after Bai John Yi's remark. The crowd continued to surround Yi Han and Tang Hai Bin, criticizing, absolutely right, kick them out. Having these two here is an insult to Mr. Shen. They lack talent and one is a swindler. They are not worthy to be in front of Mr. Shen. Get them out. Bai Lu Yuan chuckled to himself. Yi Han, let's see what fate awaits you. Just then, a hand reached out to block the crowd. Lin Bai Mo, with a stern expression, said, If you disagree, you can leave. My Lin family did not invite you here. The atmosphere in the Grand Hall suddenly fell silent. Someone, infuriated, left while muttering, Fine, go ahead. This old man can't stand this frustration. Walking with these two young fools is disgusting. At most, let's find another opportunity to invite Mr. Shen later. Leaving now is better than offending the Lin family in their grand hall, especially since it could affect future invitations. Seeing them leave, Yi Han felt a bit anxious, thinking, these people are potential clients in the future, and I could earn a considerable amount from them. I can't let them go like this. Shen Tian Ao clapped his hands, twice and spoke, allow me to say a few words. He extended his hand toward Yi Han and analyzed, Ladies and gentlemen, let's be reasonable. Debating over such a trivial figure is unnecessary. Being an important medical practitioner requires both talent and virtue. Those lacking in virtue and talent are not worth mentioning. Upon hearing this, the crowd readily agreed. Mr. Shen is absolutely right. They are simply uneducated individuals. Getting angry over them is a loss of face. That young man is just a worthless worm. It's better to pretend we didn't see him. Tang Hai Bin, fuming with anger, bent down to unlace his shoe and declared, How dare you say Yi Han lacks talent and virtue? He accurately hurled the shoe towards Shen Tianel, who took the hit square in the face. Tang Hai Bin proudly tossed the shoe away, saying, He can insult you, but when it comes to our brothers, that's a different story. The onlookers gasped in shock. He dares to throw a shoe at Mr. Shen. Mr. Shen got hit in the eye. The shoe remained on Shen Tianou's face, who was visibly enraged. A person nearby anxiously asked, Mr. Shen, are you all right? Shen Tianou, furious, forcefully removed the shoe, leaving a clear imprint on his face, and his nose was bleeding from the impact. He shouted, wretched fool. Tang Hai Bin burst into laughter and remarked, the shoe print on the face suits someone with a thick skin. It truly compliments you. Shen Tian Ao angrily pointed and commanded, Apologize and kneel down immediately. Tang Hai Bin, with a mocking expression, retorted, I spit on apologies. Apologize to your rotten head. Shen Tian Ao swiftly turned to Lin Bai Mo and demanded, This matter won't be resolved today. I will leave immediately. Your Lin family can find another esteemed guest. Hearing this, Lin Baimo immediately tensed up. He had to reluctantly clasp his hands, bow his head, and apologize. Mr. Shen, please calm down. On behalf of my brothers, I apologize. At this point, Yi Han couldn't hold back. His eyes flashed with intensity as he walked over, gripping Lin Baimo's shoulders, and said, Wait a moment. Lin doesn't need to apologize. It's just a medical consultation for Lin's patriarch. Let me handle it. Others in the crowd sneered and taunted. Am I hearing correctly? This young man dares to say he'll treat Lin's patriarch? A mere quack with a bit of medical knowledge. Yet he dares to be so arrogant. Does he think he's Shen Tianao? Where does he get such confidence? It seems he wants to use this opportunity to boost his reputation. Utterly shameless. Shen Tianao, 
pointing at Yi Han in the crowd, asked, How will you treat him? Without waiting for an answer, he continued with a mocking smile. This young man only knows a few medical tricks. If he can cure Lin's patriarch, I will retire from the medical profession. From now on, I'll withdraw from the realm of physicians. Yi Han emphasized the challenge. Are you daring enough to swear to it? Shen Tianao, arrogantly confident, replied, Why wouldn't I dare? Hearing this, Yi Han smiled and declared, All right then, let's make a verbal agreement, the highest peak in one word, the four horsemen at the south gate. The crowd, still collectively disdainful of Yi Han, jeered, This brash guy doesn't know his place. Who does he think he is? Trying to make a bet with Shen Tian L, arrogantly ignorant. We really don't understand why Lin, young master, would associate with someone like him. A troublemaker with no skills or abilities. Without guessing, we know he'll lose for sure. This brat may be young, but his temper is huge. Bad Lu Yulin suddenly appeared, pointing challengingly. Shen, the king of Western medicine's disciple. And you? What are you? Speaking such words, aren't you afraid of damning yourself? Tang Hai Bin, standing nearby, noticed his irritation and flexed his knuckles menacingly. Bai Lu Yuan, I haven't settled the score with you from last time. Watch your words. Believe me, I can beat you until your own mother wouldn't recognize you. Hearing that, Bai Lu Yuan quickly retreated behind his father, responding defiantly. If you have the courage, beat Shen Tianel first, then talk to me. Don't attack me here. Shen Tian L agreed to his challenge and proposed, I accept your bet. But if you lose, you must kneel in front of everyone here and crawl through my legs. Concerned, Lin Bai Mo asked Yi Han, Yi Han, are you sure about this? If you lose, I'll be in trouble. Yi Han confidently replied, Don't worry, Lin. As long as there's a real illness, I'm confident I can cure it at least 80%. Hearing this, Lin Bai Mo trusted him and said, All right, Yi Han. I believe in you. Frustrated, he silently cursed. This bastard not only treats me as a puppet to be manipulated, but also wants revenge in the form of 10% of the Lin family company shares. He's asking for trouble. Tang Hai Bin patted him on the shoulder and reassured, Relax. Yi Han will teach him a lesson shortly. With determination, Tang Hai Bin walked ahead of the two, pointing at Shen Tian Ao and declaring, Hey, shameless guy, whatever you want us to bet on. We accept. Get ready to witness our skills. Despite Shen Tianao's anger, Lin Bai Mo intervened, announcing, Please, everyone, come inside. Let's witness this together. The crowd, upon hearing this, collectively moved towards Shen Tianao. Each one followed behind, flattering him, saying, Let's go and take a look, everyone. Open up your eyes. Let's see how formidable Mr. Shen's medical skills are. I just want to see the appearance of that young lad. After losing, he'll surely find a way to crawl to Mr. Shen's feet. That will be quite interesting. I'll have to capture that moment and share it online. The headline will be, Uneducated boy pretends to be a scholar, deceives, and accidentally encounters a real divine healer. Can only crawl at the healer's feet to confess. Or, should I call the reporters right now? Tang Hai Bin, upon hearing this, couldn't help but angrily curse. Despicable a bunch of wretches. Yi Han calmed him, saying, Tang, stay calm. In a little while, those losing face will be them. Everyone entered Lin's hospital room, looking at the figure on the bed covered with medical devices. Each one exclaimed, Oh my God, why has Mr. Lin become like this? Yes, Mr. Lin suffers from this tormenting illness. Every night at midnight, he starts crying desperately, as if seeing a ghost. He used to be so healthy and now he is afflicted like this. This illness must not be simple. I trust Mr. Shen. Even if it's a more severe illness, he can handle it easily. Yi approached the hospital bed, took a careful look, and thought, just by looking from the outside, one cannot identify the illness. It's better to use the yin-yang insight. Thinking so, he immediately activated the yin-yang insight. Upon observing the overall condition inside Lin's body, Yi Han couldn't help but be surprised. What's going on? Mr. Lin's body is perfectly normal. However, when he looked upward, continuous streams of green energy were emanating from Lin's body. What is that? Something is flying out. Suddenly, three giant demon heads appeared right in front of Yi Han, and he exclaimed, This is... 
Yi Han was horrified and fell to the floor, shouting, Demons! Others couldn't see what he saw, and they all pointed and jeered. This young man, being threatened by a patient to the point of falling on the ground, and still claims to diagnose the illness. It's ridiculous. Making people laugh to death. The first time seeing a doctor being intimidated by a patient like this. Leave quickly, don't stay here, and disgrace yourself. Bai Lu Yuan also took the opportunity to mock and say, in your current state, not even realizing the embarrassment and daring to compare yourself with Mr. Shen. Just admit defeat already. Shen Tianel glanced at him and lectured in a lofty tone. Young man, now that you've learned a bit of trickery, you think you're skilled. There's a saying that fits well here. There's always a higher mountain. Tang Hai Bin and Lin Bai Mo approached to help Yi Han up, inquiring, Yi Han, what happened? Why were you threatened like that? Even though my father is unwell, it's not to the extent of intimidating you like this. Right. Yi Han waved his hand and replied, I'm fine. He furrowed his brows, looking towards Lin's father, murmuring, He's gone now. Suddenly, Yi Han recalled something. Wait, this must be the yin yang divine eyes. Left is yin, right is yang. Yang eyes penetrate all things. Yin eyes see through the shadows of the night. So that's it. I understand now what happened just now. Yi Han activated his yin eyes, revealing a malevolent demon spirit in front of him. Bai, Lu Yuan sarcastically shrugged Yi Han's shoulder and rebuked, Kid, if you didn't diagnose any illness, then get lost, don't stay here, and mess things up for others. Having said that, he respectfully bowed, Mr. Shen, please. Tang Hai Bin, angered by this, cursed. This damn guy. Yi Han intervened, saying, Tang, calm down, only I can cure Mr. Lin's illness. Upon hearing this, Lin Bai Mo asked eagerly, Yi Han, do you mean you can cure my father's illness? Yi Han replied, Don't worry, Lin, I just need some time to prepare for Mr. Lin's treatment. Yi Han closed his eyes, sat down, crossed his legs, and began to sense with the Yin Mang divine eyes, which could dispel evil spirits and even control them. Bai Lu Yuan glanced over disdainfully and remarked, Pretend to be something you're not, then turned to flatter Shen Tianao, asking, Mr. Shen, have you diagnosed the illness? Shen Tianao smiled and replied, Yes, that's correct. But internally, he felt a wave of anxiety. I haven't actually diagnosed what demonic illness this is. What exactly is the disease? And why can't I identify even a bit of its symptoms? Yi Han spoke up, questioning him. Humph, have you really diagnosed the illness? Then try telling us. What is the ailment afflicting Mr. Lin? Shen Tianao hesitated, rubbing his nose with his hand, and responded, It's simple. Mr. Lin's body is weakened, coupled with many emotional burdens, over time, it has manifested in this way. Lin Bai Mo objected. It can't be. If it were that simple, we would have figured it out already. Yi Han chuckled and said, Of course, it's not that simple. He pointed and exposed him. Everything you're saying is just nonsense. Mr. Lin's condition is not caused by a simple illness. Hearing this, the crowd murmured in confusion. What does that mean? If it's not caused by illness, then what else could it be? I also feel that Mr. Lin's ailment is not simple, similar to what Shen Tianel mentioned. When he was exposed, he became angry and pointedly questioned. You say then, why has Mr. Lin's body become like this? Lin Ba Mo, concerned, asked, Wei Han, what's going on? Yi Han reassured, Lin, don't be hasty. Let me first cure Mr. Lin, and then I'll explain it slowly to you. Saying so, he walked towards Lin's hospital bed. Shen Tianao sneered, Even I can't identify the illness, and you still dream of curing him. Dream on. Yi Han turned to confront him. You finally admit that you can't diagnose the illness. Shen Tianao, you don't even know what the illness is. Shen Tianao, unable to refute, remained silent. Yi Han continued, Take a closer look here. Without further ado, he placed his hand on Mr. Lin's forehead channeling an internal force. A sinister and chilling demon immediately rushed towards Yi Han, screaming, Die! Yi Han extended his hand, directing a stream of energy towards it and questioned, being already dead, yet causing harm to the living. Today, I must eliminate you. He then struck the demon with the energy, overwhelming it. 
and in instant, the sinister and chilling demon was swiftly dispelled. Yi Han took a deep breath, wiped off the sweat from his forehead, and said, It's done, cured. Lin Bai Mo anxiously grabbed his hand and asked, Li Han, is it really cured? Tang Hai Bin, still confused, raised his phone, unaware of what happened, and asked, I haven't started recording. Have you finished already? Shen T and L laughed loudly, pointing at Mr. Lin, saying, Do you think we are all fools? There's clearly no improvement in Mr. Lin's condition, and you claim it's cured. Bai Lu Yuan also sneered and said loudly, Exactly, I can see that this young man is treating us like fools. This waste should have left Shanghai City long ago. Do you all agree with me? Upon hearing this, the crowd pointed and mocked him, saying, No doubt, he really sees us as blind fools. This kid is truly pitiful. Just then, a cough sounded, and Mr. Lin, who knows when he woke up casually remarked, You all are making quite a racket, hearing his voice. The others stood still, some turning to each other, asking, I think I just heard Mr. Lin speaking. Did you hear it too? Isn't that kid really cured, Mr. Lin? Lin Bai Mo rejoiced, tears streaming down, hastily ran to the bedside, embracing his father, asking, Father, how are you feeling? Old Lin responded slowly, I'm fine, my child. He inquired, That demonic thing, is it gone? Has it been driven away? Lin Bai Mo, puzzled, looked around and questioned, What is that demonic thing? Yi Han approached Lin's bedside and explained, Old man, rest assured, I have driven it away. It won't bother you anymore. The old man quickly grabbed his hand and expressed, Young man, you are truly a divine healer. This time, Lin's family owes you a debt of gratitude. Onlookers were wide-eyed and skeptical, contemplating the mysteries of life. That young lad, how could he cure old Lin? King of Western medicine disciple. He doesn't seem to possess any skills. This divine healer is the real deal. They began pressuring Bai Lu Yuan against the wall. You wretched fellow, daring to tell us to quickly expel the divine healer from Shan Hai City. If he's truly gone, who will we turn to for illnesses? Detestable. We must teach him a lesson. Faced with the situation, Bai Lu Yuan couldn't help but fearfully stammer, Gentlemen, what are you planning to do? The crowd rushed forward, overpowering him with blows and curses. Damn you, your wretched and insignificant self. Quickly put an end to this wretched fellow. Bad Lu Yuan screamed in desperation. Father, help me. Bad Jian Yi, feigning innocence, quietly left the scene, silently thinking. Let my son endure the beating. An old man like me should slip away. But before he could escape, Bad Lu Yuan cried out, Don't beat me, my father is over there. Immediately, the crowd turned their attention to him. Bai Jian Yi forced a laugh, sweating profusely, and quietly swallowed a gulp of saliva. With three legs and four hooves, he fled the scene. The crowd stomped on Bai Lu Yuan, chasing after him, yelling, Old man, stop, don't run. You're the father of a no-good scoundrel. That's why you deserve a beating. Bai Lu Yuan lay flattened on the ground, his body marked with footprints, lamenting, Why is it always me who suffers? Yi Han chuckled triumphantly, saying, Those who oppose me will never have a good outcome. On the other side, Shen Tian El, furious and trembling, his distorted face ablaze, shouted, No, I don't believe it. I can't even diagnose my own illness. How can you possibly cure him? Yi Han narrowed his eyes, glancing towards him. He activated the Yin Yang Divine Eyes and said, You want to know why? Surprisingly, he approached, delivering a blow to Shen Tian L, as if opening up his vision, saying, So, I'll let you see clearly. Upon hearing this, Shen Tian L's eyes widened in astonishment. What? As he opened his eyes wide, behind Yi Han, there was the image of a demon, its gaze fixed on him. Shen Tian L, terrified, screamed and ran while crying out loudly, Demonic monster! Mother, save me! Upon closer inspection of his pants, a darkened stain was visible, a result of an involuntary accident. Lin Bai Mo, puzzled, couldn't help but ask, What's going on with Shen Tian L? Why did he wet his pants? Tang Hai Bin frowned, just a moment ago, he was still putting on airs in front of our brothers. Yi Han shrugged as if nothing happened, saying, Who knows? Maybe he was shocked to the point of going insane. 
Lin Baimo turned to his father, asking, Father, what's really going on? What are you and Yi Han hiding from us? Old Lin ordered thoughtfully, Everyone else, please leave the room. Gradually, everyone exited, leaving only four people in the room. Yi Han, Lin Bai Mo, Tang Hai Bin, and Old Lin. He began speaking, Bai Mo. In reality, our ancestors accumulated wealth through tomb excavation. You probably already know about this. Lin Bai Mo replied, Yes, I know, but how does it relate to father's illness? Upon hearing this, Tang Hai Bin, amazed, exclaimed, Isn't that grave robbing? Mr. Lin, your ancestors must have been quite bold. Lin Bai Mo explained, This is not a secret. The elders in the city of Shanghai are well aware of it, and besides, our family stopped engaging in such activities a long time ago. Old Lin continued, That's correct. But a few months ago, while arranging some items left by our ancestors, I accidentally broke a flower vase. Since then, the illness started afflicting me. If it weren't for Yi Han's intervention, I'm afraid I would have succumbed earlier. Upon hearing the cause, Lin Bai Mo approached and gratefully clasped Yi Han's shoulders, saying, Yi Han, there is no way to repay this great favor. I will always cherish this bond. Yi Han smiled in response. This is something I should do. Mr. Lin, there's no need for such formality. At that moment, someone rushed in and exclaimed, Old man, young master, there are many people outside looking for Yi, claiming they want to meet the divine healer. Yi Han was startled, pointing at himself in suspicion. Couldn't it be that they're not here for me? Outside, a crowd of people rushed in, creating a chaotic and humid scene, each one clamoring for attention. Divine Healer Yi, I am the CEO of Daythan Group. Would you have time to have a meal with me? Divine Healer Yi, I have suffered from hemorrhoids for many years. Can you help me? Divine Healer Yi, I have a vineyard for winemaking. Can I invite you to come and taste some wine? Tang Hai Bin, overwhelmed by the pressing group, exclaimed, I'm about to suffocate to death. The crowd competed with each other, quickly turning into a melee. I arrived first. Let me go first. I won't leave here even a step. I sense that you want to get hit. Observing this chaotic scene, Yi Han hurriedly advised, Everyone, please don't fight. Take turns, one at a time. At this moment, a person entered, clearing his throat and said, Excuse me, please make way. The crowd stopped fighting upon hearing the voice, turning to ask, Who are you? Tang Hai Bin recognized the person and shouted, Lai Bai Sha, why are you here? Lai Bai Sha, indifferent, walked past the crowd, and they whispered among themselves, Isn't this secretary Lai Bai Sha from the Municipal Party Committee? Why is he here? Could it be that even the mayor wants to consult Divine Healer Yi for his illness? Lai Bai Sha walked up to Yi Han, smiling, and inquired, Greetings, Divine Healer Yi. The mayor would like to invite you to help him with a medical examination. May I ask if you have the time? Yi Han, slightly surprised at first, quickly composed himself and replied, Of course, I have the time. Lai, the secretary, extended a polite hand, saying, Please. Yi Han and Lai left the Lin family's residence. The onlookers could only gaze in envy, whispering. Unexpectedly, even the mayor wants to invite Yi Han for a medical examination. It serves as a reminder that his medical skills are superior. It seems that Yi Han's reputation in the city of Shanghai is becoming more and more prominent. At the Bai family residence, the TV was broadcasting news about Yi Han. The host pointed towards his image and introduced, Recently, there is a divine healer named Yi Han in Shanghai City. His medical skills are extraordinary, to the extent that even the mayor has invited him for a medical examination. Upon hearing this news, Bai Lu Yuan angrily threw the TV remote, piercing the screen. He felt helpless and filled with hatred, saying, Father and son want to kill Yi Han. I must eliminate that wretched fellow. Bai Zhan Yi shared a similar sentiment, gritting his teeth in anger. Daring to bring such misery upon my son and me, I will absolutely not let this young man go. Bai Lu Yuan responded bitterly, But he has established good relations now, with all the power in the city of Shanghai. What should we do? Bai Jian Yi revealed a comforting and dangerous smile, saying, Rest assured, I have a solution. He then took out his phone and contacted someone, saying, Yes, you're the triangular person, right? I want to kill someone, and money is not a problem. Meanwhile, 
In front of the mayor's house, a man with a fresh face thanked Yi Han, saying, Ye deity, thank you for treating my illness these past few days. My old man's back is finally better, and moreover, my old wife is no longer clamoring for a divorce. Yi Han scratched his head and replied, No need for thanks. It's something that should be done, just something to do. At this moment, the mayor's wife stepped out with a smile and called, Da Lang, I brewed a bowl of tonic for you to drink quickly. The mayor immediately lost his composure, rushing over to express, Oh my, my wife is here. Yi Han, observing this scene, sighed. Indeed, the older one gets, the more experience they gain. At that moment, a luxurious car arrived, honking as Tang Hai Bin inside waved and called, Yi Han, get on the car quickly, Brother Lin is waiting for us. Hearing this, Yi Han joyfully climbed onto the car, saying, Let's go. Unaware of the person trailing behind them, he chuckled, holding up his phone to inform his accomplices. The target has appeared. Prepare for the assassination. Tang Hai Bin, always inquisitive. Ask Han on the road. Lai Han, visiting patients every day must be exhausting. It's time to open a clinic. Yi Han expressed, I'm actually preparing for that. Can you help me find a suitable location along the main road? Tang Hai Bin immediately assured, raising his thumb. Leave that to me. At that moment, a red laser beam suddenly aimed at Tang Hai Bin. Yi Han immediately noticed, saying, Moon, that red dot is from a sniper rifle. Sensing danger, he quickly rushed to snatch Tang Hai Bin's steering wheel, shouting, Be careful. Yi Han swerved, and a bullet flew through the car's window, piercing through Tang Hai Bin's seat, missing him by a few centimeters. Tang Hai Bin, pale, asked, Who dares to shoot? Yi Han urgently urged, let's go quickly. The car came to a stop, crashing into a roadside utility pole. Yi Han pulled Tang Hai Bin out of the car, and people on the street ran in panic, yelling, help, someone is shooting. Run, call the police, run away, don't just stand there. Yi Han and Tang Hai Bin hid behind the car. Yi Han analyzed, this wasn't a random shooting, someone is targeting me. Tang Hai Bin, Terrified, declared firmly, I will definitely drag that shooter out. Yi Han jumped slightly, observing his surroundings. He thought to himself, Luckily, the yin yang divine eyes helped me foresee this. Without it, I would have met my end this time. On a tall building, the assassin, using the scope on his gun, looked down at Tang Hai Bin and Yi Han taking cover behind the car. Not spotting the target, he snorted and made a phone call to report. The target is stationary, hiding in a dead corner. I can't see him. It's your turn to take action. Through the phone, the voice of the other assassin echoed. Leave it to me. The local thug with a gun, retracting his scope, confidently affirmed. This time, the kid is as good as dead. Meanwhile, Yi Han reassured Tang Hai Bin, who was anxious, saying, Don't worry, the place we're hiding is a dead corner. The sniper can't see us just wait for the police to arrive. At that moment, a car suddenly rushed toward the two. The scar-faced assassin emerged from the vehicle, raised his gun, and said with a smirk, Found you. Both Yi Han and Tang Hai Bin immediately paled, thinking, It's over. The assassin aimed at Yi Han, and fired a shot, gloating. Meet your end. Yi Han smirked, lifted one hand to touch the ground, and reached behind with the other to grab something, saying, Ending my life won't be that easy. Yi Han pulled out the sharp long Vu dagger gifted by Zhao Hao Tian, combined with the Yin Yang Divine Eyes, preparing to slash towards the bullet heading towards him, saying, Block it with this. The assassin chuckled, asking, You want to use a dagger to block my bullets? Dream on. However, he did not anticipate that Yi Han could indeed block his bullets. Yi Han swung the dagger, slicing the incoming bullet into two pieces. Both the assassin and Tang Hai Ben were astonished, exclaiming, What? Yi Han then lifted his foot to support himself, comfortably landing on the ground. The two pieces of the bullet that had been sliced fell to the ground. The assassin, in disbelief, exclaimed, What kind of sorcery is this? Some onlookers, hiding in a safe spot, watched this astonishing scene and marveled, Oh my, using a dagger to stop bullets. Am I watching a movie? This is incredible. Enraged, the assassin fired multiple shots continuously towards Yi Han. 
He immediately used the Yin Yang Divine Eyes to track the trajectory of the bullets. Yi Han poised himself with the dagger, thinking, As long as I can clearly see the direction the bullets are coming from, I can block them. Saying this, he swung his hand, once again splitting the bullet in half. Any bullet that came his way was effortlessly cut by him. The assassin couldn't help but stammer, How is this possible? Who are you? Yi Han didn't answer. He leaped forward confronting the assassin and shouted, Too many words, just die. The assassin immediately retrieved the dagger from his pants, retorting, Annoying brat, do you think I'm a fool? He drew his dagger to block Yi Han's attack, but Yi Han continued to exert force, pushing him down. The assassin had to use both hands to hold onto his dagger, preventing himself from being forced to the ground. He gritted his teeth, This kid is too strong. Yi Han silently thought, I have successfully cultivated Kaigong practice. This person's strength cannot compare to mine. At this moment, Yi Han became the target of another assassin. The assassin, through the scope, saw Yi Han and grinned, Cock you. Immediately afterward, he squeezed the trigger. Despite Yi Han holding onto the collar of the scar faced assassin, the Yin Yang divine eyes continued to exert its power. Yi Han immediately sensed the approaching bullet, thinking, Again. The assassin fired, shouting, Die. The bullet sped toward him, but Yi Han just smiled and said, The one dying won't be me. Yi Han unexpectedly dodged backward, leaving the assassin astonished. What? How could he evade like that? The sniper assassin realized Yi Han's intention and broke into a cold sweat, muttering, It's over. Yi Han leaned back, and the bullet flew through the space where he had just been, piercing through the body of the other assassin. The assassin, caught off guard and unable to react in time, collapsed onto the bed, his mouth losing the cigarette, despicable. He then died on the spot. Yi Han pointed at him, turned to the other gunman, and praised. Nice shot. The infuriated assassin, feeling taunted, angrily retorted, I must kill him. However, at that moment, Yi Han had quickly taken cover behind the car, raising his middle finger in a challenge. Yi Han smirked and said, Killing his own ally by mistake, he must be furious now. Tang Hai Bin raised his thumb in admiration. Lei Han, you're so cool. The opponent must be boiling with rage right now. At this point, the final police squad arrived, with Officer Ruin cautiously stepping out of the car with a gun in hand. After placing her feet on the ground, she immediately used a loudspeaker. Seal off the road immediately. Conduct a thorough search everywhere. Don't overlook any suspects. The police swiftly obeyed the order. Officer Ruin, feeling anxious, thought, chased by two assassins. Yi Han, that young guy, seems to be in over his head. The assassin on the rooftop, upon spotting the police, hastily holstered his gun. He muttered, Damn it, the police arrived so quickly. I have to make a quick exit. As he moved, he recalled Yi Han's challenging gesture and seethed with anger, swearing to himself, Yi Han, I will absolutely not let you off. Officer Ruin aimed her gun at Tang Hai Bin's car and ordered, The person behind the car, come out with your hands up. Yi Han and Tang Hai Bin sighed as they stepped out. Yi Han chuckled awkwardly, saying, Captain Ruin, I'm just a law-abiding citizen. Put down your guns, please. Tang Hai Bin crossed his arms, adopting a sarcastic tone. Finally, you guys showed up. Yi Han here has taken care of one of the two assassins. Hearing this, Officer Ruin couldn't help but be surprised. What? Tang Hai Bin smiled, pointing proudly at the dead body of the other assassin. That one, my older brother handled him. Yi Han, modestly scratching his head, replied, Just lucky, that's all. The police officers, upon seeing the dead assassin, were astonished and exclaimed, This guy, he's an A-list criminal, extremely dangerous. He's the Triangle's assassin, wanted by many countries. He always managed to escape, but who would have thought he'd meet his end here? Yi Han waved his hand with a smile, saying, No, not at all, just lucky. Officer Ruin furrowed her brows, looking at him thoughtfully. Yi Han, what secret are you hiding? I'm getting more curious about you every day. As she glanced at Yi Han, she suddenly noticed a cut on his hand. Officer Ruin offered a bandage, saying, Your hand is injured. Let me help you bandage it. Yi Han responded, nonchalantly, Thank you, Captain Ruan. Tang Hai Bin chimed in teasingly. Officer Ruan, 
My buttocks are also injured. Can you help me bandage them? Officer Ruan, injured, gave him a strong punch. Tang Hai Bin was knocked unconscious, and Yi Han, looking on, could only express sympathy. That's too violent. He sat down to allow Officer Ruan to bandage the wound. The police officers witnessing this scene were all surprised and exclaimed, Oh my, Captain Ruan, being so proactive in helping someone bandage a wound. I've never seen her so gentle before. There must be something going on. At this very moment, a black car rushed in at high speed. Duan Ne quickly approached from the car and anxiously asked, Vai Han, Yi Han, I heard you were ambushed by an assassin. Are you injured? However, upon her arrival, Yi Han was already carefully bandaged by Officer Ruan. In her mind, the image of her caring sister came first, with Officer Ruan gently placing a hand on Yi Han's shoulder and earnestly asking, Does it hurt? Yi Han replied, No, thank you. Thinking about this, Duan Ni frowned, her anger rising, and she scolded, This despicable person. Sensing Duan Ni's resentment, Yi Han turned and asked, Duan Ni, why did you come here? Duan Ni smiled affectionately, when her voice carried a hint of gunpowder as she asked, Why? Why can't I come? Did that bother you too? Yi Han quickly waved his hand and said, No, no, not at all. Deep in his heart, a warning scene constantly echoed. Something doesn't seem right. There might be trouble. Duan Ni glanced at the butterfly-shaped bandage on Yi Han's hand, unable to contain her anger. Like pouring vinegar into an open wound, she scolded. And you even used a butterfly-shaped bandage. Yi Han, you've gone too far. Duan Nai smiled and suggested, Captain Ruan, it seems her bandaging technique isn't that great. It's probably better if I handle it. Without hesitation, she immediately approached, snatching the bandage from Officer Ruan's hand. Then, she aimed at Yi Han and began to wrap the bandage. After finishing, Duan Nai proudly flaunted. Captain Ruan, does it look okay now? The bandage on Yi Han's hand now transformed from a butterfly shape to a flower shape. Officer Ruan, feeling provoked and angry, declared, Is this challenging me? I will never admit defeat. Both girls simultaneously tossed their bandages in defiance, saying, Who's afraid of whom? Yi Han, half in fear, shouted, Oh, please don't. But the two paid no attention to him, engaging in a playful struggle over bandaging. Witness my eighteen dragons subduing palms, nine yin, white bone claw. After a tormenting session, Yi Han was now wrapped up like a silkworm, crying out, Help! Help! Duan Nai and Officer Ruan exchanged triumphant glances, declaring, Finished! Hand-to-hand -hand combat complete! Tang Hai Bin, hiding by the car, shivered, thinking, These two women are too terrifying. The two ignored each other, each going their own way. Officer Ruan, wiping his face, said, Next time, we'll continue the battle. Duan Nei, irritated, retorted, Consider yourself lucky this time. On the other side, in the mystical Yanjing, surveillance footage captured Yi Han's battle and was being replayed. At a certain point, the person controlling the video paused and spoke. This is footage from the new Shan High City surveillance. What do you all think? The crowd below immediately began expressing their opinions using a young guy with a pair of knives and bullets. Such strength can only be handled by a master at the highest level. But that kid is still too young. His talent is already terrifying. This footage can't be fake. A man slammed his hand on the table to stabilize the situation, affirming, this footage has been verified as authentic. The person with such power is the one our organization needs. Who will go to Shan High City and bring him here? The people below had various reactions. Some refuse, citing unfinished previous missions. Others expressed concerns about the uncontrollable ballistic missiles. Another person indicated reluctance to move far away, stating, My long waist can't run too far. The angered man, frustrated with their attitudes, crushed the control device, muttering, These fools always underestimate missions of this difficulty. At this moment, a red-haired woman entered, and everyone immediately turned to ask, Who? Leaning against the doorframe, the red-haired woman inquired, Boss, got a new mission again. The man was surprised to see her and said, Who? Hu Feng, didn't you request leave? Why have you returned? In his heart, a constant sense of fear arose. This formidable old lady, when did she come back? 
Hu Feng extinguished her cigarette, yawned, and replied, carelessly blew up the residence of President R of the country, got a nationwide wanted order. The only option was to return here before the deadline. Hearing this, the crowd fell silent. No one dared to speak. In everyone's mind, the thought lingered. Granting her leave is a disaster for others. She's truly the most eccentric and dangerous woman. The boss didn't know what he was thinking, recruiting her into the organization. Hu Feng approached and pointed to the image of Yi Ha on the screen, asking, Ha, huh, is this little brother the target of this mission? The safety bureau's boss broke into a cold sweat, trying to smile awkwardly. Yes, that's correct. However, this mission has already been, um, someone has taken it. In his heart, he was frantic. Absolutely cannot let Hu Feng take this mission. Otherwise, there will be a lot of trouble. The man hurriedly turned to the people below, asking, So, who among you just now volunteered for this mission? Stand up. He lowered his other hand and waved impatiently, urging, Hurry up, stand up. However, those below didn't cooperate. Each one scratched their heads, turning to ask one another, About that, who took the mission? Yes, who could it be? Perhaps the person is reconsidering and doesn't want it anymore. Hu Feng flashed a cold smile, lifting her foot to kick and break the table, scolding, Do you take me for a fool? The crowd, terrified, begged tearfully, Sorry, we were wrong. Please forgive us. It's all because of the bureau chief pressuring us. Hu Feng, flames of anger burning, tightly clutched the mission paper, glared at them, and asked, So, no one has taken this mission yet. The trembling crowd huddled together, chanting, Yours, yours. Only then did Hu Feng feel satisfied. She suppressed her anger and said with a smile, That's more like it. Afterward, she cheerfully skipped away, saying, I'm off to Shanghai City for a visit. Oh no, I mean, for a mission. People looked after her with worry, murmuring, Trouble's coming. Anyone caught in Hu Feng's sights usually ends up in a tragic situation. Hopefully, the young man can endure the next few days. Poor guy. The safety bureau chief wiped his forehead and advised, Let her go. We should forget about that young man. Once Hu Feng leaves, it's up to him to adapt to the organization's ways. Regarding Yi Han, a few days later, he waved his hand in gratitude, saying, Thank you, Brother Zhao. We'll meet again another day. Zhao Hao Tian also waved back, reminding, Yi Han, be careful on the way. On his way back, Yi Han walked and pondered. Last time on the road, I was unexpectedly ambushed, making me realize that my current strength is not enough. It's better to go meet Brother Zhao, learn a few new tricks. As he walked, his phone in his pocket vibrated. Yi Han took it out and saw Yi Xin calling. It's my sister, he happily answered. We're almost home, sis. However, a man's voice came from the phone. Yi Divine Doctor says hello. Startled, Yi Han exclaimed, Who are you? Where's my sister? The man continued to laugh and replied, Last time, you managed to dodge the gunshot. This time, I'll give you a hint. Come alone to the deserted castle in the southern district. If not, your beautiful sister will bid farewell. After speaking, he promptly hung up. Yi Han couldn't help but be angry, clenching the phone. He cursed, Damn it, if anything happens to my sister, I'll definitely chop you all up and feed you to the dogs. At the abandoned castle, Yi Xin was tightly bound to a chair, terrified, screaming, Who are you? Release me now. The assassin sneered and looked at her, saying, Don't be impulsive. Your younger brother will arrive shortly, and then you two can reunite. Without hesitation, Yi Han rushed forward and shouted, Sis, where are you? Upon seeing him, Yi Xin immediately cried out, Han. I'm here. The assassin, upon seeing him, burst into laughter and declared, You're right on time. Yi Han rushed forward and demanded, Our matters have nothing to do with my sister. Release her immediately. The assassin immediately raised a control button and shouted, Stop right there. He menacingly threatened, Take one more step and I'll press the detonation button, sending her to heaven. Seeing the bombs strapped to Yi Xin, Yi Han immediately halted and said, what do you want? Release my sister, and we can settle things between us. The assassin licked his lips, pulled out a gun, and pointed it at Yi Han, speaking provocatively, I can release her, but I want to play a game with you. Yi Han furrowed his brows and asked, What kind of game? 
The assassin, holding a gun in each hand, raised one toward Gi Han, and challenged, Between the two of you, only one can survive. You choose. Yi Han gritted his teeth and replied, Release my sister, and I'll let you decide about me. Yi Xin tried to deceive and shouted, No, Han, run away quickly. Don't worry about me. I just hope you continue to live well. The assassin, upon seeing this, laughed heartily and exclaimed, Indeed, such deep sibling love. Behind him, Yi Han secretly held a short knife, his brows furrowed in tension, thinking, There's no way, I'll just sit here and accept death. At that moment, a laughter rang out, asking, Are you guys playing a theatrical game? Both the assassin and Yi Han looked up, wondering, Who is it? Hu Fang, sitting on the iron bars, eating candy and playfully laughing, said, Should I prepare some popcorn and soda? The assassin immediately pointed his gun towards her, threatening, Miss, this is not a place for you. Leave, or don't blame me. Hu Feng's playful smile turned colder. Do you want to kill me? Then, unexpectedly, she jumped down and declared, In that case, I only have one option, kill you first. Seeing her leap down, both men were shocked. Oh wow, is she just jumping down like that? This woman is insane. The assassin immediately fired his gun and yelled, Die, no matter who you are, just die. Hu Feng gracefully dodged the bullets, and after landing on the ground, she couldn't help but mock. Your shooting skills are truly terrible. Yi Han witnessed an unbelievable scene, thinking to himself, how is this possible? This girl is truly exceptional, able to dodge all the shots from that assassin. The assassin, now terrified, threw his gun down, holding the detonation switch threateningly. Don't come any closer or I'll detonate the bomb, and we'll all die. Before he could press the button, Yi Han swiftly raised his knife and stabbed it accurately into the hand of the assassin. The control device for the bomb fell, and the assassin clutched his injured hand, screaming, My hand. Hu Feng looked at Yi Han and praised, Young man, your dagger skills are impressive. Then, she jumped up and delivered a powerful kick to the face of the assassin. Now it's my turn, she declared. Her forceful kick shattered the assassin's jaw sending him flying backward and crashing to the ground. Hu Feng clapped her hands to dust off, saying, It's done. Yi Han approached his sister, untied her, and then asked with concern, Are you okay? Yi Xin, tears of joy streaming down her face, replied, Han, I'm fine. Fortunately, this time we had this lady appear to help. Grateful, Yi Han emphasized. Thank you so much. But when they looked back, they saw Hu Fang rummaging through the belongings of the sniper. She grumbled while searching. Damn, a poor devil, doesn't have any toys. This time it's a big disappointment. Observing this, Yi Han was a bit surprised and silently appreciated. This girl is truly casual. After thoroughly searching the sniper but finding nothing, Hu Fang stood up, rested her hands on her hips with a look of frustration. She called out to Yi Han, young man over there. I haven't found a place to stay tonight. Yi Han and his sister looked up at Hu Feng, who pointed towards Yi Han as if giving an order. Tonight, let me stay at your place. Yi Han stood still for five seconds, his face bewildered and astonished, asking, What? Why would you want to stay at my house? Hu Feng laughed cheerfully and walked away amidst Yi Han's confusion. She patted Yi Han on the shoulder and said, Just decide like that. Yi Han felt extremely uncomfortable not understanding why things had to be like this. He frowned, clenched his fists, and shouted, Hey, what decision? I haven't agreed to anything yet. Yi Han felt frustrated but couldn't do anything about it. Yi Xin hurriedly came over to pat his shoulder, consoling and advising her younger brother, Han. Anyway, she saved me. It's not a big deal to let her stay for a few nights. Ho Feng casually asked, Hey, where'd your house? Lead the way. Yi Han filled with resentment, felt a surge of frustration, and thought to himself, this is considered a minor issue. At this moment, they stood before Yi Han's gigantic mansion. He stood by the window, secretly contemplating something, with a thoughtful expression. This woman is indeed mysterious, and her skills are formidable. Without any unnecessary movements, he decided to jump from the balcony, landing on the lower floor to investigate the situation in Hu Feng's room. He thought to himself, I must thoroughly investigate her background. 
Yi Han cautiously peered out of the window, his heart pounding. He sighed in relief. Luckily, I haven't been discovered. He looked around but couldn't find anyone. An uneasy feeling crept over him. Where did she go? To answer Yi Han's confusion, the story admin will reveal that Hu Feng is currently in the bathroom. Inside, the steam shrouded her figure, hot water flowing gently from the shower head. Hu Feng ran her fingers through her hair, caressing her body. She had noticed Yi Han standing outside the window, but remained remarkably calm. She thought to herself, he arrived quite quickly, seems eager to play with me. Meanwhile, Yi Han also speculated silently, she's not here. Could she be taking a shower? Suddenly, a long smooth leg emerged, pristine white, catching Yi Han off guard. His eyes widened, mouth agape, his face turning crimson, overwhelmed with emotions. What on earth is happening? Hu Feng stepped out of the bathroom, looking fresh and full of vitality. Wrapped in a bath towel, she exuded a sexy and alluring charm. To top it off, she performed a few stretching and twisting movements, radiating excitement as she exclaimed. Ah, oh, that shower was so relaxing. In the face of Hu Feng's refreshing image, Yi Han stood outside the window, his entire body covered in a cold sweat, his face flushed and his nose bleeding. He silently thought to himself, just leave. It's better to go back, while she's still enjoying her bath. Hu Feng intentionally spoke to catch Yi Han's attention, saying, Ah, this mission is really too simple. Hearing this, Yi Han snapped back to reality, standing close to the glass door, eavesdropping. He thought to himself, A mission. This woman definitely has some intentions. I must investigate. Hu Feng, with an amused expression, continued, This mission is... She deliberately paused, not addressing the main issue, leaving Yi Han impatient. He thought, what mission is it? After all, just as he was eagerly trying to eavesdrop on the details, Hu Feng suddenly opened the door and walked out, a triumphant look on her face as she loudly declared, caught you. Her unexpected appearance startled Yi Han. His heart almost leaped out of his chest, and he fell backward, exclaiming, ghost. Due to intense embarrassment, as quick as lightning, Yi Han swiftly returned to his room to avoid further detection. Once in his room, he slumped onto the table with an uncomfortable frown on his face. Observing this, Yi Xin quickly asked, M. Han, what's wrong? Yi Han scratched his head and replied, Nothing, just practicing my skills. With a less than happy expression, he looked into the distance, frustrated within, annoying, I must investigate her identity. Then, he ventured back to Hu Feng to inquire. Who are you really? Hu Feng, with empty hands and a pleased expression, retorted. Who am I, indeed? She then smiled mysteriously, thinking to herself. This fool needs to be played with slowly first. Hu Feng loudly answered. The one who will kill you. Saying that, she lifted her leg high, intending to deliver a powerful kick. Prepare for this. This action caught Yi Han off guard, and he fell backward. In his mind, he had to admit, her speed is too fast. Yi Han, irritated, questioned Hu Feng. We have no grudges. Why do you want kill me? Yi Han crouched down, his two knees bent, and his arms crossed to form a defensive posture against Hu Feng's unexpected attacks. Hu Feng, looking into the distance, replied, And why do I want to kill you? Then suddenly, she burst into laughter, as if she had figured something out, saying, Oh, because I've set my eyes on your beautiful sisters. By killing you, I can have her all to myself. Hu Feng's response left Yi Han, unable to maintain his composure. Water sprayed out of his mouth, and he was left speechless. He exclaimed in shock, You are clearly a woman. Why you want to dominate my sister? Hu Feng replied coldly, Many words, I like girls, so what? Then, swift as lightning, she rushed towards Yi Han, preparing to attack. This time, Yi Han was prepared, and he looked rather cool. Hu Feng attempted to slap Yi Han, but he managed to dodge it. Yi Han, with a serious expression, said, The old tiger does not show its power. Do you think I am a weak cat? After saying this, Yi Han used the yin yang divine eyes to see through Hu Feng's movements. In just two seconds, he discovered multiple weaknesses, observing how to counter her actions, too many vulnerabilities. Hu Feng continued to perform a high kick, intending to strike Yi Han in the face, but he managed to evade it. Hu Feng, maintaining her composure, commented, Oh, 
trying to resist. Ha! Huh. Yi Han then activated his limbs, emitting a brilliant green force. Seeing this, Hu Feng quickly positioned her hands in front of her, defensively. She frowned, thinking to herself, too strong, cannot withstand a direct confrontation. The immense force from Yi Han pushed her backward, leaving her unable to do anything. After experiencing Yi Han's skills, Hu Feng thought to herself, this young man, why did he suddenly become so formidable? It seems he's hiding quite a few secrets. Yi Han's face was tense and fierce. He shouted, Continue. I absolutely won't allow you to take my sister anywhere. Hearing this, Hu Feng thought to herself, I was just casually talking. This young man doesn't really believe it, does he? Both sides were extremely tense when suddenly Yi Xin's voice echoed, calling for Yi Han. Han, what are you doing up there? Yi Han startled, stammering sister. Then he turned around to see his sister standing under the eaves. Yi Xin gently reminded her younger brother, it's dangerous to run up there at night, come down quickly. Yi Han, sweating profusely, raised his hands innocently, saying, it's not that I found something. He turned back to look at the spot where Hu Feng had been standing, only to be shocked not to see her anymore. Yi Han pointed anxiously and said loudly, where did she go? At that moment, Hu Feng suddenly opened the door and walked out, acting as if nothing had happened. She also reminded him, Why aren't you sleeping at night and staying here? Yi Han frowned, pointing at Hu Feng, and asked in a suspicious tone, Hey, when did you come in there? Where is she? Hu Feng put on a pitiful and frightened expression, her sparkling eyes pleading innocence to Yi Han. You, you were peeping at me just now, were you? I was still taking a bath. Hicks. Hearing this, Yi Han, furious and on the verge of exploding, his face drenched in sweat, quickly scolded Hu Feng. What nonsense are you talking about? I wasn't peeping at you. He thought to himself, this girl is really good at acting. Yi Xin, enraged by Hu Feng's fabricated words, burst into anger, her entire body seemingly on fire. She yelled at her younger brother, Han, what you did is completely out of line. Yi Han hurriedly explained to his sister, It's not what you think. Listen to my explanation. Clearly, it was that girl. In the face of his sister's accusations, Yi Han became even more frustrated. She aimed a piece of wood directly at his forehead, leaving him dumbfounded, unable to utter another word. She shouted, Get down here quickly. Yi Han, motionless, tumbled down from the second floor to the ground. Having said all that needed to be said, he dragged his body struggling to compose himself, choked up and said, Really, it's not what you think. Yi Xin paid no attention to her younger brother's explanations, grabbing his collar and pulling him inside the house. Her face was stern as she scolded, Don't talk too much. Go back to your room and sleep obediently. Yi Han felt as if he were in a hopeless situation. Even bathing in the river of the Milky Way wouldn't wash away this injustice. His face was filled with despair, thinking to himself, Women are truly terrifying. Witnessing the siblings' conflict, Hu Feng reveled in amusement. She covered her smile with her hand, secretly delighted. Interesting, there must be some secrets hidden beneath your surface. The next morning, Yi Han descended the stairs with heavy steps, his face showing exhaustion. Yawning as he walked, he grimaced and said, I was scolded by my sister for more than half the night. I couldn't sleep well, and it's all because of that girl. Suddenly, he stopped in front of the living room door, expressing surprise with a sound. Outside, Duan Nai and Tang Hai Bin were chatting and laughing with Hu Feng. Yi Han confidently stepped out and exclaimed, Duan Ni, Tang, why are you all here? Tang Hai Bin quickly approached, patting him on the shoulder with an admiring and teasing expression, saying, Well done, Yi Han. Haven't seen you for long, and you've already attracted such a beauty. Hearing this, Yi Han frowned and sighed. It's a long story. He draped his arm over Tang Hai Bin's shoulder and whispered, Why are you two here? And what's with Duan Nai pretending to be angry? Duan Ni, seated behind them, stared at him with angry eyes. Hu Feng, ever the actress, leaned sensually toward Yi Han, her gaze filled with seduction. She then asked Yi Han, My love, why did you just wake up? Didn't I tell you not to overexert yourself last night? Upon hearing Hu Feng's fabricated words, Yi Han's face changed color, his eyes filled with anger as he asked, What's going on here? Tang Hai Bin, standing nearby, 
seemed quite excited about Ku Feng's remarks and burst into laughter. Duan Mi, with a furious expression, stood up and stomped towards him. She looked at Yi Han and shouted, You scoundrel! Holding two pieces of paper in her hand, she threw them directly at Yi Han's face and exclaimed, Book your own ticket to Tan Nan. Yi Han held the papers in his hand, stunned, thinking, Airline tickets? Duan and I walked straight out of the door. Tang Hai Bin stood beside Yi Han, patting his shoulder reassuringly, saying, Duan Nai came to give you the plane tickets, conveniently reminding you not to forget your trip to Tian Nan. Who knew a girl would show up in your house, disrupting the atmosphere? It was only then that Yi Han realized what was going on. He thought to himself, Oh, oh. Duan Nai misunderstood. Then he hurriedly chased after Duan Ni, shouting loudly, Duan Nai, wait. Yi Han's determined actions startled Tang Hai Bin. He also raised his hand and shouted, Hey, I want to go to Tian Nan too. Take me with you. Yi Han caught up to the gate and urgently said, Duan Ni, wait for me. He stood in front of Duan Ni, knelt down, begged for forgiveness, and tearfully explained, Duan Ni, I truly have no relationship with that girl. She saved my sister, so I let her stay here temporarily. Duan Ni, you have to believe me. After hearing Yi Han's explanation, Duan Nai began to calm down. She crossed her arms, still a bit angry, and asked, Are everything you said true? Yi Han, sweating profusely, raised three fingers to the sky, with a solemn expression, swearing to her, I swear, everything I said is true, absolutely no lies. Otherwise, I'll smash my head into the wall and die. Hearing this, Duan Nai felt somewhat reassured. She smiled and said, All right. I believe you this time. Yi Han was overjoyed and replied, Great, Duan Ni. I knew you would trust me. As things seemed to be temporarily resolved, a familiar voice echoed from somewhere, sending shivers down his spine. Yi Han baby. Yi Han turned pale, thinking, That voice. As if on purpose, Hu Feng continued to tease and disrupt the order. She stood on the second floor, her eyes filled with indifference, and spoke playfully. Yi Han baby. You promised to give me a massage. Why haven't you come yet? Yi Han, wide-eyed, looked up, sweat gently pouring down. Under his breath, he muttered, I'm doomed, I'm doomed. Then, he angrily shouted at Hu Feng without any mercy. What nonsense are you talking about? I never said I wanted to give you a massage. Du and Ni, standing behind, had a cold expression, flexing her hands and feet to activate her body. Hu Feng, with a triumphant look, replied, Oh, that's because last night you shamelessly clung to my window, begging for a long time. Yi Han was furious, pointing at Hu Feng's face, making his statement clear. I never intended to give you a massage. I was clinging to your window last night because... At this point, he realized that he had revealed too much and stopped abruptly, realizing he was in trouble. Yi Han paused with a sheepish feeling, I'm in trouble. At the same time, Du Wenli's entire body seemed to catch fire. Her eyes turned fiery red, fists clenched tightly, and she unleashed a barrage of words at Yi Han. Li Han, you pervert, lurking in a girl's window in the middle of the night. Yi Han slowly turned to look at Du Wenli, wearing an innocent and embarrassed expression as he said, Du Wenli, please listen to my explanation. Before he could finish his sentence, Du Wenli threw a punch at his face, sending him flying several meters. She yelled, Explanation, my foot. Yi Han lay motionless on the ground with a not-so-intact body, his face reddened and swollen. Duan Nai turned away without a hint of sympathy, expressing her anger. Ha, huh, disgusting pervert. Hu Feng, witnessing this scene, chuckled inwardly. Yi Han stood below, glaring at Ku Feng with blood-boiling frustration. He angrily said, Despicable. He swept a sharp gaze around and exclaimed, what grievances do we have? Why do you want to harm me? Hu Feng showed amusement, taunting in a challenging tone. Lu Lu Lu, I simply like it. If you have the courage, come and fight me. Yi Han loudly retorted. Do you really think I won't dare to hit you? Hu Feng lounged on the railing, utterly indifferent, provocatively continuing. Then come here and show your courage. Don't provoke me. When I strike, it will be heavy. A single blow could kill you. Yi Han, stomping the ground with determination, warned, don't provoke me. If I act, it will be severe. 
A single punch can finish you off. Hu Fang pointed confidently at the railing, challenging him. I'm here waiting for you. I'm only afraid you won't dare to come up, little chicken. Then, the two spent hours arguing, verbally sparring with neither willing to yield. The endurance of a person has its limits. Yi Han, unable to bear it any longer, strained himself, his entire body emanating a bright green aura, as he looked up to the sky and shouted, Ah, I can't take it anymore. He then leaped upstairs to where Hu Feng was standing. Hu Feng, wide-eyed and horrified, saw Yi Han's face, cold and pale, without a drop of blood. In her thoughts, Hu Feng remarked, This speed is even faster than last night. In just two seconds, Yi Han stood before her. He shouted loudly, You're going to die. Hu Feng jolted, her body freezing. She gasped, It's over. Quickly, she raised both hands in a defensive position. Yi Han struck forcefully against her hands, causing her to step back behind the glass door, which shattered into a hundred pieces. Hu Feng frowned, silently thinking, in terms of speed and strength, he's much stronger. Who is this guy? Today, he forced you to reveal your true self. As a result, Hu Feng's strength was no match, pinned under Yi Han on the ground, with dust scattering around the room. Yi Han coldly inquired, You wanted me to fight you. How does it feel now? Enjoying it? He grabbed Hu Feng's collar urgently, bombarding her with questions. Who are you? And what is your purpose here? Hu Feng's face remained composed, showing no sign of fear. She replied with an unrelated sentence. Yi Han, you really surprise me. Originally, I wanted to tease you for a few more days. Hearing this, Yi Han grew even more infuriated. His spiritual power surged again as he shouted, Too much talk. I think you haven't seen a coffin yet. That's why you're not shedding tears. Hu Feng quickly tossed a mysterious green card into his eyes and pinched it. Yi Han took the card and read it, expressing surprise. Mmm, what is this? Hu Feng stood up, adjusted her clothes and hair, then casually sat back on the sofa, crossing her arms with an air of arrogance. She said, open your eyes wide and take a closer look. Yi Han looked at the symbol on the card, his eyes filled with confusion. He stammered, this is a safety plug. Hu Feng laughed triumphantly and asked, So scared now? Will you kneel down and beg for mercy immediately, or maybe I'll forgive you? As she spoke, she picked up a bottle of water from the table and took a long sip. On Yi Han's side, he remained sitting on the ground, muttering, Safety plug, safety plug. Then he stood up abruptly, his eyes shining as if enlightened. Yi Han innocently asked, What is a safety plug? Is it a security company? Hu Feng was drinking water and choked upon hearing this, spitting out all the water. Seeing Hu Feng's surprised reaction, he continued to ask, Could it be a transportation company? Hu Feng stood up, pointed at Yi Han, her eyes full of hostility, and her neck veins bulged as she scolded loudly, Have you never seen it in movies? Something like 007, and you don't even know about such jobs. Yi Han stroked his chin, looking up at Hu Feng, squinting his eyes for assessment. Mainly because, no matter how I look, you seem like a secret agent. Hu Feng laughed loudly, pulling up the right side of her dress as if she was drawing a weapon. She replied coldly, Kid, let me help you broaden your horizons a bit. She released something, and outside, there was a flash of red and yellow light. Then she shouted, One skill pierces the clouds, ten thousand troops and horses come to pay their respects. Yi Han followed her gaze and that red ominous thing soared into the sky. Suddenly, there were loud explosions in the sky, accompanied by bright rays spreading out like flowers. Especially, the mischievous face of Hu Feng also appeared in the display. She smiled with arrogance and satisfaction. Yi Han hurriedly ran to the balcony and looked up at the sky. He exclaimed in shock, What is this? Then he pointed to the sky, looking at Hu Feng and continued, Are these your fireworks? Isn't it too outdated to use this now? Suddenly, his face became tense. Looking into the distance, his face turned pale, and his whole body trembled, stammering. What? What is that? Probably receiving a signal from Hu Feng, the alliance began to take action. A man wearing sunglasses with a serious face hastily spoke into a walkie-talkie. Quick, quick, hold the formation steady. The response on the other end said, Position number three, prepare for missile launch ready. At this moment, hundreds of helicopters appeared in the sky. On the ground, dozens of tanks were scattered, 
all heading towards Yi Han's house. Yi Han turned pale, his eyes widened, teeth clenched together. He anxiously asked Hu Feng, Is this a real battle? Hu Feng sat leisurely with her legs crossed on the sofa, arms resting on the back, and said with satisfaction, Are you awake now? Yi Han reluctantly took steps towards Hu Feng. Then he knelt down, tears streaming down his face. He clasped his hands together and surrendered. I admit defeat. Please withdraw your divine powers. Hu Feng raised her head with pride. Then she took out her phone, held it in her hand, and contacted the other end of the line, saying, The threat has been eliminated. Withdraw the troops. Yi Han turned around, startled and amazed. Then a joyful expression appeared on his face as he exclaimed, It's gone. At this moment, questions surged in his mind. Who am I? Where am I from? And where am I going? Hu Feng stood up and walked towards the back, sighing. I'm a bit tired now. She stretched her shoulders, relaxed her limbs, and yawned. Yi Han rushed past Hu Feng like a gust of wind. Hu Feng let her limbs go loose, lying on the bed in pure enjoyment. Yi Han stood by the bed, kneeled slightly, and asked her, Big sister, is there any other command from you? Hu Feng acknowledged his skills, saying, Yi Han, your skills are not bad. Hearing Hu Feng's praise, Yi Han was secretly delighted, his face blushing, and he modestly replied, I practice for fun when I have time. Thank you for the compliment. Hu Feng continued, We have investigated your family background, and it's very clean. Yi Han, with a proud expression, said, Of course my family, including me, has never committed any crimes. Living as law-abiding citizens, Hu Feng smiled and said, Very good. Tomorrow come with me to the safety bureau. Yi Han seemed a bit hesitant, murmuring, This, this, maybe tomorrow. Only now did Yi Han realize the content of the proposal. He straightened up and shouted loudly, What's this? Working at the safety bureau. Hu Feng stood up, pointing confidently at Yi Han. Exactly our safety bureau needs talents like you. Yi Han stepped back, a gloomy face waving his hand, and said, I apologize for the disturbance, but I decline. Then he jumped up, intending to escape through the window. Hu Feng shouted, Stop right there. Yi Han coldly remarked, Why? Isn't your safety bureau supposed to persuade people to join? Hu Feng stood by the window, gently explaining to Yi Han the perks of being in the safety bureau and why it's worthwhile. Joining the safety bureau, you'll have full social insurance coverage as per legal regulations. In addition to the 12 monthly salaries, you'll receive a 13th month bonus. Every year, there's vacation time regulated by the state. With such good treatment, you won't find anything better outside. Yi Han stroked his chin, a face full of contemplation and hesitation. He mumbled, sounds not bad. In Hu Feng's heart, flames were rising, but she had to be sweet with Yi Han. She gritted her teeth, thinking to herself, until now, it's always been others begging me. There's no way I'm going to beg someone else. Kid, wait until you join the bureau and see how I'll adjust you. After a bout of Hu Feng's sarcastic remarks, Yi Han clapped his hands against the doorframe and retorted, or maybe just leave it. He then jumped down to the ground, leaving Hu Feng fuming on the second floor, cursing him, brat with attitude. Yi Han, with a cheerful expression, shouted, I'm someone who enjoys a calm and peaceful life. Then, he turned around and walked away without looking back, leaving Hu Feng standing there, staring at Yi Han in vain. Hu Feng felt a bit of regret in her heart, silently thinking, This kid, good skills, high potential. I must snatch him to join the safety bureau. That way, facing the martial arts world in the future might not be so worrisome. Yi Han, as he walked, pondered, Do they think I'm a fool? The work at the safety bureau is so dangerous, just a few words and they want me to sell my life to them. No way am I falling for that. Yi Xin entered Yi Han's room to pack up his things neatly, pulling the luggage into the living room. At the same time, Yi Han walked in. Yi Xin's eyes were now shimmering with tears as she sadly said, Han, I heard you're going to Tan Man. I've already helped you arrange your luggage. Yi Han scratched his head and smiled. Thank you, sis. I'll be back soon. Yi Xin approached and placed her hand on her brother's chest reminding him, be careful, Han. When you go to another country, be cautious and don't stir up trouble everywhere. 
Yi Han grasped his sister's frail hands and, and smiled, Don't worry, sis. I'm just participating in an antique auction. What danger could there be? Suddenly, a familiar voice chimed in. Well, that's not certain. Hu Feng crossed her arms, descending the stairs as she continued. From what I know, this year's antique auction in Tianan is not like the ones held in previous years. Yi Han, looking tense, asked, What do you mean by that? Hu Feng smiled mysteriously and replied, You'll know when you get there. Then she threw a ball towards Yi Han, loudly declaring, Catch it. Yi Han swiftly caught the ball, saying, Hey there. Holding the half red, half white ball in his hand, Yi Han stared at it intently, still not understanding Hu Feng's intentions. Without saying more, Hu Feng continued up the stairs. Yi Han quickly called out, Wait, what is this? Hu Feng coldly responded, A small toy that can help your dragon scale pass through the security check. Yi Han pondered with a stroke of his chin, I didn't expect to bring my dragon scale along. It seems this trip is not as simple as I thought. Hu Feng silently cheered in her heart. This kid must come back alive. Then, Yi Han boarded the plane and arrived in Tianan. The next morning, he safely landed. The trio of Yi Han, Tang Haibin and Du Wan Ni, with their super cool appearance, touched down at the airport and set foot on the land of Tianan. Du Wan Nai seemed extremely excited, inhaling the air here and showing a face of enjoyment, saying, Wow! We finally arrived in Tiananmen. Tang Hai Bin and Yi Han whispered to each other. Tang Hai Bin said, Yi Han, I heard the service industry here is extremely unique. Let's give it a try. Yi Han gently replied, No, Duan Nai is still here. Duan Nai heard everything, her eyes full of hostility, muttering, You two scoundrels. Duan Nai then used her heel to step on Tang Hai Bin and Yi Han's feet. Yi Han, in fear said, Du on Ni, I was wrong. Please forgive me. Tang Hai Bin didn't dare to say anything either, hastily pulling his suitcase and calling out, I said don't exchange romantic glances anymore. When will the person picking us up arrive? Suddenly, a strange voice echoed, Isn't this Du on Nai, little sister? A blonde guy with sunglasses, wearing a red cloak and green jeans, scanned the surroundings with a flashy look and waved to Du on Nai. Following him were two big bodyguards. He greeted, unexpectedly, it's such a coincidence that you're here too. He lowered his glasses, revealing a dazzling smile before continuing. We truly have a connection, don't we? Dua Nai stood with folded arms, her face cold as she replied. So, it's young master Ning Feng from the precious Nin family. Are you all interested in this antique auction? Young master Ning Feng pushed Tang Hai Bin and Yi Han to the side, then approached Duan Ni, saying, Of course, it is. His eyes sparkled with a charming foolishness as he gently touched Duan Ni's hand, preparing to engage in a flirtatious conversation. Miss Duan Ni, if we're destined to meet, why not share a ride with me? His car, matching the color of his robe, was a bold blend of pink, complemented by an image of a casually dressed, provocatively posed girl. All three, Duan Ni, Yi Han, and Tang Hai Bin. Notice this detail. In response to young master Ning Feng's invitation, Duan Ni quickly and politely declined, saying, No, it's not necessary. My ride is about to arrive. Young master Ning Feng persisted, attempting to charm her, while casually boasting about his immense wealth. No need to be polite with me, Miss Duan Nai. We could have a meal together, then head to my 800 square meter mansion, discussing each other's ideals. Yi Han had had enough by this point. He swiftly approached, Gripping young master Ning Feng's wrist tightly and coldly asked, Where do you think you're trying to touch with your pig's claws? Young master Ning Feng grimaced in apparent pain, shouting loudly, You despicable brat, who are you? What's your connection to her? Let go of me quickly, or I'll ruin you. Yi Han effortlessly flung the wealthy young master's hand away, sending it flying several meters and retorted, Get lost. Young master Ning Feng crumpled against the hood of his car his body limp and motionless. Yi Han draped his arm over Duan Ni's shoulder, confidently introducing himself. I'm Duan Ni's boyfriend, so of course it concerns me. Duan Ni, startled, looked up at him and hesitantly asked, When did that happen? Yi Han flashed a self-satisfied smile and said, What's wrong? Do you have any objections to what I just said? 
Before Duan Nang could utter a word, without any unnecessary delay, Yi Han quickly sealed Duan Ni's lips in a kiss, right before the eyes of the onlookers. Yi Han's unexpected move left Duan Nai extremely surprised. Blushing with embarrassment, she pushed Yi Han away, then slapped him repeatedly on the chest, angrily saying, You shameless person. Tang Hai Bin, standing in a corner, enthusiastically cheered for his friend's boldness. Impressive, Yi Han. This domineering CEO move, I definitely need to learn from you. Young master Ning Feng struggled to get up, angrily pointing at Yi Han and Duan Ni, exclaiming, Damn it! How dare you two be intimate in front of me? Do you think I don't exist or something? Tang Hai Bin sneered, saying, People with talent and beauty are meant to be together. What's your opinion? Young master Ning Feng gritted his teeth, his face full of anger, muttering, Disgusting. He then commanded his two tall and muscular bodyguards, a bow, a who, go and beat them for me. I want these two to kneel down and call me daddy. In response to their master's order, the two bodyguards replied loudly, yes. Tang Hai Bin, upon hearing this, turned pale with fear and hurriedly warned Yi Han. Ye Han, you're in big trouble. However, Yi Han remained incredibly calm, showing no signs of fear. The two black-clad bodyguards lunged towards Yi Han, confidently taunting. Go die. Kneel down obediently and beg for mercy. Yi Han, with an icy expression, retorted, It's you who should be begging for mercy. With just a few basic moves, the two bodyguards of young master Ning Feng were left battered and bruised, their bodies twisted in pain. They knelt before Yi Han, tears streaming down their faces, pleading, Daddy, we were wrong. Young master Ning Feng stared in shock and disbelief, unable to comprehend the reality unfolding before his eyes. What the hell is happening? Yi Han withdrew a pig slaughtering knife from within himself and slowly advanced towards young master Ning Feng. A powerful aura emanated from him, seemingly unstoppable. The young master realized he was in deep trouble. Yi Han's face darkened and its cold eyes declared, It's your turn now. Young master Ning Feng, horrified, retreated step by step, his face turning pale and sweat dripping down. Stammering, he asked, What do you want? Yi Han replied, What do I want? Of course, I want to help you change your attire. With precise cuts, Yi Han skillfully altered the clothing of young master Ning Feng, who stood frozen, his body tense. After a few basic adjustments, Yi Han clapped his hands to dust off, smiling, done. The initial elegant appearance of the young master was gone replaced by the look of a homeless person. Tang Hai Bin, standing beside him, teased, Well, doesn't it feel refreshing? Duan Ne punched Tang Hai Bin in the stomach, causing him to stumble. She took a deep breath, covered her eyes with her hand, and exclaimed, Ah, oh, my eyes. Young Master Ning Feng was also horrified by his current appearance. He roared in frustration, Help! There's a rogue here! Yi Han couldn't contain his laughter. Then, Utterly embarrassed, young master Ning Feng, wearing nothing but a woman's beach bikini, ran off in a hurry, leaving behind a trail of white smoke. He wailed in embarrassment. Oh, mom, I want to go home. The three standing together discussed the situation, with Yi Han solemnly stating, This guy has some truly peculiar hobbies. Duan Nai chimed in. A man wearing a woman's lingerie from head to toe is truly nauseating. Tang Hai Bin, feeling disgusted, added. It's painful to look at. No, I need to go vomit. As they spoke, all three began to uncontrollably vomit due to the twisted behavior of young master Ning Feng. They were working to clear their minds and emotions when a voice interrupted. Excuse me, are you Miss Zhu? The three turned to see Yi Han, puzzled, asking, Who? Duan Ni giggled and explained, It's the person here to pick us up. Before them stood a very polite man bowing respectfully and introducing himself. I'm Liu Zheming. Mr. Zhou asked me to pick you up. Please get on the car. Upon hearing this, Yi Han and Duan Nai cheerfully stepped onto the vehicle, saying, Let's go. That's great. Leaving Tang Hai Bin behind, struggling with three suitcases, he gasped for breath and called out, Hey, you two, help me carry some luggage. Then, they were chauffeured to a lavish restaurant called Tian Nan. The food there was quite diverse ranging from sumptuous delicacies like Peking duck, KFC-style fried chicken, beefsteak, to decadent cakes. 
they devoured the food enthusiastically. Yi Han praised, Mum, it's delicious, truly amazing. Duan Nai agreed, saying, Really tasty, let's order some more. As Duan Nai was about to enjoy a strawberry, she suddenly remembered, By the way, where's Tang Hai Bin? Yi Han recalled, Just now, before getting on the car, Tang Hai Bin whispered to Liu Zheming, asking where the best services are around here. Yi Han quickly added, responding to Du Wan Nai. Yeah, Tang, he seems to have gone to try some specialties here. Suddenly, a loud complaint came from the opposite table. This food is intolerable for human consumption. How can anyone eat this? The two turned back to see Du Wan Nai whispering to Yi Han. Someone is looking for trouble. Yi Han replied, probably from Japan. A well-dressed man at the other table, seemingly elegant, also criticized the food, saying, the food at your branch is really hard to eat, incomparable to the high quality and delicious dishes in our United Kingdom. The Japanese man, with a shaved head, looked quite unpleasant. He continued loudly, exactly, it's truly pig's food. Only pigs can eat this garbage. The harsh words of these two individuals were met with strong opposition from everyone in the pub. In unison, they stood up in defiance, declaring, if you're not eating, then get lost. This is Zhang Gua Go not a place for you demons to seek death. The group of ribbon individuals laughed in response, showing their teeth. While the youths were still engaged in heated arguments, the ribbon guy silently approached. Swinging his Japanese sword, he delivered a warning slash with a sweet tone, saying, hey ya. The youth straightened up, surprised that this mustached guy with a triangular beard dared to act so boldly. They quickly backed away for safety. Pointing his finger, one of them scolded, this bruised guy dares to brandish a sword. Quickly report to the police. Does he really think no one can deal with him? The arrogant CEO stood behind smirking. He sneered back. Ha 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 ha, a bunch of rabbits from Zhang Huagu. They always had this attitude towards the Chinese. Duan Ni, observing from a distance, felt resentful. The guy in Western attire is the CEO of the Dong Yuan group, and the one standing next to him is probably his bodyguard. Unexpectedly, even someone from Dong Ying is involved in this antique auction. Du and Nai spoke with intense frustration, having information about the Dong Ying group. Yi Han stepped forward, grinding his teeth, saying, These guys are seeking death on their own, and now they dare to ruin the mood for my woman. They're looking for death the second time. Yi Han walked directly towards the group of troublemakers to give them a lesson. From behind, an unfamiliar young man jumped up, Looking on with curiosity, fearless, the young man, already holding a stance, rushed forward and shouted, You gam bastards, I see you've had enough of living. His martial arts skills were impressive, swift, and powerful enough to shatter the arrogance of the CEO covered in a luxurious coat. Adding a few teeth flying mixed with blood, the CEO couldn't even let out a scream in time. Yi Han wondered in amazement, Who is this? And faster than me too. Encountering such a talented individual occasionally made the young man excited. The suffering CEO, with tears streaming down his face, ordered, Inno Jun, kill that pig-headed guy for me. Inno Jun, the bodyguard, immediately obeyed the command, drawing his dagger and stepping forward. This guy's skills were quite peculiar, and the aura surrounding him was anything but ordinary. Jumping up with wooden clogs, Inno Jun exuded a fierce momentum. Swinging his katana with a loud cry. Here comes my Hasaki, followed by the raging wind decisive slash. The young man felt the intense power emanating from the formidable opponent, breaking into a cold sweat without a moment to spare. In his thoughts, he acknowledged, I'm done for. Without a weapon in hand, I fear I won't be able to withstand him. The CEO looked on with glee, refusing to let go of this grudge, grinding his teeth and sneering, Ha 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 ha, go to hell. At that very moment, Yi Han stepped forward with a broadsword in hand, and the divine dragon energy within him surged, igniting the entire room with fiery brilliance. His aura and skills were as fierce as a raging storm. Staring directly at the enemy, Riven's raging wind decisive slash came slashing. Yi Han wielded his dragon staff, sweeping a powerful path to shatter Inno Jun's attack. The impact sent him flying violently, causing his hair and beard to tussle, and he exclaimed, Oh my god! His cherished katana shattered, and Inno Jun flew, taking along tables, chairs, shoes, and clogs. 
crashing loudly into the wall before collapsing on the ground unconscious. Still groaning in terror, he managed to say, the sword was too fast, Hicks kicks. The crowd in the pub cheered, urging to defeat the wretched enemy. They exclaimed, excellent fight. Beat the life out of this scoundrel and quickly leave Zhang Gu a goo. Aha, serves you right for daring to cause trouble here. Duan Nai couldn't help but feel elated, cheering on Yi Han enthusiastically. Yi Han, you're so cool. Mo Mo, the CEO of the Dong Yuan Group, still dazed from the unfolding events, stumbled to his feet, bewildered. How can this be? Ino Jun is a grand martial artist, yet he was disabled with just one strike from the opponent. Trembling, he couldn't maintain his composure. The comrades on this side were now emanating the threatening aura, saying, there's only this shrimp left. We must finish him off. This damn fool dared to act arrogant on our Zhang Huagu soil, clearly fed up with life. Yi Han spoke up. Brothers, deal with this miserable Dong Yin guy. The hapless individual, now with no way to escape, stammered. There seems to be a misunderstanding here. I'll go now. With a series of thuds and clatters, a continuous barrage of punches and kicks ensued. The CEO limped away and the young man casually draped his arm over Yi Han's shoulder, introducing himself. I'm Tang Tang. What's your name, my friend? Thanks for lending a hand back there. Yi Han responded. No need to thank me. It's just that I couldn't stand idly by when witnessing injustice. I'm Yi Han, relatively new around here. The strike you delivered earlier really helped us vent our anger. These wretched people deserve a beating. Yi Han laughed heartily. Ha 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 ha. These wretched folks simply refuse to learn their lesson. Seated at the same table sharing a meal, they exchanged inquiries about each other's backgrounds for a while. Tang Tang disclosed, Your arrival couldn't have come at a more interesting time. Lately, there have been frequent brawls in this area. Yi Han, expressing surprise, having gathered some information beforehand, was prompted by Du and Ni to ask, Is it related to the antique auction? Tang Tang nodded, elaborating, Exactly. This year's antique auction has an original jaded reward that no one can resist. The four major local clans, the Gu clan in Shenzhen, the Nin clan in the north, the Liu clan in the south, and even several corporations from Riven, all want to participate in this antique auction. With this additional piece of information, Yi Han responded, I didn't expect so many forces to be involved. He thought to himself, could this be the test from Master Zhu's family? Lost in his thoughts, Tang Tang raised his wine glass and invited, Let's not talk about these things anymore, my friend. Your personality suits me well. Today we won't leave until we're not sober. Hearing such a friendly invitation, Yi Han was also pleased. It was indeed rare to find someone with such like-mindedness. Yi Han temporarily set aside all other thoughts and replied in a lively tone, Sure, let's drink and enjoy ourselves. The next morning, Tang Tang, Yi Han, and Duan Nai arrived together at the entrance of the outer temple. It was early in the morning, and the temple bell echoed through the mountains and forests. Duan Nai remarked, Finally, we've arrived. This is the outer temple. The young girl marveled. The temple is so large. Tang Tang stepped forward to introduce. This is the temple, our most famous scenic spot. It's rumored that inside, there's the great Buddhist master Zheng Tong. As they were engrossed in conversation, Tang Hai Bin's voice came from below. Wait for me, I'm exhausted. After waiting for quite a while, someone finally opened the door. It was the abbot, the venerable master, who stepped out alongside a bright-faced little girl. The venerable master approached Yi Han in a peculiar manner, saying, Our chosen one, you finally arrived. Take this child with you. He then handed the child over to Yi Han. Perplexed, Yi Han stood there as did his three companions behind him. Tang Hai Bin was also bewildered. Yi Han questioned, What is this about? The child walked up, looking up with innocent eyes, asking the venerable master, Is he my daddy? This sweet question pierced Yi Han's heart, almost making him cough up blood. He had to lower his head to avoid his elders seeing his emotional turmoil. Yi Han had barely clarified anything when Tang Hai Bin and Tang Tang, behind him, marveled in admiration. Yi Han, well done. Since when did you have a daughter? Such a young age, and already a father. Is there some secret here? But before these two could continue, 
The one in need of the clearest answer at this moment was Duan Nai. Anger surged through her veins, and a fit of madness began to boil within her. Damn it! Yi Han found himself in a bizarre situation, with his ears almost ringing from the absurdity. Speaking nonsense. I've been single for twenty years. Where will I get a daughter from? Suddenly, Du Wan Ni grabbed Yi Han by the collar and demanded, Yi Han, what is going on here? She continued with a threatening tone. If you don't explain clearly today, I will make sure you become the last prisoner of Zhang Guagu. Indeed, a jealous woman is more venomous than a snake. Ha ha ha. Yi Han hurriedly waved his hands in defense. Du Wan Ni, it's just a misunderstanding. Venerable Master Zheng Tong quickly stepped forward to intervene, explaining, Adida Fat, the female chosen one misunderstood. This chosen one is not King Cheng's biological father. Only now did Duan Nai loosen her grip on Yi Han's collar, who was still gasping for breath. Hu hu, Duan Ni, let go, I'm about to suffocate. King Cheng, feeling melancholy, asked, He's not King Cheng's father. So why does King Cheng feel so familiar with him? Duan Ni, intrigued by King Cheng's question to the venerable master, finally managed to speak. Yi Han, in agony, cried out, Listen, that child is not my daughter. It's truly unjust, without any debt to owner. Duan Ni, feigning anger, turned away, saying, Who asked you not to explain earlier? Yi Han lamented, I clearly said it, but you just wouldn't listen. These two, genuinely caring for each other, hurt each other deeply. Calming down after the initial shock, Yi Han immediately asked, Venerable Master, what is happening? Venerable Master Zheng Tong sighed and replied, Chosen One, only you can help King Cheng continue to live. The Master's ambiguous response further confused Yi Han, prompting him to start imagining various possibilities. Perhaps this girl has a strange illness. Let me use the yin-yang divine eyes to see what kind of illness she has. Looking at the sad face of the little girl, Yi Han felt compassion and invoked the yin-yang divine eyes. Yi Han immediately discovered a shocking secret. Astonished, he couldn't believe that such a mystical creature existed in a child. After a moment of stupor, Yi Han exclaimed, What is this? It's terrifying. A mystical creature with unimaginable power that seems capable of destroying everything. Unveiling itself before Yi Han, this extraordinary entity was something he had never seen before. Seeing Yi Han somewhat moved, Venerable Master Jane Tong explained, Adida Fat, the Chosen One indeed possesses powerful spiritual abilities. It's unexpected that you can perceive it clearly. Only the spiritual energy of the Chosen One can suppress it. Once it escapes and enters the world, not only King Cheng will perish, but calamity will befall the moral realm as well. Yi Han, confused, said, But I, the venerable master gently patted King Cheng's shoulder, saying, Go, King Cheng. The master added, I have devoted myself to suppressing it for several years, but my time is running out. I hope the chosen one can fulfill my wish. King Cheng hesitated, took a step forward, and then stepped back, saying, Master. Du Nai approached, bending down to look at the baby. She said, Vai Han. This little girl is adorable. Agree to it. Tang Hai Bin, unaware of the situation, also stepped forward to encourage. That's right, Yi Han. Having a daughter is a blessing. King Cheng unexpectedly broke free from Duan Ni's embrace, ran towards Yi Han, and called him Big Brother. The baby hugged Yi Han's leg and cooed, I really like the scent on Big Brother. Yi Han gradually felt fond of the little girl, scratched his head, and replied, Okay. Fine. Considering that the young man agreed to take in King Cheng, Venerable Master Zheng Tong immediately invoked the law. He expressed gratitude, saying, Thank you, Chosen One. I have a small offering to give you. The Venerable Master's mysterious words hung in the air. A leader approached, sending Yi Han flying in surprise. Oh, the Grand Master is here, he exclaimed. Some kind of spiritual force enveloped Yi Han, leaving him disoriented and unable to stand. Tang Hai Bin immediately called out cautiously, Ye Han. Du Nai hastily rushed forward, and Tang Tang reassured the group, Don't worry, it seems like the Grand Master is transferring his power to Ye Han. It will only benefit him and won't cause harm. Absolutely don't disturb them, or it might lead to serious consequences. 
otherwise, they'll be in big trouble. In his heart, there was a question lingering. Who is this junior Yi Han that even the high monk from the external temple values so highly? At that moment, a group of unfamiliar figures leaped towards them from behind, wielding deadly weapons, clearly harboring ill intentions. Tang Tang was the first to sense danger, turning around and shouting, Who goes there? The gang of ruthless assassins finally revealed themselves, confidently approaching and threatening. Ye Han, you continuously tarnished our reputation as assassins. Today marks the day of your demise. Their skills surpass those of previous enemies Ye Han had faced. Worried, Tang Hai Bin said, These are the same ones who hunted Ye Han before. Sensing trouble, he added, Ye Han is the only one capable of dealing with them, but he's incapacitated now. What should we do? The only option is to join forces and resist them, at least until Yi Han finishes absorbing the martial arts techniques. Tang Tang warned the merciless attackers, If you want to kill my younger brother Yi, you better ask for my consent first. Tang Hai Bin angrily scolded, Yi Han is my brother. I absolutely won't allow any harm to come to him. Du and Ni firmly declared, not allowing them to take a single step forward to harm Yi Han. You must first step over my lifeless body. The leader, with a contemptuous smirk, regarded the three individuals before him as mere insects. All he desired was Yi Han's life. Eagerly, he responded, If you want it that way, then let me fulfill your wish. Attack, kill them. His henchmen enthusiastically charged forward. As they targeted the three siblings, a surge of energy emanated quietly from Yi Han, enveloping the surroundings. Undaunted, Tang Tang leaped forward, exclaiming, Damn it, I'll risk my life against you all. Two assassins were about to pounce on him when Yi Han unsheathed his sword, swiftly blocking their path. Tang Tang was amazed. Yi Han's demeanor had undergone a transformation. A new internal force flowed within him. Yi Han shouted, Get lost, and unleashed a powerful strike that sent the entire group flying. A flawless display of greeting, indeed. Tang 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 Hai Bin and Du Nai express indescribable joy. Finally, Yi Han has returned. Now we can be at ease. A palpable aura of hostility surged through Yi Han's veins. He kept his eyes fixed on the blood-sucking fiends for just a split second and declared, Daring to harm my friends, you are surely doomed. Zheng Tong, the Grandmaster, also regained consciousness, breathing a sigh of relief. Luckily, we made it in time. The three siblings stood behind Yi Han. They were certainly not a match for the bloodthirsty creatures. The leader of the thugs provocatively taunted, Ha ha, waking up won't change a thing. Today, you'll still die. But before he could finish his sentence, a sword swiftly glided across his throat. His eyes widened, but by now, it was too late to cry out. Yi Han's dragon spirit moved as gently as a breeze, delivering a precise cut to each of his underlings. The sword techniques were so rapid that the blood had no time to settle on the blade. Yi Han paused and concluded with a chilling statement, dead. The five siblings, once ruthless assassins, lay silently on the ground, blood flowing freely. No one uttered a sound. They departed to the eternal realm, holding hands. The thug named Lin, still bewildered, managed to mutter a few words. Unacceptable. Why? I just joined the fight. Yi Han coldly bid him farewell. You are now merely ants in my eyes. The residual energy still faintly lingered around the bodies of those few. The siblings in the gum-wielding family praised enthusiastically. Yi Han, that was amazing. I knew you could do it. Little Yi, your skills are becoming more formidable. Du and I admired greatly. Yi Han, you're truly skilled. King Cheng also chimed in. Big brother, that was fantastic. Yi Han. Not forgetting the contribution of the master, scratched his head and replied, It's all thanks to the Grandmaster for transferring power to me. He felt the strength flowing smoothly in his body, and he could quickly break through the nurturing origin stage. At this moment, unexpectedly, Grandmaster Zheng Tong showed signs of exhaustion. The old man's breath became feeble. King Cheng rushed to inquire about his master's condition. Master, how are you feeling? Yi Han hurriedly transferred the available spiritual power in his hand, rushing to give assistance. Grandmaster, Grandmaster, how are you? Let me transfer spiritual energy to treat you. He was confident in using his yin-yang divine eyes, 
and his medical skills to help the Grandmaster, but as he approached the Grandmaster, he was stopped. The Grandmaster spoke weakly, no need. I know I'm not going to make it. Seeing King Chang has found a place to settle, I am very relieved. Fei Chu, someday when you meet an old friend, convey my words to help me release any expectations or resentments. The victor and the defeated are like the sky and the earth, inevitable. Having finished speaking, the Grand Master gradually separated his spiritual energy from his body. Yi Han couldn't help but be amazed, but there was no way to stop the flow, living a carefree life untangled by worldly affairs. With these words, the Grand Master took his last breath, dissipating into the air like smoke, as if a dream had come and gone in a hurry. Sting Ching wept, calling out Master repeatedly, holding the little girl in her arms. Yi Han quietly responded, Grandmaster, rest assured, I will take good care of King Cheng. Saying this, he silently gazed into the void for a while. The next morning, the antique auction officially began. It is said that many formidable factions are participating in this antique auction, which is only natural. This time, a whole piece of raw jade is set to be the prize. I just hope to choose a good piece of jade. A multitude of people gathered, converging towards the auction center. Yi Han and Duan Nai walked side by side, eagerly observing their surroundings. Duan Nai remarked, Wow, it's packed with people. Yi Han replied, This is only the first day. More people will come as the auction progresses. Spotting a passing girl, Tang Hai Bin quickly gathered his courage, rushed over, and inquired, Hey, can a beauty like you add more charm to the event? I'll lead you to the auction. The girl, raising her eyebrows in annoyance, retorted, nerve-wracking. Duan Nai and Yi Han, witnessing the scene, were left speechless, thinking to themselves, if he had known, he wouldn't have followed him in the first place. Sigh. Yi Han had to swiftly pull the fat, bearded guy away, saying, go quickly, don't embarrass us here. Come on, let's go, pull this chubby guy along first. Tang Hai Bin still tried to call after the girl. If you have time, come to Shanghai City to have fun. I will definitely welcome you warmly. Entering the showroom displaying products, Duan Nai took Yi Han around for a look. Here, all kinds of ancient jade specimens were showcased. Standing in this space for the first time, Yi Han felt overwhelmed. His eyes widened as he saw money everywhere. Wow, so many jade specimens. This time, I must make a lot of money. Curious, Duan Nai asked, Lei Han, have you spotted any valuable stone? She thought this challenge would be much tougher than before. Yi Han hurriedly pointed to one nearby and said, This piece is of poor quality, but surely there's jade inside. He thought to himself, There must be a large piece of jade in this javit, worth at least 200 million. Tang Hai Bin expressed skepticism. Is it real or fake? Yi Han nodded confidently, Of course it's real, you have to trust my intuition. But it seemed like this chubby guy only trusted those models walking down the street. Yi Han draped his arm over Duan Ni and stepped forward, signaling, I want to buy this jade. The female attendant respectfully replied, Yes, sir. With Yi Han's divine eyes, he couldn't go wrong with his selection. Just as he was about to pay for the jade, suddenly a hand reached out to stop Yi Han, saying, Wait. The arrogant younger brother, Ning Feng, pointing his finger at the sign, saying, I've had my eye on this piece of Javak for a long time. It seemed like encountering trouble wherever he went was a harsh reality. Yi Han, you have to deal with these annoying pests again. Duan Ni, infuriated by these troublemakers, approached them and asked, Ning Feng, what do you want? Yi Han didn't say anything, quietly observing the unfolding situation. Tang Hai Bin, looking at their faces, seemed ready to jump in clenching his fists as a provocation. You little scum, did you forget the lesson from last time? I see you're itching for a beating again. Ning Feng, with a scornful smile, pointed towards the security personnel, implying, Ha ha, if you dare to make a move here, you'll be thrown out immediately. Quick-wittedly shifting the focus, he added, I'm just competing fairly, not breaking any rules here. What can you do to me? Tang Hai Bin couldn't stand the bitterness, but also dared not to act. Indeed, infuriating to death. After contemplating for a while, Yi Han seemed to have a cunning plan popping up in his mind. He stepped forward to Tang Hai Bin, signaling his older brother not to bother, then spoke to Ning Feng. All right, 
if you want to compete with me, I'm ready. Having said that, the two of them step forward onto the auction floor, beginning their competition for the jade egg. Ming Feng spoke first, I want to buy this jade egg. I bid 3 million. Yi Han replied, I bid 3.01 million. Seeing Yi Han raising the bid provocatively, Ning Feng, furious, cursed at him. Are you trying to cause trouble? Yi Han, with a teasing grin, approached him. Just fair competition. I can bid whatever I want. What? Can't handle it and want to challenge me. Lu Lu Lu. Tang Hai Bin and Du Wan Nai enjoyed the scene and cheered together. Teach that Ning Feng a lesson. Go Yi Han. Haha, <laughs> Yi Han is impressive. So exhilarating. Unable to bear the humiliation, Ning Feng, in a fit of rage, made a solo bid. Fine, I'll play with you. My family has nothing but a lot of money. I bid four million. Not able to resist the urge, Yi Han countered, 4.01 million. Growing more frustrated, Ning Feng escalated, 5 million. Yi Han shouted, 5.01 million. 6 million. 6.01 million, 7 million, 7.01 million. Yi Han remained calm, mocking his blonde-haired younger brother, making him increasingly agitated. The onlookers were eventually drawn to the intense bidding between Yi Han and Ning Feng. They whispered to each other, Isn't that Ning, the young master from the Nin Jewelry Group? It seems he's competing with someone to buy that jade. Surprisingly, someone dares to challenge Ning Feng must be confident in making more profit for themselves. The fierce bidding continued, and the price had soared to 10 million. Ning Feng looked frustrated. Duan Nai and Tang Hai Bin, sensing potential losses, approached Yi Han and advised, Yi Han, the price has gone too high now. Continuing to bid will result in a loss for us. Yi Han, restrain yourself a bit. Life is long. There's no need to rush for revenge. Yi Han remained firm and composed, assuring them, trust me, have faith in my ability. This business deal will definitely not end in a loss. Ning Feng, in his arrogance, sneered, out of money, huh? Daring to compete with me. I think you're just digging your own grave, ha ha. Yi Han casually raised his hand. I bid 10 million and 10,000. It was the same old trick, nothing new. Seeing Yi Han's calm demeanor, it truly irritated Ning Feng. It couldn't take it anymore. This part was to show Yi Han what it means to be wealthy. And the style of a player is unpredictable. I bid 100 million. His subordinates quickly stepped forward to intervene. Young master, wait a moment. The cunning subordinate whispered a few words to Ning Feng. The price for this Javite has far exceeded its actual value. We should withdraw now. Let that kid taste the bitterness on his own. Young master, get ready to laugh at him. Hearing this seemingly wise advice, Ning Feng was overjoyed and couldn't hold back tears. So simple. And I didn't think of it. His mischievous subordinate was delighted, while another thought to himself, finally, some sensible advice. If not, I wouldn't know how to face the old man, that troublemaker. Now Ning Feng changed his tone. I won't buy it anymore. Am I stupid enough to spend over 10 million on a piece of jadeite, only to cry at home? Ha 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 ha. Yi Han, feigning surprise, said, What's going on? The crowd, hearing this, burst into mocking laughter. He he, that foolish kid got tricked by Ning Feng. A piece of jay worth two million, bought for ten million. Ha ha ha. He must be furious now. Ning Feng sneered and taunted Yi Han. Lu Lu, regret kicking in. Ha. Huh. Your foolish brother must be furious to the point of death. To make this little guy endure such humiliation. Maybe Du and I will abandon him and run into my arms. Yi Han calmly retorted, The newcomer is the fool. Ning Feng, hearing this, turned as cold as ice and slammed his head. This guy's nerve might be severed. Why isn't he showing any expression on his face? Yi Han had a plan in mind and proceeded to the next step. He provocatively challenged his younger brother Ning Feng, dared to bet with me again. Let's wager on this piece of spirit stone. See if it's worth 10 million. If I lose, I'll give you my entire inheritance. But if you lose, you owe me 100 million. Seeing this lucrative opportunity, one of Ning Feng's subordinates whispered to him, Young master, this spirit stone is at most worth 5 million. We've got this in the bag. Ning Feng, thinking his advisor was astute, relied on the information and confidently responded, Fine, 
Let's make the bet. The younger sisters behind giggled. This young man has gone crazy trying to restore his honor. Well, let's live stream when he goes to the bathroom. If this spirit stone is worth 10 million, I'll plant bananas and go. Ming Feng took out a check from his wallet, raised his head proudly, and said, I've prepared a 100 million check. What about you? Aren't you planning some tricks here? Yi Han appeared indifferent, but deep down, he had already joined the game. Duan Nai slammed her hand on the table and defended Yi Han. It's just 100 million. My man isn't short of money. Yi Han, looking at Duan Ni, found her admirable. The young man approached Du and Ni, and they both joked around while inviting the younger brother to join them for a meal. Yi Han said, You're truly a good wife. Du and Ni jokingly replied, Nonsense. You haven't passed my grandpa's approval yet. As Yi Han had anticipated, Ning Feng's younger brother, upon witnessing the scene, boiled with anger. Unbelievable, daring to be affectionate in front of me. Wait and see how you'll end up in a moment. The members of the guild arrived and one of them spoke up, Sir, may I inquire about your approach to unraveling this primal stone? Yi Han stepped forward, examined it briefly, then confidently handed the stone to a skilled artisan, signaling, Wait for me a moment. With the yin-yang divine eyes, this needs careful examination. After Yi Han observed, he sketched a rough diagram and instructed, Five parts on the left, ten on the right, continue until complete. Yi Han stood up and delegated the remaining work to the experienced artisan. Furrowing his brows, the artisan put on gloves and said, It's quite challenging. Please wait a moment. Ning Feng, observing from afar, finally spoke sarcastically, speaking as if you could see inside the stone, acting like it's something impressive. Too bad, Yi Han just chuckled. Sorry, I can actually see inside. He, the engineer, cautiously started dissecting the primal stone. Duan Nai and Tang Hai Bin kept a close eye, with Duan Ni commenting. What's happening? Has it been revealed yet? Why the rush? The knife has just descended. How can it emerge so quickly? The familiar crowd of spectators mocked and laughed, even ridiculing Yi Han. This youngster, afraid to even watch the stone-solving process, truly a coward, probably knows he's going to lose, so he's trying to appear calm. Ha! Just a pity for this beautiful girl accompanying such a useless guy. Tang Heimbin to get excited. Lai Han, have you seen it? It's amazing, ha ha ha. Yi Han, you're truly impressive. Your eyes are incredibly sharp. Ning Feng's two brothers smirked, looking at Yi Han's group with disdain. Hmm, just exposed a small piece of jade the size of sesame seeds. Let's see how happy they are now. A subordinate reminded with a smug expression. Don't forget, you made a bet with our young master. The primal stone is worth at least 10 million. Yi Han nodded in response. Of course, I remember. However, the jade in this primal stone goes beyond the mere 10 million mark. The engineer, increasingly blinded by the intense light of the jade, made it difficult for him to see. Duan Ni, sweating, exclaimed. Wow, it's revealed, it's revealed. A remarkably large and transparent piece of jade. Tang Hai Bin. Envious, said to Yi Han. Oh, Yi Han, you're making a fortune this time. At least add another digit after one million. As the news spread, Ning Feng felt a sudden chill down his spine. What's going on? Could this kid really have found a top-notch jamet? Is it real or fake? From the patterns on that primal stone, its value might just be ordinary. I don't believe it. Let me see. Everyone became extremely curious and gathered around. Finally, they successfully extracted the Javek from the primal stone. The engineer, wiping off his sweat, announced, Finally, it's done. Now, the crowd erupted in exclamation. Oh my goodness! The audience clamored. It's truly an extraordinary transparent Javek. A piece this size is worth at least 100 million. This discernment is truly remarkable. This is a genuine master. Compared to him, we're nothing but amateurs. Ning Feng, seemingly unable to trust his own eyes, gritted his teeth and cursed. How can this be? Infuriated, he shifted all blame onto his subordinate. Unbelievable. Didn't you just say earlier that it's worth only five million at most? The subordinate stuttered an explanation. In theory, yes, but there are times when unexpected situations arise. Yi Han walked forward confidently, holding up a treasury voucher. Young Master Ning. 
Thanks for this 100 million. You're truly generous, daring to empty your pockets for a bet. Ha 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 ha. Observing Yi Han's triumphant expression, Ning Feng was infuriated. Ha ha ha, you fool. Now, I realize you were playing me. I've never seen someone as foolish as you. Ha ha. The hair of the Ning family's treasure group turns out to be just a simpleton. Don't come to his shop to buy gold and silver in the future, to avoid catching stupidity. Duan Nei and Tang Hai Bin step forward, mocking Ning Feng. Young Master Ning, you truly are a philanthropist. When you ever want to do good deeds, remember to donate a bit to me too. Ning Feng couldn't control himself any longer. He dismissed his subordinate and questioned outright, Damn Yi Han, are you deliberately playing me for a fool? The power of the Ning family's treasure group is vast, and offending them brings no benefit. This young man can only blame his own misfortune. This Ning Feng isn't exactly a saint either. The murmurs and whispers of the crowd added to Ning Feng's confusion. Losing his composure, he shouted, Yi Han, don't be too pleased. The treasures owned by the Ning family's treasure group cover half the kingdom of Long. Believe me, I can easily make your Javid a mere decoration. Not even a penny will come your way. Duan Ni, feeling the need to counter, spoke up. Ning Feng, don't be excessive. You don't get to dictate here. Ning Feng's younger brother laughed loudly. Ha ha ha, I'm not leaving here today. Let's see who dares to purchase this jailet. Surprisingly, a stranger, elegantly dressed and carrying a cane, typical of the upper-class elite, stepped forward and declared, I'll buy this piece of jailet. Everyone in the room was surprised by this unfamiliar voice. Who is this? How dare they openly confront Ning Feng? Even if they're more detestable, behind him is the powerful Ning family's treasure group extremely influential in the kingdom of Long. Ning Feng, displaying annoyance, had already issued a threat, yet someone disregarded his reputation and boldly retorted, who dares to challenge Ning Feng's authority and still wants to continue trading treasures in the kingdom of Long? At that moment, Liu Guangzong from the Liu family, a prestigious figure, stepped forward with his subordinates, saying, Young Master Ning, your influence is indeed vast, even extending to the trading of other people's primal stones. His words were polite but carried a hidden meaning, causing Ning Feng to lower his tone. He stepped up to Liu Guangzong and responded, I thought it was someone else. Turns out it's Senior Liu, the head of the Liu family's treasure group. Your health is quite good. Despite your age, you can still participate in today's auction. Liu Guangzong remained calm, smiling without saying anything. The surrounding crowd was drawn to the confrontation between the two powerful forces, discussing eagerly. Senior manager Dong of the Liu family's treasure group is unexpectedly here. There's more drama to unfold. They're not afraid of the Ning family's treasure group. I heard these two families have been recently competing against each other, vying for precious resources. Du and Ni, also astonished, said to Yi Han, Liu Guangzong. He manages the Liu family's treasure group and is just as formidable as the Ning family's treasure group. Unexpected to see him here today. Intrigued by this clash, Yi Han replied, It seems this old man doesn't have a favorable impression of Ning Feng. Ignoring the younger Ning Feng, Liu Guangzong smoothly passed by him and approached Yi Han. Having paid attention and listened to the conversation between the two, he took notice of Yi Han's jade. Wei Guangzong spoke, Young friend, I'll buy this jade of yours. Let me know your price. The wealthy onlookers whispered among themselves, This jadeite is so large, and also an extremely transparent primal stone. The price is definitely not cheap. In my opinion, the starting bid should be at least 200 million. It surely won't stop there. Gemstones are selling well now. Raising the price to 300 million is not out of the question. Ning Feng was dismissed by the senior without a second thought making him feel even more humiliated. He thought angrily, the Liu family's treasure group is just as formidable as ours. Today, it seems this kid got lucky. Yi Han contemplated for a moment. This opportunity can't be rushed. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. And moreover, this old man leans towards our side. I shouldn't demand too high a price. Liu Guangzong, seeing Yi Han thought, shuffled and asked again, young man, have you made up your mind? Yi Han, having devised a suitable approach for dealing with Senior Liu, responded, Senior Liu, if you truly like it, I can sell this jade egg to you for 200 million. 
Although Duan Ni gave Yi Han the authority to decide, she still saw the much higher potential value of the primal stone, and stepped forward to reconsider with him. Yi Han, I think this jadeite could be sold for a much higher price. Yi Han, choosing to explain to Duan Nai later, seized the opportunity and signaled, It's okay, Duan Nai. Today's gains are sufficient. I appreciate the praise for a young man like me. The atmosphere is quite lively. Senior Li laughed heartily and nodded. Ha 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 ha, well done. He bowed his head in gratitude. Then this old man won't be polite anymore. Just when it seemed the transaction was about to conclude, Ning Feng's brazen younger brother jumped in, waving his hand. Wait a moment. He stepped in between Yi Han and Li Wangzong. Smirking, I also want to buy this jade at. Li Wangzong was somewhat surprised. It seems this impulsive young fellow hasn't learned his lesson yet. Yi Han and Duan Nai found this old man's behavior quite perplexing. What kind of rich heir engages in such unnecessary conflicts over trivial matters? The onlookers, who had been watching, also mocked Ning Feng's younger brother. What kind of joke is this? Just a moment ago, he wouldn't let others buy it, and now he wants it for himself. Is he mentally ill? Insanity is a disease that can't be cured. It's recommended to cremate and burn it. Ning Feng, however, reveled in his amusement. Ha 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 ha, you don't understand. The Liu family's treasure group is currently lacking in primal stone jadeite. It's absolutely impossible to let them get their hands on such a large piece of top quality jadeite, he he. Senior Liu fell defended and spoke up. Ming Feng, you gone too far. Do you think this old-fashioned senior doesn't know how to get angry? The younger brother disregarded the senior, laughing defiantly. The Ning family's treasure conglomerate is currently missing a transparent jade piece like this. Why wouldn't they allow me to bid for it? Ning Feng's assertive tone surprised even Yi Han, who remarked, He's quite eloquent. Turning towards Yi Han, Ning Feng decisively offered a price. I bid 250 million. I want to buy this J piece. Can you find an extra 50 million? Seeing his younger brother more cooperative than initially thought, Yi Han immediately responded, No, not for sale. Yi Han's demeanor stunned Ning Feng, who felt as if he had been kicked in the head. He exclaimed, What the hell? Unexpectedly, Ning Feng stood up to the challenge. Why? I've increased it by 50 million. Are you bad at math or something? It turned out that he underestimated Yi Han, assuming that throwing in a bit more money would easily solve the problem. Yi Han pitied his younger brother, choosing his words to provoke some intellectual response. I'd rather engage in a romantic conversation with others than do business with a dog. And so, Ning Feng barked like a purebred dog, his expression as colorful as his hair. Senior Liu Guangzong, despite his age and composure, couldn't contain his amusement, laughing loudly and praising. Ha 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 ha, the young man speaks well. Tang Hai Bin and Duan Nai burst into laughter. Wai Han, your tongue is truly sharp. Ha ha ha. Yi Han, your exemplary image is vivid. The onlookers, initially reserved due to Ning Feng's reputation and the Ning family's status, now openly mocked the younger brother. Ning Feng, you flip faces faster than turning pages. Indeed, you're a dog. Ha ha ha. I may not be a person, but you're genuinely a dog. Humans and dogs naturally can engage in business or conversation. Too painful and humiliating. Ning Feng moaned pitifully, his face contorted, not knowing where to hide. He mumbled, Vi Han, you dare. Yi Han scratched his ear, pretending not to hear, sarcastically remarking, How could I? I don't have any bones for you to gnaw on. Upon hearing this, Ning Feng's heart shattered, blood rushing out like a fountain. He thought dying would be more bearable than enduring such hurtful words. Ning Feng lay sprawled in the middle of the antique auction hall. Everyone stood watching, none bothering to glance at the foolish younger brother. Only his subordinates rushed up frantically, their voices filled with concern. Young master, are you okay? Unexpectedly, Ning Feng's condition was so severe that medical attention was urgently needed, and the staff quickly called for a doctor. His subordinates cried as if their world had collapsed. Young master, this can't be happening. You wanted us to go to the dreamy Turkey, not to mention Tokyo and the splendid capital, Paris, Saab. Hearing these words, the three brothers, Yi Han, shuddered. Two grown men acting like this, getting sick over such matters. Turns out the two of them share such interests. Du and I rolled around, groaning. 
Where's the bathroom? Save me. The trouble with Ning Feng seemed to be resolved. Senior Liu Guangzong stepped forward, handing a check of 200 million to Yi Han, saying, Here's the 200 million check. Take it, Mr. Yi. The intimate transaction between the two officially began. Senior Liu expressed, This transparent jade piece has truly helped me a lot. Yi Han happily responded, Senior, you're too polite. He also didn't hesitate to speak the truth. Helping the senior is also helping myself. I've had a bad impression of that younger brother Ning Feng for a long time. His luck is truly terrible. Although Mr. Liu had just met him, he had a favorable impression of Yi Han. He quickly wiped away tears and handed a special business card, saying, This is a business card for my distinguished guests. Mr. Yi, if you ever intend to work with the Liu family's treasure conglomerate, this old-fashioned senior will welcome you at any time. Yi Han was somewhat surprised by the generous offer from the senior. Indeed, being valued by the head of the Liu family's treasure conglomerate was not something many could boast about. However, just as he was about to accept the business card, the beautiful Duan Nai stepped between the two, resolutely blocking him. Ye Han, you can't go anywhere. Senior Liu Guangzong recognized Zhu Duan Nai immediately, the granddaughter of his old friend, Zhu Mingshan. He chuckled, ha 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 ha. So it's like that. Old Zhu is indeed fortunate to have such a good granddaughter. The senior didn't complicate things for the two of them any further, allowing them to handle it as they please. Yi Han scratched his head, unable to say anything. Duan Nei had never allowed anyone to snatch him away from her before. With the senior and his subordinates claiming victory in this auction, he expressed his satisfaction and advised Yi Han, Based on your talent, Mr. Yi, you will undoubtedly become a master in the gemstone industry one day. Unexpectedly, at this moment, an uninvited person spoke up with disdain. Hemph, a master, is he really deserving of that title? The three Yi Han siblings looked surprised and asked, Who is it? Tang Hai Bin, always ready to defend his friends, stepped forward and exclaimed, Where did you come from, you despicable person daring to speak ill of my good brothers? Liu Guangzong recognized someone with such a voice, appearing serious and thoughtful. This voice... Could it be him? All eyes turned towards that direction, and someone explained, So it's Master Wang and Gu Wen Diao, two colossal figures in the gemstone world of Zhang Gua Gu. Unexpectedly, they are also interested in this auction. The crowd was once again astonished, and another fan marveled, Gu Wen Diao, the heir of the Xianjiang group. How can he be here? The person beside him is probably the renowned Master Huang from Southeast Asia. Rumored to have vast experience in gemstone evaluation, and even discovering a unique mineral vein, he is a true expert. Despite feeling quite tired and annoyed by the constant disturbances, Yi Han, confronted by these influential figures, asked Master Huang with some displeasure, Who are you? I don't recall having any issues with you. As it turned out, this old man had a legitimate reason, not just baseless rumors. Master Huang pointed and exclaimed loudly, you may not have offended me, but you've harmed my disciple, Master Wang. Yi Han recalled, Master Wang, the guy who teased the dog and got bitten that day. Duan Nei asked in surprise, the guy who learned the dog language. Hearing the two young men insulting his junior, Master Huang couldn't hold back and waved his hand, scolding, Shut up! You've been tormenting my disciple like crazy for months, and now you can't even handle your own bodily functions. Duan Nei, Feely indignant stood up to argue with this bald-headed old man. That's because he brought it upon himself. He's malicious, plotting against us, and doesn't allow us to defend ourselves properly. Master Huang bit his lip, unable to argue logically with these kids. Determined to settle the matter this time, he gritted his teeth and replied, Talking too much is useless. He then confronted Yi Han, directly, shouting, Yi Han, do you dare to bet with me? If you win, I will learn the dog language right here in front of everyone and withdraw from the martial world, never to appear again. Tang Hai Bin, with a stern expression, asked, What if Yi Han loses? Master Wang, who seemed to enjoy discussing this, had been planning since the day Master Wang went mad because of him. He sneered and said, If he loses, he has to cut off his own tendons in his arms and legs, becoming a cripple, just like my disciple. Yi Han found it somewhat interesting. He had never been afraid of challenging the so-called losers before. However, 
Dua and I didn't allow him to object, saying, This is not fair, Yi Han. Let's go. The fool just agreed to the challenge with the old man. But the situation seemed to become more serious than Dua and Nei had anticipated. Just as they were about to leave, the black clad subordinates of Gu Wen Dio stepped forward to block their way, asking, Where do you think you're going? Du Wen Dio, who had been silent until now, finally spoke up like a lord, I permit you to leave. Tang Hai Bin, feeling that it was no time for such gangster-like behavior, immediately stepped forward, ready for a confrontation. What's the matter? I'm not afraid of you. Li Wangzong, the senior, was also displeased and stepped forward to advise. Gu Wen Dio, this is Tian Nan, not Jiang Nan. Whatever you do, you need to consider the consequences. However, this younger Gu Wen Dio seemed even more stubborn than Ning Feng. He sneered and paid no attention. Consequences? Ha ha ha. He continued, I think everyone present at the auction will be happy to uphold the reputation of my Gu family. Let's not disturb their competition. He thought to himself, If it weren't for Master Wong agreeing to work for the Gu family for a year, I wouldn't bother with this matter. Li Wangzong felt that this young man spoke impolitely, behaving as if he were from a noble family but lacked the education, showing no respect for the elderly. Enraged, he was about to stand up and give the young man a lesson. But Yi Han raised his hand to signal, Rest assured, Senior Liu. It seemed like Yi Han didn't want his friends to be implicated because of him. He calmly stood up and said, It's not just a bet, I agree. It seems I have to personally intervene once again. The onlookers, eager for gossip, quickly shifted their opinions, criticizing Yi Han. Is this guy insane? Daring to bet with Master Huang, the champion of Southeast Asia. This is seeking one's own death. Even though Duan Mi knew that Yi Han was highly skilled, this gambling match was extremely dangerous, especially since it was only targeting Yi Han. She was very worried and advised him. Yang Han, don't agree with him. Clearly, he's trying to harm you. The situation was clearly skewed. Tang Hai Bin and Liu Guangzong also jumped in to dissuade him. Yi Han, this betting match is not fair. Don't agree with them. Absolutely don't act impulsively, Yi Han. Duan Ni tightly held onto Yi Han's hand, not letting go. However, Yi Han knew exactly where he stood. He reassured everyone. Relax, everyone. I may lose in other aspects, but when it comes to gemstones, I am confident of my victory. In his mind, Yi Han thought, He, in the end, I am also a person with insight. Wong, the great master, chuckled in response. Ha 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 ha. That's right. This is clearly something you said yourself. Everyone here can testify. No regrets allowed. He felt like the little rabbit had finally entered the cage. Yi Han continued. Of course, I won't regret it, but I have one condition. Yi Han felt delighted thinking about this condition. He pointed at the old man and signaled, If he loses, I want him to kneel in front of me and bark three times for real. It turned out that Yi Han wanted to give a punishment to Gu Wen Diao. The challenge shocked the spirits of the two cunning fellows. Both Liu and Du Wan Nai were also astonished, not expecting Yi Han to have an interest in teasing this young master. The crowd was dissatisfied, criticizing Yi Han's recent statement. Yi Han, where did you get the courage this time? Gu Wen Diao is the young master of the Gu family. The Gu family is influential in both the underworld and the business world, extremely powerful. Even the Ning family and the Liu family dare not offend them. I think he's dating his own grave. Gu Wen Diao felt somewhat offended. No one had dared to challenge the Gu family like this before. He threatened, Yi Han. Are you tired of living? Yi Han showed no sign of backing down. He knew his own capabilities. No force could easily take down someone like him. He replied, Anyone who dares to cause trouble with me won't be let off the hook. Yi Han decisively stepped forward, casting a fierce gaze into Gu Wen Dio's defiant eyes. Huang, the great master, whispered provocatively in the other guy's ear, Young master Go, this kid is clearly scared. He deliberately set such conditions. You can rest assured, just agree to let him go, and I'll handle everything. This kid absolutely can't win. The old man spoke with confidence. Gu Wen Diao, always suspicious by nature, still afraid, inquired, I'm afraid of unexpected incidents. If something really... Huang, the great master, seemed confused. What does he mean? 
After contemplating for a while, the old man understood that they would never admit defeat. His purpose was to crush Yi Han, to avenge his disciple, at any cost. He hinted, I agree, I willingly serve Gu's family for another year. How about that? The cunning young man Gu Wen Diao immediately agreed, pointing at Yi Han, I accept this condition. Let me see how you will lose. The old master Huang reluctantly swallowed his bitterness and cursed. Indeed, he's practical. Leading everyone into the auction house's warehouse, where thousands of mysterious origin stones had been stored for a long time, even spiders made nests here. Standing at the entrance, they couldn't help but be surprised. In such a desolate place, it was unexpected to store countless ancient and mysterious origin stones. Duan Ni frowned, covering her nose, and said, The smell is unbearable. What kind of place is this? Master Huang explained, This is where we keep the remaining scrap stones. In the origin stone auctions, there's usually nothing valuable. Yi Han asked, puzzled, Why did you bring us here? The old man explained right away, This is our competition task. From this pile of scrap stones, find the highest value jadeite within one hour. This type of competition always excited Yi Han. I have to win again. Ha ha. The crowd outside expressed their concerns. This is too difficult. I don't think there's any jadeite in these scrap stones. To inspect each piece in this thousand-year-old pile would take at least several days. Hearing this, Duan Nai and Tang Hai Bin became extremely worried about Yi Han. Yi Han stood there contemplating, without the yin yang divine eyes. Finding a piece of Java in this pile of scrap stones would be impossible. The fact that Master Huang is willing to bet against me indicates that there must be some other plot inside. On the other side, Master Huang was whispering mysteriously to the old man. He asked his subordinate, Is everything prepared? The subordinate secretly replied, Everything is in place, right in front of you. Observing how their conversation unfolded, Master Huang turned to signal. Very good. He glanced at Yi Han and thought, Why Han, you're likely to lose today. Ha ha ha. Du and I stepped forward and whispered, Why Han, here are just a bunch of scrap stones, nothing valuable. How could there be Javit? Maybe we should change the competition method. Yi Han turned around and comforted Du and me. I just took a look, and there are quite a few valuable items inside. His words left Du and I still puzzled wondering what mysterious skills this young man possessed that allowed him to perform miracles so many times. Some spectators found the competition rather ironic, commenting, It's truly amusing. How come the valuable items are still here until now? Someone should have taken them long ago. I think this young man, Yi Han, is destined to lose today. Despite his experiences, Yi Han is still quite inexperienced, and he seems to have fallen into a trap this time. And so, the betting match began. Master Huang and Yi Han entered the field of scrap stones to find their favored pieces. Master Huang carefully examined a stone, sighed deeply, and said, Hmm, this one won't do. Then, he glanced at the stone next to it, and continued in a mournful tone. Nor will this one. Concluding his assessment, Master Huang moved forward, gazing intently at the stone ahead, and remarked, This one is too ordinary. Yi Han stood silently next to him, discreetly observing Master Huang's actions. He smiled inwardly, saying, pretending to feel around. Let's see what you'll actually find. With that, Yi Han immediately activated the Yin Yang Divine Eyes, a skill that allowed him to see clearly into all things. He could discern anything special within the stones before him. Yi Han muttered, Let's see what tricks you're up to. After careful observation, it seemed that Master Huang had identified a particular stone. He chuckled to himself. It's this one. I had already prepared an exquisite piece with high-quality jadeite secretly embedded. Under Master Huang's feet was the stone containing the covid jadeite. Yi Han looked at him with a mocking smile, silently thinking, Indeed, as I expected, you were well prepared. On the other side, Master Huang immediately bent down and picked up the stone containing the high-quality jadeite. Chuckling happily, he said, I choose this stone. In his mind, he thought, as long as I get it, I'll surely win. Yi Han, you're finished. Without a word, Master Huang reached down to take the stone under his feet. Not letting Master Huang achieve his goal, Yi Han quickly grabbed a nearby stone and threw it directly at the stone Master Huang intended to pick up. A loud thud echoed. 
making Master Huang startle with a gaping mouth. Master Huang lamented, My stone. The stone he had carefully prepared shattered into many pieces in an instant. Seeing this, Yi Han held the stone in his hand, wearing an innocent and mockingly apologetic expression, saying, Whoops, it slipped from my hand accidentally. Enraged by Yi Han's arrogant attitude, Master Huang pointed at Yi Han's face and shouted in anger, You wretch, it's clear that you did it on purpose, trying to disrupt my choice of a good stone. Hearing that, Yi Han crossed his arms in front of his chest and chuckled. I didn't take the stone you chose, it's still right here. I just suggested changing the location, and you can't find it. Among the esteemed gem experts, it's not something you declare for yourself. Hearing this, Master Huang calmly reflected, That's quite right. How could a stone I personally chose be lost? Even if we change the location, I can still find it. At this point, the onlookers scanned the surroundings, silently thinking, Master Huang is formidable. There might not be any issue. However, Master Huang, now visibly furious, shouted, How could the stone I chose suddenly become unfindable? In his mind, Master Huang speculated, Could Yi Han have discovered my trick? Upon hearing this, Yi Han immediately raised his hand with a triumphant expression and replied, Well, why don't you hurry up and choose then? We only have about an hour left. With that, Master Huang quickly immersed himself in the search for the Javik containing stone. As he scrutinized each stone, he said, Keep waiting, I'll find it. Hearing this, Yi Han nonchalantly stuffed his hands into his pockets and replied, Take your time then. With that, Yi Han turned around and walked away leaving Master Huang still frantically searching. Yi Han walked forward, gazing up at the stone platform ahead. He murmured to himself, unexpectedly, amidst a pile of discarded materials, there's a treasure like this. Approaching, Yi Han gently reached out to touch and feel the stone, quietly marveling, truly a harvest beyond expectations. On the side, Master Huang was ecstatic to the point of bursting. Holding up the stone, he emotionally exclaimed, finally found it. My glorious reputation was almost ruined. Hearing this, Yi Han, Tang Hai Bin, and even Du Nai displayed a contemptuous expression. Yi Han looked at Master Wong and commented, Is this person unwell? Standing beside him, Du Nai cast a disdainful glance and hastily added, Isn't he just searching for stones? Is it necessary to go to such extremes? Tang Hai Bin, with a helpless expression, continued, you're celebrating too early, sir. At this moment, Master Wong joyfully raised the stone, proudly saying, Ye Han, I've chosen my stone. You're sure to lose this time. Upon hearing this, Ye Han covered his mouth with his hand, yawned deeply, and responded, Not just finding a piece of translucent javit, dreaming that it alone can defeat me. Feeling humiliated, Master Wong angrily shouted, How do you know? Translucent Jada is already top-notch. I don't believe you can find anything in this pile of scrap to beat me. The group standing nearby observed the situation, continuously praising Master Wong. They said, Master Wong, being able to find translucent Java in this pile of scrap is impressive. On the contrary, I see this Yi Han guy just talking big, lacking in skill, only relying on his eloquent words. To prove his words true, Yi Han immediately pointed with one hand at the large stone in front and with the other straight at Master Huang's face. He confidently stated, It's this natural stone that will surely defeat you. Upon hearing this, the people behind suddenly burst into laughter, mocking him, saying, This kid is really crazy. That stone is already cracked. How could there be any translucent javit? I think Yi Han is just bluffing, choosing randomly. On this side, Duan Nai expressed concern a skeptical expression on his face, saying, Yi Han, is there really translucent Janet here? Tang Hai Bin stood beside him, eagerly adding, Yi Han, don't provoke or let's just pick another piece. At this moment, Master Wong laughed heartily, a triumphant expression on his face, saying, Yi Han, it's better for you to admit defeat. Perhaps I'll be generous and let it slide for you. Without wasting words, Yi Han immediately retorted, the one who should admit defeat is you. Finishing his words, Yi Han decisively reached out, using his internal energy to crack the stone. This action left Tang Hai Bin, Duan Ni, and Master Wong in utter astonishment, only able to watch in amazement. In a matter of moments, 
the large stone had shattered into small pieces. With a loud proclamation, Yi Han declared, The one who lost is you. Finishing his words, he took out a beautiful frog-shaped javit piece from within the broken stone, holding it in his hand. He couldn't stop smiling, exclaiming, Oh my, and it's natural javit extremely rare. Each piece of natural javit is highly valuable, incomparable. The onlookers behind, their faces filled with awe, exclaimed, Even a tiny piece of this jadeite is worth over ten billion. No need to compare, Yi Han has undoubtedly won. This natural jadeite is a priceless treasure. Master Huang couldn't help but be astonished. His eyes widened, and his mouth shaped like an O as if he couldn't believe his eyes. He shouted loudly, What's this joke? This kid Yi Han can find natural jadeite in this pile of scrap stones. Seeing this, Gu Wen Dio expressed disdain, furrowing his brows and muttering, Damn, this kid is too lucky. On the other hand, Du Wen Ni jumped up joyfully and praised, Impressive, Yi Han, we've won. Tang Hai Bin laughed heartily, raising his hand to give two virtual likes to Yi Han. He enthusiastically continued, Ye Han, you're amazing. From now on, you are my idol. Few words were spoken. Yi Han promptly tossed the Javik frog with the embedded pearl to Tang Hai Bin and said, Hold it. Tang Hai Bin, bewildered, hastily caught it in his hand. Then, Yi Han turned to look at Master Huang with a triumphant expression, continuing, The outcome is clear, and you should fulfill your promise. Upon hearing this, Master Huang immediately flew into a rage, shouting and pointing at Yi Han's face, saying, I don't believe it. You must have cheated. There's nothing but scrap stones here. How could you find natural Javid? Seeing Wong's graceless behavior, the people behind began mocking him, saying, If he can't do it, he assumes others can't either, losing and refusing to admit it, claiming to be a master with a face like that. Bart like a dog quickly, I've already turned on the camera. Hearing this, Yi Han calmly smiled and replied, Cheating. Then, Yi Han immediately approached, firmly grabbing Master of Wang's hand and continued, I see the real cheater here is you. Master Wong, flustered, hastily retorted, You're talking nonsense. I don't understand. Without many words, Yi Han promptly twisted Master Huang's arm, causing the stone slab in his hand to fall. Yi Han's sharp gaze declared, Everyone, pay attention. Master Huang, looking horrified, muttered, I give up. At this moment, the stone split into two, revealing the Javet inside. Yi Han, Furious, exposed the truth, furrowing his brows and continued. This stone has clearly been opened before, then sealed again. Moreover, there are remnants of rubber adhesive on the top. The javite inside was added later. Hearing this, the people behind cast fiery glances at Master Wong and cursed. Damn, Master Wong was obviously excited about the competition, and now he's resorting to cheating. He treats us all like fools. He has thoroughly tarnished the reputation of our mineral auction. Let's beat this miserable guy to death. Hearing this, Master Huang, fearful, asked, What do you want to do? Finishing his words, the people behind immediately closed in on Master Huang, a triumphant expression on their faces, saying, Of course, we're going to teach you a lesson. Everyone, charge in, expose this old fraud, so that he can spend the rest of his life lying in bed, unable to even solve his own problems. Hearing this, Master Huang's face showed a mix of worry and horror, hastily pleading, Don't hit me, I admit my mistake, spare me. Without waiting for him to finish, the others rushed in, delivering a series of fierce blows to him. Outside the battle, Gu Wendio wore a disdainful expression, observing and silently cursing. Ignorant fool, resorting to tricks and still unable to win. It's best to withdraw now. Finishing his thought, Gu Wendio quickly slipped away. Seeing this, Yi Han called out, Where are you going? Du and I swiftly stepped forward to block his path, threateningly saying, Master Guang, you've lost. It's time for you to mimic the sound of a barking dog. Tang Hai Bin chimed in, eager to join the banter. Master Guang, you've been beaten up, and it's my turn next. Upon hearing this, Gu Wen Dio became fearful. He hurriedly cautioned with hesitation, What do you all want to do? I am the heir of the Xianjing group. Even the organizers of this high-profile auction must respect me to some extent. Ignoring Gu Wen Dio's words, Yi Han's group immediately struck him. 
While attacking, they taunted, dare to act arrogant in front of me. Let's see if today I can turn you into a fool. No one cares who you are. If you offend my brothers, you'll be taught a lesson. Quickly mimic the sound of a barking dog. If not today, you'll become a eunuch. After the recent beating, Gu Wen Diao, now terrified, immediately knelt down, adopting a four-legged stance, helplessly yelping in pain for a few moments. Seeing this, the surrounding crowd quickly took out their phones to record. They laughed in disgust. It sounds exactly like a barking dog. This arrogant guy used to bully others with his power. Yi Han, well done, very cool. I've recorded it, and it will definitely go viral. Liu Guangzong approached Yi Han and gently asked, Sir Yi, may I inquire if this natural jaded of yours is for sale? Upon hearing this, Yi Han turned around and replied, Professor Liu, you're here. Liu Guangzong raised three fingers and continued, Our Liu family's treasure group agrees to bid three billion. Hearing this, Yi Han gasped in astonishment, exclaiming, Fifth three billion. Upon hearing this, people behind quickly entered the bidding for that piece of javid. They urgently said, Master Yi Han, our treasure group agrees to bid 3.1 billion to purchase this natural javid. Our Western Asia Jewel Company agrees to bid 3.5 billion. Please consider selling it to us. Our Golden Triangle Jewel Company must obtain it. No one else should even think about taking it. Master Yi Han, feel free to set the price. Representatives from various companies were competing fiercely against each other. They refused to yield, and insults were exchanged. Your small shabby company even has the money to buy this treasure. Your company is about to go bankrupt. Still, you want to compete with us in the bidding. Master Yi Han, please let us have this natural jade. Next time, we invite you to a 100-session massage. Tang Hai Bin, holding the jade in his hand, looked surprised and said, is it necessary to go to this extent, fighting over a piece of javate like this? Hearing this, Li Wangzong hastily responded, You don't understand. This natural javate is not just an invaluable treasure. It can also bring immense fame to the company. Seeing the chaotic scene, Yi Han called out, Everyone. Before he could finish, Du Wanai suddenly ran up, grabbing Yi Han's arm and pleading, Yi Han, I want it too. Hearing this, Yi Han smiled and replied, Sure, no problem. With that, Yi Han draped his arm around Du Wanyi's shoulders, raising his other hand to declare, Stop competing. I won't sell this natural javid. Hearing this, the others halted their actions, bewildered. Someone asked, Not for sale. Are you kidding me? Why? We've already bid so high. Yi Han explained further, Because we also need this piece of javid for ourselves. Tang Hai Bin standing beside them, could only look on in astonishment. Concluding, Yi Han led Du Wen Nai and Tang Hai Bin away. Seeing this, Li Guangzong sighed helplessly. Young people act on impulse. You don't know how much trouble this javite may cause. As the night fell at the Ning family's treasure conglomerate, young master Ning Feng angrily slammed his hand on the table, commanding, all the assassins in the conglomerate gather immediately. Hearing this, the security team promptly responded. Understood, young master. Ning Feng continued. Regardless of whether Yi Han lives or dies, I must see that natural jadeite today. Meanwhile, at the Xiangjiang conglomerate, Gu Wen Diao, bearing injuries, angrily ordered, Tonight, take advantage of the darkness. Attack Yi Han's mansion. As long as you bring back that natural jadeite, whatever amount of money you want, I can provide. Hearing this, the group of thugs confidently replied, Rest assured, young master Go, that kid is surely dead tonight. We will definitely complete the assigned task. Gu Wen Diao smirked, thinking, Yi Han, you dared to offend me. Tonight is your memorial day. On the other hand, at the Fujiwaza Joint Financial Conglomerate, a leader furiously gave orders, That jadeite, only our empire is worthy of possessing it. We must seize it for the glory of our great empire. Changing scenes to Yi Han's mansion, Yi Han's team was restless. The head of the security anxiously said, Based on the information we've gathered, the Ning family conglomerate, Xianjiang conglomerate, the joint financial conglomerate, and some small families are preparing to launch an attack on us tonight to steal that natural javid. Hearing that, Du Wanyi, concerned, turned to Yi Han and said, Li Han, I'm sorry. It's all because of my impulsiveness. 
Let's figure out how to sell that natural javit. I don't want anything bad to happen to you. Upon hearing this, Yi Han reassured her. He gently placed his hand on Duan knees and smiled, saying, Don't worry, Duan Nai. I've agreed to give you this piece of natural javit, and I absolutely won't go back on my word. Suddenly, a loud voice rang out, Yi little brother, I'm here to help you. Hearing this, Yi Han, Duan Ni, and Tang Hai Bin curiously turned towards the door. It turned out to be the gun Tang Roop arriving, their leader holding a big gun and cheerfully saying, Yi little brother, I know you need assistance now. I brought some of my brothers to support you. Tonight we'll definitely wipe out those enemies into nothing. Seeing this, Yi Han happily shook hands in gratitude, saying, Thank you, brothers. Gun Tang quickly replied, Ye Han, no need to say anything. When we're brothers, we share both fortune and misfortune. Tang Hai Bin, seeing this, hurriedly joined in, wrapping his arm around Yi Han and Gun Tang. He grinned and said, Absolutely right. Brothers share both fortune and misfortune. At this moment, Yi Han relaxed his facial muscles and smiled inwardly. After that, Yi Han raised his hand with Gun Tang and continued, Today, no matter how many enemies come, we'll deal with them all. Outside Yi Han's mansion, members of the Ning family's conglomerate had prepared themselves and were waiting outside. Their leader took a quick glance inside and said, Young Master Ning overestimated this little guy. This whole mansion is full of weaknesses. I could single-handedly rush in and easily kill him. Hearing this, the followers chimed in, saying, The leader is right. This kid might still be fast asleep. Sneaking in and catching him off guard is the best approach. At the same time, members of the Gu family's conglomerate also arrived. Their leader chuckled and said, The defense line has too many vulnerabilities. Breaking in won't pose any difficulty. Hearing this, his followers quickly added, Rest assured, boss, we can surely bring back the JVEC by turning the head of that kid into a trophy. Just storm in and finish him. It's that simple. Not to be left out, the joint venture conglomerate had its members contributing to the excitement. The leader stood tall and shouted, Though the mission is simple, we must remain vigilant. Hearing this, his followers behind him cheered, Certainly, sir. We won't disappoint you, and will strive for glory. At this moment, all three leaders of the conglomerates simultaneously issued the command, Kill! Hearing the rallying cry, the leader of the Mu family's conglomerate immediately rushed forward. In his hand, he wielded a sharp-bladed sword, and with a triumphant expression, he said, My great sword has long lost its patience. Adding to that, his followers immediately followed suit, encouraging each other, Charge ahead! We can't let others snatch the prize before us. Among them, a bald-headed individual surged forward, aggressively shouting, The boss position is mine. Suddenly, a gunshot rang out, and a bullet flew straight into the group of the Gu family's members, hitting a few of them at the forefront. The attack was so unexpected that they couldn't react in time. Staring in shock, they hurriedly questioned, How is this possible? Is there a master inside? On the ground, three individuals lay motionless, having been hit by bullets. A hand firmly gripping a gun emerged from the villa as Yi Han stepped out, his cold and fierce gaze declaring, Who dares to step into the mansion? Yi Han stood boldly before them, announcing, Kill! Witnessing this, the members of the Gu family's conglomerate were astonished and exclaimed, The marksmanship is too deadly. Those three were among our best, yet they were shot and killed in an instant. Unexpectedly, this kid is so formidable, and his marksmanship is terrifying. Hearing that, Yi Han raised his gun with a triumphant expression, smiling, and continued, A bunch of losers like you, trying to snatch my treasure. Dream on. In Yi Han's mind, he thought, I have long seen through it with the Yin Yang Divine Eyes, knowing they have arrived. The Gun Tang Gang has already set up an ambush. Let them take the bait. With this in mind, Yi Han immediately taunted them, waving his hand a few times and saying, If you have the courage, come at me. Seeing this, the opposing group showed no fear, with a contemptuous expression. One of them retorted, Don't be afraid, he only has one gun that can kill a few people. The person next to him seemed to agree, hastily adding, That's right, there are so many of us, we shouldn't be afraid of him. Concluding, the redhead quickly shouted, For the glory of the empire attack. 
Upon hearing this, the rest of the group immediately charged forward, shouting, Brothers, charge and kill them all, for glory. In no time, cries for mercy echoed. The ruthless group lay scattered from the trees to the ground. In fear, they begged, We won't dare anymore, spare us. Many others want to come here and rob the jade. Hearing that, Yi Han quickly surveyed the scene, and with a start he whispered, Where did those three leaders run off to? Suddenly, from inside the villa, came Duan Ni's distressed voice, Yi Han, help me. Upon hearing this, Yi Han anxiously muttered, Trouble, they found Duan Nai. Finishing his words, Yi Han immediately turned back towards the villa. At this moment, another group rushed in. They were fierce, shouting, Kill! The precious jade is inside. Kill Yi Han, seize the jade, take the risk, strike quickly, win fast. Gun Tang reacted just in time, and gunfire erupted, scattering the assailants. Yi Han observed the situation, expressing his concern. Damn it, why new enemies have to show up at this moment? Luckily, Gun Tang was there to rescue. Holding the gun, Gun Tang continuously fired towards the hostile group. While shooting, he said, These small fries are nothing to be afraid of. Hurry inside to save Duan Nai. I'll handle them here. Upon hearing that, Yi Han immediately rushed into the villa. With a high leap, he ascended to the second floor, leaving Gun Tang to fend off the assailants alone. Yi Han struggled to climb in through the window, hastily calling out, Duan Ni, are you okay? Seeing no response, Yi Han immediately stepped inside to assess the situation. He found Duan Ni unconscious, and the three ringleaders were attempting to snatch the jade from the glass cabinet. The leader of the Ning family conglomerate, noticing Yi Han's arrival, scowled and sneered at Yi Han, saying, This kid arrived just in time. We better kill him first, and then grab the jade. The leader of the Gu family, upon hearing this, agreed, I agree. Our boss has instructed us to make sure we get this kid's head. Following suit, the leader of the joint venture conglomerate promptly added, For the glory of our empire, he must die. Hearing this, Yi Han erupted in anger, shouting, What have you done to Duan Ne? He fiercely approached the group. The leader of the Ning family, seeing this, mocked and continued, She's just knocked out. But you, on the other hand, will die. Finishing his words, the leader of the Ning family immediately attacked Yi Han. Furious, Yi Han declared, Dare to harm Du and Ni, I will wipe you all out. With that, Yi Han rushed in to confront them head on. The leader of the Ning family conglomerate drew a sharp weapon and launched a direct attack on Yi Han. Seeing this, Yi Han quickly pulled out a sharp knife to defend himself. After a brief exchange of blows, the leader sneered and said, Not bad for a kid's strength. At this moment, Yi Han internally assessed. His real power is overwhelming, yet not a scratch on him. Suddenly, the leader of the Hu family conglomerate, taking advantage of Yi Han's distraction, rushed towards him. Using a knife, he pressed it close to Yi Han's neck, gleefully saying, Sorry, we'll need your head. Hearing this, Yi Han, worried, shifted his gaze. Without many words, Yi Han immediately delivered a powerful kick, causing the assailant to collapse, then swiftly used the knife to strike directly at him. The leader of the Gu family conglomerate quickly used his knife to block. Following the failed attack, the leader of the joint venture conglomerate, enraged, shouted, For the glory of the empire, whoever kills him first will claim the jade. Hearing this, the remaining two immediately agreed saying, agreed. Without many words, the leader of the joint venture conglomerate immediately employed a combined attack, rushing towards Yi Han. From behind, the remaining two collaborated to provide support. Sensing the precarious situation, Yi Han did not lose heart. Gripping the knife tightly, he shouted, damn it, just die already. Finishing his words, Yi Han directly launched a counterattack. The leader of the three conglomerates shouted loudly for reinforcements. Stop him. A loud explosion ensued, dust filled the air, and Yi Han was seen kneeling with his hands on the ground. He internally assessed, I'm not a match for these three. It seems I can only rely on the strength that the master transmitted to me. Suddenly, by the window, Hu Feng was leisurely eating strawberries. She calmly asked, Hey, need help. Hearing this, Yi Han turned his head to look. He exclaimed in surprise, Hu Feng, why are you here? Hearing this, Hu Feng calmly replied, came to fulfill a mission. 
I overheard your conversation and decided to check the situation. So if you need my help to deal with these three, just agree to one condition and I'll take care of it. After saying this, Yi Han, with a sardonic smile, wiped his mouth and responded coldly, No need. I can handle these useless individuals on my own. Hearing this, Hu Feng, angered, continued, Don't be stubborn. The three of them are wanted criminals from five years ago. Even if I deal with them, it will take a considerable effort. Hearing that, Yi Han fell into contemplation, thinking, Give me a few more minutes, and it'll be fine. The three leaders, upon hearing this, started bantering. The leader of the Ning family conglomerate playfully said, Hey, his little sister doesn't need your help, but I do. It's been a few days since I've had any action with a woman. The leader of the Gu family conglomerate quickly added, That's right, I've been lonely too these days. Continuing, the leader of the joint venture conglomerate laughed and said, This girl is like that jade, both excellent spoils of war. Feeling insulted, Hu Feng angrily retorted, Dare to insult this lady. Today I will teach you all a lesson. Suddenly, Yi Han raised his hand to intervene. Confused, Hu Feng couldn't understand his intentions. Yi Han quickly explained, These guys are mine. Hearing this, Hu Feng was astonished, muttering to herself, What? This brat has broken through like this. Yi Han, with sharp eyes, looked at them and said, All of you, come at once to avoid wasting my time. Seeing Yi Hang's strong attitude, the leader of the Gu family conglomerate mockingly said, Arrogant, even if you've made a breakthrough, you're not our match. The leader of the Ning family conglomerate quickly added, Come on, let's go, don't hold back. I want to see what this kid is capable of. The furious leader of the joint venture conglomerate said, The enemy of the empire, with no mercy, we must eliminate him using any means necessary. Without a word, they collectively shouted, Accept death, go to hell and repent, die. Yi Han showed no signs of fear. He calmly closed his eyes in the face of their actions. Later, when Yi Han opened his eyes, he unleashed a powerful gaze, responding, That's all you've got. With his profound internal energy, Yi Han directly inflicted severe injuries on the three assailants, sending them flying tens of meters away. Yi Han decisively struck each one with force, handling them effortlessly then confidently remarked, too weak. The group of assailants gasped in disbelief, struggling to muster their last breaths, uttering, impossible. What is this? The empire, precious jade. Hu Feng stood by, observing. She was astonished and impressed by Yi Han's martial arts prowess. In her mind, she thought, in the blink of an eye, he dealt with all three master assassins. Even if he's a prodigy nurtured in a martial arts sect and a leader in the martial world, he is by no means his match. Yi Han casually brushed off the dirt on his clothes. He sighed calmly and said, A bunch of useless people, making loud claims, and I haven't even exerted my full strength yet. Concluding his words, Hu Feng jumped towards Yi Han. Proudly, she exclaimed, Vi Han, you must join the security force. I've chosen you. Seeing this, Yi Han, apprehensive, quickly waved his hand and said, Stay away from me. I'm not interested. Hu Feng sat on Yi Han's lap with an admirable expression, saying, I want you. Hearing this, Yi Han playfully used his hand to flick Hu Feng's forehead and replied, Save the sweet talk, you rascal. At this moment, Du Nai had awakened. She massaged her temples, feeling a bit dizzy, and said, Too noisy. Then, Du Nai looked straight at Yi Han and Hu Feng, angrily exclaiming, What are you two doing? On the other side, the two were still playfully bantering, shifting the scene to the living room of the villa. Yi Han and Hu Feng, with their hands clasped in front of their chests, expressed remorse, saying, It's just how things are. Hu Feng quickly added, I can borrow the power of the security force to help everyone leave, but Yi Han has to stay here to help me with something. Hearing this, Du and I stood up in anger, slammed the table, and furrowed her brows, saying, I disagree. I absolutely cannot let Yi Han stay alone without worrying. Duan Nai continued her jealous murmurs. I can't let Yi Han stay alone with another girl. Upon hearing this, Tang Hai Bin quickly added, Duan Nai, you're absolutely right. If you want to leave, let's go together. Moreover, now that the enemy has been defeated, there may not be any danger left. Concluding his words, Gun Tang quickly added, 
As long as the jade is still here for a day, the danger will persist indefinitely. Feeling the commotion, Yi Han immediately stood up, slammed the table, and said, Stop arguing. Duan Nai and Mr. Tang, take the jade back first, I will stay. Hearing this, Duan Nai and Tang Hai Bin were surprised and quickly stood up, calling out, Yi Han, Yi Han. Upon hearing this, Hu Feng playfully remarked, They're already at the door, have you made up your mind? Concluding his words, Yi Han, with a serious expression, said, Ask them to come in. Duan Nai ran into Yi Han's arms tearfully, saying, No, Yi Han, I'm so scared. If anything happens to you, I don't know what to do. Hearing this, Yi Han gently raised his hand to comfortingly stroke Duan Ni's head and said, Don't worry, I will definitely be safe. At this moment, the security team had arrived, and Hai Ma boldly stated, Is this a tragic love scene? Who, you said you were looking for an assistant for us. Is this not the young guy hugging the beauty over there? Upon hearing this, Hu Feng, with her hands clasped in front of her chest, calmly replied, Don't blame me for not warning you. This young man is not simple. Concluding her words, Hai Mei pointed directly at Yi Han, mocking, Just a little brat, I have the power to defeat five or six like him. Hu, don't underestimate me. Without hesitation, Yi Han swiftly drew his knife, causing Haima's hair to fall. He responded coldly, Well spoken. I will teach you a lesson on behalf of your boss. Quickly, Haima interrupted with curiosity. Teach what? Hu Feng stood by, observing the situation, and burst into laughter, holding her stomach. Then, Haima reached up to touch his head, crying out loudly, My hair! His subordinates, witnessing this, were astonished and exclaimed, the speed is incredible. We can't even see him draw his sword at this moment. A master, truly a master, even more formidable than Bosco. Meanwhile, Hai Ma, holding clumps of fallen hair, choked back tears and said, My hair. Seeing this, Yi Han chuckled and inquired, So do you find my new hairstyle for you attractive? Would you like me to give you a different one? Hearing this, Hai Ma, terrified, shivered and immediately sought refuge behind his subordinates. Haima forced an awkward smile and replied, It's very beautiful. I'm extremely satisfied with this hairstyle. The situation is urgent now. Let's leave the current hairstyle as it is. No need to change. Hu Feng, sensing the chaotic atmosphere, raised her index finger and said, All right, stop the commotion. Shan Qi, Yi Hao, Feng Gu, Hai Ma, along with me and you, everyone assigned to this mission is now present. Hearing this, Yi Han with a serious expression, inquired, Who is the target of this mission? Without hesitation, Hu Feng quickly responded, This time, we have to surround and capture a madman who loves explosives, codenamed Feng Laoshu. He is adept at explosives and mines, extremely dangerous. Everyone must be cautious. Upon hearing this, Yi Han turned his hand towards Du Wan Ni, his face showing concern, and continued, First, bring them back safely. Only then can I be at ease executing the mission with her. Finishing his words, Duan Ni hurriedly ran back, holding Yi Han's hand to her face. Duan Ni pleaded, No, you shouldn't take on such a dangerous job for us. I disagree with this. Duan Ni glanced at Hu Fang with jealousy and whispered into Yi Han's ear, If I don't go with you, you'll definitely succumb to the charm of that ugly woman. At this moment, Hu Fang leaned in close to eavesdraw on their conversation. As Yi Han, after hearing it all, exclaimed loudly, How is that possible? Hu Feng quickly rushed over, placing her hand on Yi Han's shoulder and embracing him tightly. She joyfully said, A man like him has truly moved me. If you can't hold on to him, I won't be polite. At this point, Du and I was furious, glaring intensely at Hu Feng. Hu Feng didn't stop there. She gently took Yi Han's hand. However, Yi Han, frightened, quickly pushed Hu Feng away and angrily shouted, Hu Feng, what are you doing? Duan Nai immediately tightly embraced Yi Han's arm, her fierce gaze warning, ugly woman like you, stay away from Yi Han for me. Hu Feng, not backing down, immediately went to the other side, holding Yi Han's remaining arm. Defiantly, she retorted, based on what? You and Yi Han are not relatives, not even his girlfriend. What right do you have to control me? Furious. Du Wen Nai responded defiantly, I am Yi Han's girlfriend. Hu Feng, hearing this, continued, 
I am also his comrade. Moreover, you two are not married yet. Who knows? You might break up tomorrow. Angry, Du Lin that continued. I have slept in the same room with Yi Han. Hu Feng retorted, Yi Han once peeked at me while I was bathing. Du Lin Ni added, Yi Han has kissed me. Hu Feng replied, Yi Han has touched my chest. Du Lin Ni went on, When Yi Han returns to Shanghai City, I will sleep with him. Hu Feng quickly responded, I will sleep with him tomorrow. Du Lin Nei and Hu Feng continued their heated argument, while Yi Han stood in the middle with a helpless expression. The group behind, including Hai Ma, Shan Qi, Feng Gu, and Yi Hao, observed the situation. They were amazed by Yi Han's skill. Hai Ma remarked, Who, even someone as formidable as you, a special international agent like Hu Feng, should feel embarrassed. Such a talent. Yi Hao widened his eyes and added, This handsome guy is too impressive. He even conquered Boss Tu. Tang Hai Bin, with admiring eyes, tightly gripped a handkerchief and emotionally said, Why Han, to be loved like this? I also want to receive such special treatment. Gun Tang, hearing this, playfully patted Tang Hai Bin's shoulder and teased, Don't dream about it in this lifetime. You might consider plastic surgery in Korea for a better chance. Suddenly, a voice spoke up, laughing loudly. No need to compete anymore. Tonight, you two can stay together. Upon hearing this, Yi Han unexpectedly looked in the direction of the sound. Duan Nai seemed to find the voice familiar and exclaimed in surprise. This voice. Hu Feng's gaze sharpened, and she solemnly said, It must be him. It turned out Feng Laoshu, the nicknamed character, had appeared. He mockingly said, Hello, I heard you were looking for me. I came here myself, conveniently bringing a little gift for you all. Without hesitation, Feng Laoshu immediately pulled out a small bomb. He swiftly unraveled the fuse, and Hu Feng, quick-witted, shouted loudly, Get down, the bomb is about to explode. Terrified, Du Lin Nai leaned into Yi Han, curious and asked, What is it? Before they could react, the bomb flew straight to Hu Feng's feet. Yi Han quickly glanced and angrily cursed. Damn it! Subsequently, Yi Han swiftly grabbed Du Wen Ni's hand, then embraced her tightly, shielding her. He anxiously shouted, Be careful. On the other side, Feng Lao Shu chuckled and said triumphantly, Too late. Finishing his words, Feng Lao Shu immediately pressed a detonator, and an explosion resounded. Yi Han, holding on to Du Wen Nai and Tang Hai Bin, quickly moved away. The explosion quickly subsided, and the smoke dispersed. The room was now chaotic, with debris scattered around, and several items shattered or broken. Yi Han, positioned behind a table, had a bleeding head, and he coughed a few times due to inhaling dust. He quickly asked about their condition. Duan Ni, Tang, are you both okay? Both of them then sat up, taking cover behind the fragile table. Tang Hai Bin coughed a few times before responding. Luckily, with Yi Han's help to mitigate the bomb's impact, we're okay. Du and I looked towards Yi Han, noticing his bleeding head, and worriedly exclaimed, Ye Han, you're injured. Yi Han held her hand to reassure her, saying, I'm fine. We need to find a safer place. This situation has escalated, and we don't know how Hu Feng and the others are, whether they are injured or not. On the opposite side, Hu Feng and her comrades took cover behind a wall. Despite her injured hand, Hu Feng tried to speak determinedly, Yi Han, I feel guilty. This time it's affecting you. Soon I will divert Feng Lao Shu's attention. You lead everyone away first. Feng Lao Shu, holding a bomb switch in one hand and a threatening gun in the other, warned, Don't even think about escaping. I have planted mines around this villa. As soon as any of you dare to step outside, even one step, I will immediately activate the bombs. Yi Hao tensely remarked, Feng Lao Shu's bombs not only are extremely powerful, but they are also carefully concealed making them hard to detect. If it were under normal circumstances, we might try to find a way to defuse them, but now, everyone is injured. Feng Gu cursed. Damn it. If only we knew where he planted the bombs, we might have a chance to escape. Hu Feng assessed the situation and said, We're out of options. For now, we can only keep Feng Laoshu engaged and wait for reinforcements. Yi Han spoke up. Where are the bombs? After using the Yin Yang Divine Eyes to see through the villa, up the mountain, and even on the roof and in the pool, Yi Han confidently stated, 
I know. He suddenly smiled and suggested, You all attract his attention first. I will deal with those bombs. Hu Feng and the others were surprised. She questioned, What Yi Han? How do you know where the bombs are? For someone young and on their first mission, there's no need to rush. Stay calm first. The best option for now is to wait for reinforcements. Taking action recklessly will only worsen the situation. Hu Feng raised her hand to express objection and said, Enough talking. I trust Yi Han. Let him handle this. Tang Hai Bin, with concern, advised, Zhai Han, you must be careful. I couldn't do anything to help you before. But this time, I will provide strong support. Duan I also reminded, Zhai Han, you must pay attention to safety. Don't push yourself too hard. Hearing everyone's concerns, Yi Han nodded. Before leaving, he turned and earnestly said, Everyone be careful. Watching Yi Han move cautiously, Tang Hai Bin couldn't help but be determined. He immediately suggested, Do on me. Quickly give me all your jewelry. I will charge out today at any cost. Duan Ni, still unsure of his intentions, asked, What do you want to do? Feng Lao Shu had now moved closer to their location, shouting, You bunch of mice, come out safely. Do you want to catch me? Come out quickly. At a corner of the house, a pair of furry legs peeked out, drawing Feng Lao Shu's attention. He looked in that direction, puzzled. What's going on? Tang Hai Bin, in a tight-fitting dress, with furry legs, suddenly ran up, speaking in a playful tone. Hey, big guy, come and have some fun. Feng Lao Shu, seeing him, was immediately horrified to the point of nausea. He vomited, cursing, as he couldn't bear to look at Tang Hai Bin contorting and mocking him. What is this? Where did this disgusting monster come from? Others reacted similarly to Feng Lao Shu. Seeing this scene made them want to vomit everything in their stomachs. Hu Feng exclaimed, Ingenious. This attention-grabbing method is too special. Feng Gu agreed. Never thought of that. Duan and I couldn't help but complain. No, this fat guy is even more nauseating than Ning Feng. I can't stand it anymore. Outside, Tang Hai Bin maintained his playful tone, expressing, Don't you remember me? That night you even called me Chiu Dian Internally, he kept praying, Ye Han, please hurry. My brother's life is in your hands. Feng Lao Shu, terrified, quickly retreated, shouting, What a detestable demon. Finally, unable to endure any longer, he pressed the control button on his hand. Everyone became anxious and frightened, thinking, It's over. The fat guy is going to blow up. It's over. Tang Hai Bin gritted his teeth, thinking, It's done. It's done. I shouldn't have pretended to be a girl outside. Surprisingly, after the button was pressed again, nothing happened, and the atmosphere fell silent. Hu Feng, puzzled, asked, What's going on? Why didn't it explode? Yi Hao speculated, Maybe Feng Lao Shu's bombs malfunctioned. It seems that Yi Han succeeded. Feng Lao Shu, frantically pressing the button, wondered, What's going on? Explode for me. At that moment, Yi Han entered and said, Don't bother. It won't work. He threw down all of Feng Lao Shu's bombs, laughing. I've disarmed all your bombs. Seeing Yi Han coming in, Duan and I couldn't help but joyfully exclaim, Yi Han, it's fantastic. You succeeded. Tang Hai Bin, now scared to the point of numbness, couldn't stand any longer and fell to the ground, crying out, Ye Han, you finally came. If you didn't return, this fatty's several hundred pounds of flesh would have been all used up by now. Feng Gu, astonished, exclaimed, He really did it. All the mines set by Feng Lao Shu have been disarmed. This speed and skill, if he joins the security agency, he would undoubtedly be the trump card of the organization. Yi Hao pushed his black framed glasses and said, how did he quickly locate all these mines? He's too formidable. Hu Feng licked her lips, thinking, Ye Han, you truly didn't disappoint me. Feng Lao Shu pointed awkwardly and shouted, No, it's impossible. My bombs were hidden in very secretive places, difficult to detect. How could you find them? Ye Han cracked his knuckles, slowly approaching and said, Don't talk too much. Either bind yourself or I'll use my fists to help you. Tang Hai Bin, behind the sarcophagus, laughed loudly, saying, We can't let this brat go. We must make him experience the feeling of wearing fishnet stockings and dancing. Others were speechless at his proposal. Feng Lao Shu, furious, pulled a grenade from his person, 
and shouted, Go to hell! Han smirked and threw a provocative remark at Yi Han. Want to catch me? Dream on! At most we'll all go meet the king of hell the other. Du and Ni, Hu Feng, and Tang Hai Bin were alarmed, exclaiming, Ye Han, Yi Han, this doesn't look good. Yi Han swiftly drew his saber, turning and accurately aiming at Feng Lao Shu's hand holding the grenade, causing him to drop it unexpectedly. Feng Lao Shu, in pain, held his bleeding hand, muttering, My hand! Seizing the opportunity, Yi Han swiftly moved behind him, laughing. Do you like blowing yourself up? Feng Lao Shu, still disoriented, asked, What? Yi Han smiled dangerously, kicking straight into Feng Lao Shu's lower body, causing him so much pain that blood spurted from his nose. Yi Han kicked him up to the ceiling, which had been damaged by the previous explosion, shouting, Get lost! Feng Lao Shu, in pain, clutched his lower body and yelled, Yi Han, just wait, our debt is not settled yet. Yi Han suddenly took another grenade from him and said, There's one more. Pulling the pin, he immediately kicked it forcefully towards Feng Lao Shu, saying, Take good care of your belongings. Don't throw them around recklessly. Seeing this, he felt a deep fear, gaping in astonishment, unable to do anything but wait for the moment the grenade exploded. In an instant, the grenade detonated, illuminating the night sky. Below, Yi Han looked up and exclaimed, Wow! This firework is truly dazzling. On the other hand, in the auction hall where the gem auction was taking place, the attendees were mostly wealthy and influential individuals. They huddled together at each table, discussing. Last night, a fierce battle erupted within the city. It's said that many forces participated. Rumor has it that it was for the theft of a naturally unearthed piece of jade. Those who don't heed warnings are bound to suffer. That young man seems to have outsmarted everyone. At this moment, the door in the hall swung open, and Yi Han, along with Gun Tang, entered. Yi Han casually put his hands in his pockets, walking and saying, Early this morning, I sent Duan Nai and Mr. Tang to the airport to return home. Luckily, we made it here in time. Today is the last day of the gem auction, and we're determined to find the gem that belongs to us. As people noticed Yi Han acting nonchalant, they whispered in amazement, What? This young guy is still calm and composed. This young man is indeed not simple. If he's fine, doesn't that mean he's affiliated with the three major powers? They must have settled things. Upon seeing him, Ning Feng couldn't help but feel angry, silently cursing. Damn it, Yi Han, you just wait for me. Gu Wen Diao was also filled with resentment, thinking, he caused me to lose soldiers and damaged generals. I must kill this wretched guy. The remaining figure in the three major powers, Fujiwaza, was equally furious, squaring, Damn it! Anyone who obstructs the Empire's grand plan must die. Yi Han walked to the display table of raw stones. Amid the curious gazes of those around, he cast a glance around. Gun Tang said, From these nine pieces of raw stones, find the one with the highest value. This level of challenge is, for a top-level grandmaster, a true battle, a test of insight and courage. The winner this time can get 100 million US dollars and a gemstone, and no matter what, they must take risks. After Gun Tang finished speaking, he scratched his head and asked, Little Yi, which piece of raw stone do you think is the most valuable? Yi Han rubbed his chin, looked for a while, and replied, Regarding this matter, there are indeed some good pieces among the raw stones. A piece of jade with a transparent flower-shaped pattern is exceptional, truly excellent. Ning Feng stood on the side, staring at Yi Han intently. In his heart, he silently chuckled with satisfaction. Li Han, quite the gem selector. Just buy the raw stone he chooses, and it's all good. Why bother going through the trouble of choosing? I'm truly too clever. Yi Han seemed to understand his intention, silently calculating. He wants to take advantage of me. It seems this fool has been played by me multiple times and still hasn't learned. Gun Tang urged. What are you waiting for? Little Yi, you've already picked out a piece of raw stone. Quickly quote a price. Yi Han immediately pretended to be naive, pointing to a piece of raw stone and exclaimed, This raw stone has a slightly dark appearance on the outside, and I guess it will emit white light when cut open. There is also a pine flower pattern on the top, some moss on the outer layer, and a slightly hollow layer underneath, probably an antique on the surface, 
and undoubtedly a masterpiece inside. Gun Tang also looked down to carefully examine the stone, nodding in agreement. Mmm, it makes sense. Yi Han then pretended to take out a piece of paper, writing and saying, Let's first quote this stone at 8 million. At this moment, Ning Feng suddenly interrupted, putting the price tag into the box and saying, I'll buy this piece of raw stone for 100 million. Yi Han continued to express his anger, pointing at Ning Feng and scolding, Ning Feng, it's you again. He crossed his arms, defiantly challenging. What? Not satisfied? A country bumpkin like you? Let me tell you, no matter how much you bid, I, the young master, will bid twice as high. Dare to compete with me. Yi Han placed the auction sheet down and shouted, By winning this raw stone, it means winning 100 million and the mineral-rich raw stone. Taking the risk, I'll bid 200 million. Ning Feng immediately raised four fingers, doubling the bid, 400 million. He confidently declared, To compete with me in financial strength, Ten people like you are not enough. Yi Han revealed a frustrated expression and said, Damn it, I only brought about 300 million in capital. Ming Feng, you're too ruthless. I don't want this raw stone, I'm giving it to you. After saying that, he turned to Gun Tang and said, Let's go. Seeing this, Gun Tang, enlightened, advised, Don't little Yi. If you don't have enough money, I can lend it to you. Yi Han declined, saying no. This is a test of my abilities that masters you arrange for me. I can't borrow assistance from others. Ning Feng still didn't realize he had fallen into a trap. He laughed heartily. Ye Han, I finally won against you. The subordinate next to him suddenly pulled his shirt and reminded him, Young master, something seems a bit off. Look over there, young master. Upon hearing this, Ning Feng immediately stopped laughing and looked. What's wrong? Over there. Yi Han still maintained the same pretend attitude as before. He pointed to a rock intentionally and spoke loudly. On the outside, this raw stone has a bit of darkness. I guess when it's split, there will be a white light. There's also a pine flower pattern on top. The upper shell has some fungus, and the lower shell has some cavities. It's probably an antique, and inside is definitely a rare item. Fujiwaza immediately interrupted and bid, 400 million. Yi Han want to compete with me. Even ten people like you are not enough. This mineral deposit is definitely mine. Yi Han frowned again, pretending to be dissatisfied, and said, Unfortunately, this time I only brought three hundred million. Mr. Fujiwaza, you are really cunning. I don't want to give this raw stone to you. After saying that, he walked away in apparent frustration. Seeing this, Ning Feng was swaying. What the heck? Yi Han was acting to the point of being addictive. He continued to point to another raw stone and repeated the same dialogue, leaving Gun Tang somewhat speechless. On the outside, this raw stone has a bit of darkness. I guess when it's split, there will be a white light. There's also a pine flower pattern on top. The upper shell has some fungus, and the lower shell has some cavities. It's probably an antique, and inside is definitely a rare item. This time, the one interrupting was Gu Wen Diao. He repeated the same bid as the previous two. 400 million, Yi Han, want to compete with me. Even 10 people like you are not enough. This mineral deposit is definitely mine. Following the script, Yi Han expressed regret. Unfortunately, this time I only brought 300 million. Mr. Gu Wen Diao, you are really cunning. I don't want to give this raw stone to you. As the two walked away, Gun Tan, somewhat puzzled, muttered to himself, What's going on here? Fujiwaza scratched his head and said to himself, I feel like I've heard this line somewhere before. Ning Feng's subordinate asserted, Our young master tricked us again. Ning Feng, furious, twisted his face and said, No need to remind me, I figured it out long ago. Gu Wen Diao, unaware that he was deceived, arrogantly laughed, Lei Han, you also have days like this. Yi Han, walking away from him, chuckled, Indeed. A bunch of fools, too easy to deceive. Gun Tang, now understanding what Yi Han did, leaned close to Yi Han and whispered, Yi little brother, you turned out to be tricking them. This trick is really cunning. The two of them laughed and joked, their arms around each other. Just then, someone approached and sarcastically said, Isn't this Gun Tang? This person was Yuan Hong, 
the young master of the Yuan family, one of the four major clans. He smirked half-heartedly and asked, Are you still carefree, casually admiring gemstones? Gun Tang, seeing him, immediately frowned and retorted, Yuan Hong, if you can be here, why can't I? Yuan Hong walked up and patted Gun Tang on the shoulder. He chuckled sarcastically, reminding, Haven't you forgotten about the bet between our two major families? If you lose, all the mineral deposits of the Gun family will belong to our Yuan family. Another man approached, placing his hand on Yuan Hong's shoulder, and assured, Yuan young master, rest assured, with Rong Fan Zhang here, one of the seven gemstone masters in Southeast Asia. The mineral deposits of the Gun family will be transferred to the Nguyen family. After saying this, they both burst into laughter. Seeing this, Yi Han leaned over to Gun Tang and whispered, Who is that guy in the neat white suit? And why is he so arrogant? Gun Tang, still angry but composed, explained, The gemstone industry here is controlled by the four major clans, including Tam, Gun, Yuan, and Yan. He is the heir of the Yuan family. Our two families have always been in a hostile relationship. Not long ago, there was a betting game involving mineral deposits. Unexpectedly, during the game, they deliberately caused trouble for our family, making it impossible for us to invite even a skilled expert. Hearing this, Yi Han immediately patted Gun Tang on the shoulder to reassure him. It's not just a betting game, Gun Tang. Don't worry, I'll help you. Yi Han recalled, Gun Tang, you've helped me many times. I must assist you in winning this bet. Upon hearing this, the other two burst into laughter. Yuan Hong, with disdain, remarked, What are you? Do you even have the right to bet against us? Rong Fan Zhang pointed at Yi Han mockingly, This young man is too arrogant, lacking experience. Clearly, he has never tasted the bitterness of defeat. Yi Han snorted, challenging, If you are so confident, why don't we make a bet? Let's wager 300 million as the stake, bet on whether I can obtain the highest reward or not. What do you say? Yun and Hong, hearing this, smirked, running his hand through his hair. All right, let's bet. I'm not afraid of you. I'm not like that foolish gun tang. I know gemstones, and I'm certain I can beat you. He grinned maliciously, calculating. I've heard that this time you can secretly bid, making it unknown to others how much you bid. If I can silently eliminate Yi Han, no matter how much he bids, I just need to apply pressure on him, considering his current funds. He's definitely not my match. He and Yi Han exchanged fiery glances. Yi Han spoke, All right, it's settled then. Yu and Hong smirked, thinking, Let's see if this little guy dares to challenge me to the death. Onlookers began to discuss, In a regular auction, Yi Han would likely have a high chance of winning. However, with silent bidding, this rule really favors Yu and Hong. If Yuan Hong intentionally places continuous bids, putting pressure on Yi Han, no matter what, he will be the ultimate winner. Indeed, in terms of background and social status, Yi Han can hardly compare to the young master of the Yuan family. Yuan Hong pointed at Yi Han, questioning, Kid, you have about 10 minutes left. The time for selecting gemstones will end. Have you made your choice? Yi Han, acting clueless, scratched his head and said, you almost made me forget if you hadn't mentioned it. Yi Han, as before, pointed at a gemstone, marveling. Outside this gemstone, there's a bit of darkness. I guess there will be a white light when it's cut. On top, there's a pattern resembling pine blossoms. The upper shell has some moss, and the lower shell has a bit of hollowness. I'm sure the antique inside is definitely a masterpiece. Upon hearing this, the crowd was speechless, infuriated to the point of disbelief. Yuan Hong angrily exclaimed, Damn it, you've used this trick three times already. Do you really think I'm a fool? I will absolutely not fall for your schemes. He claimed that the three people falling for the trick were none other than Ning Feng, Gu Wen Diao, and Fuji Wazaza. The trio looked puzzled, tilting their heads, and Gu Wen Diao asked, Is he implying that we are the fools? We are loyal subjects of the Empire, you know. Pointing confidently at the gemstone, Yi Han asserted, You don't believe it. There is genuine jade inside. After speaking, he placed his bidding paper in the box. The others still doubted him, making displeased faces and raising their middle fingers, saying, We disdain you. You think we're all fools. Believe this monkey, who wouldn't recognize Ning Feng's foolish appearance. Even if we were dying, we wouldn't bid on this gemstone. 
Seeing their reaction, Yi Han shrugged and said, If you don't believe, that's a pity. Gun Tang, let's go check out other gemstones. Although Yi Han remained calm on the outside as he walked away, internally, he couldn't help but burst into triumphant laughter. What a bunch of fools. The valuable jade in that gemstone, which is the highest priced here, has already been sealed by me. Yu and Hong urged, Go and suppress this little guy. No matter what gemstone he bids for, we must pressure him into raising the bid. Rong Fan Zheng chimed in flatteringly, Yu and young master, you are indeed a master. This young guy is definitely going to lose. After a while, the host finally took the stage and announced, Dear guests, after the process of selecting stones, appraisal, and evaluation, the highest valued gemstone today is here. Are you all excited? The crowd immediately erupted with excitement, shouting, The final reward is definitely mine. I am the rightful owner of the ultimate prize. My bid is undoubtedly the highest. This time, I am the sure winner. Yu and Hong turned to Rong Fan Zhang inquiringly, so did we manage to suppress Yi Han? He immediately signaled his approval. Rest assured, Yuan Young Master, the gemstone that Yi Han identified, we all placed bids on it. I guarantee our bid is significantly higher than his. We have a 100% certainty of victory. Hearing this, Yuan Hong was pleased. He glanced at Yi Han with a hint of disdain. Such a cunning kid trying to compete with me. Let's see how you'll die this time. Yi Han nonchalantly picked his nose and remarked, You spoiled brat, what are you looking at? Have you prepared your 300 million bid? Yu and Hong angrily shouted, Prepare your head. He pointed confidently at Yi Han, asserting, You are going to lose this time for sure. I don't need to prepare. Yi Han chuckled inwardly, thinking, I really want to see Yuan Hong's expression when the results are announced. He responded to Yuan Hong's words, Oh, just wait and watch when the results are revealed. Observing Yi Han's confident demeanor, others in the crowd speculated, The time has come, but Yi Han is still pretending to be nonchalant. We've seen his 300 million bid, he's definitely going to lose. The kid without any powerful backers behind him, how could he compete with Yuan family's young master? The host unveiled the red cloth, declaring, the most valuable gemstone this time is this piece of icy orchid jade. As the cloth unveiled, inside was a brilliantly sparkling gemstone with a bright purple hue. People below marveled, their eyes shining with admiration. Oh my, icy orchid jade, this is an invaluable treasure. I wonder which fortunate individual got hold of it. Even a small piece like that could easily be sold for tens of millions, and the one on the stage must be worth at least a hundred million. The host then directed his attention to the bidding box, saying, Next, I would like to announce the lucky bidder who secured the final prize of this auction. He retrieved a ballot from the box, and after reading it, he expressed surprise. It's strange. There's only one bid inside the box. Hearing this, especially Yuan Hong, the crowd below was astonished. Only one bidder. What kind of joke is this? The host raised the ballot and announced, It's true. The lucky bidder is Mr. Yi Han. Yu Wen Hong clenched his fists and cursed. Damn it. Rong Fan Zhang gaped in disbelief. This can't be happening. Gun Tang couldn't help but exclaim with joy. Really, that stone was chosen by Brother Yi. Yi Han, now smiling, said, Thank you, everyone. Thanks to the organizers of the auction, I am truly fortunate. The others were furious, throwing things and hurling insults at him. Yi Han. You're a miserable scoundrel, deceiving everyone. Shameless scumbag. Yi Han, do you have a conscience? Shameless to come on stage and receive the reward. Get out of here. Yu and Hong, seething with anger, gritted his teeth. He urged, Damn it, let's go. Just as he was about to turn away, Gun Tang and his companions blocked them and asked, Where do you think you're going, young master Yu Wen? His burly companions confronted them, questioning, the 300 million from our brother Yi Han, where's the payment? Yu and Hong, trying to save face, blustered, What? What do you want? I am the young master of the Yuan family. Dare to touch me, and you'll regret it. The muscle-bound companions persisted, shouting, Who cares who you are? Skipping payment. We'll make you pay. Beat you to death. Muscle power. Engage. In a fit of rage, they charged towards Yuan Hong and Rong Fan Zhang. Engaging in a dust-raising brawl, Gun Tang, 
infuriated, cursed. Stop pretending. I'll deal with his third-rate tricks. Yu and Hong, afraid of losing face, quickly pleaded. Stop, have I paid you back yet? Rong Fan Zeng, half crying and half pleading, exclaimed, This has nothing to do with me. Why are you getting me too? After a chaotic scuffle, Yu and Hong and his companion lay battered on the ground. Gun Tang retrieved the winning voucher and walked away, handing it to Yi Han, saying, Little Yi, here's your 300 million voucher. I've helped you collect the debt. Yi Han replied, Thank you, Big Brother Gun Tang. Yu and Hong, frowning, looked on, vowing in his heart, Yi Han, Gun Tang, in tomorrow's betting, I will make both of you suffer miserably. The next day, in a room filled with various games from dice to cards to chess, the two families, Gun and Yuan, sat on opposite sides. The head of the Yuan family, Yuan Shan He, mockingly asked, Gun Qian, your Gun family member participating in this bet, why haven't they arrived yet? Couldn't find the person? Gun Qian, the head of the Gun family, scowled and replied, Yuan Shan He, don't think you can achieve your dirty tricks behind the scenes. The ancestral heritage of our Gun family will never fall into your hands. Hearing that, Yuan Shan he chuckled deviously, remarking, Quite a bold statement. He thought to himself, All the experts in Southeast Asia have already been bribed by me. The Gun family originally has no one left to invite. He extended his hand, introducing Rong Fan Zhang proudly. For our Yuan family, we've invited Mr. Rong Fan Zhang, one of the top seven experts in the gemstone world in Southeast Asia. I'm really eager to see who among you can defeat Mr. Rong here. Rong Fan Zing waved his hand, smiling and greeting. He confidently assured, You want, sir? Rest assured, I will definitely win this match. At that moment, a voice outside the door declared, I can beat him. The speaker was none other than Yi Han. Today, he was wearing a stylish suit, his hair slicked back in a handsome manner. Following him was Gun Tang and a few people responsible for the flower and music effects. Yi Han, with a toothpick in his mouth, introduced himself. The gemstone deity is here. Yu and Shan He, upon seeing him, exploded with irritation, wondering, where did this kid come from? The Gun family head was skeptical, thinking, is this the expert that Gun Tang invited? Yu and Hong scowled, isn't this Yi Han? Why is he here? Rong Fan Zhang, sweating profusely, looked bewildered. He, he is. Yi Han swung his robe, confidently pointing at Yu and Shan He declaring, Today, you guys are doomed. The head of the Yuan family, upon hearing this, erupted in anger, shouting, Do you think these people are fools? Changing into formal wear, blaring loudspeakers, and even inviting a flower presenter. Do you truly believe you're a gemstone deity? As he finished speaking, the sound from the loudspeaker suddenly switched to a different announcement. High prices for buying old and broken electrical appliances, TVs, refrigerators, and washing machines. The person handling the loudspeaker startled, confused. Why didn't the music change? Isn't it broken? The flower presenter also spoke up, asking, Does the flower shop owner need more, sir? The red-haired woman from the Gun family scolded, Gun Tang, is this the expert you brought in? He's here to be a clown, isn't he? The young man standing behind her agreed, reminding, Gun Tang, this gambling matter concerns the fate of the family. Don't cause trouble anymore. Quickly kick this fire expert out. The head of the gun family questioned with a darkening expression. Gun Tang, what is going on here? At this moment, Yu and Shan he laughed, stood up, and while puffing on a cigarette, disdainfully said, The gun family has really lost its way, yet you seek out such an incompetent fire expert. I think this gambling matter doesn't need to continue. Hearing this, Yi Han smiled and asked, Why not continue? He then slammed the table forcefully causing the cards to scatter into the air. Amidst the flying cards, Yi Han continuously grabbed four cards. When he revealed them, all four cards were aces. He taunted, or perhaps you all admit defeat yourselves. The members of the Gun and Yuan families witnessed this scene in astonishment. The referees exclaimed, he managed to find four aces in a pile of shuffled cards. Moreover, he didn't even bother to look at those cards. This young man indeed has some skills. Gun Tang pleaded, Father, please believe me. Yi Han, the ultimate role, can represent our gun family and win this gambling match. 
The head of the gun family remained silent for a few seconds, then decisively agreed. Fine. He stood up, clasped his hands, and expressed to Yi Han, Mr. Yi, the fortunes of my gun family rely on you. Seeing this, Yi Han smiled, subtly expressing to him to trust in his abilities. Rong Fan Zhang, behind him, mocked, talking big without any shame, thinking you know a few magic tricks with poker and you can control the situation. When the old man was making waves everywhere, this kid was probably still in diapers. Yi Han frowned and slammed his hand on the table, declaring, enough talk. The outcome of today's gambling is the most convincing evidence. Rong Fan Zhang shrugged confidently and replied, how do you want to bet? I'm familiar with all types of bets, just pick one. Yi Han immediately placed a black card on the table and said, let's bet on the dice. However, a simple bet won't be exciting. In this bank card of mine, there are 10 billion. I bet it all. A fixed result, win or lose. Are you up for it? Rong Fan Zeng pondered. There are a total of three dice. Even if both of us roll three sixes, at most, it's a tie. I won't lose, and I have another trick up my sleeve. With that thought, he also placed the card down, accepting the bet. Let's bet. If you want to give me that much money, I certainly won't refuse. The first round of the dice competition between the Southern Chess Master and the Assassin Institute's elderly care began. Rong Fan Zhang held up the dice cup and exclaimed, Witness my 18 moves of the Heavenly Demon Hand. He tossed the dice, vigorously shaking them with internal force. Behind him, it seemed like there was a servant wailing. Seeing this momentum, the onlookers exclaimed, Mr. Rong, using the ultimate move right from the start. Yi Han. There's absolutely no way to resist the 18 moves of the heavenly demon hand. We've already won this bet. Yi Han, seeing this, just smiled faintly, holding up a dice cup and saying, The 18 moves of the heavenly demon hand are trivial. I've seen through them long ago. Now, witness my technique. He raised the cup and vigorously shook it, a powerful internal force emanating, creating an image resembling a thousand-armed Guanian. Yi Han exclaimed loudly, Guanian's peaceful hands. Onlookers stared in amazement, mouths agape. So many arms, I can't discern this move. It's incredibly powerful. Guanian has appeared. Both participants placed their dice cups down. Rom Fan Zane confidently declared, Yi Han, there are a total of three dice here. You can only get a maximum of 18 points. But let me tell you, as he opened the dice cup, inside were two intact dice showing six points each while the third one was broken in half, one side showing six points and the other one point. Excitedly, he said, I rolled a total of 19 points. I'm the sure winner. The Yuan family members, thinking they had won, jeered. Unexpectedly, he could roll a dice so hard that it shattered. This power is extraordinary. Wrong. The gambling master is indeed formidable. Yi Han, you've surely lost. The gun family members, feeling all hope slipping away, lamented, it's over. There are only three dice in total. Yi Han, how can you win against him? The future of the gun family is in jeopardy. I've said it before. This young man is not suitable. Why did we let him represent the gun family in this competition? Yi Han showed no fear. He smirked and said, only 19 points. And you dare to boast in front of me? Open your eyes wide and see how many points I can roll. As he opened the box, Everyone focused on it, and each person was astonished. How is this possible? Oh my god, it's truly magical. On the table were two intact dice showing six points each, while the remaining die was broken into six pieces, each displaying a number from one to six. Yi Han pointed challengingly, I have a total of 33 points, while you only have 19 points. How can you compete with me? Rong Fan Zhang couldn't help but slump. He fell onto his seat, mentally exhausted. Sighing, I, I can't believe I lost. Thus, in this outstanding match, the victor was Yi Han, the assassin from the Elderly Care Assassin Institute. Rom Fan Zhang was defeated in just one round. Yi Han reclaimed the black card, kissed it, and said, Thanks for the ten billion. At this point, Rom Fan Zhang slumped in his seat, unconscious. The members of the Yuan family couldn't help but express their dissatisfaction, lamenting, How is this possible? Wrong. The master actually lost. Under the hands of this young man, our Yuan family's fortune is gone. This young man is incredible. 
he to see all of us. The members of the Yuan family were overjoyed beyond description, expressing their gratitude to Yi Han. Am I dreaming? We won. Heavens blessed us. Yi Han, truly, you are a divine being sent by the heavens to save our gun family. This is fantastic. The ancestral legacy of our gun family is secured. Yuan Hong, furious, swung his fist toward Yi Han, shouting, No, I don't believe it. You must have used some trick. This round doesn't count. Let's play again. However, before his fist could land, Yi Han swiftly slapped him hard across the face, saying, Play with your head, not your fists. Yuan Hong fell to the ground, and seeing this, the members of the Yuan family were infuriated and approached threateningly. You little brat, how dare you strike our young master? This is no different from slapping our Yuan family in the face. We must kill him. The young master is right, he must have cheated. We won't accept the results of this round. Hearing this, the atmosphere around Yi Han cooled down. He said, If you want to challenge me, rely on your skills, not threats. You are far from enough. At this moment, the head of the Yuan family exclaimed, Enough. Although angered, he restrained himself and said, Our Yuan family is not a turtle hiding its head. Whether we win or lose, we'll accept it. Our mineral vein will be transferred to Gun family. The head of the Gun family smiled and replied, Thank you, Yuan, for your generosity. Yuan Shanhe, in frustration, turned away, shouting, Let's go. Outside the Grand Hall, Yuan Hong chased after his father, questioning in discontent, Father, how can we easily let this matter go? The mineral vein is the ancestral legacy of our Yuan family. Yuan Shan he interrupted, saying, That mineral vein was nearing depletion anyway, and it doesn't matter for the Gun family. However, that young man, Yi Han, dared to oppose our Yuan family. He must die. Inside the room, Gun Qian once again bowed his head in gratitude. Mr. Yi, thank you for your righteous assistance. Our Gun family has preserved the legacy of our ancestors because of you. Therefore, the Gun family will never forget this favor. After he finished speaking, the others immediately bowed their heads and collectively said, We will absolutely not forget this favor. Yi Han humbly scratched his head and replied, Elder, this is something I should do. Gun Qian, the family head, continued, Exactly, Mr. Yi. You are the ultimate winner of the gemstone auction. This map marking the mineral vein, originally rotated among our four major families, should now probably be handed over to you. Yi Han held up the map, looked at it, and muttered, The mineral vein map. The map depicted an image of the sinister demon forest. Gun Qian, the family head, explained, Mr. Yi, I won't hide anything from you. In reality, we have sent people to explore around this mineral vein countless times. However, this demon-infested forest is exceptionally dangerous, concentrated with many savage beasts, causing numerous casualties among our family members. In the end, we can only obtain a small portion of the reward. Hearing this, Yi Han couldn't help but be curious. Is it really that bizarre? He tightly grasped the map, excitedly saying, I want to go there and see for myself. In his heart, he was contemplating, This might be a mineral vein, and if I can obtain it, do one these family won't hinder our relationship. Gun Tang clapped Yi Han on the shoulder and said, Rest assured, little brother Yi, I'll accompany you there. Hearing this, Yi Han couldn't help but feel joyful. He tightly held Gun Tang's hand and said, With united efforts, what difficulty can we fear? On the other hand, at some undisclosed location, Fuji Wazaza, Ning Feng, and Gu Wen Diao were seated around the table. Gu Wen Diao raised his wine glass and said, I've got news that Yi Han has obtained the mineral vein map. Ning Feng, smoking a cigarette, responded, That map, I already had someone secretly make a duplicate. It doesn't matter if Yi Han has the original. Fuji Waza chuckled dangerously and suggested, I heard that the mineral vein in the dense forest is extremely dangerous. Even the four major families in this region are wary of losing secrets. Why not together? We go there conveniently to eliminate Yi Han and seize the mineral vein. The other two enthusiastically agreed. I'm in favor. Count me in. All three unanimously declared, Kill Yi Han. Seize the mineral vein. The followers of Yi Han swiftly entered the dense forest. While advancing, Gun Tang wielded his blade to clear the way, muttering, 
These paths in the forest are really difficult to traverse. Observing the surroundings, Yi Han reminded everyone, keep up and follow the route on the map. If we cross through this wing of the forest, we should reach the mountain pass where the mineral vein is located. Approaching Yi Han, Gun Tang whispered, Hey, little brother Yi, tell me, can we trust our organization's arrangement? If nothing unexpected happens, wouldn't this trip be a waste? Yi Han laughed and replied, No worries, it's better if nothing unexpected happens. If there is, well, he tilted his head in thought. With the yin-yang divine eyes here, there's no fear of overlooking any movements. Suddenly, something flashed by, causing the entire group to feel uneasy. What was that? Rumor has it that there are demonic creatures in the deep demon forest. Could it be that we've stumbled upon those demons? Oh, I shouldn't have taken the money and risked my life to come here. Yi Han shouted to reassure, Stay calm in there. It's not some demonic creature. Emerging from the forest was a group of people led by Ning Feng. He carried a gun and chuckled. Of course, we're not demons. However, we've come here to bid you farewell to meet the demons. Gun Tang furrowed his brows and questioned. Ning Feng, why are you here? Are you looking for the mineral vein marked on the map too? Ning Feng laughed in response. We've already traced the mineral vein marked on the map from another location. Moreover, this time, it's not just us. As he spoke, two other groups arrived, led by Gu Wen Diao and Fujiwaza. They all said in unison, and we won't be left out. Gi Han looked at the group and feigned surprise, asking, Oh, the three noble families joining forces, who would have expected? Gu Wen Diao declared loudly, Yi Han, you dared to play tricks on me during the antique auction. Today is your memorial day. Fujiwaza, holding a sword, chuckled and said, Lai Han, if you hand over the jade with the frog-shaped pattern, I might help you die a bit more comfortably. Ning Feng, even more sinister, laid down the condition. Yi Han, if you kneel down and beg for mercy now, I might show mercy, grant you a way to survive. What do you think? Hearing this, Yi Han burst into laughter and replied, I actually feel that if you all kneel down and beg me for mercy now, I might help you die a little less painfully. The three others, unaware of his true strength, continued to arrogantly speak one after another, Yi Han, it seems you've been driven insane. Your words are contradictory from start to finish. Clearly, he's surrounded, yet he demands us to kneel and beg for mercy. In a while, we must torment him, make him abandon his arrogant attitude. Ning Feng adjusted the gun in his hand and angrily questioned, Yi Han, has your brain been addled? We are many, and what are you relying on to demand that we kneel and beg you for mercy? Yi Han raised his hand and said, relying on them, Hu Feng, everyone, let's go. With these words, Hu Feng's group, who had been hiding for a while, finally emerged. They swung down on ropes, shouting, After waiting for half a day, it's finally our turn to enter the battle. Yi Han, we're here. Hu Feng and his companions landed firmly, and the three others immediately looked frustrated. One of them said, What's with these safety bureau people? Damn it, our plan has failed. Yi Han walked slowly towards them and said, Since I learned about the mineral vein map, which was originally held alternately by the four major families, I've thought that this map might have been duplicated by you, and you may have set up an ambush in the forest. Now, he pointed directly at the three challenging individuals. It's time for you to kneel and beg for mercy. Seeing that Yi Han was aware of their carefully laid plan, Gu Wen Diao angrily shouted, Dream on if you think we'll kneel and beg for mercy. He gestured toward Yi Han's group, commanding his subordinates, Charge! Whoever kills Yi Han will receive a reward of 10 million from me. Fujiwaza and Ning Feng also declared, Whoever kills Yi Han will receive a 10 million reward from us. Hearing such an enticing reward, the armed group joyfully rushed towards Yi Han. They shouted fanatically, Whoever kills Yi Han will get 30 million. Let's charge with this reward, it's enough for us to retreat and enjoy life. Yi Han, just die for us. Yi Han looked at the ferocious crowd in front of them. Raising his knife, he coldly said, To kill me, you're not worthy. Gun Tang raised his submachine gun, pointing it at the people in front, threateningly saying, to kill Yi Han, my brother has to step over my dead body first. Hu Feng also declared loudly, Yi Han is a crucial member of the safety bureau. 
he cannot die here. Afterward, the situation divided into two factions. One side consisted of Yi Han and his two companions, while the other side included the people from the three major families. Both factions were fiercely determined, showing no mercy to the other. Yi Han used his knife to cut down the people in front of him. Even though they were armed with guns, with Yi Han's extremely fast speed, they were no match. On the other side, Hu Feng continuously wielded his knife, flipping and slashing to defeat several opponents. Gun Tang shouted, Those who only care about money and do anything for it, go to hell. After saying this, Gun Tang squeezed the trigger, unleashing a storm of bullets, killing the opposing group before moving on to the next. After a chaotic battle, the other group was overwhelmed by Yi Han, Gun Tang, and Hu Feng. Unable to put up any resistance, terrified, they fled like disturbed bees, panicking and shouting, No, can't fight back. The opponents are too formidable. Run quickly. What's the point of having money if we lose our lives? Gu Wen Diao and Ning Feng, seeing the others leaving them behind, angrily shouted, Cowards, don't run. Everyone stay here for us. Gu Wen Diao even grabbed the collar of someone, preventing them from escaping, fearfully yelling, Don't run. Fuji Waza looked at the scattered remnants of his forces, clenched his fists in anger, and cursed. Damn it, it's come to this. He lifted his spear, his face darkening as he said, Guess I have to use this trick. Fuji Waza put the spear to his mouth and blew a strange melody with all his might. On the other side, Yi Han was lifting the collar of one of his opponents, preparing for a confrontation. Suddenly, Yi Han heard a peculiar sound and suspiciously said, Mmm, what's this sound? Yi Han felt a chilling sensation creeping up his spine and glanced back. What is this thing? Behind Yi Han, Fujiwaza led a group of ferocious beasts with glowing red eyes, relentlessly advancing toward Yi Han. Fujiwaza arrogantly held the spear and said, I knew it. The beasts in this forest have all mutated. This is the soul-transforming beast bones. I specially had it crafted by a male and female creature specialist. At this point, he couldn't help but laugh sadistically. Yi Han, prepared to be devoured by these beasts. Gu Wen Diao and Ning Feng, seeing Fuji Waza revealing his hidden card, excitedly remarked, Fuji, we didn't expect you to have such a good trick. Facing a horde of menacing beasts, Gun Tang tensely said, It's about to get worse, ye little brother. The people sent here by the four major clans before us have become food for these beasts. Hu Feng, Equally concerned, look at the ferocious beasts and commented, These beasts seem to have undergone some kind of stimulation, becoming highly mutated and challenging to deal with. Observing the beasts, Yi Han noticed a peculiar light emanating from their bodies. He furrowed his brow with concern, saying, It's strange, these beasts have a spiritual aura within them. Yi Han, contemplating the spiritual aura, had an idea. If I stop emitting my spiritual aura, disrupting the flow of spiritual energy inside these beasts. What would happen? Deciding to act on his thoughts, Yi Han retracted his spiritual aura, and the surrounding spiritual energy converged towards him. Immediately, the beasts seemed agitated, roaring in pain as if experiencing intense suffering. Witnessing this, Yi Han couldn't help but rejoice. This works too well. On the other side, Fuji continued to blow his whistle incessantly, commanding the beast behind him. Go, go quickly, bite them to death for me. However, things had changed at this point. The pack of beasts behind him no longer obeyed his orders. Instead of attacking Yi Han, they turned towards Fuji. Seeing the relentless advance of the pack surrounding him, Fuji panicked and exclaimed, What are you doing? Despite Fuji's plea, the beasts continued to advance. Panic filled Fuji's eyes, and bloodshot veins appeared within. Terrified, he shouted loudly, I told you to go bite Yi Han, not me. As soon as he uttered those words, the pack of beasts attacked him without any hesitation. Onlookers witnessed Fuji being ruthlessly torn apart, blood splattering everywhere, outside. All that could be heard was Fuji's desperate screams. Oh, no, please, save me. His two companions, Gu Wen Diao and Ning Feng, witnessing the unexpected turn of events, couldn't react in time. They could only exchange disbelieving glances, uttering, What the hell? Ning Feng, in a state of panic, retreated behind, fear evident in his voice. How? How can this be? 
Before the two could gather their senses, the pack of beasts charged towards them. Gu Wen Diao and Ning Feng witnessed the scene, their faces turning pale. Gu Wen Diao, gathering his wits, panicked and exclaimed, Oh, this is not good. Seeing Ning Feng still standing there in a daze, without regaining composure, Gu Wen Diao angrily turned his head and shouted, What are you standing there for? Run quickly. Finally, Ning Feng's soul returned to his body, lifting his legs and sprinting alongside Gu Wen Diao. They fled the area, screaming desperately, Save us, don't eat us. We haven't bathed in three days, this wild beast pack is too overwhelming. Originally, they couldn't eat us. Run quickly. Yi Han stood aside, watching Gu Wen Diao and Ning Feng being chased, a triumphant smile playing on his lips. To kill me, you still have a long way to go. At this moment, Gum Tang and Hu Feng stood opposite Yi Han, shocked, pointing behind Yi Han, and saying, Ye Han, behind you, don't act tough anymore, quickly look behind you. Yi Han, unaware of the imminent danger, asked in confusion, behind me. Little did Yi Han know, behind him were two massive beasts, eagerly eyeing him, witnessing the scene behind him. Yi Han's eyes widened in fear as he screamed. Before Yi Han could regain his composure, Hu Feng swiftly pulled him outside with one hand. As Hu Feng dragged Yi Han, he said, Don't just stand there. Run. In the end, everyone had to run. The ferocious pack of beasts chased relentlessly behind. Seeing the situation worsening, with the pack closing in, someone shouted, Yi Han, think of a way. We can't outrun these creatures. Yi, my junior, I can't hold on much longer. At that moment, a mouse rushed forward and bit someone on the buttocks. The person screamed in pain, saying my buttocks hurt so much. However, they continued running, as stopping meant not only dealing with the mouse, but also the pursuing pack behind. In the midst of chaos, Yi Han pointed forward and commanded, head straight ahead. We'll reach the edge of this forest soon. According to the map, these wild creatures won't leave this forest. Hearing this, the group cheered and shouted, run fast. Subsequently, everyone sprinted forward like arrows. Finally, they managed to escape the forest. The exhausted group collapsed on the ground, gasping for breath. Hu Feng, wiping off sweat, panted and said, Finally, we're out. That's great. Gun Tang also kneeled on the ground, sighing, Oh my god, we finally escaped death. These mutated beasts are too frightening. I swear, I'll never enter this forest again. Yi Han was equally exhausted gasping for breath. He thought about the pack of beasts in the forest. The notes on the map are entirely accurate. These wild creatures absolutely won't leave this forest. At that moment, Yi Han's eyes widened, and he shouted towards Gun Tang. Gun Tang, be careful. As Yi Han spoke, Gun Tang was seized by a massive python, lifted into the air. Caught in the python's grip, Gun Tang, frightened, turned towards Yi Han, pleading for help. Ye Senior, save me. Yi Han swiftly drew a knife from his person and struck the python. Yi Han, infuriated, exclaimed, beasts seeking their own death. Yi Han descended to the ground, leaving the python behind in pieces. However, the scent of blood attracted the attention of the pack of beasts in the forest, and they simultaneously charged towards Yi Han, howling. Seeing the approaching pack, Yi Han panicked and shouted, This is bad, the strong smell of blood is driving these wild beasts crazy. Gun Tang, having just escaped the python, now faced several more beasts. Lying on the ground in despair, tears streaming down, he uttered, It's over, I'm surely dead. Witnessing this scene, those who had barely rested stood up in horror, exclaiming, We have to get out of here. Didn't we say they wouldn't leave the forest? It's over. We don't have the strength to run anymore. What do we do now? Just when everyone thought they were trapped, a loud noise echoed. The pack of beasts suddenly halted, bewilderedly looking at each other. Then, they transformed into small kittens and rapidly sprinted back into the forest. Observing the peculiar behavior of the beasts, Yi Han skeptically asked, What is going on here? Just as everyone believed the danger had passed, the ground suddenly trembled. A creature, entirely black with a radiant red aura, appeared. Seeing the formidable beast in front of Yi Han, it broke into a sweat and said, the consciousness dominance among the wild creatures is strong. The recent fleeing of the pack was simply because they feared the creature standing before us. 
It likely serves as a key link in the food chain in this grassland region. Hearing that there was an even more formidable beast, Gun Tang, in fear, exclaimed, We've barely escaped one disaster, and another one has arrived. Yi Han, determined, raised his sword and said, Regardless of what kind of creature it is, let's charge at it together with all our might. Upon hearing this, everyone wielded their weapons, filled with determination, and exclaimed, Yi Han, you're right. Even if it's perilous, let's charge, for we are men of courage, confronting this beast together. Just as everyone prepared to charge and attack, the creature mentioned by everyone appeared. A cute little creature with short white legs emerged. A lovable Baihu cub. Baihu had round, adorable eyes, gazing at Yi Han with intense affection and letting out cute cries. Seeing the creature, soft and adorable for the first time, Yi Han and his companions were all dumbfounded, with three black lines appearing on their faces. Yi Han pointed at Xiao Baihu suspiciously, saying, what is this? Is this really the crucial link in the food chain? Hu Feng, however, was captivated by its cuteness. His eyes transformed into star shapes as he exclaimed, It's too adorable. Xiao Bai Hu stood proudly, letting out a few cries, signaling everyone to follow. After a while, Yi Han and his group finally arrived. Observing the surroundings, Yi Han couldn't help but marvel and exclaim, This is the mineral-rich area, marked on the map. Gun Tang was equally delighted. Unexpectedly, it's a Bahu cub leading us to the mineral-rich area. Hu Feng, feeling a bit envious that Xiao Baihu seemed only friendly with Yi Han, turned away and said, On what basis? How come Baihu is only friendly with Yi Han? Clearly, the little beauty is both cute and affectionate. Yi Han transmitted his spiritual energy, enveloping his hand, gently stroking Xiao Baihu's head, praising. Perhaps this is fate. From now on, I'll call you Baihu. In Yi Han's heart, he speculated on the reason. Xiao Bai who listened to him. Xiao Bai Ho. Maybe you came because of the spiritual energy in my body, holding Bai Hu close to his chest. Yi Han entered the cave, telling Hu Feng and the others outside, Let's go. We found the mineral rich area. Let's go inside and check it out. Approaching the cave entrance, Hu Feng immediately felt a chilling sensation, hugging himself. He spoke to Yi Han ahead. Yi Han, a sinister aura emanates from this cave, making me extremely uncomfortable. Maybe you should go in alone, and we can guard outside. Hearing this, the others agreed, saying, That's right, I just got close to the cave, and my whole body felt uncomfortable. My hemorrhoids acted up again. Same mirror, just a bit closer, and I felt an inexplicable discomfort. Yi Han, this mineral deposit seems to belong to you. You better go in alone. Listening to everyone, Yi Han couldn't help but be suspicious. Why don't Xiao Bai Hu and I feel that way? Couldn't it be that there is spiritual energy inside this mineral deposit? Everyone agreed, leaving Yi Han with no choice but to enter alone. Before going inside, Yi Han reminded them, If anything happens while I'm inside, call for me immediately. Gun Tang nodded, cautioning, Little brother Yi, you must be careful. If something goes wrong, come out immediately. Hu Feng's gaze remained on Xiao Bai Hu, expressing concern, Take good care of my adorable Xiao Bai Hu. Yi Han then carried Xiao Bai Hu into the cave. Upon entering, he immediately sensed the thick spiritual energy. Yi Han exclaimed, The spiritual energy here is dense. There must be something inside. At that moment, Xiao Bai Hu jumped out of Yi Han's arms and ran ahead. Seeing this, Yi Han had to hurriedly chase after, calling out, Xiao Bai, Wait for me. Xiao Bai Hu led Yi Han to a sword. The sword stuck under a mineral emitting continuous spiritual energy. Yi Han looked at the surrounding minerals, joyfully saying, This must be the source of the mineral deposit. Clearly, it's a spiritual mineral deposit. Yi Han excitedly exclaimed, This is excellent. Currently, the spiritual energy in the world is scarce, causing slow progress in our cultivation. But with this spiritual mineral, I'm confident I can make a breakthrough. Yi Han looked at the object on the stone platform with suspicion, asking, Mom, what is this on the stone? Xiao Bai Hu raised its claws, indicating that Yi Han should come over quickly. On the stone platform, there was an inscription. I spent my whole life searching, collecting techniques. These are techniques related to both yin and yang, left behind for those with fate. Yi Han unsheathed the sword, 
holding the sword in one hand and the technique in the other, jokingly said, This is a special treatment for the protagonist. I finally get to receive it. After receiving the items, Yi Han didn't forget to bow and express gratitude, saying, Thank you for passing on the techniques, senior. Taking advantage of this opportunity, Yi Han jumped onto the stone platform, saying, I'll cultivate now. Yi Han then sat cross-legged, closed his eyes, and began cultivation, absorbing the spiritual energy from the mineral deposit into his body. Outside the cave entrance, Hu Feng and the others didn't know when they had been bound. Yu and Shan he arrived with a group of people, excitedly saying, Thank you all. I can only find the mineral deposit with your help. He looked at Hu Feng and asked, Yuang Han, why did he come out to meet me? With a smug smile, Yu Shan he tightly held Hu Feng's hand and said, Daring to offend Yu Shan he, today is Yi Han's memorial day. Gun Tang glared at Yu Shan he in anger, saying, Damn it! If it weren't for the pursuit of those mutated beasts in the deep forest, which depleted our combat strength, how could we let this Yuan family group seize the facilities? Hu Feng, Bao nearby, gritted his teeth and said, Speaking these words now won't help. We can only rely on Yi Han. Some subordinates brought out a chair, and Yuan Shan, he sat on it, leaning forward leisurely, holding a cigar in his hand, saying, Yi Han might be inside the mineral deposit area by now. No worries. We can wait for him to come out. Yulin Hong stood aside with a fierce expression, giving orders to his subordinates. Everyone, arm yourselves and guard this cave. That kid Yi Han is very cunning. Don't let him escape. Hearing the command, the Yulin family members wielded their weapons, ready to defend, saying, Got it. Inside the cave, Yi Han was cultivating when he suddenly opened his eyes, excitedly standing up. Yi Han looked at the continuous influx of spiritual energy into his body, his face filled with excitement, saying, This is great. I've broken through to the foundation establishment stage. Yi Han looked at the dwindling stream of spiritual energy in front of him, sighed regretfully, and said, Unfortunately, the spiritual energy in this mineral deposit has been nearly completely absorbed by me. I don't know how many years it would take to restore it. Feeling that he'd have been inside for quite a while, Yi Han continued, It's time to go out. The Yuan family members outside must be getting impatient. Subsequently, Yi Han led Bai Hu out together. Outside the cave, the sky had already darkened. The Yuan family members had been waiting from morning till now, becoming extremely weary and frustrated. One of them took a deep breath, turned to Yuan Hong, and asked suspiciously, Young master, can we put down our weapons now? We've been holding them up all day and everyone is about to collapse. Hearing this, Yuan Hong turned to look at Hu Fang and said angrily, Yi Han, why haven't you come out yet? It's been nearly a whole day. He must be dead inside. Hu Fang sighed helplessly and said, I don't know. If you're so impatient, why don't you go inside and check for yourselves? Yuan Shan, he couldn't bear to wait any longer and sneered, You must think we're fools. From now on, every ten minutes, I'll kill someone. Let's see if Yi Han will come out or not, starting with that woman. Hearing the threat of murder, Yuan Hong eagerly raised his sword, nodding in agreement. All right. Yuan Hong pointed his sword provocatively at Hu Feng and said, Beautiful lady, you better pray for Yi Han to come out soon. Otherwise, your little life will be over. At that moment, Yi Han emerged from the cave, angrily shouting, Yuan Hong, dare to lay a hand on her, and it'll be you who meets your end. Xiao Bai Hu, standing by, added a few roars in accompaniment. Yu and Hong, holding a sword to Hu Feng's neck, laughed maniacally. Yi Han, stop pretending. Your people are all in my custody. What do you have to kill me with, relying on that broken sword in your hand? Yi Han nodded, saying, You're right. All I need is this sword. With that, he swiftly attacked Yu and Hong. In an instant, Yuan Hong was struck by a red flash across his neck, blood spraying continuously. Right before he fell, his last thought was, No, this can't be. Yi Han, looking at the fallen Yuan Hong, spoke with a cold tone, forgot to mention, this isn't just any broken sword, it's the Dryden Spring Divine Sword. On the other side, Yuan Shan He, witnessing his son's death at the hands of Yi Han, screamed in anger, No, my son. He stood up commanding his subordinates. Killed them all for me. 
The subordinates obeyed the order and rushed forward, shouting, Understood. Seeing enemies approaching Yi Han, Xiao Bai, who roared in fury, emitting a silver light. Swiftly, Xiao Bai, who attacked Yu and Shan, his subordinates. The bewildered subordinates cried out, What is this? Where did this white tiger come from? Help! After dealing with the subordinates, Bai Hu proudly roared. Yi Han, impressed by Xiao Bai Hu's performance, praised, Xiao Bai, well done. Yi Han turned to Hu Feng, slashing the bindings off her and said, Hu Feng, Gun Tang, help the others untee their restraints. Hu Feng looked at Yi Han suspiciously, asking, What about you? Yi Han, lightning fast, moved forward, saying, I have to go and kill Yu and Shandi. On the other side, Yu and Shan He, seeing Yi Han approaching, pushed his subordinates forward in panic, shouting, Someone stop Yi Han for me. Whoever kills Yi Han, I'll reward them with 100 million. Hearing the promise of money, the subordinates' eyes lit up, rushing towards Yi Han, crazily shouting, Kill him. For 100 million, he's alone, no match for us. Stop him quickly. Yi Han swiftly dodged the small and ineffective throwing knives, scoffing. Such tiny throwing knives, utterly useless against me. Leaping into the air with his sword in hand, Yi Han retorted while Yu would shine. His face turned pale. Yu and Shan He, bewildered, exclaimed, What? Before he could regain his composure, Yi Han swiftly struck, unleashing a large flame towards him. Yi Han's sword swept across, freezing Yu and Shan He his eyes wide with disbelief as he stammered. I, I cannot accept this. Following that, Yu and Shan He collapsed to the ground, blood forming a pool around him. After dealing with Yu and Shan He, Yi Han turned his sword towards the remaining subordinates, threatening. Yu and Shan He, Yu and Hong, both are dead. Surrender now, or face the consequences. The Yu and family members had no choice but to raise their hands and surrender. Trembling, they pleaded, it's over. Our patriarch and young master are both dead. The leader is no more. Yi Han, you're too terrifying. We were never his match. I surrender. Please don't kill me. Gun Tang, excitedly, raised his hand and said, Ye younger brother, why do I feel like you've become even more formidable? This time, you practically single-handedly crushed the entire Yuan family. Yi Han scratched his head, awkwardly smiling a lucky breakthrough in the mineral vein inside the cave. At this moment, the voice of Hu Feng echoed, Ye Han. Hu Feng approached Yi Han and said, In the deep forest before, we helped you once, and now you're helping us. Let's consider it even, and it's time for us to leave. Seeing Hu Feng wanting to leave, Yi Han waved his hand in farewell. Before departing, Hu Feng reminded, Don't forget, the door to the safety zone is always open for you. Yi Han nodded happily, saying, Thank you, I will consider it. Gun Tang patted Yi Han's shoulder and pointed towards the mineral cave, asking, Yi younger brother, what do you plan to do with this mineral vein? Yi Han scratched his chin, pondering, With Zhao Bai here, the beasts in the forest dare not come near. Turning to the cave, Yi Han made a suggestion, Instead of this mineral vein, I'll hand it over to the Gun Clan for exploitation. We can share the profits every five years. What do you think? In Ni Han's mind, calculations were underway. The spiritual energy in the spiritual stones, although completely absorbed by me, the remaining quantity is still of excellent quality. I can't stay here for too long, and cooperating with the Gun Clan is the best choice. Hearing this suggestion, Gun Tang excitedly laughed. Well, thank you then. The mineral vein of the Gun Clan, just about to be fully exploited. If my father hears this news, he'll surely be delighted. Yi Han patted Gun Tang on the shoulder, saying, I'll leave the matters to you in the future. I have to return to the Shanghai city. Otherwise, Duan Nai will be very worried. Upon hearing this, Gun Tang also patted Yi Han on the shoulder and said, All right, have a safe journey. After that, Yi Han immediately boarded the plane back to Shanghai city. Sitting on the plane, Yi Han thought, this trip to Tian Nan has yielded quite a few results. Not only did I complete Ju's son's assessment, but I also earned some money. My strength has also made a breakthrough. Returning to Duan Nai will be a joint effort. Thinking of this, Yi Han couldn't help but smile darkly. A female passenger sitting next to Yi Han 
observing his demeanor, thought, is this person mentally ill or something? At this moment, a flight attendant pushed a trolley and said, would you like some drinks, sir? Just then, a man sitting in the seat behind raised his hand and said, over here. Yi Han looked in that direction, squinting his eyes as he assessed. There's something unusual about this man. On the other side, the flight attendant approached the kind-looking man and politely inquired, Sir, may I ask what type of beverage you would like? We have Coca-Cola, mineral water, and coffee available. However, at this moment, the eyes of the flight attendant widened in shock as she exclaimed, Ah, sir. The man raised a knife and brought it in front of the flight attendant, smirking creepily as he said, I want your life. Can I have it? Suddenly, Several thugs brandishing knives appeared in every corner of the plane, threatening passengers. Everyone stay seated. No movement. I'll kill anyone who moves. On the other side, frightened passengers clung to their heads, crying, Save me. Mom, I'm scared. Please don't kill me. I'll do anything you say. Meanwhile, the leader tightened his grip on the flight attendant's neck, the other hand holding a menacing knife as he loudly declared, Anyone causing trouble, I'll kill them immediately. Everyone on the plane dared not speak, only occasionally letting out pitiful whimpers. Yi Han sat still, silently cursing in his mind, encountering robbers on the way home. What kind of luck is this? Truly unfortunate. See everyone obediently following orders. The robber pushed the flight attendant away, excitedly saying, Very good. Yi Han looked at the approaching robber, lowering his head and pondering. They're targeting me. Could it be the assassin organization that targeted me before? No, he approached the girl sitting next to him first. He smirked and said, Miss Nan Gong, to find you, we've expended quite a bit of effort. You can either step out on your own or let me help you. Nan Gong Zi Hun took off her glasses, speaking in a cold tone. I don't need to go out on my own. Seeing Nan Gong Zi Hun without her glasses, everyone on the plane recognized her. They chatted excitedly. Oh, She's Nam Gong Zi Huan, the dream goddess, the number one celebrity in the Asian entertainment industry. Nan Gong Zi Huan, the pure and innocent goddess, is the target of this kidnapping. Such a beautiful female celebrity falling into the hands of robbers, the outcome will be tragic. Yi Han frowned as he looked at Nan Gong Zi Huan in front of him, exhaling lightly. In his mind, he thought, it turns out they're not targeting me. But who is this girl named Nan Gong Zi Huan? Nan Gong Zi Huan, infuriated, questioned the robber. How much money did the person who hired you to kidnap me pay you? I can pay you double. The robber shook his head in response, gesturing with one finger. No, no. Although your offer is tempting, our organization values trust the most. Therefore, you can only comply and accompany us for a journey. The younger member stepped closer to the leader, often saying, Boss, now that we have this beautiful girl in our hands, let us have some fun with her. As long as we don't kill her, it's fine. Hearing this, Yi Han couldn't help but furrow his brows, angrily muttering, a despicable bunch. The leader on the other side, angered by his subordinate's words, shouted, mind your language. He scolded, there are plenty of beautiful flight attendants here. If you feel frustrated, find someone willingly. If you dare touch this girl, I will kill you. Seeing his furious leader, the younger member hastily waved his hand, saying, Yes, boss. He then grabbed the flight attendant, sneering, This little lady here will do. The flight attendant, targeted, retreated in fear, tearful eyes pleading, Please don't. He tightened his grip on the flight attendant's neck, pulling her forward, displaying a sinister grin. Let's go to the restroom together. The flight attendant, unable to resist, could only cry out for help. No, save me. Let me go, I can give you as much money as you want. Nan Gong Zi Huan, witnessing the vile behavior of the robbers, couldn't bear it and stood up, saying, Stop it. If you want someone, take me. Why harm the innocent? The leader saw Nan Gong Zi Huan standing up and sneered, What's this? Does Miss Nan Gong want to replace her? Unable to endure this humiliation, Nan Gong Zi Huan angrily pointed at the leader and scolded him, You. You're despicable. Everyone in the plane dared not utter a word. They can only sympathize with the flight attendant. This flight attendant is truly pitiable. A thousand times don't approach me. If she wants to be humiliated, let her be humiliated alone. If you want to blame someone, 
blame her for being unlucky, with such beautiful makeup, attracting the attention of the robbers. Inside the room, the flight attendant screamed desperately, Help! Yi Han, unable to bear it any longer, stood up. He casually put his hand in his pocket and said, Gentlemen, so many of you bullying the girl isn't it a bit much? The leader, seeing someone unafraid of death standing up against him, raised his knife towards Yi Han and threatened, Who do you think you are? And what right do you have to speak here? A young boy wants to play the hero and save the beauty? Do you believe I can send you to meet the king of hell right now? The passengers in the plane began to gossip. This young man wants to be a hero, wants to go crazy. Yet he dares to stand up against the robbers. I think he just wants to show off in front of Nan Gong Zi Huan. If he wants to die, let him be. A thousand times don't involve us. On the other side, the younger member was still trying to force the flight attendant into the restroom, shouting to his gang leader, Boss! Why bother with words? Just kill them directly. Yi Han didn't want to talk much with them. His eyes narrowed coldly as he said, I bet you will regret this. Upon hearing this, the robbers rushed forward angrily, saying, You're looking for death on your own. Yi Han took out a knife from his body and, in a chilling tone, looked at the approaching robbers, saying, Who dies is yet to be seen. Yi Han swiftly made a few basic knife moves quickly incapacitating all the younger members of the robber's gang. Nan Gong Zi Huan, witnessing Yi Han's imposing demeanor, couldn't help but be amazed, raising her hand to cover her mouth, admiring, Oh, he's amazing. Realizing the urgent situation wasn't favorable for him, the robber with brown, tough hair hurriedly pulled Nan Gong Zi Huan towards him, holding her as a hostage. He tightly squeezed her neck with one hand, brandishing a knife in the other, threatening and intimidating. Yi Han smiled and complimented. Your tactics are not bad, but how did you manage to bring weapons onto the plane? Holding the knife, Yi Han approached the robber, who quickly surrendered. He threw the knife to the floor, then knelt down, his face turning pale, trembling all over, so scared that he even wet himself. He begged desperately, Boss, please don't kill me. Suddenly, a group of men who were previously silent and hesitant began to surge forward, their faces filled with determination shouting loudly, charge, eliminate this useless guy. They rushed in to beat the brown-haired robber, making him cry out in pain. Bosses, I surrender, please don't hit me anymore. The four men paid no attention and continued to assault the brown-haired robber, kicking and punching him mercilessly. Their actions conveyed a clear message. See if you dare to rob on the plane again. We must subdue him and beat this scoundrel to death for daring to bully our goddess Nan Gong Zi Huan. Yi Han stood aside, watching the scene with speechless amazement. He sarcastically remarked, Earlier, none of you dared to make a sound, and now that you see me subduing this robber, you all simultaneously take action. Then he returned to his seat, crossing his legs comfortably. The celebrity Nan Gong Zhenghuan timidly approached him and said, Thank you so much for just now. Yi Han scratched his head, turned to the other side with a cold look, and replied indifferently, it's a small matter, no need to be polite. Despite Yi Han's indifferent attitude, Nan Gong Zi Huan became incredibly curious about our protagonist. She gently touched her chin, pondering, Ordinary men can't help but stare when they see me, but this man is quite exceptional. Unbeknownst to her, Yi Han was also in a state of turmoil. He struggled to restrain himself, not wanting to do anything that would betray his girlfriend waiting at home. His face turned crimson, as if on the verge of a nosebleed. He admonished himself, No, I agreed with Duan Nai. I must not talk to other girls. The sound of approaching footsteps echoed from the gate as the group approached him. Yi Han glanced to the left and snorted. A young man in a black vest had just taught the brown-haired robber a lesson or two. They stood around Nan Gong Zi Wan, gazing at her with a foolish look. The red-haired guy proudly reported, Miss Nan Gong, we've subdued that robber. The brown-haired guy, with his rooster-like hair, confidently stated, Miss Nan Gong, you don't need to be afraid. I'll protect you. The green-haired guy chuckled and added, Miss Nan Gong, rest assured, we'll protect you. Yi Han sat in his seat, seething with anger inside. Clearly, in the beginning, they obediently followed the robber, not daring to make a sound, and now they're taking credit for it. He thought, feeling frustrated. 
These shameless and imputed people are trying to claim victory when I'm the one who defeated those robbers. Nan Gong Zi Hulin looked extremely embarrassed. She waved her hand and said, I hope you all leave. I need some peace and quiet. This group of people continued shamelessly, saying, But Miss Nan Gong, we. Their audacity caught everyone's attention. Suddenly, a voice rang out. You all go back to your seats. The young man turned around, his expression completely changing, leaving everyone in awe. A disheveled flight attendant, dressed in tattered clothes, entered the cabin, looking pitiful. The crowd surrounding Nan Gong Zi Hoon looked at her disdainfully. The brown-haired guy frowned and said, An ugly flight attendant like you has the nerve to give orders to us. The green-haired guy standing next to him agreed. Exactly. If it weren't for us subduing those robbers, you might have already been assaulted by them. Mind your own business. Hearing this, the flight attendant emitted an intense aura. Her eyes glowed red as she shouted at these shameless people. Shut your mouths. I've been a flight attendant for many years, but I've never encountered such shameless individuals like you. The robbers just now were clearly subdued by Mr. Yi. What right do you have to mock and scorn here? During the robbery, why didn't you intervene? Only after the leader of the robbers was defeated, did you come out pretending to be heroes? You're no different from those robbers. Listening to this scolding, everyone felt a sense of satisfaction and justice in their hearts. The young man, bombarded with criticisms, couldn't contain his frustration and turned red in anger. They pretended to be wronged and continued to engage in a verbal duel with the flight attendant. Yi Han, sitting in his seat, felt a warmth in his heart. He rested his chin on his hand, a satisfied expression on his face, saying, This girl is not bad. After a few not-so-smooth hours, the plane smoothly landed at the airport. Nan Gong Zi Huan followed Yi Han, dragging her suitcase behind. She loudly called out, Hey, I still don't know your name. Yi Han quickly strode away, his face extremely awkward. He thought to himself, I'm about to meet Duan Ni. I can't let anyone find out now. Another girl seems to be admiring me. The flight attendant was also daydreaming about our Yi Han, saying, Thank you. Mr. Yi. Duan Ni, wearing sunglasses, stood leaning against the car waiting for Yi Han outside the airport. As soon as he saw her, Yi Han joyfully called out, Duan Nai. Equally delighted, Duan Nai lowered her sunglasses and called his name, Yi Han. Then the two rushed towards each other, embracing tightly. Yi Han looked at her with a loving gaze and softly said, Duan Ni, I missed you so much. Duan Nai replied, I missed you too. Yi Han quickly gave her a kiss after days of separation, leaving Duan Nai blushing and startled. Ignoring the bustling crowd around them, the two embraced each other, exchanging passionate kisses. Duan Ni's face blushed as she softly hinted, My grandfather is not home tonight. Yi Han, taken aback, stood frozen for a moment and skeptically asked, What? Duan Nai, probably feeling embarrassed, covered her face and hurried away. Yi Han looked up to the sky, his face filled with excitement. He chuckled with undisguised joy in his heart. Ah, Duan Ni, Duan Ni, wants me to visit her tonight. The car stopped in front of Yi Han's house. He got out and noticed Duan Nai still sitting in the car. He asked, Duan Ni, aren't you coming in? Duan Nai lowered her sunglasses and reminded, um, about what just happened. Don't forget tonight, okay. Saying this, she stepped on the gas and sped straight ahead without saying goodbye to Yi Han, probably due to embarrassment. Yi Han burst into laughter, unable to contain his joy, his face full of anticipation for tonight. He doubtly exclaimed, Tonight, here, I will definitely keep myself in good shape for this night. Yi Han pushed open the house door with both hands and loudly announced, She's back. Expecting his sister to rush out joyfully, no one appeared. Yi Han stood there, stunned and stiff, muttering, why is it so quiet? At this moment, the sound of footsteps approached, and it turned out to be Hu Feng. She spoke up, Your sister has already been brought to the riverbank by King Cheng for martial arts training. Yi Han, surprised, asked again, Oh, King Cheng is teaching martial arts to my sister. Hu Feng pointed at his face, adjusting Yi Han's attitude. Absolutely, don't underestimate the little girl you adopted. Although she doesn't know how to cultivate, under her guidance, your sister has reached the condensation stage. Yi Han exclaimed, What? 
his face filled with confusion and hesitation as he said, This, this is. Hu Feng turned away and walked, saying, Don't stand there foolishly. Come inside. Hearing Hu Feng's words, Yi Han felt frustrated, not knowing who the real owner of this house was. Yi Han felt annoyed, thinking, This is my house. But she acts as if she's the mistress. The clock struck three o'clock. Yi Han leaned on the table outside the living room, his eyes with dark circles, staring at the clock for a long time, waiting for the evening to meet Du Wen Nai at her place. He felt disheartened, thinking, It's only three o'clock in the afternoon, and the time until evening seems so long. The alarm clock rang, and Yi Han opened his eyes, looking at the clock. It was only six o'clock now. He slapped his hand on the table, his face filled with eager anticipation. He reassured himself, It's six o'clock now, almost evening. I can finally set off to find Duan Ne. Then he rushed, running straight out of the house, as the wings of a stork fluttered. Simultaneously, Hu Feng brought a plate of fruit to quench his thirst. She said, Lai Han. Before she could finish her sentence, Yi Han's figure passed by as swift as the wind. She put a piece of watermelon into her mouth, wondering, he's in such a hurry, where is he going? Didn't he say he wanted to wait in the room for his sister to come back? Yi Han rode his bike like it was flying on the streets, arriving at the gate of Du Wen Ni's house. He quickly made a sharp turn, then braked, pushing the door open and rushing into her house. While running, he said, Du Wen Ni, I'm here. Without ringing the doorbell or any signal, he leaped into the gate of the girl's house. Yi Han sneaked up to the second floor, standing in front of Du Wen Ni's room. He gently said, I'm here. Sweat dripping, breathing heavily, Yi Han stood, adjusting his hair and clothes. He thought to himself, seeing Duan Ni, I must not get too excited. I have to stay calm. As soon as he finished speaking, Duan Ni opened the door. She softly said, You've arrived, huh? Yi Han, not fully prepared mentally, blushed, his nose bleeding almost about to burst, and stammered, Duan Ni, I, I. Duan Nai swung the door wide open to welcome Yi Han. Today, she wore a sexy and alluring nightgown that made him drool. Ignoring Yi Han's presence, Duan Nai blushed and said, What are you standing outside for? Hurry up and come in. Yi Han stepped into the room, securely locking the door behind him. He covered his nose to control his emotions. Yi Han awkwardly said, Yeah, come in, I'll come right away. His face turned red. As soon as he entered the room, the two young people immediately focused on the main task. Yi Han pushed Du Wen Nai onto the bed, and then he took off his shirt. Du Wen Nai looked up at him with sparkling eyes, gently caressed the face of the male lead, and said coyly, Yi Han, you have to treat me well. Yi Han put his hand under her chin, gradually getting closer to her face, and said, Du Wan Ni, I will treat you well forever. Then, what was bound to happen happened. Throughout that night, they exchanged passionate kisses, and their bodies merged into one. Early the next morning, there was an urgent knock on the door. Yi Han woke up, furrowing his brow, and loudly asked, What's that noise? Du and Ni, still half asleep, replied softly. It seems like my grandfather is back. Yi Han responded, Oh, your grandfather is back. Then he suddenly jolted up, looking extremely startled. Your grandfather is back. Unaware of what was happening, Du An Nai said, Yes. Yi Han quickly jumped out of bed, frantically searching for the scattered clothes from the previous night. He hurriedly exclaimed, Where are my underwear? Why can't I find my underwear? Where are my socks? And where did I leave my shoes? Du An Ni, incredibly calm, reassured her boyfriend, Relax, my grandfather rarely comes upstairs. Take your time searching. Yi Han frantically put on clothes wearing a sleeveless shirt on the outside with his pants still unzipped when he suddenly shouted. He carried out his tasks as quickly as possible, struggling to put on his shirt when Du and Ni's grandfather abruptly pushed the door open, exclaiming in astonishment, Yi Han. Stiffening, Yi Han turned away, avoiding eye contact with his girlfriend's grandfather, just grunting in response. Du and Ni's grandfather entered the room, and at that moment, Yi Han's entire being trembled like a frightened rabbit, his face turning pale. In his mind, Du Wan Ni's grandfather thought, normally, he doesn't come upstairs. Yi Han scratched his head, fidgeting with his hands to explain, this matter, 
Jew Elder, I accidentally dirtied my clothes. I actually wanted to take them off to take a quick shower. Duan Ni's grandfather, now visibly agitated, pointed at Yi Han's face and scolded loudly. You treat me like a child with such behavior. Look at yourself. Yi Han stood frozen, not daring to utter a word. He silently thought, it's over, it's really over. Duan Ni's grandfather raised his voice and continued. Your appearance clearly indicates freshly washed, but not yet dried clothes. You've already put them on. Yi Han, in an awkward stance, listened reluctantly. He suddenly snapped to attention, his wide eyes staring at Duan Ni's grandfather, thinking to himself, What is happening? Is the old man suspecting me? Then, Duan Ni's grandfather approached, draping his arm over Yi Han's shoulder, whispering reproachfully, You youngster, truly thoughtless. After returning, you didn't bother to give me a call or come to my house early. You hurry here with damp clothes, not even letting me know for a surprise. Yi Han let out a sigh of relief, smiling in response. Yes, Zhu Elder, I... I did startle you, didn't I? Du and Ni, listening from the bathroom, thought of herself after hearing their conversation, looking at Grandpa's expression. He must have found out, but maybe he just doesn't want Yi Han to feel embarrassed. Du and Ni's grandfather patted Yi Han's shoulder approvingly. Yi Han, your performance this time isn't bad. I've decided to formally accept you as my apprentice. Yi Han, stunned by the announcement, had a bewildered expression, secretly analyzing the situation in his mind. Accept me as an apprentice. Ha! Huh. His face filled with uncertainty as he pondered, Grandpa is the most skilled in antique jade appraisal in the country. Although he has the ability of clairvoyance, when it comes to appraisal, he's just a fledgling. If he really accepts me as an apprentice, then won't I? If only he had finished changing clothes by now, Duan Nai excitedly stepped out, saying, Yi Han, why are you still standing there? Startled, Yi Han stammered, Oh, right. Then, he quickly knelt down, one leg touching the floor, clasping his hands and respectfully addressing Duan Ni's grandfather. Disciple Yi Han pays respects to Master. Duan Ni's grandfather nodded approvingly and continued, It's not necessary for now. I've decided that in a few days, I'll hold a formal ceremony to officially announce to the industry that you are my successor. Yi Han scratched his head, somewhat embarrassed, and mumbled. Well, about that, Ju Elder. Seeing that Yi Han seemed hesitant, Du Wen Ni's grandfather urged, If there's something on your mind, just speak up. Yi Han, with a serious expression, said, All right. He then presented a gigantic jade stone, saying, Grandpa agreed with me. As long as I show outstanding performance in Yunnan, he won't object to me and Du Wen Nai being together. This jade stone is a gift for our engagement. I hope Zhu Elder will accept it. He raised the jade stone with great solemnity. Duan Nai was extremely surprised, her eyes widening as she covered her mouth. She said, Wait Yi Han, is this officially proposing marriage to Grandpa? Duan Ni's grandfather gently stroked his long beard, seemingly pleased, and said, Yi Han, if you want to get engaged to Duan Nai, you can't just casually present a jade stone. Suddenly, the eyes of Zhu's grandfather widened to the maximum. He made a sound of surprise, taking the jade stone in his hand, scrutinizing it with a shocked and astonished expression. He hesitated before saying, This entire jade piece seems, compared to the one you said Duan Nai brought a few days ago, much more valuable and of better quality. Yi Han proudly replied, That's natural. Truly good things, I only keep for Duan Nai, and no one else. Duan Ni standing behind, wore an extremely happy expression for the affection her boyfriend showed. She called out, Ye Han, then stepped forward, holding his hand, and continued, You are really good to me. Hearing this, Ye Han felt elated, jokingly saying, Well, it's just a small matter. Zhu's grandfather had already approved of this prospective son-in-law. He turned and walked out of the room, saying as he went, All right, Ye Han, I won't bother you young ones. I'll go ahead and prepare for the apprentice acceptance ceremony in the coming days. Suddenly, Yi Han called out, Wait, Ju Elder, I have a suggestion. I wonder if we can bring the jade piece that Duan Nai brought a few days ago and carve it during the apprentice acceptance ceremony. Keeping the best quality jade as a symbol for the Zhu family would enhance the family's reputation in the gemstone industry.
Plus, before selling it, we can increase the family's prestige and earn a significant amount of money. Upon hearing Yi Han's suggestion, Du's grandfather seemed quite pleased. He stroked his beard, smiling, and replied, Mom, not a bad idea. Then, Zhu's grandfather looked into the distance, expressing his thoughts. Gay Han, you must understand that these two jade pieces can be considered of the same level. At the very least, their value should be upwards of tens of billions within the industry. You surely want everyone to know that such precious items are in our Zhu family, asserting the Zhu family as the most powerful conglomerate in the gemstone industry. Yi Han waved his hand, correcting two points where Zhu's grandfather was mistaken. Firstly, he clarified that he didn't intend to place the jade pieces in the Zhu family, but rather gift them to the family. Secondly, while the Zhu family might not currently be the strongest, with him around, he believed the family would become the most influential force in the gemstone industry. Impressed by Yi Han's well-reasoned arguments, Zhu's grandfather laughed heartily and said, You're quite remarkable, full of spirit. Then, both of them shared a joyful laughter with Zhu's grandfather repeatedly praising Yi Han's proposal, saying, Approved. Du and I also felt touched, silently thinking, With Yi Han by my side, it's really good. As the sky darkened, the crescent moon rose to its zenith. Duan Ni, wearing a cool nightgown, stood at the door, smiling brightly, and waved to her boyfriend. Remember to come here tomorrow. Yi Han, disheveled and wearing wrinkled clothes, his face worn with exhaustion, replied, Hi. I need a few more days of rest. As Yi Han walked, he thought to himself, Zhu's grandfather mentioned preparing invitations, but I wonder what preparations Duan Nai is making a day ahead. She's certainly proactive. Yi Han navigated home with the guidance of Google Maps, murmuring, There's a turn ahead. Reduce speed. Up ahead, a familiar figure came into view. It turned out to be Officer Ruan. She was turning her head, looking at Yi Han's car. Suddenly, Yi Han shouted in alarm, be careful. He slammed the brakes, and the car stopped just in time, leaving only about half a meter between the car and Officer Ruan. It was a close call. Officer Ruan stood still, squinting, and made an exclamation. Her left hand hugged her stomach, while her right hand shielded her eyes from the glaring headlights. Her face appeared strained, as if she were unwell. Yi Han sat in the car, breathing a sigh of relief, silently thinking, that was too close almost had an accident. Fortunately, my abilities have improved recently, and my reaction speed has become faster. Officer Ruin sat down on the road, still hugging her stomach, her face looking pale and strained. She softly said, It hurts. It hurts too much. Yi Han opened the car door and stepped out, quickly inquiring about Officer Ruin. Miss, are you okay? Do you need any help? Seeing Officer Ruin's face, Yi Han was surprised and asked, Is it you? Officer Ruin also seemed surprised and replied, Is it you? Yi Han hastily reminded her, Officer Ruin, why are you out so late at night? It's very dangerous. Officer Ruin looked uncomfortable and said, I don't need your concern. With a grunt, Yi Han noticed that Officer Ruin still appeared uneasy. He continued to inquire, Do you feel uncomfortable in your body? Officer Ruin, showing strength, stood up to continue walking, coldly saying, no, it's none of your business. I have something to attend to. Yi Han watched her back and wondered, Why does Ruin Ling Kyo's body feel so heavy? Let me take a look. He then used the Yin Yang Divine Eyes to see through Officer Ruin's body. Before him appeared two ugly-headed demons, hiding in Officer Ruin's abdomen. Shocked, he exclaimed, What is this? Yi Han sat down on the ground, stiffened, while Officer Ruin, seeing this, asked, What's wrong? You're a strong and mighty man. Why are you acting like this? Aren't you going home? Yi Han pointed at her abdomen and said, Do you feel pain in your waist right now, similar to menstrual pain, but more intense? The police officer, astonished, asked, How do you know? Yi Han stood up, wearing a serious expression, and asked, Did you go to a place with heavy negative energy today, like a cemetery or somewhere similar? Police officer Ruin honestly replied, I, I was on patrol and checked dead bodies today. It's quite normal. Is there anything wrong? Yi Han stood in contemplation, thinking, I can't let her know that there might be ghosts or demons following her, or she'll have psychological shadows in the future. Seeing Yi Han not responding, 
Police officer Ruin urged him. Li Han, what did you say? Do I have something unclean attached to me? Yi Han waved his hand, smiling. No, it's nothing. Heavy negative energy is not unusual, and combined with the fact that your body is feeling cold, that's why your stomach hurts. Let me help you a bit. Yi Han approached, patting police officer Ruin on the shoulder. She asked, How does a man like you understand women's ailments? Yi Han laughed and replied, Just a basic understanding. Then, Yi Han pushed police officer Ruin towards his car, speaking as he walked. Standing on the road like this is too dangerous. Please get into my car first. I'll immediately help alleviate your pain, and then take you home. Subsequently, police officer Ruin got into Yi Han's car, pulling up her clothes around her abdomen, and leaning back against the seat. Yi Han used his powers to dispel the demonic entities affecting police officer Ruin. She frowned and reminded him, Yi Han. Be serious with your treatment or else. I'll burn your eyes. Yi Han replied, Rest assured, the medical profession treats everyone equally. From our perspective as healers, there is no gender distinction. Everyone is a patient. Yi Han inserted acupuncture needles across the abdominal area of police officer Ruan. The demonic entities within her abdomen writhed and groaned in pain. Yi Han withdrew each needle one by one and said, The last needle. Their expressions, if viewed from an external perspective, could easily lead to misunderstandings. Police officer Ruin sat in the car, constantly moaning. Ah, it's hot. Too hot. Yi Han, with a cold expression, stated, I just used positive gang energy to dispel the negative energy in your waist area. Feeling heat in your body is normal. You can undress a bit for comfort if needed. Hearing Yi Han's suggestion, police officer Ruin stood up abruptly immediately giving Yi Han a ruthless slap. She scolded him vehemently. You scoundrel, I know you just want to take advantage of my body. Yi Han covered his face, crying miserably, attempting to explain. I just provided a simple solution to help relieve your discomfort, truly without any other intentions. After a strenuous session of treatment for police officer Ruin, Yi Han attentively drove her back to the villa. Before bidding farewell, Yi Han kindly advised her, Go back and drink some warm water with a bit of honey. That should be sufficient. Police officer Ruin gratefully expressed her thanks. Thank you so much for today. As she left, Yi Han called her back. Oh, by the way. Yi Han seriously warned police officer Ruin. If you keep going to abnormal places like that, it won't be just a matter of catching a cold. You must be careful. Police officer Ruin promptly agreed, I understand. She secretly developed some impressions of Yi Han. Yi Han is reminding me because someone might want to harm me. He's showing concern for me. Transitioning to the early morning of the next day, after a long night, Yi Han woke up feeling a bit groggy. He glanced at his phone and was slightly startled. It's already 7 o'clock. I haven't had a chance to visit Big Brother Zhao Haotian since returning. I need to go see him now. While putting on his clothes, Yi Han continued to ponder. I wonder how he's been recovering lately. Soon after, Yi Han swiftly arrived at Hao Tan's door. He knocked and spoke loudly. Brother Zhao, Du Du is back. Upon opening the door, Yi Han was immediately taken aback by the scene before him. He noticed bloodstains on the table. Bloodstains. What exactly happened? Subsequently, Yi Han began using the Yin Yang Divine Eyes and saw everything that transpired in the room. The sight of Zhao Hao Tan being kicked, blood streaming from his mouth, left Yi Han silently thinking. It seems Brother Zhao and Du Du have run into trouble. Without hesitation, Yi Han dialed Hu Feng's number. A relaxed voice answered from the other end. A busy person like you, not living with your girlfriend and still finding time to call me. How surprising. Yi Han solemnly spoke to Hu Feng. I need your help investigating someone. Hu Feng, seizing the opportunity, quickly laid out her condition. If you want my help, it's simple. Join the safety bureau. I'm concerned, Yi Han continued. In an hour, I want to know Zhao Hao Tan's whereabouts. If the investigation yields results, I'll join the safety bureau. If not, your bureau won't have the evidence. Hearing this, Hu Feng was a bit surprised. You want to find Zhao Hao Tan? She earnestly warned Yi Han. Yi Han, the grievances involving Zhao Hao Tian, with your current strength, it's not something you can meddle in. I advise against it. Before she could finish her sentence, Yi Han interrupted, just get to work. Then, 
Yi Han hung up without saying another word. Seeing Yi Han's resolute attitude, Hu Feng silently thought, Yi Han, I hope you won't regret this in the future. Quickly, an hour later, Hu Feng brought the documents and information about Zhao Hao Tan's whereabouts to Yi Han, who was waiting outside the gate. She informed him, We haven't found Zhao Hao Tan's location yet, but we've obtained information about his sister, Zhao Du Du. Yi Han gracefully accepted the information packet and expressed his gratitude, saying, Impressive speed. Much appreciated. Hu Feng persisted in reminding Yi Han, Yi Han, I must remind you that even though Zhao Hao Tan committed the offense years ago, it's challenging for us, even with our security agency, to intervene in this matter. Your current strength is still too weak. Yi Han replied, No need to say much. Yi Han's principle is not to stand by and watch when someone close is in trouble. Hu Feng reluctantly stopped advising, I know I can't persuade you. Yi Han then drove away, asking Hu Feng to take care of his house. After some time, Yi Han arrived at Lin He village in Sujan province. During the drive, he expressed concern for Du Du, saying, Du Du, make sure nothing happens to you. Upon reaching the village, the locals marveled at Yi Han's car, commenting, This car is too big and really beautiful. What day is it that two luxurious cars have come here? Hearing a girl with a woven straw bag say this, Yi Han inquired, Are you saying someone else came here yesterday? She replied, Exactly just now. Four people in a car like this arrived and went to Mr. Sun's house at the beginning of the village. Hearing this, Yi Han firmly grasped the sword. He thanked the green-haired girl and left, still holding onto the sword. The girl with green hair exclaimed, Is it a sword? On the other side, near Sun Bumi's house, Kao Yang sneered and said, Sun Bu Mi, you've retired from the martial world, yet you have to suffer because of Zhao Hao Tian. Be wise and hand over Zhao Du Du to us. Sun Bu Mi firmly held his spear and replied, Zhao Hao Tian once saved my life, and I must handle his matters. Kao Yang, despite being ranked 29th among martial artists, you still rely on external forces like the Celestial Sect. Kao Yang laughed loudly, showing no shame as he retorted, Immediate threats are the true heroes. Now that Hu Tian Zun has dominated the Southwest, eliminating Zhao Hao Tian is just a matter of time. Sun Bu Mi, if you want to live a few more years, I advise you not to get involved in this matter. Sun Bu Mi stood his ground, saying, If you want to take someone away, use your strength to solve it. Then, Sun Bu Mi jumped up and attacked Kao Yang. Kao Yang remained calm, smiling. When you withdrew from the martial world, you were also ranked 29th. The man started his counterattack, saying, I really want to see if you've regressed over these years. However, looking at Sun Bumi's expression, it was evident that he was somewhat weaker. Seeing this, Kao Yang's subordinates quickly attacked Sun Bumi, shouting, Kill this old man. A loud explosion echoed within Sun Bumi's house, and he fell down with blood pouring out. Du Du hurriedly supported him and asked, Mr. Sun, are you okay? Kao Yang approached Sun Bu Mi, raising his sword triumphantly. Someone who doesn't know their own strength, go and meet your end. Sun Bu Mi was now in complete dismay, muttering, It's over. In this desperate situation, Du Du stood in front of Sun Bu Mi, saying, Mr. Sun. Sun quickly intervened, No, Du Du, run quickly. At that moment, a sword blocked Kao Yang's path, and he looked around in confusion, asking, who is this? Seeing Yi Han's figure, Kao Yang shouted, Who are you? And why do you have the dragon taming sword? Yi Han swiftly turned around, pointing his sword directly at Kao Yang. I want your life. Kao Yang engaged in combat with Yi Han, displaying contempt. Hemph, with a bit of cultivation, you dare to use this sword. Don't you feel ashamed? Yi Han was knocked back by him, and Kao Yang ordered his subordinates, Deal with this guy. Snatch the dragon taming sword. I'll go kill that old man first. Sun Bu Mi struggled to stand, saying, If it weren't for you relying on numbers earlier, I wouldn't have been injured. Kao Yang, to kill me, you're not qualified. Kao Yang, hearing this, rushed to attack Sun Bu Mi. Try me, you'll find out soon enough. Yi Han quietly stood aside, observing the battle. He wiped the blood from his mouth and realized, it seems my strength is still too weak. I couldn't even handle one of his moves. 
Se Liang's followers eagerly attacked Yi Han, saying, Kid, now is not the time to be disheartened. Go meet for death. At this moment, Yi Han activated the Yin Yang Divine Eyes, calmly standing amidst the encircling enemies and thought, Hemph, the Yin Yang Divine Eyes can enhance my sensing ability at a speed beyond your imagination. Now, in my eyes, your speed is as slow as a crawling turtle. Kao Yang's subordinates, one by one, fell to the swift strikes of Yi Han's sword. They were bewildered, exclaiming, How is this possible? He just unsheathed his sword, and the speed of his swordsmanship surpasses Kao Yang's. Once the confusion settled, each of them collapsed before the blade of Yi Han. Afterward, Yi Han quietly observed the situation on Sun Bumi's side, thinking, I wonder how it's going over there. Meanwhile, Kao Yang sneered, Go to hell. He lunged forward with a cunning strike. Sun Bu Mi, caught off guard and feeling fatigued, managed to defend himself slightly. Sun Bu Mi grimaced and urged Yi Han. Young man, quickly take Du Du away from here. I'll stay and hold him off. Before he could finish his sentence, Kao Yang charged forward aggressively, cursing. Old man, you should worry about yourself first. His sword thrust was powerful, and Sun Bu Mi strained to lift his weapon in defense, knowing he was at his limit. Unexpectedly, Yi Han rushed forward and stood before the elder, brandishing his sword, saying, Senior, rest assured, I have a way to deal with him. The elder was genuinely surprised. However, Kao Yang's combat skills were extraordinary. He leaped straight into the midst of the two, keeping Sun Bu Mi occupied. Yi Han, caught off guard, was also scolded by Kao Yang. Hemp, ignorant fool. Kao Yang took advantage and delivered a kick that sent Sun flying far away. Turning back to Yi Han, he declared, I'll deal with you first. Ha 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 ha. Despite the pain, Sun Bu Mi tried to warn, Run fast, you can't dodge his sword. Kao Yang had now unleashed his Myriad sword technique, rushing dangerously close to Yi Han. With no chance to escape, facing the onslaught was the only option. Yi Han's anger surged. Yin Yang, divine eyes, activate. In the midst of the incoming rain of swords, Yi Han boldly stepped forward, wielding the dragon taming sword. His aura burned the surrounding space, avoiding all the rapidly approaching swords. Yi Han charged, thrusting his sword into Kao Yong's chest, leaving him astonished and incredulous. He groaned, How could you dodge my sword? Sun Bu Mi seized the opportunity and approached Yi Han, saying, Young man, you fight well. Let's team up and finish him off. However, Kao Yong, quick-witted, maneuvered skillfully, avoiding Yi Han's sword with a twist, declaring, Trying to kill me, ha! Huh? It's not that easy. Despite Yi Han's utmost effort to restrain him, Kao Yong was too strong. The wretched fellow managed to kick Yi Han away. Sun Bu Mi was equally surprised. Before he could land a blow, Kao Yong swiftly escaped. He even loudly threatened, daring to offend the celestial sect. Both of you will eventually die. Yi Han watched regretfully, missed the chance to kill him. Sun Bu Mi also lay down to rest. In reality, his strength might not guarantee the defeat of Kao Yong. He said, Young brother, what's your name? And why did you come here? Yi Han, equally exhausted, wiped the blood stains off his face and smiled, replying, I'm Yi Han. Du Du, now running towards them, filled with gratitude, called out, Yi Han. The elder son Bu Mi, surprised, asked, Do you two know each other? Du Du rushed to Yi Han, crying in his arms, Yi Han. I was so scared just now. Yi Han, feeling pity for Du Du, comforted her. It's okay now. It's okay. Luckily, I arrived in time. Suddenly, after just a moment, the sky brightened again following the battle. The space returned to normal, and the scene became as tranquil as any other day. Thanks to Du Du's care, Sun Bu Mi's wounds had been carefully bandaged, and he now felt much relieved. He asked, So, you are a friend of Zhao Hao Tian? Du Du slowly explained, and then recounted to Yi Han. Yi Han, my brother unexpectedly turned negative. What should we do next? Seeing Du Du's concern, Yi Han had already planned ahead. Due to her difficult circumstances, he stepped forward and said, No news is good news. If we can't find Hao Tian, the celestial sect won't either. He must be safe. What matters now is us. Yi Han held Du Du's hand to comfort her. Sun Bu Mi nodded in agreement. You're right. 
This place has been compromised. We need to leave quickly. If the Celestial Sect finds us, we won't be able to escape. The words of Senior Sun sound very reasonable. Yi Han gently pats Du Du's shoulder and advises Du Du, quickly go organize your belongings. After that, come with me to the city of Shanghai. Ultimately, I have some acquaintances there, which will make it safer. Du Du agrees immediately, making Senior Sun feel somewhat relieved. Du Du now has someone to rely on. Yi Han also reminds Senior Sun, Senior, would you like to join us? Sun Bu Mi confidently points his finger and declares loudly, I have promised Zhao Hao Tan to protect Du Du. I won't go back on my word. Yi Han responds cheerfully, That's settled then. Let's set out quickly. Finally, everyone finishes packing their belongings and immediately sets off without any delay. In his heart, Yi Han feels reassured. Senior Sun Bu Mi is ranked 29th among martial arts experts. He is undoubtedly powerful and will be a valuable aid. Curious Du Du asks, Big Brother Yi Han, where will we stay when we reach the city of Shanghai? Yi Han replies, Of course, we'll stay at my place. The outside world is dangerous right now, so we should stick together for mutual support. Sun Bu Mi, without hesitation, inquires, Hey, young friend Yi Han, do you have any wine at your place? Ha ha, senior requests it. This old man, who has been conservative for 30 years, has decided to return to the martial world. Maybe it's time for a change in habits. Yi Han smirks and replies, Certainly, there's good wine to treat senior. Hi hi. Sun Bu Mi scratches his head sheepishly. He he, originally wanted to retire for long-term cultivation, but now decided to return to the martial world. The intention to avoid alcohol is just impossible to control. It seems the mental state is still too weak. Ha ha ha. Yi Han sympathizes with the senior's decision. Regardless, your martial arts skills are commendable. Someone like you, even with a few flaws, is still remarkable. The three of them continue their cheerful conversation, walking towards the city of Shanghai. It doesn't take much time before they bring senior Sun Bu Mi and Du Du to Yi Han's house. His sturdy car is parked in front of the gate. Yi Han eagerly invites the two inside. Bu Mi and Du Du are impressed by the sight of the house. Before they even reach the door, Hu Feng has been waiting for a while. She speaks up, Oh my, the playboy of the house, just went out for a while, and already brought back a beautiful lady. Hearing her words, Yi Han feels awkward, unsure of how to explain the situation. Du Du takes the initiative to step forward and greet. She raises her hand, her face smiling though slightly embarrassed. Um, hello everyone. My name is Du Du. Senior son Bu Mi, in particular, seems a bit cautious from the beginning. He silently senses something about Hu Feng. This girl is not simple. Hu Feng doesn't dare to make things difficult for Yi Han. She stepped aside to let him in. Yi Han seems to still be pondering the current issue, but as he is lost in thought, Hu Feng reminds him with a teasing tone. Don't act like I didn't warn you. Du An is inside. Hearing this news, Yi Han is startled. What? Duan Nai is here already? Realizing there's no time to waste, Yi Han rushes in. He doesn't forget to instruct Hu Feng. Hu Feng, room for senior son and Du Du. Please arrange it for them. Hu Feng watches the young man and sighs. Have you noticed that men in this world are not something good? Du Du, you must be careful in the future, understand? Du Du nods discreetly. Um, yes. Sun Bu Mi's judgment proves accurate. Hu Feng, she is not a simple person. But just as he remains vigilant, Hu Feng targets Sun directly with a teasing remark. He gi, I didn't mention you. Sun can only respond with a grumble. Inside the house, Duan Nai is extremely irritated. Yi Han walks out without saying a word. She furrows her brows, lips tightly pressed, hands on hips, legs spread, looking sternly at Yi Han, demanding an explanation. Yi Han, that flirtatious person in your house. I've been eagerly awaiting your affection day and night. Hu Feng said you went to find another girl. If that's not true, quickly explain everything to me. Yi Han hesitates on what to say to extinguish the flames of anger within Duan Nai. He can only silently curse Hu Feng. Damn it, I will definitely find an opportunity to settle the score with her. Approaching Duan Ni, gently Yi Han says, Regarding that matter, Duan Ni, let's discuss it slowly. First, don't get agitated. Listen to my explanation. 
However, Yi Han knows that pacifying an angered woman is harder than climbing a mountain. Duan Mi tosses her head and walks away in a huff, saying, I don't want to hear it. Yi Han has to explain immediately, in a pitiful tone. Oh my, I also have my own troubles. I just went to rescue a friend's younger sister, got injured in the chest. It still hurts a bit now. I need to go back to the room and change out of these blood-stained clothes. With just that, Duan Di's small heart softens instantly. Concerned, she looks at him and asks, What? You're injured? Where? Quickly leading Yi Han to the room, Duan Ni, as she walks, expresses her sympathy. Where are you injured? Let me see. Yi Han pretends to resist. Don't move. Let me go to the room first. Seeing this scene, Yi Han's older sister walks over and, witnessing the situation, expresses extreme worry, exclaiming, Yi Han, are you injured? Hu Feng interrupts with a teasing smile. Look at his robust appearance and he says he's injured. How amusing. Hearing Yi Han's groans from the room, ouch, ouch, his elder sister grew increasingly concerned for her little brother. Determined to check on him, she approached and inquired about his condition. Mrs. Hu Feng leaned in and whispered in her ear, your little brother is actually at his healthiest right now, playing with little Miss Duan Nai by the fire. You don't need to worry, ha ha ha. His sister quickly grasped the situation and nodded, saying, Oh, I see. King Cheng, holding Xiao Bai innocently in her arms, approached Hu Feng and asked, Mrs. Hu Feng, what does it mean to have abundant vitality? Xiao Bai seems so lively, isn't he? Hu Feng, taken aback by King Cheng's innocence, chose her words carefully, saying, Oh, well, you're still young and might not understand. Returning to the room peacefully, after hearing Yi Han recount the entire story, Du Wan Nei finally understood and was somewhat surprised. She asked Yi Han, Is everything really as you said? Yi Han nodded and replied, Certainly. We don't know what happened to big brother Hao Tian now. I must take good care of Du Du. Du and Ni, moved by her boyfriend's selflessness, despite witnessing it many times before, couldn't help but feel compassion. She reassured him, Yi Han, if you need anything, just tell me any time. Du and Nai wanted him to share his thoughts and burdens with her, saying, I can help you too. Suddenly, his younger sister exclaimed upon seeing General Yi Han abruptly undressing. Duan Nai blushed and pointed, asking with a stuttering voice, Why, why are you suddenly taking off your clothes like that? Her imagination ran wild with thoughts of passionate encounters. Yi Han signaled to lower the volume, saying, Speak softly. Someone might hear us outside. He approached, firmly holding his sister's hand. Duan Ni, considering this as part of the young man's routine, Gently reminded, Yi Han, don't cause trouble. It's daytime now. Yi Han disregarded her, pressing her down and said, Speak softly. There are people outside. Duan Ni obediently followed Yi Han's instructions. The two engaged in their passionate play, with Duan Nai still shy and blushing. But nonetheless, she was ecstatic. Yi Han always paid attention, reassuring her, Relax, everything's fine. A few hours later, the two, tired from their play, descended to the main floor. Duan Ni, in high spirits, announced, Yi Han, I'm here to inform you of some news. The ceremony to officially accept you as a disciple will be held tomorrow. Yi Han, surprised by this, asked, Oh, do I need to prepare anything? Isn't tomorrow also the day for the auction of the natural jade pendant? Duan Nai had arranged everything for Yi Han, insisting, But you have to leave to host the banquet. By then, you'll become grandfather's successor, and tomorrow's party will naturally revolve around you. Yi Han, not wanting to make things difficult for his beloved, smiled and replied, Ha 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 ha, don't worry, just wait and see how your husband performs. Hu Feng, upon seeing the couple descend, immediately sensed the intense aroma of love and affection, remarking, Oh my, indeed youthful, it's been quite a while. Knowing how sensitive Mrs. Hu Feng's sixth sense was, Yi Han pretended to be casually indifferent, saying, Ha ha ha, I've suffered quite serious injuries. Meanwhile, Duan Ni, blushing and embarrassed, made an excuse. Well, there's something I need to attend to at home. As she spoke, she swiftly hopped onto her motorbike and disappeared, her words echoing. Take your time chatting. The next day, celebratory fireworks crackled in the sky. 
Yi Han parked his car in front of the Grand Hall for the party. He entered with great enthusiasm, exclaiming, Wow, this announcement ceremony is truly magnificent. I didn't expect it to come so quickly. As soon as he stepped inside, a secretary approached with respectful demeanor, noticing him from a distance, and inquired, Is Mr. Yi Han here? Yi Han stepped forward, responding, Yes, it's me. The secretary introduced herself. My name is Mo Shu. I'm the assistant to Chief Ju Duan Nai. She's currently busy inside, so she asked me to come here to welcome Mr. Yi. Hearing this, Yi Han felt proud of his girlfriend. He casually acknowledged the introduction. However, he had always behaved casually, not adhering to the formal etiquette of such occasions, so he just nodded and walked past. This puzzled Mo Shu. Meeting Yi Han for the first time, she couldn't form a favorable impression. Mo Shu furrowed her brows and wondered, This person looks so laid back. Why does Duan Ni value him so much? Inside the hall, Chief Duan Nai was busy checking the entire program team, instructing, Wang Yao, try adjusting the sound. Su Xi, quickly fix the position of the stage lights. I still feel it's a bit dim. Oh, and Ru Ru, check the communication lines at the back to prevent any mishaps. Engrossed in her work, Yi Han, from a distance, called out, Duan Ne. She turned around, seeing her boyfriend's excited face. However, upon closer inspection, with Yi Han's eccentric attire, Duan Nai exclaimed, Oh my, why are you dressed like this today? She urgently signaled her secretary, Mo Shu, saying, Mo Shu, quickly find something for Yi Han, and bring him a suit. Mo Shu hastily ran off to fulfill the request. Duan Nai walked up firmly holding Yi Han's hand with a serious expression, cautioning, When you go on stage later, you must perform well. Don't embarrass me in front of everyone, understand? Yi Han teasingly pinched his beloved's cheek, unsure if he had heard Duan Ni's serious instructions moments ago. He responded, Relax, you still don't know my capabilities. Always conscious of her image, as the company's chief, Duan Nai promptly intervened, saying, Step back, don't mess around, there are many important people here. Mo Shu quickly brought a suit for Yi Han. Duan Nai snatched it and handed it to him, urging, Hurry up and change. You are about to go on stage for the presentation. The ceremony had begun, and the audience in the stands was now filled with distinguished guests and business partners of Duan Nai. When it was Yi Han's turn to speak, he stepped forward and spoke in the microphone. Hello, everyone. Thank you for taking the time to attend the auction event of the Zhu family conglomerate. I express my gratitude to all of you for being here today. Before Yi Han could finish, someone abruptly interrupted rudely from below. Don't talk too much. The crowd shouted from the stands. We're here to buy jade pendants. Quickly bring out the frog-shaped jade for us to see. What's the delay? Hurry up, don't waste time with unnecessary words. From behind the stage, Duan Nei and her secretary, Mo Xu, started worrying about Yi Han, observing him since a while ago. Duan Nai whispered to herself, I wonder if Yi Han can handle the situation. It seemed that in this auction, there were few collaborators and many troublemakers. Yi Han immediately spoke in a slightly hoarse voice. If you all are so eager, I won't waste much more of your valuable time. However, before we begin, let's take a look at a small item, auctioning a piece of ordinary jade. The troublemakers immediately clamored, Stop with the unnecessary words. We just want to see the jade pendant with the pearl inside the toad's mouth. Indeed, a small gemstone company like Ju's family can't possibly have any precious jewels. Yi Han dismissed the trivial words of the troublemakers, calmly continuing. Although this is considered an ordinary jade, its starting price is already 15 million. If anyone here doesn't want to see it, feel free to leave. Yi Han delivered these concise words, his face showing a trace of dominance. He then looked directly at the troublemakers and added, Our Zhu family's treasure conglomerate won't be bothered by such matters. The unruly group, having been warned, now sat silently like a group of obedient puppies. Mo Xu, the secretary, now truly expanded her vision in the face of Yi Han's eloquence. She thought, His ability to control the situation is truly formidable. Though his words carry a hint of sarcasm, he doesn't lose the basic courtesy preventing others from causing trouble and making them feel uneasy. Duan Ni, being a fan of her idol, couldn't help but admire Yi Han, her eyes shining like stars. She remarked, 
you never really understood the charm of Yi Han, Mo Xu. Mo Xu, not daring to contradict her boss, nodded in agreement. People in love can be a bit blinded. Observing how Duan Nai couldn't take her eyes off Yi Han every moment, Mo Xu, the secretary, pondered, I wonder what the male employees in the Zhu family's conglomerate, who usually see the cold expression of their teen leader, would think when they see her like this. On the stage, the first auction item was now being presented. Yi Han introduced, These two bracelets were found in the Koho Mountain and have the function of enhancing positive energy. The audience seemed restless upon hearing Yi Han's introduction, prompting questions among them. What does upbraiding positive energy mean? We don't understand. Can you explain it more clearly? Yi Han then skillfully turned the question into an entertaining performance, saying, That's an excellent question. What we call upgrading positive energy is exactly these bracelets. If a man wears them, women won't be able to resist, and if a woman wears them, men won't be able to resist her. So both men and women should wear them together. In response to the audience's humorous question, Yi Han playfully blinked and charmingly replied, It's specifically designed for an unbearable bed. This witty response elicited laughter and applause from the audience, acknowledging Yi Han's entertaining hosting skills. A young lady, excited by the mention of beds, exclaimed, With such good items, we should search the Gu Hu Mountain more. Yi Han, catching the drift, responded, If there are too many of these items, even the fiery mountain won't bear it, not to mention the fire within a woman's heart. The crowd burst into laughter again, appreciating the clever use of the microphone by the charismatic host. Now, without the need for further persuasion, guests eagerly bid against each other pushing the prices to sky-high levels. Even for the bed, they were willing to pay a fortune. Someone exclaimed, I want to buy these bracelets. I bid 16 million. I also want to bid 17 million for this pair. 17.5 million. As the bidding war continued, a wealthy individual with bidding number 69 unexpectedly shocked everyone, saying, I bid 100 million. The assertive statement made the excited crowd break into a nervous sweat as they turned their heads to see the confident bidder. This wealthy individual addressed the audience with self-assurance, stating, He, these gems are mine. I'll have my wife try them on when we get back. After waiting for a while with no additional bids, Yi Han decisively slammed the gavel, declaring, Sold. Mo Xu, the secretary, muttered to herself, recalling, this pair of gemstone bracelets, if I remember correctly, was bought by the old tycoon from a roadside vendor ten years ago, and it was only around 50000 at that time. Yi Han, it's unbelievable that it can be sold for a hundred million now. Du Wen Ni, proud of her boyfriend, confided to her secretary. Next, you'll see how impressive my Yi Han is. Mo Xu, acknowledging the talents of her colleague, replied, Indeed, he is quite impressive although his stage performance has a touch of flirtation. Back on the stage, Yi Han gestured, capturing the attention of the audience. He announced, All right, the time for heating up the atmosphere in the hall has gone well, and the highly anticipated item that everyone is waiting for has been prepared. The audience held their breath, eyes fixed on the stage, for just a moment. Yi Han then clapped his hands, signaling the hostess to bring out the treasure for the event. He declared, Next up is the piece of jade with a pearl inside. Please enjoy. Two receptionists were selected to carry the jade statue, also included in the selection of outstanding beauties, enhancing the aristocratic charm of the Zhu family style. As the jade statue was brought out, Yi Han personally approached, his movements precise and without any excess. Yi Han immediately lifted the cloth covering the jade, revealing the famous gemstone in front of the entire audience. The jade was intricately carved adhering to the standard of a jade toad clasping a pearl, shimmering and captivating anyone who laid eyes on it. The wealthy guests below couldn't help but gasp in awe, beholding an object of such beauty that had never been seen before. It's unbelievably beautiful. Even Yi Han, seeing this jade for the first time, couldn't help but marvel at its beauty. The craftsmanship is perfect. The skill of Zhu's family is indeed extraordinary, seemingly unparalleled in the world. It seems even I might regret not buying it. But without dwelling on his thoughts any longer, Yi Han regained his composure and spoke decisively. Ladies and gentlemen, the jade toe with the pearl is now before you, and each of you must have your own valuation. Therefore, our Jew family has decided that there will be no starting bid for this priceless item. 
The guests were astonished at this unusual turn of events. What is this? No starting bid. I have never heard of an auction like this. Well, considering that this item is truly a priceless treasure, it makes sense that there is no way to set a starting price for it. The 29th wealthy individual paid no attention to how others perceived him. Excited about the jade piece, he exclaimed loudly, Ha ha ha, since there's no starting bid, I'll start with a thousand dong. Thinking they were dealing with a sophisticated and wealthy figure, the crowd was shocked when they heard the name and the bidding amount. Everyone rolled their eyes and uttered curses. Where did this annoying fellow come from? Detestable, truly detestable. People grouped together based on their belongings, ready to confront this useless person. What are you doing here? Causing trouble? Get out quickly, it's absurd to bid a thousand. However, amidst the commotion, a sinister character stepped forward, using his peculiar glasses to scrutinize the jade piece on the stand. Not only that, he coolly announced, Stop arguing, I bid two billion. Can anyone top that? The crowd was left agape. Two billion? Living within a crowd was challenging. Whether bidding a thousand or two billion, criticism abounded. What an absurdly high bid for the first time. I was planning to offer around 200 million, and you come in with 2 billion. That completely outstrips everyone else's purchasing power. What kind of joke is this? The young fellow who bid a thousand seems more trustworthy to me. While the crowd below was still in chaos, on the upper floor, Ning Feng and his subordinates quietly observed every development in the auction. His younger brother bit his lip, resentful as he recalled past events. Vang Han, that damn guy. If it weren't for me infiltrating your Tian Nan gang, this Jade Peets would have been mine by now. His bodyguard encouraged him with a sly grin. Young master, no need to rush. Sooner or later, that item will be ours. Ning Feng had already laid out a strategy beforehand and gave the command. He, let's casually bid a bit higher. Announce a price of five million to the outside. His subordinate nodded reluctantly. Sure, our underground network is in need of this Jade Peets. If we can acquire it, it will be a significant achievement for us. Ning Feng reassured, Don't worry, if we can't buy it, there's always another way. In the VIP seats, two individuals from a royal lineage were also keen on the jade piece, discussing between themselves. Princess Alice is beautiful, and our Dania conglomerate must acquire this jade. Princess Alice spoke up, Rest assured, we've prepared enough cash. This jade piece will definitely be ours. Yi Han took advantage of a moment of inactivity to observe the audience, casually glancing up at the high stands. Ah, turns out it's Ning Feng's younger brother. He's interested in this as well. Yi Han started to feel amused, smiling as he continued. Moments ago, the Treasure Dynasty Ning family conglomerate bid five billion. I wonder if anyone on the scene can top that price. His statement hit the wealthy individuals below like a lightning bolt. Everyone fell silent with no one daring to bid higher. Yi Han continued to tap the gavel slowly. Five billion once, five billion twice, five billion price. Yi Han shouted loudly last call, but within, he still awaited, almost bringing the gavel down for the third time. When from the VIP box, Alice, the Harris of the Dania conglomerate, pulled back the curtain and placed a bid. One hundred billion. Dania conglomerate bids one hundred billion a bid that could be described as mind-blowing, making the other wealthy individuals seem like small clams. The others couldn't believe this outrageous reality. 100 billion is Dania conglomerate out of their minds. Buying this item would practically deplete half of their fortune. How can they shout 100 billion? You can't understand. This is a way for the wealthy to flaunt their brand. Once they secure this item, Dania conglomerate might have saved hundreds of billions in advertising. At the very least, they'd saved a considerable amount. Yi Han acknowledged the new bid and asked the audience, is there anyone willing to bid higher? In his mind, he thought, perhaps this is an unbeatable price, beyond my expectations. Yi Han resumed the count, 100 billion once, 100 billion twice, 100 billion price. The gavel immediately came down, sealing the deal. Sold. Yi Han enthusiastically announced, Congratulations to the Dania conglomerate for the winning bid of 100 billion. Congratulations to all for acquiring this jade piece. Thus, the auction concluded triumphantly for the Zhu family conglomerate. The mesmerized crowd gazed upward, marveling at the Dania representatives. 100 billion, 
This jade piece is the most expensive in the gem world, even unprecedented. After today's auction, the Treasure Dynasty Zhu family has undoubtedly made a significant impact on the global market. The auctioneer today demonstrated an impressive understanding of the psychology of the buyers present in the hall. I wonder about his background. The crowd buzzed with admiration and compliments for the Zhu family and Yi Han. Princess Alice, overjoyed after successfully purchasing the jade, exclaimed, There's no doubt about the value of this jade toad with the pearl. It's undoubtedly a precious gem. However, I've heard there's another treasure treated as a tribal guardian. I wonder if the esteemed company can bring it out for us to see. For VIP guests like the Denia conglomerate, that was merely a small matter. Yi Han excitedly nodded in agreement, clapping his hands to signal the attendance. Certainly, bring it out quickly. The two beautiful receptionists immediately brought out that mysterious treasure. Yi Han also wanted to capitalize on this opportunity to add more luster to the Zhu family. The treasure was carefully displayed on the table, before all the esteemed guests. Yi Han leisurely walked over, leading the introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, please admire. This is our ancestral guardian treasure. His sharp words piqued everyone's curiosity, directing all attention towards it. Yi Han waved his hand, unveiling the cloth, revealing a resplendent phoenix, spreading its fiery wings, igniting the entire hall. This was truly a bizarre and unimaginable item even for the most seasoned individuals in the gem world. Everyone, without exception, was captivated by the beauty of the phoenix. Beautiful, the phoenix is truly beautiful. It's undoubtedly not an ordinary treasure. Compared to the J piece earlier, it's much more exquisite, flawless. If this treasure were to be auctioned, the price would undoubtedly skyrocket. They say it's the ancestral guardian treasure, so there's no way it would be auctioned. Ning Fang stood above, experiencing the enchanting beauty of the gemstone for the first time. He couldn't help but exclaim, impressive. His eyes lit up, fixated on the gemstone, unable to tear himself away. If I can't acquire it, I'll have to resort to Plan B. Giving orders to his subordinates, he declared, I've decided to obtain these two jade pieces. Tai Shu, you know what to do. Tai Shu responded, rest assured, young master. We'll make arrangements and take advantage of this opportunity to settle all our outstanding debts with interest. Ning Feng rejoiced inwardly, thinking, Ye Han, O oh Ye Han, this time I will reclaim everything I lost in Tian Nan. Take it all back. Duan Nai rushed out from the chicken coop, unable to contain her joy. She hugged Ye Han tightly and exclaimed, Ye Han, you're truly amazing. Thanks to you. Today's auction for the Zhu family was a complete success. Yi Han playfully stroked Duan Ni's cheek, whispering, So how do you plan to reward me? Duan Ni obediently replied, However you want, I'll follow your lead in everything. As the two were indulging in their intimacy, Mo Shu, the secretary, entered the room and announced, Director Dong, Mr. Michael from the Dinia conglomerate has arrived. He requests to proceed with the public transaction. Duan Ni now reflects on the recent scene, feeling extremely puzzled. Aya. When did everyone arrive? Miss Alice immediately sympathizes and consoles. Hi, hi, Miss Ju, no need to stress. This is quite normal in the Western world. In the West, passionate love is expressed openly. Yi Han regains composure and steps forward to greet the distinguished guests, saying, Two esteemed guests, I will have someone bring that jade piece to you. After you've inspected it without any issues, we can proceed with the transaction. Finishing his words, the unexpected gentleman, Mr. Michael from Denia, steps forward and shakes Yi Han's hand in an odd manner, speaking up. Mr. Yi, please wait. Blushing, Mr. Michael hesitates and says, I have a small personal matter to ask for your help. Smelling something familiar, Yi Han becomes concerned. Oh no, isn't this white-skinned gentleman into some unconventional hobbies or something? Unable to endure any longer, Yi Han politely steps back a bit, responding. Sorry, Mr. Michael, I don't mean to discriminate against you, but I am straight and quite traditional. However, Mr. Michael seems perplexed, asking in confusion. Mr. Yi, where you think I'm going? Approaching, Michael discreetly whispers to Yi Han's ear. It's like this, my intention blah blah, isn't it great? Yi Han patiently listens to Michael's story and understands. Ah, it was just a misunderstanding. He then exclaims, 
catching the attention of three girls. So it's about this. Yi Han, on the contrary, appears quite intrigued. He immediately stepped forward, pounding his chest. Mr. Michael, let me take care of it. Not knowing what these two were discussing so openly, arousing curiosity in others, Yi Han didn't want to hesitate. He promptly escorted Michael into a private room and signaled the girls outside. Wait for me for three minutes. With that, he closed the door. Michael responded, Mr. Yi, is this too fast and dangerous? I haven't mentally prepared myself. Once inside the closed room, they drew the curtains discreetly as if engaging in something secretive. Yi Han assured, There's nothing to prepare for such a small matter. Relax, I'll do it quickly, just within the time it takes to smoke a cigarette. Mr. Michael happily replied, All right then, please be gentle, as I fear pain. Ha ha, don't worry, I've been pricking needles for years, and only now you're telling me to relax. Yet it still hurts. The peculiar conversation reached the ears of the girls, making them feel uneasy. Two men locked in a room, what could they be doing? Exactly three minutes later, Yi Han opened the door and stepped out, sighing, I haven't finished speaking, and I already performed acupuncture for many years. How could it not be painful? The girls were intrigued by the acupuncture session between the two men, not understanding the nature of the conversation. So, is it done now? That was too quick. Yi Han smiled and called out, Mr. Michael, come out quickly. Everyone had been eagerly waiting to see how Michael would look after the session. The door opened, a strong burst of light emanated and Michael emerged within an aura, looking truly magical as if stepping out of a fairy tale. His muscular hand firmly gripped the doorframe, a misty glow surrounding him. Michael revealed himself with a sparkling physique, well-defined six-pack muscles, and confidently declared, Hello, everyone. I'm back and better than ever. Miss Alice couldn't believe her eyes, ecstatic about Michael's transformation. She joyfully circled around him, exclaiming, Oh my God, my Michael. The young lady asked, in such a short time, Why do I feel like you've become a completely different person? Michael, still enraptured by the abundance of vitality, didn't hear the question. He enthusiastically approached and tightly embraced his benefactor, Yi Han, saying, Thanks to my brother Yi Han here, I've regained my confidence as a man. Now I feel like I can take on ten people at once. Yi Han, feeling a psychological shock from those words, sensed Michael's tight embrace and quickly said, Ha ha, if there are no more issues, let's start the transaction. Mr. Michael shook hands with Yi Han warmly, saying, No problem, my bro. To repay your kindness, I've decided to deepen our collaboration with the Ju family's gemstone conglomerate. Yi Han was equally delighted about this opportunity and responded respectfully. We feel honored. Later, let's discuss the details of our cooperation. Little did anyone expect that these two gentlemen would come together to resolve a hidden dilemma, with Yi Han unexpectedly helping the Denia family. Duan Nai rushed over to hug Yi Han, exclaiming, Ye Han, you're incredible. As everyone was celebrating together, Mo Shu, the secretary, hurriedly opened the door to deliver urgent news, saying, Trouble, colleagues. Hearing the urgent tone, the two men quickly turned back. Mo Shu immediately reported, The Phoenix Wings and the Jade Stunted Pillar have both been stolen. The shocking news hit like a lightning bolt leaving the Dania family in stunned disbelief. Duan Ni, enraged, stepped forward and questioned. What exactly happened? Didn't you secure everything in the safe? How could such a bizarre incident occur? Mo Shu, with a troubled expression, explained. The security personnel watching the safe were drugged, and the cameras were deliberately damaged. I truly couldn't anticipate this. I apologize, my colleagues and I don't know what to do. A sorrowful incident unfolded right in the midst of the transaction, and the Dinia side expressed their regret. Mr. Yi, I sincerely apologize. If such a thing has happened, there is no way we can continue our transaction, Miss Alice added. Furthermore, the collaboration between our two conglomerates cannot proceed. If you can't even secure a precious jade like this, let alone other matters. Du and Ni found herself in an unimaginable situation, not knowing what to do. Seeing Yi Han silent, she pleaded, Yi Han, what should we do now? Yi Han sighed deeply, a sound both solemn and authoritative, and Mr. Michael felt equally embarrassed. Just moments ago, they had high hopes for a bright future together. Yi Han spoke, Mr. Michael, 
Please give me one hour. After an hour, the phoenix wings and the jade-studded pillar that your side successfully auctioned off will undoubtedly be retrieved. At that time, we can proceed with the transaction. Mr. Michael couldn't remain indifferent either. After all, he valued the friendship between them. He replied, All right, let's do that. In respect to our friendship, just one hour, and after that, we will leave. Yi Han responded firmly, Thank you. He immediately stepped out of the door, stating, Whoever is behind this disturbance, I will surely drag them out. It seemed that in Yi Han's mind, he had already figured out who the culprit was, and it wasn't as difficult as it might seem. Security personnel are currently investigating the scene at the Zhu family safe. The once intact safe is now in ruins, unrecognizable. Detective Ruan has taken charge of investigating this serious case and is mobilizing resources to trace any leads. Meanwhile, Yi Han rushes in. Detective Ruan immediately stands up and shouts at Yi Han. Yi Han, stop right there, don't wander around and disturb the crime scene. Yi Han, in a hurry but also stopping, looks at Detective Ruan seriously and says, I can immediately identify the thief who stole the jade. Give me a pen and a piece of paper. Don't bother me. Yi Han speaks with a cold tone that is hard to ignore. However, Detective Ruan's subordinates, lacking expertise, chime in. Someone without professional knowledge says, What kind of joke is this? We've searched for so long and found nothing except a few footprints and fingerprints. Now we're in the process of checking them. How could you possibly know the culprit right away? We understand you're eager, but apprehending criminals is not that simple. Nevertheless, Yi Han remains silent, understanding and trusting his boyfriend more than anyone else. Duan Nai intervenes to support him, saying, Detective Ruan, please ask them to leave. Don't disturb our work. Detective Ruan watches the two of them leave, recalling an old matter. Since that time, he helped me diagnose. I've felt that Yi Han is hiding some secret. Maybe it's better to let him try and see. So she made a decision and gestured to her subordinates. All right, retreat. Her subordinates were surprised. What's this? Some couldn't believe it and asked, Detective Ruan, you're not joking, are you? This couldn't be explained in black and white. Detective Ruan knew it was an emotional decision. Her subordinates were bewildered, and she scolded, no more words, quickly retreat. They all followed suit promptly. Yi Han now had a pen in hand. After inspecting the safe room, he had a preliminary layout of the thieves' plan. Yin Yang Divine Eyes, time rewind. The Yin Yang Divine Eyes can temporarily rewind time. Based on this, I can certainly identify the culprits. Yi Han cast his gaze to understand what had happened, saying, I see it now. Tai Xiao had just broken through the thick wall of the storage room, carrying a backpack on his shoulders. Yi Han quickly sketched the portrait of this culprit. His drawing skills were beyond question. In no time, Yi Han rushed to present the portrait to Detective Ruan, asking, Do you know who he is? Detective Ruan immediately recognized the notorious criminal. She said, He is an internationally wanted criminal, Tai Shu. Her subordinates were astonished. This can't be. Didn't he escape to Shenzhen? The female subordinate of the Security Investigation Bureau rushed over at the right moment to report, Captain, the forensic examination results are in. The suspect is the internationally wanted criminal, extremely dangerous Tai Shu. It matched Yi Han's conclusions, leaving no room for doubt. However, Detective Ruan's subordinates were incredulous and shocked. What? How could it match this kid's speculation? How could he do this? Does he have superpowers? Yi Han had firmly grasped the culprit's background. He intended to leave immediately. Time didn't allow for hesitation. He expressed gratitude to Detective Ruan, saying, Thank you. I'm leaving now. Seeing Yi Han leaving alone, Detective Ruan couldn't help but feel worried. She called him back. Wait, Yi Han. Shanghai City is so large. How did you find Tai Shu? Or let us handle this. Yi Han couldn't reveal what he knew and replied, Detective Ruan, thank you for your kindness. But I have information from my own intelligence team, and my time is limited. Saying that, Yi Han quietly walked away, with Detective Ruan watching him and thinking, Yi Han, the more secrets you hide, the less I can see through your true self. Stepping outside the main hall, Yi Han received an important phone call. Hu Feng, 
Within three minutes, I want to know Tai Xiu's location, the level of wanted criminal, under the conditions you provided. Hu Feng responded confidently, Three minutes, huh? You really underestimate me. One minute is more than enough. Other things might take longer. But this is quick. Yi Han obediently waited for the results. The plan unfolded as intended. Yi Han eagerly wanted to see how far these troublemakers could go. Tai Shu, enjoy the last moments of your life. At this moment, in the car carrying the two precious jaded stones of the Zhu family's conglomerate, Tai Shu's voice echoed, Young Master Ning, I guess that little Yi Han is now tearing his hair out, frantically searching everywhere. Ha ha! Ning Feng sat proudly in the back seat, praising Tai Xiao's courage. You did well this time. His hand continuously caressed the suitcase containing the spoils of war, saying, This time, not only did you make Yi Han suffer a painful blow, but you also struck a fatal blow to the Zhu family's gem conglomerate. Once we return to the Ning family's gem conglomerate, whatever you want, I'll fulfill. Hearing these sweet words whispered in his ears, Tai Shu was extremely delighted, envisioning a wide-open future. He laughed heartily and replied, Ha ha ha! Thanks, young Master Ning. Just as the laughter subsided, a black car sped in from the right, crashing directly into the middle of the two. Tai Shu widened his eyes and mourned, Well, this doesn't look good. Ning Feng, on the other hand, couldn't fathom who would dare to know they had come this far. The two cars collided head-on, causing the white one to be jerked off the road, crashing into the edge of the forest. The impact echoed loudly throughout the mountainous area. Tai Shu and young Master Ning couldn't escape from this horrific crash, rushing at an unstoppable speed, until they slammed straight into a large tree, resembling a flattened sandwich. The two cars were tightly stuck together, like two pieces of glued paper, the engines still roaring and wheezing. But who was the person in the black car who finally intervened in this matter? Ning Feng and Tai Xiao struggled before managing to crawl out. The two of them approached with fierce determination. Damn it, who dared to crash into me like that? Life is getting boring, huh? I don't care who you are, but today, you're going to die. The person in the last car finally stepped out, and Yi Han calmly walked out. Hearing the mocking remarks from the two younger ones, he leisurely took out a slender dagger from his side and replied, I'll return your words exactly as they are. Ning Feng couldn't believe his eyes. How is this possible? The time was too short for the Zhu family to discover the culprit, not to mention catching up with them. He muttered in disbelief, Ye Han, why are you here? Ye Han shot back with a gaze full of determination. If you don't want others to find out, then don't do it. Ning Feng, you've run out of options. Today is the day for both of you to die. Ning Feng's younger brother, terrified, hastily escaped instructing Tai Shou's subordinate, stop him. While running, he thought, why is this Yi Han like a ghost, so fast and figuring out it was me? Tai Shou, a dangerous level a wanted criminal, was confident as he approached. Young Master Ning, rest assured, I only need one punch to send him digging the ground for his teeth. Just as he finished speaking, Tai Shou's subordinate, a knave guy who had seized one of Yi Han's knives, couldn't tell when he did it, or even detect any of Yi Han's actions. Suddenly, he felt something was amiss, and blood began to flow. The poor subordinate groaned. The knife. The knife technique is too fast. He rolled his eyes and couldn't feel his neck anymore. Dropping to his knees, Tai Shu collapsed like a field of grass before the wind. After a few seconds, he sprawled out in a pool of blood, unable to gasp for air in time. A high-profile international criminal met his demesse at the hands of Yi Han. With just one swift stroke, Yi Han, like a bloodthirsty executioner, stepped over his lifeless body, declaring, Tai Shu is dead. Ning Feng hadn't even managed to run. Glancing back, he witnessed a perilous fate. He exclaimed in horror, Just one move and Tai Shu is already defeated. Yi Han, is he still human? No, I have to flee immediately. A gust of wind howled from the side, exuding a formidable pressure. Terrified, Ning Feng sensed, Something dreadful seems to be approaching. Suddenly, Yi Han glided in front of Ning Feng, startling him to exclaim, Ghost! Yi Han calmly explained, Young Master Ning, I told you, there's no escaping for you. Not wanting to hastily kill Ning Feng, Yi Han decided to play a bit and give his younger brother a harsh lesson. Get lost, or I'll need to increase my population. 
The younger brother clung to his private parts, wailing loudly. Despite Yi Han's powerful kick, Ning Feng soared into the sky, disappearing from sight even with a spyglass. Yi Han bid farewell. Farewell, young master Ning. He spared him a chance at life. Ning Feng, the pampered heir of the Ming family, couldn't meet his end so easily. Returning to Shanghai City, in Duan Ni's private room at the Zhu family conglomerate, the trio anxiously awaited any news from Yi Han. Miss Alice, having displayed immense patience with the Zhu family, stood up as time dwindled. She said, Mr. Michael, there's just one minute left, which makes it a full hour. I doubt Yi Han can bring back the two blocks of jade. We should leave. There are still many matters awaiting our attention. Hearing Alice's words, Michael found them reasonable and stood up, addressing Duan Nai, Chair Wounded Zhu. It's truly regrettable. I also feel that we have no reason to stay here any longer. Time has run out, and within just one hour, retrieving the two jade blocks seems impossible. A mission practically unattainable. Du and Ni, despite the burning turmoil within, couldn't accept the opportunity slipping away like this. Stepping forward, she held on to Mr. Michael, saying, I hope everyone can wait a bit longer. What Yi Han has promised, he will undoubtedly accomplish. Trust him just this once. Witnessing her colleagues distressed in this manner, Secretary Mo Xu also felt pity for her. He stepped forward to console. Chairwoman, hang in there. This time, we're in it together. Duan Ni, steadfast in her belief, shook her head. No, this time, Yi Han will surely succeed. However, no matter what in the business world, maintaining one's integrity is crucial. Duan Nai couldn't deny that truth. With a heavy heart, she watched the Denia group depart, and Miss Alice politely apologized before stepping out the door. However, before the two of them could take more than a few steps, Yi Han appeared unexpectedly. Michael and Alice exclaimed, Ye Han. It was unbelievable. Right at the deadline, he had returned. Duan Nai was overjoyed, knowing that her man was always the one she trusted the most. In his hands, Yi Han held the suitcase with the two box of jade. He silently entered and placed the suitcase on the table. Opening it, he spoke, Everyone. As Yi Han revealed the contents, the brilliance of the two jade blocks illuminated the entire room. Smiling brightly, he extended his hand and said, Fortunately, I did not disappoint your trust. I've brought the items. The eyes of Mr. Michael shone like stars, and he approached Yi Han with admiration, saying, Amazing, my friend, you're truly outstanding. Du and Ni, as always, embraced Yi Han tightly and enjoyed the moment. My Yi Han, you're amazing. Everything has passed the critical moment. Yi Han looked at Miss Alice and said, can we proceed with the transaction now? Miss Alice nodded, saying, Certainly, Yi Han. Our cooperation can continue smoothly. Your strength is truly reassuring. The transaction concluded beautifully after a while. Yi Han and Dua and I escorted the new partners to their cars. It's all done. Feel relieved. Yi Han stretched and said with a few yawns. Finally, we've dealt with the collaboration. It's less exhausting than fighting with enemies. Dua and Ni gently reminded, Right. Tomorrow is your master ceremony. The hotel is booked. Don't forget about it. Yi Han embraced his beloved Duan Nai in his arms, gently reassuring her, Relax. For something as important as this, I won't forget. In this intimate moment, Duan Nai felt a shiver running down her spine. Yi Han chuckled and looked tenderly at his beloved. It seems the night is getting late. How about we? Hey. Duan Ni, unable to resist the temptation, had to confess, in my office, there's a small room for resting. Yi Han found it quite reasonable, swiftly lifting his beloved and heading towards the room, saying, time is precious. Let's get started. Duan Nei obediently allowed Yi Han to handle the internal affairs. After a passionate night, the next morning, Yi Han and Duan Nai walked hand in hand into the hotel, where his master's ceremony was being held. The only thing was, his dark circles under the eyes were now as black as two plums due to the previous night's exertion. Duan Ni, seeing him looking somewhat like a zombie, urged him, Yi Han, hurry up. The master ceremony is about to begin. Yi Han sighed, isn't it because you kept me here last night? Duan Ni came off. Maintain order. No talking in crowded places. The celebration had begun, and inside the hotel were elegantly dressed guests, all esteemed individuals from the Yi family. 
everyone was dancing and toasting to the joyous occasion. Lin Ban Mo and Tang Hai Bin approached with signs of impatience. Yi Han, why are you just arriving now? Hurry up, the master ceremony is about to begin. Let me tell you, Yi Han, you should learn to control yourself a bit in the future. From ancient times till now, romantic affairs between men and women have been too frequent. It only wears out a man's vitality. Duan Ni, upon hearing this, was almost furious. She blushed and rushed over, protesting. You fat jerk. What nonsense are you talking about? Scratchy words. Zhu Ming Shan, relieved to finally see Yi Han and Duan Ni, walked over cheerfully. Yi Han, Duan Ni, you've arrived. Duan Ni, feeling somewhat embarrassed, could only utter, Grandpa, since she got involved with Yi Han, she hardly stuck to her grandfather as before. Yi Han responded, Master, I'm sorry for the delay. Your disciple is here. Mr. Zhu seemed a bit dissatisfied, muttering as he turned away. All right, come here quickly. It's true, it's difficult to control grown-up girls. In the grand hall, the distinguished guests were introduced loudly. Lin Gudong, the acting head of the Lin family conglomerate in Shanghai City, has arrived, presenting a ginseng over a hundred years old. Tang Jian Gu of the Tang family conglomerate in Shanghai City is also in attendance, offering a calligraphy book personally written by himself. Mr. Michael from the International Financial Conglomerate is gifting a pair of top-grade jade. People gather to congratulate Mr. Zhu. Congratulations, Mr. Zhu, for acquiring an outstanding disciple. The elderly mentor expressed joy on his face, thanking the esteemed guests for their blessings. Amidst the celebration, an uninvited guest seemed to confidently step into the room, appearing quite self-assured. He addressed Mr. Zhu, Ah, my dear Zhu. Your disciple is quite impressive. These two peculiar characters seem to have some connection with Zhu Ming Shan. Thank you for taking the time to watch my video. If you enjoyed the content, please don't hesitate to hit the like and share buttons. Your support is a huge motivation for me to continue creating more videos. Additionally, there are many other interesting story videos on my channel, so feel free to check them out. Thank you. Upon seeing these two individuals, Mr. Zhu's joyful mood suddenly changed. He exclaimed loudly, Ning Hao Tian. This scene drew the attention of everyone present. Some in the room were familiar with Ning Hao Tian and remarked, Isn't this the Northern King, the number one gem appraiser Bai Fang Ning Hao Tian? Why is he here? Rumors had it that Ning Hao Tian and Zhu Ming Shan were always at odds, with numerous conflicts between them. It seemed that today he came here to disrupt the good news of Mr. Zhu. One was the Northern Gem King, and the other, the Southern Gem King. A confrontation between them promised an interesting spectacle. Zhu Ming Shan felt uneasy with this irritating figure. However, Ning Hao Tian, with a thick skinned demeanor, stared directly at the old man, challenging anyone who crossed his gaze. It appeared that today, he wanted to take advantage of the opportunity to stir up trouble. Ning Hao Tian craftily congratulated Brother Ming Shan. Accepting such a significant disciple, how could you not inform this senior brother? Luckily, I regularly update my information. Otherwise, I might have missed the chance to join in the celebration. Although he spoke in a congratulatory tone, his sinister intentions were evident. Old man, today I deliberately came to cause a disturbance. Do you dare to kick me out? Zhu Mingshan had to force a smile in response. No need to worry, Brother Ning. Considering your advanced age, and inconvenience in movement. I wouldn't dare to burden you with any responsibility if something urgent were to happen on the way here. Inwardly, Mr. Ju couldn't help but curse this person. You wretched fellow, I wish for your early demise and no reincarnation. Although bitter, Ning Hao Tian had to continue the pretense with Ju Ming Shan. Ha ha ha, Ju your brother, you truly know how to joke. These two old men feigned camaraderie. Ning Hao Tian glanced at Yi Han immediately recognizing him as Zhu's new disciple. Gritting his teeth, he inquired, Is this the new disciple Ming Shan just took in, named Yi Han? Yi Han, feeling awkward, was the only one among the distinguished guests who seemed somewhat foolish. He turned to Duan Ni and asked, Duan Ni, why does this old man keep staring at me as if I killed his father or something? Duan Ni casually replied, hitting like a bolt of lightning. He's Ning Feng's father, Figure it out. 
Yi Han then grasped the thread of the story. Ha ha, so that's it. I crippled his son. No wonder he resents me so much. Yi Han was sure he had a challenge on his hands this time. Dealing with this old Ning Feng would be an interesting and troublesome affair. I better prepare mentally beforehand. Mr. Zhu stood outside, observing the somewhat discordant situation. Uneasy about Ning Hao Tian's intentions, he stepped in between the two and asked, What's going on? Brother Ning, is there something you'd like to discuss? Ning Hao Tian continued feigning innocence. Ha ha, how can I compete with the younger generation now? However, this young man here wanted to express a long-held intention. He extended his hand for introduction. I recently took in a disciple, and to celebrate, I propose a sculpture competition to showcase their talents. It's also a way to entertain all the esteemed guests here today. What do you think, Brother Zhu? A fateful reunion between two brothers, one from the north and the other from the south, sparked enthusiastic discussions among the onlookers. Gem appraisal, closely tied to the art of sculpture. Ning Hao Tian and Zhu Ming Shan are both skilled in this field. The competition between their disciples is sure to be extraordinary. However, I heard Gi Han is a newcomer, and Zhu Ming Shan hasn't taught him any sculpting techniques yet. If they must compete, Yi Han is likely to lose. It turns out Ning Hao Tan came here today with this purpose, wanting to use his disciples' victory to embarrass Zhu Ming Shan. Mr. Zhu was well aware of the abilities of both disciples, feeling puzzled. Though Yi Han excelled in finding gemstones, Zhu had never taught him any sculpting techniques. He hesitated. This matter. However, Yi Han, coming from behind, spoke up. Master, if the other party is willing, let's accept their proposal. It's an opportunity, and your disciple also wants to broaden his horizons, to see how formidable the Northern Gem King truly is. Zhu Ming Shan, fearing that the impetuous youth might get into serious trouble, cautioned, Don't cause trouble. The young one has not yet learned the art of sculpture. When we have to compete with, Yi Han, without hesitation, explained to his master, Master, they deliberately came to provoke us. We can't ignore it. Please trust in your disciples' abilities. Even if I lose, Master, do you no longer want me as your disciple? Hearing the reasonable and harmonious words of his student, Mr. Zhu seemed to awaken from the trance of animosity. He spoke up, All right, even if we lose, there's no need to be afraid. Zhu Ming Shan immediately gave orders to his subordinates. Bring the tools and gemstones here. The tools and gemstones were quickly brought forward. Yi Han and Du Nai stepped forward, facing Ning Hao Tian and Ling Fan. The grand battle between the North and South began. Ning Hao Tian, always highly praising his disciple, didn't bother to pay attention to anyone else. He commanded, Ling Fan, showcase your skills for everyone. Ling Fan obediently stepped forward. He arrogantly looked at Yi Han and said, Remember my name, I'm Ling Fan. Starting today, I will become your nightmare. Your sculpting skills can never surpass mine in this lifetime. Tang Hai Bin, seeing the cocky kid, couldn't hold back his anger. He hasn't even competed yet, and this brat dares to be so presumptuous. Lin Bai Mo commented, I've heard of Lin Fan's name before. Many people covet the jade artworks he sculpts. This will be challenging for Yi Han. Du and Ni, having never seen Yi Han's sculpting skills, and having witnessed Lin Fan's abilities, Knew this would be an unequal battle for Yi Han. She can only pray for his luck. Come on, Yi Han. Yi Han remained calm, not revealing any emotions on his face. Instead of quickly sitting down, he approached Ling Fan slowly. In his mind, he thought, not sure about sculpting skills. But with the yin and yang eye technique here, once seen, never forgotten. Learning on the spot, activating the yin and yang eye technique. Yi Han meticulously observed each step technique, and the smallest gestures Ling Fan displayed, from the way he used the knife and pen to the sharpening and carving. Not a single detail escaped his attention. However, one must admit, Ling Fan's talent is undeniable. In just under a jaw stick's burning time, Ling Fan completed his jade sculpture. He announced, please have a look. His exquisite jade masterpiece emerged, radiant and enchanting. The guests at the party marveled in praise. Jade Masterpiece, with plum blossoms. Looking at this carving, you can tell it belongs to the top tier. This jade piece originally had issues, but unexpectedly, Ling Fan managed to use his carving skill to cover its flaws, 
truly showcasing the level of a master. Ning Hao Tian, lounging with a cigarette in hand, remarked, My disciple casually displays his skills, already inviting laughter from everyone. The sly old fox indeed had a sharp tongue, yet the esteemed guests continued to praise him. Oh, Mr. Ning is so humble. Indeed, he has taught a disciple like Ling Fan. Mr. Ning is truly the gem king of the Baifang. This young one, Yi Han, is in trouble this time. Ling Fan felt triumphant, confident of securing victory. On the other side, people were praising Ning Hao Tian. While on this side, Du Wen Ne grew increasingly worried. Ye Han, what should we do? Yi Han just smiled gently in response. Rest assured, his face remained calm in the face of those self-proclaimed experts. Yi Han found it quite exciting to compete in such an atmosphere. If he could win, wouldn't it be quite satisfying? He declared to Du Wen Nei, I will win. Du Wen Nei insisted, But Yi Han, you have no sculpting experience, and if by any chance. While they were still discussing, Ling Fan stepped forward to taunt, Yi Han, it's your turn now. He, Yi Han slowly approached, caressing the jade in response. Ling Fan, are you itching to lose like that? All the sculpting techniques were firmly ingrained in Yi Han's mind, sparing him the need to make others wait. Holding the jade in his hand, he showed no concern for victory or defeat. In Yi Han's mind at that moment, there was only contemplation. What should I sculpt to make it worthwhile? Suddenly, an idea popped into his head. Yi Han glanced at his beloved Duan Ni and said, I will sculpt a beautiful woman. Perplexed, Duan Ni asked, a beautiful woman. Seeing him pondering like this, she couldn't help but worry. Yi Han, why aren't you taking this seriously? Sculpting a person is the most challenging. Even with Ning Hao Tian and my grandfather, it's only certain to be 60% successful. Yi Han nodded and replied, Rest assured, I know what I'm doing. With the expertise in hand, Yi Han sat down at his table, ready to start sculpting. Yi Han didn't use the typical stone carving tools, but instead opted for his own precious blade. He envisioned the paths of hair, newly cut by him, and stones flying off as a subtle warning. Different from the usual approach, it was evident that Yi Han was doing something distinctive. Some onlookers shook their heads and commented, This kit is really sculpting a person. It's too extravagant. The human form is challenging to grasp. Even if one can master the sculpting of the human body, the crucial aspect is the aura of the person, which is challenging to express through sculpture. Currently, this Yi Han has no foundation in sculpting techniques, daring to challenge human body sculpting. It seems like defeat is inevitable. After observing Yi Han for a while, Mr. Zhu noticed something unusual. His face became surprised. Oh my, this technique, it's the same technique Ling Fan used just now. This technique, isn't it the secret skill exclusive to Ning Hao Tian? How can Yi Han? Oh wait. His expression turned more serious, unable to believe the talent of this young man. Could it be that while observing Ling Fan, Yi Han was able to comprehend that secret technique. Heaven, what a talent. Mr. Zhu stepped forward and imparted some advice to Yi Han. Yi Han, remember, ten parts force with three parts vigor, seven parts precision, exquisite but unbroken. Use your heart to feel the knife in your hand. Yi Han mumbled to himself the words of Mr. Zhu. Ten parts force with three parts vigor. He pondered for a while and gradually understood the intention that his master wanted to convey. After a moment, he exclaimed, I figured it out. Observing Yi Han's natural and unusual performance, the onlookers were astonished. Why did this kid suddenly become so skilled in sculpting? Right, just now he seemed unfamiliar with sculpting. The words Mr. Zhu said earlier must have some meaning. It seems that Yi Han has gained insight into something. Mr. Zhu is truly worthy of being the Southern Jade King. Just one sentence is enough to make his disciple progress significantly. Ning Hao Tian, who was leisurely smoking a cigar earlier, now became concerned. He stood up to watch Yi Han. The technique of force application is my secret, passed down only to Ling Fan. Yi Han, he must have learned it from observing Ling Fan's sculpting. This talent can't be allowed to exist in the world. At this moment, Ling Fan was truly the most frustrated. If Yi Han won, he would have no face to return to Nanfang. Yi Han's technique is undoubtedly superior to mine, but he wants to sculpt a person. That's not easy. As long as there is a slight issue with the human form, I will take the victory. 
After completing the sculpture of a human figure, Yi Han suddenly stopped in a peculiar manner. People outside couldn't help but wonder, why did he stop? He should be sculpting the aura of the statue now. This is the most difficult step. Let's see what he's up to. Yi Han, seemingly lost in thought, didn't know what was going on in his mind. Duan Ni, on the other hand, couldn't sit still, keeping her eyes fixed on him. Suddenly, Yi Han turned back and looked at her with a smile, Duan Nai. Her beautiful face attentively listened to Yi Han, calling her name softly. Yi Han carefully observed that lovely face, then began sculpting the aura for the statue, whispering to himself, I know now. With delicate and precise strokes of his thin blade, the face gradually emerged. Finally, after a moment of intense concentration, Yi Han completed his masterpiece. He breathed a sigh of relief, admiring his work once again. Wow, a statue of a beauty that can be considered perfect, from the body to the face. This couldn't possibly be the work of a novice. Even a master would need to show respect. Yi Han brought the jade statue to the front of the crowd. Words of astonishment began to flow naturally. This is the work of a master, unbelievable. Yes, Mr. Yi is still young, and yet he can sculpt a human figure so exquisitely. This skill elevates the master to a legendary status. Mr. Zhu is indeed Mr. Zhu, capable of teaching such a talented disciple. Tang Hai Bin showed a hint of curiosity. He leaned in to get a closer look at the sculpture, saying, Oh, this figure seems somewhat familiar. Without hesitation, Yi Han lifted the statue and walked over to Duan Ni, saying, Duan Ni, this is specially made for you. The crowd admired in awe. Exactly this sculpted figure is based on the model of Miss Duan Nai. Truly admirable. Just look at the grace. It's a perfect resemblance to Miss Duan Nai. For the first time in her life, Duan Nai received such a meaningful gift. Overwhelmed with joy, she tearfully expressed her gratitude. Yi Han, thank you. Overcome with emotion, Duan Nai hugged Yi Han tightly. Yi Han, why are you so good to me? I'm so touched. After the intense competition, Mr. Zhu sighed lightly, stroking his beard, and asked Ning Hao Tian for his opinion. What do you think of my disciple? Ning Hao Tian couldn't avoid it any longer and had to acknowledge. A genius. Lane Fan, feeling awkward, tried to say something from behind. But Ning Hao Tian interrupted. Don't say much except the defeat. Ning Hao Tian had to swallow his pride and apologize to Zhu Ming Shan. My disciple is not proficient in the art. On another day, I'll come to seek guidance. However, just when it seemed like everything would end here, as Ning Hao Tian finished speaking, a senior figure entered and scolded. Last time, I saw your disciple. Even if he studies for another ten years, he won't be as good as Mr. Zhu's disciple now. Ning Hao Tian felt deeply humiliated, his face turning red. Determined to see who had such courage, he looked towards the speaker and expressed surprise. Lane Fan, unable to keep calm, impulsively confronted, Who the hell are you? What right do you have to judge me? The senior figure, seemingly unfazed, responded, You're calling me a bastard, ha! Huh? Swift as lightning, he lunged towards Ling Fan, unsheathing the sword in his hand. In less than a second, his sword was close to Ling Fan's neck. Overwhelmed with horror, Ling Fan, stuttering, tried to speak but couldn't make a sound. I, I. Seeing the urgent situation, Zhu Ming Xian had to step forward to intervene. Mr. Wu Fei, please show mercy. This junior is not worth your time. Wu Fei, the senior figure, withdrew his sword and replied, Ning Tinsheng, I spare his life today. But if there's a next time. Wu Fei Tinsheng turned coldly and left, uttering a concise word, kill. Ling Fan stood there, his hair standing on end, a vivid reminder of his encounter with danger. Several curious young men rushed forward and asked, what happened? This person has a really strong aura. My legs are trembling, and I can hardly stand. Ning Hao Tian, feeling embarrassed, approached and apologized. It's due to my lax supervision. I hope Mr. Wu Fei won't hold it against my disciples. Allow me to apologize on his behalf. After speaking, Ning Hao Tian had no face left to stay, bitterly leading his disciple away. Onlookers pitied him, saying, Ning Hao Tian, this is truly humiliating. Not only did your disciple lose to Mr. Zhu's, but he also almost got killed by the person in black. Who is that person in black? 
able to make the carving master of the Baifan carving world bow his head. Mr. Wu Fei approached Zhu Ming Shan, greeting, Mr. Zhu Ming Shan, my apologies for being late. Zhu Ming Shan smiled and replied, Mr. Wu Fei, your presence here is already an honor for Zhu. What happened earlier was indeed a bit laughable. Wu Fei glanced quickly at Yi Han and continued, Mr. Zhu, don't be modest. Your disciple is extraordinary. To be so talented at such a young age, he will surely become renowned in the future. Yi Han, an admirer of Wu Fei's reputation, couldn't help but pay his respects. Mr. Wu Fei, your praise is too kind. The unparalleled sword, may I ask if you are the 11th ranked master in the Ling Wu Fei ranking? Mr. Wu Fei seemed somewhat surprised and replied, It seems you have already been exposed to this world, but you still lack the ability to navigate within it. Talents are always short-lived. I hope you are not one of them. Yi Han appreciated the advice from the senior and respectfully nodded. Thank you for the guidance. With time running out, the ceremony was about to begin. Mr. Zhu invited Mr. Wu Fei inside, saying, All right, everyone is here. Let's start the master disciple ceremony. Mr. Wu Fei agreed with a nod, but unexpectedly, Yi Han stood up to stop them, saying, Wait. Mr. Wu Fei was surprised, and Yi Han said something peculiar. Mr. Wu Fei, I apologize for the presumption, but it seems there might be an issue with your health. Mr. Wu Fei's expression suddenly changed upon hearing this, and Duan Ne, worried about what trouble Yi Han might cause with such comments, softly called, Zlai Han, please. However, Yi Han's diagnosis seemed to strike a chord with Mr. Wu Fei, and his face became bewildered. It's unbelievable how he could know. Sensing something unusual, Yi Han couldn't stay indifferent. Understanding that Mr. Wu Fei might have personal matters to discuss amid the crowd, he politely suggested, Would you mind stepping outside for a moment to talk? Zhu Ming Shen, fearing that Yi Han might say something incomprehensible and disturb Wu Fei, was about to intervene. Mr. Wu Fei, my Yi Han. However, Mr. Wu Fei quickly responded, I have something to discuss with Yi Han. Please wait a moment, Mr. Zhu. Thus, the two of them moved to a secluded corner for a mysterious conversation. Unable to contain her curiosity, Du and I approached her grandfather and asked, Grandpa, what did Yi Han say to Mr. Wu Fei just now? It seems Mr. Wu Fei is upset. Seeing his granddaughter's curiosity, Mr. Zhu couldn't help but sympathize. Yet, he himself found the story intriguing. With a stroke of his beard, he said, In the future, it seems Yi Han will have another ally. Hearing this, Mr. Wu Fei's expression became indifferent. He closed his eyes and lowered his voice, saying, Young man, how could you see through? At this moment, Mr. Wu Fei silently thought, If someone knows about my injuries, the enemies will undoubtedly come knocking at my door. It won't be good by then. It's better to eliminate him now. After this thought, Mr. Wu Fei immediately unsheathed his sword. Hearing the sound, Yi Han turned his head to look at Mr. Wu Fei and replied, Senior, no need to worry. If I intended to disclose your injuries, I would have announced it loudly in the main hall. Hearing that, Mr. Wu Fei immediately sheathed his sword and sat down on a chair, calmly asking, How could you discern that I am injured? Yi Han, recalling the scene, quickly replied, When Senior walked past me, I noticed that the posture of Senior's sword grip was a bit peculiar. Hearing this, Mr. Wu Fei looked skeptical and continued questioning. You can deduce that I am injured based on the sword grip posture. Do you take me for a fool? At this moment, Mr. Wu Fei silently speculated, Couldn't it be that someone knows about my injury and later informed this young man? It's impossible for him to figure this out otherwise. Yi Han hurriedly responded, It's not easy to deduce, but I also had some proficiency in swordsmanship. Just now, observing Senior's attack towards Ling Fan, combined with my knowledge of medical arts, I noticed that Senior's sword grip technique was incorrect. Therefore, I dared to make this conjecture. Hearing this, Mr. Wu Fei, curious, asked, You know medical arts. Then Yi Han fixed his gaze on Mr. Wu Fei's sword, clasped his hands in front of his chest, and replied, My main profession is practicing medicine, and I've gained about 15 years of experience. Upon hearing this, Mr. Wu Fei continued, I underestimated you. I didn't expect you to be so young and possess such extraordinary insight. If you could discern my injury, I presume you might also have a way to treat it, don't you? Finishing his words, Yi Han, 
in a teasing manner, continued. In reality, the solution is quite simple. Senior also understands it. Just stop practicing the supreme sword technique, and your right arm will naturally recover. Isn't it more acceptable to give up a lifelong pursuit than to endure losing one arm? Hearing this, Mr. Wu Fei immediately stood up with a serious expression, responding, Indeed, I dare not conceal it. This ailment is truly a consequence of the aftereffects of sword cultivation. I hope, Yi Han, my young friend, you can provide some guidance and suggest a treatment. Concluding his words, Yi Han hesitantly replied, Senior, your words are weighty. I will do my best to treat you. Subsequently, Mr. Wu Fei immediately joined his hands together, solemnly adding, Talent doesn't wait for age, and in the martial world, no one can compare. Yi Han, you can see through, and even diagnose my condition. Speaking on equal terms with you is the right thing to do. Yi Han quickly responded, Mr. Wu Fei, please have a seat first. Suddenly, Mr. Wu Fei noticed something unusual. In Yi Han's words, he looked up and said, speaking on equal terms. Yi Han, hearing this, awkwardly smiled and quickly added, Oh, please sit down, and let me use acupuncture to regulate your meridians. Concluding his words, Mr. Wu Fei immediately took a seat, placing his hand on the table and tightly clenching his right hand. Yi Han focused on carefully observing, using the yin yang divine eyes to clearly see the meridians of Mr. Wu Fei. Following this, Yi Han took out three acupuncture needles and directly pierced the meridians of Mr. Wu Fei. Yi Han utilized his internal energy to enhance the healing process. Observing this, Mr. Wu Fei couldn't help but be amazed by Yi Han's talent. He looked at his own arm and thought, the acupuncture is smooth, powerful, and profound. Just relying on a single needle, he can mobilize my internal energy, using his own internal force to attack the blocked areas. At this point, all the meridians of Mr. Wu Fei were unblocked. Yi Han, slightly sweating, took a deep breath. In no time, Yi Han had successfully treated Mr. Wu Fei. Feeling exhausted, Yi Han wiped the sweat from his forehead and said, The meridians are unblocked now, and in a short time, it may help Senior enhance his strength. Hearing this, Mr. Wu Fei immediately raised his right arm and tested its movement. He couldn't help but exclaim, Amazing! Amazing! My right arm has been numb for a long time, and now the numbness has completely disappeared. Hearing that, Yi Han chuckled and replied, Unfortunately, my spiritual power is still insufficient at the moment, and I don't have a way to completely clear the blocked meridians. However, Senior, rest assured, every year when Senior visits me, sooner or later, we'll completely unblock those congested areas. Upon hearing this, Mr. Wu Fei burst into laughter and said, Lai Han, you also have your fair share of troubles. If you ever encounter any difficulties in the future, just come to Jiangsu province and find me. Finishing his words, Yi Han with a serious expression responded, Let's go outside. People out there have been waiting for a while. Hearing this, Mr. Wu Fei readily agreed, certainly. With that, Yi Han and Mr. Wu Fei walked out together gracefully. Outside, Duan Nai and Zhu Ming Shan were waiting. Anxiously, Du Wanai turned to Zhu Mingshan and asked, Grandpa, will Senior Wu Fei bully Yi Han? Yi Han, did you face any danger? Why haven't they come out yet? Just as she finished speaking, Yi Han and Mr. Wu Fei emerged, both of them laughing heartily. Mr. Wu Fei smiled kindly at Yi Han and said, Zhu, I've made an agreement with Yi Han. In the future, I'll engage in fair discussions with him. At this, Zhu Mingxian and Du Wan Nai were astonished, exclaiming, What? The people nearby, upon hearing this, couldn't help but express their surprise. They were curious and asked, What's going on here? Just a moment ago, Senior Wu Fei was staring at Yi Han intensely, as if he wanted to devour him alive. Why is he treating Yi Han so well now? Although Senior Wu Fei's background is unclear, even Ning Hao Tian has to respect him. Moreover, it seems he's quite afraid of him. Yi Han, however, is now being treated as an equal. This Yi Han, I'm afraid, will become a prominent figure in our city of Shanghai. Meanwhile, the feast had begun. Everyone present was joyfully shaking hands, congratulating Zhu Ming Shan. They exclaimed, Congratulations, Zhu, for having such a talented disciple. 
Yi Han truly is a young hero. Old man Zhu has found himself a treasure. A person standing nearby, holding a wine glass, quickly added, In the future, we hope that Mr. Zhu will take good care of him. Du and I still couldn't understand what was going on. She leaned close to Yi Han, and with a gentle look, asked Wu Fei Sr. Yi Han, what is happening? Why is Sr. Wu Fei? Before Du and I could finish her sentence, Yi Han, with a tender gaze, smiled broadly. Then, he raised his hand, slightly embarrassed, and replied, He was naturally captivated by the charm and knowledge of your husband. Hearing that, Duan Nai angrily shouted, Be serious, Yi Han. At this moment, Duan Nai couldn't help but think. It seems there are some things that Yi Han doesn't want to talk about. Switching scenes to outside the high rise building after the party had ended, Yi Han cheerfully bid farewell to the guests. After a tiring day, he sighed and said, Finally done seeing them off. I'm exhausted. Suddenly, Zhu Ming Shan and Du Wen Nai approached from behind. Zhu Ming Shan had a serious expression and said, Why Han, those people just now, you should maintain regular contact with them. You now have a history with enemies. You need to expand your relationships. If anyone wants to harm you, they should think twice about the consequences. Hearing this, Yi Han quickly bowed 90 degrees and replied, Master, your disciple understands your concern. Zhu Ming Shan continued, All right, time is running out. Today, I've had my drink, and you can't accompany Yi Han. You have to take me home. Hearing this, Du Wen Nei quickly agreed. Grandfather, I. Without waiting for Du Wen Nei to finish her sentence, Zhu Ming Shan immediately turned around, laughing loudly, and said, Let's go. Hearing that, Du Wen Nei looked helpless and reluctantly glanced at Yi Han before saying, I'll go home first. Seeing this, Yi Han, with a regretful expression, reached out towards Du Wen Nei, hesitated, and called, Du Wen Nei. Wait. Unable to find words, Yi Han helplessly watched Du Wen Nei's figure walk away. Then Yi Han seemed to go crazy, using both hands to tightly grip his head, silently screaming in his mind. Originally wanted to enjoy a big day like today, to have a vibrant night, could it be that the old man has seen through my intentions? After some contemplation, Yi Han calmed down. He sighed tiredly, saying, Time is running out, and I also have to go back. Suddenly, Yi Han felt something unusual behind him. He immediately used the yin yang divine eyes to examine the situation, but he saw nothing. In his mind, Yi Han silently said, There's no one. Was it just an illusion? As he finished speaking, a dark shadow quickly passed by. Yi Han quickly looked after it, angrily shouting, who? Then, Yi Han forcefully struck forward. Unexpectedly, a hand resisted Yi Han's blow. Surprised by the strength of the other person, Yi Han couldn't do anything. Failing, Yi Han anxiously evaluated. Just with one punch, he forced me back. Surely, his strength is above mine, but the anger of this person seems unstable. After thinking, Yi Han furrowed his brow and urgently asked, Who are you? It turned out to be Zhao Hao Tian. Hearing that, he rotated his wrist and responded with a laugh. Haven't seen you for a few months. Your strength has progressed quite a bit, huh? Excitedly, Yi Han called out, Big Brother Zhao. Then, he quickly ran up to Zhao Hao Tian and inquired anxiously, Big Brother Zhao, what happened? Why are you seriously injured like this? Hearing this, Zhao Hao Tian quickly replied, I'm fine. Let's get on your car first and talk. Yi Han insisted, Big Brother Zhao, your injuries are severe. I need to quickly treat you, or it will affect your cultivation. As the light filtered through the tree branches at the Sun Bumi mansion, Sun Bumi was practicing martial arts. Suddenly, he noticed a disturbance and quickly glanced over, only to find that Yi Han had brought Zhao Hao Tian. Seeing Zhao Hao Tian disheveled in torn clothes, Sun Bumi exclaimed, Zhao Hao Tian, who did this to you? Hearing this, Zhao Hao Tian weakly responded, Master Sun, don't worry, I'm not dead yet. Yi Han quickly added, Master Sun, Zhao brother is seriously injured. I need to treat him immediately. Please excuse us for a moment. Hearing that, Sun Bu Mi quickly responded, Come inside quickly. With me outside, nothing will happen. Yi Han immediately led Zhao Hao Tian inside. Outside, Sun Bu Mi fell into contemplation, thinking, Zhao Hao Tan suddenly returned. I wonder if he has dealt with the pursuers. If enemies come here now, 
it's sure to be a troublesome situation. Inside, Yi Han took out acupuncture needles and inserted them directly into Zhao Hao Tan's back. Zhao Hao Tan sat still on the ground, and as Yi Han worked, he said, Brother Zhao, relying on acupuncture alone can only prevent your injuries from worsening. To fully heal, I need to use spiritual energy to assist your recovery. It will take a bit longer. Hearing this, Zhao Hao Tian, in pain, murmured, Wai Han, in times of danger, we don't need to be polite. Thanks for your help. Yi Han quickly agreed, saying, sure. Outside the mansion, Sun Bu Mi was on guard. Suddenly, a loud noise caught his attention, and he glanced towards it. Sun Bu Mi assumed a defensive stance and loudly exclaimed, they're here. It turned out to be Yan Fei, who walked up to Sun Bumi with a triumphant look and said, I thought Zhao Hao Tian had someone powerful backing him up. It turns out it's you, Sun Bumi. Hearing that, Sun Bumi's gaze sharpened. He tightly gripped the staff in his hand and replied, Yan Fei, ranked seventh on the Tiger Board rankings. Without many words, Yan Fei immediately took out two sharp claws. She ferociously said, Sun Bumi, you used to be a renowned master, disappeared for more than ten years. I wonder if you still have the strength you had back then. Hearing this, Sun Bu Mi smirked contemptuously and replied, Today is quite interesting. This old man also wants to see if he can defeat the seventh-ranked expert on the Tiger Board rankings. Unfazed, Yan Fi immediately rushed towards Sun Bu Mi, launching an attack. She shouted, Go Gai! Seeing this, Sun Bu Mi remained unfazed. He calmly observed and responded, right on time. They both then engaged in a fierce battle. On the other side, Yi Han, from above, heard the loud commotion, distracting him from his treatment. Seeing this, Zhao Hao Tan quickly called out, Yi Han, don't be distracted. Hearing that, Yi Han immediately regained focus. While continuing to treat Zhao Hao Tan, he pondered, the opponent knows Zhao's whereabouts. Surely they won't send just one person. I must seize the opportunity, quickly help Zhao recover. With that, Yi Han promptly resumed the treatment for Zhao Hao Tian. Outside, Sun Bu Mi and Yan Fei were still locked in fierce combat, with no one giving in. The battle showed no sign of conclusion. Both were engaged in intense combat, with Yan Fei leaping high and delivering a powerful strike at Sun Bu Mi. Seeing this, Sun Bu Mi quickly used his staff to block, sneering in disdain. Yan Fei, good reputation, but in terms of actual strength, it seems the title of seventh rank is somewhat exaggerated. Reality is far from the rumors. Hearing this, Yan Fei quickly replied, over these years, it seems you've made some progress. But Yan Fei's face showed a cunning expression as she chuckled and loudly commanded, come out, all of you. With that, a group of people emerged from behind and rushed to surround Sun Bu Mi. They were aggressive and formidable staring intently at Sun Bu Mi. Seeing this, Sun Bu Mi felt fear and worry, silently pondering. The aura of these three individuals is powerful, but I'd never encountered them before. At this moment, Yan Fei, with a triumphant expression, approached Sun Bu Mi and said, Sun Bu Mi, your old man has been away from the martial world for too long. I wonder if you are aware of the changes in the world outside. The Celestial Master no longer cares about the Tiger Board rankings. Release Zhao Hao Tian, and I'll ensure you have a quick and painless death. With that, Yan Fei brandished her claws as a warning to Sun Bu Mi. Faced with Yan Fei's threat, Sun Bu Mi showed no fear. The Elder replied, Trying to make me betray my brothers is absolutely impossible. If you want Zhao Hao Tian, you'll have to step over my corpse first. Hearing Sun Bu Mi's resolute tone, Yan Fei angrily commanded, disable him. With that, Yan Fei's group immediately attacked Sun Bu Mi, who single-handedly resisted. They aggressively shouted, die old man. Realizing the dire situation, Sun Bu Mi silently contemplated, Zhao Hao Tian is in danger. I'll have to take a step ahead. Hopefully, you can avenge me. It seems Sun Bu Mi foresaw the outcome of this battle. Alone, he couldn't contend with these formidable opponents. Suddenly, a burst of power knocked down Yan Fei's group, leaving them severely injured on the ground. It turned out Zhao Hao Tan had timely intervened. Sun Bu Mi, upon hearing this, looked over and chuckled, You worked hard, my comrades. At this moment, 
A furious Zhao Hao Tan glared at Gan Fei's group, expressing his anger. Are you finished? Yi Han, running breathlessly, caught up. Immediately, he supported Sun Bu Mi. Sun Bu Mi, sounding weak, asked, Are you okay? Hearing this, Zhao Hao Tan folded his arms, his face displaying confidence. Sun, leave the rest to me. Interrupting him, Sun Bu Mi, holding his chest in pain, hurriedly replied, I'm fine. He let out a couple of coughs. Concerned, Yi Han quickly asked, Senior Sun, are you really okay? Hearing this, Sun Bu Mi said, In such a short time, you completely healed Zhao Hao Tian. You're fortunate. Upon hearing that, Yi Han awkwardly scratched his head, saying, It's just luck, nothing more. In Sun Bu Mi's mind, he thought, This kid carries many secrets. After this thought, Sun Bu Mi turned to Yi Han and continued, Your future prospects are promising, very promising. Hearing this, Yi Han pointed towards Zhao Hao Tian and chuckled, This is the first time I've seen Brother Zhao in action. Let's just stand aside and watch the show. Hearing that, Sun Bu Mi quickly added, Observing his fight can teach us a lot. On the other side, Yan Fei, in pain, struggled to sit up. Glancing at Zhao Hao Tian with horror, Yan Fei, with a skeptical expression, asked, Your wounds have really healed. Hearing this, Zhao Hao Tian smirked and replied, You'll find out if you try. Enraged, Yan Fei stood up, unsheathing his weapon. Yan Fei pointed the sharp iron spear at Zhao Hao Tian and provocatively said, I know exactly how seriously you were injured. After that, Yan Fei immediately shouted, Just standing there with a menacing look won't intimidate me. Without hesitation, Yan Fei's group rushed forward to attack Zhao Hao Tian. Seeing this, Zhao Hao Tian calmly chuckled and stepped back. With a satisfied expression, he replied, I didn't intend to let you go today. Hearing that, Yan Fei charged at Zhao Hao Tian, yelling loudly, Go to hell. In Yan Fei's mind, she thought, relying only on bare hands, Hao Tian, during your prime, you might have been able to stop my assault. But now, without finishing the thought, Yan Fei directly thrust the sharp iron claw into Zhao Hao Tian's body. Unfazed, Zhao Hao Tian used his bare hands to strike directly at Yan Fei's iron claw, astonishing her, as she exclaimed. What? Broken shards of the claw fell out, leaving it as a useless weapon. Zhao Hao Tian forcefully knocked the iron claw away, and Yan Fei watched in amazement. Then, Yan Fei was directly impaled by the remaining part of the iron claw, unable to react in time. Subsequently, one by one, the remaining attackers were gruesomely impaled by the sharp teeth of the wooden staff. In a moment, Zhao Hao Tian had dealt with Yan Fei's group. Afterward, he walked confidently forward. Zhao Hao Tian stood before Yan Fei, staring at her intently. Yan Fei struggled to speak with her last breath. You able to recover your strength to its peak. How is this possible? Hearing this, Zhao Hao Tian's face turned cold as he replied, Because I have a good brother, unlike you. Zhao Hao Tian immediately raised the broken iron claw, coldly continuing, In your next life, be a good person. Don't be a running dog. With that, he forcefully thrust the iron claw into Yan Fei's body. Yan Fei groaned in pain, and then immediately stopped breathing, lifeless. Sun Bu Mi, standing beside them, observed the situation. He glanced at Yi Han and said, Lai Han, do you know what technique Zhao Hao Tan just used and what makes it formidable? Hearing that, Yi Han quickly responded, The force is tremendous. The power of a single move was enough to defeat all four of them. As he finished speaking, Sun Bu Mi applauded Zhao Hao Tian. He continued, He executed a perfect move just now, simultaneously launching a quadruple attack. The first clone relied on powerful strength to neutralize Yan Fei's assault. The second clone used pure strength to break the iron claw in Yan Fei's hand without excess or deficiency. The third clone relied on the power of the form, attacking the remaining four with the shattered pieces of the iron claw. The fourth clone used the strength of the form to defeat the other four. Upon hearing that, Yi Han couldn't help but exclaim in amazement. This technique is truly remarkable, and yet so formidable. Sun Bu Mi raised his hand to his beard and coughed a few times, continuing. The four clones I just mentioned, except for the first one, all require extremely powerful control. Any slight mistake, even a small error, would not yield such results. Unfortunately, I as an old man 
have not yet mastered the technique of the dual clone. Zhao Haotian casually walked towards Sun Bu Mi and Yi Han, calling out, Sun. Placing his hand on Sun Bu Mi's shoulder, Zhao Haotian patted it gently and said with a smile, Just now, you were injured in the blood vessels. Go inside and rest. Hearing this, Sun Bu Mi raised his hand to stroke his beard, chuckling warmly as he replied, Hmm, you two brothers haven't seen each other for a long time. There must be a lot to catch up on. I'll go inside first. I'm getting old, and I might not have enough time in this life. Zhao Hao Tian. With that, Sun Bu Mi immediately turned around, waved his hand in farewell, and walked away. Afterward, Zhao Hao Tian turned to Yi Han and said, Lai Han, I can't stay here for long. Surprised, Yi Han quickly inquired, Zhao, do you have any plans for the future? Without hesitation, Zhao Hao Tian replied, well, this time I'm going back for two reasons. To get treated by you, and to visit Du Du. The heavenly sect is currently hunting me down. And if Yan Fei has reached the Shanghai Sea, there are likely others coming here afterward. I can't stay here, and cause trouble for everyone. Hearing this, Yi Han was surprised, and angrily exclaimed, Zhao, why would you say that? We're brothers. If I were afraid of causing trouble, I wouldn't have risked saving Du Du. Interrupting him. Zhao Hao Tan quickly raised his hand to signal Yi Han to stop. He calmly continued, Lei Han, there's something you don't know. The one who attacked me this time was severely injured, and it wasn't Hu Tian Zun, but his top subordinate, Tian Wang. This person is stronger than me, making it even more unpredictable how powerful Hu Tian Zun might be. If I were to stay here, everyone would die. You have great potential. Diligently cultivate and can certainly become the leading figure a supreme powerhouse in the world, surpassing even me. Upon hearing this, Yi Han was no longer surprised. He closed his eyes, sighed deeply, and said, Zhao, you're wrong. A powerhouse must undergo trials and dangers to cultivate. Besides, my situation is not much better than yours. In the pursuit of finding you, I've killed members of the heavenly sect. Sooner or later, they will come after me. Moreover, a few days ago, I annihilated members of the Blood Assassin Guild. Hearing this, Zhao Hao Tan was astonished and uttered, This is unexpected. Before finishing his words, Yi Han quickly placed his hand on Zhao Hao Tan's shoulder. He hurriedly continued, Zhao, stay here. Regardless of the reason, we shouldn't choose to run away. If it's difficult, let's find a way to solve it. Whether it's the Heavenly Sect or the Blood Assassin Guild, we face it together. Fight them to the death. Hearing this, Zhao Hao Tan looked determined and he quickly responded, All right, if that's the case, I'll listen to you. We'll face it together. Finishing his words, Yi Han put his arm around Zhao Hao Tan and smiled, That's the spirit. Let's go and have a drink, celebrating our reunion. In the next scene, Zhao Hao Tan and Yi Han were happily drinking together, raising their glasses. They emptied one glass after another. Zhao Hao Tan raised his glass high and said, Yi Han, if we want to ally against the heavenly sect, we must prepare quickly. It's best to train a group of skilled individuals. Relying only on the two of us won't be enough to face the Blood Assassin Guild or the heavenly sect. Back then, I lost the title of XC Nan Wang and returned to the bottom of society because, from beginning to end, I fought alone. Hearing that, Yi Han pondered for a moment before responding, I have no experience in this matter. I don't know if Zhao has any ideas. Finishing his words, Zhao Hao Tan raised a finger and replied, It's simple, just need money. Hearing this, Yi Han looked surprised. Proudly, he quickly responded, Zhao, it seems like you found the right person. I lack everything now, except money. Continuing, Zhao Hao Tan said, We can establish a security company, start performing bodyguard missions, protect businessmen or celebrities, and at the same time, train our skills. Hearing this, Yi Han calmly replied, Yes, training skilled individuals in a short time is not a simple matter. Finishing his words, Zhao Hao Tan immediately took out a notebook. He said solemnly, Take a look at this. Yi Han quickly took it in his hands, and he exclaimed, This is an alchemy method. Finishing his words, Zhao Hao Tan recalled the time at Hin Lai Man. He continued, Exactly, I was expelled from Hin Lai Man because everyone wanted to obtain this alchemy method. They have been pursuing me for years. 
Yi Han, with your medical skills, check if this alchemy method would be beneficial for you. Hearing that, Yi Han joyfully responded, So that's how it is. Truly excellent. With this, I think we can quickly train high-level alchemists. By then, combined with my acupuncture techniques, within a year, we can surely nurture several high-level experts. At that time, we won't need to fear anyone. That's right. Suddenly, Yi Han remembered something and continued. I just recalled. If the henchmen of the Origin Princess have pursued us here, it means that your identity might have been exposed. We should find a safe hiding place first. Hearing this, Zhao Hao Tan quickly replied, Not necessary for now. Yan Fei wants to kill me to gain credit, so based on her personality, she surely won't reveal my whereabouts to others. So I am temporarily safe. Hearing this, Yi Han slapped his hand, and with a triumphant expression said, Good, if that's the case, let's start the plan. The scene shifted, sunlight pierced through several high-rise buildings, at the headquarters of the Blood Phantom Sect, everyone was present. The strategist of the Blood Phantom Sect, Mr. Tango, furrowed his brows and said angrily, Tai Xiao died in Shanghai City. Who among you will investigate this? Hearing that, a man with a protruding forehead quickly added, This guy is usually very arrogant. Except for the guild leader, he doesn't pay attention to anyone. This time, he finally ran into a master. Even if he dies, it's worth it. The elderly man with glasses sitting nearby calmly continued. Anyone who dares to kill our Blood Phantom sect members must not be let off easily. Finishing his words, the elderly man with glasses turned to the ceremony and addressed the sect's strategist. With a sly expression, he continued, My strategist, you could take a trip to Shanghai City. Hearing this, the people behind chimed in, Recently, I've been idle with nothing to do. Consider it a trip to Shanghai City for leisure, or I can go too. I've recently successfully mastered a technique and I'm looking for someone to practice with. At this point, Zhang Feng suddenly appeared, taking charge and said, All right, stop competing. Hearing this, the crowd in the hall turned their heads. They were surprised and exclaimed, Guild leader. Zhang Feng, with a stern expression, continued, Anyone who opposes our blood phantom sect must die. The scene shifted to Yi Han's house, where he was concentrating on studying Zhao Haotan's alchemy method. Yi Han stared intently at each character, continuously marveling. This alchemy method has some ingredients that are not easy to find. It seems I'll have to trouble Mr. Zhu or Lin Bai Mo's family to help find them. Suddenly, the phone rang. It was a call from Tang Hai Bin. Yi Han wondered, Tang Hai Bin, what's the matter? Why not come directly to me? Why call? Without much thought, Yi Han immediately picked up the phone and said, Hello, Tang. Before Tang Hai Bin could say anything, the voice on the other end was urgent and loud, Wei Han, help me. I'm being attacked. Hurry to the cafe we usually go to and rescue me. Hearing this, Yi Han quickly responded, Tang, try to hold on a little longer. I'll be there right away. Finishing his words, Yi Han rushed to deal with the situation for Tang Hai Bin. As he went, he thought, Why would Tang Hai Bin be ambushed? Could it be the work of the Blood Phantom sect acting discreetly? At this moment outside, the scene was peaceful, with a clear blue sky. Inside the cafe, Shen Tian El's gang ruthlessly attacked Tang Hai Bin. He used his foot to stomp on Tang Hai Bin's head, scowling and saying loudly, You damn fatty, if you have the guts, throw your shoes at me again. Today, I will definitely disable you. Hearing this, Tang Hai Bin struggled to respond quickly, Shen Tian El. Yi Han is on his way. When he arrives, you'll be the one crying. Without waiting for Tang Hai Bin to finish, Shen Tian El chuckled triumphantly and interrupted, Yi Han, when he gets here, I'll disable him too. On the other side, Mo Rong Ju calmly sat sipping tea, casting his eyes forward. His followers boastfully declared, Did you see that? Here we have the young master of the Mo family from Nanfang, Mo Rong Ju. Yi Han is nothing more than an ant in Ju's eyes always ready to be crushed. Hearing this, Mo Rong Ju serenely took a sip of tea and replied, Shen Tian Ao, out of respect for your master, the Tsaibi Warden, I helped you in this matter. But that Yi Han, your enemy, is nowhere to be seen until now. I am not pleased about it, you know? Before finishing his sentence, Shen Tian Ao quickly replied, Yes, young master Ju, I know. With that, 
Shen Tian Eo took a large stick and approached Tang Hai Bin, saying, You fat bastard, if you want to blame someone, blame Ni Han for being too late, making Yo Master Ju unhappy. Hearing this, Tang Hai Bin shouted in fear, What do you want? Unperturbed, Shen Tian Eo raised the stick menacingly and continued, Say goodbye your legs. At that moment, Yi Han forcefully kicked the door open, boldly yelling, Stop. Seeing this, Shen Tian El turned around, and Tang Hai Bin joyfully called out, Yi Han. Surprise, Shen Tian El exclaimed, Yi Han. Without many words, Yi Han angrily shouted, Daring to lay a hand on my brother, you're tired of living. Without hesitation, Yi Han rushed at Shen Tian El. He landed a powerful punch to Shen Tian El's face. Catching him off guard, blood flowed from his nose. Not stopping there, Yi Han delivered another painful punch to Shen Tian El's abdomen, sending him flying, crashing into the wall, causing it to crack and shatter. Teeth scattered everywhere. After dealing with him, Yi Han quickly ran to help Tang Hai Bin and asked with concern, Tang, are you okay? Tang Hai Bin, in pain, hurriedly replied, I'm fine. Tang Hai Bin weakly continued, Ye Han. The guy in front of us is the young master of the Mo family in Nanfang, with significant influence. It seems like he specifically came here to avenge Shen Tianel. You have to be careful. Hearing this, Yi Han was not concerned at all. He chuckled lightly and replied, You can rest assured. This Shanghai city is my territory. Whoever comes, whether it's a dragon or a tiger, they must bow before me, or they'll be tamed. Shen Tianel lay on the ground, crying and pleading. Young Master Ju, you must avenge me. Mo Rong Ju, sitting casually with crossed legs, spoke condescendingly, Yi Han, when dealing with a dog, you should also consider the owner. How dare you beat Shen Tian L right in front of me? Seems like you don't respect me L. Yi Han folded his arms, frowned in dissatisfaction, and replied, What are you? Why should I care about your face? Hearing his words, Mo Rong Ju couldn't help but see it with anger. His subordinates were stunned and whispered, This kid is insane, daring to provoke our young master Ju. He thinks he can dominate the small Shanghai city, but does he not know the significant influence of the Mo family? It's the dominant force in Nanfang, existing for countless generations. Mo Rong Ju stood up, slamming his hand onto the table. He sternly commanded the person behind him, and Zhan, kill that brat for me. The subordinate immediately bowed and acknowledged, understood, young master. Drawing his sword, he confidently declared, Young man, you're too arrogant. Today, I'll show you that there are people you shouldn't mess with. Yi Han, seeing the short and gleaming blade, pondered, Could you be? He immediately asked, Who are you exactly? The 17th ranked assassin on the tiger list many years ago, John Dao. And John chuckled and confirmed, Correct, that's me. If you know my identity, don't struggle anymore. I'll let you die more comfortably. Mo Rong Ju's subordinates, upon hearing this, became even more confident in asserting, with Zhan taking action, this kid is surely dead, and Zhan is a master on the tiger list. This brat won't withstand a move from him. Those who underestimate people from the Mo family must die. Yi Han sneered, raising his short sword mockingly, you're no longer the renowned assassin of the past but a lackey who only knows how to flatter others. He prepared for the fight and confidently declared, You've lost the spirit of martial arts. With a single strike, I can shatter your sword. And Zhan charged forward, swinging his sword, saying, You're seeking your own death. He brought down a powerful strike, but Yi Han, refusing to yield, countered with his short sword, unleashing a swift and decisive move. The one who should die is you. The two clashed fiercely, their swords and techniques colliding in a spectacular display. Onlookers couldn't help but comment. This kid is so strong, yet he's evenly matched within John. John Dao's sword shattered, and he was injured, spitting out a mouthful of blood. Yi Han followed up with another strike, causing Zhan Dao to lose balance and fall backward. Astonished, how could this happen? As Zhan Dao lay on the ground, Yi Han withdrew his sword, stating, the waves of the Songjing River surge behind, surpassing those before. In the martial world, there's always someone stronger. Nowadays, the martial world isn't what it used to be. 
Mo Rongju's subordinates couldn't help but be shocked. I can't believe this is happening. Even Injon couldn't match this kid. If Injon isn't a match for him, then we certainly aren't. When did such a strong figure appear in Shanghai City? Mo Rongju turned green with suspicion, questioning life itself. And John is a master on the Tiger ranking. How could he be defeated by an unknown kid? Shen Tianel, lying on the ground in bewilderment, whispered, It's over, Mo Rongju. There's no way to deal with Yi Han. It's better for me to stay unconscious. Suddenly, a laughter rang out, and a foot forcefully stepped on his hand. Tang Hai Bin, with his foot on Shen Tianel's hand, sarcastically remarked, Shen Tianel, Mo Rongju, you claim to be formidable. But as soon as Yi Han arrived, both of you turned into fools. Shen Ti and Ao, in pain, could only groan and couldn't articulate words. Yi Han, twisting his wrist, asked, Just now, you were the one planning to kill me, right? Mo Rongju startled, involuntarily stepped back, stammering, You, what do you want with me? I am the young master of the Mo family. If you dare to lay a hand on me, it will not end well for you. Yi Han immediately rushed forward, slapped his head, and scolded. Young master of the Mo family, isn't it? Continuing, he pressed his knuckles into his stomach, taunting. Show some respect in front of me. Yi Han executed a move, punching Mo Rongju into the wall, concluding the combat. This is for your arrogant attitude. After the fight, Yi Han held his head and declared, The matter is resolved. Then, he walked over and draped his arm around Tang Hai Bin. Smiling, Tang, let's go. Tang Hai Bin looked at him, smiling brightly. Yi Han, this time I owe you. I just happen to have a few concert tickets. Tomorrow, bring Du Wen Mi, and we can go together. The two walked away, chatting happily. Yi Han asked, Nan Gong Concert. That name sounds somewhat familiar. Tang Hai Bin explained, That's the most famous idol nowadays. You must have heard of her. Mo Rongju lay on the ground, clenching his fists, tightly, trembling. He gritted his teeth and swore to himself, Yi Han, I will not let you go. A few days later, during the concert, the audience on the stands shouted enthusiastically, Nan Gong Zi Huan, I love you. Nan Gong Zi Huan, I want to have a child with you. Nan Gong Zi Huan, I love you for a thousand years. Yi Han, among the crowd, couldn't help but sigh. Oh my! So many people came. Duan Ni, holding a magical staff, commented, No wonder, Nan Gong's Zi Huan is currently the hottest idol. Tickets for her concert sold out in no time. I really like her. Tang Hai Bin added, Moreover, Nan Gong Zi Huan is so beautiful, truly a goddess. Even in my dreams, I wish I could pursue her. After they finished speaking, the two returned to their enthusiastic demeanor. Seeing this, Yi Han put on a reluctant expression thinking to himself, if I tell them I once saved her, will they admire me to death? Suddenly, his phone in his pocket rang. Yi Han took it out to see who was calling. The screen displayed two characters, Hu Feng. He quickly answered, Hu Feng, what's the matter? I'm currently at Nan Gong Zhe Wan's concert. On the other end of the line, Hu Feng urgently conveyed, urgent matter, I won't beat around the bush. The security bureau received information that someone intends to cause trouble at Nan Gong Zi Huan's concert. However, we're short-staffed in the Shanghai city area. Could you please ensure her safety? Yi Han furrowed his brows inquisitively. Specifically, what do you need me to do? He thought, Hu Feng has helped me many times. This time, I must help her. Hu Feng explained, Our people are on their way. Before they arrive, we need you to ensure her safety not leaving her side for even a moment. Upon hearing this, Yi Han assured, rest assured, as long as I'm here, she will be absolutely safe. After hanging up, Yi Han rubbed his chin, looking towards the stage in contemplation. With so many people in the auditorium, how can I get close to Nan Gong Zi Huan? Right at that moment, Nan Gong Zi Huan on the stage suddenly announced some news. For the next song, I will sing and interact with everyone in the audience. What do you all think? The audience in the stands immediately became lively, everyone eagerly clamoring. Fantastic! To have the chance to be close to Nan Gong Zi Wan. Pick me, pick me. Nan Gong Zi Wan. I've liked you since I was born. I know all your songs. Choose me. Hearing this, 
Yi Han immediately sparked an idea. Good opportunity. Duan Nai also joined, raising her hand and urging him. Yi Han, what are you doing? Raise your hand quickly. Who knows? You might get chosen. Yi Han confidently affirmed. No need to bother. She will definitely choose me. Duan Nai chuckled. Yi Han, you're dreaming too beautifully. Tang Hai Bin mocked his confidence, saying, Yi Han, it hasn't been long since we met, but your ability to talk nonsense has become a hundred times more formidable. Yi Han smirked, raising his hand and saying, Don't believe me. Just watch. In the midst of thousands of spectators, Yi Han waved his hand and shouted, Nan Gong Zi Huan, I'm here. The lights immediately illuminated him, and Nan Gong Zi Huan blinked, extending her hand to declare, Lucky audience member. Come up to the stage and sing a duet with me. Tang Hai Bin, almost incredulous, exclaimed, How is this possible, Yi Han? Are you really chosen? Others, seemingly surprised, asked, Is it real or fake? Does Yi Han know Nan Gong Zi Huan? Yi Han winked playfully, saying, Believe it or not, what I said is true. After speaking, he descended from the stands and walked onto the stage, smiling to himself. The first step to approach Nan Gong, Zi Huan is done. Among the dissatisfied audience below, comments like, Damn it, Nan Gong Zi Huan. Why choose that guy? Standing with him is demeaning yourself. This guy looks like he can't even sing. Why is he even up there? Could be heard. Nan Gong Zi Huan joyfully interacted with everyone while waiting for Yi Han to step forward. As he approached, he immediately inquired, Long time no see, Miss Nan Gong. My name is Yi Han. Shyly, Nan Gong Zi Huan handed him the microphone and replied, Mr. Yi, finding out your name is not that easy. Yi Han took the microphone, saying, It's a bit embarrassing. On that day, I really had urgent matters. Nan Gong Zi Huan playfully winked and expressed, No worries, I've specially chosen a song suitable for you. You have to sing it enthusiastically with me. Hearing this, Yi Han felt perplexed, scratching his head as he asked, Ha, huh, specifically chosen for me. Nan Gong Zi Hun turned to continue interacting with the fans and said, Beloved audience, the next song is dedicated to all of you. What kind of man are you? Hearing her words, Yi Han was immediately surprised, itching and wondering, Ha, huh, what kind of man am I? Is she talking about me? The audience below burst into laughter, pointing fingers at him saying, what kind of man are you? She's talking about the person on the stage. This is hilarious. I'm dying of laughter. No grudges, no resentment. Judging by Nan Gong Zi Huan's character, she wouldn't normally make things difficult for others. Couldn't it be that they already knew each other? Tang Hai Ben also laughed tears and said, Zui Han, it's not easy to be chosen. But Nan Gong Zi Huan chose this song for you. Saying that, he turned to Duan Nei and asked, what do you think? Did Han really have bad luck? However, when he turned to do a knee, a slightly chilly atmosphere descended, causing him to fall silent. Du An Ni, who had put on glasses resembling Conan's at some point, from her perspective, furrowed her brows and speculated, incorrect. I smell a conspiracy here. Yi Han, there's definitely something you're hiding from me. Tang Hai Bin felt as if he were being scrutinized and thought to himself, this girl, her ability to catch a conspiracy is truly frightening. On the stage, at this moment, Nan Gong Zi Huan began singing the first notes. What kind of man are you? What kind of man are you? Looking at him as she walked without asking a word, her pure voice resonated, stirring the excited emotions of the audience below. Amazing. Nan Gong Zi Huan, the best, truly a divine voice. Nan Gong Zi Huan, I love you. I want to marry you. Yi Han stood on the side, using the yin-yang divine eyes to observe her. This tone, this aura, these lyrics, turns out to be like this. Nan Gong Zi Huang smiled and looked towards Yi Han, reminding him, Yi Han, it's your turn now. Don't tell me you can't sing. At this moment, Yi Han remained motionless. The audience below started shouting and mocking. Hey, do you even know how to sing or not? If you can't sing, get off the stage. Don't waste my time. I want to hear Nan Gong Zi who would sing. What are you pretending there for? Do you even know how to sing? Sensing the situation getting out of control, Nan Gong Zi Huan quickly spoke up to reassure everyone, please be patient. 
let Mr. Yi take some time to get acquainted with the situation. After that, she quickly turned around and asked Yi Han, You really can't sing. Let's switch to another song. Only then did Yi Han react, shaking his head, No me, I truly didn't know just now, but I've learned it now. Seeing him smile like that, Nan Gong Zi Hun felt a bit stiff, her face turning a shade of red. Yi Han began to sing. What kind of man are you? How do you deserve to be a man? In love with her, yet too afraid to tell her to wait. The audience below, upon hearing him sing, gasped in astonishment and exclaimed, Oh my, how can his singing be so pleasant? It's not just pleasant, it's on par with Nan Gong Zi Huan singing. Oh, truly a hidden master. Tang Hai Bin was equally surprised, expressing, This is Yi Han singing? Why is it so good? I'd never heard that he can sing, let alone sing this well. Du Wen Ni, standing beside, angrily said, Yue Han, singing so well, but for the first time singing a duet with another girl. It's infuriating. On the stage, Nan Gong Zi Huan was also unexpectedly thinking. His breathing technique and vocal modulation, unexpectedly so similar to mine. I've been practicing for over 10 years, yet he learned it just by listening to half of the song. Truly a monster. Seeing her disheartened, Yi Han reached out and urged her, Let's sing together. Nan Gong Zi Hoon couldn't help but blush and replied, Sure. Both held hands and sang together, A gentle kiss on your hand, leaning on your head. Let me lean on your chest, the one you were is no longer here. The audience was immersed in their duet, deeply moved to tears, with comments like, Absolutely amazing. I think this is the best duet ever. Some even more passionate fans cheered, Fall in love, fall in love. Du and Ni, infuriated, broke her cheering stick, her fiery spirit roaring, Yi Han, after this dude I will show you what true ruthlessness is. Tang Hai Bin, standing nearby, couldn't help but feel frightened, silently praying, Ye Han, you better pray for yourself, I really can't help you this time. After finishing the performance, both of them walked behind the stage, Nan Gong Zi Huan, feeling shy, expressed, Mr. Yi, there's still half an hour before the next performance. Can you wake here for a while? I truly haven't thanked you properly for last time. Hearing that, Yi Han smiled warmly from outside and replied, Sure, I'll wait for you inside. At this moment, he couldn't help but rejoice. Perfect, I can investigate if there's anything dangerous around. At this moment, someone approached and called out, Zai Huan, the woman, dressed in a tight purple dress and wearing glasses was Nan Gong Zai Huan's manager. She reminded, It's almost your turn on stage. Quickly change your outfit. Nan Gong Zi Hun quickly left. But before that, she didn't forget to instruct, I'll be right back, Sister Mei. This is my friend, Yi Han. Please keep an eye on him. Manager Mai adjusted her glasses and assured, Don't worry, I'll take care of him. She turned around, exuding an intimidating aura, and glanced at Yi Han, saying, I will make sure I look after him. Yi Han was taken aback for a moment, but then he regained his composure, extending his hand for introduction. Hello, I'm Yi Han. The manager scornfully lifted her lip, casually glided past him, without shaking hands, and replied, I'm Man Gong Zi Huan's manager. Follow me. Yi Han retracted his hand, scratched his face, and thought, It seems like Sister Mai is intentionally trying to belittle me. He quickly followed her in the direction she went. In the corridor, someone pretended to be cleaning, and the two walked by without paying attention. That person chuckled, good opportunity. Inside the room, Sister May closed the door and spoke bluntly, Mr. Gi, I'll be straightforward. Nan Gong Zi Huan is not the kind of ambitious person you might think. I advise you to stay away from her and not dream of anything fanciful. Upon hearing this, Yi Han immediately explained, It's really embarrassing. Perhaps you've misunderstood. I have no intentions with Nan Gong Zi Huan. Sister Mai seemed skeptical. She chuckled lightly, reached into her handbag, and said, Pretend. I've encountered many people like you. Just after money, right? After saying that, she pulled out a thick stack of bills from her bag and threw the money towards Yi Han, presenting a condition. Take this money and leave immediately. Yi Han was now a bit angered. He darkened his face and clarified, You've truly misunderstood. I got information that someone intends to harm Nan Gong Zi Wan, so I came here to ensure her safety. 
Sister Mai didn't believe him and shouted, Do you think I'm a fool? This excuse won't fool anyone. At this point, she walked towards the door, swinging it wide open, without realizing there was someone suspicious standing in front of it. She interrogated, Is it true that you want to say you're actually from the safety bureau, a special agent, and... Before she could finish, the suspicious person aimed a knife at her, threatening, If you don't want to die, shut your mouth right now. Sister Mai immediately fell silent, her body trembling with fear. Yi Han, seeing the assassin, paled in thought, Is he an assassin? The assassin pressed the knife against Sister Mai's neck, threatening, Kid, I advise you not to make any moves, otherwise, my knife won't distinguish between friend and foe. In this situation, Yi Han struggled with his thoughts. If I intervene now, it might harm Sister Mei. First, I need to calmly observe the situation and wait for the right moment. The assassin suddenly kicked Sister Mai, making her fall, and scolded, Get inside quickly. She was knocked down, crying out in pain. The assassin turned and locked the door, holding a phone and the knife against Sister Mai, demanding, I know you're Nan Gong Zi Wan's manager. After she comes off the stage, you'll immediately call her and tell her to come here alone. Sister May turned to look at the assassin and said with difficulty, What? What do you want with Zi Huan? I will never betray her. She couldn't help but regret. What Yi Han said earlier unexpectedly turned out to be true. Why didn't I believe him? The assassin, hearing this, chuckled coldly and pressed the knife, saying, You declined the invitation. Now face the punishment. Sister Mai tightly closed her eyes, silently screaming in desperation. No. At that very moment, another swift blade flew in, cutting through the assassin's knife handle and causing the weapon to fall to the ground. Yi Han's swift blade, stained with the assassin's blood, stuck into the wall. The assassin turned pale, clutching his injured hand, crying out in pain, My hand. Sister Mai, bewildered, looked at him inquisitively. What? What just happened? Yi Han spoke to the assassin. Trying to kill someone in front of me is a dead end. Sister Mai looked back at him. Surprised, Yi Han, you saved me. The assassin, infuriated, cursed. Wretched, dared to ruin my plans. He lifted another knife angrily, swearing, You're as good as dead. However, he was clearly no match for Yi Han. The latter lowered his gaze with disdain, saying, the one deserving death is you. With that, he delivered a precise kick to the assassin's face, sneering, Here's a taste of my kick. The assassin took the kick to his jaw, causing his teeth to clatter and a few be knocked out. In pain and tears, he muttered as the powerful blow sent him sprawling to the ground. Rotten luck, really. Seeing that he had quickly resolved the situation, Sister Mai couldn't help but marvel. Impressive. However, Yi Han was not ready to forgive the assassin just yet. He approached the man, brushing off the dust, and scolded. Wretch, you call someone lame when I meticulously wash my feet every day. Sister Mai, now concerned, asked, Sir Yi, what should we do now? Yi Han glanced at her and asked back, What should we do? Do you believe me now? Sister Mai immediately bowed with remorse. I'm sorry, Sir Yi, I was wrong. Please forgive me. Yi Han, not one to hold a grudge, walked over, took down the dagger hanging on the wall, and advised, leave. There are his accomplices in the hall. Report to the police. After the performance, I will immediately take Nan Gong Zi Huan out through the back door, and you can escort the others through the front door. Sister Mai quickly nodded in agreement. Yes, Sir Yi. Before parting ways, she anxiously reminded, please ensure Nan Gong Zi Huan's safety. Without turning around, Yi Han reassured, Rest assured, I swear on my honor, that I won't let anything happen to Nan Gong Zi Wan. As the night deepened, the final performance came to an end. In the parking lot beneath the basement, Nan Gong Zi Wan was escorted by Yi Han from the back door. She didn't understand what was happening and asked, Yi Han, wait a moment, why do we have to leave from the back door? Has something happened? Yi Han turned around and gently rubbed her head, replying, Don't worry, with me here, everything will be fine. At that moment, a dark energy surged from behind towards Yi Han's back. Nan Gong Zi Hun turned pale and shouted, Yi Han, be careful. Hearing this, he quickly sensed the danger and turned around. 
Yi Han immediately stood in front of Nangong Z1, swiftly drew a short sword, and severed the dark energy attacking them. He also gave a quick command, Guards, we are under attack. Not stopping there, more dark energies followed. Yi Han turned around and shouted, Be careful. Unfortunately, it seemed too late, and all the guards were hit by the dark energies. They only managed to say, Don't save me. At this moment, an elderly man in a black robe appeared, wielding a spinning dark energy, and remarked, Surprising that you can block the old fashioned moves of this old man. You do have some strength. Unfortunately, you can protect yourself but not others. With those words, a regular looking string suddenly shot out, coiling tightly around the neck of one of the guards. He was then pulled away, struggling and pleading for help. Yi Han gritted his teeth in frustration, looking around to observe. Are there others? Are they accomplices? A blonde woman emerged, stepping on the struggling guard and warned. Where do you think you're going? In another direction, a tall and powerful assassin, with finger joints that could bend unnaturally, strode forward and declared. This young man belongs to me. None of you are allowed to interfere. Yi Han and Nan Gong Zi Hun found themselves surrounded. Nan Gong Zi Hun couldn't help but tremble in fear as he asked, Lei Han, what should we do? Yi Han immediately reassured him, Don't worry, with me here, nothing will happen to you. In his heart, he calculated, Three opponents, the longer it takes, the more disadvantageous for us. We must fight quickly and decisively. The female assassin, with long blonde hair, yawned disdainfully and said, you muscle-bound creature. Don't you want to take him down alone? Hurry up, deal with them, and I can go home early for some beauty sleep. The muscular figure immediately took action. He charged towards Yi Han, provocatively, saying, Come here, young man. Let's have a little duel. Seeing him approach, Yi Han smiled inwardly. Good opportunity. He immediately threw a punch in response to the opponent's technique, and their internal forces clashed without a clear winner. The blonde woman waved her whip and said, With a fire user here, the one with the grape-sized brain doesn't need to exert much effort. The old man, wielding a dark weapon, chuckled affirmatively, This young man is as good as dead. The remaining bodyguards have nothing to worry about. Overall, this mission is quite easy. But as soon as he finished speaking, the muscular man was sent flying into the wall by Yi Han. He immediately spat out a mouthful of fresh blood leaving the other two astonished and exclaiming. What? After knocking down the muscular man, Yi Han challenged, Who's next? The blonde woman swung her whip towards Yi Han, saying, It's getting a bit challenging now. Let's team up and take down this little guy together. Yi Han, undeterred, drew his short sword and cut the whip into countless pieces, mocking, A little trickery dares to show off in front of me. The woman, seeing her whip cut to shreds, shouted in frustration. Not good. She then turned and questioned the old man behind her. Old man, damn it, why haven't you intervened yet? At this moment, the old man had already scampered away, instructing, You keep her busy. I'll go find reinforcements. The woman was left dumbfounded, and the old man, running away, thought to himself, One leader could disable that muscle-bound fellow. This young man is at least a mid-level martial artist. Even if the three of us join forces, we might not be a match for him. The woman, still standing in shock, cursed. Old man, damn you. Yi Han appeared behind her as swift as a cut, his voice chilling. It's your turn now. The blonde woman, now startled, turned around and exclaimed, Wait, I. As she turned around, her cheek absorbed the full force of Yi Han's punch. She was propelled backward for a considerable distance, then collapsed on the ground. The old man, witnessing this, panicked and exclaimed, Damn it, the lady assassin is also done for. I must run. Otherwise, I'll surely die. Yi Han showed no mercy. He approached the old man with a drawn sword, shouting, You can't escape. Finishing his words, Yi Han transferred his internal force into the sword, unleashing a powerful energy. The blade pierced through the body of the old assassin, causing him to gasp in disbelief. How? How is this possible? Unfortunately, he couldn't finish his sentence as he quickly fell to the ground. With the task complete, Yi Han sheathed his sword and leaned against a pillar, observing in silence. Nan Gong Zi Huan, terrified, ran towards him, hugging him and exclaiming, Yi Han. She sobbed uncontrollably, saying, I was so scared, thought I was going to die, but fortunately, 
you're okay. Yi Han comforted her, gently stroking her head. It's all right, don't cry anymore, everything is fine now. The surviving bodyguards, witnessing this swift and formidable display of combat, couldn't help but express their amazement, saying, the three formidable experts were defeated by Yi Han in the blink of an eye. He's truly extraordinary. With him here, we were not needed at all. I wonder where Miss Nan Gong found such a skilled warrior. Yi Han held Nan Gong Zehuan's hand and reminded her, Let's go, Sister Mei. They are probably waiting for you outside. Hearing that, Nan Gong Zehuan wiped away her tears with a smile. At this moment, the muscular assassin suddenly moved creating a noise that immediately caught Yi Han's attention. The assassin used his mouth to remove the pin from a grenade, sinisterly saying, let's die together. Having said that, he threw the grenade towards the two. Yi Han quickly reacted, pulling Nan Gong Zi Huan down and saying, Zi Huan, be careful. Returning to 30 minutes earlier at the main entrance, the police had arrived and were stationed outside. Sister Mai eagerly approached police officer Ruan and said, Comrade police, you finally arrived. Anxiously, she cried. Our young lady is in the parking lot. Hurry there and save her. Police officer Ruwen reassured her, advising, Don't worry. We have sent officers to defuse the bomb there. We believe that it can be done quickly. At this point, a loud explosion echoed from the parking lot, startling the entire police force. The powerful blast caused the fire to spread intensely. Police officer Ruwen, surprised, asked, Where did that explosion come from? Sister Mai immediately collapsed on the ground, completely distraught, crying out, Zai Huan. A police officer approached to report. Reporting to the captain, there was a loud explosion in the parking lot, and the cause is unknown. Currently, we haven't found any traces. Hearing this, police officer Ruin sighed, raising his hand and saying, Understood, step back. He comforted Sister Mai. We apologize for our best efforts. Miss Nan Gong, May. Sister Mai couldn't believe it. She suddenly stood up, gripping her hand tightly and said, No, he promised to ensure Zai Huan's safety. I believe in him. Police officer Ruin placed his hand on her shoulder, sympathizing with her pain. Manager Mai, I understand your emotions, but in such a massive explosion, it's unlikely anyone could survive. Please try to ease your heartache. At that moment, another police officer exclaimed, Wait a moment, I'm not seeing things. It seems like someone is coming out from inside. Indeed, it was Yi Han carrying Nan Gong Zi Huan in his arms, seemingly shielded and protected. The police officer couldn't believe his eyes and skeptically asked, Is this a joke? With such a huge explosion, how can someone be alive, let alone him? Another police officer immediately pointed and shouted, Doctor, come over here. There's someone injured here. Manager Mai saw him coming out and immediately ran towards him in joy. There were slight signs of fatigue on Yi Han's face, but he had almost no visible injuries. He smiled and said, I didn't disappoint your trust. I've safely brought Nan Gong Zi Huan out. Police officer Ruin, seeing him, exclaimed in astonishment, Yi Han, unexpectedly, it's him. Sister Mai wiped tears of joy and emotion, expressing, Too, too good. I knew you could do it. Returning to his mansion, Yi Han sighed wearily and thought, Finally, I've safely delivered Nan Gong Zi Huan to the police. She should be safe now. Yi Han reached to open the door, but someone inside was a few seconds faster. Duan Ni, with a dark expression, opened the door. Yi Han commented, It's so late. Duan Nai, you're still here waiting for me. I'm truly moved. He attempted to hug her, but Duan Nai swiftly pushed him away, leaving him a bit puzzled. Ha! Huh, what's wrong? He asked. Duan Ni, angrily gripping his collar, scolded, Yei Han, tomorrow is the day you open your clinic. I'm busy helping you handle things outside, and here you are, staying with Miss Nan Gong Zi Huan until late at night. Yi Han, taken aback, stepped back and explained, Wait, Duan Ni, let me explain. Someone wanted to kill Nan Gong Zi Huan, and I was on a mission to protect her. However, Du and I seemed unconvinced, and in a fit of jealousy and anger, she shouted, I don't believe you. She then took out a stick and began hitting him relentlessly, saying, Take a hit from the young lady. In the late night, Yi Han's voice echoed pitifully, I'm telling the truth. The next day, Yi Han's clinic officially opened with the sound of celebratory fireworks. Outside, people flocked in, 
and luxury cars filled the parking area. The receptionist warmly announced, Mr. Dong, the executive of the Lin family company, has come to congratulate. The secretary of the city president has come to congratulate Dr. Yi on the opening of the clinic. The Baifeng Alliance extends its congratulations on the prosperous business of Dr. Yi. Outside, onlookers couldn't help but marvel. Wow, the owner of this clinic must be someone special. Why would so many prominent figures come to congratulate? With this situation, it's hard for the top companies in the city to compete. I must establish a relationship with the owner of this clinic. I need to go prepare some gifts. As time passed, inside the clinic, Du Wenai smiled and said, Thank you. Thank you. Just coming here is enough. No need to bring gifts. You're welcome to visit regularly in the future. Yi Han, with a swollen face, stood silently behind her, observing her. Tang Hai Bin, seeing this, teased, Yi Han, what's going on? Is there a family feud? Do you need me to help smooth things over? Lin Bai Mo leaned on Yi Han's shoulder and said, The most challenging part is receiving the favor of a beautiful woman, Yi Han. The days ahead are long. Take it slow. Yi Han, in anger, raised his middle finger to the two and scolded, You two scoundrels, adding fuel to the fire. Sooner or later, you will face a day like mine. At this moment, the girl welcoming guests announced again. The big star, Nan Gong Zi Huan, congratulates the prosperous business of the Yi family clinic. Money flows in like water. Finishing her words, Nan Gong Zi Hun cheerfully entered, waving her hand and asking, Yi Han, based on our relationship, you opened the clinic without informing me. Luckily, Sister Mag got the news. Seeing her approaching, Yi Han stiffened, desperate and silently murmuring, Nan Gong Zi Huan, why are you here? Sweating with fear, he dared not look at Duan Ni, thinking, it's over. Duan Nai will surely misunderstand. Exactly as he thought, Duan Nai smiled but emitted a strong and threatening aura while looking at Yi Han. She asked, based on your relationship, Yi Han, what connection do you have with Nan Gong Zi Huan? Yi Han frantically shook his head, waving his hand to explain, nothing, absolutely nothing. We just met last night. Hearing this, Duan Nai darkened, exerting a low-pressure aura towards Yi Han as a warning. Quickly changing her expression, she smiled warmly, extending her hand towards Nan Gong Zi Huan, saying, Oh, you must be Nan Gong Zi Huan, right? Nan Gong Zi Huan also extended her hand, and Duan Nai continued, I really like you. I'm Yi Han's girlfriend, Duan Nai. Thank you for taking care of Yi Han from my family yesterday. Hearing that, Nan Gong Zi Huan raised an eyebrow, thinking, What? Is this a declaration of sovereignty over me? Du and Nai responded with a gaze, Exactly. Yi Han belongs to this young lady. It's best for you to clarify your relationship with me. Nan Gong Zi Huan smiled but firmly squeezed Du and Ni's hand, replying, Sister Du and Nai is really good at joking. Last night I didn't do anything for Yi Han. He always cares about me. Hearing this, Du and Nai was infuriated, but she continued to express, Yi Han is truly a trustworthy man. Sister Du and Nai is indeed fortunate. Du and Nai quickly retorted, Let's not talk about this anymore. Oh, Zai Huan, you seem a bit dry. I know a great skincare product. Let me introduce it to you. The two glare at each other, engaging in a back and forth exchange. Zai Huan also said, No need. The fine lines at the corners of Sister Duan Ni's eyes have already appeared. Pay attention to resting more. Don't stay up late. Duan Nai replied, Sister, rest assured, I go to bed early every day. Those celebrities must be tired running back and forth. Your thighs are almost plumper than mine. Sister Duan Ni, you should also take care of yourself. Look at your dark and rough skin. Someone might mistake you for working as a porter all night. The atmosphere between the two became thick with the smell of gunpowder. Tang Hai Bin, sensing the tension, placed his hand on Yi Han's shoulder to console him. Yi Han, I now understand your situation. Pray for yourself. Yi Han couldn't help but sigh. Desperate as he knelt to the ground, lamenting, I'm suffering so much. In the midst of the intense atmosphere, the MC girl read aloud, and the next person bringing gifts was announced. Shen Tian L. The disciple of the king of Western medicine has come to present gifts. Hearing this, everyone, including Duan Nai 
and Nangong Zi Huan froze and turned to look at the door. Yi Han's face revealed a trace of sarcasm as he thought. The king of Western medicine, he really showed up. Tang Hai Bin frowned, grinning his teeth with evident anger, remarking, Shen Tianao, this wretched guy dares to appear here. Lin Bai Mo calmly observed the situation, coolly saying, his appearance doesn't seem promising. Shen Tianao wore a smug smile, because today he had someone backing him up, and that person was none other than the one standing next to him, Wang Ju Zhen. This person appeared serious, and a young man with green hair exclaimed, Shen Tianao, who once competed in medical skills with Yi Han and lost. Wang Ju Zhen is here for revenge on behalf of his disciple. A brown-haired individual continued, the king of Western medicine, with a renowned reputation throughout Zhang Duagu. Today, Yi Han is sure to face some consequences. The red-haired young man stood composed, passing judgment. I don't see it that way. I've personally witnessed Yi Han's superb medical skills. The outcome is yet to be determined. Yi Han greeted Wang Jujin, Senior Wang, what brings you here today? Any advice? Wang Jujin stroked his beard, smirking with cold eyes, replied, I wouldn't dare give advice. I've heard that my disciple was defeated by you, and I want to see how exceptional your medical skills truly are. Hearing this, Tang Hai Bin, standing behind Yi Han, frowned and gritted his teeth in discomfort. Shen Tianao, lurking behind Wang Ju Zhen, wore a smug expression, laughing mockingly. Yi Han, with my backing here today, you're like a fish caught in a net, not long before you're on the chopping block. Tang Hai Bin couldn't keep calm anymore. His blood boiled and his shoe stomped the ground with a resounding thud. Shen Tianao, I think you're asking for a beating. Wait for me to take off my shoes, and let's see if I can throw that wretched guy of your family to death. Seeing this, Wang Ju Zhen's face darkened with anger as he shouted, Yi Han, is this how you welcome guests? Yi Han quickly restrained Tang Hai Bin's actions, speaking coldly, how I welcome guests is none of your concern. If it's a friend visiting my home, I'll host a banquet. But if it's a wolf, I won't hesitate to use a hunting rifle. His face resolute and fearless, Yi Han continued, Wang Ju Zhen, whatever tricks you have, bring them out. I'm not afraid. Wang Ju Zhen smirked knowingly, saying, All right. He turned around and loudly ordered his subordinate, Zhu Lai, come forward. Zhu Lai replied, Yes. Slowly, Zhu Lai stepped forward, accompanied by an unbearable stench. Everyone instinctively covered their noses, their faces contorting. Someone complained, What is this smell? It's disgusting. I'm about to throw up the dinner I had last night. This person seems to be sick. Wang Ju Zhen, why did you bring him here? Zhu Lai looked extremely embarrassed and frightened, shrinking back. Wang Ju Zhen introduced, In this person's body, there is a poisonous soul segment, one of the most toxic in the world. If not cured within seven days, it poses a life-threatening danger. Can you save him? Hearing this, Yi Han's face became thoughtful. Tang Hai Bin, Lin Bai Mo, and Duan Nai were all shocked and amazed. They silently thought, poisonous soul segment, huh? People started speculating and discussing. The smell on him may indeed be a result of being poisoned by the soul segment. If not treated within seven days, it might lead to death. There seems to be no antidote for this poison. Generally, there's only one path for those poisoned death. Wang Ju Zhen probably wants Yi Han to cure him, an impossible task. Tang Haimbin was extremely agitated, pointing straight at Wang Ju Zhen, cursing, You wretched old man. It's clear you want to cause trouble for Yi Han. The poisonous soul segment is an incurable poison. Why don't you have the courage to treat it yourself? Wang Ju Zhen raised three fingers confidently and said, Of course, I can cure this poison. It only takes three days. Although after detoxification, his cultivation will basically be irreparable. At least he will still keep his life. Zhu Lai, hearing this, was shocked, his face turning pale. He exclaimed, No. Meanwhile, Shen Ting and El wore a smug smile. Zhu Lai quickly kneeled down, clasping his hands, and begged Wang Zhu Zhen, Master Wang, please help me retain my cultivation. If not, my enemies will come knocking on my door, and my only path will be death. Shen Tianel frowned, pointed at Zhu Lai, and loudly declared, Being able to continue living is already good enough. 
Except for my subordinate, no one else can cure this poison. Despite Wang Zhu Jin's confident statements, Yi Han remained remarkably calm. He smiled with a calculating expression and spoke. Well, that's not necessarily true. Yi Han continued with a cheerful tone. Wang Zhu Jin, you may not be able to retain his cultivation, but I can. You need three days to cure him, but I only need three minutes. Yi Han also raised three fingers with a confident expression in response to Wang Zhu Jin. Zhu Lai, surprised and shocked, turned to Yi Han, his mouth gaping, and questioned, What's going on? The people in the building were equally astonished. Faced with Yi Han's firm assertion, they couldn't help but discuss. Yi Han said he can cure him, and the effectiveness seems much better than Wang Zhu Zhen. What kind of joke is this? That's the poisonous soul segment, it's not just a common cold. Although Yi Han is highly skilled, he seems a bit too arrogant. Wang Zhu Zhen laughed loudly, expressing disbelief. He then made a deal with Yi Han, saying, Indeed, this is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. If you can do it, I will immediately bow to you three times right here in your clinic. Let's see how it goes. Yi Han smiled confidently, standing with folded arms, replying, All right, Wang Zhu Zhen, these are your own words. Don't regret it when the time comes. Wang Zhu Zhen chuckled with satisfaction, laying out a condition in case Yi Han lost. However, if you fail to cure Zhu Lai, I will personally dismantle your clinic sign ensuring you'd never lift your head high again. Both Yi Han and Wang Zhu Zhen looked at each other with confident eyes, sealing this deal with a spoken agreement. Zhu Lai still seemed somewhat doubtful, his face reflecting confusion as he questioned Yi Han. Mr. Yi, can you really cure me, and moreover, help me retain my cultivation? Yi Han smiled and replied, Mr. Zhu, rest assured, I'm saving you not for my reputation. With a thin, haggard face, Zhu Lai clasped his hands, kneeling and promising to Yi Han, Dr. Yi, if I can recover, even if you ask me to jump into boiling oil, I will not refuse. Shen Tianao, hearing this, sneered and said, I see you're truly foolish, believing in a young upstart like him. Du Nitty cheered enthusiastically for her boyfriend, waving her hands and feet. Li Han, keep it up, I believe in you. Nan Gong Zi Hulan formed a heart shape with her hands, offering encouragement. Yi Han, I also believe that you can do it, sending hearts your way. Then the two girls exchanged hostile glances, as both of them had their eyes set on Yi Han. Yi Han stood there, not particularly pleased, feeling more pity than joy. However, he didn't let it bother him too much. Firstly, Yi Han gently instructed Zhu Lai, Mr. Zhu, please take off your shirt, so I can perform acupuncture on you. Zhu Lai agreed, certainly, Dr. Yi. Zhu Lai stood up and slowly removed his upper garments, revealing the vividly pulsating green veins all over his body. Everyone at the party gasped in astonishment, their faces turning pale, and they expressed concerns for Yi Han. Oh, what is this? It's terrifying. They worried for Yi Han, thinking, with this condition, solving the poison in three minutes seems impossible. Zhu Lai lay down on the bed, his hollow face and frail body appearing quite pitiable. Seeing this, Wang Zhu Zhen secretly chuckled to himself. I didn't expect the toxicity to be so severe. Yi Han, you're probably going to lose this time. Yi Han, holding three acupuncture needles in his hand, thought to himself. As I predicted, just a little effort to control the blood circulation in one place can lead to recovery. Then, with a cold demeanor, Yi Han swiftly inserted three needles into Zhu Lai's neck, arm muscles, and wrists. The fiery energy was now penetrating Zhu Lai's body. Yi Han sat down, regulating Zhu Lai's body with controlled breaths and sighed with relief. It's done. At the same time, Zhu Lai coughed up a large clot of blood. Among the expelled blood, there was a viscous, greenish substance rising into the air. Yi Han observed Zhu Lai and thought to himself, the toxin seems to have completely emerged. There shouldn't be any issues. Leaning against his hip, Yi Han inquired of Zhu Lai, How do you feel? Zhu Lai, with a pale and feeble expression, replied, I feel much better now. He then looked down at his body, examined himself thoroughly, and his face brightened as he answered. Moreover, the cultivation within my body, previously suppressed by toxins, has now recovered. Wang Zhu Zhen fell silent, his face paled, 
and hesitantly he uttered, This, this can't be. Shen Tianao also froze, his mouth agape in astonishment, saying, What kind of joke is this? Yi Han's medical skills are even superior to his master's. Revitalized, Zhu Lai bounced around joyfully, then enthusiastically declared, I am cured, I am completely healed. He then ran over to where Wang Zhuzhen stood, taunting and mocking him with gestures, saying, You couldn't maintain my cultivation, but Dr. Yi can. It takes you three days to cure me, while Dr. Yi only needs three minutes. Wang Zhuzhen, you may be the king of Western medicine, but Dr. Yi is the true medical sovereign. Wang Zhuzhen stood motionless, his face ashen, frozen in place without a word. Then suddenly he groaned, blood spraying out from his mouth, clutching his chest in agony. I'm furious to death, he exclaimed. The old man collapsed to the ground, and Shen Tian El hurriedly rushed to support his master. His face filled with shock, he stroked Wang Zhuzhen's chest and said, Master, what's happening? You can't die. If you die, who will be the pillar for your disciples? Witnessing this outcome, everyone burst into laughter, praising Yi Han's talent and applauding him endlessly. There were also mocking laughs and taunts directed at Wang Zhuzhen's disciples. Li Han, to think that he could resolve Zhu Lai's life-threatening situation within three minutes, truly amazing. Wang Zhuzhen must be furious. He doesn't deserve to be compared to Yi Han. Yi Han is the true medical genius. From now on, if I get sick, I'll go straight to the Yi family clinic. Shen Tian El lifted Wang Zhuzhen and guided him away from the scene. Before leaving, he boldly declared, Yi Han, our matter today is far from over. Yi Han put his hands in his pockets and loudly declared, Wait, Tang Hai Bin and Lin Bai Mo smirked. Yi Han pointed to the ground and cheerfully said, If I have cured Zhu Lai, Shouldn't you fulfill your promise? Kneel down and bow to me three times right here in the clinic. Isn't that right? Shen Tianel frowned, sweat streaming down nervously as he responded. But, but our master has fainted, and he can't kneel. Yi Han coldly stated, He's unconscious, but you're still awake. Aren't you his disciple? Then kneel down on behalf of Wang Ju Zhen. The invited guests to Zhang's opening ceremony, with determined faces, demanded justice. It's only fair. If they lose, they should kneel. Why haven't they knelt yet? If they don't kneel, they should be defeated. Shen Tianel, now pale with embarrassment, stammered, This, this matter. Finally, he knelt down on the ground and kowtowed to Yi Han in place of his master. He bowed his head three times, loudly apologizing. I'm sorry, I was wrong. Yi Han, please forgive me for this time. Your skills are superior, and we are sincerely impressed and respect your expertise. At this moment, Yi Han felt a sense of satisfaction. He waved his hand dismissively to Shen Tianao, saying, That's enough. You may leave now. The onlookers chuckled at the arrogance of Wang Jujin's disciples. Shen Tianao stood up and expressed his gratitude. Thank you. Then he continued to help his unconscious master leave the premises. Though claimed to be unconscious, Wang Zhuzhen seemed to be walking steadily alongside Shen Tianel. After walking a considerable distance away from Yi Han's clinic, Wang Zhuzhen sneaked a peek around to see if anyone was watching. Then, abruptly, he shoved Shen Tianel away and scolded him, You spineless fool! You've ruined my image completely! Caught off guard, Shen Tianel stumbled and fell to the ground. Dazed, he exclaimed, Master, aren't you supposed to be unconscious? Wang Zhuzhen with folded arms, explained with a grimace, You idiot! If I didn't fake being unconscious, wouldn't I have to bow to that arrogant fellow? Why do I have a disciple as foolish as you? Shen Tian Exia sat on the ground, crying loudly. He accused Wang Zhuzhen, Master, by doing this, you're playing with your disciple's feelings. Wang Zhuzhen returned home with a gloomy expression. Shen Tian L, bewildered, asked, Master, we were humiliated today. Should we just let it go like this? Wang Zhuzhen, with a cold and determined gaze, replied, Certainly not. I've long been prepared. He turned around, assigning a task to Shen Tianel, immediately informed the Blood Hand Gang, let them know that Tai Xiao has been killed by Yi Han. Hearing this, Shen Tianel smirked with a devious smile, using someone else to do the dirty work, a cunning plan. 
With the blood hand gang involved, Yi Han, you're done for this time. Wang Ju Jin's eyes sparkled, and he chuckled with a cunning tone. Yi Han, even if your medical skills are superior, when you die, I will still be the renowned king of Western medicine. After a long day at the pharmacy, Yi Han, exhausted, slowly made his way back home. The streets were quiet, and as he walked, he yawned, stretching his limbs to relax. He said, busy all day, finally done. I should hurry home. Maybe Chen and Duan Nai are waiting for me to have dinner. Suddenly, a mysterious figure clad in a purple robe appeared in the sky, wielding a sword, rushing towards Yi Han, intending to attack him from behind. He shouted, prepare to die, youngster. Upon hearing this, Yi Han swiftly turned around, casting a quick glance, silently thinking, this doesn't look good. The old man in the purple robe attempted to move, but Yi Han skillfully avoided it. The two stood about five meters apart, exchanging glances. Yi Han spoke up. Where did you come from? The old man in the purple robe straightened up, his beard gently stroked by his hand, and introduced himself. Guan Fei, a member of the Blood Hand Gang. Yi Han brushed off the dust on his clothes with his hand and coolly replied. A member of the Blood Hand Gang, huh? It seems you already know that Tai Shu was killed by me. Suddenly, Yi Han heard footsteps approaching from behind. It was the arrival of Zhang Chao Feng and Zhang Wu. Zhang Chao Feng coldly responded to Yi Han, indeed, daring to confront the Blood Hand Gang. Yi Han, today is the day of reckoning. Then Guan Fi, Zhang Wu, and Zhang Chao Feng positioned themselves, blocking Yi Han from three directions. Zhang Wu spoke Blood debts must be repaid in blood. Yi Han remained incredibly calm, smirking as he pulled out a knight from his person, and said, Want to kill me? I doubt the three of you are enough for the task. Zhang Xiao Feng, angered, shouted loudly, Arrogant, a worm like you, I alone am sufficient to deal with you. Saying this, he lunged towards Yi Han, emitting a red light. A green aura emanated from Yi Han's entire body, his eyes turned icy, and he loudly declared, Come at me then. The colliding forces of green and red created thunderous explosions. Wines whipped around them. Guan Fei, with a serious expression, remarked, The young master is indeed a rare genius. The white jade skill has been refined to a smooth level over the years. Even if we unleash our full military force, it's difficult to harm the young master. Hearing this, Zhang Wu smiled and responded, It seems this battle doesn't require our intervention. That guy will quickly lose his life under the young master's mastery. As he finished speaking, their young master, Zhang Chao Feng, was thrust into the wall by Yi Han's power. A resounding impact echoed, sounding truly agonizing. Zhang Chao Feng screamed, No. Then blood spewed from his mouth. Guan Fei exclaimed in horror, What's happening? Zhang Wu, equally shocked, called out, Young master. They rushed to Zhang Chao Feng helping him stand up hastily, anxiously asking, Young master, are you okay? What happened to you? Zhang Xiaofeng, paralyzed and unmoving, trembled and said, Damn it, my hand is screwed. Blood began to flow from Zhang Xiaofeng's hand. Guan Fei exclaimed in horror, The young master's white jade skill has been broken. Zhang Wu, utterly astonished, couldn't believe the reality. Impossible. That kid is unexpectedly so formidable. Yi Han, holding the knife, approached Zhang Xiaofeng, mocking him, just a little skill, and you want to kill me, how pathetic. Zhang Xiaofeng, upon hearing this, couldn't contain his rage, his face contorted as he shouted, you dare call me pathetic, I will definitely kill you. Yi Han smiled and replied, no, 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 you misunderstood my intention. I didn't say you are pathetic, I said all three of you are pathetic. After saying this, he laughed heartily, his face full of mockery. Guan Fi and Zhang Wu, boiling with rage, glared at Yi Han with intense hostility. Guan Fei said, Wretched scum, Zhang Wu added, This arrogant brat is digging his own grave. Zhang Xiao Feng took out three pills from his pocket and said, Zhai Han, these are what you brought upon yourself. He then swallowed one pill forcefully and tossed the remaining two to the others. Zhang Xiaofeng loudly commanded, Uncle Zhang, Uncle Zhang, take the bloodthirsty pills. Then we'll join forces to kill him. Don't let him have a chance to survive. Guan Fi and Zhang Wu responded in unison. 
All right. Then, they each forcefully swallowed the pills. Yi Han, noticing this, asked in surprise, Bloodthirsty pills. What are these? After taking the pills, the three of them roared fiercely, their strength multiplying, and the aura of flames becoming even more intense. Yi Han thought to himself, their power has increased several times. It seems escaping from here today will be a life or death situation. Jiang Chiao Feng grinned triumphantly and said, Right Han, forcing me to use bloodthirsty pills is an honor. Yi Han quickly pulled out three silver needles, declaring loudly, Don't think only you know about blood activation. I know it too. He shouted, Key Vessel Spirit Needle. A surge of green aura erupted, and his eyes turned fiery red. Zheng Xiao Feng, looking arrogant, commented, struggling in your final moments. Then, Zheng Xiao Feng, along with Zhang Wu and Guan Fei, charged towards Yi Han, shouting relentlessly, Kill! Kill! Yi Han, holding the knife ready for an attack, displayed equal determination. Come on, let's fight! Both sides clashed fiercely, creating a scene of chaos, the wind whirled, carrying dust and obscuring the view. Yi Han soared into the sky, laughing heartily and saying, Zhang Chao Feng, today I will teach you a lesson. No need to see me off, just wait, there's a little gift for you behind. He then descended towards the rushing river. Breaking the sword in his hand, Yi Han swiftly approached Guan Fei. At this moment, Guan Fei was sitting on the ground, the sword piercing through his body. Zhang Wu, standing behind, staggered and asked, Master Guan Fei, He's dead. Zhang Chao Feng, standing on the bridge, looked down at the river. His face turned serious as he ordered Zhang Wu. Yi Han must be seriously injured. Immediately send someone to search. We must find him, dead or alive. In Yi Han's villa, Duan Nai and the others were still unaware of Yi Han's situation. They stood there waiting for his return. Impatiently pacing around the room, Duan Ni complained. It's not easy for us to gather in full force. Let's prepare a surprise for Yi Han. Congratulate him on the opening of the clinic. He's still not back, and the food is getting cold. Frustrated, Duan Nai exhaled sharply and angrily said, This really infuriates me. Yi Sin noticed Duan Ni's impatience and quickly stepped forward to offer some advice, saying, All right, Duan Nai, perhaps Yi Han is dealing with something. That's why he's late. I'll go reheat the food. After uttering these words, Yi Sin headed to the kitchen leaving Duan Nei and the other two in the living room. Tang Hai Bin, seeing Duan Ni's frustration, didn't hesitate to add fuel to the fire as he said to Lin Bai Mo, What do you think? Yi Han might be looking for Nan Gong Zi Huan, isn't he? Realizing that Duan Nai was within earshot and sensing the chilly atmosphere, Lin Bai Mo quickly covered Tang Hai Bin's mouth and angrily said, Do you want to die? Can't you see that Duan Nai is already upset? Unable to contain herself, Duan Ni, surrounded by an aura of anger, declared, No, I can't wait. I have to go outside and find Yi Han. If I catch him with any woman, he's as good as dead. Just as Duan Nai was about to leave, the door opened, and police officer Ruin entered. He inquired, Who is Yi Han's family? Yi Xin, seeing the police officer, hurriedly rushed out anxiously, asking, What happened to Yi Han? I'm his sister. Police officer Ruin lowered his head solemnly and informed, Based on my investigation, tonight, in front of the Yi family clinic, Yi Han was unexpectedly attacked by a group of assailants. His whereabouts are currently unknown. Hearing this information, everyone in the room was horrified. Duan Ni's face turned pale, disbelieving what she heard as she asked, What? Yi Xin, upon hearing about her brother's mysterious disappearance, collapsed on the floor in panic, murmuring, how? How could this happen? Police officer Ruin bowed his head to console everyone, saying, We've mobilized all available resources to search. We might have results soon. After speaking, police officer Ruin felt his duty was done here and left, saying, I'll keep you informed. In the now silent room, no one could believe that Yi Han had gone missing. Tang Hai Bin, feeling the need to take action, spoke to everyone. I'll go find my dad and ask him to mobilize all our connections to search for Yi Han. Lin Bai Mo also followed Tang Hai Bin, saying, I'll go find my dad too. I'll ask him to send the entire Lin family's personnel to look for Yi Han. Seeing this, Duan Ni, 
in tears, sought help, saying, I'll go find Grandpa. While walking away, Du and they murmured, Zhai Han, you must not let anything happen. Zhao Hao Tian clenched his fist, his face filled with anger, swearing, Yei Han, if anything happens, I will avenge him, even if it costs me my life. On the other side, King Chen reassured a distraught Yi Xin, saying, Sister, rest assured, Yi Han will surely not encounter any trouble. Yi Xin looked at King Chen with teary eyes, unable to do anything but hope and nod. Yes, Yi Han will definitely return safely. Despite saying so, Yi Xin's heart was going through a desperate period, thinking, if Yi Han encounters an unforeseen incident, I don't want to live either. Meanwhile, everyone was frantically searching for Yi Han, while he, wrapped in a full-body bandage, lay on a bed elsewhere. Yi Han was lying still, but suddenly, his eyebrows furrowed as if someone in his dream was calling him. Yi Han, Yi Han, wake up. In the dream, Duan Nai and Zai Wan, dressed in sweet maid outfits, looked at Yi Han. Duan Ni gently said, Zai Han, you finally awakened and breakfast is ready. Zai Wan, equally beautiful and alluring, added, Do you want to eat breakfast or do you want to eat us? Hearing this, Yi Han sat up, his eyes shining like stars, saliva dripping as he exclaimed, Why even ask? Of course, I want to eat both. In the dream, Everything unfolded as described, but afterward, Yi Han realized that something was amiss. He touched a hard object, unlike a girl's chest. It dawned on him that he had been in a dream since a while ago. When Duan Wen saw Yi Han suddenly wake up, embracing himself, she pushed him away anxiously and asked, Hey, why are you hugging me? At that moment, an old man with a cane entered the room and inquired, Duan Wen, is he awake? Hearing the newcomer, Duan Wen turned around and said, Uncle Hai, he just woke up. Uncle Hai raised his head, looked at Yi Han, nodded, and said, Hmm. In Uncle Hai's mind, he couldn't help but exclaim, The destined emperor encounters misfortune and doesn't die. In the future, he will surely be fortunate. It seems that Duan Wen has found the one he's been searching for. Meanwhile, Yi Han was still groggy, drooling slightly. After collecting his thoughts, he scratched his head looked at Uncle Hai, and asked, Excuse me, where is this, and did you save me? Uncle Hai stroked his beard leisurely and said, It's not that I saved you, it's that fate brought you before me. Everything is orchestrated by destiny. Yi Han, puzzled, asked, What is that supposed to mean? As Yi Han evaluated Uncle Hai, he thought, Why is this old man so mysterious? Couldn't it be that I've ended up in some mystical place? Uncle Hai looked at Yi Han, chuckled, and said, Open your mouth. However, Yi Han still didn't understand Uncle Hai's words and scratched his head, asking, What are you talking about? Seeing that Yi Han wasn't listening, Uncle Hai lifted his cane and struck Yi Han's chest. Yi Han, in pain, turned green, his mouth wide open in a scream. Seizing the opportunity, Uncle Hai took out a red pill and gently tossed it into Yi Han's mouth, saying, Swallow this. Yi Han, confused about what was happening, obediently swallowed the pill. The pill made Yi Han choke, kneel to the ground, struggling with a cough, feeling uncomfortable. Yi Han felt a burning pain all over. Holding his neck, he asked, Old man, what did you make me eat? Confidently stroking his beard, Uncle Hai said, Back in the day when I roamed the martial world, this was a treasure. Cures swollen feet, treats hemorrhoids, prevents bad breath, Guards against evil influences. From an 80-year-old woman with irregular periods to a 3-year-old with diaper rash, it can treat them all. One pill for a clear mind, two for bright eyes and a tall figure, three for eternal youth, a diamond in the rough, unmatched in flavor. Duan Wen stood by, full of admiration, adding, Uncle Hai is indeed the number one wandering healer in the martial world. Gi Han, now unable to do anything, turned pale with anger, and pointed accusingly at Uncle Hai, and said, Why do you two act like quack doctors, selling useless medicine? Despite Yi Han's suspicions, Uncle Hai continued to smile and said, Humph, how could we sell fake medicine? This is a guaranteed healing elixir. Duan Wen stood by and held up a sign with red words, vowing that if the medicine doesn't kill pests, they will die, supporting Uncle Hai's words. Yi Han, 
clutching his neck, spat out a mouthful of fresh blood, trembling all over, said, Insecticide, is it? At this moment, Yi Han suddenly felt his whole body becoming hot, with no pain left. He looked at the palm of his hand in astonishment and asked, What? What is happening? It seems like there's a power within my body. Seeing Yi Han's reaction, Uncle Hai also breathed a sigh of relief and earnestly said, It seems the medicine is starting to take effect. Stay here and recover. We're leaving now, foolish one. Du and Wen nodded and said, All right. Then, Uncle Hai and Du Wan Wen left together, giving Yi Han space to rest. Yi Han, aware of the misunderstanding caused by his hostile reaction, clasped his hands in apology and said, Thanks for the senior's elixir. It was my rudeness earlier. Uncle Hai waved his hand and said, No need to thank me. This is what you deserve. Then, he led Du Wan Wen out, leaving only Yi Han in the room. Yi Han clenched his fists and said, My wounds have improved significantly, and I've even broken through to a small realm. Truly, fortune favors the bold. Yi Han put on his clothes again, pondering in his mind. It's time to return. Being missing for so long, Du Wan Nei and my sister must be very worried. Outside in the courtyard, Uncle Hai sat on a chair, fanning himself with a fan. Ju Lai, who had been searching for Yi Han for the past few days, saw Uncle Hai and approached with a photo. Ju Lai presented Yi Han's picture to Uncle Hai and cheerfully inquired, Have you ever seen the person in this picture? His name is Yi Han. Uncle Hai stared at Yi Han's photo, raised his head, and asked, What's the name? Ju Lai said, Yi Han. But Uncle Hai pretended not to hear and asked, What? Ju Lai spoke louder, Ye Han. Uncle Hai continued, Ye what? After futile attempts to communicate, Ju Lai finally lost his patience, put the photo away, and said irritably, Never mind, just sit there and enjoy yourself. After that, Ju Lai continued to roam around to gather information about Ye Han. Ju Lai, feeling disheartened, walked forward and said, Indeed, I followed all the way here. The divine healer Yi should be around here. At that moment, Yi Han emerged from the room and saw Zhu Lai wandering around. Yi Han looked at Zhu Lai in confusion and asked, Zhu Lai, why are you here? Hearing the familiar voice, Zhu Lai turned around in surprise and said, Divine healer Yi, fantastic. I knew you wouldn't be harmed. Zhu Lai then explained the events that unfolded during Yi Han's disappearance. You've been missing for so long. Miss Yu has been insanely worried and is searching for you all over the world. After that, Zhu Lai urged, no time to hesitate. Let's go back now. Right then, Uncle Hai noticed Yi Han's intention to leave, so he let Duan Wen out. Uncle Hai pointed at Duan Wen and said, Yi Han, wait, let the fool accompany you outside. Its combat strength is not bad, not inferior to yours, and it can assist you. Unable to refuse this request from his benefactor, Yi Han clasped his hands respectfully and said, With the senior's favor, I will certainly take good care of the fool. Meanwhile, Zhu Lai, standing behind them, saw Uncle Hai and exclaimed, Wait a minute, earlier you pretended to be deaf, didn't you? Uncle Hai smiled and explained, saying, This old man has sharp eyes and good hearing. How could it be said that I pretended to be deaf? At that time, I didn't know whether you were a friend or foe, so I intentionally deceived you a little. Hearing this explanation, Zhu Lai couldn't bear it any longer and sprayed blood from his nose, helplessly saying, Bloody hell! On Zhang Xiaofeng's side, the blood assassins, led by Zhang Xiaofeng, had blocked the front of Yi Han's house. Zhang Xiaofeng declared, Ye Han, our blood assassins have suffered the loss of two great generals. If we don't kill him, we can't resolve the hatred in our hearts. In Yi Han's mansion, Yi Xin's worry group stood together. Yi Xin held the hand of the police officer Ruan, tears streaming down her face, and asked, Officer Ruan, is there still no news of Yi Han? Officer Ruan could only shake his head helplessly and say, I'm sorry, we've tried our best. Upon hearing this, Yi Han began to cry and begged, saying, Officer Ruan, please, please make sure to find Yi Han. Duan Nai stood by, tears flowing like rain, full of determination, as she tightly held both hands and said, I absolutely won't give up. I must find Yi Han. No matter what. Du Du stood beside Duan Nai, hurriedly approached, 
and placed her hand gently on Duan Ni's shoulder, comforting her. Duan Ni, don't worry too much. My brother has already sent someone in the underworld to find him. I believe we'll get news very soon. Just as everyone was in chaos over Yi Han, a loud laughter echoed. Zhang Chao Feng approached, followed by the blood assassins. He laughed sarcastically and said, Unexpectedly, this damn Yi Han has so many women worrying about him. It's quite admirable, making this young master a bit envious. Seeing Zhang Xiao Feng leading his men, the Yi Xin group looked alarmed and questioned. Are you the ones who killed Yi Han? Zhang Xiao Feng smirked and said, Exactly. I see you all longing for him day and night. It's better for our young master to send you down to the underworld. Reunite with him soon. He pointed forward and ordered his subordinates. Kill. Upon Zhang Xiao Feng's command, his subordinates rushed toward the four girls. Yi Xin, Duan Ni, Du Du, and police officer Ruan. At that moment, Zhao Hao Tian and Sun Bu Mi stepped forward, standing in front of the Yi Xin group. Zhao Hao Tian shouted, We've been waiting for you for a long time. Sun Bu Mi also brandished his stick, saying, Come and meet your doom. Following that, Zhao Hao Tian and Sun Bu Mi teamed up to deal with the group in front, dispersing them forward. Seeing his subordinates being driven away, Zhang Chiao Feng, enraged, pointed at Zhao Hao Tian, speaking with a menacing tone. Zhao Hao Tian, you're being hunted by the celestial sect, like a stray dog, and yet you dare to offend our blood assassin group. Zhao Hao Tian clenched his fist firmly and replied with determination, I'm not afraid of the celestial sect, let alone fear your blood assassins. If you come, don't expect to leave in one piece. Sun Bu Mi, fearless as well, added, Today, we will kill you all to avenge Han. At that moment, another person approached slowly, his voice icy, not afraid of the celestial sect, A. Eh? This newcomer was muscular, exuding a formidable aura. He looked at Zhao Hao Tian with a disdainful smile and said, Zhao Hao Tian, you've got quite the guts. Zhao Hao Tian raised an eyebrow, suspicious, and asked, Tian Wang, the number one disciple below Hu Tian Zun of the Celestial Sect. I didn't expect you to be here. The number one disciple, Tian Wang, crossed his arms, spoke coldly, Zhao Hao Tian, last time, I let you escape, but today, you won't be so lucky. Zhang Xiao Feng, seeing another person intervening, stepped forward to negotiate, saying, Zhao Hao Tian, yours are yours, and the others are ours. What do you think? Tian Wang, arms still crossed, nodded in agreement. No problem. Tian Wang, the number one disciple, and Zhang Xiao Feng cooperated seamlessly, shouting in unison, Kill! Their subordinates also surged forward, ferociously declaring, Kill them all! Wipe them out completely! Faced with the onslaught, Zhao Hao Tian swung his fists rapidly, temporarily holding back their attackers. However, the situation quickly turned dire, and Zhao Hao Tan couldn't withstand the pressure. He said, Do do, you and the others run quickly, I'll hold them off. Sun Bu Mi, undeterred, fought back with determination, using his staff to strike at the assailants, insisting, As long as this old man is still alive, you have nothing to worry about. Seeing the chaotic battlefield unfolding, Du Anai swiftly pulled Yi Xin away, saying, We need to run now. Before they could escape, Zhang Xiao Feng stepped forward, blocking their path, and coldly asked, Planning to leave? Du Ne confronted him, angered, You, what do you want? Unwilling to explain further, Zhang Xiao Feng icily replied, Of course, I want to kill all of you. With that, he raised his hand to strike at Du Ni's group. Seeing this, Zhao Hao Tian, unable to hold off the attackers on the other side, turned pale and panicked, shouting, No! Sun Bu Mi, witnessing that the assailants were relentless even towards his daughter, erupted in fury, yelling, Stop this madness! As Zhang Xiao Feng's hand approached, ready to strike their faces, Du Nan closed her eyes, silently thinking, Yi Han, I'm coming to find you. Just as Du Nai believed her end was near, the expected pain failed to materialize. Du Nai opened her eyes and saw Yi Han appearing. She immediately extended her hand, attacking Zhang Xiaofeng. Yi Han shouted loudly, You're tired of living. Surprised and astonished, everyone saw Yi Han, and they exclaimed, Yi Han! 
Yi Han twisted his wrist, furrowing his brows as he looked at the people in front of him, saying, I'm back, prepare to meet your end. Meanwhile, Zhang Xiaofeng, knocked away by Yi Han, got up and faced him, saying, Ye Han, you indeed haven't died yet. He wiped away the blood from his face and continued, However, that's not an issue. Today, I will capture all of you in one sweep. Zhang Xiaofeng stood up and commanded his subordinates, Charge, kill this Yi Han immediately. Zhang Wu, leading the group, replied, Understood. Duan Wen, at this moment, swiftly rushed forward with a stick, striking the group led by Zhang Wu. Duan Wen disdainfully looked at the people in front of him and said, You all are not even worth playing with. Caught off guard, Zhang Wu's group was sent flying by the stick. They screamed in agony, wondering, Where did that stick come from? Zhang Fai, fortunate to avoid the attack, glared at Duan Wen in anger, asking, Who are you? Holding the stick, Du Wen Wen replied, I thought I had sent you all flying a moment ago. Turns out, there's still some left. Provoked in such a manner, John Fai angrily shouted, Arrogant, accept your death. He then wielded his spear and thrust it towards Du Wen Wen. Du Wen Wen, seeing Zhang Fai approaching, casually remarked, I won't die, but I want to have a fight with you. Zhang Xiaofeng, watching Zhang Fai and Du Wen Wen engage in combat above, couldn't help but envy and grit his teeth, saying, Damn it, when did Yi Han get such a powerful ally? Without giving him much time to think, Zhu Lai quickly rushed in front of Zhang Xiaofeng and said, Zhang Xiaofeng, spend more time worrying about yourself rather than others. After uttering these words, Zhu Lai threw a punch towards Zhang Xiaofeng. Their fists collided and sparks flew as their eyes met intensely. Zhang Xiaofeng taunted, Zhu Lai, you're just a waste, daring to address the young master directly. Zhu Lai struck back at Zhang Xiaofeng and then kicked towards him, saying coldly, Less talk, more action. Zhang Xiaofeng, equally strong, threw punches at Zhu Lai, retorting, Just die for me. The chaotic battle continued, with relentless fighting on both sides. Meanwhile, Cao Yang raised his sword and shouted towards Yi Han, Yi Han. Last time you helped Sun Bumi escape, causing me injuries. Today, you must die. Yi Han responded coldly. It's you who will die. Kel Yang brandished his sword and swiftly swung it. Yi Han and Zhao Li leaped, skillfully evading Kao Yang's attack. Immediately after, Yi Han quickly drew his knife, launching a continuous assault towards Kao Yang. The slashing motion of the knife shattered him into pieces and blood sprayed like rain. As Cao Yong fell to the ground, he maintained a defiant gaze, disbelief evident in his words. No, how can you have such strength? Last time, you were just an ordinary opponent to me. After settling everything, Yi Han stood upright, raising his knife and addressing everyone. Anyone else? Come forward. Zhang Xiaofeng and Tian Wang exchanged surprised glances, taken aback by Yi Han's words. Tan Wang, not believing, said, Yi Han. Can't believe you managed to kill Cao Yong. Yi Han smirked mockingly, looking at the crowd and saying, Exactly, your grandfather is here. If you seek revenge, come at me. Seeing Yi Han's arrogance, Tian Wang was furious and charged forward, exclaiming, You audacious brat. Zhao Hao Tian, worried at the sight of Yi Han facing Tian Wang, cautioned, Yi Han, you're not the match for the first Tian Wang. Quickly step back. Sun Bu Mi also hurriedly advised, Yi Han, don't provoke him. The first Tian Wang is a top expert in the Tian Tan society. You're not his match. Meanwhile, Zhu Lai, still under Zhang Xiaofeng's control, shouted, Li Han, stay away and wait for everyone to surround and attack him. Zhang Xiaofeng, observing Yi Han's demeanor, scornfully remarked, Foolish, alone challenging the first Tian Wang. It seems I don't need to intervene. You'll meet your end on your own. The group of Duan Mi on the other side was equally astonished. Duan Mi, fearful, urged, Li Han, don't do anything reckless. Police officer Ruin cheered, saying, Ye Han, you must be careful. Yi Sin hastily stood up, advising, Ye Han, the opponent is formidable. Don't provoke him. Despite everyone's concern, Ye Han appeared confident and stated, Rest assured, he can't do anything to me. Just then, 
Yi Han skillfully avoided the first Tian Wang's attack. The first Tian Wang turned to look at Yi Han, angrily stating, Arrogant brat, you've made me furious. If you wish to die so much, let me grant your wish. He then unleashed a large surge of spiritual force towards Yi Han, shouting, Go to hell. Yi Han also extended his hand and released a stream of spiritual force to counter it. The first Tian Wang threw a series of punches, continuously striking forward, pushing back Yi Han's defenses. After observing for a while, Yi Han quickly identified a vulnerability and rushed in front of him, saying, Found a weakness. He gazed at Yi Han in front of him, a signal in his mind flashing. This is not good. Yi Han swiftly wielded his knife and slashed, shouting, Go to hell. Then, he struck a blow towards the first Tian Wang. Witnessing this scene, Everyone present was horrified, their eyes widening in amazement. Zhao Hao Tian exclaimed, What? The number one Tian Wang got injured by Yi Han. Lin Bai Mo was impressed, thinking, This is Yi Han's true power. Sun Nu Mi felt surprised by Yi Han's strength. Yi Han's power is truly formidable. Excitedly, police officer Ruud said, Yi Han, you are formidable. Yi Han, you truly walk the talk. Duan Ni, with a radiant face, happily said, Zhui Han, I knew you could do it. On the other side, the first Tian Wang held his bloodied wound, gritting his teeth in pain. In his heart, he couldn't believe it, thinking, how is this possible? This kid could actually discern my weakness. Yi Han pressed the knife against his opponent's throat, smirking. This day next year will be your death anniversary. Zhang Xiaofeng, standing behind, exclaimed in disbelief, this can't be. The number one Tan Wang lost. In just a few days, Yi Han's strength has improved so much. Zhang Chao Feng appeared careless, while Zhu Lai thought to himself, This is a good opportunity. Right after that, Zhu Lai quickly moved behind Zhang Chao Feng and kicked him with full force. Zhang Chao Feng took a direct hit to the bone, breaking it instantly. He grimaced in pain, clutching his injured leg on the ground, exclaiming, Ah, my leg. My leg is broken. Witnessing the situation, Zhang Xiaofeng's followers panicked and shouted, Young master. The Sun Bu Mi group prevented any escape, with Sun Bu Mi brandishing weapons and declaring, thinking of saving him? Not happening. Duan Wen also restrained his wrists and stated, You have to overcome my challenge first. Seizing the opportunity, Tian Wang, nursing his wounds, wanted to retreat saying, retreat. Seeing some attempting to flee, Zhao Hao Tian approached Yi Han, expressing concern, Vai Han, Tian Wang, let's run. Yi Han displayed confidence and chuckled, no worries, let him live for now. Then, he glanced at the remaining group, snorted and proclaimed, as for those from the Blood Essence sect, they will all die. Upon hearing this, Zhao Hao Tian's group raised their weapons, facing the Blood Essence sect members, declaring, if you've come this far, don't expect to return. Kill them all. They must all die. Swiftly, Yi Han's group proceeded to deal with the remaining individuals. The Blood Essence sect members could only scream in agony, unable to resist. Zhang Xiaofeng, terrified, stepped back in confusion, exclaiming, why, why has everything turned out like this? Yi Han approached Zhang Xiaofeng, placed a knife against his neck, and said, Zhang Xiaofeng, now it's your turn. Terrified, Zhang Xiaofeng hastily pleaded and threatened Yi Han. No, you can't kill me. I am the young master of the Blood Essence sect. He continued to cry out, If you kill me, the Blood Essence sect will surely send crazed individuals to seek revenge on you. Your friends, your family will all be implicated. Hao Tian advised Yi Han. Zhang Han, now is not the time to kill this Zhang Xiaofeng. Acknowledging the advice, Yi Han relented. Fine. Let him go for now. Keep this dog alive. Relieved that his life was spared, Xiao Feng secretly rejoiced. Saved. Saved my life. He looked at Yi Han with disdain, saying, Vai Han, no matter how formidable you are, you still dare not touch me. Reacting to the infuriating arrogance, Yi Han continued to address Xiao Feng. For certain crimes, death may be forgivable but living with guilt is hard to escape. Raising his lay, Yi Han prepared to deliver a strong kick to Xiaofeng, who panicked. Wait, 
What are you planning to do? Only the sound of his pain echoed as he writhed under Yi Han's foot, wincing. Oh, my leg. After Yi Han finished his actions, he turned away, instructing his siblings, find a place to lock him up. As the scene shifted with Yi Han's return, Dua Nai couldn't hide her joy, jumping into his arms. It's excellent, Yi Han. Yi Han tenderly stroked her head, and Dua Nai continued, I knew you would be fine. Yi Xin, also delighted, said, It's good that you're back, Yi Han. I thought I'd lose my sister. Yi Han comforted her. It's okay, I've returned, haven't I? Then, Yi Han introduced a special figure. Let me introduce everyone to Duan Wen. Thanks to him, I could safely return and even enhance my strength. Duan Wen warmly greeted. Hello, everyone, I'm Duan Wen. Hao Tian enthusiastically welcomed him. You saved Yi Han. From now on, we're all siblings. Sun Bu Mi praised Duan Wen. Duan Wen. Your power is truly remarkable. Yi Xin added, feel free to stay here in the future. After a round of actions, Yi Han gathered everyone, stating, listen, everyone. This time, we've not only avenged against the Celestial Sect, but also made enemies with the Blood Essence Sect by capturing Zhang Xiaofeng. There's a high chance they'll come back for revenge. Yi Han continued with gravity. Therefore, I plan to enhance everyone's strength as quickly as possible. People look bewildered, asking, enhance strength. After a brief moment of surprise, Sun Bu Mi found it reasonable, saying, Yue Han, you're right. Our current strength is not sufficient. Zhu Lai expressed concern. If Yi Han had returned in time this time, we might have been in serious trouble. He continued, we all know the current situation is urgent, but enhancing strength is not something that can be done at will. Sun Bu Mi also stalled the logic in Zhu Lai's words, adding, Indeed, Yi Han, don't rush things due to impatience. Yi Han, in a calm and reassuring manner, addressed everyone. Sun Senior, Zhu Lai, both of you are correct. However, if I use acupuncture and combine it with the support of spiritual energy, we can directly advance to the microcosmic orbit. Although the process may be somewhat painful, the result achieved will be rapid. Sun Bu Mi, surprised, exclaimed, Is that so? Zhu Lai, equally astonished, added, If it's true and can lead us to the microcosmic orbit, it means we've saved ten years of arduous cultivation. Yi Han, confident, assured them, Both of you can rest assured. With me here, nothing is impossible. He then cheerfully said to the two, Come with me. Excitedly, both Sun Bu Mi and Zhu Lai responded, Certainly. Thus, Yi Han began assisting Sun Bu Mi in the upgrade. During the process, he told him, Senior son, focus on the secondary meridian. You've already broken through the primary meridian. I will now apply acupuncture to support your breakthrough to the microcosmic orbit. Feel the meticulous sensation, the internal force following each needle of mine. There will be absolutely no mistakes. Despite sweating profusely, Sun Bu Mi persevered, saying, Go ahead, Yi Han, act as you wish. On Sun Bu Mi's back, Yi Han used six acupuncture needles to stimulate him. Both Yi Han and Sun Bu Mi concentrated enduring the pain, and though Sun Bu Mi felt discomfort, he tried to endure. He silently resolved, I must persevere, not letting Yi Han's efforts go to waste. Following that, Yi Han proceeded to the next step. He addressed Sun Bu Mi, saying, Senior son, now we will begin transporting the internal energy in your body to the governing vessel. This process will be very painful but it is the only way for you to become a governor vessel master. Senior son expressed clear determination. Breakthrough for me. Yi Han then began aiding Sun Bu Mi in penetrating the governing vessel. After a while, Sun Bu Mi stood up powerfully, letting out a loud roar, releasing all the newfound strength. Yi Han, witnessing the success, was joyous. Congratulations, senior son. You are now a governor vessel master. Sun Bu Mi, deeply appreciative, said, Yay, you are the one to thank for this achievement. After successfully assisting Sun Bu Mi, Yi Han turned his attention to Zhu Lai. Zhe Lai, are you ready? Zhu Lai briskly approached, I am ready. Then, Zhu Lai sat down for Yi Han to assist him, saying, Ye Han, come here. In the room where Yi Han assisted Zhu Lai's breakthrough, sounds of pain emanated from Zhu Lai. Urgently, he urged Yi Han, 
Faster, go faster. People outside all switched to eavesdropping mode, silently observing. Duan Nai expressed her apprehension. Yi Han, is it really helping them break through? Why does it feel like something peculiar is happening? Yi Xin also spoke softly. Yi Han, perhaps it's not something they should be doing. Hao Tian, breathing a sigh of relief outside, commented, Luckily, I broke through to the director's stage early. Du Wen Wen, puzzled, asked, What are they talking about? King Chen, with red eyes, snapped at Du Wen Wen. They are discussing grown-up matters. Don't ask nonsense. After a while, from the breakthrough room, everyone outside saw a beam of light emanating. Du Wen Wen was the first to exclaim, Success! I didn't expect it to be this fast. Hao Tian was also surprised. Son, have you broken through to the director's stage? The whole group remained silently waiting outside the door. Duan Wen couldn't help but marvel. Big Brother Yi Han is indeed formidable. Zhao Hao Tian also admired Yi Han's abilities. In such a short time, he can create two director level experts. Yi Han, your depth is becoming more unpredictable. At that moment, the door creaked open. Zhu Lai and Senior Son appeared exuding a triumphant and imposing aura. Finally, we both reached the director-level mastery. Hao Tian hurriedly congratulated, congratulations to Sun and Zhu. Duan Wen, beaming with praise, hailed Yi Han. Big brother Yi Han is truly remarkable. With the upgrades complete, Yi Han confidently addressed everyone. Next, if the Blood Essence sect and the Celestial sect come here, they will surely be frightened. The scene shifted to outside where Yi Han was. Hu Feng, enraged, shouted, Yi Han, come out quickly. Yi Han, still half asleep, opened the door and asked, Ha, huh, Hu Feng, why are you here? Hu Feng yelled directly at Yi Han's face. How can you still be in the mood to sleep? Bai Dian, the strategist of the Blood Essence sect, has led a majority of experts to Shanghai City. He has announced that he wants to meet you in Zhangde Park. Moreover, King of Western Medicine is taking advantage of his influence to attract a group of experts to seize the opportunity to kill you. Upon hearing this, Yi Han calmly responded, What's there to fear? Zhang Xiaofeng is still in my hands. I don't believe they would dare to come here and kill me. As for that scoundrel Wang Zhuzhen, I'm not afraid of him. Hu Feng erupted in frustration, reminding Yi Han, Enough talk, I've used the Safety Bureau's authority to officially call for your assistance. Come here and advise me on this matter. Hurry up and arrange your things to leave. Yi Han declined, responding to Hu Feng. I've never thought of running away. I've already considered everything. Hu Feng remained unconvinced, persisting in her warning. What can you prepare? It's not just you and Zhao Hao Tian with the microcosmic orbit here. Do you also want to confront the Blood Essence sect directly? Ignoring Hu Feng's grumbling, Yi Han clapped his hands lightly, calling everyone, everyone, Come out here. Hao Tian, Sun Bu Mi, Duan Wen, and Zhu Lai quickly appeared in front of Hu Feng, exuding overwhelming presence. Hu Feng, astonished, remarked, Four director level masters. Yi Han explained to Hu Feng, Last night, with my assistance, Senior Sun and Jai Lai successfully reached the director level mastery. Hu Feng, bewildered, exclaimed, How is that possible? How can you turn a master-level meridian into a director-level one? Yi Han confidently replied, Nothing is impossible. As long as I want it, I can make it happen. Hu Feng silently thought, Yi Han, you become more enigmatic day by day. The scene ships to Zhang De Park, where some people are playing chess in a pavilion. Wu Xing, along with his skilled subordinates, is waiting for Yi Han, and they don't keep him waiting for long. When Yi Han arrives, he greets, I'm here. Wu Xing, composed but provocative, says to Yi Han, I didn't expect you, Yi Han, to have such audacity, coming here alone with just a sword. Yi Han sits down across from him, cheerful in his response. Character breeds demeanor, and with character comes audacity. Wu Xing laughs and replies, Let's see how well you can play this chess game with me. Yi Han agrees, sure. Wu Xing starts using reasoning to talk to Yi Han. You are a rare talent, and Ho Dong is the territory of the Blood Essence sect. If you agree to release the Blood Essence sect leader, moving a chess piece, Wu Xing continues, I can help you become the second prominent figure in the Blood Essence sect on equal footing with me. 
How does that sound? Yi Han moves a chess piece and responds. Do you really think this is possible? Wu Xing's expression turns serious, and he replies, If not, it's a pity. If you agree you release the Blood Essence sect leader, our sect will agree not to cause you made trouble. Otherwise, you should be aware of the consequences you'll face. Yi Han refuses to yield. Release Jiang Chao Feng. Do you think I have no way out? Your Blood Essence sect seems to have a talent for keeping your word. Wu Xing immediately changes his tone. If that's the case, let's play the game. Yi Han. Holding the chess piece confidently, responds. Bring it on. Meanwhile, outside the pavilion, Hao Tian takes on the first opponent. As soon as he meets the adversary from the Black Blood sect, he asks. You are the number one expert of the Blood Essence sect, right? Hao Tian continues with a smile. I heard the news early that you are a top-ranking expert in the microcosmic orbit realm. How about a match today? The opponent responds. Sainan Wang. I've long wanted to test your martial arts skills. Let's begin. With that, the two of them engage in a fierce battle. Wu Xin, still calm, comments to Yi Han. Xi Nan Wang Zhao Hao Tian? Is he the trump card you were talking about? Unfortunately, it seems not enough. Quickly moving to the second match, Wu Xin makes his move. Witness my dual cannon strategy. A female martial artist by Wu Xin's side raises a spear to block. Yi Han boldly declares his next move before Wu Xing. Pawn forward. Senior Sun Bumi arrives and approaches his opponent. This must be the second in command. Sun Bumi requests the honor of a sparring match. The female martial artist dances with her sword to counter the spears brought forth by Senior Sun. Wu Xing is astonished. The second person is a microcosmic orbit expert. Yi Han responds calmly. It seems your secret weapon is out. Let me handle it. Pawn forward. Just then, the sound of approaching footsteps is heard, and Zhu Lai arrives with a cheerful greeting. I, Zhu Lai, request the honor of a sparring match. Wu Xing is once again taken aback, the third expert too. How could you have three microcosmic orbit experts? Yi Han, more confident, replies, Don't be in a hurry, I still have more. Du Wen enthusiastically joins the scene, I'm here too. A massive battle erupts with Wu Xing's experts rallying behind him, shouting, Kill for the honor of the Blood Essence sect. Eliminate them. On the other side, Yi Han's four experts showed no signs of fear or hesitation, declaring, Kill them all here and now. Both sides clash in a fierce combat. Wu Xing sits calmly, threatening Yi Han. Yi Han, is this your attitude? Do you really want to confront our Blood Essence sect? Yi Han confidently retorts, so what? What can you do to me? Wu Xing loses his composure, rushing forward. Then I'll send you on your way to hell. He attempts to grab Yi Han's face, but Yi Han swiftly dodges, evading the attack. Yi Han, holding the sword firmly, retorts. The one who's going to die here is you. Both sides engage in a fierce battle. Yi Han leaps forward with his sword, aiming to strike Wu Xing. However, it seems that Wu Xing remains steadfast. Yi Han, impressed, praises him. It seems you are truly strong. Wu Xing calmly replies, Ye Han, you are not my match. Undeterred, Yi Han confidently states, Though I may not be your match, you still can't kill me today. Wu Xing, angered by Yi Han's words, charges forward, Let me test that. As Wu Xing advances, something catches his attention, and a voice shouts, Stop! Wu Xing halts in his tracks, demanding. What's going on? It was Kong who appeared to stop Wu Xing. And at the same time, Hu Feng arrived timely to explain to Yi Han, this is my last move, General Kong. Wu Xing, displeased with being halted, asked, who are you, and why oppose our blood sect? Hu Feng stepped forward and replied, you don't need to know who I am. Today, I'm here to protect Yi Han. An irritated Wu Xing questioned, what if I don't agree? Kong, who had remained silent, now wore a stern expression and asserted, Wu Xing, though I'm old, if a friend from the blood sect, even one making a small request, can't be agreed upon, then I have no choice but to use my full strength. Kong unleashed his power, wielding a whip firmly on his shoulder. Wu Xing, alarmed and fearful, said, This strength, only the sect master can match. Seizing the opportunity, Yi Han told Wu Xing, 
By DN. If you dare set foot in Shanghai City in the future, it won't only be Jiang Chaofeng. Your lives will also be at risk. Wu Xing, frustrated, thought helplessly. Damn it, today I have to withdraw with empty hands. Once the sect master takes over, I'll settle the score with you all slowly. At that moment, a group of people approached, and among them was Wang Ju Zhen. He mocked Wu Xing, saying, Bai Dian scholar, I've shared all the information I know with you. But you and your group have failed to defeat Yi Han multiple times, truly disappointing. Wu Xing glared and replied, The king of Western medicine, indeed. Yi Han interjected, Wang Ju Zhen, you have truly revealed yourself. Mo Rong Ju, backed by Wang Ju Zhen, pointed accusingly at Yi Han and said, Wai Han, you attacked me last time, and today we brought many experts with us. You're as good as dead. Someone behind him chimed in, Vai Han, you're finished. My master is the renowned king of Western medicine. Yi Han calmly retorted, You all seem quite confident that you'll definitely kill me today. Mo Rong Ju confidently replied, Vai Han, beside you are four top-level directors. It was indeed surprising. But now they're all occupied. In such a favorable opportunity, it's only natural to take your life. Wu Xing, more at ease, Asked Wang Ju Zhen. Wang Ju Zhen, do you want to kill Yi Han? Wang Ju Zhen chuckled and replied, Exactly, Bai Dian scholar. We will handle Yi Han for you now. Just keep the old man occupied for a while, and I don't think there will be any problem for you. Right. Wu Xing replied, If it's just about restraining them, then it's certainly not a problem. He thought to himself, Let them go after Yi Han. If they can kill Yi Han, that's the best outcome. If not, I'll immediately flee, and there won't be any loss. Hu Feng worried for Yi Han, saying, Yi Han, with Kong here, we don't need to risk our lives with them. Let's run now. Yi Han remained cheerful as he updated Hu Feng on the situation. Judging by their appearance, they probably won't let us leave easily. Yi Han raised his sword confidently, ready for battle. Moreover, they're just a bunch of shrimp, no threat to me at all. Wang Ju Zhen didn't say much. He loudly commanded, Attack, everyone. Immediately, the skilled individuals behind him rushed forward, taunting Yi Han, Arrogant brat, today we'll surely kill you. Yi Han remained calm, holding his sword firmly and mocking them. Six miscellaneous characters, you're the ones who deserve to die. Then, Yi Han swung his sword, unleashing a technique that caused hundreds of swords to counterattack. Under Yi Han's control, the swords moved rapidly, creating loud explosions. Wang Ju Zhen happily affirmed, Ye Han, today you will definitely die. Wang Ju Zhen's disciple also gleefully added, Ye Han, we go believe you can defeat all six of them. Go ahead and die, Ye Han. Wu Xing silently rejoiced, One against six, Ye Han, you probably don't have the courage for that. Hu Feng held her breath, witnessing the battle, praying for Ye Han's safety. Yi Han, please don't let anything happen. And Kong remained calm, awaiting the outcome. I want to see how much courage this kid really has. Before everyone, Yi Han's sword had pierced all six experts of Wang Ju Zhen, causing them to scream in agony. This can't be happening. Clearly, you, you're just a pulse level martial artist. This group had completely collapsed in front of the astonishment of everyone present. Hu Feng was ecstatic, tightly embracing Yi Han. Ye Han, you're amazing. And Kong from behind also admired him. Li Han, indeed courageous. Wu Xing was furious internally, a bunch of trash, unable to defeat one Yi Han among six. Wang Ju Zhen was even more horrified. How is this possible? How can Yi Han be so strong? How can he defeat all six in one go? Even Mo Rong Ju, behind them, couldn't believe it. I don't believe it. Six people ganging up and being defeated by Yi Han alone. Even if they were six pigs, they couldn't die so quickly. Yi Han, with a strong demeanor, approached this group, solemnly announcing to them, Next, it's your turn. Wang Ju Zhen's disciple trembled in fear. Master, what should we do now? Wang Ju Zhen, with his buttocks raised, fled, saying, You, my disciple, hold him back for me. I'll go seek reinforcements. The foolish disciple, realizing the situation, angrily exclaimed, Damn it, 
Wang Badan dares to play with me again. Mo Rongju, with good intentions, reminded him, stop talking and run quickly. However, he was slapped on the back by Yi Han, who kindly asked, where do you think you're going? Mo Rongju, confused and frightened, shouted, you, what do you want? I am from the Motong family, you can't touch me. Yi Han just chuckled in response, I don't care. Seeing this, Hu Feng advised Yi Han, wait Yi Han, Mo Rongju is also from the Mo Dong family. If you kill him, I won't be able to guarantee your safety. Yi Han replied, Mo Rongju will cause trouble for me later if I don't kill him. As he said that, Mo Rongju suddenly knelt down, crying and begging, Yi Han, please rest assured. As long as you don't kill me, I will never set foot in the Shanghai city again. Yi Han, hearing this, turned away and responded, Consider yourself fortunate to understand. He raised his lay and delivered a swift kick, then sternly commanded, Get lost. Yi Han stepped into the dimly lit atmosphere, then said, You're the only one left. Encountering Shen Tian L again, Yi Han had no qualms about confronting him. Until now, Shen Tian L had always been the one plotting to assassinate Yi Han multiple times. Shen Tian L couldn't escape anymore, but he wasn't ready to die so soon. He knelt down and pleaded, Ye, young master Ye. It's all because of my master's actions, or that despicable Wang Zhuzhen's schemes. It has nothing to do with me. Please spare me. Yi Han teasingly play along with him. Spare you. Help me kill Wang Zhuzhen. And then I'll consider sparing you. Shen Tian L, contemplating this situation, struggled to find words. Kill. Kill Wang Zhuzhen. But, but he is still my master. Yi Han mockingly threatened his younger counterpart. Oh, so you're refusing. Saying that, Yi Han threw a punch and loudly declared, If that's the case, you die in his place. Shen Tianel writhed and screamed for mercy. Wait, wait, I agree to help you. I'll kill Wang Zhu Zhen. Yi Han had no intention of actually killing him. He just wanted Shen Tianel to obediently say such words to establish their agreement. Yi Han withdrew his hand, praised his younger counterpart. Very good. I know you're someone who adapts quickly. Although Shen Tianhao had survived a catastrophe, his spirit had not fully returned. His face resembled a dry corpse, eyes vacant, muttering, Thank you, young Master Yi, for sparing my life. At this point, he had also wet himself, losing all the dignity of a young master. Suddenly, Shen Tianhao clutched his body, writhing in pain as if a thousand needles were pricking him. Yi Han explained, This is called the life-threatening needle. It activates every half month, and the pain only temporarily subsides when you stimulate the command point with the needle. Listen to me, and the pain will stop. Hearing this, Shen Tianao, in agony and terror, vomited blood and knelt down humbly before Yi Han's imposing figure. Yi Han commanded, As for the treatment, after you kill Wang Zhu Zhen, I'll personally instruct you. For now, get lost. Shen Tianao bowed his head and pledged, Yes. Young Master Yi, rest assured, I will definitely kill Wang Zhu Zhen soon. Keep your promise to me, young master. Reflecting on his past actions, Shen Tianhao felt deep regret. Why did I provoke Yi Han back then? Now, my life and death are under his control. Yi Han remained calm, watching his junior Shen Tianhao leave to seek help. He hoped that his junior wouldn't disappoint him. Relaxing his body, Yi Han thought, the day I kill Wang Zhu Zhen will also be the day you fall of him to hell. Those who want to kill me will all meet their end. Zhao Hao Tian and Sun Bu Mi approached, expressing their gratitude and admiration. Ye Han, the member of the Blood Clan, finally driven away by us. Ha ha! Unexpectedly, the Blood Clan, which once shook half of Zhang Guo has a day when they run away like a scared dog. The comrades who had been hiding until now were also jubilant for Ye Han's intervention. This battle was truly fierce. Yi Han was equally pleased, but reminded them that there were still many issues to resolve. He said, It's not the time to celebrate yet. The Blood Clan will definitely not let today's event slide. Now is the time for us to rebuild our strength. Only then can we hope to resist the influence of the Blood Clan in the future. Zhao Hao Tian and the others were extremely surprised. This was something everyone dreamed of, but no one dared to think as boldly as Yi Han just stated establishing our own power. How do we do that? 
It's not that simple, Yi Han. Confidently, Yi Han explained further, I've been keeping tabs through Zhu Lao Jia. I heard that Wan Chang is preparing to build a security company with formidable strength, insisting entirely of skilled individuals. If I can acquire this company and combine it with my medical skills, we can quickly nurture a large number of experts. Zhao Hao Tian nodded approvingly, speaking with enthusiasm. This plan is excellent. With Yi Han's medical skills, combined with the security company, we may even see the emergence of experts in microcosmic orbit. The situation will surely improve. Sun Bu Mi and the other comrades also unanimously agreed. Yi Han, your idea is indeed brilliant. How come we didn't think of it? It turns out Yi Han had calculated it all early on. Let's get to work then. Leave the matters at home to us for protection. Yi Han scratched his head, modestly not accepting the praise. Recalling the time when he first met Zhao Hao, he replied, The idea of the security company was all Zhao Hao Tan's brainstorming. Back with Guan Cheng, Yi Han strolled through the streets with Du Wen Wen, discussing, Du Wen Wen, there are so many beautiful girls in this city. Have you thought about finding a wife here? Du Wen Wen, who had always been shy around girls, responded hesitantly, Yi Han, I'm afraid they'll dislike me. Yi Han reassured his friend, Don't worry. With your appearance, you'll surely be liked by many girls. Encouraging his sincere friend, Yi Han had thought of various ways to help Du Wen Wen. After we recruit talents, I'll introduce someone to you. The two continued walking down the street, preparing to cross when suddenly, a blaring horn pierced the air. A red sports car emerged seemingly out of control, swerving from side to side, colliding with other vehicles on the road, creating a chaotic scene. The onlookers exclaimed, Oh my God, daring to drive so recklessly within the city in a rush to meet their ancestors or something. The pedestrian light is on, and this reckless guy dares to run a red light. Truly a madman. A child was crossing the road, directly in the path of the speeding car. The innocent child looked at the approaching vehicle without reacting until it came dangerously close. Overwhelmed with fear, the child screamed in terror. Mom. It was only at this moment that Yi Han truly alarmed himself. Not good. That child, the car is too fast. Yi Han had to exert all his strength, without caring about anything else, to focus on the red car speeding as if without a driver. The child, in fear and unable to react in time, was fortunately saved by Yi Han's extraordinary agility. He promptly embraced the child, leaped onto the opposite sidewalk, and out of harm's way. The red car veered past with a terrifying sound, losing control and crashing ahead. It collided with an obstacle with a loud thud. Yi Han breathed a sigh of relief, watching the child safe and sound. The child continued to cry in fear, and Yi Han had to console her persistently, saying, Good. Everything is fine now, little one. The onlookers gathered, expressing immense gratitude. Appreciating Yi Han's heroic act, they clapped their hands and remarked, Luckily, we have this young man. If it weren't for him, who knows what would have happened to this little girl. Indeed, this young man is truly kind-hearted. The little girl should thank him quickly. The child, now calming down, innocently kissed her life-saving hero on the cheek and said, Thank you. Yi Han blushed with happiness for her. The people were still celebrating when suddenly, from behind, there was a curse. Damn it! A guy named Zhang Hu, looking arrogant, stepped forward and started cursing angrily. You, suddenly rushing out into the street, bored with life. Ha! Huh. Yi Han told the little girl to run home quickly so her mother wouldn't worry. Then he turned back, glaring at Zhang Hu, and asked sharply, Not only were you drunk, but you also drove in a densely populated area speeding and running a red light. You almost hit and killed someone. Do you realize that? Zhang Hu, seemingly oblivious, waved his hands and legs dismissively, responding, hit and kill someone. Ha 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 ha, come on. Did anyone see me almost hit and kill someone? Its foolish question immediately earned the ire of the 500 onlookers, who cursed vehemently. We saw you almost hit and kill the little girl. If it weren't for this young man saving her, she would have lost her life. That despicable drunkard dared to drive. Quickly call the police to arrest him. Zhang Hu, seemingly oblivious, was overwhelmed by the people's curses and shouted back, Shut up, all of you. Seeing Zhang Hu's furious reaction, the bystanders were also alarmed. 
Zhang Hu began to flaunt his family's wealth, claiming, I, I am the heir of the Zhang family conglomerate. Reporting to the police is useless. The police have to follow my orders. If any of you dare to make trouble, my bodyguards will teach you a lesson. Hearing Zhang, who mentioned the Zhang family conglomerate, everyone's expression changed. We should stay away from the Zhang family conglomerate. Less trouble is better than more. Anyway, the little girl is fine. Who cares if he is the heir of the Zhang family conglomerate? Damn it, can't anyone deal with scum like him? Zhang Hu, still oblivious, swaggered forward and confronted Yi Han, displaying a threatening stance. Are you scared or not? If you don't give me a satisfactory answer, today I will end your life in this realm. Don't doubt what I say. In Huan Cheng, there is nothing Zhang Hu cannot accomplish. Hearing the likes of Zhang Hu, who Li had always found repulsive, Yi Han couldn't help but sneer. Observing the foolish appearance of his younger brother, Yi Han responded, Relying on you. Talking like this, aren't you afraid of getting struck by lightning someday? Zhang Hu, once again infuriated by the retort, leaped forward with a clenched fist, shouting, You brat, I agree with you. We won't shed tears until we see a coffin. Before Zhang Hu could say another word, he was caught off guard as Yi Han gently grabbed his hand. Yi Han remarked, Daring to hit me. I think you're the one who won't shed tears until you see a coffin. Zhang Hu, astonished by Yi Han's dexterity, couldn't utter another sound. Yi Han tightened his grip on Zhang Hu's hand, causing him to wince in pain. The younger brother collapsed, his face contorted in agony, and he pleaded, Ah, it hurts. My hand is about to break. Let go quickly, release me. Yi Han, with an air of hostility, reprimanded his younger brother. Now you know pain. If just now, you had hit and killed that little girl, do you know how much pain she would have suffered? Do you understand how heartbroken her family would be? Zhang Hu's face turned purple, and he began to whimper and cry. I know, I know. Please let go of my hand quickly, please. Yi Han nodded in satisfaction and released his grip on his younger brother, immediately delivering a powerful kick to his chest. Yi Han shouted, Get lost! Zhang Hu, struck by the forceful kick, crashed into his own luxury car with a loud thud. The pain and humiliation intensified and he channeled all of his hatred into his bones, saying, You scumbag, daring to hit me in Huan Chang. Just wait, I'll make a call and have someone deal with you. Today, I'll make sure you pay with your life. After his threat, Zhang Hu quickly dialed his phone to summon his 500 companions for help. Suddenly, a shadow glided from behind, stealing the sunlight from his life. The mysterious figure questioned the bewildered younger brother, who you want to kill? Zhang Hu turned back and saw a burly man with a whip twisting his sweaty wrists. The man wore a joyful and friendly smile as Zhang Hu struggled on the ground, sweating profusely. He moaned, Wait, what do you want? I am the heir of the Zhang family conglomerate. Duan Wen approached gently, embraced the shoulder of the bewildered younger brother, and whispered, Ha 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 ha. Du Wen Wen just wants to play a little game with you, called flying on a plane. It's that simple. With that, Du Wen Wen effortlessly lifted Zhang Hu into the air, soaring high above. He shouted loudly from the elevated position, Help! Attempted murder! Someone, quickly call the police. Yi Han was thoroughly disgusted with these individuals, so disabling another troublemaker was just another task on his list. He commanded Du Wen Wen, Deal with this guy who has no sense of remorse. Duan Wen, use him to wreck his own car. Duan Wen, always enjoying these antics, grinned widely and said, Ha 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 ha, sure thing. Duan Wen, like a playful dream, rushed forward. John Hu screamed as if facing imminent death. Ah, please don't. However, since Duan Wen had already agreed to Yi Han's request, there was no room for negotiation between good brothers. When good brothers couldn't do small favors for each other, what else could be said? One, two, three strikes, Du Wen tossed Zhang Hu like a ball. Zhang Hu flew freely, colliding directly with his own Ferrari. The impact dented the entire body of the car, and Zhang Hu lost a few teeth, collapsing onto the ground unconscious. Yi Han didn't waste any more time here. He signaled, Du Wen, let's go. We're heading to the Black Dragon Security Company. Onlookers were horrified by Yi Han's actions. They whispered fearfully about him. This little brother is truly ruthless. We don't even know where he came from. Yet he dared to mess. 
with the hair of the Zhang family conglomerate and even beat him so brutally. At the current headquarters of the Black Dragon Security Company, Yi Han, along with Duan Wen, entered the building. The representative from Black Dragon warmly welcomed the two inside, treating them with great hospitality. Mr. Yi, inside are all the employees of the Black Dragon Security Company. Starting from today, they will officially be working under your leadership. With that, the handover agreement for the company was successfully completed. Both Yi Han and the representatives from the other side expressed their joy for this fortunate collaboration. Thank you. A pleasant cooperation. We hope to have more opportunities to do business with Mr. Yi in the future. The representative took a step forward, not forgetting an important piece of advice. Mr. Yi, don't blame me for not mentioning this earlier. The security guards of my company are not easy to deal with. If you cannot earn their respect, you might face their contempt. Listening to these words, which highlighted the company's strong emphasis on competence, Yi Han was pleased. He responded enthusiastically, Ha ha, I think there's no need to trouble you. Conquering them won't be a challenge for me. It's as easy as turning my hand. Finally, everything went smoothly, just as Yi Han had planned. After bidding farewell, Yi Han and Duan Wen were extremely curious. They couldn't wait any longer, quickly approaching the training facility of the Black Dragon to see what awaited them inside. The scene inside was indeed to Yi Han's liking. The equipment, tools, training facilities. Everything was not only complete, but also the most cutting edge. Most importantly, the employees' training in this room were remarkable. Each one had a robust physique, well-defined muscles, a strong dedication to training, and their eyes emitted a chilling aura. Yi Han and Duan Wen stepped into the midst of these individuals, looked around, and he concluded, these people all have decent potential. It seems this time we can train quite a few talents. However, the first thing is to win them over. As the representative mentioned, after some scrutiny, the bodybuilders began to speak up. Is this our new leader? Just a runny-nosed kid. Haha, <laughs> with him, I could throw ten punches without breaking a sweat. If he can't demonstrate his own strength, I'll be the first to knock him out. Ignoring these challenges, Yi Han dismissed them and stepped onto the table in the middle of the room, speaking up. Listen carefully, everyone. From now on, you are all my employees. I will provide a life of plenty for you, including money, beautiful women, and even power. However, let me make it clear. I need to see your loyalty and absolute obedience to my orders. At that moment, the formidable force gathered together. After hearing Yi Han's commanding words, the new leadership surveyed the crowd and each individual struggled to hide their discomfort. Some wore disdainful expressions, while others emanated a chilling hostility. The heads of the group stepped forward to respond to Yi Han. Who do you think you are? You just arrived and want us to follow you. With just one look, it's obvious you're a pampered young master. What authority do you have to give orders to us? Making noise as soon as you arrive? Get lost and spare us the annoyance. Yi Han glanced around, seemingly satisfied that these warriors exceeded his expectations. He asked, So any objections to what I said? A handsome man with a bearded chin and a model-like physique stepped forward bluntly responding, Humph, who are you? And yet you dare to shout about having us follow you. Yi Han remained composed, slowly walking towards the cocky individual. He asked, If you speak like that, it seems your strength is quite remarkable, isn't it? How about we have a little duel? The confident individual replied immediately, Why not? He cracked his knuckles, looked at Yi Han with disdain, and thought to himself, Humph, a cheeky brat who hasn't even cleaned his nose, yet he dares to say he wants us to follow him. Let's see how I can beat you to a pulp today. The surrounding group of comrades felt pity for Yi Han facing this guy named Wang. They whispered among themselves, It's over. This young master is seeking his own demise. An Wang is the most formidable fighter among us. If this young master turns out to be a useless person, we might as well stay here as a group. That way, we can see whether this young master has any real strength. Duan Wen, on the other hand, was gleefully thinking the opposite of the uninformed crowd, this foolish lad dares to challenge Big Brother Yi Han. Wait until he receives some discipline. He, An Wang, however, was still concerned about Yi Han's well-being. In case he accidentally hurt him, he quickly said, Young man, don't say I'm bullying you. I'll hold back three moves for you. The group found An Wang's behavior reasonable. Yi Han calmly responded, No need. 
You better make your move quickly. I'm afraid delaying would only give you a chance to show off. There was no trace of arrogance on Yi Han's face. And Wang, feeling underestimated, couldn't maintain his composure. He swung a fist, determined to prove his strength, and shouted, Arrogant, I'll show you how powerful I am. Analyzing the opponent's moves with the yin-yang divine eyes, Yi Han calmly retorted, Too weak. Without hesitation, Yi Han raised a finger, already imbued with spiritual power. With that very finger, he effortlessly halted An Wang's powerful punch. An Wang stood there in astonishment. What the hell? The surrounding comrades were equally perplexed, not comprehending what was transpiring. An Wang, with his mouth agape, mumbled in disbelief. What? He has never encountered anyone who could easily block his renowned punch like this before. Yi Han glanced at him disdainfully and signaled, Get lost. A strike from his finger shot directly into the center of An Wang's chest. An Wang vomited blood, and suddenly his bull-like body was thrown far away, rolling several times. He crashed heavily onto the ground. Never before had the members of the group witnessed him being defeated so miserably. An Wang struggled to rise, trembling, and asked in confusion, How? How can he be so powerful? Just a finger could block my punch, and even knock me away like this. Witnessing this astonishing scene, the crowd was utterly shocked. They stared at Yi Han's imposing demeanor, profoundly amazed. No way, this young master, with just one move, can defeat the opponent. What kind of move was that? Clearly just a finger. Could it be that we have completely misunderstood him? Yi Han walked slowly up to An Wang. After a brief contemplation, he coldly spoke. Someone like you is obviously extremely weak, but evaluates yourself too highly not worthy to stay here. Boldly initiating the personnel selection process, Yi Han pointed directly at him, stating, immediately leave this place now. He thought to himself, to recruit them, I must eliminate this troublemaker first, to prevent any potential disasters. An Wang defiantly refused to yield. He stepped forward, insulting Yi Han. Leave if you want. Whether you want me to stay or not, I won't bother staying with you. Then he turned to his close comrades and said, Any of you want to leave with me? Someone like him is not worthy of being our leader. I sincerely advise you, my big brothers, to follow me. It will undoubtedly be better than staying with him. An Wang's gang hesitated and contemplated for a while. Eventually, a few of them simultaneously raised their hands in agreement. I'm going with him, count me in, and me too. An Wang, seeing people joining his side, mocked Yi Han. Yi Han calmly responded, If anyone wishes to leave, you can do so immediately. I absolutely won't stop you. Mr. Wang led a group of petty individuals, walking and sneering at Yi Han. While they moved, they glanced back at him with disdain. Wang remarked, Walking alongside a kid who hasn't even wiped his nose clean, absolutely no future, ha ha ha. Waiting for those losers to leave one after another, Yi Han turned towards the group that chose to stay. Proceeding with the next step, he stated, I'm glad you all chose to stay, but earlier you chose me. Now it's my turn to choose you. The crowd went from one astonishment to another. Yi Han's style was evidently different from the old company's approach. They wondered, what does this mean? Yi Han's eyes flashed with determination, his words resolute and unforgiving. I apologize, everyone. I don't hire losers. Now, everyone charged together. As long as someone can stand till the end, congratulations, you become an employee of my company. For the first time in their lives, they witnessed such a tender approach to work. Relying solely on his strength, he dares to challenge all the fighters here. The crowd couldn't contain themselves, shouting, What do you mean? Do you want to die, trying to take on hundreds of us alone? I think you're just full of hot air and don't know shame. It was only at this moment that Yi Han truly felt excited. With this opportunity, I must let these employees see the real power of a boss like me, he thought. He roared with enthusiasm. Is it just me talking big, or do you want to find out for yourselves? Fire energy surged, enveloping Yi Han's entire body. He charged straight towards the crowd of bodyguards, leaping into the midst of the confrontation without hesitation. Seeing Yi Han approach with seriousness, all the fighters knew he wasn't joking. They simultaneously rushed forward, shouting, So here we are. You think you're the best, huh? Beat this wine bag to death. Brothers, the sounds of punches and kicks echoed, blood splattering the floor, 
and the gruesome sound of flesh hitting the ground. Yi Han, having witnessed the pinnacle of martial arts in the final moments, knew how to make his moves look spectacular. The ones he kicked ended up soaring, not a single one escaping unscathed. He moved on to the next targets. As the crowd grew larger, Yi Han skillfully employed forbidden martial arts techniques, dominating the scene. Officials, landlords, and countless others fell victim to his relentless assault. Yi Han gleefully punched and kicked, bodies flying and collapsing like a field of wheat. After a brief but dazzling display, half of the crowd lay defeated, bodies sprawled across the floor, creating a chaotic scene. Looking around, Yi Han could only see a few figures struggling to stand at the back. As he approached, there were only three individuals left, each with swollen faces and exhausted limbs, unable to resist any longer. However, they were the strongest ones to endure the selection process. Yi Han raised his hand in admiration. The three of you are not bad. Observing and assessing, he remarked, These three are quite impressive, with good capabilities. They can become mid-level leaders. Yi Han spoke to his comrades. Scorning the enemy is walking into one's own death. Now those who can stand up within 30 seconds will earn a monthly income of 1 million. Within 50 seconds, it's 500,000. Within one minute, it's 10,000. Those who can't stand up within a minute, please leave. Hearing such staggering figures, compared to the salaries of their old company, it was indeed an offer worth considering. The fighters strained with all their might, telling themselves, with such generous treatment, I must quickly get up. I can't stop here. I must have a million in salary. In the end, all the fighters managed to stand up. Some were still trembling. Their loved ones moist-eyed with anticipation, hoping for Yi Han's announcement. Yi Han, of course, greatly appreciated the efforts of his comrades. At that moment, he stepped forward with a smile and said, Congratulations to all of you for being selected into my company. The words I've spoken are all effective. But now I ask for the loyalty and obedience of everyone. Do you agree? The group of fighters, now after undergoing Yi Han's rigorous selection process, unanimously responded with a resounding voice. Loyalty, obedience. The preliminary selection was considered complete. Yi Han boldly announced the regulations of the new company to them. Excellent. Everyone, prepare yourselves to head to the city of Shanghai. Someone will be there to pick you up, and training will be organized for all of you. The group of fighters obediently acknowledged the orders, chanting loudly, understood. Yi Han then moved on to a special screening process. He had noticed the three victorious individuals from earlier, pointing at them and giving orders. The three of you, step forward and report your names. The three formidable fighters, bearing the marks of Yi Han's tough training with swollen faces and determined stances, nodded in acknowledgement. One with a wolf-like face and hairstyle was named Kao Hu, the one who suffered the most Kin Bing, and the last, with a square face and a booming voice, introduced himself as Fang Fei Lang. Having identified the three individuals, Yi Han remarked, The performance of you three is commendable. Therefore, next I will take you to a more intense and special training session, meaning you will become stronger. Of course, the rewards for you three will also be higher. Yi Han lowered his voice, emphasizing the company's path, but I must remind you three in advance. Once you agree to participate in this training, you will step into a different world, with no turning back. Among you three, does anyone intend to offer assistance? This new company was offering numerous benefits to its employees, coupled with a peculiar boss possessing unmatched strength. Not to mention the additional rigorous training. There was no reason to refuse. The three brothers responded unanimously and without hesitation. We will not retreat. Yi Han was pleased, adding more points to the spirit of these strongest individuals. He gave instructions. Very well. Tomorrow you will take a first-class flight with me to the city of Shanghai. I will give each of you five million. Consider it as consolation for living far from home. A windfall they never dared to dream of fell from the sky. This new leader was truly generous. The three brothers were ecstatic, as if forgetting their way back. We swear to follow every order, even unto death. Stepping out of Huancheng City, Yi Han let out a sigh of relief. He had to take Du Wen out to celebrate the successful completion of the task. The two brothers went to a lobster restaurant, ordered a feast, and indulged themselves. Du Wen concentrated on eating without speaking, while Yi Han smiled and said, Du Wen, 
This dish is delicious. Eat up, have a little more. Yi Han spoke while eating. The bodyguards have all headed to Shanghai, so we could consider taking some time to rest. Du Wen Wen ate so much that two lobster claws stuck out from his head, his mouth full of lobster meat. He replied, Big Brother Yi Han is absolutely right. Their joy was cut short when suddenly, the sound of a car engine roared loudly from the street, screeching brakes making a piercing noise. A peculiar convoy pulled over by the roadside, right where Yi Han and Du Wen Wen were having their meal. Some onlookers shook their heads, saying, Whose young master is this, strolling around here today? Whenever these ominous guys appear, nothing good happens. It's better to leave quickly. Getting involved with these troublemakers won't lead to anything good. Du Wen Wen, curious to see what was happening, saw someone familiar talking to Yi Han and said, Big Brother Yi, someone is coming. It's the guy we used to hire for car cleaning. As the wind whispered by, Yi Han calmly responded, Ignore them. Let's eat and drink. We can talk after we've had our fill. The rowdy group of younger thugs approached nearby tables, legs on the tables, shouting at the seated patrons. What are you looking at? Hurry up, clear out, or I'll teach you all a lesson if you don't leave in a moment. Three lads with rough expressions walked up to Yi Han's table. Su King, Da Jun, and Zhang Hu. Su King sneered. You're the one who beat up Zhang Hu. Right. Yi Han engrossed in devouring the lobster, remained silent for a moment. Zhang Hu couldn't contain himself and was about to jump in. Su Yum Master is asking you, are you deaf or blind? He's standing right in front of you, and you act like you can't see him. Su Yum Master arrogantly signaled Zhang Hu to step back. He approached closer, saying, you're quite arrogant, not answering my question. His face displayed a contemptuous demeanor, and Yi Han, wiping his hands, finally glanced back. Who are you? Why should I talk to you? Hearing such disdainful words, Zhang Hu, already furious, started cursing loudly. Kid, with Zhu Young Master here, you dare to be so arrogant. Wait a moment, I'll beat you until you can't stand, making you crawl between this old man's legs. Yi Han was enjoying his meal peacefully when the annoying bunch drew his attention. Standing up, he asked, you brought this group of losers here. Yi Han waved his hand, looking at the unruly crowd with disdain. Ha 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 ha, with just one hand eating lobster, I can still make these guys beg on the ground. Su King, who had never encountered such audacity, found it intriguing and responded, Arrogance and conceit, I've seen a lot, but someone as arrogant as you. This is the first time. I hope you can continue to be as arrogant. Su King pointed his five fingers, giving orders to his gang, resembling a conductor on stage. He loudly declared, Brothers, today we must teach him an unforgettable lesson, and I'll take full responsibility for all the consequences. The gang gathered, Chu King, wiping his not yet clean nose, arrogantly continued, Kid, you're in big trouble today. You can mess with anyone, but why provoke Su Young Master? Rest in peace. On their marching path, a chilling wind suddenly appeared, accompanied by a terrifying force. Each person Yi Han had thoroughly taken care of, from head to toe, he commanded, go to hell. The surrounding onlookers witnessed genuine martial arts skills for the first time, utterly astonished. Oh my God, how can someone be so powerful? The strength is truly overwhelming. No wonder he faced multiple opponents without changing his expression. Zhang Hu, observing the terrifying scene, felt his hair stand on end, shivering like a bird with a choked throat. Too, too fast. Du Wen Wen, realizing the inevitable outcome, sat back with a contented smile, sipping his drink. He, these people are so weak. How could they be rivals for our leader, Yi Han? Su King applauded Yi Han's performance, speaking as if he were a judge in a martial arts competition. Not bad. You indeed had some skills. Unfortunately, you picked the wrong person to offend, and your fate today will undoubtedly be tragic directing his bodyguards by his side, who had been confident all along. Su King said, Da Jun, it's your turn now. The younger brother, with an impressive physique and a well-groomed beard, stepped forward, as always, never disappoint the boss. He smiled confidently, rest assured, Zhu Young Master. Da Jun stretched his wrists and rotated his ankles like a professional athlete. Glancing at Yi Han, he gobbly declared, though I don't want to fight you, ultimately, 
It's Keksu Young Master's order. Today, you must suffer the consequences. Zhang Hu, who was trembling in fear a moment ago, now felt immensely relieved at Da Jun, the renowned figure in Huan Cheng. Stepping forward, he cheered, Da Jun, you must teach that guy a lesson for a lifetime. The gang of followers, with swollen faces and bleeding noses, had absolute confidence in an imminent victory and cheered enthusiastically. With Jun in action, that guy is as good as dead. Jun, make sure to teach him a lesson he'll never forget. Beat him to death. Su King looked at the scene with pity for the young man. No one had dared to challenge him before, all thanks to his bodyguards. Da Jun is incredibly powerful, undefeated in a hundred battles, renowned throughout Kuan Cheng. Taking down that young punk is as easy as turning his hand. Du Wen Wen, feeling it was a waste of effort and time, calmly observed the feudal situation. Why do some people still not know their limits? Challenging our brother Yi like that. Da Jun, in anger, unleashed a powerful punch. Go die. However, this punch seemed to be effortlessly caught by Yi Han, who jumped in to continue the impressive choreography. The two engaged in a beautifully choreographed fight, resembling scenes from a real martial arts movie. Yi Han, amused by the situation, commented, You're too weak. Having said that, Yi Han stopped playing around and grabbed Da Jun's fist with ease. Da Jun, sweating profusely, was astonished. How is this possible? It was the first time he encountered such a skilled younger brother, expanding his horizons. The onlookers gasped, exclaiming, The strength of this young man is incredible. Isn't Da Jun supposed to be unbeatable? He seems to be deliberately giving in to that kid. Da Jun is holding back intentionally. Zhang Hu, still unaware of the truth, thought Da Jun was genuinely holding back. He shouted, Da Jun, what are you doing? Hurry up and beat him to death. Su King also agreed, encouraging with a sinister grin, Da Jun, you don't need to hold back today. Unleash all your techniques, teach him a lesson. No one sympathized with Da Jun's situation, feeling sorry for the guy who usually charged into the forefront. Yi Han, not holding back, delivered a punch to Da Jun's abdomen. Get lost. As a martial artist, you shouldn't be attacking innocent people. If you did this against an ordinary citizen today, do you know the consequences? Da Jun was sent flying and landed painfully on the sidewalk, blood spurting out. The guys were left speechless. Da Jun found his match. No, this can't be real. Jun, did you really get defeated? Zhang Hu and Texu King, wide eyed and bewildered, questioned, Is this a dream or something? Zhang Hu, cursing with his head down, said, Da Jun, you're a waste. Chu King echoed in disbelief, Da Jun, you couldn't handle him. Da Jun struggled to stand after a while, responding coldly to his master, Su, I will answer your question shortly. Surprisingly, he changed his tone, adopting a more respectful manner, approaching Yi Han. May I inquire about your identities, the ones who have defeated me with such honor and skill? He thought to himself, This person is strong. Just one move and he broke my bone. Yi Han, showing some empathy, replied, This person can still be reformed. He continued, I am Yi Han. Today, I will teach you a lesson that you will never forget. Hearing the name struck Da Jun like lightning. He opened his mouth wide in disbelief. Yi Han, could you be the one from Shanghai City? Yi Han, somewhat surprised that his history was known even here in Huan Chang, responded, Seems like you know quite a bit. Suddenly, Da Jun, from a respectful stance, apologized to Yi Han, saying, Today, Da Jun was blind and failed to recognize the eminent presence of young Master Yi. I have offended you, and I request young Master Yi's punishment. This scene puzzled both Yi Han and the others. Yi Han pondered for a moment, then sternly replied, If you acknowledge your mistake, I won't make things difficult for you any further. But you must remember, as a martial artist, you should never casually harm ordinary people. Even if I overlook it today, Someone else will come to handle you in the future. Da Jun was deeply grateful, saying, Thank you for your guidance, young Master Yi. Yi Han thought the young man had left, but unexpectedly, Da Jun hesitated and stayed behind. To everyone's surprise, he bowed his head to the ground and pleaded, Young Master Yi, if you don't mind, Da Jun would like to follow you. Yi Han was taken aback, looking at his sincere expression, 
realizing this was no joke. Yi Han inquired, If you follow me, considering you know who I am, you've probably heard about my enemies. Aren't you afraid of death? Without any hesitation, Da Jun, with a long-standing determination, explained, I'm not afraid, young master Ye. My entire family was killed by the blood assassin gang. I know you have a grudge against them, and I want to follow you to seek revenge and justice. Yi Han felt compassion for this martial artist. He pretended to ponder and asked, Once you follow me, there's no turning back. I'll give you more time to think. Da Jun decisively replied, No need for more thought. It's either I die, or the blood assassin gang does. Young Master Yi, I've decided to follow you. Su King, who had been watching Yi Han and Da Jun perform this comedy, burst out in frustration. What's this, young Master Ye? It sounds disgusting. Da Jun, I called you here to help me discipline him. Why are you turning against that bastard now? Da Jun knew it was a difficult thing to say, but he calmly responded to Xu's foolish words. Young Master Xu, I understand what you're saying. But regarding young Master Yi, he is not someone we can offend. I remind you to pay attention to your words and actions. This was the first time Tu King, since cooperating with De Jun, had encountered such resistance. He couldn't accept it and erupted like a madman. Watch your language. De Jun, you must make it clear who Tu King is. What's this young master Ye? Today, Tu King will teach him a lesson. De Jun, realizing he had made many mistakes working for Exu King, knew it was time to repent. He seized this opportunity to show Yi Han that he was sincere. Walking straight up to Xu King, Da Jun said, If that's the case, young master Xu, then I won't serve you anymore. Su King managed to shout, Da Jun, how dare you hit me? Before he could finish, a punch from Da Jun landed squarely on Xu King's handsome face, mixing teeth and blood. Xu King let out a miserable cry and flew straight toward his group of lackeys. Everyone fell silent. Though Da Jun felt a bit uneasy, his noble conduct reached the summit. He stated, Su King, recalling our past friendship, I'll forgive you this time. But if it happens again, you won't be as fortunate as today. Su King was struck for the first time, and it was indeed his first time experiencing such pain. He widened his eyes, looking at his battered hand, and immediately stood up. With his authority, he commanded his underlings, Are all of you blind? Charge at him and teach this Da Jun a lesson. His lackeys, fully aware of Da Jun's strength, hesitated and dared not advance. A ah, Jun, we're sorry. We seem to have forgotten Hu Young Master's influence in Huan Cheng. They stammered. Da Jun, brimming with energy, stepped forward, ready to face anyone. He declared, Strength may be a factor, but offending Young Master Yi is absolutely unacceptable. He's the only one who can help me seek revenge. Before his lackeys could figure out how to react, Da Jun swiftly approached like a powerful tiger, scattering them all. In the blink of an eye, he charged towards Xu King, who was dumbfounded and exclaimed, Oh, Da Jun, you can't do this. I paid you to come here. Da Jun, disregarding matters of money or influence, clenched his fist and struck fiercely. He roared, Su Young Master. Your mistake was provoking young Master Yi. With that, Da Jun sent Xu King flying with a powerful punch. Disappearing without a trace, the last sound heard from him being a final cry. Zhang Hu at this moment didn't know where his fate would lead. He stood there lost in thought, muttering to himself. How can this happen? Even Da Jun is now on his side. Who is this young man after all? Da Jun, having seemingly settled matters with Yi Han's adversaries, approached respectfully. Ye young master, I have handled this matter. Yi Han, appreciating his efforts, prays, Da Jun, you did well. Yi Han was also considering accepting Da Jun into his circle, but he lowered his voice as a reminder. I like smart individuals but dislike being taken advantage of. Do you understand my point? Da Jun replied promptly, I understand. Da Jun is willing to obey any orders from Yi young master ascending mountains and descending seas without hesitation. Yi Han seized the opportunity to recruit another member into his team, patting Da Jun on the shoulder encouragingly. Remember what you said today, he advised. Just a few steps away, Yi Han's phone rang, surprising Da Jun. Yi young master is so formidable, but the ringtone doesn't match his style at all, he commented. On the other end of the line, 
Hu Feng's voice was serious. Ying Han, come back quickly. Something happened. Ruin Ling Kao is injured. Yi Han was suddenly taken aback, took a moment to calm down, and replied, Don't worry, I'll be back right away. After handing up, Yi Han immediately commanded, Duan Wen, Da Jun, get ready to leave. We are heading back to Shanghai City now. At the People's Hospital in Shanghai City, Yi Han, along with Duan Wen and Da Jun, rushed back. Hurriedly entering, Yi Han immediately asked everyone, Hu Feng, what exactly happened? Yi Han did not expect that someone would dare to harm Ru and Ling Kao. Glancing at Nan Gong, Hu Feng appeared somewhat fatigued and responded in a tone full of implications. Ask her. Nan Gong's mind was currently in utter confusion, the shock she experienced surpassing her capacity to endure. Uncertain how to answer Yi Han, Nan Gong burst into tears, crying out, It's all my fault. That person initially intended to assassinate me. Miss Ruin rushed forward to shield me and unexpectedly got stabbed. It's all my fault. Who? Hu Feng felt that now was not the time to blame anyone. She immediately dismissed it and consoled Nan Gong, saying, Miss Nan Gong, don't blame yourself too much. It's all because of the vile acts of the Lone Saber sect. Rest assured, with Dr. Yi here, nothing will happen to Ling Kao. Hearing the words, Lone Saber sect, Yi Han was genuinely taken aback. He couldn't believe that there was such enmity between Mangong and the Lone Saber sect that they would resort to such violent actions. Hu Feng clarified once again. Yes, Lone Saber sect. They are the top three assassin sect targeting Miss Nan Gong. When Ling Kyo was protecting Miss Nan Gong, they inflicted serious injuries on him. Yi Han wanted more clues and asked Hu Feng. Do you know why they sent assassins? Hu Feng shrugged. Well, these Lone Saber Sec people always operate covertly. I've tried, but haven't been able to find out anything so far. Yi Han, furious, inquired, Who are they exactly, and what's their motive? Angry that he couldn't immediately help Ling Kao, Yi Han punched a hole in the wall. Damn it, sooner or later, I will destroy that entire rebel faction. Hu Feng, rarely seeing Yi Han lose control like this, gently reassured him. Light Han, first, don't let yourself be provoked. Hu Feng revealed, Officer Ruan might not make it through today. Looking inside at Officer Ruan's face at the moment, she's probably in a lot of pain. Yi Han, determined not to let those scum off the hook, entrusted Officer Ruan's care to Nan Gong and told Hu Feng, Rest assured, if I return, I will definitely save Ling Kao. Lead me there. At this moment, Interrupting their conversation, the chief doctor and the medical team from the City People's Hospital entered, challenging them. Who dares to gossip here? One doctor expressed strong dissatisfaction, scolding. Experts like us can't guarantee a cure for the patient, and yet you dare to boast about it. Yi Han, angered but unable to reason with them, replied. If you can't cure them, then assume others can't either. Ignoring the derogatory remarks of the stubborn doctor, Yi Han walked straight in dismissing them. A bunch of useless people, get out of the way. The insulting and bitter doctor shouted loudly, you're just a brat, causing trouble in the hospital. The ignorant doctor then loudly ordered Hu Feng, Captain Hu Feng, you can't manage your people properly. If anything happens to the patient inside, we won't take responsibility. The doctor continued with unnecessary words, and if he had given up, it would have been better. Hu Feng responded succinctly, there's no need for you to take responsibility now. The medical sage we invited is already here. Hearing this, the doctor became even more infuriated. Clearly, the reputation of the city people's hospital means nothing anymore. A medical sage. Huh, Captain Hu Feng, I warn you. Only 10% of the patients inside are still alive. We are urgently exploring surgical solutions. If you insist on causing chaos and lead to the patient's death, we won't take responsibility. Despite the doctor's boastful speech, there was no applause from the audience. Yi Han's three family members acted as if nothing happened and entered the emergency room, where Officer Ruin was being treated. Yi Han coldly glanced and replied, Fool! Encountering Ruin Ling Kao, Yi Han exerted all his energy, using his profound soul techniques to maximize the healing effects for her. The disdainful doctor, though skeptical, begrudgingly observed. Eventually, he thought, this young man must be trying to show off, thinking he's some reincarnated immortal. Holding a needle in his hand, 
acting like a real expert. What a foolish person. After a while, Yi Han put away his tools, wiping sweat from his forehead and sighing in relief. Well, that's done. Nan Gong approached Yi Han with hope and asked, Yi Han, is Miss Ruin really going to be okay? Rest assured, I am here. Nothing will happen to Ling Kao. Once Yi Han intervened to save someone, even the Grim Reaper would have to follow the rules. The doctor couldn't resist stirring up trouble. Young man in this world does waving your hands and feet at the patient's bedside miraculously ward off danger. Do you think we're fools? Yi Han felt disgusting with these people. He casually responded, It's really annoying. I don't want to bother with you fools. Honestly, you're the real fool. Being the director of one of the largest hospitals in Shanghai, it was embarrassing for the doctor to repeatedly be overshadowed by Yi Han. The enraged doctor shouted, What did you just say, young man? If you have the guts, say it again. Clearly, you harmed the patient, yet you dare to speak boldly here. Both sides were exchanging heated words when Ruin Ling Kyo unexpectedly intervened. What's going on here? Everyone looked at her as if they had seen a ghost. Ruin Ling Kao was surprised to see everyone, including Yi Han, present. On the other side, Yi Han, Hu Feng, and Nan Gong were naturally overjoyed. Seeing Ling Kao looking at them in confusion, they rushed to inquire. Nan Gong tearfully said, Miss Ruan, you're okay. Ling Kao, you finally woken up. Now we can all relax. The doctor, horrified, exclaimed, What the hell is happening here? She's awake, she's awake. Yi Han placed his hand on Ling Kao's shoulder warmly and asked, Ling Kao, do you feel okay? Ruin Ling Kao felt extremely grateful and softly replied, I'm fine. Thank you so much, Yi Han. Her eyes sparkled as she looked at her benefactor. Understanding Ling Kao's wounds better than anyone else, Yi Han still anxiously advised her, Your wounds have just healed. It's better to rest more. Leave the matter of Lone Saber Sec to me. Strangely, every time Yi Han spoke to Ling Kao, she felt as if she were being sheltered in his arms a sense of absolute safety enveloping her. A difficult-to-express joy emerged within her, and her eyes sparkled as she followed Yi Han's figure. Yi Han, it's a pity you already have a girlfriend. Otherwise, if it were possible. The curious doctor was waiting at the door, greeting Yi Han warmly. Young man, may I ask who your master is? Since when have you been studying acupuncture? And if I may inquire about something. He speculated, the acupuncture technique of this young man is not bad. If I could learn it, my position and status in the medical field would surely rise to a higher level. With his yin-yang divine eyes, Yi Han saw through every dirty thought of the doctor. He erupted in anger and scolded, No, it's not possible. Get lost. A despicable doctor like you. Even if you know, you won't be able to learn. Stupid. Quickly move away. The doctor's subordinates stood around, looking at Yi Han with regretful expressions, sighing. Who would have thought this guy's medical skills would be so extraordinary? If we had known earlier, we would have treated him more kindly. It's a shame we missed the opportunity for such advanced acupuncture. Hu Fang was fully focused on the main task, identifying the enemies. She had gathered enough data. Yi Han entered and asked, Hu Fang, where are the ones who injured Ling Kao? Have you located them yet? Hu Fang reported immediately an abandoned construction site on the outskirts. Yi Han, don't act impulsively. She cautioned. They are all powerful assassins. Wait for me to call in the safety bureau personnel. Then we can sweep in and eliminate them. But Yi Han had made up his mind from the beginning. He never feared any enemy, whether strong or weak. He gritted his teeth and said, I've never waited for revenge. No matter how formidable they are, they will die today. At the abandoned construction site on the outskirts, the night had fallen pitch black. In just a moment, Yi Han stepped into the ruins, sword in hand, his powerful aura surging. He walked in alone and shouted loudly, Members of Lone Saber Sect, come out here for me. Assassins leaped out like frogs jumping onto the field. The leader of Lone Saber Sect, with a large scar on his face, stepped forward and spoke, You're asking for death. Aren't you tired of living? Yi Han's eyes, now red and streaked with a fierce glare, addressed them causing chaos in Shanghai City, daring to harm my people. Today you all must die. Unexpectedly, there's a hero sneaking in from the city to rescue a damsel in distress. 
The leader, with a scar on his face, raised both hands in admiration for the young man's courage. Next, he commanded his subordinates. Whoever dies without knowing who he is, he, my brothers, charge forward and eliminate him. As Gu Feng had described, these assassins were indeed extraordinary in their martial skills. A few of them rushed forward, combining their sword techniques and launching an assault towards Yi Han, taunting, Accept your fate and send him to the afterlife, my brothers. The leader with the scar sneered in amusement. The joint attack technique of these two is the unique and unparalleled skill of our lone saber sect. Even with formidable defenses, this young man might not be able to dodge it. Whether he dies or is severely injured, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Yi Han paid no attention to the antics of these henchmen. He wielded his divine sword, summoning the power of celestial dragons, illuminating the entire building. A bunch of little gangsters daring to swing your weapons in front of me. Witness the might of my celestial dragons. The celestial dragons descended from the sky in front of them, swallowing up the unfortunate duo with a scar. Their wars are coming through the sky and shaking the ground. The two fell lifeless, moaning before their demise. Why? How is this possible? Our most powerful joint attack has been broken. The scar-faced leader, shocked, exclaimed, What? That pump killed our top two subordinates with just one move. This guy is stronger than we thought. Yi Han stepped forward from behind the wreckage, crossing over the lifeless bodies of the two underlings. His blood was now boiling to the extreme. Yi Han spoke chillingly, Next in line, it's your turn. The scar-faced man couldn't believe that someone could withstand his demonic sword technique. This sword has claimed the lives of countless martial arts masters in the martial world. Shedding blood today is just a normal occurrence. If you want to kill me, be prepared to pay the price. Something sharp, thin, and icy cold gently brushed across his neck before he could finish his sentence. He exclaimed, What is this? Holding his neck, fearing that it might fall off, he uttered a strange sound. No, how is this possible? I am the number one assassin of Lone Saber Sect. His subordinate, now with a severed throat, bled profusely. Yi Han removed the core of Lone Saber Sect with one hand, silently bidding farewell to the miserable souls. Want to make me pay a high price? You're not worthy. The night had fallen late, and Yi Han walked silently in the outskirts. He allowed his spirit to drift with the wind, contemplating nothing. Duan Ni's phone call interrupted his thoughts. Yi Han answered, Duan Ni, what's up? I'm doing something outside. However, unfortunate events continued to unfold. Duan Ni's voice trembled. Yi Han, the blood hand path has arrived. Hurry back. Click, click, click. Yi Han anxiously called out, Duan Ni, Duan Ni, what's happening on your end? Yi Han rushed back at full speed. He angrily shouted in the midst of the clouds, Blood hand path, if anything happens to my girlfriend and family, I will kill all of you, not sparing a single one. The worry that Yi Han had harbored for a long time had finally come to pass. The large gate of Yi Han's mansion was now filled with smoky flames. Blood hand path seized the opportunity, with Lone Saber Sect hindering Yi Han. They launched a comprehensive attack to thoroughly destroy Yi Han's rear base. Orders were given, kill. Yi Han has gone to find Lone Saber Sect. We must seize this opportunity to strike him. Lone Saber Sect won't hold on for much longer. We must take advantage of this moment. This time next year will be your memorial day. Zhao Hao Tian, along with Hu Feng, Duan Wen, and Sun Bu Mi, stood in defense in front of the large gate. This must be a fight to the death. Hold them back. We must endure until Yi Han returns. We will risk our lives with you. The gang leader sneered as he advanced. Thankful for this ripe opportunity, our strategist's plan this time is truly brilliant. Without Yi Han here, there's only a bunch of weaklings. If you all were wise, hand over our sect leader now, or you'll all die here today. Sun Bu Mi, hearing his foolish words, retorted, Release Jiang Xiaofeng. Are you dreaming? Even if we die here today, we won't surrender anyone. That's just to say, the elder desperately hopes for Yi Han's return. The leader, infuriated, couldn't hold back his anger. Ultimately, he still wanted to kill all of Yi Han's relatives just to satisfy his grudge, so there was no need for further discussion. He commanded his underlings, no celebration, just punishment with wine. Kill everyone here for me, 
not a single person should be spared. His henchmen simultaneously obeyed the order, each displaying a hostile demeanor, fitting the true essence of the diverse blood handpath. Duan Wen, Lin Bai Mo, Zhao Haotian, Hu Feng, Sun Bu Mi, those closest to Yi Han, naturally couldn't allow them to wreak havoc freely. To save their foolish sect leader, they had to step over the bodies of their comrades first. Come at us if you dare. We're not afraid. Even if we die, we won't submit. Duan Ni, Du Du, and Yi Han's sister were hiding in a safe place, extremely worried. They consoled and prayed for each other. Yi Han, come back quickly. Yi Han, where are you now? Yi Han, we really need you right now. Looking at the chaotic scene inside Yi Han's house, the leader felt bored. He didn't want to waste much more time, saying, We need to resolve this quickly and save our young master. What a nuisance. It seems I have to personally intervene. He swung his sword and shouted loudly, Everyone must die for me. Among Yi Han's comrades, they knew no one had the skills to deal with this leader. As he leaped forward, Zhao Hao Tan signaled to the others to be alert. Up until now, Yi Han hadn't appeared, and they feared they might not be rescued in time. Du Du anxiously shouted to Hao Tian, Be careful. The leader aimed at Hao Tian first, but suddenly Yi Han's voice rang out, breaking the tense atmosphere. You have to die for it to be right. Yi Han emerged seemingly from the ground, his sword lightly flashing, and the leader of the Blood Hand Path was thrown backward. This group had no idea that Yi Han could mingle with his team so swiftly and dangerously. The leader, fortunate that the strike was just a warning, had a cut on his face bleeding. Astonished, he said, Yi Han, I didn't expect you to survive and come back. What about those lone saber sect idiots? Did they? Yi Han, revealing nothing immediately informed him. A bunch of lone saber sect trash can only last for so long. He walked up, looking at each member of the blood hand path, and said, Seems like I made it back in time. Zhao Hao Tian felt relieved to see Yi Han looking fit, no longer worried about defeating the blood hand path gang. He stepped forward and said, Yi Han, you finally returned. We're on the verge of collapse. His sister rushed over, tears streaming down her face. Yi Han, you're finally back. Dun and I was also overjoyed. Ye Han, it's good that you're back. Ye Han seemed to request a moment from the Blood Hand Path members to inquire about his family, saying, I apologize for being late. You can leave the rest to me. Hu Feng stepped forward to respond. It's not too late as long as you're back. Everyone was excited, saying, No problem, as long as you're back, it's all good. The greetings concluded, and Yi Han prepared for the confrontation with the unwelcome guests from the Blood Hand Path. In the first battle, he declared, How dare you take advantage of my absence, sneak attacking my family and friends. Today, all of you must die. Sensing something amiss, the gang leader stepped forward, showing respect to Yi Han. If I have to die here, Yi Han, you seem to be exaggerating. Last time, it was because you were protected by a master, so we couldn't kill you. Today, I brought five generals here. You're surely doomed. Yi Han, eager to demonstrate his skills, responded. Well, then feel free to try. The Blood Hand Path members now joined forces. All five generals that their leader had just mentioned each represented a wild strength. They unleashed their five strongest techniques to combine into the Fiery Yang Palm, Black Tiger Heart Snatch, Heart Thrust Palm, Demon Soul Claw, and Flaming Blade at the center. It was a grand preparation to welcome Yi Han. As for Yi Han, unfortunately, he didn't have time to prepare a spectacular martial arts performance. He already had a few techniques in his repertoire. Yi Han contemplated which one to choose, trying not to offend the Blood Hand Path members. In the end, he decided on the Yin Yang Infinite Sword. The sword techniques showered down like rain, and this particular sword had a mystical technique that couldn't be seen. Once unleashed, it was challenging to survive. From the gang leader to the five generals, each one tasted the edge of Yi Han's sword. They cried out in astonishment. Ah, what kind of sword technique is this? No, save us. How is this possible? He's too powerful. Seeing their leaders and the gang leader fall lifeless to the ground, none of the underlings dared to stand firm. The first general exclaimed, Oh my, Yi Han alone defeated five renowned generals. The challenging part has been successfully overcome by Yi Han. 
Now only the group of useless stragglers remains behind. They no longer need coercion. Stepping forward, the whole team shouted to them, You better worry about yourselves. Kill them. Zhao Hao Tan led the brothers forward, signaling, Everyone, the moment has come. Launch the counterattack. Yi Han inspired his comrades further, recalling how many times he had lost sleep over the disturbances caused by Blood Hand Path. He decided, Today, not a single member of Blood Hand Path will survive. Yi Han and 500 comrades simultaneously charged forward, sweeping away the enemies. The Blood Hand Path gang was trampled, as if they had no armor left. Their bodies lay scattered, a chaotic heap. Zhao Hao Tan spoke up, Yi Han, all the generals of Blood Hand Path sent here today have been completely wiped out by us. I bet Bad Dian, the white faced scholar, must have an interesting expression now. Ha ha. Yi Han stepped forward to respond. This is still not enough. If they wanted to take Jiang Xiaofeng, then we should return to them a portion according to his wish. Yi Han's plan sounded somewhat puzzling. How Tian question? A portion? What are you thinking? Yi Han turned to instruct An Zhu. An Zhu, please bother to carve a part of Jiang Xiaofeng's body. Then bring it here for us to show that scholar Bai Dian that Yi Han is not someone to be bullied. And you heard this with a gleeful heart. Zhang Xiao Feng deserved to suffer such a painful punishment. He laughed heartily, ha 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 ha, without a proper gift. How can it be allowed? The next day Yi Han, hand in hand with Du Wenni, accompanied by Zhao Hao Tian and little sister Du Du, strolled through the streets, enjoying a leisurely day. Yi Han, feeling sympathy for Du Wenni, thought, in the past few days, with all the fighting and killing, Du Wenni has been worried. Today, I'll take them out for a day of fun to lighten the mood. The bustling streets were filled with people and crowded with vehicles. As they walked past a row of fortune tellers, an old seer called out, Come and have your fortune read. Look at the celestial stars and the earthly geography. Young man, quickly draw a divination. No spiritual power. No payment. The old fortune teller, seeing the young couple like Yi Han and Du Ni, couldn't help but extend a warm welcome. However, Yi Han was undoubtedly not interested in such ominous tricks, so he quietly walked past, saying, No need. My destiny will be held by myself. There's no need for others to read it. The old man was left stunned, sweating profusely at such a response. However, in contrast to Yi Han, Du Wenai was quite curious about these fortune-telling stalls. The innocent girl stepped forward and said, I would be honored. Yi Han, if you won't, then let me give it a try. Although Yi Han didn't like it, when his grandmother spoke, he had to reluctantly give in. The old man cheerfully smiled and said, Let me see then. After observing for a while, the old man spoke, You have a wandering fate, a life of plenty and warmth. Though you were sick when you were young, you'll still live a happy life. However, a second later, the old man suddenly looked horrified. He exclaimed, Oh no, this is not right. The old man, in a panic, saw a miraculous aura emanating from Du Wan Nai. He quickly changed his tone. Here, here, this. How is it possible? The remaining part of your life is like a phoenix, full of wealth and prosperity, and you will enjoy it until the end of your days. Hearing the extraordinary words of the old man, delivered in such a sweet and pleasant manner, Du Wan Nai couldn't help but feel satisfied. She pulled out some coins and rewarded him, saying, Hey, your divination is delightful. Here is your fee, sir. After receiving the money, the fortune teller's mathematical calculations went haywire in his head, and he began to expound in an animated manner. Wow, wow, this twist of fate, to actually manifest before me like this. Finally, this must be the masterpiece of some extraordinary being. Hearing the old man speak piqued everyone's curiosity about their own destinies, wondering if they would have a fate as fortunate as Duan Nee's. Hao Tian and a few other friends eagerly approached the old man, asking, Why, sir, could you please check our destinies? Look into mine and my friend's destinies. We are both quite curious about what lies ahead. The old fortune teller, with a serious demeanor, observed and calculated for the two young men. He predicted, You, originally born into nobility, due to engaging in fights, will face constant pursuit and fall into poverty in the latter half of your life, ultimately meeting a miserable end. However, there is a chance to alter your fate, becoming a lord or minister in the future. Turning to the person beside him, he continued, As for you, 
Your destiny starts as a wanderer in the martial world, but now it transforms into a naturally blessed life. In your later years, you will live in comfort and luxury. Oh, how? How could it be like this? Seeing the fortune teller's somewhat accurate predictions, especially the favorable outlook for the latter part of their lives, Zhao Haoqian prays. This fortune teller's calculations are remarkably accurate. The friends also felt amused, and after hearing those ear-catching words, they joked, indeed intriguing. If it weren't for Yi Han, our graves might be covered in green grass by now. Yi Han, sensing that dealing with this group took too much time, stepped forward, signaling to everyone, all right, now that the fortune-telling is done, let's go. It's getting late, and we should head back. However, at this point, the old fortune-teller suddenly widened his eyes, gaping at Yi Han. The old man seemed struck by enlightenment, exclaiming in astonishment, unbelievable, utterly unbelievable. Encountering those who defy fate is an occurrence once in a thousand years, and yet at this moment, I meet three of you. Couldn't it be? Unable to use ordinary methods to assess these three individuals, the old fortune teller had to resort to a secret technique. It had been a long time since he last employed this technique. Heaven opening eye. The old man gestured with his fingers, drawing mystical patterns, and his eyes sparkled with magical incantations. He muttered some kind of divine chant and then directed the eye's power towards Yi Han. A divine image of a majestic emperor appeared above Yi Han's head. There was no doubt, this was the origin of those who defy fate. Recognizing such a holy being, the old fortune teller hastily knelt down, proclaiming, Oh, divine seer, the emperor of fate, heavens above, to have a destiny like yours and to meet you in person. Yi Han, puzzled by the sudden strange behavior of the old man, asked, Old sir, what's happening? Why are you suddenly kneeling down like that? The bewildered old fortune teller stood up and replied, My legs, my legs are a bit weak. Could I trouble you to support me just a little? Calculating quickly in his mind, the old man thought, This is a divine seer, an encounter that happens once every hundred thousand years. If I stay close to him, perhaps my fate could change. I must find a way to stay near him. Sensing something unusual, Yi Han looked at the old man and asked, Are you really okay, sir? Should I take you to the hospital? Seizing the opportunity, the old fortune teller rushed to convey his intention. Oh, no need for the hospital. It's just that I recently arrived in Shanghai City, and I haven't found a place to stay yet. I was wondering if you could. Yi Han, straightforward as always and with a clear philosophy had a strict policy of not letting any additional men into his household. He waved his hand, signaling, No, it's not possible, absolutely not. Duan Ni, misunderstanding the old fortune teller's intentions, thought he was asking for more money and stepped forward, expressing her dissatisfaction. Didn't you already pay for your fortune telling earlier? Why are you trying to extort more from us now? The old fortune teller waved his hands and legs, responding with a long and verbose speech, I can navigate the living room. Descend to the kitchen, write code, deal with rascals, possess the ability to repel enemies, and I won't mistakenly end up in someone else's bed. Moreover, just look at this robust body, thick skin, and healthy physique. Isn't it clear that I am a suitable assistant? Taking me in would be a definite gain and no loss. To make the old man feel at ease, Yi Han had already used the yin yang divine eyes to observe everything inside the fortune teller's mind. The old man smirked and asked Yi Han, Brother, do you want to reconsider? In his heart, the old man was eager, truly wanting to follow a martial emperor to experience a rebirth and hoping for his destiny to be transformed just like the others. Seeing the old man making an effort, Yi Han contemplated, This old man is not normal, and he doesn't seem to have any ill intentions. If handled well, he could become a helpful ally. To see what this person can contribute, especially when we have many tasks at hand requiring additional management. He responded, It's just like adding another pair of chopsticks at home. Besides, we have vacant rooms at home. How long the Dao master wants to stay is up to him. Like rain from the heavens watering drought-stricken fields, the old fortune teller raised his hands and feet in gratitude, saying, Great, the Dao master, I express my gratitude to you. Dula Nai seemed somewhat uneasy and asked, Why Han? Aren't you afraid he might be a bad person? Yi Kan seemed unconcerned about the old man, having thoroughly examined him and reassured Duan Nai. Rest assured, Duan Ni, 
I won't mistake him for anyone else. The delighted old fortune teller said, The initial steps of the plan have been successful. In the Grand Hall of the Blood Handpath, shortly after receiving news of the recent complete defeat of the elite troops, Zhang Yutang received more shocking news, causing him to erupt in anger and shout, Wu Xing, you truly are a brilliant strategist. I've just returned, and you've already shown me my son's severed arm. Wu Xing trembled under the reprimands of the Blood Hand Pat's elder. Zhang Xiao Feng's arm had stiffened like a piece of wood in a box. Zhang Yutang felt both humiliated and painfully distressed. His son's fate was uncertain. Fueled by anger, he directed his frustration at the foolish Wu Xing. I can see that you've been living in this world for far too long. You can't handle even a sly person. If it weren't for your loyalty to me over the years, the Sek Master would have killed you by now. Wu Xing knew his crime was severe, but he couldn't have anticipated that Yi Han would pose such a significant threat. He pleaded desperately. If the Sek Master has committed an offense, I am willing to once again go to Shanghai Si. This time, I will surely bring the head of Yi Han back here. Zhang Yutang, now losing faith in the incompetent Wu Xing, rebuked sharply, You still want to go after his head? Don't you think you've criticized our skilled members of the Blood Hand Path enough? Wu Xing bowed deeply, subordinate dares not. A subordinate, discontent with Zhang Yutang's decision, eager to take matters into his own hands, suggested, Sect Master, shall I arrange for a siege to eliminate Yi Han? Unable to stand idly by, as this matter concerned the life of his beloved son and the reputation of the Blood Hand Path in the martial world, Zhang Yutang responded with a trace of bloodlust, No need. It has been many years since I last appeared. Perhaps many on the martial stage have forgotten who Zhang Yutang is. Recalling his past glory of ruthlessly killing thousands, Zhang Yutang declared, This time, when the Sek Master makes his move, it is to kill Yi Han and use the incident to scare everyone in Hoadong. No one in this region will dare to oppose our Blood Hand Path anymore. Zhu, along with Yi Han and their companions, returned home. They sat together around the conference table, sipping tea. Zhu spoke up. Lai Han, have you heard the news? Zhang Yutang from the Blood Hand Path made his move yesterday. We severed his son's arm as a gesture of retaliation, and he will undoubtedly come seeking revenge here. Zhu's plan was spot on, but Yi Han calmly sipped his tea without saying anything. Zhao Hao Tian, recalling Zhang Yutang's past exploits, couldn't help but feel uneasy and remarked. Zhang Yutang is not to be underestimated. Moreover, he's inherently ruthless. Back then, he relied solely on his strength to sweep through the entire Huadong. Even if we unite our forces, it's uncertain if we can match up to him. Sun Bu Mi, the most experienced figure among them, offered his advice. Zhang Yutang, tonight we need to lay low for a while. Yi Han, finally drawing the attention of the group, asked, Since we dealt with Zhang Chao Feng, we've been unable to escape. What do you all suggest? Considering the current situation and weighing various options, Yi Han decisively declared, Zhang Yutang is formidable, but we are not weak either. I believe we can handle him. Despite that, the notorious Zhang Yutang arrogantly swaggered in, and his voice echoed, surprising everyone. Haha, quite the lively scene. Your aura is quite impressive, I must say. Zhang Yutang's arrival seemed swift indicating an inevitable life-and-death confrontation. Without hesitation, Zhang Yutang, Wu Xing, and a few of his close subordinates boldly entered Yi Han's house, behaving as if they were strolling through their own blood hand path. Yi Han's comrades immediately rose, assuming defensive positions. Meanwhile, Yi Han remained composed, sitting calmly, observing the enemy's movements. Zhang Yutang questioned accusingly, You killed my general, and dared to sever my son's hand. Today is the day of your reckoning, Yi Han. Unlike Zhao Hao Tian, Zhu, and Sun Bu Mi, who appeared anxious and uneasy, Yi Han nonchalantly responded, Ha 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 ha, there have been many who wanted to kill me, but now, I'm not doing too bad. Yi Han casually walked up to Zhang Yutang, who was somewhat surprised by the fearless attitude of the young man. Yi Han continued, And the graves of your underlings? The grass has grown three feet tall by now. Jiang Yutang, a lifetime spent navigating the martial world, had never encountered anyone daring to confront him in such a manner. With a sharp retort, he responded, Speak less, insolent one. Release my son quickly, 
and I may consider letting you die in one piece. Yi Han showed amusement in his response. Oh, not a problem at all. Master Jang has traveled quite a distance to make it here. After I entertain your son extravagantly, I'll divide him into multiple parts to send back to you, just to see how you like it. Despite Zhang Yutang's menacing threats, Yi Han didn't regard him as more than a speck of dust. Jang roared, Li Han, this is the consequence of your actions. Today, I will tear you into a hundred pieces to alleviate the rage within me. Yi Han, encountering a formidable opponent after a long time, took out his legendary sword and retorted, Fascinating. If you want to kill me, go ahead and try. Let's see who ends up as the one facing death. Sun Bu Mi's three disciples, Hao Tian, Zhu, and himself, expressed their concerns. Vai Han, Zhao Yu Tang is definitely no ordinary foe. You must be careful. Yi Han, don't force yourself into a hopeless situation. It's better for us to run. Yes, Yi Han, the forest is still there. Why worry when there's still firewood to burn? But those words now merely passed through as a fleeting wind. Yi Han had never known how to evade his own destiny. The more he tried to escape, the closer it came. He spoke to his comrades. It's all right, everyone. I've long wanted the title of the number one martial artist in Huodong from Zhang Yutang. Zhang Yutang charged forward with a legion of ghostly and malevolent soldiers. He said, Li Han, arrogant one, quickly face my blood sea heaven scourging technique. In this martial art of mine, countless souls who have died by my hand are condensed. Do you truly feel honored to join their ranks? Yi Han, activating his technique underfoot, replied, Sorry, I might disappoint you. Raising his sword, he unleashed the dark divine dragon with a dual-headed yin-yang twin swords technique, releasing a powerful force. The dark divine dragon surged forward like a mighty red torrent, sweeping away all the souls in Zhang Yutang's technique, leaving none behind. No one had ever achieved such a feat in front of him before. Zhang Yutang, astonished and incredulous, stammered, What? You can easily neutralize my blood sea heaven scourging technique. The old man marveled. I wonder who taught this Yi Han martial arts. Wu Xing and his subordinates were furious. The first time he encountered Yi Han, his perspective widened. How is this possible? The master stroke of our sect leader, and yet he effortlessly neutralized it. The other three disciples were overjoyed, enthusiastically cheering for Yi Han. Yi Han, well done. Yi Han, I knew you could do it. Your strength has truly ascended. Yi Han approached John Yu Tang with his sword, speaking directly to him. John Yu Tang, your strength is just this much. It seems your reputation is baseless. It appears your son won't be following you back today. John Yu Tang felt his footing less secure than before, confusion clouding his mind. Damn it, this Yi Han's strength exceeds my expectations. If I continue to fight him, I might not secure victory today. While John Yu Tang struggled to find a solution, a confident voice from behind spoke up. Jiang Sek leader, you, a renowned powerhouse, can't even handle a brat who hasn't wiped his nose yet. How disappointing. Surprised, Jiang Yutang asked. Who? Turning around, he saw the first Tian Zun, the revered leader of the sect, striding forward majestically like a bear. Jiang Yutang let out a sigh and retorted. I thought it was someone else. Turns out it's the first Tian Zun. Even Hu Tian Zun wouldn't dare speak to me in such a manner. First Tian Zun, if you dare to provoke me, I won't hesitate to kill both you and Yi Han. The first Tian Zun calmly sheathed his weapon and responded, Jiang Sek leader, there's no need to get so hot-headed. My purpose for coming here today is the same as yours, to kill Yi Han. Surprised, Zhang Yu Tang asked, What do you mean? He quickly thought, Yi Han is formidable. And if we have the support of someone like the Tian Zun, this might turn out to be a good thing. Despite his seemingly indifferent demeanor, Zhang Yu Tang knew very well that he might not be a match for Yi Han alone. The bear like first Tian Zun stepped forward and declared, Let's join forces. Even if this young man is strong, he'll still meet his end at the hands of both of us. Ha <laughs> ha. Thus, the battle became even more intriguing. With Wu Xing's overwhelming forces, he commanded his assassins, All of you, Support the sect leader, Zhang Yutang remarked. Very well, even though we were enemies before, as long as you want to kill Yi Han, from this moment on, you and I are friends. 
Unable to stand idly by any longer, Zhao Hao Tian, Sun Bu Mi, and Zhu also rushed in to aid Yi Han. The opposing force was numerous and formidable. Sun Bu Mi discussed with Zhao Hao Tian their plan to hold back the enemy, allowing Yi Han to escape. They said, Yi Han, you should run quickly. We'll take care of things here. Yi Han, take Du An Nai, and Du Du, and leave. Today, unless I die, they won't be able to advance a step. Yi Han, my brother, if it weren't for you saving me, I would have died long ago. Living in this world for so long is enough. Today, I must share the same fate with them. However, Yi Han was not as pessimistic as the three of them. A Jiang Yutang and a brainless first Tan Zun were just stepping stones under Yi Han's feet. He replied, My three brothers, don't worry. Even if the Tian Zun alliance teams up with the Blood Hand Path, today they are bound to die. The first Tian Zun looked down with disdain, sneering at Yi Han. Yi Han, do you still think someone will come to rescue you? Let me tell you, today, anyone who comes is useless. You are surely going to die. But indeed, contrary to their expectations, Yi Han had made arrangements beforehand, a special arrangement for a special person. He spoke loudly, Old Taoist, do you want to stand there and watch the show until when? As a bodyguard, if you won't come to help, you might as well leave. Following the command, the old Daoist leaped out from the bushes, his voice echoing. Hey, take it easy, take it easy. The old Daoist is not here for a fight. It was the Daoist that Yi Han had recruited on the roadside, and today, his demeanor was entirely different from the first day. This isn't right. Is this the Daoist under Yi Han? Why is his aura so powerful? I thought Yi Han didn't like associating with others, so why did he recruit this Taoist? Turns out, he had already recognized the true strength of this Taoist. Yi Han, it seems you were well prepared, and our strength has increased. The first Tian Zun didn't want to hear any more jokes from Yi Han's team. He took the lead in initiating the battle, saying, Humph, just a little Taoist, wanting to change the situation. Don't dream in broad daylight like this. He aimed his attack at the Daoist with a disdainful look. Seeing the Daoist standing calmly with folded hands behind his back, the first Tian Zun couldn't bear it and thrust his formidable staff towards him, saying, Go die. The Daoist lowered his glasses, examining the pitiable appearance of the bear-like figure in front of him, and responded, Moon, a bit of skill, but trying to confront Mr. Yi like this. As the first Tian Zun was about to make contact with the Taoist, the old man swiftly seized his hand and pulled it behind his back. The first Tian Zun was left bewildered. He exclaimed, What the hell? His eyes widened in disbelief as the old Taoist effortlessly dragged him away like a pet. The Taoist commanded, Come here. A powerful punch landed in the center of the first Tian Zun's chest, and the Taoist shouted, Get lost. A surge of energy emanated from the Taoist, and the grip of the old man's hand was clearly visible from behind the bear-like figure. The first Tian Zun was thrown back to his original spot, crying out in pain. How is this possible? His blood path, subordinates were astonished. First Tian Zun, who would have thought you could be defeated with just one move? How is this possible? An insignificant nobody, summoned by Yi Han, can change the whole situation. Seeing the first Tian Zun being defeated so effortlessly by the old Taoist, Zhang Yutang shivered. He was about to rush forward, but hesitated. This old Taoist is too strong. If this continues, even I might find it difficult to survive. No, I have to figure out a way to escape. The old Taoist, still calm, acknowledged the praise from both sides. Tian Zun, unlimited. I, as an old Taoist, haven't intervened for a long time. It's indeed a bit ruthless to take action now. You all have mocked me. He turned back to report, Ye, sir, the blood aura on these people is intense, with countless crimes. Should I send them directly to meet the Dao Masters? Upon hearing this, Yi Han and his companions were perplexed by this unpredictable figure. Yi Han questioned, Where exactly do you lack compassion? The first Tian Zun, after lying motionless for a while, finally managed to get up and said, Zhang Yu Tang. If you continue to hesitate, we will all perish here. Only by cooperating can we have a chance to win. Zhang Yutang responded with a fierce tone. First Tian Zun, I have an extraordinary technique that requires some time to unleash. Help me buy some time. And once I activate it successfully, 
I could definitely kill that old man. Zhang Yutang thought to himself, I still have my own troubles to deal with. Why should I worry about others? Sorry, first Tian Zun. The first Tian Zun struggled to his feet, his clothes torn and ragged like discarded weeds. He shouted, Fine, damn Taoist, I'll show you my true strength. The experts of the Celestial Alliance are not useless. But as soon as he finished speaking, it seemed that the Taoist was a very hospitable person. Anyone who called for him would get an immediate response. With a punch, he smashed the face of the bear-like creature, and the first Tian Zun spat out blood, unable to utter another word to his loyal subordinates. Seeing the Tian Zun being defeated with no chance to retaliate, Zhang Yutang immediately gave orders to his subordinates. Indeed, a useless fellow. Even an old man can't handle him. Blood handpath. Retreat. His subordinates promptly followed suit. But this was not a place one could come and go freely. Yi Han was right behind, shouting loudly, Zhang Yutang, where do you think you're running to? Having said that, Yi Han lunged forward. Sword energy of the Dragon King, kill. Zhang Yutang panicked. Damn it, I absolutely cannot die here. The old man quickly pulled his military advisor, Wu Xin, forward as a shield. Scholar Bai Dian, it's time for you to show your loyalty. The military advisor shouted, What? No. The technique hit the scholar, exploding into a cloud of smoke in the sky. Zhang Yutang and a few remaining subordinates hurriedly continued to flee. He turned around and threatened, Li Han, just wait, I will definitely be back. The next time we meet will be the day of your demise. However, Yi Han didn't bother with trivial matters like a never-ending nightmare. He replied, Ha ha, there won't be a next time for you, old man. Yi Han gave the order, and the Taoist, laughing loudly, appeared out of nowhere, darting towards Zhang Yutang like a comet. He grabbed Zhang Yutang, you little scoundrel, daring to offend Mr. Yi, and still wanting to escape safely. Zhang Yutang was shocked. What's going on? The Daoist raised his hand and commanded, Come back here. Having said that, he struck Zhang Yutang and flew back into Yi Han's courtyard, saying, Let Mr. Yi handle you as he wishes. Yi Han pointed his sword at the neck of old Zhang Yutang, questioning, Zhang Yutang, do you have anything left to say? Terrified, the old man stammered in a plea, Yea, Yi Han, please don't kill me. Blood Han Path belongs to you and Ho Dong is also under your control. I, I don't want anything. Just spare me this time, and everything I have will be yours. Yi Han couldn't help but angrily strike with his sword, scolding. Zhang Yutang, perhaps in the eyes of others, Blood Han Path and Ho Dong are valuable, but today I must let you know that in the eyes of Yi Han, those things are not worth a thing. They're nothing more than a dog's dung. Hearing this, Old Zhang Yutang's face turned red with anger. Ye Han. You. But the old man didn't get a chance to say more. He was struck by Ye Han's sword directly in the neck, and blood sprayed out. He fell to the ground, dead on the spot, looking down from above. Ye Han couldn't help but show disdain. Even death can't pay for all the sins. The Daoist sighed while stroking his beard. Decisive actions. No hesitation at all. This is the quality of someone destined for great achievements. Sun, the senior, let out a relieved sigh, saying, John Yutang is dead. Blood Hanpath is no longer a threat to us. The first celestial lord has been killed. Finally, we can rest a bit now. Zhao Hao Tian crossed his arms and reminded, Blood Hanpath is no more, but the celestial sect still exists. Many experts will come here in the future, and we can't stay in seclusion here forever. Yi Han, how's your search in Huan Chang going this time? Yi Han frowned slightly in response. They are on their way here, but their skills are still lacking. There's no immediate way to make them proficient in combat techniques. Moreover, the alchemy method you gave me last time is not suitable for crafting pills for experts. Hearing this, the old Taoist hurriedly approached, gesturing with his hands and feet. I know alchemy. I've had over ten years of experience in alchemy, as long as there's an alchemy method. I can craft any kind of pill. The other three looked at him suspiciously and said, Don't joke around. Alchemy methods aren't something you can just give to anyone, and not everyone can succeed. You better stay here and enjoy your wine. At your age, you should be careful not to die in the alchemy furnace. 
The old Taoist angrily retorted, How dare you underestimate me? Today, I must. Yi Han immediately handed him the alchemy method paper, saying, Try this. Here's an alchemy method for you. As soon as the old man received the paper, he quickly ran off, shouting loudly, He he, Yi sir has a discerning eye. If used, there's no doubt. If doubted, there's no use. Truly a person with great vision. Zhao Hao Tian anxiously asked, Yi Han, can we trust this crazy old man? It's too dangerous. Zhu Lai also expressed concern, Yi Han, this alchemy method is very valuable. It can't be easily shared with others. Can we trust this person? Yi Han smiled mysteriously, rubbing his chin. Let's wait for the results. There might be surprises. After a while, when the group arrived at the alchemy spot of the old Taoist, everyone was extremely surprised. They didn't expect the old man to have such talent. He successfully crafted the pills, and they looked potent. These are the pills that can enhance cultivation speed, right? Impressive. Yi Han, examining the pills, suddenly felt something was wrong and said, These pills are not right. The old Taoist immediately took action. He tossed a pill into his mouth for a test and confidently stated, What's wrong with it? Look at the abundant aura of this pill. There's absolutely no issue. If you don't believe me, I'll show you by taking it. The result will be clear immediately. Yi Han, alarmed, tried to stop him. Wait, don't. But he couldn't stop it in time. The old Taoist had already swallowed the pill and exclaimed while chewing, As expected of my creation, it tastes really good. Suddenly, his body had a reaction, and he clutched his bucks, shouting, Wait, something seems off. The other three, confused, asked, What's happening? Yi Han hurriedly urged, Not good, quickly drop your weapons and run. The room echoed with a loud explosion, and a strong foul odor permeated the air. The group covering their noses and mouths complained, Oh no, we're done for. Clear the way, I'm about to pass out. Sun Bu Mi vomited loudly, expressing his disgust. This is unbearable. The angry old Taoist, his face distorted, scolded. Zhao Hao Tian, you stop there. Your alchemy method has side effects. Why didn't you say anything? Luckily, I was cautious. Otherwise, I would have expelled you. Zhao Hao Tian, also furious, grabbed the old Taoist's collar and cursed. This is the alchemy method. I had to bet with my life. How could it be wrong? I think you just don't know the correct method. The old Daoist raised his neck to argue. My alchemy skills rank in the top three in Hoaxia. Clearly, there's an issue with your method. The two continued their heated exchange, and Yi Han intervened, advising, stop arguing. Yi Han then displayed the pill, explaining, it's neither the alchemy method nor the fault of the old Daoist. The pill itself contains impurities, causing the side effects. Hearing this, the two were surprised and asked, is it genuine or fake? Yi Han crushed the pill, showing them. See for yourselves. Everyone gathered to take a look, and as soon as Zhao Hao Tian noticed, he exclaimed, Yi Han, impressive. You figured it out so quickly. Senior son, equally amazed, remarked, Indeed, it contains impurities. Zhu Lai asked the old Taoist, Do you have a solution to this problem, sir? The old Taoist adjusted his collar and replied, it's a triple poison pill. This is an unavoidable issue. The person who wrote this alchemy prescription couldn't come up with a solution. So how could I? Zhao Hao Tan sighed helplessly. There's nothing we can do. The side effects are just a bit. But still, just a bit. Zhu Lai suggested. When giving it to them, let's stand a bit farther away. Yi Han smiled and said, No need for that. I have another medicine that can solve this problem. He then took out another medicine, thinking to himself, Guigu Medical Classic states that everything has a mutual restraint. Based on this, it should be easy to find a solution. The old Taoist took the medicine, and to his surprise, read, is it genuine or fake? Let me see what medicine this is. After reading the prescription, the old Taoist exclaimed, What? Horse. Horse dung. Yi Han replied, Exactly, this is what they call using poison to counteract poison. The old Taoist eagerly grabbed horse dung from the jar, while the poor horse silently wept, I feel so dirty. After ten minutes of alchemy, the old Taoist proudly held up a pure pill, showing off, I finally succeeded in refining it. 
I'll now test the efficacy of this medicine. Senior Sutton covered his nose, turned away and said, I won't even bother with that medicine. Yi Han agreed, I second that. Zhao Hao Tian also waved his hand and suggested, perhaps we shouldn't let others know what's inside. Yi Han's phone suddenly rang. It was Hu Feng calling. Curious, Yi Han asked, Hu Feng, what's the matter calling me? After a brief thought, he answered the call. Hello, why are you looking for me? Is the safety bureau assigned a mission again? Hu Feng urgently spoke. I received information that members of the Celestial Sect have come to Hoadong. They've already attacked the underground forces in Hoadong. If they succeed in their plans, Hu Dong will surely fall into chaos. The safety bureau can't reveal itself, so you must stop them. Upon hearing this, Yi Han realized the gravity of the situation. He immediately responded, All right, send me the address. I'll go right away. On the other side, in Hu Dong, the woman known as the Third Celestial Lord sat on a table, legs crossed, and coldly asked, What are you five still standing there for? If you won't fight back, surrender to me. Is it that you all willingly choose to die together? Her subordinates showed disdain and said, Exactly, you old folks really want to die peacefully. Then it's better not to waste our time. If you don't surrender, our celestial sect will undoubtedly make Huldong run with blood. Your old bones can't compare to us. Despite being battered and bruised, Lin Zhang Tu, the head of Huodong, tried to argue, Celestial sect, your reckless actions in Huodong. Aren't you afraid of Blood Hand Pat's revenge? The third celestial lord asked coldly, Are you trying to threaten me? As soon as she finished speaking, a knife suddenly flew, stabbing into his leg, causing him to scream in agony. My leg. The woman announced with a smile after taking action. Let me tell you the truth. Zhang Yutang of Blood Hand Path is risking his life fighting with Yi Han. Between them, victory or defeat hasn't been determined. From today onwards, Blood Hand Path no longer exists. Our celestial sect will dominate Hua Dong. Upon hearing this, the people of Hua Dong couldn't hide their astonishment and exclaimed, What Blood Hand Path has been destroyed? Relying on Blood Hand Path, we could resist attacks from other forces. But if Zhang Yutang is dead, then truly, no one in Huodong can stand against the Celestial Sect. Do we have to submit to them now? The Third Celestial Lord threatened in a loud voice. Lin Zhang Tu, I'll give you one last chance. Surrender to live or resist to die. After struggling for a while, Lin Zhang Tu gritted his teeth and spoke. I choose to surrender. At that moment, a loud noise erupted, drawing the attention of the two leaders. Yi Han walked in from outside, shouting, I don't allow it. The people of Hoadong, upon seeing him, exclaimed in unison, Yi Han. The third celestial lord couldn't help but express surprise and question. This isn't right. Why are you near? Where is the first celestial lord? Yi Han threw a wrapped bag toward her, saying, I killed him. Then everyone dispersed. Seeing the tokens of the first celestial lord and Jiang Yutang, people were shocked and disgusted. The tokens of both the First Celestial Lord and Jiang Yutan. Could it be that both of them were killed by Yi Han? He has unexpectedly become this powerful. What exactly is going on? Lin Zhang Tu looked joyous. This is excellent. The First Celestial Lord is dead, and I predict the Celestial Sect is about to fall apart. I've been waiting for this day for a long time. Fortunately, Yi Han is here. The Third Celestial Lord was still in disbelief. This can't be true. You were an inferior to the first celestial lord by a whole realm. It's absolutely impossible for you to kill him. This must be a fake. Yi Han calmly replied, Whether it's true or fake, you can find out by testing it yourself. Then, the third celestial lord smiled mysteriously and drew out two short swords, determined to eliminate Yi Han. She taunted, You're just a late-stage cultivator. What can you do against me? After I kill you, I'll expose all your lies. Yi Han didn't stay idle either and unleashed his technique. Yin Yang Twin Swords. The third celestial lord didn't back down. She sneered at Yi Han. A tiny sword technique dares to face me? Go to your death, Han Diem Song Vu. Yi Han remained calm. Who said I only have one broken sword? Taiji gives birth to Yin and Yang. Yin and Yang give birth to the four symbols. The four symbols give birth to the eight trigrams and the eight trigrams generate all things. 
This astonished the woman on the other side. She was pierced by Yi Han's sword techniques and cried out in agony. She couldn't help but exclaim, too strong. People present were equally astonished. A master at such a young age, and we didn't even know about this heroic figure in Hoabdong. Those under the command of the third celestial lord, filled with fear, fled. Run quickly. The third celestial lord is also dead at his hands. This person is too terrifying. We are no match for him. If we don't run, staying here will only lead to death. Yi Han showed no mercy to them, thinking of running. It's not that simple. Then, this group of people fell victim to Yi Han's sword. They cried out in pain and fell. Another one, witnessing his teammate's death, was filled with extreme fear, heart pounding and legs trembling. He knelt down and begged Yi Han, Please, don't kill me. I have an elderly mother and a young child at home. I just joined the celestial sect yesterday, and I haven't done anything bad. Yi Han calmly responded, Rest assured, I won't kill you. I want you to immediately return to the celestial sect and tell them that Yi Han is here. Warn the celestial sect not to cause trouble in Ho Adong. The man sobbed and agreed. Okay, I understand. I'll go back to Huan Cheng and convey Yi Han's message to the celestial sect. Yi Han kicked him and ordered, Get lost. Lin Zhong Tu and his companions expressed gratitude to Yi Han. Thank you, young Master Yi, for intervening and saving us. We are willing to donate all the funds to Blood Handpath and hand it over to young Master Yi. Yi Han responded solemnly, I saved you not for your money. I just want to ask you something. Do you want to continue being manipulated by others forever, or do you want to join forces with me to drive those despicable creatures out of Hoagong? Lin Zhang Tu expressed his choice. Young Master Yi, if you can defeat Zhang Yutan, and the first celestial venerable, I am willing to follow you and fight against the celestial sect. Upon hearing this, Yi Han quickly went to help Lin Zhang Tu stand up and said, You've made a wise choice. I see you're injured. Let me treat you. While treating Lin Zhang Tu, Yi Han thought, As long as the injuries are not too severe, the spiritual energy within my body can completely heal them. After a while, Lin Zhang Tu was amazed. Heavens, is this a divine being? Everyone was astonished. To heal wounds in an instant, it's incredibly powerful. Following this person is our way to avoid humiliation. Yi Han encouraged them. Mr. Lin, you've shown your commitment. What about the others? Everyone then kneeled down to express their agreement. I agree to follow young Master Yi and pursue the celestial sect. Yi Han was pleased. Very good. In ten days, we will go to Huan Cheng to confront the celestial sect. Swiftly, the subordinate of the celestial sect, spared by Yi Han, quickly conveyed the message to the celestial sect, Master, Master, this is the situation. Gua Fu Hai frowned upon hearing the news Yi Han used only one move to kill the third celestial venerable, and he even said he would confront the celestial sect in Huan Cheng in ten days. The subordinate continued tremblingly, He, he is truly powerful. Many of our comrades were killed by him, and only I, the humble one, could return. Upon hearing this, Shi Hu Fafen Nu Jin Gang felt extremely angry. He lashed out at this subordinate to vent his frustration. If those who went with you are already dead, why don't you just die with them? The subordinate begged for mercy. No, please spare my life. However, he was struck by a blow from Shi Hu Fa, causing him to spew blood and be thrown away. Gua Fu Hai advised Shi Hu Fa to stay calm. Ti Hu Fa, you must remain calm. The pressing matter now is to subdue the remaining territory of the Blood Hand Path. Don't attract too much attention to that person Yi Han. It might jeopardize the grand plans of the Celestial Sect. Si Hu Fa grunted uncomfortably, do I have to turn a blind eye to Yi Han's arrogance? Since when did the Celestial Sect have to endure humiliation like this? Gua Fu Hai smiled slyly and replied, of course not. If Yi Han brings himself to us in ten days, we should take advantage of this time to prepare for a decisive battle and capture them all. Finding this reasonable, Si Hufa asked, Has the strategist devised any plans yet? Gua Fum Hai whispered to Xi Hufa, Like this, like this, the Mogong clan, or something. Upon hearing this, Xi Hufa couldn't contain his excitement and burst into laughter. In that case, both Yi Han and those five leaders will have to die. 
Go Fu Hai continued gleefully, prepare for a celebration. Hu Dong will soon become our territory under the celestial sect. Si Hu Fa stroked Gu Fu Hai's chin, hinting, why not celebrate in advance? Three days later, Du Wen Na was trying to soothe Yi Han. All right, don't be angry anymore. They were our associates after all. Show them some face. At that moment, Michael hurriedly came out and said, Vlai Han, you finally arrived. Concerned, Michael continued, If you hadn't come, I was thinking of going to Shanghai City personally to welcome you. Come inside. Yi Han inquired, calling me over so urgently, there must be something going on. Michael then explained, Well, it's like this. My friend Kyle, who controls the euro currency market, suddenly fell ill a few days ago. Given his special status, we can't afford to let this leak out. He is my boss, and I had no choice but to seek your help. Upon hearing this, Yi Han eagerly offered assistance. You are my friend. If he is your boss, I will go and see what I can do. Inside Kyle's hospital room, he weakly asked the doctor, Doctor, do you have a treatment plan yet? I can't move my whole body now, and I feel even more exhausted when I talk. The doctor had to comfort Kyle. Mr. Kyle, rest assured, we have a solution. We can cure your illness quickly. Although the doctor spoke reassuringly, he was internally frustrated, thinking, we can't even diagnose the current illness. Talking about a treatment plan is out of the question. I can only console him for now and figure out a plan later. At that moment, Michael rushed in, announcing, Mr. Kyle, I've invited Yi Han. He is the best traditional Chinese medicine doctor I've ever encountered in Zhongguogu. The Western doctor immediately intervened, discouragingly saying, No, no, traditional medicine practitioners are all frauds. They're just charlatans. He can't cure Mr. Kyle's illness. Michael vehemently presented arguments to convince Kyle, No, Yi Han is not a fraud. He treated me with just a few acupuncture needles, and I was cured. Mr. Kyle, you must give it a try. The Western doctor shouted loudly to intervene. Mr. Kyle's illness is extremely complex. It can't be cured just by acupuncture. I am Dr. Fang Xi, the most renowned in the field, and I have researched countless topics. No one understands Mr. Kyle's condition better than me. Seeing the situation, Yi Han immediately pulled Duan Nai away and said, It seems that we are not welcome here. In that case, we'll take our leave. Michael hurriedly tried to stop them, saying, Wait. Michael continued to persuade Kyle. Mr. Kyle, the situation is urgent. If you can't recover in time, there will be a major incident in the whole of Europe. No matter what, we must give it a try. The others reluctantly agreed, saying, All right, out of respect for Michael, I agree to let him try. The Western doctor refused to agree, and he was about to speak up loudly to object. But, before he could finish his sentence, Michael dragged him out like an animal, saying, Get lost, don't you hear that Mr. Kyle has agreed? Yi Han approached Kyle, pulled back the thin blanket, and examined the acupuncture points. He exclaimed, So it's like this. He continued, The aura has invaded the body, leading to blocked blood vessels. This is a severe condition, a kind of vampire syndrome. If left unchecked for another one to two days, there's a risk to life. The Western doctor standing outside sneered at Yi Han, Are you writing a fictional story? I've read numerous medical reports, and I've never heard of vampire syndrome. Yi Han sternly replied, Your words, besides proving your own ignorance, what else can they demonstrate? The doctor, infuriated, retorted to Yi Han, You're quite audacious. I need to see how you'll treat this illness. Subsequently, Yi Han began acupuncture. Three yang originating golden needles. The three acupuncture needles were inserted into three points on Mr. Kyle's occipital bone, making him gasp in discomfort. I feel so uncomfortable. Why does my body have such a burning sensation, as if it's being scorched by flames? Michael, concerned, asked Yi Han. Yi Han, what's going on here? The Western doctor mocked Yi Han even more. Why bother asking? Absolutely an issue with this kid's acupuncture method. I've said it before. These so-called masters are all swindlers. Yi Han reassured, don't worry, he's about to recover. Indeed. At this moment, Mr. Kyle became more animated and announced to everyone, Hold on, I seem to be able to move again. This, this is a familiar sensation. It's incredible. Michael was overjoyed and said to Kyle, That's right, Kyle, you can move again. 
It's amazing. You finally recovered, all thanks to Yi Han. Mr. Kyle was also extremely grateful. Mr. Yi Han, acupuncture is truly a miracle of Fang Gong's medical field. Traditional Chinese medicine is the best. Yi Han then taunted the Western doctor. Your personal physician just now is claiming that traditional Chinese medicine is a bunch of nonsense. The Western doctor, still in disbelief, said, This can't be true. My team and I have conducted extensive checks, but we couldn't identify the disease or treatment method. How could he easily cure it? I don't believe it. Mr. Kyle angrily scolded him, Wretched man, you just said you found the disease a moment ago. Turns out you were deceiving me. Dr. Tang, from now on, you're dismissed. Poor Dr. Tang not only got slapped by Mr. Kyle, his face turned red, but he also lost his position. Mr. Kyle then thanked Yi Han. Mr. Yi, for saving my life, I really don't know how to repay you. If you have any issues in the future, just come to me, and I will do my best to help. Yi Han graciously replied, I truly hope that we can support each other in the future, not just because of today's incident where I saved you. Mr. Kyle also smiled and replied, People from Zhonggu Agud speak eloquently and generously. Let's make a commitment to support each other in the future. Michael was also extremely delighted and said, Mr. Kyle, the feast prepared for you has been going on for two days. Today is the last day, and if you don't show up, there might be some unpleasant rumors. Now that you're cured, let's head over immediately. Mr. Kyle was also quite excited. All right, Michael, you bring Mr. Yi there first. I'll go take a bath and change. Then I'll join later. Tonight, I want to introduce this very important guest to the business community in Nanfang. They quickly arrived at the banquet hall, where a few young ladies were chatting with each other. One of them said, Miss Wu is truly beautiful and captivating, as well as remarkably intelligent. Today, in this hall filled with ordinary people, there's no one worthy of being compared to Miss Wu. Even Mr. Mo Dong Tan seems to treat Miss Wu like a precious gem, holding her in his hands. Even someone like me, a woman, can't help but be moved by Miss Wu. Wu Ji Yi, upon receiving the compliments, responded with a cheerful tone. Oh no, you're exaggerating. I hurried here today and didn't have time for makeup. My appearance is only about 70% today. A group of young gentlemen enjoying their drinks noticed Wu Ji Yi and started gossiping. Look at Wu Ji Yi's figure. It seems like this wine party is organized just for her. Another young man replied, There's no other way. Blame Mr. Kyle for being late. The true host of the party isn't even here, so of course, someone else will be seen as the main character. I heard that Mr. Kyle fell ill. That's why he's been delaying his appearance for so long. Today is the last day of the party, and I guess he won't show up. While the crowd was buzzing with excitement, the staff at the Grand Banquet Hall announced, Mr. Kyle has arrived. Everyone eagerly welcomed Mr. Kyle. Mr. Kyle is here. This is fantastic. Finally, we can see Mr. Kyle's style. He has arrived. Let's go out and welcome Mr. Kyle quickly. The crowd quickly gathered in the lobby. Michael was the first to step out of the luxury car. Seeing Mr. Kyle appear, the people inside the party rushed out, expressing their excitement. Oh my. I never thought I could see Mr. Kyle in the flesh, the wealthiest person in Europe, truly exhilarating. Originally, I thought Mr. Kyle wouldn't come, but unexpectedly, he appears on the last day of the party. If we can take advantage of this opportunity to establish a relationship with Mr. Kyle, our business in Europe will undoubtedly reach new heights. Michael then descended and opened the car doors for Yi Han and Duan Nai. Facing everyone, he said, I apologize for the delay. Mr. Kyle will arrive shortly. These two are Mr. Kyle's distinguished guests, Mr. Yi Han and Miss Ju Duan Nai. People were surprised to see Yi Han and Duan Nai. They started discussing. What's going on? How did these two Zhang Guagu individuals end up in Mr. Kyle's car? They arrived in Mr. Kyle's car and even had Mr. Kyle's personal assistant open the door for them. Their position is certainly extraordinary. However, we don't care if they are Mr. Kyle or his associates. What we want is to establish relationships. Subsequently, the people in front approached Yi Han and Duan Ni, eagerly presenting their business cards to the two. One excited individual exclaimed, Young Master Yi, Miss Yu, here's my business card. Whenever you have the chance, please visit my shop. Another person chimed in, Young Master Yi, I run a suit business. If you're interested, come to my store and try on some clothes. 
Yet another person approached and said, I'm a Feng Shui expert. Feel free to consult me for any issues. Yi Han quickly extended his hand, waving it off, saying, All right, all right, thank you, thank you, everyone. Observing the crowd in front of him, Yi Han couldn't help but marvel, being surrounded by thousands of people, trying to establish connections. This is the first time for me. Wu Ji Di stood inside, clenching the cup of wine in her hand, angrily thinking, Damn it, how dare they steal my limelight? She pushed through the crowd, and with hostility, declared, Everyone step aside. I want to talk to Miss Ju. Seeing Wu Ji Yi's demeanor, the people behind couldn't help gossiping, Wu Ji Yi, what kind of trick is she playing? Look at her attitude. It seems she's not happy with Mr. Kyle's companion. Wu Ji Yi seems to be jealous of that girl. Maybe she's trying to create trouble. Someone else jeered. I think Mr. Kyle's friend stole her attention. And that's why she's upset. Over here, Wu Ji Yi approached Du and Nai with a wine glass, mockingly saying, Can it be that you, the girl, are the new plaything of Mr. Kyle? However, I want to remind you, next to wealthy men, women are never in short supply. Be careful. In a few days, you might get kicked out. In response to her taunts, Du and Ni, visibly angered, furrowed her brows and retorted, What nonsense are you talking about? Are you blind? Can't you see my boyfriend standing right next to me? Wu Ji Yi sighed and refused to accept this reality. She coldly said, Boyfriend? More likely just a cheating scumbag. But right after Wu Ji Yi uttered these words, she received a painful slap, causing her to fall to the ground, clutching her swollen face. Wu Ji Yi, pointing at Yi Han, angrily exclaimed, You, daring to hit me, coward. Yi Han, indifferent, replied, Nonsense. Meanwhile, Du Lin Ni, provocatively, teased her, making a face and saying, Naya Nya, witnessing Yi Han's imposing demeanor and the lively discussions, some who didn't know Yi Han questioned with suspicion, Who is that guy? He dared to hit Mo Dong Tian's woman. Mo Dong Tan is no ordinary person. If Kyle wants to do business in Zhang Guagu, he can't ignore Mo Dong Tian. This situation is getting more interesting. Kyle's esteemed guests are now in conflict with his biggest business partner. We wonder which side Kyle will choose. Wu Ji Yi sat below, angrily covering his face with his hands, saying, Yi Han, how dare you hit me in front of everyone? No one has ever dared to insult me like this. In Wu Ji Yi's heart, he vowed silently, I must make him pay. At this moment, Yi Han and Duan Nai entered, and Michael approached Yi Han, looking uncomfortable as he said, Yi Han, you were a bit too impulsive just now. That woman is Mo Dong Tian's sweetheart. The Mo Dong family is a powerful trading guild in the Nanfang Association. Mo Dong Tan has both power and influence. By hating his woman, it's like slapping him in the face. This is going to be hard to resolve. Yi Han, unconcerned, confidently replied, That damned Mo Dong Tian daring to insult my girlfriend, he won't have peace with me. Just then, footsteps approached from behind accompanied by loud laugh. Quite an imposing aura you have. I need to see who dares to disregard me. The person arriving was Mo Dong Tian, holding a cigarette and walking with Wu Ji Yi, the one Yi Han had hit earlier. Seeing Yi Han finally present, the crowd outside erupted in discussions. Mo Dong Tian, a person of high status. His girlfriend got beaten in front of so many people. Even if he's Kyle's esteemed guest, he won't let this go easily. I heard Kyle just struck a big business deal with the Mo Dong family. I wonder if this incident will have a significant impact. Who cares about being an esteemed guest when faced with interests? Money talks, no matter how prestigious you are. Wu Ji Yi stood beside Mo Dong Tian, pointing accusingly at Yi Han, and said, Tian, this is the guy. She, still enveloped in smoke, angrily covered her swollen face and spoke with frustration. I only said a few words, and he dares to slap me. I must teach him a lesson. Otherwise, no one will respect him in the future. Du and Ni, witnessing Wu Ji Yi blaming Yi Han, turned around in anger and retorted, A woman like you, isn't she shameless? Clearly, you cursed at us before Yi Han intervened. Everyone here can testify. Mo Dong Tan gently squeezed Wu Ji Yi's swollen face, smiling as he said, I don't need to know the reason. All I know is that you hit this woman, who happens to be Mo Dong Tan's girlfriend. 
You should be aware that even if it's a dog raised by Mo Dong Tian, not everyone can touch it. Moreover, you dared to lay hands on a girl, especially Mo Dong Tian's girlfriend. Du and Ni, provoked by Mo Dong Tian's insulting words, moved forward, raising a clenched fist, and said, What else do you want? Yi Han quickly stepped in to intervene, saying, Du and Ni, calm down. On the other side, Mo Dong Tian, casually puffing on his cigarette, said, Dislocate one arm, apologize by bowing your head, and I'll consider this incident as if it never happened. Yi Han smirked provocatively and said, Oh, what if I don't intervene? Mo Dong Tian, infuriated, snapped his cigarette and menacingly threatened, If I personally step in, you won't just lose an arm. Yi Han dismissed him with a nonchalant laugh. John Yu Tang, from the Blood Hand Path, once tried to intimidate me the same way. But now, the grass on his grave is three feet tall. Seems like you're eager to follow in his footsteps. People at the scene, upon hearing this information, gasped in astonishment and exclaimed, Zhang Yu Tang, defeated by this kid. Looks like he does have some real power. However, power alone is not enough without authority. Behind Mo Dong Tian is the Mo Dong family, the number one family in Nanfang. Zhang Yu Tang's blood hand path is not even comparable to a corner of the Mo Dong family. The strength and status of these two are extraordinary. One is the heir of the top Nanfang family, Mo Dong Tian, and the other has defeated Zhang Yu Tang and is an esteemed guest of Mr. Kyle Yi Han. The next act promises to be quite a spectacle. Mo Dong Tian slipped his hand into his pocket and looked at Yi Han, saying, Yi Han, I think you should understand the situation clearly. Trash like Jiang Yu Tang is not worthy to stand before a member of the Mo Dong family. As for Mr. Kyle, I believe a businessman like him, standing between us, should make a choice. It shouldn't be too difficult to make the right one. At this moment, Mr. Kyle stepped out, witnessing the confrontation between Yi Han and Mo Dong, feeling the intense atmosphere. Mr. Kyle scratched his head in suspicion and asked, Yi Han, who are these two? Mo Dong Tian, seeing Mr. Kyle's arrival, turned and greeted with a smile. You've come at the right time. Then, he made a tempting proposition. I agree to sacrifice 1% of our profits in our business dealings in exchange for you not protecting Yi Han. How about that? People around, upon hearing Mo Dong Tan's offer, were shocked and began to discuss animatedly, 1% of profits, that's over tens of millions. Is Mo Dong Tian insanely rich? Why would he give up such a significant amount for someone of unclear background like Yi Han? People with money seem to spare no expense. Wu Ji Yi, seeing Mo Dong Tian willingly offer such a large sum for him, thought to himself, normally, in Mo Dong Tian's eyes, I'm not even worth as much as his pet dog. Clearly, he's just putting on a show for others. But today, Mo Dong Tian, agreeing to help me out like this, directly giving up 1% of profits to the partner, I might as well seize the opportunity to advance further into the upper echelons of Huan Chang's high society. With that in mind, Wu Ji Yi's smile deepened, and the pain on his face seemed to fade. Mo Dong Tian, noticing Mr. Kyle's silence, confidently asked, Mr. Kyle, I wonder what you think of my proposal. Mr. Kyle chuckled and said, Mo Dong Tian, I think you've misunderstood. I've never protected Yi Han. Hearing Mr. Kyle's affirmation, Mo Dong Tian laughed heartily, saying, Well, that makes it easy to resolve. He then declared to Yi Han, Yi Han, today I must make an example for everyone to see. Some people need to learn their lesson. Upon hearing Mo Dong Tian's words, Mr. Kyle understood the misunderstanding and promptly stepped in saying, Mo Dong Tian, listen to me. Although I've never protected Yi Han, I have already received favors from him. Upon hearing Mr. Kyle's words, Mo Dong Tian, taken aback, stepped back and exclaimed, What? People at the scene were equally astonished, their eyes widening in disbelief. What kind of joke is this? I didn't miss here, did I? Mr. Kyle, of all people, is saying that Yi Han is the one protecting him. Who exactly is Yi Han? Have we all been mistaken? Mo Dong Tan couldn't believe what he heard and asked again, Mr. Kyle, are you sure you're not mistaken? Mr. Kyle asserted firmly, there's no confusion here. I've been quite clear. Besides, I think further collaboration between our two companies may no longer be necessary. Upon hearing the news of non-collaboration, Mo Dong Tian exclaimed in disbelief, What, Mr. Kyle? 
you're willing to forego the opportunity to expand further into the Huaxia market because of Yi Han. Mr. Kyle smirked mockingly and said, Mo Dong family, you don't represent the entire Huaxia market. Your words are a bit too self-aggrandizing. Mr. Kyle then declared to everyone present, I now announce that any company with investment shares from my company is not allowed to collaborate with the Modong family under any circumstances. If not, I will withdraw my investment. Upon hearing Mr. Kyle's declaration, the entire scene was filled with astonishment. People were fearful and exclaimed, Oh my, Mr. Kyle dares to openly oppose the Modong family right here, just because Modong Tan offended Yi Han. Who is this Yi Han after all? My company relies on the investment from Mr. Kyle to continue operations. It seems I have no choice but to end my business dealings with the Mo Dong family. Yi Han, standing nearby, was also amazed. He clasped his hands together, expressing gratitude. Mr. Kyle, thank you for intervening. In Yi Han's mind, he thought, even though Mo Dong Tan is just a cunning toad, if Kyle is willing to step in for me, I should still maintain some dignity for him and thank him a bit. Mr. Kyle laughed heartily, patting Yi Han on the shoulder, courteously saying, We're all brothers here, no need for formalities. Your affairs are also my affairs. After all, not long ago, we made a commitment to each other, to help and support one another. Though he said that in Mr. Kyle's heart, he deeply admired Yi Han. This young Yi Han, despite hiding his true power, his healing methods are undoubtedly superior to most of the doctors out there. If I seize this opportunity to establish a close relationship with him, my business in Hoaxia in the future will surely thrive day by day. Despite Wu Jiyi's desperate attempts, she anxiously said to Mo Dong Tian, Tian, what should we do now? They want to terminate the collaboration with the Mo Dong family. Mo Dong Tian, infuriated, slapped her, pushing her away, and shouted, get lost. He pointed angrily at Wu Jiyi and yelled, if it weren't for you, None of this would have happened. He then turned his gaze towards Yi Han, issuing a challenge. Yi Han, with Kyle's backing in high society, I can't really do much to you. But in the martial arts world, what about it? I know you're also a martial artist. Dare to have a match with me, a life and death duel to determine our standings. Yi Han, indifferent to his words, sneered. What are you, a mere clown, to challenge me? Mr. Kyle. Not wanting Mo Dong Tan to be beaten again, led Yi Han away, saying, Let's have a drink to our heart's content today. Michael echoed with a smile, Yi Han, don't let a few stray dogs ruin the mood. Mo Dong Tian, furious and trembling, was ignored by those behind, who were more intrigued and buzzing with gossip. This is the first time I've seen Mo Dong Tan humiliated like this, always bullying others with arrogance. Today, he's been taught a lesson. No one paid attention to him, not even a bit of respect. Just now, he even looked down on Yi Han, and now even Mr. Kyle has to show some deference to Yi Han. Mo Dong Tian, today is not your day. Mo Dong Tian, for the first time, lost face and angrily approached Yi Han, declaring, Yi Han, I must kill you. After saying that, he launched an attack towards Yi Han. The three people accompanying Yi Han, witnessing this scene, exclaimed in horror, Yi Han, be careful. Yi Han turned around, retaliating with a kick towards Mo Dong Tian, sneering, get lost. Mo Dong Tian was sent flying by this kick, landing on the ground in pain, uttering a cry. Yi Han, nonchalant, put his hands in his pockets and said, there might be a next time and you won't be so lucky. Mo Dong Tian, lying on the ground in pain, exclaimed, you, how dare you ruin my cultivation. As night fell, Enveloping the entire space in a building, a loud noise erupted and dust scattered in the air. Subordinates respectfully reported, The situation is as follows. Young Master Tan has now become a cripple. Mo Dong Tan's brother, Mo Dong Tan Guang, turned coldly and said, I know, you may withdraw. Mo Dong Tan Guang turned back, looking ahead with an icy tone. If you've come, you can't escape. In an instant, Two figures appeared in front of Mo Dong Tian Guang. One of them was Gua Fu Hai. She prays, truly the strongest in the Mo Dong family. The young master Mo Dong senses are indeed sharp. Mo Dong Tian Guang didn't want to waste more time with her and said, Don't waste my time any longer. Si Yu Fa, accompanying Gua Fu Hai, saw Mo Dong Tian Guang's arrogance 
and was about to speak, Yu Lil, but quickly he was restrained by Guo Fu Hai. Guo Fu Hai looked at Mo Dong Tian Guang and said, Young Master Mo Dong, you indeed speak openly, so I'll be direct too. Guo Fu Hai began to clarify the purpose of her visit today. I won't hide it. Our celestial sect has a grudge against Yi Han, and the Mo Dong family also has a grudge against Yi Han. Our celestial sect is willing to support you. Inside this box are ten species of poisonous flowers, as well as a vial of demon blood. The ten species of poisonous flowers are extremely toxic, and the demon blood can enhance combat power in a short period. As she spoke, she pushed the box in front of Mo Gong Tan Guang. Mo Gong Tian Guang closed his eyes, calmly saying, Dealing with trash like Yi Han, do you think I need these things? Go Fu Hai laughed and said, Young Master Mo Dong, of course, you have the ability to defeat Yi Han. We're just providing a little assistance for Young Master. Afterward, Go Fu Hai and Shi Hufa said, We'll meet again, Young Master Mo Dong. Then, the two quickly transformed their appearances and left the place. Mo Dong Tan Guang, no longer hiding his intentions, held the box near the table and declared, Lai Han, I will definitely kill you. At the celestial sect branch, Inside a room, Gu Fu Hai lay on the bed, alluring, saying, This won't do, continue. Chi Yu Fa stood in front of the bed, cultivating his energy, his whole body covered in sweat. He gasped, saying, It's not possible, it's almost dawn, and I truly have no energy left. Gu Fu Hai annoyed, sat up from the bed and said, Truly useless. Chi Yu Fa scratched his head, saying, You mentioned Mo Gong Tan Guang. Can he really kill Yi Han? Go Fu Hai, holding a comb, said, Mo Dong Tan Guang, being able to kill Yi Han is the best. Even if he doesn't kill him, it doesn't matter. As long as he can keep Yi Han occupied because, in the end, our only goal is to take over all of Hua Gong. Go Fu Hai analyzed, saying, Lin Zhong Tu is about to arrive in Huan Cheng. Just establish a relationship with them. Yi Han, even if he becomes stronger, he won't have a chance to turn things around. Upon hearing this, Shi Hu Fa raised his thumb in praise, saying, This trick is truly clever. I couldn't wait to see Yi Han's miserable appearance. Gula Fu Hai approached Texi Hu Fa, tauntingly saying, It seems like you've regained your strength. Shall we continue? At the mention of this, Shi Hu Fa blushed and quickly left the scene. While running, he said, No, no, matters within the sect are more important. I'll go pick up Lin Zhong Tu's delegation. Gu Fu Hai, standing behind, glared at Xi Hu Fa with frustration, saying, Useless. In Kyle's mansion, Yi Han, Du and Ni, Mr. Kyle, and Michael raised their glasses together. Mr. Kyle lifted his glass, saying, Don't mention that rotten name anymore. Let's drink. Michael also raised his glass with a smile, saying, Tonight we won't return sober. Just then, an employee rushed in from outside, holding a piece of paper. Hurriedly, he exclaimed, Young Master Yi. The employee kneeled down, presenting the paper with great respect, saying, A letter just arrived from Mo Dong's family. Mo Dong Tian Guang mentioned that he wants to have a life and death battle with you tomorrow afternoon, witnessed by everyone. Everyone in the room was astonished, exclaiming, What a life and death battle! Yi Han placed the wine glass on the table. Confidently smiling as he said, The people from Mo Dong's family are like dogs, always quick to find a fight. But this time, I will thoroughly subdue them. Yi Han gave the command, saying, Write a reply to Mo Dong Tan Guang, telling him that I accept his challenge. After receiving Yi Han's order, the subordinate quickly nodded and said, Understood. Then he went outside to work. Du and I looked at Yi Han with concern, saying, Yi Han. I've heard that Mo Dong Tian Guang is very strong, the most formidable among the young martial artists in Nanfang. You can't underestimate him. Mr. Kyle also nodded in agreement, saying, That's right, Yi Han. Moreover, Mo Dong's family is a powerful force in Huan Cheng. Even if you win this battle, be careful of their possible retaliation. Yi Han acknowledged everyone's concerns, but asserted confidently, There are some matters that can't be avoided and facing them directly is the only way. In Yi Han's mind, he thought, Zhao Hao Tian and Lin Zhong Tu will be coming soon. At the arena, a crowd had gathered early in the morning, 
enthusiastically discussing today's decisive battle. I can't believe Mo Dong Tan Guang, the most talented among the young martial artists in Nanfang, dares to challenge Yi Han, the one who defeated the entire Blood Hand Path. In terms of strength, Mo Dong Tian Guang is said to be slightly superior. I heard he has reached the peak of the microcosmic orbit, while Yi Han is only at the foundation establishment stage. Mo Dong Tian Guang is the undefeated champion among the young martial artists in Nanfang. It seems like Yi Han is walking into his own demise. At this moment, Mo Dong Tan Guang approached from a distance. As he entered, a group of enthusiastic fangirls cheered loudly. Young Master Mo Dong is here. Young Master Mo Dong is so handsome. Oh my, I want to marry him. Young Master Mo Dong, I love you. Mo Dong Tan Guang turned to his subordinates and asked, Is everything ready? Holding a sword, one of his subordinates stepped forward, bowing respectfully, and said, Reporting, Young Master. The influential figures in Huan Cheng have all been invited here. Mo Dong Tian Guang tightened his grip on the table, determinedly saying, Very well. Today, I will make it clear to everyone. Anyone who dares to offend the Mo Dong family will have only one path, death. On the opposing side, Yi Han also appeared, looking at the crowd with a taunting tone. Mo Dong Tian Guang, gathering so many people here, are you planning to host a grand event yourself? Mo Dong Tan Guang, looking at Yi Han, boldly declared, Yi Han, I don't want many words with an unscrupulous person like you. Let's settle it directly. After speaking, Mo Dong Tan Guang soared into the air, landing on a lotus leaf below. Witnessing Mo Dong Tan Guang's technique, people began to discuss excitedly. Balancing on a thin lotus leaf on the lake, controlling his own mora, Mo Dong Tian Guang is truly formidable. This technique is unparalleled in Huan Cheng. Capture this moment. It will be the headline for tomorrow's newspaper. With just one hand, young master Mo Dong is enough to crush Yi Han. Seeing this, Yi Han also flew forward and said, Mo Dong Tan Guang, today I will show you that you are nothing more than a paper tiger. Observing Yi Han standing lightly on the water, people started discussing excitedly. Look at Yi Han. He doesn't rely on anything. Yet he can casually walk on the water. Oh my, his power seems much stronger than Mo Dong Tan Guang's. Suddenly, I find it difficult to predict the outcome of this battle. Gua Fu Hai, standing to the side, expressed his interest, saying, The decisive battle between Yi Han and Mo Dong Tan Guang is about to begin. We can start our move as well. Gua Fu Hai looked at Si Hu Fa on the opposite side and cautioned, Si Hu Fa, Lin Zhang Tu, those guys are assigned to you. Don't mess things up. Si Yu Fa nodded confidently, rest assured. Those old guys are useless. If I encounter them, I'll bring their heads to meet you. After saying this, Shi Yu Fa led his subordinates outside to carry out his mission. Guo Fu Hai looked at Yi Han and Mo Dong Tan Guang and said, Yi Han, now I hope you can win. After you win, finding out that Lin Zhang Tu's gang has been captured, your expression will be quite satisfying, I presume. Outside, Yi Han spoke to the person across from him, Mo Dong Tan Guang. The scenery here is not bad. Very suitable as a burial ground for you. Mo Dong Tian Guang pulled up his sleeve and said, Lai Han, I must see the skill in your hands, whether it's as formidable as your mouth. Mo Dong Tian Guang executed a move, the Heffen Dragon Fist, water surging and attacking Yi Han. Seeing this technique, the reporters and spectators outside exclaimed in excitement, Mo Dong Tian Guang is using a traditional and powerful technique right off the bat. Yi Han, consider yourself finished. The Heffen Dragon Fist is a devastating technique, and Mo Dong Tan Guang takes pride in it. It's said to have the weight over 10,000 pounds in a single punch. Yi Han, you absolutely can't withstand this move. Otherwise, I'll smash the camera in my hand. On Yi Han's side, he leaped forward, fearlessly saying, Heffen Dragon Fist my foot. Today, I'll show you what true dragon and tiger fist, the concept of both dragons and tigers, means. The water below surged up, forming two figures, a tiger and a dragon, both extremely fierce. The two creatures clashed, and after a fierce battle, Mo Dong Tian Guang's water dragon ultimately couldn't resist and was knocked away by Yi Han. Mo Dong Tian Guang knelt down, spitting out a mouthful of fresh blood in anger, cursing. Damn it! 
Yi Han stood on the other side casually, saying, Hemph, just that much. The onlookers outside exclaimed, Oh, Mo Dong Tan Guang, and he's still weaker. Maybe we misunderstood Yi Han. Someone said to the cameraman next to them, He said he would smash the camera. Hurry up and smash it. The cameraman, unwilling to accept the truth, said, Smash it if you want. Yi Han, this time, it's just luck. Mo Dong Tan Guang's sword technique is the strongest. His next move will definitely win. Mo Dong Tan Guang finally stood up, wiping the blood from his mouth, saying, Ye Han, I didn't expect you to have some real strength. I admit I underestimated you a moment ago. Facing this situation, Mo Dong Tan Guang cursed in his mind. Damn it, underestimated Ye Han. It seems I have to use the elixir that the celestial sect gave me. After thinking, Mo Dong Tan Guang took out the elixir and swallowed it. After taking the elixir, Mo Dong Tan Guang looked at Yi Han and said, But in the next round, you'll definitely die. After taking the elixir, Mo Dong Tan Guang felt a surge of energy throughout his body. He shouted loudly, Explode for me. Witnessing the surging energy around Mo Dong Tan Guang's body, the onlookers were astonished and disgusted. Mo Dong Tian Guang's qi unexpectedly increased rapidly. What's going on? He seems to have taken some kind of medicine to boost his combat power in a short time. Surprisingly, Yi Han can force Mo Dong Tian Guang to this extent. The cameraman arrogantly laughed and said, This time, Mo Dong Tian Guang will definitely win. If he still loses, I'll eat dung. Seeing Mo Dong Tian Guang's demeanor, even Yi Han was amazed as he said, Favor reducing pills. This is a secret elixir only available to the celestial sect. I didn't expect you to collude with them. On the other side, Mo Dong Tan Guang, feeling the overflowing energy, confidently shouted, As long as I can kill you, it's enough sword. His subordinate swiftly handed him the sword, kneeling respectfully and presenting it. Young master, the sword. Mo Dong Tan Guang pointed the sword towards Yi Han, saying, Initially, the celestial sect prepared a deadly show for me, but now, in the realm of three flowers gathering at the crown, it's enough to kill you. There's no need for poison. I can still kill you. Yi Han, standing opposite, continued to smile, showing no signs of fear, and said, So what if the realm of three flowers gathering at the crown is powerful? I have a move even more formidable. Mo Dong Tan Guang narrowed his eyes and exclaimed madly, Yi Han, don't brag here. The realm of three flowers gathering at the crown requires the condensation of vital energy. Regardless of what techniques someone possesses, they cannot achieve it. To counter him, Yi Han closed his eyes, slowly extended his hand forward, and said, Gui Yu Medical Classic Technique, the unique Nine Originals formation. A green aura slowly gathered around Yi Han's body. Then, a large beam of light soared from Yi Han's position, resembling a large sprouting tree reaching high into the sky. Mo Gong Tan Guang, looking at the bright beam in front of him, gasped in astonishment. What is this? How is this possible? People outside were equally astonished. They exclaimed, Quick, look at that. Suddenly, a lotus flower appeared above Yi Han's head, and it seems to be continuously attacking Mo Dong Tan Guang. Someone nearby, bewildered, said, I initially thought the Nine Originals formation was just a legendary technique. I didn't expect to witness Yi Han using it today. The one who boasted earlier about eating feces became even more agitated. He gritted his teeth and angrily said, Mo Dong Tan Kung, keep going. You can't lose. Otherwise, I'll really have to eat that feces. On Yi Han's side, enveloped in the green aura of spiritual power, he thought, the spiritual power I cultivate is different from ordinary martial artists. Taking advantage of this opportunity, I can use a technique that consumes an enormous amount of strength. In Guyu Medical Classic, even though I can only persist for a minute, it's enough to deal with Mo Dong Tan Guang. Mo Dong Tan Guang, refusing to accept defeat, aggressively charged towards Yi Han. He said, No, I don't believe it. I started martial arts at the age of three, began martial cultivation at four, and by six, I was already leading others to kill enemies. How can you be stronger than me, Yi Han? Don't think you can intimidate me with these toys. Today, you will be the one to die for sure. Seeing him persisting stubbornly, Yi Han closed his eyes and murmured, Hemph, you're truly beyond redemption. 
Up until now, you still refuse to awaken and face reality. Yi Han extended two fingers forward, and water enveloped his fingers. Pointing towards the sky, Yi Han said, Let me get rid of your fanciful thoughts. Mo Dong Tian Guang shouted loudly, Go to hell. He launched an incredibly majestic sword attack, but Yi Han waved his hand, using the combination of the jeweled yin-yang rods and the vast sword unity technique to counter. Seeing his attacks ineffective against Yi Han's techniques, Mo Dong Tan Guang widened his eyes and yelled, What? Subsequently, he was sent flying by Yi Han's strike, writhing in pain and screaming. Mo Dong Tan Guang lay in the water, his eyes wide open, muttering in agony, I, I can't accept this. Then, he collapsed and breathed his last. Yi Han coldly declared, Mo Dong Tan Guang, you're dead. Witnesses to the battle couldn't help but express their surprise. Mo Dong Tan Guang, cunning and deceitful in the end, died at the hands of Yi Han. Some exclaimed with excitement, after this battle, Yi Han will be the strongest among the young martial artists in the Nanfang realm. I never thought I'd witness such a legendary feat. It's incredibly fortunate. Mo Dong Tan Guang, preparing for a grand battle, unexpectedly ended up causing his own demise. Truly ironic. A person who boasted earlier about Mo Dong Tan Guang losing would eat dog feces. Now, being forced, was terrified as he was compelled to stick his face into a pile of excrement, desperately begging, I was wrong. I really can't stomach this. Yi Han's escort was unforgiving, pointing, and coercing him. Hurry up and eat. Today, you must finish it. Once done with this pile, there are others to eat. Like boasting? Today, you get to savor it all. The trembling individual looked pathetic, appearing both small and despicable. Duan Ni, concerned, rushed to Yi Han, inquiring, Yi Han, aren't you all right? Yi Han waved his hand dismissively, I'm fine, just a bit drained of energy. Mr. Kyle approached, reminding Yi Han, you killed Mo Dong Tian Guang. The Mo Dong family will definitely not let it slide. Yi Han confidently replied, Rest assured, I am prepared for that. Gua Fu Hai of the Tianzun Society arrived at the perfect moment, praising, Yi Han, I never expected you could defeat Mo Dong Tan Guang. Truly, you have emerged as a hero. Seeing Yi Han, she couldn't help but furrow her brows and inquire, Members of the Tianzun Society, have you finally revealed yourselves? Gua Fu Hai smiled and with a hint of interest, she licked her lips, saying, Vi Han, you destroyed the blood hand path earlier, and now you defeated Mo Dong Tan Guang. I cannot help but acknowledge your strength. Subsequently, she abruptly approached, running her hand seductively over Yi Han, suggesting, I admire strong individuals, especially handsome ones like you. If you join my Tianzin society, past grievances will be forgiven, and I am willing to serve you. What do you say? She closed in reaching out to touch Yi Han's face. Duan Ni, standing nearby, brimming with anger, hesitated. Yet Yi Han decisively pushed Gua Fu Hai away, rejecting outright. There's nothing to discuss. The forceful push from Yi Han caused her to lose balance, and disappointed, she withdrew. Yi Han looked at her, with disdain and remarked, Take a good look at yourself. At your age, still trying to seduce, it's truly laughable. Duan Ni stepped forward. Mocking, Vi Han, you don't fancy older women like her. Gua Fu Hai paid no mind. She chuckled lightly, then opened her phone to read a message, having dealt with Lin Zhong too, and said, don't jump to conclusions so quickly. Read this message, and I believe you'll pay attention to it. Yi Han, equally challenging, smirked and brought his phone close to her face, saying, I also have a message here. Hope you read it carefully. Gua Fu Hai raised the phone, displaying a message. Si Hu Fa has been captured. Lin Zhang Tu's people are all safe and sound. After reading it, her expression changed. What? This can't be true. Yi Han replied, capturing Lin Zhang Tu's people isn't just about asserting dominance over Hu Dong. Is it? Don't think I haven't considered this. Gua Fu Hai hastily called Xi Hu Fa, repeatedly trying to get through. Hello, Xi Hu Fa. Si Hu Fa, what's going on? Please pick up my call. At this moment, Zhao Hao Tian walked over and tossed the bound Si Hu Fa in front of her, saying, no need to call anymore, he's here. Si Hu Fa, somewhat embarrassed, 
spoke in front of her. Fu Hai. We were well prepared. As soon as I brought people here, we were ambushed. They outnumbered us, and moreover, they were very powerful. I'm no match for them. Gu Fu Hai, upon hearing this, darkened her face, thinking, How? How can this be? Yi Han walked slowly towards her and called out, Fair maiden, Mo Gong Tian Guang has been killed by me, and Shi Hu Fa has been captured by me as well. You no longer have any cards to save yourself. At this point, he pointed at Gu Fu Hai with a triumphant smile, saying, You've lost. Gu Fu Hai and Shi Hu Fa were quickly tightly bound and led away. After resolving everything, Du Wan Nai immediately held Yi Han's hand and suggested, since things on Huan Cheng's side are settled, it's time to return to Shanghai. Gua Fu Hai still refused to accept defeat. She shouted, No, I absolutely won't lose. As long as I can kill you, I can still save myself. Then, seemingly having untied herself at some point, she leaped up and moved swiftly, slashing towards Yi Han and shouting, Go to hell, Nine Yin Venomous Claw. The technique was unleashed, but Yi Han didn't stand still. He immediately mobilized his internal force, tightened his fists, and countered, Death is imminent, yet you still resist. Unbridled arrogance. Eighteen sequential strikes. He unleashed a series of consecutive punches, shattering Gu Fu Hai's nine yin venomous claw. She was beaten, her clothes torn, and in pain, she exclaimed, What is this? In no time, Yi Han had Gu Fu Hai bleeding profusely and collapsing backward. Looking at her, struggling on the ground, Yi Han walked over and asked, Don't you enjoy fighting? How about this technique? What's wrong? It's just a little force, and you can't handle it. Gua Fu Hai trembled, struggling as Yi Han lifted her up, and she cursed. Damn it, Yi Han. You. To silence her, Yi Han immediately pointed the Yin Yang twin swords at her throat and commanded, Issue the order now. Tell your people to leave Ho Dong, or... I'll take your life. Gua Fu Hai, filled with resentment, glared at Yi Han. Shi Hu Fa hastily shouted as a reminder. Fu Hai, revenge can wait for ten years. First, you must preserve your life. She could only compromise. Fine, I'll issue the order. Then, she turned and commanded her subordinates behind her. Tell our people to immediately withdraw from Hu Wadong, quickly. Her subordinates reacted slowly but hurriedly obeyed, dispersing and making phone calls to relay the message. Hello. Immediately instruct our people to withdraw from Huagong. No need to ask why. This is the leader's order. Comply immediately. Yi Han turned to Zhao Hao Tian and instructed. Zhao, first lock up Si Hu Fa and Fu Hai in the dungeon. Wait until the members of Tianzin society have left Hu Dong. Then we can decide what to do next. Zhao Hao Tan promptly responded, issuing the order, Someone, quickly tie up Fu Hai and take her to the dungeon. A person with a weathered face spoke up at this moment, analyzing, impressive, in a short time, you've not only killed Mo Dong Tan Guang, but also forced Tianzin society to retreat from Hu Adong. The next step is likely governing the region. It seems the era of peace is approaching. Previously, it was called North Lion Yi with Lian Yi Shi Tian, and Mo Dong Tan Guang. Now, it's North Lion Yi with Yi Han in the south. The person beside him expressed, I think the day of Lian Yi, the showdown, is not far off for Yi Han, destroying the blood handpath, and even chasing away the Tianzin society, such significant achievements, not many can accomplish. Returning to the mansion, Yi Han asked while walking, Zhao, how far along are the ones I brought from Huan Cheng in their training? Zhao Hao Tan replied with a smile, they have taken the elixir from the old Taoist, and now Du Wan Wen is leading them to train behind the mountain. Hearing this, Yi Han sighed in relief and said, That's good then. With strength and power, we can immediately establish our own organization. At this moment, a loud cry rang out, catching Yi Han's attention. Let me go. On the other side, the police officer Ru Wen was being forcibly pushed onto a vehicle by a group of people, desperately protesting. I absolutely refuse to return to Yan Jing with you all. Yi Han, seeing her, was puzzled. Ruan Ling Kao, what's happening? The man named Gan Fei sternly reminded, Miss, this is the decision of the family. Today, no matter what, I must take you back to the Ruan family. Ruan Ling Kao pulled her hand away from the subordinate, 
resolutely refusing. No, I absolutely will not go back. You can dream if you think I'll marry that perverted lion Yi Shi Tian. Forget it. Yan Fei diplomatically stated. Miss, there are some matters beyond your control. He suddenly jumped up and rushed to where she spoke. I have confessed. Ruin Ling Kao closed his eyes tightly and despairingly exclaimed, No. At this moment, Yi Han arrived in time, held the man's hand back, and commanded, Stop. With his wrist firmly gripped, Yan Fei couldn't help but be amazed and thought, This kid has frightening strength. Ruin Ling Kao, upon seeing him, couldn't help but rejoice. Yi Han. Yi Han released Yan Fei's wrist forcefully, stood in front of Ruin Ling Kao, and asked, who are you? Old Yan Fei rubbed the place where his wrist was just held. His face darkened as he gritted his teeth and said, Brat, I advise you not to meddle in other people's business, or else you won't be able to bear the consequences later. Ru and Ling Kao took Yi Han's hand and explained, Why Han, they want me to go back because they want to see me as a tool for the family. I don't want to marry someone I don't love. Can you help me? Yi Han gently patted her hand and reassured, Relax. No matter what, we're friends. If she doesn't want to go, no one can force her. Old Yen Fei, seeing this, became furious and resorted to threatening tactics. If you refuse the invitation to drink, you'll have to drink the penalty wine. If you insist on getting involved in this matter, don't blame me for not showing mercy. His subordinates, upon witnessing this technique, couldn't help but be astonished and exclaimed, Mr. Ruan, after many years of inaction, now you have to take action. That young man is done for. The various martial arts we know were all founded by Mr. Ruan. It's said that he successfully cultivated ten years ago and must have reached the realm of spiritualization by now. Mr. Ruan, come on, give that kid a memorable lesson. Yi Han, seeing this, only smiled mockingly and said, What's the use of beating the drum there? He suddenly raised his hand, slapped old Yan Fei's face to the side, and shouted, Get lost. Old Yan Fei, hit by the blow, was extremely surprised. What, this speed? He was thrown into a car, and the door was forcefully hit, causing it to buckle. Old Yan Fei spat out a mouthful of blood. His former subordinates were boasting earlier. Now couldn't help but panic, stuttering. Mr. Ruan, he was knocked away with just one move. This, this can't be true. This kid is unexpectedly strong. Old Yan Fei, clutching his injured cheek, couldn't help but curse through gritted teeth. Damn it, you. You dare to stop me from taking the young lady home. You're finished. You committed a crime against the Ruin family. You won't live peacefully. Yi Han, unfazed, replied, No matter how powerful the Ruin family is, I really want to experience it. Old Yan Fei stood up, walked up to face Yi Han, and threatened. The Ruin family has over 200 peak microcosmic orbit experts with more than ten being strong figures in the nurturing essence realm. Even in Jing Chang, we have a certain standing. I advise you, young man, to quickly kneel down and apologize to me, or else. At this point, others stepped forward to counter him, saying, or else what? Be careful with your words. We should resolve conflicts verbally. Do we need to resort to violence? Du and Wen couldn't wait any longer, and old Yan Fei looked at the four people their hands and feet trembling with anxiety, and said, Four microcosmic orbit experts, what kind of joke is this? Yi Han waved his hand and commanded, Not only that, there are also those in the nurturing essence realm. Come out, from inside the mansion. A group of muscular individuals with overwhelming aura rushed out, shouting, Big brother, what's happening? Who's looking for trouble? Weep and itching for action. Let me go first. Old Yi and Fei, Seeing this army, found it even more unbelievable and could only point and exclaim, All hundred of them are in the nurturing essence realm. This can't be. Yi Han, at the forefront, snapped his fingers and shouted, Leave now, or do you want me to personally see you off? Mr. Ruin hastily turned around and ran, stammering, No, no need. I'll leave immediately. The old man urged impatiently, Get on the car. Hurry up. His subordinates, like him, lifted their legs and swiftly ran. They exclaimed, Mr. Ruan, wait for us. We didn't expect the young miss to find such a formidable group of helpers. At this moment, 
Ruling Ling Kao walked up to hold the car door and asked, Wait, you just said the family decided to bring me back. Why didn't my father say anything? Did he agree? She worriedly thought, My father loves me the most. He absolutely wouldn't agree to this. It can't be. Old Yan Fei's face turned serious as he replied, Yes, the patriarch fell ill not long ago, and he hasn't recovered. Currently, the affairs at home are managed by the second master. Miss, your return to Yan Jing doesn't depend on you. After saying this, he immediately sped away, leaving Ru and Ling Kao standing still, muttering, This can't be. Ru Ling Ling Kao, filled with sorrow, expressed, My father has always been in good health. How could he suddenly fall ill without any news? And furthermore, I haven't heard anything from him. In the end, Yi Han walked over to reassure her. Ling Kao, stay calm first. I'll ask some friends to check on your father's situation. Having said that, Yi Han immediately made a call to contact Hu Feng. Hello, Hu Feng, it's Ru Ling Kyo's father. Can you please check on his current situation? Yes, I understand. Ru Ling Kao couldn't help but worry and asked, Yi Han, how is my father now? After receiving the intelligence, Yi Han replied, It's a bit complicated. Your father's illness seems to involve some internal complications. It looks like I need to accompany you on a trip to Yan Jing. Hearing this, Ru Ling Kao couldn't help but be moved. She tightly hugged him, expressing her gratitude. Yi Han, thank you. Without you, I wouldn't know what to do. Yi Han also embraced her, gently comforting her with his hand on her head. No need for thanks. Are we friends? It's what friends do. The two quickly set off, and in no time, they landed peacefully at the airport. Ru and Ling Kao asked, Yi Han, where are we going next? Are we not heading straight back to the Ruin family? Yi Han replied, No need to rush to the Ruin family. I'm a bit unfamiliar with Yan Jing, so we need to find some allies for reconnaissance before preparing everything. Hearing this, Ruin Ling Kao was a bit puzzled, allies. At that moment, Hu Feng drove up in a car, stopping right next to the two. They waved, Yi Han, Ruin Ling Kao, hurry, get in the car. Then, Hu Feng said to Ru and Ling Kao, The allies have arrived. Get in the car quickly. Ru and Ling Kao couldn't help but be puzzled. Hu Feng is the ally. What's going on here? Could Hu Feng have another identity? Hu Feng led Yi Han to a slightly run-down house with a sign indicating a courier company. She said, Ru and Ling Kao, I've arranged a hotel for you to rest. The upcoming matters should be kept secret from her. This place is the headquarters of the security bureau. Let's go, I'll take him inside for a tour. Looking at the place, Yi Han couldn't help but be astonished and asked, What? You say this is the headquarters of the security bureau? What kind of joke is this? This place looks so dilapidated. Hu Feng chuckled, pressed a red button, and explained, Don't worry, the actual headquarters is inside. After pressing it, the wall suddenly vibrated, slowly lifting up, startling Yi Han. In front of him, a modern and sophisticated corridor appeared. Yi Han was somewhat surprised and said, So many people here. Hu Feng led him deeper inside for the tour, introducing as they walked. These are all members of the Bureau's Secretariat. They handle information processing, intelligence gathering, and index analysis. Going further inside is our training room, and our colleagues are all in there. She suddenly turned around with a warning sign. They've been waiting anxiously. They want to meet you right away and greet you politely. Inside the training area, everyone was actively practicing. Lifting weights, kicking, punching, wrestling, and doing push-ups. Hu Feng entered and clapped her hands, shouting, Attention! Everyone! She introduced, This is our new colleague, Yi Han. As she finished speaking, Yi Han stepped forward to introduce himself. Hello, everyone. I'm Yi Han. Nice to meet you for the first time. Before he could finish his sentence, a group of tall and muscular individuals approached, mocking. This kid is Yi Han, the one specially invited by the bureau chief. He looks like a snotty kid. Look at his legs and arms. They're so small. I doubt he could withstand a punch from me. Under the scrutiny of so many people, Yi Han couldn't help but feel tense and break into a sweat. He leaned towards Hu Fang and whispered, Hu Fang, what did I do to them? Why does everyone seem eager to fight me? Hu Feng explained, Don't worry, it's nothing. 
This is just a small test. Our entire security bureau warmly welcomes newcomers. Hearing her words, Yi Han felt a bit relieved and started to approach for interaction. Hu Feng watched him from behind, silently thinking. Yi Han, the people in this security bureau are arrogant. Only by defeating them can you win them over and gain their trust quickly. Yi Han walked up to face everyone and declared, Sure, I'm willing to compete in anything you want. The crowd immediately expressed dissatisfaction, saying, This kid is too arrogant, daring to speak to us like that. Let's see if he cries for his mom in a little while. Brothers who wants to teach this kid a lesson. At this moment, a volunteer stepped forward and took responsibility, saying, Let me, I'm Ding Long. He pointed to a strength measurement device, saying, Kid, come here. Let's see who's stronger. Others began to laugh and said, just relying on strength alone, Dai Long is already considered the strongest in the bureau. With Dai Long taking action, this time is definitely a sure win. Our average strength measurement is 500 points. I bet this kid won't get more than 200 points. Dai Long went first, delivering a powerful punch to the measurement device, and the screen displayed the numbers 950. He then turned to Yi Han and said, Kit, I don't want to make things difficult for you. If you can reach 900 points, reluctantly, I'll accept you as a member of the security bureau. Yi Han asked, What if I win? Others, upon hearing this, burst into mocking laughter. Did I hear that right? This kid wants to beat Dai Long. Within the bureau, only three people can score above 900. This kid really doesn't know his place. Let's see him cry and beg to go back to his mom in a little while. Hearing that, Dai Long also laughed and said, Kid, if you can beat me, I'll accept you as my brother. I'll do whatever you want me to do. But if you lose, you have to leave the security bureau on your own. No need for useless people here. Receiving this response, Yi Han happily agreed. Sure, today you're officially my little brother. Finishing his words, Yi Han assumed a stance, bending his front leg while extending his back leg to generate force. He then forcefully punched the measuring device. The screen now displayed the number 951. Seeing this number, the members of the security bureau were stunned. Yi Han turned around and said with a smile, So, I guess you can consider this a win for me. The members now had a delayed reaction, expressing doubts and murmuring. What's going on? He scored higher than Dai Long. Could this be a coincidence, or is the machine malfunctioning? Dai Long spoke up at this point, saying, Ye Han, I know with your true strength, you wouldn't stop at 951 points. I intentionally held back a bit to maintain my own dignity, controlling my strength accurately. This guy has truly impressed me. Yi Han, feeling embarrassed, waved his hand and replied, No need for that. Big Brother Dai Long. However, before he could finish his sentence, Dai Long immediately patted him on the shoulder. Then, he bowed his head and shouted loudly, No, I am not your big brother. From today onwards, I will be your elder brother, and you will be my younger brother. Others couldn't help but express their surprise and discuss. What's going on? Dai Long just admitted defeat like that. Hasn't he seen anything? This kid Yi Han is not simple. The punches he threw just now were not too many or too few. Fitting more precisely than Dai Long by one point. This kid can regulate his own strength accurately. He's on a different level. Truly can't judge a book by its cover. Yi Han continued, asking, Anyone else wants to compete with me? At this moment, the sound of footsteps suddenly echoed, accompanied by a voice. Your strength is indeed powerful, but what about your speed? The newcomer was Ba Wanghua, who said, Strength alone, but slow in speed. Then in the blink of an eye, I'll just be a punching bag. Yi Han immediately responded, If you want to know my speed, just give it a try, and you'll find out soon. Try it, and I guarantee you'll be satisfied. The members of the security bureau began to cheer. This kid dares to challenge Ba Wang Hua. We've got an interesting show to watch now. Ba Wang Hua's long legs are not just for show. Her family's unique martial arts are cleverly used through her legs. Besides Hu Feng, no one in the bureau can match her speed. Come on, Sister Hua, use your long legs to teach that kid a lesson. Ba Wang Hua leaned towards Yi Han and said, I really admire confident men, but too much confidence can lead to arrogance. Little brother, these long legs of mine, you won't be able to handle them. 
Yi Han replied without hesitation. Whether I can handle them or not, we won't know until we try. So tell me, how do you want to compete? Hearing this, Ba Wang Hua pointed to the dumbbells and said cheerfully, Very straightforward. We're not ones to beat around the bush. See those dumbbells over there. We'll both start at the same time, and whoever picks up this dumbbell first will be the winner. Simple as that. Yi Han Express, I like straightforwardness too. But what if I lose? Ba Wang Hua licked her lips lightly and held up a key, saying, This is the key to my room. If I lose, it's yours. You can come to my room anytime. But if you lose, you have to wash my socks for a month. Confident in her thoughts, she believed. Just by looking at this kid's stride, I can tell what his true strength is. I'm sure to win this match. The people behind them exclaimed, Oh my! This bet heavily favors that kid. Whether he wins or loses, he still benefits. Sister Hua, I can wash your socks for a whole year if it gives me the chance to compete with you. You guys really don't know how to make a move, thinking that beautiful people won't stumble. Yi Han raised his hand and said, No need for the room key. I'm a married man. If you lose, just treat me to a meal. He began to stretch his shoulders and urged, Let's get started. Anyway, you're a girl, so I'll let you run for a minute. Ba Wang Hua cracked her knuckles and replied, whether you let me or not, the winner will still be me. These socks of mine, you've already snatched them. While others cheered and shouted, Dai Long remained silent, crossing his arms and contemplating. From what just happened, you can tell Yi Han is not just a talker. Maybe he can really beat Ba Wang Hua. At this moment, someone checked the time and waved their hand to signal. The match begins. Without a word, Ba Wang Hua moved at lightning speed using her teleportation-like technique, swiftly racing forward, thinking she had covered quite a distance from Yi Han and was close to the dumbbells. Ba Wang Hua confidently thought, this kid hasn't even started running, really letting me have a minute head start, truly underestimating me. I've got this in the bag. However, right after that, something flashed by in front of her at lightning speed. Ba Wang Hua was surprised. What the heck was that? When she turned around to grab the dumbbells, the two weights that were right in front of her just a moment ago seemed to have vanished into thin air. She looked around in shock. Where are my dumbbells? Where did they go? At this point, Yi Han raised both hands, holding the dumbbell, and said, No need to search. The dumbbells are with me. It seems like in this match, I am the winner. Ba Wang Hua, upon hearing this, couldn't contain her surprise. What's this? How is this possible? Others couldn't help but exclaim. So what's going on here? Both dumbbells are now in Yi Han's hands. Yi Han has clearly taken a giant leap forward, snatching two dumbbells right in front of Ba Wang Hua. Yi Han's speed is so fast that we can barely see his movements. Someone running over asked the timekeeper, Yi Han, how much time did it take in total? The timekeeper, looking puzzled, replied, Yi Han's speed is too fast. I, I couldn't clearly see. I can only roughly estimate it took a little over a minute during which Yi Han gave his opponent a one-minute head start, saying. The inquirer gasped in astonishment. Not even a minute. Both of them turned to look at Yi Han, sharing the same thought. Yi Han, taking less than a minute to run back and forth, this speed is truly frightening. Ba Wang Hua approached and asked, Why is your speed so fast? Have you practiced any special martial arts? Yi Han threw the two dumbbells to the ground and replied, fast enough, just okay. He thought to himself, if they knew I was only using half of my normal speed just now, it might surprise them even more. Ba Wang Hua approached, placed her hand on his shoulder, and expressed, I admit defeat in this match, however your speed is fast as it is, also returns swiftly. But how long can you maintain it? My earlier promise still stands. Hearing this, Yi Han blushed and quickly stepped back, waving his hand, that's enough of that. Others began to cheer. Go up, if you don't go up. You're not a man. This Yi Han is really formidable. He's only been here for a short time, and Ba Wang Hua already favors him. Truly envious of him. At that moment, Hu Feng stepped forward and said with a teasing tone, All right, stop making noise. The welcome ceremony for Yi Han ends here. Next, let's find a place to help him change the atmosphere and have an intimate meal. Yi Han. Feeling liberated, dashed away, shouting loudly, Fine, let's go with that decision. 
I'll pick up Ru and Ling Kao first. Give me her address when the time comes. Seeing him run off so hastily, Ba Wang Huo couldn't help but angrily mutter, Yi Han, are you even a man? Returning to the Golden Jade Hotel, Yi Han sighed and said, The girls from the safety bureau are all so domineering, just like Hu Fang. Indeed, the team leader sets the tone for the subordinates. I remember Ru Wenling Kyo's room is 506. Yi Han arrived at the door and noticed it was slightly ajar, raising his curiosity. No, before leaving, Ru Wenling Kyo said she felt tired and wanted to take a nap. Why is the door open now? Sensing something amiss, Yi Han immediately activated his yin yang divine eyes for observation. In the room, Ru Wenling Kyo was pointing at a group of people and scolding. Are you all crazy? This is Yan Jing. I can't believe you guys came here pretending to be my family and tried to capture me. Among the group, Han Xiao Tan smirked and said, We borrowed the Ruin family name to come here and pick her up. Even if others find out, what's the harm? The other two chimed in with enticing words. Miss Ruin, it would be better for you to obediently come with us. Being the woman of our young master is a good thing. The Lian Yi family is the largest family in Yanjing City. Han Xiao Tan immediately gave the order. Enough talk. Quickly grab her. The group obediently prepared to charge forward. Ruin Ling Kiao, frightened, shouted, Don't. If you dare take one more step, I'll scream. Hearing this, the group burst into mocking laughter. Scream, shout as much as you want. The louder, the better. Even if you scream your throat hoarse, no one will come to your rescue. With those words, the door was promptly kicked to pieces. Yi Han rushed in from outside, surprising the two individuals inside. You are. Yi Han summoned internal energy into his palm and shouted, prepare to die. He quickly punched each of them in the face, causing them to painfully spit out blood. Han Chiao Tian, noticing the situation, turned around to look, and Ru Ling Kao couldn't help but cheer. Yi Han. Yi Han pointed accusingly at Han Chiao Tian, you are under Lion Yi Tan's command, daring to openly capture someone in the city center, who gave you the audacity? Han Chao Tan sneered challengingly. Of course, being the number one family, the Lion Yi clan, can do whatever we want, whether it's capturing a woman or even killing someone here. Once we handle it, there won't be any traces left. If someone else sees it, they'll just turn a blind eye. Hearing this, Yi Han couldn't help but reveal a faint smile and asked, planning to kill me. The Lion Yi clan really has an impressive arsenal. Han Xiao Tan turned around, raised his hand, and took a defensive stance. I really want to see how formidable the one daring to challenge our young master is, the so-called North Lion Yi, South Yi Han. Ruin Ling Kyo anxiously cautioned, Li Han, be careful. If I'm not mistaken, this person is one of the three top generals under Lion Yi, Han Xiao Tian. He's a renowned assassin. Rumor has it that he successfully broke through the Ren Meridian unification three years ago. Yi Han reassured her, making a calming gesture. Ling Kao, rest assured. Even if it's Mo Dong Tian Guang himself, a master at unifying the Meridians, he would also die at my hands. So, dealing with a small fry like Han Chiao Tian, who is not worthy of being my opponent, is a piece of cake. Both of them charged towards each other to commence the battle. Han Chiao Tan disdainfully said, This arrogant kid, today I'll show you what it means to be overshadowed by someone more talented. Yi Han retorted with a sneer, You're not worthy. Han Chiao Tan executed a punch, furious six consecutive strikes, heart devouring annihilation. Yi Han immediately countered with a punch, supreme dominance beyond the heavens. Their internal energies collided, but it was evident that Yi Han's power surpassed his opponents. Quickly dispelling Han Chao Tian's consecutive strikes, Han Chao Tian, astonished, exclaimed, What? Impossible. A tremendous force rushed straight into Han Chao Tian's body. He stiffened, trembling throughout his entire body, letting out an agonizing cry. Then, he collapsed to the ground, shattering the floor into numerous pieces, scattering debris everywhere. Ruin Ling Kao covered her mouth with her hand to conceal her shock. Her eyes widened in astonishment silently thinking. One move defeated the opponent. I didn't expect Yi Han to be this powerful. Han Chiao Tan struggled to get up, his face bruised and battered, covered in wounds that seemed severe. He coughed weakly, then hesitated, saying, 
a powerful fist. Learned it from someone. Yi Han smiled, proudly patting his chest, responding, My brother, Zhao Hao Tian. Old Han Xiao Tian was extremely shocked, his face filled with amazement as he asked, Zhao Hao Tian, is he your brother, Xi Nan Wang? I didn't expect you to have such a formidable ally. Yi Han stood confidently with crossed arms, saying, Admit defeat. You have no chance. Han Xiao Tian still tried to appear strong, smirking. Admit defeat. No, people from the Lian Ni clan don't know what defeat is. Come here. As he spoke, he approached Ru and Ling Kiao, extending his dirty hand to grab her. Ru and Ling Kiao's face turned pale, and she shouted, No. Yi Han quickly activated his energy, his entire body emitting a golden aura. He forcefully pushed Han Xiao Tan in the back, rendering him momentarily paralyzed. Then he collapsed to the ground, blood pouring from his mouth relentlessly. In desperation, he uttered his final words before descending into the abyss. Young master, this subordinate is incompetent. Seeing this, Ruin Ling Kao immediately clung to Yi Han's arm, shrinking into him with a fearful expression. Yi Han, you killed Han Xiao Tian. What should we do now? Yi Han remained remarkably calm, his face displaying a cold demeanor as he replied, It's okay. Han Xiao Tan had intentions to abduct you, and when I discovered it, and he resisted, killing him was a reasonable and justifiable action. I'll call someone to handle his corpse. He took out his phone from his pocket and dialed a number, calling Hu Feng. Hu Feng, a member of Lian Ni, Shi Tian tried to kidnap Ru and Ling Kao, and I discovered it. I've killed him. Hu Feng, upon hearing this, erupted in fury, yelling directly into the phone. How long have you been in Yanjing? You dare to kill someone. Why the hell do I have to clean up your mess? Yi Han startled, quickly moved the phone away from his ear, narrowly avoiding a potential eardrum rupture. Despite the scolding, his expression remained composed, and he continued, Handle this matter, and we still need to attend the party. Decide accordingly. After speaking, he promptly ended the call not willing to endure more scolding. Hearing the conversation between the two, Ru and Ling Kiao felt puzzled. This is Yan Jing. Yet Yi Han can leave the matter of killing Han Chao Tian to Hu Fang for resolution. It seems like dealing with such a small matter, do they still have any special status? Meanwhile, at the Lian Yi residence, Zhu Bo resat enjoying tea at the stone table in the garden. He then asked the young subordinate standing behind him, Jian Lai, how is the matter with Ru and Ling Kiao progressing? Young Master Lian Yi has just set out, and we need to use Ru and Ling Kiao as a stepping stone to break through the cultivation realm. Don't make it too messy. Otherwise, both you and I won't be able to bear the consequences. Shang Jian Lai stood respectfully, clasped his hands, and reported, reporting to the military advisor, Ru and Ling Kiao has returned to Yan Jing. I just received news that Han Chao Tan has been sent there to pick her up and it is estimated that we can meet Ruan Ling Kao shortly. Xu Bo re-raised his teacup and sipped, smiling with a relaxed and satisfied expression. Mmm, Han Chiu Tian is a martial artist and also familiar with the terrain. Ruan Ling Kao, on the other hand, is just a delicate girl. I don't think we need to exert much effort. Once she arrives, send someone to guard and keep an eye on the Ruan family. Although the Ruan family has surrendered, we must uproot it completely. Ruan Dong Lei the patriarch of the Ruin family, is still a person of influence. Give him the little show of force. Shang Jian Lai obeyed the order, understood, I will handle this matter properly. Suddenly, a subordinate rushed in, panic-stricken, and reported, military advisor, something urgent has happened. Zhu Bo Ri quickly slammed the teacup onto the stone table, splashing tea everywhere. His expression turned serious and reproachful. What's with the frantic behavior? Have you all forgotten the discipline I taught you? Regardless of the situation, you must handle it calmly. The subordinate knelt to the ground, trembling, sweat pouring down, pointing frantically behind him, before hastily acknowledging the mistake. Then, he delivered shocking news. I admit my mistake. But just now, someone outside sent a message, saying that Han Xiao Tan has been killed by Yi Han. Xu Bo re-stood up abruptly, slammed both hands onto the table, his face filled with disbelief. What on earth? This can't be true. Shang Jian Lai, equally shocked, exclaimed, Ye Han, 
Are you saying that Yi Han killed Mo Dong Tan Guang? The subordinate bowed down, unable to lift his face, tremblingly confirming, No, it's not a mistake. Moreover, not long after Han Chao Tan died, the authorities already showed up and took his body away. They framed it as Han Chao Tan deliberately attacking someone, and Yi Han was merely acting in self-defense. Therefore, that's why. Shang Jin Lai and Zhu Bo re-stood frozen, their entire bodies seemingly paralyzed. Then, Shang Jin Lai used his strength to shatter the stone table, his face filled with intense anger as he growled, Damn it, how dare the security bureau. Zhu Bo re-patted Shang Jin Li's shoulder, reminding him, Jin Lai, calm down. Shang Jin Lai, with a saddened expression, replied, My apologies, military advisor. Jin Lai, let his anger get the better of him. Bowing respectfully, he continued, Please, military advisor, provide guidance. Jin Lai is willing to face any punishment, even if it means climbing mountains or diving into the fiery sea. Xu Bo Ri, with a radiant smile, spoke loudly, All of you, prioritize the major issue involving young master Lian Yi. Although our covert actions have been exposed, launch a direct attack now. The young master is engaged to Ru Wen Ling Kao, so use this as our pretext. Jian Lai, personally take Ru Wen Ling Kao to the Ru Wen family, exerting pressure to hand her over. I don't believe Ru Wen Ling Kao would disregard her family's safety, as Yi Han mentioned. In the end, she is just a person building a nation from nothing. Shang Jian Lai still appeared somewhat hesitant as he said, All right, Jian Lai, go take care of it immediately. Just the matter with the security bureau has to be dealt with afterward. Zhu Bo Ri, wearing a cunning smile, replied with calculated intent. Of course, it can't be that easy. Whoever disrupts the affairs of young master Lian Yi's teacher must pay a heavy price. The grudge between the martial arts world and the security bureau from the past has not been reconciled to this day. It seems like it's time to overturn the chessboard. The scene shifted to the luxurious mansion of the Ruin family. Yi Han and Ru Wen Ling Kao stood at the entrance, deep in conversation. Ru Wen Ling Kao asked him one last time, Yi Han, do you really want to go inside with me? After all, this is my family's private matter. You've been bothered enough. Yi Han approached Ru Wen Ling Kao, gently caressed her head, and with a tender gaze he said, What nonsense are you talking about? Are we friends? Besides, coming here to help you was not a bother at all. Hearing this, Ling Kao felt somewhat reassured. Her face blushed and she replied, All right then, let's go. Thank you, Yi Han. Then, the two of them entered the villa with cheerful steps. Yi Han smiled and said, All right, let's go quickly. It's been a while since you've been home, and your father must miss you a lot. Ruin Ling Kao's face lit up with joy as she replied, Yes, my father loves me very much. I wonder how his health has been lately. Suddenly, a black-clad bodyguard rushed out, slamming the door behind him. He shouted loudly for everyone to hear. It's not good. The master's heartbeat has stopped. Everyone, quickly call a doctor. Yi Han and Ru Wen Ling Kao were stunned, their bodies frozen. Ru Wen Ling Kao covered her mouth in horror and exclaimed, What? Then, she regained her composure, rushed towards the bodyguard, grabbed his collar, and with a terrified expression, asked, What are you saying? My father's heartbeat has stopped. What's going on? The black-clad bodyguard trembled all over and hesitated before responding. Miss, I, I don't know the specific situation. Although the master has been in a coma, his body has been fine. It's just that after taking the medicine a moment ago, he suddenly didn't wake up. Yi Han quickly stepped forward to restrain Ruan Ling Kao, saying, Ling Kao, calm down a bit. First, let him go. I'll go in with you to see what's happening with your father. Hearing that, Ru and Ling Kao regained her composure. She held Yi Han's hand and pulled him into her father's room. While walking, she said, Yes, Yi Han, your medical skills are excellent. You must have a way to save my father. In her heart, she silently cheered and prayed for her father. Dad, nothing must happen to you. In the room, there was only the sound of crying and despair from the servants. Master, how can you leave like this? Master, nothing can happen to you. If something happens to you, what should I do? Ruin Ming He and his son Ruin Su Tong stood behind, observing without shedding a tear, appearing quite indifferent. 
Everything was going according to their plan. Ruo Ming, he whispered to his son, make sure no one discovers any traces. Ruo Su Tong covered his mouth with his hand and replied softly, Dad, don't worry. It's all a recurring heart problem. No one will suspect anything. Ruo Ming, he felt quite reassured and said, very well. Then he changed his demeanor 180 degrees, pretending to be morally upright and spoke, don't be too heartbroken. Now that my eldest brother has passed away, tomorrow morning we will take care of the funeral arrangements and send him to his final resting place. He turned around and gave orders to someone behind him, urgently instructing his son, Su Tong, contact the funeral home, ensure that you handle the funeral arrangements for your elder brother properly. Also, inform Ling Kao about this and tell her to return quickly. As a delicate and carefree girl, always wandering outside, she probably has no idea what mischief she's up to. Ruling Su Tom complied, saying, Dad, don't worry. Having laid out his plan, Ru Wen Ming, he pushed Ru Wen Ling Kao out of the Ru Wen family. Wait for Ling Kao to come back, then directly take her to the Lian Yi family. Once I establish connections with this big tree of the Lian Yi family, I won't fear any storms. Ruling Su Tong put his hand on his chest and continued with a smile. Certainly, I will quickly inform Ling Kao about the death of her elder brother and ask her to return home promptly. Ruin Ling Kao, her eyes sparkling with tears, entered the room, choking back her sobs, calling out, Dad, Dad, what happened? Yi Han followed her into the room. She walked up to her father's bedside, vigorously shaking his body, pleading, Dad, wake up, please. Tears streamed down her face, soaking her clothes. Ru and Ming, he pretended to be kind and concerned, approaching Ru and Ling Kao, patting her on the shoulder in comfort. Ling Kao, you've come a bit late. Your eldest brother has. He's gone. Upon hearing this, she burst into louder cries. Standing up abruptly, she pushed Ru and Ming his hand away, her eyes sharp and cold, exclaiming, No, I don't believe it. My father has always been healthy. How could he suddenly fall ill? It must be some sinister plot you people have hatched, always trying to undermine the family headship day by day. Ru Ming, he angrily shouted, Silence! I'm your second uncle, who gave you the right to speak to me like that. He raised his hand, intending to slap Ru Ling Kao, but just in time, Yi Han swiftly intervened, restraining Ru Ming He's hand. He tightly grasped Ru Ming He's wrist for a moment before letting go, his face cold as he spoke. Ling Kyo's father suddenly fell ill, and she's a bit emotional. It's a bother for you, who has been tirelessly worrying about her father. Ru Wen Ming He, infuriated, shouted at Yi Han. You imputed brat. Who are you? The affairs of the Ru Wen family don't concern you. Yi Han smiled and replied, I am Ling Kyo's friend. I came here this time to help her check on her father's condition. Ru Wen Ming He pointed towards the door, then raised his voice, dismissing Yi Han as if he were the owner of the house. Then you can leave now. My elder brother has departed in peace. There's no need for any intervention. Yi Han turned to look at Ru Wen Ling Kyo's father, smiling as he said, It's not certain yet. I think there's still a chance to save him. Hearing this, Ru Wen Ling Kyo was overjoyed. However, Ru Wen Ming, he shocked, questioned. What do you mean? Ru Wen Ling Kyo anxiously asked Yi Han. Yi Han, are you sure? Is there still a chance to save my father? Yi Han replied, Of course. Ling Kao, do you doubt my medical skills? Ru Wen Ming, he insisted loudly. Nonsense. His heartbeat has stopped. How can he be saved? His son, Ru Wen Su Tong, pointed at Yi Han with disdain on his face, saying, Ling Kao, where did your sister find this lunatic? Daring to claim he can revive the dead, he must think he's a fairy. Upon hearing this, the doctors and nurses were astonished and found it hard to believe. One nurse, with sparkling eyes, remarked, This kid unexpectedly dares to claim he can revive the dead. Is he crazy or what? The doctor in the middle spoke up, his face filled with hope for a miracle. If what he says is true, then the patriarch might not be dead. Maybe he can really bring him back to life. The doctor sitting on the ground immediately objected, It's impossible. I just checked. The patriarch's heartbeat has truly stopped. Even with resuscitation, you can't bring back someone who's already dead. Ru Ling Kiao tightly held Yi Han's hand, her face filled with hope as she said, 
Vai Han, I believe in your medical skills. With your help, my father must be saved. Yi Han confidently replied, Don't worry. Leave it all to me. He then used his yin yang vision to see through Ru and Ming Shan's body condition. He thought to himself, Ru and Ming Shan's heartbeat has truly stopped, but the heart still shows faint movements, indicating there's still a chance to revive him. Yi Han took three acupuncture needles from within his clothes and infused a stream of green energy into Ru and Ming Shan's body. Ru and Ming Yi, the father of Ru and Tsu Tong, was extremely anxious. Everything seemed to be heading towards a positive outcome when unexpectedly, Yi Han appeared. Ru Wan Ming, he gritted his teeth and said, Judging by the appearance of this kid, he seems to be a traditional Chinese medicine practitioner. He can't truly bring Ru Wan Ming Shan back to life, can he? Ru Wan Su Tong responded, This is impossible. Ru Wan Ming Shan is already dead. How can he come back to life? Does my father really think he's a divine being capable of resurrection? Yi Han gathered his energy, and a powerful gust of wind began to blow. He shouted, Three Origins Life Returning Acupuncture. Ru and Ming Shan's body was lifted by the green energy. Seeing no immediate response from her father, Ru and Ling Kao anxiously approached the bedside and asked, Vai Han, my father. Quietly celebrating in his heart, Ru and Su Tong pointed at Yi Han and exclaimed, Why bother asking? The medical skills of this kid won't help. I know he's just talking nonsense. How can he revive someone who is already dead? Ru and Ming, he continued. Ling Kao, prioritize the overall situation. Let your father depart peacefully. It's not worth enduring further torment from a quack like this. The stern nurse added, Indeed, this guy is undoubtedly a scam artist, a nerve-wracking charlatan. I don't know how Miss Ruin could associate with such a person. It's truly embarrassing for our Ruin family. The doctor turned his face with disappointment and said, I held a bit of hope just now, but now it seems like I can only laugh it off. How can someone who is dead be brought back to life? Ru and Ming, he approached Ru and Ling Kao, putting on a fake sympathetic expression. Ling Kao, this kid has tried and failed. It's time for you to accept the truth. Now, focus on the arrangements for your father's afterlife. Additionally, the engagement between you and Lai and Yi, Shi Tian is approaching. Hearing Ru and Ming he's sly remarks, Yi Han burst into laughter, saying, Ru and Ming Yi, your older brother is still lying on the sickbed, and here you are in a hurry to make decisions. Wanting to sell Ru and Ling Kao already? You truly are a good uncle to Ling Kao. Ru and Ming Yi, caught off guard, retorted, The elder brother has passed away, and now, with me in charge of the Ruin family, and the Lei and Yi family being one of the prominent clans in Yanjing, there's no way we would marry into the Li and Yi Shi Tian family, especially not to a rogue like you. He extended his hands, gazing up to the ceiling with pride, saying, I'm doing this, believing that even my late brother's soul in the heavens will find some comfort in it. Yi Han replied coldly, Whether it brings comfort or not, it's not determined by your words. Then, Yi Han released a stream of turquoise energy towards Ruan Ming Shan. The stream of energy permeated into the body of Ruan Ming Shan, and Yi Han remarked, It's still better to let the head of the Ruan family speak for himself. Suddenly, there was a coughing sound, and Ruan Ming Shan abruptly opened his eyes, looking around. The members of the Ruan family were utterly shocked, gaping in astonishment. Ruan Ming, he stammered, What's going on? Alive, he's alive. Ruin Su Tong, holding his head in confusion, said, What is this? How can this be? Ruin Ling Kao hugged her father tightly, crying with joy, choked with emotion. Dad, dad is back. It's, it's amazing. The nurses, doctors, servants, and others, amazed by Yi Han's medical skills, were buzzing with discussion. Oh my God, the head of the family unexpectedly came back to life. Could this kid be a reincarnation flower? Even if it's a reincarnation flower, it's not as good as him. He's like a divine being among mortals. Ru and Ming He, now pale, wiped off his sweat nervously, exclaiming, Brother, elder brother. Ru and Ming Xian looked at him with a glare of anger, saying, Ming He, you truly are my good younger brother. Approaching Ru and Ming Xian's sickbed, Ling Kao couldn't help but feel a sense of sorrow. Her father's health had noticeably deteriorated significantly. Ling Kyo asked, Dad, how is your body doing? 
the head of the Ruwen family replied. Ling Kao, don't worry, dad's health is still very good. Glancing toward the second family and his son, Ming Shan hinted, as long as I am alive, I am still the master of the Ruwen family. I will absolutely not let anyone mistreat my daughter. The plan unfolded contrary to expectations, worrying Ruwen Mingi, who spoke to his son. Damn it, Chao Tong. What's going on? Didn't I say that Ruwen Ming Shan would definitely die? Now, why? Ruwen Su Tong remained calm. It's all right, Dad. Even if Ruwen Ming Shan comes back to life, it doesn't matter. He absolutely can't know that we plotted against him. After thorough investigation, Yi Han confirmed that the real culprits couldn't escape his scrutiny. He laughed loudly, grabbing everyone's attention. Ha 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 ha. If I'm not mistaken, that's the resurrection flower. Right. The pala of this flower is harmless. But when combined with the sleeping potion that the head of the Ruwen family consumed, it causes severe symptoms of heart disease, leading to death without anyone knowing. Yi Han looked at Ruwen Mingki and his son with a meaningful gaze, continuing, By just investigating who brought this vase of flowers here, we can definitely find out who was behind the plot to harm Ling Kyo's father. Investigating the second family of the Ruwens shouldn't be too difficult. Ruwen Ling Kyo and others exclaimed, What? It seemed that some secrets were unveiled after Yi Han's words. People in the room began to argue vehemently, I remember this vase of flowers. It seems like Ruan Ming he brought it. Could it be? Is it necessary to go this far? No matter what, the family head is the blood brother of the second family's head. The minds of these father and son are truly sinister and treacherous. Just a moment ago, they were jubilant about seizing control of the Ruan family. Fortunately, the divine Dr. Yi brought by the young lady could see through their conspiracy. The hidden needle is bound to be revealed one day. Thinking back, Ru and Ling Kyo's family treated the second family not badly, yet they dared to do such outrageous things. Ling Kyo angrily pointed and scolded them. Ru and Mingi, Ru and Xu Tong, do you have anything left to say at this point? Ru and Ming, he was extremely frightened, unable to think of anything. So how could he respond? Seeing his father stammering, Ru and Xu Tong sneered, Dad, don't stress out. I still have one last trick. Ru and Ming, he was surprised. What? Another trick. Ling Kyo stepped forward, not wanting to see the faces of the father and son any longer, and commanded, Ruan Mingi, Ruan Xu Tong, you don't deserve to be here. Get out quickly. Ruan Xu Tong, thick-skinned, turned a deaf ear and sneered in response. Ha ha ha. I think the ones who should leave the Ruan family today are your father and you. Then he ordered, Yan Fei, come in. Apparently, Everything had been carefully arranged in advance. The sound of footsteps hitting the door echoed, startling everyone in the room. Yam Fei, with a bunch of armed subordinates, confidently entered. He shouted, Second young master, everyone from the Ruwen family is ready to follow your orders. We are prepared for any major task. Ruwen Ling Kyo couldn't believe that Ruwen Mingyi and his son had taken her from one surprise to another. Furious, she blurted out, What the steward? You, you. The angriest person had to be the Ruwen family head. Looking at the trusted servant, whom he had brought into the Ruwen family, taught and nurtured, he couldn't contain his rage and yelled, Yan Fei, back then, I took you off the street, brought you to the Ruwen family, provided for you, and even taught you martial arts. Today, you dare to betray me. Yan Fei, with a sly grin, bared his wolf-like teeth biting back at Ruan Ming Shan without hesitation. Oh, Ruan Ming Shan, you ought to know that in life, you must seize opportunities when you see something more prestigious. I'm sure you understand this principle, even if it means anjuring someone to death. Still not fully recovered from the illness, the emotional shock caused Ruan Ming Shan intense pain. You, you. Ling Kao hurriedly ran over to support him, anxiously asking, Dad, how are you feeling? The situation for Ling Kao was truly ironic. Ruan Xu Tong saw that the timing couldn't be better for his scheme and took advantage of the moment, saying with a triumphant air, Ha 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 ha, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to make your own choices. Will you follow my father and me to enjoy wealth and glory, or do you want to be expelled from the Ruan family along with Ruan Ming Shan? The ladies and disciples of Ruan Ming Shan didn't know what to do at that moment. Clearly, their future was now in the hands of others, 
Even though they had always revered Ruin family head, they whispered among themselves, This Ruin Tzu Tong is clearly trying to force us to join his side. What should we do? Leaving the Ruin family, we'll lose everything. It seems the Patriarch isn't aware of this situation. Why doesn't he step forward to stop Ruin Mingi? Ruin Tzu Tong didn't bother waiting for everyone's agreement. He agreed on behalf of everyone, as this was an order. He turned to address his father directly. Very well, if there are no objections, I declare the new family head of the Ruwood family is. At that moment, Yi Han stepped forward from the crowd, surprising everyone with his objection. I object. Ruwood Su Tong became furious, finding it inconceivable that an outsider would interfere in Ruwood family matters. He shouted, You. Yi Han couldn't stand idly by in the face of this family dispute, and he responded firmly, Indeed, it's me. Yan Fei, I already taught you a lesson last time. Surprisingly, you dare to play tricks in front of me again. The bewildered family servant stepped forward to rebuke Yi Han. Yi Han, this is Ruin family in Yan Jing, not your mountain sea place. You're not allowed to act recklessly here. Ruin Su Tong, with his armed entourage ready, pointed and cursed at Yi Han. Young man, your medical skills might be something. But if you become a useful figure for our Ruin family, I might spare your life. If you persist in defiance, mark my words, this day next year will be your death anniversary. Ru Wen Ming, he cunningly used his words to flatter Yi Han. Young man, a person who is wise and timely is a true hero. Don't sacrifice your own life for the sake of a woman. Yi Han paid no attention to their intimidation. He raised his aura and walked straight up to them, responding with a resounding voice, I don't need you to worry about my life. You'd better concern yourselves with your own. Focus on staying alive. Yan Fi, finding himself at an impasse, resorted to strong measures. He stepped towards the door and declared, All right, Yi Han, this is your own doing. Don't regret it. Yan Fi, the head of Yan family, is willing to personally take care of this and kill this young man. A martial artist entered from outside, laughing, Ha 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 ha. Unexpectedly, the Ruan family, aside from Ruan Dong Lai, has another supreme master. I hope not to disappoint the old man with my conservative views. Yan Fei, bolstered by his influential seniors, pointed at Yi Han with anger. Yi Han, although I'm not your match, my senior Zhu Chang is here. Today, you're surely doomed. The gathered ladies and disciples were well aware of Zhu Chang's reputation. Each of them was filled with awe. Zhu Chang? Could it be the renowned swordsman, known as the Sword Master Chang? His sword technique is said to be rare in a century a master of ancient martial arts. We didn't expect Ruin Ming Ki and his father to invite him here. Ruin Su Tong arrogantly spoke up, Ha ha ha, originally, I invited sword master Zhu Chang to deal with the old man, but unexpectedly, today he has to intervene in this situation, truly surprising everyone. Lang Yan Kao felt the situation was difficult for Yi Han. She didn't want him to risk his life for her family matters, so she stepped forward and said, Yi Han. Why don't you go first? We have no relationship, and you don't need to jeopardize your life for my family. Even though Ruin Ming Shan's family was falling apart, he maintained his dignity and didn't want Yi Han to face danger in this matter. He advised, Young man, thank you for your good intentions, but today's situation is very dangerous. It would be best for you to leave quickly and not stay here to face an unjust fate. Yi Han sympathized with their thoughts, but seeing them helpless, he couldn't stand by. He rolled up his sleeves and replied, Lin Kao, don't worry. Who cares about a sword master? I can defeat him with a single move. Zhu Chang stepped forward, unsheathing his sword. Arrogant youngster initially, I intended to only disable one of your limbs as a warning. But now, I've changed my mind. Chang, in his foolishness, adjusted his sword stance, arrogantly announcing a death sentence for Yi Han. A swordsman cannot be humiliated. Young man, you shall forfeit your life to pay for your arrogant words. Yi Han, who despised martial artists turning traitor and committing vile deeds, likely couldn't forgive this Chang either. He retorted, Let's have a match today. I'll show you what it means to fight without drawing a sword. Zhu Chang swung his name sword technique, the Chang sword formation, which appeared grand, but might not have been as impressive as it seemed. Yi Han, without using his divine sword, countered with a fingertip technique, 
balancing justice, the end of life. Wherever Zhu Chang's sword formation went, upon touching Yi Han's technique, it shattered into countless pieces. The foolish Chang stared with wide eyes, resembling a monkey dog hit by the wind. He exclaimed, What the hell? Before he could utter a final cry, Yi Han's technique had pierced through him. Perhaps it was a farewell, as flames engulfed the room. The onlookers, astonished, whispered to each other, Who won? What kind of sword technique was that from Yi Han? It's truly formidable. Yan Fei anxiously called out, Master, where are you? Master, what happened? Did you win? Or can that Yi Han's life be taken? Only when the smoke and flames subsided did Yi Han emerge, standing proudly with his foot on Zhu Chen's remains, now just a lifeless corpse. He declared, It's quite regrettable to disappoint you. I am still alive, but your master is no more. Yan Fei, the steward, popped his eyes wide, unable to believe what he saw. What? Master is dead. The crowd of family members and disciples exclaimed in shock. Some cheered in amazement. What kind of joke is this? Yi Han killed Zhu Chen with just a barehanded technique. Oh my, his medical skills are already superb. And now his combat strength is so formidable. Is he some divine being? With Yi Han here, Ru and Ling Kao has a firm advantage. Ru and Ming Xian was overjoyed. He never expected the Ruin family to encounter such a valuable ally. He said to his daughter, Ling Kao, Yi Han has helped us so much. I don't think the relationship between you two is just an ordinary friendship. Blushing, Ling Kao replied quickly, Dad, what are you talking about? Yi Han, he already has a girlfriend. Our relationship is not what you think. Hearing this, Ru and Ming Xian chuckled with delight. Ha 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 ha, having a girlfriend is nothing and they're not married yet. With your daughter's looks and talents, there's no need to worry. I fully support you, my dear. Ruin Ling Kiel felt quite confused. She desired a lot, and in her heart, she constantly thought of Yi Han. She thought, if it could really be like this, it would be good. Yi Han didn't want to waste any more time with this pack of dogs biting the master. He stepped forward, intending to deal with each one individually, saying, Yan Fei, it's your turn now. Yan Fei, bewildered, quickly transformed into a groveling dog. He knelt down, crying and pleading, No, please don't kill me. Big Brother Yi, Grandpa Yi, Ancestor Yi, I beg you to spare me. I can be your ox or horse. Do whatever you want. I'll do it. The barking of this dog's words was irritating. Yi Han, with a cold demeanor, let his energy flow on his hand, which began to heat up. He bid farewell to Yan Fei, for a traitor like you, who is not worthy to be my dog. After saying that, Yi Han struck a blow that ended Yan Fei's life. He howled once and rolled over, turning into a corpse. Looking at Yan Fei's lifeless body rolling around, both Ru Wen Ming He and his son were horrified. Ru Wen Ming He trembled and murmured, Gone. They're gone. Zhu Chang and Yan Fei are both dead. This comment is truly terrifying. The second elder was too scared to move. Ruin Xu Tong had to drag his father to find an escape route. He pulled Ruin Ming He, saying, Dad, let's go quickly. Head straight to the Li and Yi family. Right now, only the Li and Yi family can save the two of us. Yi Han swept in front of the two, like a gust of wind. So you want to run? Even people with family ties can bite like this. Truly deserving of death. Yi Han inquired, you just mentioned going to the Li and Yi family, truly the good descendants of the Ruin family, huh? Ruin Su Tong could only resort to using his martial arts mouth to plead with Yi Han to clear the way. Yi Han, today we lost, but this situation is absolutely arranged by me alone. You can kill and chop as you please, but don't harm my father. Ruin Mingyi, with a pale face, spoke again. Yi Han, Yi Yum Master, we are, for better or worse, Relatives of Ru and Ling Kiao, can you spare us this time? Yi Han sighed, responding, Rest assured, for Ling Kiao's sake, I won't kill you. While Yi Han couldn't single-handedly decide the fate of the entire Ru Wen family, he also couldn't allow villains to run rampant in his friend's home. After speaking, Yi Han released his spiritual power and declared, Nevertheless, I will disable your limbs so that you'll have to spend the rest of your lives in bed. The two ruined father and son slumped into a corner, lifeless. At this moment, 
Ruan Dong Lei, the old master of the Ruan family, rushed in, shouting loudly, Stop! The two Ruan father and son, with tears streaming down their faces, cried out, Grandfather is here. It's great, we're saved. Father, someone wants to cripple your son and grandson. Hurry and save us. Ruan Dong Lai walked straight to Yi Han and spoke, Young man, Ming He and Teksu Tong may be wrong, but for better or worse, they are members of the Ruan family. This is our family matter. Can we resolve it ourselves? Yi Han squinted his eyes. This must be Ling Kyo's grandfather. Yi Han was somewhat annoyed. Why did this old master show up only now when such a significant event was happening? He responded, I don't want to interfere in your family affairs, but I am Ling Kyo's friend. Anyone who wants to harm my friend must die. I'm sparing their lives, which is already merciful enough. Old Master Ruan Dong Lei had to explain further. It's embarrassing to say, but I didn't expect that the descendants of the Ruan family would need an outsider to stand up for justice. But we are all of the same flesh and blood. I am also out of options. Hearing the words of the old master, Ruan Ming Shan and Ling Kel couldn't hold back their tears. At his age, the old master had to endure the division and strife among his descendants. Ruan Ming He and Ek Su Tong still defiantly asserted, Father, everything we do is for the sake of the Ruan family. We can only stand up with the support of the Li and Yi family. Grandfather, Ling Ko, if you don't marry Li and Yi Shi Tan, once the Li and Yi family is angered, our entire Ruan family won't live in peace. This was also the struggle that the old master had been facing. The Li and Yi family always eyed the status of the Ruan family, and because they wanted a marital alliance, the old master found himself in a difficult situation. He spoke up, Xu Tong, what you said is correct. The interests of the family come before everything else. Lin Kao, as a member of the Ruan family, you must marry Li and Yi Shi Tian for the greater good. Lin Kyo's heart shattered, and she uttered each word in pain. So I'm just a pawn, always expendable for the family's interests. The onlookers sighed in disappointment. Well, we thought Yi Han had the ability to resolve this, but it seems it's just a chaotic drama. Mr. Ruan, not everyone has the low cultivation level of Zhu Chang. Yi Han may not be able to handle this situation. We can only pity Ruan Ling Kao now. But who will pity us when the Lion Yi family strikes? Ruan Ling Kao, after a bout of intense crying, perhaps not wanting to witness her loved ones shed blood for her sake anymore, walked up to Yi Han and said, Yi Han, it's better for you to leave. Clutching onto Yi Han's shoulders, she whispered, This is my destiny and you'd done enough for me. Yi Han remained silent, lost in thought about something. Lin Kao, standing in front of him, felt the warmth of his hand holding hers, bringing her some comfort. Yi Han spoke, Destiny is determined by oneself, not by the heavens. Everything in life is a result of our own choices. Touched deeply, Ru and Lin Kao found solace every time she was by his side. Yi Han advised her, Leave this matter to me. He then stepped in front of Ruan Dong Lai, expressing decisively, Mr. Ruan, I don't care about your family affairs, but Ruan Ling Kao is my friend. She doesn't want to marry someone she doesn't love. If I can defeat Lian Yi Shi Tian, Ling Kao, do you still need to marry him? Ling Kao, astonished, questioned, could it be that Yi Han, even Ruan Dong Lai, at this moment, was shocked and astounded. What? You can defeat Lian Yi Shi Tian. He knew well that this matter couldn't be taken lightly. Ming He and Ek Su Tong, sneering, countered Yi Han. Ye Han, you still want to defeat Li and Yi Shi Tan. Don't even dream about it. The two of you are not on the same level. Li and Yi, Shi Tian is known as the number one young talent in Beifang. He has even defeated some seasoned masters. Wanting to defeat him is nothing short of daydreaming. Without a pause, Yi Han swiftly approached the two with a murderous look in his eyes. Yi Han shouted, shut your mouths, and promptly slapped both of them across their faces. The two went flying, writhing and paying on the ground. Unbelievably, their grandfather was present, and yet, they dared to speak in such a manner. The two struggled to their feet, crying out, Yi Han, my father, my father is still here. How dare you? Grandfather, please save us. Yi Han, you want to kill us. Yi Han, without fear, stepped forward and retorted, Ha ha, you useless fools. 
Try saying another word, and see if anyone can stop me from killing you. Ruin Dong Lai, if you want to save them, be quick about it. Ruin Dong Lai, having witnessed Gi Han's prowess just now, sensed the horror in it. He thought, fast, too fast. Even if I were fully prepared just now, I'm afraid I couldn't have stopped him. Mr. Ruin knew that he couldn't act arrogantly in this situation. He approached Gi Han gently and said, Lai Han, you are truly a person of depth and unpredictability. I hope you, my friend, will consider the friendship of this old man, who is Ling Kyo's grandfather, and show mercy. The young men in the house, witnessing their grandfather acting so deferentially in front of someone younger, were sweating profusely. One of them exclaimed, Grandfather, what does this mean? Could it be that even you are not a match for Yi Han? Oh my, how powerful is Yi Han? Suddenly, a triumphant laughter echoed from outside the door. Defeat young master Lian Ye. I must see who dares to make such arrogant claims. Members of the Lian Yi family unexpectedly barged in, led by the well-known Shen Jian Lai. The Ruan family members were astonished when they saw him. They whispered, It's Shen Jian Lai, the right-hand man of Lian Yi Shi Tian. Oh heavens, why is he here? Sheng Jian Lai is rumored to be the number one master under Lian Yi Shi Tian. It is said that once he intervenes, no one can survive. His appearance at this moment might bring either fortune or disaster. The Ruin family members gathered behind Ruin Dong Lai, waiting for his command. Ruin Dong Lai greeted Sheng Jian Lai and inquired, Sheng Jian Lai, what brings you to our Ruin family today? Sheng Jian Lai with an arrogant demeanor, responded. Well, well, the head of the Ruin family is also present. This is perfect. I'll clarify everything right here. Seemingly eager to speak on behalf of Lian Yi Shi Tian, he continued. In one day, bring Ruin Ling Kiao to the Lian Yi family. If you fail to do so within the stipulated time, there will be consequences. Upon hearing this, Mr. Ruin became visibly worried, and Shang Jian Lai, showing no respect, issued a threat. Under the Ruin family, no one will be spared. His words pierced the minds of everyone in the room. Was the day of destruction for the Ruin family approaching? Ruin Ming Xian and Ling Kao were shocked. The Lian Yi family showed no mercy. Mr. Ruin was furious. It seemed that there was no justice left in the world. He scolded, Shang Jian Lai, do you think we, the Ruin family, are nothing? To want to destroy the entire Ruin family? Let's see. I'm not dead yet. Shang Jian Lai glanced at him with half an eye, then sneered. Before coming here, the great military advisor instructed me to show respect to Mr. Ruan, but now it seems your vitality is not what it used to be. Having spoken, this swine-like character leaped forward like a wolf indifferent to whether he was facing the head of the Ruan family or anyone else. He declared, if that's the case, today, let me personally crush the last hope of your Ruan family. He unleashed three deadly and blood-soaked sword techniques, targeting Ruan Dong Lei, the elderly gentleman. Ruan Dong Lei didn't hesitate and immediately used his heavenly Buddha palm. The clash between the two techniques was fierce, but it seemed that the elder felt his strength couldn't withstand the opponent. Shang Jian Lai was finally stronger, or perhaps the elder's age was no longer responsive. The head of the Ruan family exclaimed, This is not good. Shang Jian Lai grinned maliciously. Watching the old man struggle, greatly amused by the sight, he taunted the old man, go die. With that, he launched a devastating blow, putting an end to the patriarch of the Ruin family, and the shockwave from the strike reverberated throughout the entire house. Ruin Ming Shan shouted and leaped out of bed. No, father. Ling Kyo's lips trembled as she cried, grandfather, how could this happen? However, at this moment, Yi Han's face emerged calmly praising Shang Jian Lai. Impressive strength. Not bad. He then critiqued further. But in our home, it's not your turn to showcase your prowess. The elderly man had been saved by Yi Han and was now visible. Shang Jian Lai, surprised that this unknown person emerged to effortlessly counter his attack, breathed a sigh of relief. Ruin Ling Kao, feeling a sense of relief, approached Yi Han and said, Lai Han, thank you for saving my grandfather. Yi Han merely smiled and signaled her, rest assured. The elderly man, who had been skeptical and cautious of Yi Han earlier, now had to express gratitude for being saved. Young Yi, this old man was somewhat unjust to you before.
Mr. Ruin stepped forward, clasping his hands in gratitude before Yi Han. But you didn't hold on to the past and dared to save me. This old man feels truly ashamed. However, despite this, Yi Han still seemed somewhat reluctant. In response, Yi Han replied, I am Ruon, there's no need for that. I'm just expressing my gratitude to him as Ling Kyo's grandfather. That's why I intervened to save him. After saying this, Yi Han pretended to ignore the others in the conversation, stating, Furthermore, this is a matter concerning the Ruin family. I won't get involved. However, it was inevitable that Shang Jian Lai, who had been listening to the conversation, erupted in anger, saying, You are Yi Han. There seemed to be some hidden meaning behind his harsh words. Pointing his finger, he continued, Han Chao Tian, Mr. Han, is it because of you that he was killed? At that moment, people began to suspect the reason behind Shang Jian Li's agitation. Yi Han smirked in response. Yes, it's true. I am Yi Han, and I indeed killed Han Chao Tian. It appeared that another intervention was necessary. Shang Jian Lai stepped forward, glaring fiercely at Yi Han. He was bitter and resentful, and Yi Han added fuel to the fire, saying, He led people to kidnap Ling Kao without consulting me. It's only fitting that he died. He. Shang Jian Lai chuckled as he recounted his past relationship with Han Chao Tian. I was an orphan wandering the streets. It was Mr. Han who brought me to the Li and Yi family to be paired with young Master Li and Yi. He showed kindness. But today, if I don't kill you, it's no different from betraying the essence of a living being. Sheng Jian Lai, like a ferocious beast, charged forward and spoke directly to Yi Han. Yi Han knew that avoiding this confrontation was impossible. He clenched his fist and retorted, You want revenge for Han Chao Tian? Well, give it a try but the price you'll pay is your life. Shang Jian Lai tilted his head back and laughed, ha 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 ha, I reached the microcosmic orbit realm at the age of 18, and no one has dared to talk to me like that. His nose curled up, resembling a wild beast. Shang Jian Lai glared at Yi Han with eyes full of malice, as if ready to devour him. He declared, if you don't die today, my name is not Shang Jian Lai. Ming Yi and Kek Su Tong, father and son, smirked with satisfaction. Unexpectedly, Yi Han dares to offend Shang Jian Lai. This time he's surely done for. Dad, wait for Yi Han to die, and we can immediately offer Ruin Ling Kao to the Li and Yi family. With Shang Jian Li's support, the Ruin family will truly be ours. Concerned for Yi Han, Ling Kao approached his grandfather, asking, Grandpa, can you help Yi Han? Shang Jian Lai is far above him in cultivation. Yi Han is definitely not his match. Grandpa Ruan Dong Lai carefully observed his granddaughter's plea and responded, Not necessarily. It seems like I have gained some understanding of Yi Han after some observation. Although his vitality may not be as strong as before, his eyesight is still accurate. Sheng Jian Lai, despite his higher cultivation realm, I can still gauge his true strength. As for Yi Han, despite his lower cultivation level, I can't quite perceive his true power. So he might bring us some surprises. Yi Han raised his hand, gesturing towards Shang Jian Lai, like a pesky fly. This is my home. Whether you want revenge or not, you're not allowed here. Choose another place. However, due to a lack of proper upbringing since childhood, the rebellious Tu Thup paid no heed to the words of courtesy. He openly scolded Yi Han. Too many words. If you dare to leave today, everyone in the Ruin family, except Ruin Ling Kao, will die. Shang Jian Lai instructed his subordinates, Block the main gate for me. No one, not even a fly, is allowed to pass. His followers immediately followed orders, standing like obedient ghosts in front of the main gate. It was clear that they were counting on Yi Han to overturn the fate of the Ruin family. Feeling somewhat uneasy, Yi Han couldn't simply sacrifice himself for the Ruin family. Ruin Ling Kiao approached him, attempting to persuade him. Yi Han, they... Yi Han quietly reassured her, repeating the same words. Don't worry, I'm here, no need to be concerned about anything. Ling Kiao watched the silhouette of that young man, and an indescribable emotion welled up within her. Yi Han, with a cold demeanor, stepped forward to confront Shang Jian Lai, stating, Shang Jian Lai, if you're tired of living like this, I can grant your wish. Shang Jian Lai, without uttering a word, rushed forward. He unleashed his power with a roaring aura, yelling, 
You're the one who should die, Yi Han. Having killed Han Chao Tian before, now taking the life of Shang Jian Lai, his disciple, wasn't an unusual occurrence for Yi Han. He provided the opportunity for the two master and disciple to reunite in the afterlife. Yi Han leaped forward and delivered a powerful punch that seemed to summon a dragon, unleashing a fierce and overwhelming force. The dragon and tiger appeared in unison, symbolizing the might of his strike. Shang Jian Lai, no ordinary opponent himself, countered by spinning and creating a massive shockwave. His technique, named Blood Seal Heaven, turned the battlefield into chaos, with debris flying, obscuring the view. When the smoke cleared, Shang Jian Lai exclaimed in astonishment, What? This can't be. Yi Han's exceptional skill made even a master like him break into a cold sweat. Yi Han, quick as lightning, retorted, In my realm, nothing is impossible. Too fast for you. Before Shang Jin Lai could see Yi Han's fist, he only managed to open his mouth in preparation for the impact. A punch landed decisively, and Yi Han shouted, Go to hell for me. Shang Jin Lai spat blood, his body recoiling from the impact, a long trail of Yi Han's fist lingering behind. Shang Jin Lai crashed into the wall with a thud, the strike proving to be fatally cunning. In the end, if Yi Han wanted him dead, there was no changing it. Shang Jin Lai departed without a word of protest. Ling Kao, overcome with joy, shed tears as Yi Han defeated Shang Jin Lai with just a few moves. She cheered, Fantastic, Yi Han, you've won. Mr. Ruin, equally astonished, couldn't believe how swiftly the situation had turned in their favor. He expressed his satisfaction. This kid really didn't disappoint me. Perhaps letting Ling Kao follow him is not a bad choice. The subordinates guarding Shang Jin Li's door now wore pale faces, unable to conceal their shock. One of them said with a trembling voice, Master Shang has been killed, and we're no match for Yi Han. We must escape. Yi Han's power exceeds our imagination. We must report this news to Master General and plead for mercy. I'm not ready to die. Yi Han rushed towards them while they were still in disarray. Each received their due punishment. You, who bully the weak, will all die with him. With a swift and precise martial arts display, Yi Han incapacitated each one, causing Shen Jianli's entourage to collapse on the floor, groaning and pleading for mercy. No, spare us. Spare our lives. Yi Han thus successfully quelled the rebellion caused by Shen Jianli in front of the Ruin family. The reality of the situation far exceeded anyone's expectations. Angered, Yi Han uttered curses. A bunch of useless people who only rely on their leader. Mr. Ruin stepped forward, appearing perplexed. I wonder how we'll face the Li and Yi family after today. Mr. Yi daring to kill both Han Chao Tan and Shen Jian Lai. He reminded, once the Lei and Yi family learns about this, they won't let it slide easily. You and Ling Kao need to be prepared. Yi Han had already made arrangements beforehand, and now he had the time to discuss with Mr. Ruin. Rest assured, the next step is to take Ling Kao to a safe place. No matter how powerful the Lian Yi family is, they won't dare to directly attack a secure location to abduct someone. Ruin Dong La was astonished. A safe place. It was unexpected that Yi Han would bring up those three words. Finally, he couldn't help but ask directly, Mr. Yi, I didn't expect you to know someone from the safe place. Yi Han chuckled lightly in response. What's there that I can't know? I am, in fact, affiliated with the safe place. Hearing this, Mr. Ruin was mostly reassured. Following Yi Han, his granddaughter Ling Kao would be safer than staying with the Ruin family. Mr. Ruan now had some knowledge about Yi Han's identity. The safe place is no joke. Indeed, you are someone from the safe place. Mr. Ruan hastily contemplated in his mind. Shang Jin Lai died in our home. The Lai and Yi family will surely blame everything on our Ruan family. With Yi Han having the support of a safe place, it seems we can only appease him. Mr. Ruan immediately seized the opportunity, hoping to draw Yi Han closer to the Ruan family. He earnestly pleaded, Mr. Yi, this time, troubling you to take Ling Kao to the safe place. We are truly grateful. Yi Han waved his hand gently to signal Mr. Ruan. No rush, old man. Ling Kao is my friend, and when my friend is mistreated by your people, there needs to be a satisfactory explanation. 
Ruin Dong Lai recalled the unfinished internal conflict within his family. Understanding Yi Han's intentions, he didn't hesitate to speak up. Mr. Yi, please forgive us. I will address this matter immediately. Turning his gaze towards Ming He and Ek Su Tong, Ruin Dong Lai declared, Ming He, Xu Tong, both of you hand over the entire business of the Ruin family under your management to the patriarch. Mr. Ruan pointed directly at the two troublemakers of the Ruan family, delivering their punishment. In the future, refrain from causing any more trouble. Stay in the nursing home for the rest of your lives. Thus, all the efforts and financial resources invested in building the Ruan family's fortune were ultimately in vain. Ming He and Keksu Tong had to pay the price for their crimes, their minds now devoid of clarity. They whimpered, What spend our entire lives here? Isn't this like holding us captive? If it weren't for Yi Han, we wouldn't be in this predicament. Arriving at the Li and Yi family at this moment, the atmosphere within the compound was as silent as a temple. The Ruin family's subordinates had sneaked in and delivered the news, immediately startling the Li and Yi family with the sound of the Lady General's clapping hands. She couldn't believe what she heard and questioned her subordinate. What are you saying? Jan Lai was killed by Yi Han. The trembling subordinate recounted what had happened at the Ruin family. At that time, Master Shang brought people to the Ruin family, and no one returned alive. Later, the servants saw someone from the safe place coming to take Ruin Ling Kel. Shortly after that, there was news that Master Shang had been killed. The Lady General seethed with anger. Damn it, this Yi Han. All her meticulously planned schemes were now crumbling because of him. She calculated with frustration. Jin Lai is dead, and Ruin Ling Kel is out of our grasp. If the young master learns about this when he returns, the consequences would be unimaginable. I must figure out a way to snatch Ruin Ling Kao from the safe place. Aware that the safe place was an untouchable entity, it seemed the Lion Yi family still had a connection to a loophole within this organization. After careful consideration, the Lady General picked up her phone, reassuring herself, Su Shen Tang, if you still want to avenge your brother, let's make a deal. After bringing Ru and Ling Kiao to the safe place for temporary refuge, Yi Han exchanged a few words with Hu Feng. Hu Feng, tell me, is there really no issue with leaving Ling Kiao here? Hu Feng casually put his feet up on the table and replied, No issue at all. She always acts like that. Only when there's trouble does she drop the elegant act. Not only is there nothing to worry about, but I also try to tempt you. Hu Feng teased Yi Han, groping his own ample chest. Winking at Yi Han, Hu Feng said, If something really happens to her, I'll compensate you, my dear. Yi Han, fortunate to have mastered the art of holding back, otherwise his nose would have bled all over the floor, replied awkwardly, This matter, um, it's not necessary. While they were talking, a subordinate rushed in and with an urgent tone reported, Captain, just heard news that the people from the Ancient Martial Arts Association are fighting with the Dragon Sect and the Dai Long group. Hu Feng angered, exclaimed, These wretches love causing trouble. Though not sure about the reason, he had to go personally to see what was going on. Hu Feng got up immediately, glancing at Yi Han to gauge his interest. Yi Han, let's go to the martial arts studio right away. We need to see who dares to be so bold. As one situation ended, another began right away and Yi Han couldn't help but wonder. The Ancient Martial Arts Association. Why do they always have to come at a time like this? At the Dragon Sec Martial Arts Studio, the clamor grew louder by the moment. Get out of here. Su Shen Tang had arrived, unleashing blows on Yi Han's subordinates. Even though they were tough members of the team, Su Shen Tang effortlessly dispatched them. The crowd eagerly watched the two powerhouses in action, commenting, Well done, Su. Truly living up to the reputation of the strongest young member of our association. Daring to challenge our martial arts studio. Today, I'll make you all know who the real powerhouse is. Ha 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 ha. Crush these chickens. Sue. Members of the dragon sect were lying defeated. Each one soaked in sweat, sighing with each other. Damn it. Why does the ancient martial arts association inexplicably pick a fight with us? Six years ago, a member of our studio killed someone from their ancient martial arts association. Since then, this grudge has grown. We should be the ones dealing with them. That's why our superiors are turning a blind eye to this. Su Shen Tang looked at the Dragon Sec warriors with disdain. While he acknowledged that this guy was more skilled than them, 
the Dragon Sect members still couldn't understand why they were attacked so forcefully this time. There must be some hidden agenda behind this. Su Shen Tang walked up, sneering, people from the security bureau are truly a disappointment, shameful. The captain retorted, Su Shen Tang, don't be too arrogant. Wait until Yi Han arrives. He will make you kneel down and beg for mercy. Irritated by the threats, Su Shen Tang stepped forward, intending to teach him a lesson. He taunted, you want to make me kneel down for mercy. Let me disable you first. Before he could do anything, a loud voice from outside halted the action. Stop right there. Su Shen Tang glanced and Yi Han had already rushed in front of him, pushing away the dirt-covered foot from his subordinate. Yi Han was visibly angry. This guy dared to cause trouble and even beat up my subordinates like this. He gave him a forceful shove as a warning. Su Shen Tang felt a bit wary. This kid's strength is unexpectedly formidable. I didn't expect him to block my strike. Su Shen Tang, wanting to avoid injury, quickly stepped aside. He became more cautious than before. Yi Han helped his subordinates up and asked, Dai Long, how are you holding up? Dai Long mumbled, Luckily, you blocked that strike. Otherwise, I'm afraid he would have disabled me, and I'd be in the hospital for months. Hu Feng recognized this person from before and stepped forward with displeasure. Su Shen Tang, it was just a normal match. Why did you have to be so ruthless? Seriously, do you think no one can stop you from jeopardizing our safety? Su Shen Tang raised an eyebrow in response. Calling me ruthless, your safety group is the one devoid of humanity. Before Hu Feng could inquire about the hidden meaning behind his words, Su Shen Tang continued, I still remember. Huang Shu, from your safety group, killed my brother in the arena. Upon hearing the name Guang Shu, Hu Feng unexpectedly paused unsure how to respond. She recalled the past incident and commented, It's truly regrettable, but we cannot be held hostage by the past. Hu Feng added, The matter has been thoroughly investigated. It was an unintentional incident and Wang Xiao has already faced appropriate consequences. Why don't you let this go? Su Shen Tang replied angrily, Let it go. Never. He painfully reminded her, Only with Guang Xu's death can my brother's soul find solace. Su Shen Tang's demeanor left Hu Feng feeling perplexed about how to help him. She said, Su Shen Tang, this matter has been lingering for too long. What do you intend by bringing it up again now? Hu Feng decided not to entertain this peculiar temperament any longer. Su Shen Tang raised his face challengingly, a challenge he had been harboring for a long time. It's quite simple. Either you abandon the protection for Ru Wenling Kao, or every day I will visit your safety bureau's doorstep causing trouble. Authority is blind. A little unpredictability in combat is normal. Hearing Su Shen Tang's bold declaration, Yi Han easily deduced his motive. He asked, abandoning protection for Ru and Ling Kao, is that a directive from the Lian Yi family? Despite being exposed, Su Shen Tang smirked and retorted, Hemph, the Lian Yi family has no right to order me. They just fulfilled a favor for me, and I can say I know where Huang Shu is. Yi Han, well versed in external affairs, saw no reason not to deal with these despicable people. Stepping forward, he stated, You seem to have misunderstood. You want to fight, don't you? Well, I'll fight you. Seeing the situation taking a turn for the worse, Hu Feng couldn't help but step in and advise him. She worriedly told Yi Han, Yi Han, don't provoke him. Su Shen Tang is not only a master of the microcosmic orbit, but he also possesses innate supernatural powers and his combat abilities have truly reached the peak of the microcosmic orbit. Dai Long also worried for Yi Han, fearing that this person might cause trouble for the safety bureau in the future. He softly advised Yi Han, Yi Han, don't pay attention to him. Su Shen Tang, this guy is simply insane. Our safety bureau isn't afraid of his threats. Sympathizing with the current sentiment, only Yi Han seemed to understand the deep-rooted origin of this conflict. He wanted to resolve it himself here and now, saying, This is my doing. If it can't be settled today, I won't have a face to continue staying at the safety bureau. Moreover, I'd never seen this guy before. Su Shen Tang's group of followers defended him, constantly cursing Yi Han. This kid dares to say he can defeat our boss. Where does he get that confidence? He looks like a spoiled brat tied to a chicken. Our boss can probably knock him out with just one punch. Our little brother advises you not to seek the arena to die. 
Su Shen Tang, with his love for combat and inherent arrogance, couldn't easily tolerate the challenges from others. Cracking his knuckles, he stepped forward, provokingly declaring, Ha 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 ha, do you really think you can casually block my recent move? So you believe you can defeat me? Su Shen Tang raised his head proudly, pounding his chest. I'll tell you the truth, I haven't even used my true strength yet. Dealing with you only requires one punch. Seems like this guy falls into the category of enemies that Yi Han enjoys taunting. Yi Han found it amusing. He still possessed formidable strength. There was probably no need to engage in a lengthy discussion with this thick-headed guy. Sometimes, you had to throw yourself into the thorns to discover the hidden dangers. Yi Han replied, It's a shame. My true strength is fifty times what it was just now. His eyes flashed with a peculiar cold fierceness. Yi Han darted forward like lightning, already in front of Su Shen Tang. Before he could react, Su Shen Tang exclaimed, What the hell? Yi Han delivered a powerful punch, shouting, Kill. It seemed like today, Su Shen Tang was going to have a hard time dealing with Yi Han. Su Shen Tang managed to regain some composure and aim the punch at Yi Han, saying, Yi Han, I don't believe you're that strong, block this. He then unleashed his own powerful punch. The two punches collided with a loud crash. Onlookers could feel the impact from the two raging bulls. Yi Han's strength was overwhelming, just as he claimed. Unfortunately, Su Shen Tang's disbelief cost him. His hand was shattered by the force. Su Shen Tang slammed hard into the wall with a loud crash, blood spurting out as if he had bitten into a ripe fruit. The blow was cunning and treacherous, causing not instant death but severe and crippling injuries. His gang of followers cried out in disbelief. Can't believe Su Shen Tang lost. Am I seeing things? Su, getting knocked out by a single punch? Are we watching a superhero or something? This isn't a comic. It's too sensational. The safety bureau thugs cheered and expressed their appreciation for Yi Han's strike. We knew Yi Han could win for sure. He's the face of our safety bureau, defeating Su Shen Tang with one punch. Yi Han is truly formidable. Su Shen Tang, this is the genius of the Ancient Martial Arts Association, a true waste. The schemers from the Ancient Martial Arts Association hurriedly approached to help Su Shen Tang, patting his face and doing all sorts of things to help him get up. Su, it's okay. Quickly call the doctor. Su, wake up. How could you lose so quickly? Behind all the schemes, Wai Ji, the cunning one, stood. Having received arrangements from the Lian Yi family, he thought to himself, indeed as expected. Su Shen Tang is not a match for Yi Han. Once my poison takes effect, Su Shen Tang will meet the same fate as his brother, an unexpected death. Once Su Shen Tang is gone, Yi Han will find it difficult to escape responsibility. Then, we'll see how his military advisor handles the aftermath. At this moment, the strategist Juge of the Lei and Yi clan is patiently awaiting the opportune moment. She contemplates. The battle on the side of the ancient martial arts alliance seems about to commence, and on our side, we must consider bringing Ru Wen Ling Keo back. A subordinate approaches and reports. Strategist, we have investigated the room where Ru Wen Ling Keo is staying. It is surrounded by members of the Security Bureau. Shall we launch a direct attack to seize him? Zhuge, who had devised the cunning plan beforehand, glances at Ling Kao on the other side and replies, No need for such complications. He's just a girl. I can handle it alone. Don't assume Ru and Ling Kao would rather die than be given to the young master. Instead, think that she is pragmatic. She will immediately submit and come to meet me if pressured. Having grasped the strategist Zhuge's intentions, the subordinate asks quietly, Strategist, is the weakness you mentioned related to Ru Wenling Kyo's family? Zhu shakes her head and responds, No, Ru Wenling Kyo's true weakness is Yi Han. In a short period, this enigmatic female strategist has pinpointed the crux of the matter. Zhu takes out her phone and sends a message to Ling Kyo's number. Ru Wenling Kyo, Yi Han's enmity with the Li and Yi clan will not end well. It can be said that Yi Han is implicated because of you. If you don't want him to face trouble, it's better to distance yourself from him. There is a thing called letting go in love. Zhu Jid's cunning plan immediately takes effect. Ling Kao, always worried about Yi Han, can't bear it when she receives the news, feeling as if her heart is being torn apart. For Yi Han, I am a burden. Indeed, without me, how could Yi Han have offended the Lian Yi clan? 
He doesn't need to involve himself to protect me. Ling Kiao understands the crux of the matter, realizing that the love she always hoped for brings suffering to Yi Han. Therefore, she decides to let go. Ling Kiao, in pain, drops the phone and murmurs. Zhuge is right. Perhaps letting go of myself is the best choice. On Ling Kyo's phone, there is a message sent to Yi Han. Vi Han, I'm sorry. Back in the safety bureau's martial arts hall, the phone rings. Yi Han wonders, who would message me at this time? Before he can check, someone from the ancient martial arts faction shouts, It's not good. Sud's heartbeat has stopped. The commotion makes Yi Han unable to stay still. He rushes to where Su Shen Tang is in pain. Seeing his disciples desperately trying to save him, someone points at Yi Han and says, This is bad. Yi Han deliberately killed Su. We can't let him go. Hu Fang and his comrades also hurriedly approached. They were surprised to hear the news. What? Su Shen Tang is about to die. A few years ago, Wang Shu killed Su Shen Tang's brother. Is history repeating itself? Su Shen Tang is dying. Our safety bureau may find it hard to escape responsibility this time. Yi Han, you're in deep trouble too. Yi Han suspects foul play in this matter. From one incident to another, spiraling out of control. His instincts suggest, not right. The power I just exerted only released a fraction of my martial force. It's absolutely impossible for it to have taken Su Shen Tang's life. Someone might be deliberately framing me. With no time to ponder the injustice, Yi Han swiftly jumps to Su Shen Tang's side. He says, Move away quickly. I am a doctor. Let me check Su Shen Tang's condition. Maybe I can save him in time. The martial arts disciples, of course, have reasons to block Yi Han. They angrily scold him. Yi Han, if you're truly afraid of dying today, the ancient martial arts association won't spare you. We see through your pitiful act. Yi Han cannot be allowed to slip through. We won't let him sneakily get away with it. Yi Han, using calm words, seems unable to quell the raging fire at the moment. He erupts in anger, forcefully pushing everyone away and shouting, Get out of my way. Yi Han, amidst the chaos, disrupts their speech. If I wanted to kill him, why would I resort to tricks behind your backs? Can your bunch of trash even stop me? Without any delay, Yi Han immediately activates the Yin Yang Divine Eyes peering into Su Shen Tang's body. The poison is spreading throughout his body, but fortunately, it hasn't reached his heart. Yi Han quickly realizes, poisoned. It seems the safety bureau was sabotaged back then. The cunning Wei Ji stands at a distance, looking at Yi Han with a smug expression. This poison is a family heirloom, exclusive to the Lian Yi clan, colorless and odorless. I didn't think Yi Han could detect it. It's too late now. Ha ha ha. Concerned, Hu Fang steps forward and sees Yi Han deeply engrossed. She softly asks, Yi Han, did you find anything? Yi Han has obtained substantial evidence and responds to Hu Fang with seriousness. This young man was deliberately poisoned. The martial arts gathering reacts with skepticism and disbelief. They retort, Yi Han, are you saying Su was poisoned? Is this true? Yi Han, don't talk nonsense. You claim our Su was poisoned. Then bring out the evidence. Yes, show us the evidence. Who knows if you are trying to intentionally avoid responsibility? Yi Han knows he can't speak reason to this ignorant crowd. He quickly responds, Hold on, open your dog eyes wide, and take a good look. Saying that, Yi Han swiftly moves to three acupuncture points containing spiritual energy, inserting the needles directly into Su Shen Tang's chest in a triangular pattern to block the poison from spreading into the bloodstream. Hu Feng, astonished, had witnessed Yi Han's medical skills before, but never ceased to be amazed. Yi Han's techniques are becoming more formidable by the day. After a while, the spiritual energy within the needles begins to permeate Su Shen Tang's body, aiding in detoxification. Su Shen Tang lets out a loud exhale, his neck veins protruding as a dark, poisonous clot of blood emerges, splattering on the floor with a hissing sound. The martial arts crowd is shocked, murmuring to each other, this, Su really was poisoned. Su Shen Tang, right after dueling with Yi Han, gets poisoned. Could someone intentionally be provoking and dividing the safety bureau and the ancient martial arts association? Yi Han, if you detected that Su was poisoned, quickly lend a hand to save him. If you can't save him, then whatever you say, no one will believe. 
the provocateurs challenging Yi Han are now silent, and from behind them, only Wei Ji is uneasy. What is going on here? This poison is the family heirloom of the Li and Yi clan. How can Yi Han detect it so easily? After hearing the foolish words of the crowd, Yi Han feels that these idiots are only good for being meatheads and lack any real thought. He responds, Earlier, you accused me of fabricating the story about Su Shen Tang being poisoned, and now you're asking me to save him. Do you really see me as someone so easily manipulated? Yi Han stands with crossed arms, confident in his own approach. He intends to make these fools acknowledge him. He says, Think about it. Su Shen Tang is now my opponent. Why should I bother saving him? The previously loud crowd suddenly falls silent like a group of kittens. They whisper to each other. This Yi Han, how can he say that? No, Su is in a critical situation. We must find a way to get Yi Han to intervene and save him. Not waiting for them to hesitate further, Yi Han claps his hands and continues. I've proven that Su Shen Tang was poisoned. The rest is none of my concern. Now, whether he lives or dies, your ancient martial arts association can figure it out yourselves. Hu Feng, sensing something unusual in Yi Han's behavior, steps forward and gently advises. Yi Han, don't let emotions override reason. If Su Shen Tang truly dies here, our safety bureau will undoubtedly face trouble. Consider Ru Wen's situation. Moreover, Su Shen Tang was poisoned right after dueling with you. There is definitely a conspiracy here. If he really dies here, the mastermind behind all this might achieve their goal. Yi Han patiently leans over to Hu Feng and explains to her, Don't rush, Hu Feng. If we take the initiative, others won't appreciate it. Hu Feng, not yet understanding his intention, asks, Yi Han, what do you mean? As soon as he finishes speaking, Hu Feng sees the entire martial arts community approaching and pleads, Sir Yi, just now it was our failure to distinguish right from wrong. Please lend a hand to save Mr. Su. Sir Yi, it's all our fault. As long as you can save Mr. Su, we are willing to do whatever you ask. Sir Yi, as long as you help Mr. Su, our martial arts community will be grateful to you. Hu Feng, now understanding Yi Han's hinted plan, is astonished by Yi Han's foresight. She realizes, so Yi Han had already planned for this. These people would surely beg for help. Yi Han, not one to seek the spotlight, sees that an understanding has been reached and responds. Seeing your acknowledgement of the mistake and willingness to rectify it, consider it my contribution this time. While purchasing medical supplies for their martial arts association to facilitate Yi Han in treating Su, Yi Ji can't sit still. He approaches closely to observe, cursing Yi Han. Even if you detect the poisoning, without the antidote from the Lian Yi clan, no one can save him. Yi Han, later I'll see how you can escape from this. Yi Han confidently employs his medical skills to treat Su Shen Tang. He says, Su Shen Tang, next I will help you neutralize the poison. It might be a bit painful, but you must endure without making a sound. In his mind, Yi Han carefully thinks, the poison that Su Shen Tang was exposed to is relatively complex, but with my yin yang divine eyes, detoxifying shouldn't be difficult. I just need to find a way to force the person behind this to reveal themselves. Su Shen Tang, with a strained expression, raises his head and responds, As a man, a little pain is nothing to endure. Yi Han, just go ahead. I will never forget this favor. As Su Shen Tang finishes speaking, Yi Han swiftly moves with a fierce technique. Hearing him remain calm, Yi Han is somewhat less merciful. Su Shen Tang lets out a groan, then spits out a mouthful of poisonous blood like a fountain. Yi Han senses something amiss. Suddenly, Su Shen Tang collapses to the ground, writhing and crying out in pain. Oh my god, it hurts, it hurts to death. Yi Han is somewhat disappointed with his earlier declaration and the reality of the situation. He asks, are you even considered a man? His fellow martial arts peers also feel a loss of face, saying, Su Shen Tang, you change your stance too quickly. Is this the person who claims to have more courage than others? Ultimately, recovery is what matters. Amidst the joy of everyone in the room, one person remains unable to be happy. Wei Ji. He thinks, can Yi Han really cure Su Shen Tang? This seems impossible. Suddenly, in the midst of the laughter, Su Shen Tang chokes, spits out a mouthful of blood, and collapses to the ground. His eyes roll back white, 
as if he has died on the spot. The martial arts peers rush over, shouting, Sue, how are you? Something's wrong. Sue's pulse has stopped. Yi Han, what's happening? They question Yi Han anxiously, and he walks over with a sigh of disappointment, saying, I tried my best, but the poison is too strong. That's why. In his heart, Yi Han comes up with another cunning plan. I'll seize the opportunity to temporarily box Su Shen Tang's pulse, making him appear dead for a few minutes. This way, I might lure the person behind this incident to reveal themselves. The martial arts community, initially teasing and joking about the situation, is now stunned. Doubts arise among them. Lai Han, the rescue has failed. How should we interpret this? Ultimately, if it's not because Yi Han poisoned him, Su Shen Tang's death must be attributed to his ill fate. Isn't that right? If Yi Han fails to cure and causes Su Shen Tang's death, what then? Dai Long, fearing potential uncertainties with Shen Tang, approached Tu Feng and whispered, Captain, the situation has become too noisy. It can't be hidden any longer. Should we inform the higher-ups? However, Hu Feng seemed to have a different perspective from Yi Han. She shook her head and replied, Not urgent. Let's see how things unfold. Observing Yi Han's demeanor, she felt something completely different from what she had seen in him before. Lai Han, with your exceptional skills, and considering your track record, there's no way you would fail this time. Perhaps he has another plan in mind. When Su Shen Tang collapsed, Yi Ji, feeling triumphant, raised his chest proudly and exclaimed, I thought Yi Han was formidable, but he still couldn't save Su Shen Tang. Next, let's see how I perform in this act. Without hesitation, Yi Ji immediately unfolded the script he had prepared for Yi Han. With a smirking face, he loudly declared, I knew this guy from the Jia Fire Department was no good. He is a member of the Safety Bureau. How could he be devoted to saving our martial arts genius? Perhaps Su Shen Tang could still be saved but he was the one who caused her death. Yi Han, feeling something amiss, stepped forward to intervene. He asked, Who are you, and how do you know that I deliberately caused Su Shen Tang's death? In his thoughts, Yi Han pondered. So quick to add seasoning to the story, they must be eager to take action. Yi Ji pretended to be angry at Yi Han's indifferent attitude. He shouted loudly, I am Su Shen Tang's nutritionist, and have some medical knowledge. Just now, your treatment method was something I have never encountered. I even suspected the toxin in Su Shen Tang's body was due to the needle you used earlier to stab her. Yi Han, increasingly amused by Yi Jie's theatrical performance, clapped his hands approvingly. Ha ha, what logical speculation. So let me guess a bit too. You are not only Su Shen Tang's nutritionist, but also the nutritionist for her brother, right? Yi Ji, hearing these words like a lightning strike, suddenly froze as if acupunctured. His face gradually turned pale, and he stammered, How? How do you know about that? Yi Han firmly grabbed his hand, forcing Yi Ji to reveal a terrified pale face. Yi Han's eyes showed a deep understanding of his secrets as he said, If not, how could both Su Shen Tang and her brother be poisoned with the same toxin? The members of the martial arts community had different opinions, arguing vehemently. Some supported Yi Ji, while others believed Yi Han's words. Yi Han, Claiming that Su Shen Tang was poisoned by Yi Ji is baseless. Yi Ji has been a nutritionist in the Shang family for over 20 years. Yi Han, how can you assert it so confidently? Yi Ji, as a nutritionist, would carefully consider before resorting to poisoning. Yi Ji's mind was now in disarray, lacking clarity. He shouted at Yi Han, Yi Han, your words are nonsensical. How could I poison both siblings of the Shang family? I've been serving the Sheng family for over 20 years, with dedication and hardship. I suspect that you, fearing retaliation after causing Su Shen Tang's death, are framing me, aren't you? Yi Han knew that bringing Yi Ji to a legal court might not be feasible yet. He glanced at Su Shen Tang's body and signaled, You're quite troublesome. Su Shen Tang, you're not dead yet. Considering the time, Su Shen Tang might be waking up soon. A few seconds later, just as Yi Han predicted, Su Shen Tang slowly regained consciousness. His head was spinning, and he groggily exclaimed, Oh my, what happened to me just now? Gradually recalling the events, he also felt as if a divine force had healed him. Full of vitality, he exclaimed, Wait, I feel much better now. The chest pain is gone, and I think I'm completely fine. 
Wai Ji couldn't believe his eyes. Su Shen Tang was clearly dead. How can this be a deception? Frustrated, he angrily exclaimed. What the hell? This is impossible. Without the antidote from the Lian Yi family, how could you save him? Suddenly, he felt that something was not just slightly wrong, but completely off. He hastily closed his mouth, realizing, it's over. The truth is as clear as black and white. Yi Han, living up to his reputation as the unparalleled master of magical calculations, smoothly led the prey into the trap. He addressed everyone, saying, well, well, everyone heard it, right? He didn't confess voluntarily. Su Shen Tang, upon learning this harsh truth, couldn't believe that they harbored a poisonous snake within their ranks. He approached with a fierce aura. Despicable Wei Ji, I trusted you, and you dared to poison both me and my brother. At this point, Wei Ji's legs and arms trembled, unable to stand firm. He crawled to the ground, crying and pleading. This is the conspiracy of the Lian Yi family. I was forced. The Lian Yi family feared that the alliance between the ancient martial arts society and the safety bureau would threaten their position. They deliberately sowed discord between the two sides. They gave me the poison. If I didn't comply, I would die. Shen Tang, please have mercy. I've been helping you for so many years. Forgive me this time. Someone like Su Shen Tang would never forgive a traitor, let alone someone who was directly responsible for his brother's death. He fiercely punched Wei Ji's face in anger and shouted, Mercy, go to hell. If today, Su Shen Tang had not encountered Yi Han, perhaps he would have reunited with his brother without ever knowing the identity of the one who killed him. Wei Ji succumbed to the fatal blow, rolling over and dying. The martial arts community found it hard to believe the stark truth before them. Wei Ji, serving the Su Shen Tang family for so many years, unexpectedly turned out to be the one poisoning them. Truly knowing someone's face doesn't mean knowing their heart. Su Shen Tang's brother was also killed by Wai Ji's poison. This exposes our long-standing suspicion of the safety bureau. It's fortunate we have Yi Han. Otherwise, we would continue to be deceived like fools by that Dan Lian Yi family. Su Shen Tang appreciated Yi Han's righteous actions, not only saving his life, but also helping him uncover the true culprit behind his brother's death. He stepped forward and spoke, Sir Yi, this time you not only saved my life, but also helped me find the real murderer who killed my brother. In gratitude, from now on, anything you would trust to me and the ancient martial arts society, we will handle without hesitation, even if it means facing danger or challenges. Yi Han, in this way, completely won the hearts of the martial arts community. He sighed lightly and replied, there's no need for that. I saved you out of respect for Hu Feng. Reviewing the situation, Yi Han pointed towards the Safety Bureau's Martial Arts Association, signaling to Su Shen Tang. If you're truly sincere and want to express your gratitude, you should also apologize to all the members of the Safety Bureau. Over the past few years, they've been wrongly accused. Feeling that Yi Han was right, Su Shen Tang nodded in agreement, quickly approaching Hu Feng's group to offer his apologies. Mr. Yi, you are absolutely correct. Brothers from the Safety Bureau, please listen to me. For the past few years, I have been blind and acted improperly, causing trouble for everyone. Su Shen Tang has been foolish and misguided. I sincerely apologize to all of you here. Upon hearing this, the entire ancient martial arts society simultaneously bowed their heads to apologize. Brothers of the Safety Bureau, the ancient martial arts society offers our sincere apologies to you all right here. After years of enmity, the ancient martial arts society and the safety bureau, like cats and dogs, now became as close as brothers. Safety bureau members shook hands with their martial arts counterparts, comforting each other. No blame on you. It's all the mischief caused by those despicable Lian Yi. Misunderstandings have been resolved. That's what matters. We will always be brothers. When you have time, let's practice martial arts together. Yi Han approached Su Shen Tang patting his shoulder, reminiscing about the past. Su Shen Tang, you really packed a punch there earlier. Su Shen Tang, feeling a bit embarrassed, scratched his head and laughed. Hu Fang joyfully ran up to embrace Yi Han, celebrating the significant victory. Yi Han, I never expected you to step in and resolve the long-standing conflicts between us and the ancient martial arts society. Back then, when I persuaded you to join the safety bureau, it was the wisest decision in my life. Rest assured, 
This time, I will surely express my gratitude to you emotionally. Understanding her playful intentions, Yi Han waved his hand in response. I'm not really into those things. If it weren't for outsiders like Ru and Ling Kao, the safety bureau would still ensure her safety. Hu Feng pouted and teased. You treat Ru and Ling Kao so well. I'm even jealous. Yi Han smiled back. If you were in a situation like Ru and Ling Kao, I would certainly help you the same way. After all, we are all friends. Hu Feng, comforted by his words, continued. Well, that's good to know. Just relax. I will help you with Ru and Ling Kao's matter. Just as they finished their conversation about Ru and Ling Kao, an unexpected person rushed to the safety bureau headquarters, urgently reporting, Captain Hu Feng, Yi Han, something's wrong. Ru and Ling Kao, she's gone. The two of them, who had just discussed Ru and Ling Kao's safety, turned in shock, exclaiming, What the hell? Yi Han couldn't fathom the motive behind Ling Kao's disappearance. He questioned, Ling Kao, wasn't she still inside the safety bureau? How did she suddenly disappear? Has the Lan Yi family taken her away? The subordinate replied, No, we've investigated thoroughly. There are no signs of struggle or conflict in Ru Wen Ling Kyo's room. It seems like she left willingly. Yi Han appeared surprised, as if something flashed in his mind at that moment. Voluntarily leaving. Wait, that message. He quickly took out his phone to check, and as expected, it was not beyond his expectations. Yi Han read the mysterious apology message from Ling Kao. Su Shen Tang and Hu Feng, concerned, spoke to Yi Han. Yi Han, don't worry. I'll immediately dispatch our people from the safety bureau to find Ling Kao for you. Mr. Gi, our ancient martial arts society will do our best to help. After a brief silence, Yi Han, after pondering, finally understood everything. He quietly responded to everyone. No need to search. I already know where Ru and Ling Kao has gone. Ling Kao, why would you be so foolish? With a headache, he thought silently in his heart. At this moment, Inside the Juge compound, Ling Kao had come here following the message from the girl strategist of the Lian Yi family. As she was about to leave, Juge's voice rang out, Ruan Ling Kao, you did indeed choose to come here. Angry, Ling Kao stepped forward, slamming her hand on the table. She glared at Juge and yelled, If I've come here, will you release Yi Han? Juge nodded in agreement, of course. Juge skillfully whispered into Ling Kao's ear, if you obediently follow my instructions, I guarantee not to harm a single hair on Yi Han's head. Zhuge, naturally cunning, finally managed to trap Ling Kao. Ling Kao turned away and responded with a raised eyebrow. Fine, I hope you can do what you say. Otherwise, I will marry Lian Yi Shi Tan. Approaching her subordinate, Zhuge inquired, Is the wedding ceremony ready? If everything is prepared, remember to send a portion of the gift to the security bureau. Generally speaking, the more people, the merrier the occasion. The subordinate saluted, Yes, I will take care of it immediately. Back at the security bureau, Hu Feng's office was in turmoil due to Ling Kyo's situation. Hu Feng received a provocative gift from the Li and Yi family. Adding to her frustration, she scolded, The wedding invitation is for the marriage ceremony between Li and Yi, Shi Tian, and Ru and Ling Kyo, scheduled for three days from now. Hu Feng asked Yi Han for his opinion. This phone belongs to Ling Kao. According to the message content inside, Ru and Ling Kao is being threatened by Zhuge. Do you want to take a look? Yi Han replied quietly, No need. Ru and Ling Kao wants to keep me out of it, so he went to the Li and Yi family on his own. I'm right, aren't I? Thinking of Ling Kao's situation, Yi Han sighed. This foolish girl has put in so much effort to resist, but in the end, she softened at the last minute. Hu Feng well aware of the influence of the Li and Yi family, advised Yi Han. Li Han, Ru and Ling Kyo's thoughts are not surprising. Li and Yi, Shi Tian is too powerful. I heard he has reached the peak of microcosmic orbit. However, due to cultivating a peculiar technique, he restrained himself from breaking through for five years. Three years ago, he fought against a master in the Triple Heaven Realm, exchanging over a hundred moves without a clear winner. That's why he's known as the number one in the microcosmic orbit. Yi Han interrupted Hu Feng's, saying, All right, I know. Disliking hearing about achievements, Yi Han had thought thoroughly about his upcoming plan. He had to intervene for Ru and Ling Kao once again. 
He signaled to Hu Feng, prepare a cultivation room for me. I need to break through. Call me three days later. Hu Feng smirked to herself, thinking, Ye Han, I know you won't leave Ru and Ling Kao without worrying. Well, you chose to leave, Wu said you belong to the security bureau. At most, I'll take a risk with you. It's been a long time since anything exciting happened. Consider this a little spice to make life less dull. Hu Feng picked up the phone and called Shan Hai City. Hello, is this Zhao Hao Tian? Yi Han from Jing Cheng is facing some trouble. It might be necessary for you guys to come over. Back at the Lian Yi residence, Zhu and a crowd of subordinates were waiting at the gate where Lian Yi Shi Tian had been in seclusion for a long time. They eagerly awaited their master's appearance. Lian Yi Shi Tian stepped out, surrounded by a powerful aura emanating from his body. His realm had truly broken through remarkably. As the outstanding figure of Baifang, he spoke, The foundation is almost complete, and the golden layer is about to reach perfection. Zhuge and her subordinates simultaneously knelt down to pay respects. Congratulations to the young master for the breakthrough. Just as they met, Lian Yi Shi Tian eagerly asked, Has Ruin Ling Kao returned? Zhuge calmly replied, Young master, Ruin Ling Kao is already waiting in the mansion. Also, the wedding day is set for three days from now. Some influential forces in Baifang have been gradually invited to attend. Lian Yi, Shi Tian expressed satisfaction and commanded, Very well. Three days from now, under the pretext of the wedding ceremony, I will once again rectify the martial world of Baifang, placing the Lian Yi family back on the throne. Huge, the military strategist, joyfully responded, Young master, you are truly majestic. She had more news to report to her master, but Lian Yi Shi Tian spoke up. Furthermore, the shadow guards have informed me about Yi Han's situation. I will personally handle him. Han Chao Tian and Shang Jin Lai died because of your negligence. Accept the punishment. And if there is a next time, you can jump into the molten abyss yourself. Juge dared not contradict and replied, Thank you for your mercy, young master. Lian Yi Shi Tian, excitedly thinking about Yi Han, raised his voice. Yi Han, being able to kill Mo Dong Tian Guang shows some courage. Let's see if you can withstand a few moves from me. Three days later, at the Lian Yi family mansion, fireworks adorned the sky as guests from all over Baifang gathered to celebrate the union of Lian Yi's young master. Bai Yan Qiu from Kexai Bai is here, the head of the Su Chang, He Martial Arts Association is here, and the head of the Baifang Sword Dao Association, Zhang Bai Yuan is here. Hu Feng's group was also present, and Su Shen Tang eagerly inquired, Captain Hu Feng, Mr. Yi, when will Yi Han arrive today? Hu Feng, nonchalantly swaying, replied, I informed him before, but he is still in seclusion. I don't know if he'll make it on time. Dai Long chuckled mischievously. The whole Jing Cheng now knows about Yi Han and Ru Wenling Kao. It's spreading that Yi Han has triggered the jealousy of Lian Yi Shi Tian. Ha ha ha. Hu Feng, hearing her subordinates teasing, reminded, All right, enough nonsense. Knowing the intentions beforehand, I want everyone to stay vigilant. The solemn voice of the master of ceremonies announced, The bride and groom, please enter. Lian Yi Shi Tian, with Ling Kao by his side, stepped forward in front of everyone. However, it was noticeable that Ling Kao's face bore a gloomy sadness. Lion Yi Shi Tan, given the opportunity to display his prestige, laughed heartily and greeted the guests. Thank you all for coming today to attend the wedding. Lion Yi expresses gratitude here. The esteemed guests flattered him. Being able to participate in the wedding of young master Lion Yi is our honor. Wishing young master Lion Yi and Miss Ruin Ling Kao a hundred years of happiness and the early birth of a son. The bride is truly beautiful and young master Lian Yi is truly fortunate. In the lively atmosphere of the wedding, Ruin Ling Kao felt strangely out of place. She looked around, slightly disoriented, muttering to herself, Lai Han, he hasn't arrived yet, it's fine if he doesn't. Is this not what I wished for? Zhuge, after appearing in public following a day of recovery, still bore the marks of her injuries on her face. Lian Yi, Shi Tian had arranged a grand reception for Yi Han. And now Juge was anxiously muttering, Yi Han, why hasn't he come? This young man is fortunate to escape a calamity like this. The radiant master of ceremonies announced, 
the auspicious moment has arrived. I seek permission to declare the commencement of the wedding ceremony. Suddenly, a loud shout interrupted. Wait. The unexpected shout stunned everyone into silence, bewildered by what was happening. Lion Yi Shi Tian, Juge, Ru and Ling Kao, Hu Feng, all eyes turned towards the source of the commotion. The long-awaited figures seemed to have finally appeared. Indeed, Yi Han, accompanied by 500 men, had arrived in full force to attend the wedding ceremony of the renowned Bai Fang young master, Lion Yi Shi Tian. Yi Han spoke up. Young master Lion Yi, I have cast a divination from Miss Ruan, and your two destinies are incompatible with conflicting fates. I came here today to do something good for both of you. The wedding guests could not fathom who dared to disrupt Li and Yi Shi Tan's wedding ceremony. Clearly, they don't want to live anymore. They hurled curses, questioning, Who is this troublemaker? Where did they come from, daring to cause chaos at young master Lian Yi's wedding? You probably don't know. That brat is Yi Han. Rumored to have a mysterious connection with Lian Yi Shi Tan's yet-to-be-married wife. Lian Yi Shi Tian is about to go crazy. There's a good show to watch. Ru and Ling Kao, radiant in her wedding gown, finally awaited Yi Han's appearance. She joyfully called out to him, Yi Han. Before she could say more, Lian Yi Shi Tian, the young master and elder brother, stepped forward, his face stern. He gruffly asked, Are you Yi Han? You came just in time, sparing me the trouble of sending someone to find you later. According to his plan, the prearranged scheme began to unfold. He loudly commanded, Shadow guards, Seal off the main hall for me. The large doors of the hall suddenly slammed shut, completely catching the Yi Han team off guard. However, he and his comrades had mentally prepared for this. The assassins from the Li and Yi family swiftly surrounded Yi Han's group, creating chaos and discussions among the bewildered guests witnessing the absurdity in the wedding. These are the elite forces trained by the Li and Yi family for so many years. Rumor has it that they are all at the peak of their respective realms having mastered various techniques. Unexpectedly, Liam Yi Shi Tian, in dealing with Yi Han, mobilized his entire group of shadow guards. Yi Han truly had no idea of the scale. Unexpectedly, for one woman, he willingly walked into the lion's den. Zhao Hao Tian approached, whispering Yi Han about the battle plan. Yi Han, after a while, this shadow guard team will be under our control in the fight. You focus on your tasks. Yi Han, with his comrades standing shoulder to shoulder, felt like a tiger with added wings, but it seemed he was still considering an alternative approach. He smiled faintly and replied, No rush. Unfolding a battlefield like this, Lion Yi Shi Tian not only wants to deal with us. Bai Yan Q from Kexai Bai stepped forward and greeted Lian Yi Shi Tian. Young Master Lion Yi, how you want to handle Yi Han is none of my concern. Perhaps have some shadow guards. Step aside, and we can leave, allowing you to do whatever you wish. Bai Yanqiu was unaware of the machinations behind the Lian Yi family's expansion. Seeing this, Lian Yi Shi Tan publicly revealed it to everyone. Ha ha, dealing with Yi Han is just a side matter. Today, the real target is all of you. Didn't you realize that? Bai Yanqiu was taken aback, finding Lian Yi Shi Tan's words hard to believe. Some around him even showed horror. Bai Yanqiu asked hesitantly, What? Young Master Lian Yi, what do you mean by that? Lian Yi, Shi Tian had been waiting for this moment for many years, and the future of the Lian Yi family was determined by today's actions. He erupted in anger, tearing his clothes to shreds. It means today, I will unify the entire martial world of Bai Fang Huaxia. Those who resist will have only one path, death. All the forces, big and small gangs in Bai Fang, erupted into chaos, simultaneously in the hall, creating a daring commotion, caused by the audacious Lian Yi Shi Tian. He looked disdainfully at the sky, and said, I told you, Lian Yi Shi Tian, why did he invite so many people to his wedding today? It turns out there was a premeditated purpose. Rest assured, today Bai Yan Chu, Zhang Bai Yuan, Su Chang, he are all present here. With these old-timers, Lion Yi, Shi Tian won't have a chance to achieve his goal. This Lion Yi, Shi Tian is just too arrogant. Hearing the criticisms from the crowd, Lion Yi, Shi Tian boldly pointed and challenged Bai Yanshu, Zhang Bai Yuan, 
Su Chong He, all of you come forward, this is your only chance to act. His aura was imposing, making the elder leaders choke with anger. Bai Yan Chu, the head elder, couldn't keep his composure and was the first to rush forward, yelling directly at Lei Yi, a junior dares to be arrogant. Take my strongest strike. Seeing Bai Yan Chu charging, the other elders immediately jumped in to assist. John Bai Yuan brandished his sword with the slogan Smiling Wind 13 Swords. Following closely behind was the martial artist Su Changi, renowned for the ancient and secretive Su family technique, the Eight Trigrams Fist. All three exerted their full force and attacked Lian Yi Shi Tan, hoping to put an end to the young man who seemed ignorant of his limitations. However, Lion Yi Shi Tan unexpectedly used an extraordinary skill called the Body of Golden Needle Array. A strange spiritual array appeared, forcefully repelling the techniques of the three elders. Moreover, it shocked them with a powerful force that left their entire bodies paralyzed. The onlookers were astonished and shocked at this scene. The Body of Golden Needle Array Lion Yi Shi Tan unexpectedly has mastered this divine technique, reaching the level of invincibility. Even the leaders of the three major alliance associations are not opponents for Lian Yi Shi Tian. What should we do now? Damn it, do we really have to submit to Lian Yi Shi Tian today? I can't accept this. After killing the three prominent figures in the martial world of Baifang, Lian Yi Shi Tian wasn't surprised that no one dared to oppose or challenge him further. Without hesitation, he stepped forward and declared, From now on, under the martial way of Baifang, I am the master. Anyone who agrees will prosper, and anyone who opposes will perish. The remaining crowd fell into silence, not daring to make a sound. They knew that any slight mistake could mean their demise under the tyranny of Lian Yi, unyielding, yet helpless. However, just a moment later, in the stillness of the space, Yi Han boldly stepped forward, raising his hand and shouting loudly, I oppose. The people in the crowd gasped in astonishment. Lian Yi Shi Tian saw Yi Han boldly step forward as if walking through an empty space. He scornfully remarked, Li Han, I initially intended to deal with the scum from your family, but now you dare to step forward, truly of despicable existence. Ru and Ling Kao, concerned for Yi Han, rushed forward from behind. She spoke loudly, Li and Yi Shi Tian, I have agreed to marry you. Please spare Yi Han for my sake. Unaware that in the eyes of Lian Yi Shi Tian, there was never a lady, only a slave obedient to his orders, she pleaded, Ru and Ling Kao, you overestimate yourself. In my eyes, you are nothing more than a tool for cultivation. Apart from that, you hold no other value. Feeling blatantly insulted, Ling Kao, furious, lunged forward to strike him. Lian Yi Shi Tan, you are despicable, and I will confront you with my life. Lian Yi Shi Tan, about to retaliate, suddenly felt Yi Han gripping his hand like a gust of wind. Yi Han's voice, cold and full of hostility, cut through the tension. The one who should leave is you. In the midst of Ling Keo's fear, she witnessed Yi Han standing right in front of her. Lian Yi, Shi Tian was quite surprised by Yi Han's skills, saying, unexpectedly, you have some courage. But wanting to be a hero and save the beauty with just a bit of courage, you seem a bit too confident in yourself. It seems this guy even took some extra literature classes while he was still in mourning. Annoyed by his blabbering, Yi Han gave him a solid smack across the face. Stop talking nonsense. Lion Yi, Shi Tian let out a groan like a wounded bull, writhing in pain as he fell freely to the ground, his giant body collapsing. Ru and Ling Kao covered her mouth in astonishment. Yi Han. Yi Han effortlessly twisted his wrist, pointing at the bewildered Lion Yi. Those who talk too much are often losers. You seem to be unfamiliar with this principle. The Baifang martial artists who were scared of Lian Yi just a while ago, now cheered for Yi Han after seeing him easily defeat Lian Yi. We're not blind. Yi Han, I never thought one punch could knock down Lian Yi so easily. Although Yi Han's strike might be seen as a surprise attack, knocking down Lian Yi, Shi Tan proves that Yi Han has enough strength to challenge Lian Yi. Yi Han, keep it up. We don't want to submit to Lian Yi. Zhuge, infuriated, approached cursing. Ye Han, I didn't expect you to dare sneak attack the young master. What are you waiting for? Ye Han's bodyguards. Kill Ye Han immediately, without any reservations. I'll bear the consequences later. 
she eagerly aimed to gain favor with the young master. As long as I can kill Yi Han and help the young master's plan succeed today, I'll surely regain the young master's trust once again. Li and Yi family's bodyguards rushed forward with their swords as if wanting to tear Yi Han apart. In the midst of this chaos, Yi Han remained calm and composed. The audience cheered for Yi Han's composure and good looks. Wang Han, let us handle them. Yi Han, focus on dealing with Lei and Yi Shi Tian. The key to victory or defeat lies in you. Don't worry about us. Before Yi Han had to intervene, his 500 companions swiftly dealt with the renowned bodyguards, turning out to be nothing more than a group of weaklings. Shuj, shocked by the scene, stood as if rooted to the ground, muttering in disbelief. Impossible. Damn it. How can the people on Yi Han's side be so powerful? Yi Han stepped forward, confronting Zhuge and accusing him. Are you Zhuge? Not only did you repeatedly scheme against me five or seven times, but you also used deceitful words to lure Ruinling Kalgir. Today, I won't let you leave here alive. Zhuge, in a moment of desperation, turned to Li and Yi, Shi Tian and pleaded, No, young master, save me. Yi Han grabbed Zhuge by the collar ready to unleash all this hatred both physically and verbally. He shouted, No one can save you now. Trembling, Zhuge looked towards Lian Yi Shi Tian, extending her hand for mercy. Young master, please save me. Lian Yi Shi Tian regarded his subordinate with a peculiar look, coldly stood up, and responded to Zhuge, Zhuge, you're useless, but daring to mobilize bodyguards without my permission is enough to cost you your life. As he spoke, he hurled a sword piece with immense force, aiming straight at Zhuge. While Zhuge was still pleading, the sword piece pierced her skull. Zhuge's eyes widened in agony as she collapsed to the ground, muttering, No, no, I can't accept this. After witnessing the gruesome scene, even Yi Han felt repulsed. He confronted Lian Yi, expressing his disdain, Lian Yi, you truly are ruthless, easily killing even your own subordinates. Lian Yi, Shi Tian dismissed it as a normal occurrence, replying, Yi Han, your happiness won't last much longer. The next one to die will be you. After speaking, Lian Yi, Shi Tian decided to go all out. He utilized all his energy to execute the technique. Buddha's golden body, a golden aura emanated, pulsating around his body. Once again, it's Buddha's golden body. Lion Yi Shi Tian just used this move to defeat the three masters earlier. Yi Han, whether he can withstand this move is uncertain. I think Yi Han can only try to prolong the time, waiting for Lion Yi Shi Tian's energy to weaken before finding the right moment to defeat him. Yi Han taunted Lion Yi with confidence. Without perfecting Buddha's golden body, you dare to use it against me. Lion Yi Shi Tian, do you believe I can shatter your Buddha's golden body with just a needle? He pondered. With my yin name, divine eyes, I can already see the weaknesses in his Buddha's golden body. Breaking is a simple task. The surrounding crowd was astonished to see Yi Han so self-assured. A needle can break through Lian Yi, Shi Tan's Buddha's golden body. Is Yi Han stating the truth or just pretending? It seems like Yi Han is trying to appear strong intentionally prolonging the time to make Lian Yi Shi Tian's stamina decrease. Lian Yi Shi Tian has been cultivating Buddha's golden body for ten years. It can't be pierced by a needle. Lian Yi Shi Tian laughed heartily, as if dealing with a mischievous child. Ha ha ha, Yi Han, are you joking with me? Don't say it's just one needle. Even if you had ten thousand needles, you couldn't cause the slightest harm to me. Enough of talking. Lian Yi, Shi Tian took the initiative to leap forward and shouted loudly, Yi Han, don't try to prolong the time. Go die. Despite Yi Han's words, no one believed him. For him, understanding the techniques of cultivators like Lian Yi was as easy as eating rice. He immediately launched the needle in response, saying, Indeed, just a boring existence like you. Yi Han's needle pierced the indestructible Buddha's golden body of Lian Yi Shi Tian causing an earth-shaking explosion. The entire town seemed to be on the verge of bursting. After the smoke cleared, the surrounding crowd cautiously asked, What happened, Yi Han? Why didn't you dodge? Didn't he get struck down by this move? Yi Han, you must keep trying. Surprisingly, Lian Yi Shi Tan appeared trembling, devoid of the radiant Buddha's golden body in front of Yi Han. It astonished everyone, 
and they exclaimed, Oh my God, look at that! Lion Yi Shi Tian, seemingly struck by Yi Han's fatal blow, coughed up blood and staggered away, as if desperately avoiding death. Lion Yi Shi Tian doubled over in pain. Without saying anything, Yi Han, the crowd erupted in chaos. What's happening? Lion Yi Shi Tan, why are you bleeding? Couldn't it be that the needle thrown by Yi Han has taken effect? A single needle breaking through divine defenses is already formidable. Does Yi Han have disciples? It's better to follow him than Lian Yi Shi Tan. Lian Yi, still in disbelief, shouted in astonishment. This can't be. My Buddha's golden body is the strongest. It's impenetrable. How could it be pierced by a needle? Yi Han calmly approached, explaining to his bewildered opponent. Ha ha, in this world, there's no such thing as the strongest technique. A strong practitioner using a low-level technique can become invincible. A weakling, even with the highest-level technique, can't escape defeat. Lion Yi Shi Tian, you're too obsessed with what you call the supreme technique, and in doing so, you've lost the fundamental mindset of a true strong practitioner. Your failure was already predetermined. The crowd seemed to agree with Yi Han's thorough explanation. Yi Han, that makes sense. I understand now. Your words just now reflected the aura of a real powerhouse. Listening to Yi Han's explanation, it's clear I've gained insight after enduring ten years of arduous cultivation. Lion Yi, Chi Tian sneered and responded to the provocation with a smirk. Yi Han, don't even think about shaking the foundation of my cultivation. I've been practicing the Buddha's golden body for over a decade, and it's the most powerful technique. As long as I reach the perfection of the Buddha's golden body, no one can defeat me. With these words, Lion Yi Shi Tian swiftly moved, grabbing Ruin Ling Kiao in her astonishment. I originally planned to cultivate this golden body technique to its highest realm, and then use you to break through. Unfortunately, it's too late now, and if anyone is to blame, it's Yi Han. Without any mercy, Lion Yi Shi Tian used a mystical blood link technique, grabbing Ling Kiao by the net and extracting something from within her. Ling Kao cried out in pain, calling for Yi Han. Yi Han, fueled with rage, fiercely swung his arm, shouting, Lian Yi Shi Tan, you're tired of living. Without hesitation, Yi Han struck Lian Yi Shi Tan away while holding Ling Kao in his arms. Lian Yi Shi Tan crashed into a shattered mountain wall, lying motionless without making a sound. Yi Han noticed Ling Kao's frail body, her eyes vacant. Undoubtedly, she had fallen victim to Lian Yi's dark magic. Ling Kao, are you all right? He inquired. Looking at him with teary eyes, Ling Kao whispered, Lei Han, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have gone alone to the Lian Yi clan. I shouldn't have trusted you. With those words, Ling Kao fainted. Witnessing this sudden tragedy, the elder and Hu Feng approached to console Yi Han. Her vital essence and blood energy are depleted. This female clan leader won't live much longer. Yi Han, this is beyond our capabilities. It's not your fault. Yi Han couldn't just stand by and watch Ling Kao suffer. He was determined to save her at any cost. No, as long as I don't want Ling Kao to die, even if the King of Hell comes, don't think about taking her away. The Nine Origin Flame Life Bead is my responsibility, and no one should interfere. Yi Han held Ling Kao tightly, using his other hand to employ the highest level medical skills to rescue her. Something began to revive within Ling Kao, and her breathing gradually stabilized. The elder and Hu Feng exclaimed in astonishment. Ru and Ling Kao's vital energy is unexpectedly stabilizing. It seems like her state of unconsciousness was induced forcefully. Yi Han's medical skills are truly extraordinary. Seeing Ling Kao appearing to be recovering, Yi Han placed her in Hu Feng's care and instructed her. Ru and Ling Kao, for now, there's nothing to worry about. Take her to rest first. Hu Feng nodded in agreement. After saving Ling Kao, Yi Han still had unfinished business to attend to. He stepped forward, facing Lian Yi Shi Tian, and declared, Once I deal with Lian Yi, I will find a way to cure her. Lian Yi Shi Tian arrogantly laughed mockingly, Kill me? Yi Han, do you still think I'm as weak as before? After absorbing Ruin Ling Kyo's blood essence, while my Buddha's golden body may not have reached perfection, it has at least reached its peak. Yi Han, now you won't be able to pierce through me with a single needle of yours. 
Lion Yi, Shi Tian's Buddha's golden body surged violently, flames soaring into the sky, shattering the ground beneath. Yi Han wielded his sword confidently, stating, Of course, I don't plan to rely on just a needle to break through your defenses, because now, I want to kill you. Hearing Yi Han's intention to kill him, Lion Yi Shi Tian, furious, retorted, arrogant fool, go to hell. Then, his divine spirit, like the reincarnation of a Buddha, unleashed celestial techniques in retaliation. Yi Han, undeterred, summoned his formidable dragon god, roaring defiantly, the one who shall die is you. Both clashed fiercely with their formidable techniques. Suddenly, Lian Yi, Shi Tian was severely injured, vomiting blood and exclaiming in disbelief, what? This can't be. Seizing the advantage, Yi Han moved forward, intending to finish him off swiftly, saying, go die. Realizing the difficulty of escaping this predicament, Lian Yi, Shi Tian felt fear and panic. Yi Han swung his sword in a swift motion across his throat, and in pain, Lian Yi, Shi Tian clutched his neck, collapsing to the ground, desperate, no, I can't die, there's so much I still need to do. Seeing his desperation, Yi Han, infuriated, kicked him away forcefully, retorting, the only thing you need to do now is to die. Witnessing Lian Yi, Shi Tian being ruthlessly killed, onlookers murmured, Lian Yi, Shi Tian is truly done for under Yi Han's hand. He was considered a rising star, but unfortunately, he died before reaching the peak. Nanfang has Mo Dong, Bai Fang has Lian Yi, both renowned throughout Zhang Guagu, and both defeated by Yi Han. Yi Han, seems like he's the new rising star. Zhang Baiyuan, exhausted, hurriedly approached and thanked Yi Han. Mr. Yi, thanks to your intervention today, otherwise the entire martial arts community in Hudong would have perished in a day. Bai Yanqiu, standing nearby, also expressed appreciation. In the future, if Mr. Yi has any requests, just let me know, and I will do my best to cooperate. Su Chang Heng concurred. Indeed, though our strength may not match yours, we consider ourselves people with connections and influence. Perhaps we can be of assistance to Mr. Yi in some way. Observing the sincerity of the three in wanting to offer assistance, Yi Han clasped his hands together and made a request. If you are willing, esteemed seniors, there is a matter I'd like to ask for your help. Have you ever heard of the blood origin spirit grass? Silently contemplating, Yi Han thought, now that Ruin Lin Kyo's vital essence is depleted, according to the Guiyu medical classic, only the blood origin spirit grass can save her. Bai Yan Kyu recalled and replied, Blood origin spirit grass. I seem to have come across it in a medical book. It usually grows in the highest regions of Ex in Nan, and it requires an abundance of spiritual energy. Zhang Bai Yuan added, Sai Nan has rich spiritual energy. Bai, you are referring to Mount Yamai, aren't you? Su Chen, he chimed in. Yes, I remember now. Mount Yamai is said to have a legend of using blood origin spirit grass to save lives. Having obtained the needed information to save Ling Kao, Yi Han joyfully responded, Mount Yamai in Exinan. Thank you, esteemed seniors, for providing this information. Yi Han is sincerely grateful. Yi Han then turned to Zhao Hao Tian and instructed, Zhao. The trip to Exe Nan will be undertaken by Duan Wen and me. Everyone else should return home. The current defense is too thin, and we need all of you to stay and protect. Zhao Hao Tian nodded and replied, Understood. Everyone, be careful, and if there's anything, contact us immediately. Yi Han continued to speak to Hu Feng, saying, Hu Feng, for this journey to Yan Jing, I appreciate your assistance. However, I need you to handle matters related to the Li and Yi clan a bit. Hu Feng happily responded, Rest assured, Yi Han, I'll take care of everything smoothly. You go and do what you need to do. The safe haven remains the strongest support for you. After that, Yi Han lifted Princess Ling Kao and said, All right, Duan Wen, let's go. Duan Wen replied, Sure. Yi Han thought to himself, Ling Kao, don't worry. I'm willing to pay any price to obtain the blood origin spirit grass to heal you. The scene shifted to Mount Yamai in Xi Nan, where on a dazzling golden structure on the rocky cliffs, Yi Han arranged for Ling Kao to rest in a small cottage. As he looked at her, he pondered, Ruan Ling Kao's condition is worsening. 
after the depletion of her vital essence, every joint in her body is contracting. Worried, Yi Han tried to treat Ling Kao, circulating the energy passed down to him. He continued to think, I must quickly reach Mount Yamai to obtain the blood origin spirit grass. Suddenly, a voice rang out, Ling Wu Fei, you unexpectedly dared to set foot on my Mount Yamai, truly seeking death. Wu Fei replied, I just want to see Wu Yu one last time. Curious, Yi Han thought, Ling Wu Fei. During the opening of the medical clinic, I treated his wounds. Why is he here? And it seems like he's being hunted by members of the Yi Mai sect. Yi Han then instructed Duan Wen. Duan Wen, take care of Ling Kao. I'll go over there to see what's happening. Duan Wen replied, All right, thank you for taking the time to watch my video. If you enjoyed the content, please don't hesitate to hit the like and share buttons. Your support is a huge motivation for me to continue creating more videos. Additionally, there are many other interesting story videos on my channel, so feel free to check them out. Thank you. Wu King Grandmother, along with one of her martial sisters, is interrogating Wu Fei with a stern tone. Ling Wu Fei, the junior sister Wu Yu back then, possessed the highest talent in the Yi Mai sect. After the romantic involvement with you, she became a waste. Now you have the audacity to come and see my martial sister. Wu King Grandmother angrily scolds. Immediately leave the Yimi Mountain, or don't blame me for being impolite. Wu Fei tries to explain. The incident back then was my fault, I admit. But now, I must ascend the mountain. I need to find a certain kind of elixir. Perhaps it can save Wu Yu. Angry, the grandmother retorts. The elixirs you brought back then were all tried and proven ineffective. Wu Yong Grandmother, unwilling to engage in further words, rushes to attack Wu Fei and says, no need for many words with him, just directly drive him away. Seeing the negotiation fail and the other party preparing to attack, Wu Fei draws his sword and remarks, If both of you are determined to hinder me, then forgive me for being impolite. Wu Yang grandmother performs a technique, causing the ground to shake and capturing Wu Fei's sword. He is surprised, thinking, This is not good. She signals to Wu King grandmother, Marshal sister, make your move. Wu King Grandmother suddenly appears behind him, intending to launch a sneak attack, shouting loudly, Autumn Wind, Moonlight. Unexpectedly, Yi Han senses the precarious situation and swiftly intervenes, resolutely saying, Stop. Everyone is shocked by Yi Han's sudden appearance. A move by Yi Han causes the ground to tremble, creating a dusty explosion. Wu King Grandmother is knocked away, uttering a painful cry. Concerned? Wu Yong Grandmother asks, Marshal Sister, are you okay? Are you okay? Wu King Grandmother responds, The technique of this young man just now is not simple. Sister, be careful. Without any worry, Wu Yong Grandmother asserts, Wu King, this is the territory of our Yi Mai sect. Even if they are powerful, they cannot leave here. Wu Fei, seeing Yi Han stepping in to help, asks in curiosity, Vite, sir, why are you here? Yi Han replies, A friend of mine is injured and needs the life essence of the Yi Mai sect to heal, so I came here. Yi Han is also curious about his presence and asks, But why are you here, and why are you fighting the people from the Yi Mai sect? Wu Fei explains the situation. The person I love is seriously ill, currently on Yi Mai Mountain. I am here to find some herbs hoping to cure her. He then turns to look at the two elder sisters and continues, But they don't understand. They are still blocking my way, not allowing me to go up the mountain. Wu Yong Grandmother responds, Do you think our Yi Mi Mountain is a tourist destination? Do you think anyone could go up as they please? She continues, Both of you are not allowed to go up the mountain. Otherwise, don't blame us for being impolite. Yi Han immediately retorts, Two respected seniors, your words are a bit too overbearing. From what I know, Yi Mi Mountain originally has no owner. Anyone can ascend it. To be precise, this mountain belongs to the nation, and your Yi Mai sect only borrowed this place to establish your sect. What right do you have to forbid us from going up the mountain? Wu Yong grandmother counters Yi Han's opinion, saying, Our Yi Mai sect is one of the top ten major sects. With hundreds of traditions spanning thousands of years, our disciples and aura are distributed everywhere. This Yi Mai mountain is naturally understood as our territory under the Zhongjula Gu martial arts. 
Why should a brat like you have the audacity to speak and judge? Finding her stubborn and assertive, Yi Han laughs and responds. Living here for a long time, you can start thinking you own everything. Following your logic, since I've been in Yanjing for so long, doesn't that mean all of Yanjing belongs to me? You people are shameless with such audacious claims. Wu Yang grandmother, in anger, scolds fiercely. Impudent brat, daring to insult our Yi Mai sect. Your little life must be so miserable. Yi Han pays no attention to her words, confidently walks past her and says, Today, I must ascend Yu Mei Mountain. I want to see who could stop me. Feeling disdain from Yi Han, Wu Yang grandmother attacks him with sharp thorns from her trident and says, Arrogant and ignorant fool. Yi Han turns around and sees her attempting a sneak attack from behind, swiftly swings his sword, retorting, Using such petty tricks in front of me, you'll regret it. The sharp thorns from her trident are deflected by Yi Han's moves, and she is sent flying, screaming in pain. How can this be? Wu King grandmother, seeing her martial sister severely injured, steps forward and says, Martial sister, I'm here to help. Wu Fei, determined to protect Yi Han, raises his sword and declares, Your opponent is me. Wu King grandmother also raises her trident, transforming it into numerous silk threads and says, Ling Wu Fei, leave now. Wu Fei replies, You alone are not my match. Wu Fei charges towards her, shouting, One hundred bodies, one strike. Her trident immediately splits into two. Subsequently, she is also knocked far away, vomiting blood. Wu Yang grandmother steps forward to support Wu King grandmother, asking, Marshal sister, are you okay? In pain, Wu King grandmother replies, I am fine. Sister, what should we do now? We are no match for them. Afterward, the two of them support each other and flee, saying, Let's go back to the sect first and ask the sect leader for help. Wu Fei and Yi Han watch them run without pursuing. Wu Fei expresses regret for causing trouble to Yi Han, clasping his hands and saying, I apologize, Yi Han. It's because of me that you have offended the Yi Mai sect. Your quest for medicine seems to have become more challenging. Yi Han remains calm and responds with a smile. No worries. Given the arrogant attitude of the Yi Mai sect just now, even without you, my journey would still be difficult. Wu Fei, Curious asks, What does Yi Sir mean? Yi Han gazes into the distant horizon and firmly states, I must obtain that Yi Mai sex life essence. Anyone who dares to obstruct me must die, no matter who they are. Wu Fei calls him back, Yi Sir, wait, I have a request, and I hope you will agree to help. Yi Han replies, Ling, if there's anything, just say it, no need for formalities between us. Wu Fei, with a serious expression and an anxious demeanor, responds, Li, sir, I dare not hide from you. The arteries throughout her body have been severed. This time, I came to the mountain only to meet her. I am willing to pay any price to heal her. In reality, the chances of a cure are not high, but coincidentally meeting you here, I have great confidence in your medical skills. So, Yi Han, considering the severity of the illness, says, Severed arteries throughout the body are extremely difficult to treat. I can only make one attempt, and I cannot guarantee a cure for your loved one. Wu Fei, after hearing this, replies, Your words are sufficient. Whether a cure is possible or not, I will remember this in my heart, never to forget it throughout my life. Inside the Yi Mai sect, a young woman in a wheelchair sits on a balcony, admiring the majestic scenery alone, saying, Wu Fei, it's been 20 years since we parted. Suddenly, an old woman, Wu Wo, approaches Wu Yu and asks, Child, after so many years, you still can't let go. Don't forget that it was Ling Wu Fei who caused you to be in such a miserable state. Wu Yu sighs and replies, What happened back then was not Wu Fei's fault. By Gong Xian, her notice that Wu Yu seemed to have lingering memories of Wu Fei, so she curiously asked, Senior sister, is the man really that good? It's been over 20 years, and you still haven't forgotten him. Master said that men are the root of all evils. But looking at your current state, it seems that men are not all that bad. Wu Yu, sensing Bai Gong Xian, Er's curiosity about her romantic past, responds, Junior sister, you are still young and might not understand. Wu Wu grandmother, 
irritated by Bai Gongxian Er's meddling, gives her a smack on the head, saying, Fian Er, you don't study scriptures in the scripture hall. What are you doing here? I warn you, if you dare to go looking for a man on your own, I will break your legs. Bai Gongxian Er, the young girl who got smacked, cries in pain, holding her head, and says, Master, disciple was wrong. Suddenly, the two martial sisters Wu Yang and Wu King return and report. Master, Ling Wu Fei suddenly rushed up the mountain. Wu King grandmother continues. He also brought a very formidable accomplice, and our disciples couldn't handle them. Wu Wu grandmother, shocked, exclaims. What? Furious, she says. Indeed audacious to the sky, daring to charge into our Yi Mi mountain. Wu King, Wu Yang, I command both of you to immediately summon the disciples, prepare for battle in the Jade Maiden formation. Wu Yong and Wu King grandmothers obediently reply, Yes, Master. Wu Yu grandmother, seeing everyone on the mountain preparing to take the life of her past lover, speaks up, Master. With a compassionate expression for Wu Fei, Wu Yu continues, Could you spare Wu Fei's life, disciple begs you. Wu Wu grandmother, touched by Wu Yu's sincerity, softens her heart and responds, My foolish disciple I know. You can rest assured. After that, Wu Mu grandmother slowly departs. Bai Gong Qian er happily turns to Wu Yu and asks, Senior sister, that Ling Wu Fei, the one you haven't seen in over twenty years, does senior sister want to meet him? Wu Yu replies, It's inconvenient to go now, and besides, master won't allow me to meet Wu Fei. Bai Gong Qian er wanting to help her senior sister meet Wu Fei, hastily pushes Wu Yu's wheelchair and says, Don't worry, senior sister. With me here, you can definitely meet him. Wu Yu, fearful, says, Sien Er, be careful. As she goes, the young girl thinks, It's not easy to see the sect in such turmoil. I can't miss this opportunity. In a different scene at the main square of the Yu Mai sect, many disciples of Wu Wu grandmother are summoned to join the battle. Wu Fei, seeing the tactics used to stop him, comments, To think that would resort to the Jade Maiden formation to hinder me. The Yi Mai sect didn't expect this move. Yi Han observes the strategic deployment of the Yi Mai sect and curiously asks Wu Fei, Ling, is this beauty sword formation really formidable? Wu Fei explains, beauty sword formation is the grand battle formation of the Yi Mai sect. When executed, it combines the strength of 49 individuals. Unless one can defeat all 49 at once, they will be overwhelmed and defeated in this sword formation. Wu Wu grandmother, accompanied by her disciples Wu Yong and Wu Qing, intervenes to stop Wu Fei and says, Ling Wu Fei, you want to meet Wu Yu, right? If you can break through the beauty sword formation, I will allow you to see my disciple. Wu Fei, finally seeing a chance to approach his beloved, decisively replies, All right, I am grateful for this opportunity. Even if I have to die in this sword formation, Ling Wu Fei will have no regrets. Bai Gong Qian or looks at Wu Fei and asks, Senior sister, is that old man Ling Wu Fei? He doesn't seem too bad, still a handsome young man standing beside him. Wu Yu grandmother also looks at him and says, Twenty years have passed. Wu Fei, you have aged a lot. Wu Wu grandmother signals her disciples. Disciples, follow orders, set up the formation. Subsequently, her disciples, wielding swords, advance and surround Wu Fei. Wu Wu Grandmother shouts loudly, Disciples, heed the command. Unleash the dragon's wrath. The jade swords begin thrusting rapidly toward Wu Fei. Unperturbed, he boldly swings his sword and calls out, Wind-stirring sorrowful dance sword. Immediately, he blocks their attacks. Wu Fei leaps skillfully, evading the oncoming strikes from the jade swords. Landing lightly, he says, Wu Yu, wait for me, I am come to you soon. Wu Wu Grandmother, Seeing him evade effortlessly, remarks, Just now, I spared you out of respect for Wu Yu. If you don't know when to stop, don't blame me for being ruthless. Wu Mu Grandmother commands, Disciples, full support, Myriad Blades technique, Convergence of Myriad Blades. Her disciples raise their swords, preparing for another powerful attack. A wave of hundreds of swords converges on Wu Fei. In response, Wu Fei counters with the technique, Ten strikes in one, blocking the previous onslaught. Despite his efforts to withstand her techniques, 
It appears that he is gradually losing ground. Eventually, he is struck and thrown back, in pain, falling to the ground. Seeing her beloved injured, Wu Yu exclaims with concern, Wu Fei. Bai Gong Xi and Er, seeing Wu Fei in the verge of defeat, expresses disappointment. It's over. After saying this, she thinks to herself, I expected much more excitement. Little did I know it would end so quickly. Observing Wu Fei severely injured, Wu Mu grandmother, out of respect for her disciple's former companion, slowly approaches him and says, Ling Wu Fei, you've lost. In consideration of Wu Yu's face, I'll spare your life. Go back, you can't defeat the beauty sword formation. Wu Fei insists on not giving up and withdrawing. Determined to continue the fight, he firmly responds, No, today, only Ling Wu Fei is determined to fight. Without Ling Wu Fei withdrawing, I request you to continue, senior. Seeing him, even in his severe condition, willing to continue fighting, Wu Mu grandmother remarks, Have you truly grown weary of life? Despite his injuries, Wu Fei struggles to stand and replies, For Wu Yu, death is insignificant. I've waited for more than twenty years, and I don't want to wait any longer. Even if I die here, at least my soul can still be with her. Today, unless I die, I am determined not to give up. Enraged, Wu Wu gives the order, You ignorant fool, Wu Yang, Wu Qing, pursue him down the mountain for me. Hearing this, Wu Yang and Wu Qing promptly respond, Yes. They draw their swords and move to attack Wu Fei directly. Sensing this, Wu Fei, resigned, willingly surrenders, closing his eyes and releasing his body, saying, Wu Yu, I have no regrets in this lifetime. Finishing his words, Wu Fei immediately drops his sword. Hearing this, Wu Yu, right beside, screams in agony, No, Wu Fei, quickly get out of the way. Suddenly, Yi Han appears out of nowhere, rushing in, gripping the sword tightly in his hand, assisting and defending Wu Fei. Yi Han shouts loudly, Get lost, all of you. Witnessing this, Wu Fei can't help but feel astonished. Wu Yong, defiantly, glances at Yi Han and says, It's this brat again. Seeing Yi Han once again standing up to protect him, Wu Fei, overwhelmed, hesitates to say, Ye Han, you. Without waiting for Wu Fei to finish, Yi Han turns back, smiling lightly, and responds, Sorry, Ling, I can't just stand aside and watch you get killed. Rest over there, leave this sword formation to me to break. Concluding his words, Yi Han extends his hand, pushing Wu Fei back. Then, Yi Han sharpens his gaze, observing the surroundings, silently evaluating. Earlier, using the yin yang perception, I saw the transformation principle of this sword formation. Breaking, it is quite simple. Mu Wo, seeing Yi Han as an unfamiliar face, surprised, hastily asks, Who are you, daring to interfere in the affairs of our Yi Mai sect? We have the great mountain formation of Yi Mai. You claim to break it easily, still so young and already arrogant you will surely pay a heavy price. Hearing that, Yi Han calmly approached Wu Wo and replied, Young Yi Han is willing to break the beauty sword formation for Senior Ling, and I hope for Senior's guidance. After speaking, Wu Wo's expression became serious as he continued, Yi clan leader, I see that you have only recently entered the microcosmic orbit realm. Ling Wu Fei At the peak of microcosmic orbit, faced challenges he couldn't overcome. Do you really think you could succeed? I advise you to abandon such thoughts. In the end, the sword has no eyes. Hearing this, Yi Han smiled and responded, Senior, there's no need to worry about my safety. I just want to know if breaking this sword formation for Senior Ling would be considered an accomplishment. Standing behind them, Elder Wu Fei heard this and quickly expressed concern, saying, Yi Han, I appreciate your good intentions, but this matter is personal to me. If anything happens to you on my behalf, I will regret it for a lifetime. At this point, Yi Han appeared composed and amused, saying, Senior Ling, rest assured, I can break this formation with just one move. Seeing the humiliation suffered by the Yi Mai sect, Wu Wo, in anger, exclaimed loudly, Arrogant one, if you wish to die so much, I'll gladly help you fulfill that wish. Disciples, follow my command, set up the formation. Finishing his words, the disciples of the Yi Mai sect immediately set up their formation, each gripping their swords with fierce expressions, 
eager for bloodshed. Yi Han plainly responded, understood. On the other side, Bai Gong Xian Er and Wu Yu stood nearby, observing the situation. Bai Gong Xian Er spoke up, senior sister, don't worry. Someone is stepping in for Ling Wu Fei to break the sword formation. Hearing this, Wu Yu, with a worried expression, gazed towards Yi Han. Lost in thought, Wu Yu pondered, who is this person? Wu Fei, proud and cold throughout his life. How could he befriend such a young individual? She calmly replied, I hope this young man will be safe and sound. Hearing this, Bai Gong Xian Er glanced at Yi Han and sighed, hastily saying, but this older brother is only at the microcosmic orbit intermediate stage. Wanting to challenge the beauty sword formation seems like sticking his head into the jaws of death. It's a pity he's quite handsome. I'd like to see how terrifying men can be. On the other side, Wu Yong and Wu Qing were also closely watching the battle. Wu Yong furrowed his brow and remarked, This brat saw Ling Wu Fei getting beaten, yet still dares to challenge the beauty sword formation. Truly a worthless existence. Hearing this, Wu Qing quickly added, There are some people in this world who think they are the center of the universe. They believe that no matter what happens, they can turn danger into safety. Regret only hits them when they are already beaten. But by then, it's too late. At this moment, Yi Han calmly raised his voice and said, Senior, please make a move. Let's resolve this quickly. I have more important matters to negotiate with you. Hearing this, Wu Wu became furious, brandishing his scepter angrily before responding, Wait until you break the sword formation, then we can talk. Disciples, be ready with your swords. Hearing the command, the disciples of the Yin Mai sect immediately raised their swords high, shouting in unison, Convergence of Miran blades. Seeing this, Yi Han didn't waste any time and swiftly charged forward. Yi Han shouted, This is the perfect moment, I've found the weak point. Sensing the urgency, Wu Wu quickly shouted orders, Not good, stop him immediately. Hearing this, the disciples of the Yi Mai sect rushed forward to block Yi Han's path. They angrily declared, Breaking the formation is absolutely impossible. We must stop him and prevent him from achieving his goal. With Yi Han's extraordinary skill, such trivial maneuvers were inconsequential to him. Yi Han, with a confident expression, replied, It's a shame. You can't catch me. My real goal is this. Finishing his words, Yi Han immediately jumped high, utilizing vital energy to break the formation. In an instant, a thunderous sound echoed through the sky and ground. All the swords of the Yi Mai sect disciples fell one by one, catching them off guard. This indicated that Yi Han had successfully broken the formation. The disciples of the Yi Mai sect were all severely injured, clutching their wounds and struggling to speak. How could this happen? The sword formation has been broken. Witnessing this scene, Wu Wo, Bai Gong Xian Er, Wu Yang, and Wu Qing were all astonished, gaping in disbelief. On the other side, Elder Wu Fei, seeing Yi Han's successful breakthrough, joyfully exclaimed, Yi Han, unexpectedly successful. With the matter settled, Yi Han immediately approached Wu Wo, performing a respectful gesture, and said, Senior, please accept my respects. Seeing this, Wu Qing, in anger, pointed at Yi Han's face and said, You are indeed cunning, causing the disciples to be mentally divided on one hand and taking advantage of the pause in the sword formation to attack on the other. Adding to that, Wu Yong quickly added, If the Muriat Blades technique had successfully converged, you would definitely not be our match. Hearing this, Yi Han turned his head, glanced at Wu Qing and Wu Yong, and replied, I simply didn't want to harm innocent people. If a real fight were to happen, someone would surely lose their life, and enmity would inevitably be formed. Upon hearing this, Wu Yong and Wu Fing burst into laughter and continued, To be honest, the formation is broken anyway. Say whatever you want. Irritated by the mockery, Yi Han retorted, What's the matter? Aren't you convinced yet? Sensing the tension, Wu Wu calmly intervened, All right, Wu Qing, Wu Yong, let's not argue anymore. The sword formation has been broken. Let's admit defeat. Finishing his words, Elder Wu Fei raised his hand to signal Wu Wu and asked, Senior Wu Yu. Hearing this, Wu Wu helplessly continued, Wu Yu, stay in the background. You go meet him yourself. Once you're done, leave immediately. 
Elder Wu Fei, with a disappointed and sad expression, sighed, can only meet once. Hearing this, Wu Qing angrily exclaimed, Meeting once is already too good for you. This battle wasn't disrupted by you. Concluding, Wu Yang quickly added, Remember not to cause chaos. Otherwise, we'll immediately expel you from the mountain. Hearing this, Yi Han immediately stepped forward, performing a respectful gesture and speaking loudly. Senior, please wait. I have a severely injured friend in need of blood origin spirit grass for treatment. I can exchange it for an equivalent valuable item. Would that be possible? Hearing this, Wu Wu quickly declined, saying, Yi clan leader, I'm not feeling well today. Let's talk about it tomorrow. At this moment, Wu Wu secretly evaluated. This kid just happened to break the beauty sword formation by coincidence. He's bold enough to ask for our sex blood origin spirit grass. I won't let him get away with it. Seeing that Wu Wu seemed displeased, Yi Han quickly pleaded, Senior, life is of utmost importance. Can senior spare a bit of time today? Wu Wu calmly responded, In our Yi Mai sect, we are not a marketplace. Whether your blood origin spirit grass can be exchanged is another matter. Hearing this, Yi Han urgently continued to request, This is a matter concerning someone's life. The Yi Mai sect is renowned, and surely, when the time comes, listening to my plea won't be an issue. Seeing Yi Han becoming more insistent, Wu Wu angrily ordered, Wu Qing, Wu Yang, see our guest off. In his mind, Wu Wu secretly thought, I might have to force you to kneel and bow before me. On this side, Wu Qing, with hands on hips, angrily exclaimed, The blood origin spirit grass is our Yi Mai sex treasure. To say you can exchange it, is it really that simple? Finishing her words, Wu Yang quickly added, Our master has no intention of receiving guests. Yi clan leader, please leave the mountain quickly. At the base of a tree, Bai Gong Shi and Er expressed surprise, saying, This young man unexpectedly wants the blood origin spirit grass. Truly daydreaming. Our master has kept that item very securely. Even I haven't seen it. Bai Gong Shi and Er looked at Wu Yu and continued, Senior sister, let's go back and wait for Ling Wu Fei. That young man is about to be expelled from the mountain, and the drama is over. Suddenly, Wu Yu exclaimed in panic, Wait, I feel something is not right. Cn Er, look over there. On Yi Han's side, he had reached the peak of anger. Emitting a terrifying force, he said, I originally didn't want to cause a public scene. I'm willing to buy the blood origin spirit grass at any price, but you insist on using this attitude to pressure me. In that case, I have no choice but to use another method to obtain the blood origin spirit grass. Without further ado, Yi Han tapped into his internal energy. Immediately, the swords lying on the ground began to move. They suddenly soared into the air. Seeing this, the disciples of the Yi Mai sect were astonished and exclaimed, The swords are flying. It's Yi Han. Quickly stop him. What is happening here? Wu Wu heard a sudden commotion and turned around. She couldn't help but gasp in fear and exclaimed, This is. On Yi Han's side, he raised his hand high, commanding the flying swords. He angrily shouted, I have a sword that can leave the mountain. Fill the sea. Break the formation and open the land, slashing towards. Without further ado, Yi Han immediately waved his hand forward. All the swords instantly flew towards the disciples of the Yi Mai sect. Seeing this, Wu Wu immediately deployed her magical techniques, exerting all her strength to resist Yi Han's counterattack. Wu Wu quickly shouted and scolded, Audacious, being the Yi Mai sect, how can we let a brat like you, not even clean behind the ears, dominate us? Even if you're given the blood origin spirit grass for a dog to eat, I won't give it to you. Let's join forces to eliminate him. At this moment, Wu Wu used a large hand to shield herself from the swords directed towards her. The disciples of the Yi Mai sect also united, exerting all their strength to support her. They encouraged each other, saying, We must stop him. How can Yi Han be so powerful? No, I'm about to collapse. In the end, Wu Wu, along with the disciples of the Yi Mai sect, suffered severe injuries from Yi Han's attack, sending them flying and vomiting blood. Wu Wu, in pain, struggled to sit up, glaring at Yi Han with furrowed brows. Angered, she called out loudly, Yi Han, you. At this moment, Yi Han quickly approached in front of Wu Wu, pointing his sword straight at her face, and said, I tried talking to you calmly, 
but you insisted on forcing me act. Yi Han angrily continued to shout, Tell me, where is the blood origin spirit grass? Confronted by Yi Han's powerful presence, Wu Mu felt a bit fearful. She hesitated and remained silent. Suddenly, the sect leader calmly approached from behind to intervene for Wu Wo. The sect leader gently said, Young man, if you can forgive, please let it go. Hearing this, Wu Wo was startled and looked at the sect leader with astonishment, exclaiming, Sect leader. Seeing this, the disciples of the Yi Mai sect cheered continuously, expressing joy. This time Yi Han is surely doomed. It's great, we're safe with the sect leader here. We never expected the sect leader to finally appear. With the sect leader here, we are secure. At this point Yi Han, skeptical, quickly asked, Ye my sect leader, are you also trying to stop me? Hearing this, Juke Sin smiled lightly and replied, Young man, easily angered, I'm not here to fight. Upon hearing that, Wu Wu exclaimed in surprise, Sect leader, this young man wants to snatch the blood origin spirit grass. Sect leader, we cannot let him succeed in his intentions. Wu Qing, upon hearing this, quickly added, Sect leader, Yi Han has injured our sect's disciples. Please, sect leader, you must step forward to punish him. Continuing the plea, Wu Yong spoke. Sect leader, our Yi Mai sect has a history of thousands of years, and we have never suffered such humiliation. This indignation is truly unbearable. Hearing these pleas, sect leader Juke Sen laughed heartily and responded, I cannot bear it, I cannot bear it. If you won't want to fight him, why force an old lady like me to intervene? Upon hearing this, the disciples of the Yi Mai sect whispered among themselves, We should resolve this ourselves. We already engaged in a fight earlier, and he seems unbeatable. Let's not anger the sect leader any further. Juke Sin continued with a gentle smile, Now, I only have a little strength left. I can help you one or two more times. If I'm no longer in this world, then find someone else to step in. Finishing his words, the disciples of the Yi Mai sect lowered their heads in shame expressing, Sect Leader, we, the disciples. Without letting them finish, Sect Leader jutes in, furious, forcefully slammed the leader's staff to the ground and spoke loudly, allowing others onto the mountain, and yet daring to commit such actions. Our Yemai sect is far from being the unrivaled sect in the world. Engaging in such irrational and audacious behavior is an attempt to ruin the long-standing history of our Yemai sect, isn't it? Hearing this, the disciples of the Yi Mai sect immediately fell to their knees, trembling with fear, and said, Disciples acknowledge their mistake. Please, sect leader, forgive us. Observing the situation from the outside, Bai Gong Xian, Er expressed her surprise, saying, What is happening? Why is the sect leader standing on the side of that young man? Equally astonished, Wu Yu exclaimed, There must be a reason for the sect leader to act this way. At this moment, Wu Yu privately speculated, couldn't it be that Yi Han is so formidable that even the sect leader has to show him some respect? Facing the unexpected behavior of sect leader Ju Xin, Yi Han, without expressing doubt, raised his hand to stroke his chin in contemplation, saying, why does this old lady emit an aura that feels so familiar? Let me use the yin-yang insight to see. Finishing his words, Yi Han immediately employed the yin-yang insight to observe the situation. After scanning from top to bottom, Yi Han suddenly widened his eyes and whispered in amazement, This, this is spiritual energy. It seems that sect leader Ju Xin can perceive the technique Yi Han is using. She smiles gently and says, You possess the yin-yang dual energy, something not everyone can achieve. Upon hearing this, Yi Han quickly responds, Senior, I don't know what the yin-yang dual energy you mentioned is. At this moment, Yi Han privately thinks. This old lady can see my yin-yang insight. Could she me? Seeing Yi Han lost in thought, sect leader Ju Xin hurriedly continues. Young man, there's no need to be on guard against me. After all, we can consider each other as fellow practitioners in the same Tao. In this realm, we can address each other as friends. Hearing this, Yi Han sighs softly, calmly saying, Indeed. It is so. Finishing his words, Yi Han immediately performs a gesture of respect, clasping his hands together, and says solemnly, Yi Han respectfully seeks the guidance of senior. At this moment, Yi Han privately thinks. Unexpectedly, this old lady is also a key cultivator, cultivating spiritual energy just like me. 
It seems that the major sects, with a history of thousands of years, are not without profound backgrounds. See Yi Han's admirable demeanor. Sect leader Ju Xin smiles approvingly and responds, No need for such formality. I'm only a few years older than you. In the future, we can address each other as friends. Sect leader Ju Xin privately appreciates Yi Han's potential, thinking, Being so young, yet already cultivating ancient Kai, this kid has an extraordinary background. It's essential to maintain a good relationship with him. The disciples of the Yi Mai sect, witnessing the unexpected turn of events, couldn't help but express their amazement, exclaiming, We didn't hear it wrong. The sect leader unexpectedly wants to befriend Yi Han. How does Yi Han have such a background that makes the sect leader value him so much? It seems that this time, we have truly offended a significant figure. On the other hand, sect leader Ju Xin quickly continues, Ye Daoist, please wait for a few minutes. I will handle the internal matters first. Concluding her words, sect leader Ju Xin immediately strides forward, speaking sternly, Wu King, Wu Yang, due to your misconduct, you are prohibited from staying in the sect for three years. Wu Wo, as the acting sect leader, you cannot evade your responsibilities. Temporarily step down from your position for a while. In matters big and small, Wu Yu will take over temporarily, and I will provide support. Upon hearing this, Wu Wo, Wu Ting, and Wu Yang promptly respond, We obey the sect leader's orders. After dealing with the internal matters, sect leader Ju Xin turns her gaze towards Yi Han with an affectionate look, and says, Yet Taoist, is this resolution satisfactory to you? Hearing this, Yi Han respectfully performs a gesture of acknowledgement, saying, Honorable Taoist, your fair and wise judgment is deeply respected by me. However, regarding the matter of the blood essence Lingji, before he can finish, sect leader Ju Xin hastily continues, Ye Taoist, rest assured, while the blood essence Lingji is precious, if you desire it, our Yi Mai sect will not hesitate to provide it for you. I will send someone to retrieve it immediately. Concluding her words, sect leader Ju Xin privately calculates. The blood essence Lingji is trivial compared to gaining the goodwill of a key cultivator. This exchange is quite favorable. Hearing this, Yi Han happily clasped his hands and replied, I am grateful, honorable Taoist. Wu Fei, the senior standing beside them, observed the entire situation, his eyes filled with admiration. Silently assessing the situation, he thought, the Yi Mai sect values Yi Han so highly. If they claim they can obtain the blood essence Lingji, our matters with Wu, you might be more manageable. Without much hesitation, Wu Fei approached Yi Han, leading him to whisper, Yi sir, could you please help me convey to the Yi Mai sect leader about my situation with Wu Yu? After all, meeting once is already more than enough. In response, Yi Han gestured towards Wu Fei and looked at sect leader Ju Xin, saying, Honorable Taoist, the matter concerning Ling and Wu Yu from your esteemed sect. Hearing this, sect leader Ju Xin wore a sorrowful expression and replied, I have heard about Wu Yu's situation a couple of times. If the matter has been settled, then let it be, out of respect for Yi Taoist, as long as Wu Yu agrees. Ling, the sect leader, can visit Ye Mei Mountain at any time. Upon hearing this, Wu Fei expressed his gratitude with a bow, and the elderly man cheerfully responded, Thank you, esteemed senior. At this moment, Wu Fei thought to himself, with just a few words from Yi Han, My and Wu Yu's matters can be resolved. I must repay him in the future. Suddenly from behind, Wu Yu approached with excitement, calling out, Wu Fei. Upon hearing this, Wu Fei quickly turned to look at her. Wu Fei, unable to hesitate any longer, immediately rushed to Wu Yu and exclaimed loudly, Wu Yu. The two looked at each other with deep affection. Wu Fei gently raised his hand to caress Wu Yu's cheek, saying, It's been twenty years in the blink of an eye. How are you? Everything that happened back then was my fault. If not for me, you wouldn't have. Hearing this, Wu Yu quickly interjected, Don't say that, Wu Fei. I'd never blamed you for anything. Tears welled up in Wu Yu's eyes as she continued, Don't blame yourself. It's in the past. Upon hearing this, Wu Fei stood up straight clasped his hands together and solemnly declared, Wu Yu, rest assured, no matter the cost, I will cure you of your illness. Having spoken, Wu Fei turned to Yi Han, and, with a sincere tone, implored, Yi Han, 
Please help save Wu Yu. Whatever it takes, Ling Wu Fei will repay you in the future. Observing this, Yi Han quickly approached to support Wu Fei, saying, Ling, there's no need for that. I will do my best to treat your sister-in-law. The scene shifts to all disciples of the Yi Mai sect gathering around a small room to monitor the situation. Inside, Wu Yu lies on the bed, and Yi Han focuses on checking her pulse and providing treatment. Everyone around watches with bated breath, eager to see the outcome. Suddenly, Wu Yu's face contorted in pain as she let out an uncomfortable moan. Outside, disciples of the Yi Mai sect were buzzing with discussions, saying, Wu Yu's viridians have been severed for twenty years. Can Yi Han really cure her? Look at him, he's just over twenty, with such advanced cultivation and impressive medical skills. Could he be a prodigy? Other senior disciples have tried inviting renowned doctors for years to treat Wu Yu, with no success. I doubt Yi Han will fare any better. At this moment, Wu Fei anxiously asked, Yi sir, how is Wu Yu? Can she be cured? Hearing this, Yi Han quickly replied, The meridians in her body have been severed. The only way to cure her is to sever them again. Without destruction, there can be no reconstruction. Only by breaking can we create anew. I can only continue treating her if I do so. Upon hearing this, Wu expressed astonishment and exclaimed, What? Sever the meridians again. Yi Master, are you joking? Wu Yu has already suffered once. If you sever them again, her life could be in grave danger. Over here, the disciples of the Yi Mai sect were equally fervent, discussing among themselves, to receive meridians, one needs to sever them again. i would never heard of such a treatment method. Is he not just speaking nonsense? Hearing this, Yi Han hurriedly explained, I already explained the method. Whether the treatment works or not depends on you. Wu Fei, determined, replied, I believe in Yi Han's medical skills. It's just that Wu Yu, she, Wu Fei, with a worried expression, turned to look at Wu Yu. Sensing his concern, Wu Yu quickly reassured, Wu Fei, I trust your decision. Even if there's just a glimmer of hope, I'm willing to try. I don't want to spend my entire life lying in bed. I want to explore the world with you. Hearing this, Wu Fei promptly replied, All right. Subsequently, Wu Fei turned to Yi Han and with solemnity said, Yi sir, please help Wu Yu. Any risks thereafter will be borne by both Wu Yu and me. Observing this, Wu Wu quickly turned to Ju Qin and remarked, Master, why aren't you saying anything to stop these crazy people? They're clearly making a mess of things. Hearing that, Master Ju Qin quickly smiled kindly and replied, We may not understand the medical aspect, but his approach, we can grasp to some extent. If he didn't have confidence in Wei, he would never dare say such things. If there's something he's uncertain about, he absolutely won't proceed. If he claims he can cure Wu Yu, let's calmly stand aside and observe. Without much ado, Yi Han immediately took out acupuncture needles, his expression serious as he addressed Wu Yu. Senior Wu Yu, I'm about to begin treatment. Reconnecting meridians will indeed be somewhat painful. You must endure it. Hearing this, Wu Yu with a determined expression replied, As long as I can stand again, I can endure even more pain. Yi Han, go ahead and start. Without further delay, Yi Han swiftly took action, loudly declaring, Heavenly Origin 12 Needles, Meridian Disruption. All the needles immediately flew out, piercing firmly into Wu Yu. Wu Yu screamed in pain, and the disciples of the Yi Mai sect couldn't help but feel sympathy. Faced with Yi Han's formidable strength, they marveled. The power of the three movements is truly formidable. Such immense strength. I've only seen it in our master. Could it be that Yi Han can really cure Wu Yu? Not stopping there, Yi Han raised his hand to wipe away the sweat and continued, Senior Wu Yu, now I'll start reconnecting your meridians. Without delay, Yi Han immediately utilized his vital energy to restore Wu Yu's meridians, loudly proclaiming, Heavenly Origin 12 Needles, Meridian Reconnection. Withdrawing his hand, Wu Yu suddenly sat up, vomiting blood. Seeing this, Senior Wu Fei quickly rushed over to support Wu Yu, a horrified expression on his face as he asked, Wu Yu, how are you? Standing beside them, Wu Wo, furious, pointed at Yi Han and scolded, Ye Han, what devilry are you up to? Wu Yu, why are you vomiting blood? Damn it, I warned you. 
Yi Han, this is utterly untrustworthy. Now, something has happened indeed. Yi Han, if anything happens to Wu Yu, we won't let you off. The disciples of the Yi Mai sect, standing outside, angrily added, Indeed, Yi Han has failed. All talk and no substance. Yi Han, you're too inexperienced. After this incident, Senior Wu, you might be in even worse condition. Seeing the chaotic scene, Master Ju Sin angrily shouted, Order! Wu Yu is not dead yet. Why are you panicking like this? Hearing that, Wu Wu pointed towards Wu Yu and tried to argue. But Wu Yu, before Wu Wu could finish, Wu Yu, with a pained expression, managed to come forward and said, Master, the disciple is fine. Moreover, the disciple can feel the strength of vital energy within the body. With few words, Wu Yu immediately stood up and walked slowly step by step. With an astonished expression, she exclaimed, The disciple can stand again. The meridians have been healed. Senior Wu Fei, standing behind, couldn't help but be surprised by Wu Yu's rapid recovery. Emotionally moved, Senior Wu Fei approached Wu Yu and said, This is great, Wu Yu. It's really good to see you finally recovered. On the other side, Wu Wu's eyes widened, and her mouth formed an O, oh, saying, What? Wu Yu, recovered? She quickly added, So, didn't we misunderstand Yi Han just now? How embarrassing. Hearing this, Yi Han sighed, cast a scornful glance at them, and replied, Earlier, Senior Wu Yu vomited blood, which was the expulsion of long accumulated stagnant blood in the body. Following adequate healing, Senior Wu Yu's body will no longer have any concerns. Senior Wu Fei and Wu Yu graciously bowed 90 degrees and said, Lei Han, Ling Wu Fei will never forget this favor. If there's anything in the future, just call, and I will definitely be there. Without hesitation, Wu Yu quickly spoke. Yi Han, earlier, my masters were just a bit hasty. I apologize on their behalf. Hearing this, Yi Han calmly replied, No need for that. Ling, as long as everyone trusts me, I don't care about others. At this moment, Master Ju Xin turned fiercely to glare at Wu Wo, Wu Qing, and Wu Yang, angrily scolding. Look at the trouble you three have caused. Someone came here with good intentions to treat Wu Yu, and you show ingratitude by blaming them. Apologize immediately to Mr. Yi. Hearing this, all three immediately bowed down, each expressing their apologies. Wu Wu hesitated as she said, I'm sorry, Yi Han. It was our mistake earlier, and we shouldn't have wrongly accused you. Wu Yang bowed down, lowering his voice to add, Whether it's in terms of skills or medical expertise, you are truly remarkable. We admire and respect you. Continuing the apologies, Wu Qing quickly added, This time, you have saved Wu Yu, benefiting the Yi Mai sect. We will definitely remember your kindness. On the other side, the disciples of the Yi Mai sect, witnessing the scene, were amazed and commented, I must not be mistaken. This is the first time I've seen the masters bowing and apologizing to someone else. Yi Han has truly made them submit. Yi Han is not only handsome, but also incredibly skilled. I'm captivated by him. Bai Gong Xian. Er also couldn't escape the enchantment of Yi Han. She looked at him with admiration in her eyes. Bai Gong Xian, Er secretly thought, this is the charm of a man, just as Master Wu Yu mentioned. Upon hearing their sincere apologies, Yi Han sighed. Then he gently replied, All right, let's not dwell on other matters. Just take me to retrieve the blood essence of the spirit grass now. Upon hearing this, Senior Ju Xin happily responded, Yi sir, please come this way. I will personally escort you to collect it. At this moment, in the old man's mind, he thought, unexpectedly, Yi Han can easily make the Wu King root bow down which is advantageous for my future plans. The scene shifted to the Yi in my pharmacy, where Senior Ju Qin and Junior Xian er let Yi Han. Standing at the entrance, Senior Ju Qin said, Yay, sir, this is the pharmacy established since my Yi Mai sect was founded, and the blood essence of the spirit grass is inside. As he spoke, Senior Ju Qin pointed forward. Upon hearing this, Yi Han looked in that direction. He moved forward and stopped in front of a small garden. Yi Han sat down, gently observing. He exclaimed in surprise, Seven emotions grass, six yang fruit, hundred spirit mushroom. These are all precious medicinal herbs. Bai Gong Xian, er couldn't help but marvel, joyfully rushing to Yi Han and exclaiming loudly, 
There's so much spiritual energy here. I never expected our new my sect to have such a good place. Why didn't our sect leader mention it earlier? Hearing this, Senior Ju Sin continued, Over the past few thousand years, it hasn't been easy for our Yi my sect to cultivate this herbal garden. If we were to let the younger generation know, it might have been destroyed long ago. Senior Ju Sin then turned to Bai Gong Xian Er and said, Xian Er, focus on your cultivation. What does our sect need with this herbal garden? Upon hearing this, Bai Gong Xian Er quickly replied, Senior, it's not easy for you to make a rare appearance. People just want to be closer to you and have a convenient opportunity to talk to Yi Han. Senior Ju Xin hastily responded, What does this old man have that you want to be close to? If you want to be close to someone, find someone else. Embarrassed, Bai Gong Xian, or hesitated, and said, Senior is talking nonsense again, disciple. Before Bai Gong Xian, or could finish speaking, Senior Ju Xin understood her intention and quickly interjected, All right, all right. Today, we'll follow your lead. Let's go inside. Meanwhile, Yi Han continued to observe his surroundings attentively. As Senior Ju Xin walked away, he thought, if I can facilitate a connection between Yi Han and Xian Er, it could strengthen Yi Han's relationship with the Yi Mai sect. It wouldn't be a bad thing. Arriving at a waterfall, all three of them stopped to gaze. Ahead, there stood a solitary, large Lingji mushroom. As they approached, Senior Ju Xin said, Yea, sir, this is the blood essence Lingji. When you harvested it, you left the roots, and after several years, it has a chance to grow again. Hearing this, Yi Han walked closer, sat down, and observed. He raised his hand to stroke his chin in thought, asking, Senior, may I inquire about the age of this blood essence Lingji? Senior Ju Xin hastily replied, In the past, I harvested it once to help stabilize Wu Yu's primordial energy. Since it regrew, it has been over twenty years. What do you think, Yi sir? Would you prefer a Lingji with more years? Hearing this, Yi Han quickly responded, A few more years are needed. The medicinal potency is still insufficient. Yi Han fell into contemplation, thinking, To completely cure Ling Kao, I'll need a blood essence, Lingji aged fifty years or more at least. Hearing this, Bai Gong Xian, her hurriedly ran back to Senior Ju Xin, anxiously saying, What should we do now? Yi Han is urgently in need of using Lingji to save someone. Senior, Senior, please think of a way to help Yi Han. Seeing this, Senior Ju Xin calmly replied, The age of the blood essence, Lingji, is determined by nature. There's nothing I can do. Suddenly, Yi Han extended his hand straight into the water and said, Senior, if I'm not mistaken, there's a small spiritual vein beneath this lake. This place is excellent for cultivating rare herbs and serves as the source of spiritual energy here. Finishing his words, Senior Ju Xin responded, Correct, indeed, someone with good perception. At this moment, in her mind, she silently evaluated. He can discern the presence of a spiritual vein with just a glance. It seems this young one possesses yin-yang vision. Hearing this, Yi Han continued, If there is a spiritual vein, it's manageable. I can guide the spiritual vein to stimulate the growth of the blood essence Lingji. However, doing so may significantly reduce the spiritual energy in this herbal garden within a few years. Upon hearing this, Senior Ju Xin quickly replied, If it's just a few years, there's no obstacle. However, I'd never heard of using spiritual energy to stimulate the growth of herbs. Are you sure about this? Senior Ju Xin stared directly at Yi Han, silently thinking. As long as I can pull Yi Han towards Yet Mai, even if I have to gift him this entire herbal garden, it wouldn't matter. Seeing that Senior Ju Xin wasn't concerned about the consequences, Yi Han happily drew out his dagger and said, In that case, watch this, Senior. Finishing his words, Yi Han immediately used the dagger to cut a long line on the ground. At this moment, water from the lake began to flow towards the base of the blood essence, Ling Ji Tree. Yi Han then swiftly used his spiritual power to control the flow of spiritual energy on the blood essence Lingji. In an instant, the blood essence Lingji grew rapidly. Senior Ju Xin, witnessing this, couldn't help but be amazed, exclaiming, Unexpectedly, the blood essence Lingji rose so quickly. What a miraculous technique! Senior Ju Xin silently thought, Regardless, I must make Yi Han part of the Yi Mai sect. Bai Gong Xian, Er was also incredibly astonished, her eyes filled with admiration. 
She prays, Yi Han, that's impressive. Hearing this, Yi Han quickly wiped the sweat from his forehead with his hand, joyfully saying, just a bit more, and the blood essence, Lingji, will reach 50 years. Suddenly, a loud noise echoed, and Yi Han quickly looked in the direction. He tightly grasped the dagger in his hand, furrowing his brow and asking, what's that? From the thicket, a large snake along with a giant spider and other menacing creatures appeared. They aggressively approached Yi Han. Seeing this, Senior Ju Xin, alarmed, shouted loudly, This isn't good. The sudden increase in spiritual energy from the blood essence, Lingji, has attracted many demonic beasts. Bai Gong Xian Er, frightened, quickly hid behind Senior Ju Xin and Yi Han, shouting in a panic, I'm most afraid of snakes and insects. Yi Han, Senior, what should we do now? Yi Han sensed the precarious situation and carefully observed before saying, It's inevitable. These demonic beasts are all here for the blood essence Lingji. The only option now is to confront them directly. Seeing this, Bai Gong Xian Er, worried, quickly responded, Senior, please wait. Yi Han, without waiting to hear her plea, immediately pushed Senior Ju Xin and Bai Gong Xian Er back and, with sharp eyes, continued. There are too many demonic beasts here. If we really have to fight, the blood essence Lingxi might get damaged. It's better to let me try talking to them first, see if I can advise them to retreat. Observing this, Senior Ju Xin, hearing Yi Han's suggestion, quickly asked, Do you intend to persuade these demonic beasts to withdraw? That's impossible. The blood essence Lingxi over 50 years is a divine elixir for them. It won't be easy to convince them to retreat. Bai Gong Xian, or hurriedly added, Exactly, Yi Han. These demonic beasts don't understand human language. It's safer not to risk it. We should guard here for now and signal for our masters to come and assist us. Hearing this, Yi Han turned his head to glance at the two and replied, Don't worry. These demonic beasts have been absorbing the essence of heaven and earth for many years. There's already a bit of Lingji in them. They're just trying to secretly obtain some spiritual energy from within the Lingji for their cultivation. If I have something better, I might be able to persuade them to withdraw. Without saying much, Yi Han knelt down in front of a demonic beast. Hearing this, Senior Juke Sin anxiously tried to intervene, saying, Yi Han, doing this is truly dangerous. Bai Gong Xian Er added, Yi Han, it's best not to provoke anything. Ignoring their concerns, Yi Han immediately presented a pill containing spiritual energy to the demonic beast in front. He calmly said, Come on, would you like to try this? Although this item contains less spiritual energy than the blood essence Lingji, it is extremely effective for your cultivation. Then, Yi Han placed the golden pill on the ground. Seeing this, the demonic beast approached, sniffed, and slowly tasted it. After eating, the demonic beast made a few understanding sounds. Yi Han, with a smile, said, Do you want more? I can give you a few more of these pills. However, you must lead the other demonic beast behind you, to leave immediately. Hearing this, the demonic beast slapped its chest with its hand, making a chirping sound, indicating its agreement with Yi Han's proposal. Then, the white wolf immediately turned around and growled a few times, frightening the remaining demonic beasts. Subsequently, all the demonic beasts ran away. Seeing this, Senior Ju Xin gasped in surprise and said, The demonic beasts, they've all fled. In Ju Xin's mind, he secretly thought, Finally, Yi Han has taken out some kind of pill. I didn't expect it to influence the White Wolf to obey him like this. Bai Gong Xian Er, witnessing this, had a face full of admiration. She clapped her hands vigorously and said, Yi Han, that's amazing. Seeing this, Yi Han smiled with joy gently raising his hand to Pat and said, You did great. This reward is yours. Hearing this, the snow fox happily made two sounds and then happily accepted its reward. Yi Han looked around and said, Two more to go. He tossed a pill toward the two creatures while advising, You've seen the reaction of the snow fox. This pill has great benefits for your cultivation. If you withdraw, you can also receive a similar reward. However, both the python and the poisonous spider didn't bother to eat the pill. They used their tails and legs to fling the pill away. Seeing this, Bai Gong Xian Er, fearful, touched Senior Yin Mei's shoulder and asked softly, Senior, why won't these two demonic creatures eat the pill? 
Hearing Sienna's question, Senior Ye Mai quickly explained, These two demonic creatures, unlike the snow fox, have a strong and distinct scent of blood on them. They likely frequently feed on humans or other demonic beasts. Moreover, their objectives seem to be different from stealing the blood essence Lingji, and they are aware of our presence as well. Seeing that these demonic beasts were about to attack, Yi Han smiled, holding the short sword and said, If negotiation is not an option, then don't blame me for being ruthless. Hearing Yi Han's words, Senior Yi Mai suggested, Mr. Yi, although my age is advanced, I am not useless. Leave that python to this old lady to deal with. Seeing that Senior Yi Mai wanted to fight the python, Xi Er immediately said, Senior, you must be careful. At that moment, Yi Han raised his hand to stop them and said, Hold on, seniors. These demonic creatures are probably all from Mount Yamai. Hearing this, Senior Yi Mai exclaimed, Indeed, on Mount Yamai, there is abundant spiritual energy. These demonic beasts, over time, will absorb the celestial essence and undergo mutations. Upon hearing Senior Yi Mai say this, Yi Han pondered and said, So even if we manage to drive them away today, if the medicinal plants in the herb garden mature later, they will return. In this situation, sooner or later, our medicinal plants will be devoured by them. Senior Yi Mai then mused, This is a situation beyond our control. On Mount Yamai, spiritual energy is abundant everywhere. When the medicinal plants mature, these demonic creatures will come in large numbers. It's also impossible to transfer the medicinal plants to another area. Hearing this, Yi Han expressed, I suddenly came up with a few ideas. Senior, if we bring these demonic creatures here, along with the snow fox from earlier, we might be able to protect our medicinal herb garden. If we know how to manage them, this precious herb garden can be safeguarded indefinitely. Senior Yi Mai asked in surprise, What? Bring the python and poisonous spider here? Is that possible? Sien Er, standing beside them, also expressed concern, saying, Exactly, Yi Han. If the snow fox can be tamed with pills, it's not the same for the python and spider. How can we tame them? Do you have a way to tame these demonic creatures? Yi Han replied, You're right. I do have a way to tame them. And that is? Well, let me explain it to them. Hearing this, Senior Yi Mai was puzzled. Explain? How can you talk to them? Yi Han approached the two demonic creatures and said, You two, how about serving under my command? The two demonic creatures immediately showed signs of opposition, and Yi Han, seeing this, said, No response, huh? It seems we can only rely on the principle of taming then. Without further ado, Yi Han launched an attack on the two demonic creatures, declaring, If you don't want to serve under my command, I'll give you one last chance. If you refuse, I'll extract your liver for brewing, and as for your poisonous body, it can also be used for medicine. Observing Yi Han's unconventional method of taming, both Senior Ye Mai and Tian Er were astonished. Senior Ye Mai questioned, Is this a method of taming based on reasoning? While Xian Er exclaimed, This method of taming is indeed extraordinary. Even the snow fox, having obtained a few pills, ran away in fright, and it looked back, shouting a few times as if to say, Scared the fox to death. Luckily, I was quick-witted. After a brief battle, Yi Han asked the two creatures, Do you submit now? Following the method of taming I mentioned, which involves using force. The two demonic creatures, with wounds covering their bodies after being struck by Yi Han, appeared frightened and nodded in apparent agreement. Satisfied, Yi Han commanded, Good, from now on, you and the snow fox will protect the medicinal herb garden together and drive away other demonic creatures. Every month the Yi Mai sect will provide cultivation pills for you. Do you understand? Turning back towards Senior Ye Mei and Xian Er, Yi Han signaled that the task had been accomplished and stated, Senior, it's sell now. Xian Er, greatly admiring Yi Han, exclaimed, Yi Han, truly impressive. She then thought, This is the ideal man in my heart. Meanwhile, Senior Ye Mai thought, In any case, Yi Han has helped our Ye Mai sect resolve a significant problem. He is truly a blessing for our sect. While Yi Han dealt with the demonic creatures, the blood origin spirit grass continued to grow. At this moment, Yi Han discovered it with joy and said, The blood origin spirit grass has grown, just turned 50 years old. This time, Ling Kao is saved. 
Senior Ye Mai also happily remarked, It seems Yi Tensen's efforts have been rewarded. This box is made of ice jade. Yi Tensen, you can store the blood origin spirit grass in here for preservation, ensuring it maintains its maximum spiritual power. Surprised by Senior Yi Mai's gesture of giving him a box, Yi Han extended his hands to receive it, saying, Thank you, Senior. There's one more thing bothering Senior. A friend of mine is currently down the mountain taking care of Ling Kao. I hope Senior can arrange for them to be brought up here. After successfully harvesting the blood origin spirit grass and heading to rescue Ruin Ling Kao, upon hearing Yi Han's request, Xi'an Er immediately volunteered, saying, Master, let your disciple go help Yi Tensin fetch his friend. Xi'an Er also thought, I need to see who this girl is to have Yi Han disregarding danger and rushing into the Yi Mai sect like this. When Senior Yi Mai heard that Xi'an Er had accepted the task, he said, All right, then entrust the matter of receiving Mr. Yi's guest to Xi'an Er. With the approval of Senior Yi Mei, Xi'an Er happily replied, Understood, I will comply. After a while, when Yi Han brought back the box containing the original blood spirit grass, Du Wen Wen quickly approached and asked, Ye, have you obtained the original blood spirit grass? Yi Han, still holding the box, turned towards Ruin Ling Kao with a smile and replied, Yes, I have. Next, I can treat Ruin Ling Kao's illness. Upon hearing this, Du Wen Wen scratched his head and laughed, saying, I knew it. As long as Yi takes action, everything can be resolved. Senior Ye Mai and Xian are also approached Ruin Ling Kyo's bedside. Seeing Ruin Ling Kyo's beauty, Xian or couldn't help but think, this is the girl Mr. Yi has always paid attention to. It truly makes me jealous, but I'm not inferior to her in any way. At that moment, Senior Yi Mai asked, Mr. Yi, this original blood spirit grass possesses significant power and cannot be directly consumed. Do you intend to use it for alchemy? Or Yi Han took out the blood spirit grass, examined it, and replied, No need for complications. I just need to extract its essence. Hearing this, Senior Ye Mai found it puzzling and asked again, What is Mr. Yi's intention? Immediately, Yi Han handed the box over to Duan Wen. Meanwhile, holding the original blood spirit grass, I began, invoke the demon's medicinal technique, transform the spiritual essence in reverse executing a series of spells that no one understood. After a while, when the process was completed, Xi'an Er couldn't see the original blood spirit grass anymore and asked, What happened? Why can't we see the original blood spirit grass anymore? Senior Yi Mai showed understanding and smiled, saying, No, the original blood spirit grass hasn't disappeared. It has been transformed into a different form. Mr. Yi, am I right? At this moment, Yi Han opened his palm revealing that there was now only a small amount of the original blood spirit grass. He explained, Indeed, Senior had sharp eyes. I used a technique to eliminate impurities inside the original blood spirit grass, and now it has transformed into this new shape. Hearing this, Senior Yi Mai commented, This technique is truly unheard of. Mr. Yi, you are truly a master of hidden talents. Xian Er, full of admiration, exclaimed, Mr. Ye, you are amazing. At this point, Yi Han approached Ruin Ling Kyo's bedside, helped her sit up, and said, All right, everything is prepared. Now, all that's left is for Ruin Ling Kyo to drink it, and the essence of the original blood spirit grass will work its magic. However, suddenly he became awkward, unsure of how to administer the medicine to Ruin Ling Kyo, who was unconscious. He turned and asked with a smile, Senior, how do you give medicine to someone who is unconscious? Ling Kiao seems unwilling to open her mouth. Upon hearing Yi Han's question, Duan Wen, standing nearby, chuckled and said, I know, I've seen this situation in many movies. Usually, the male lead uses mouth-to-mouth -to, -mouth to feed the female lead. Then the female lead wakes up and later on, they embrace on the bed, and by that time. As Duan Wen laughed and spoke, Yi Han immediately covered Duan Wen's mouth and said, That's enough. Duan Wen. Stop talking. Xi'an Er, hearing this, first expressed surprise, covering her mouth and saying, Embrace on the bed. Then she immediately raised both hands in protest, saying loudly, No, absolutely not. I won't allow it. While Yi Han held Duan Wen tightly by the neck, Duan Wen, 
still puzzled, asked, Why you oppose this? What does it have to do with you? Hearing Duan Wen's question, despite being visibly upset, she and her stammered, I, I, meanwhile, Senior Yi Mai commented, Indeed, youth is impulsive. Mr. Yi, why not let this old lady handle it? Yi Han readily agreed, saying, Then I'll trouble Senior. Then, Senior Yi and Mai pointed down, controlling Ru Wen Ling Kao to open her mouth. Immediately, Ru Wen Ling Kao complied, and Yi Han took the opportunity to feed her the medicine, saying, Indeed, Senior is formidable. Ling Kao, you will recover quickly. Observing this, Xi and her sighed in relief, thinking. Fortunately, he didn't use mouth-to-mouth -to, -mouth to feed her the medicine. When Ru and Ling Kiao successfully ingested the original blood spirit grass, her body immediately responded. A moment later, she opened her eyes and stammered, I, I am here. Seeing Ru and Ling Kiao waking up, Yi Han joyfully exclaimed, Ling Kiao, you finally awakened. Upon seeing Yi Han in front of her, Ru and Ling Kiao immediately hugged him, crying and asking, Ye Han, what happened to me? Yi Han comforted Ru and Ling Kao, saying, It's okay, everything is over now. You are safe and sound. Seeing the two embracing, Si and Er pretended to be extremely upset and said, I'm furious. Observing Si and Er's reaction, Senior Yim I thought, regardless of the outcome, Xi and Er's feelings for Yi Han must be more decisive, and if there's something I want to ask him for, I must find the right opportunity to discuss it. With that in mind, Senior Yi Mai said, Mr. Yi, could you accompany me for a moment? I have something private to discuss with you. Hearing Senior Yi Mai's request, Yi Han immediately agreed, saying, Sure. He then gently stroked Ling Kyo's head and said, Ling Kao, rest for a bit. I need to step out for a moment. Hearing this, Ru and Ling Kyo agreed, saying, I'll wait for you to come back. Meanwhile, San Er was outside, pacing angrily kicking randomly, and muttering. Wicked woman. Unbelievably hugging Mr. Yi so casually, while I haven't even had the chance to hold him. As Senior Ye Mai and Yi Han stepped out through the door, she and her spotted them. She remarked, Master and Mr. Ye. Seeing the two continuing their walk, she and her thought, Where are they going? I'll secretly follow and find out. Once they reached a secluded area, Yi Han asked, Senior, why did you call me out here? At this point, Senior Ye Mai, aware that Xi and Er was following and hiding behind a tree, said, Mr. Yi, how do you feel about Xi and Er and our group? Yi Han replied, Xi and Er, she is a very kind and well-intentioned person, with no malicious intent. Yi Han also noticed Xi and Er hiding behind the tree, thinking, Ju Xin, I've spotted Xi and Er hiding behind the tree. Senior must be aware of it and wants to discuss something with me. Lost in thought, Yi Han suddenly heard Senior Yi Mai say, I want to arrange a marriage for you with Xi and Er. After the two of you get married, I will pass on the position of the Yi Mai sect leader to you. What do you think? Hearing this, Yi Han was startled and asked, What? Marry Xi and Er and become the sect leader. He thought, The price Senior is offering is too high. Am I supposed to become the sect leader at such a cost? Xi and Er, hiding under the tree and eavesdropping felt moved, thinking, Master wants to arrange a marriage for me and Mr. Ye. Senior Ye Mai replied, Exactly, Xi and Er. You are the most talented disciple in the Ye Mai sect, and your appearance is unmatched. If the two of you get married, it will undoubtedly elevate the Ye Mai sect to dominance in the martial arts world. Hearing this, Ye Han quickly responded, Wait, Senior, I already have a girlfriend. Moreover, the position of sect leader is a significant responsibility. Entrusting it to someone like me from outside is not appropriate. Upon hearing Yi Han's words, Senior Yi and Mai chuckled and said, A girlfriend is not a wife. Besides, you talk about waiting until you marry Xi and Er. You are no longer an outsider. At that time, the entire Yi Mai sect will become your support, relying on your talent to potentially dominate the martial arts world of Zhang Hua Gu. As for Xi and Er, she was pondering, Master unexpectedly wants me to marry Mr. Yi. Mr. Yi might, perhaps, agree. However, Yi Han immediately declined, saying, I'm afraid I have to disappoint Senior. My relationship with my girlfriend is very strong, and I have no desire to become the leader of the Yi Mai sect.
I appreciate seniors' kindness, but what I want, I will achieve on my own, without relying on anyone's help. Hearing Yi Han's rejection, Tian Er thought, Mr. D unexpectedly refusing. Does he dislike me? Upon hearing Yi Han's refusal, Senior Yi Mai said, If Mr. D doesn't want it, then I won't insist. The old lady also thought, Tian Er, Master can only help you up to this point. Upon hearing Yi Han's rejection, she and her decided not to eavesdrop anymore and came forward, asking, Mr. Gi, she and her, what's wrong? Why don't you agree to Master's proposal? Seeing she and her stepping forward to ask, Senior Yi and Mai was surprised and asked, she and her, what's wrong? But Yi Han interrupted, saying, she and her, it's not that you're not good. It's just that my girlfriend, before Yi Han could finish his sentence, she and her burst into tears and asked, your girlfriend is not Ru and Ling Kao, it's she. What's wrong with me compared to her? Seeing Si and Er speak, Yi Han scratched his head and explained, Ru and Ling Kao is not my girlfriend, she's just a friend. After explaining he thought, saying it like that feels a bit like being a bad boy. Hearing Yi Han say that, Xi and Er became angry and asked, What? She's not your girlfriend, but you do so much for her, even humming her. Yi Han replied, I treat all my friends the same way. If you really want me by my side, you have to accept this. Saying this, he thought, by saying that maybe I can make Xi Er give up hope on me. Hearing him say that, Xi Er turned angrily and said, Mr. Yi, I never expected you to be that kind of person. Master was right. Men are all the same. Seeing Xi Er upset, Senior Ye Mai had to apologize on her behalf, saying, Mr. Yi, I apologize for her outburst. Xian Er is a bit childish. I hope you don't mind. Yi Han chuckled. It's okay. Xian Er is young and still has a lot to learn about love. She'll understand as she grows up. After Xian Er left, Senior Yi Mai continued. Now that Xian Er is gone, Mr. Yi, let's discuss some important matters related to your eyes. Upon hearing this, Yi Han immediately touched his eyes and asked, My eyes. He thought, Yin Yang divine eyes and all the techniques I cultivate were realized after obtaining this power. Inside this strange jade ornament, Ju Xin, how does she know that I have yin yang divine eyes? The old lady asked again, exactly these eyes might be the yin yang divine eyes, right? This old lady has lived until now, knowing many secrets in the martial world, including some understanding about its origins. Hearing this, Yi Han respectfully said, I hope Senior will guide me, and I deeply appreciate your knowledge. He then thought, when my parents suddenly disappeared back then, they left behind this jade ornament. If I can learn about the origins of Yin Yang Divine Eyes, I might uncover information about my parents. Senior Ju Xin continued, Here is the tomb of Ji Wu Ho. Since the time of the Republic of China, this is where the story began. It is rumored that Ji Wu Ho possessed a piece of Yin Yang Jade, and the royal classics and tomb inscriptions are precious treasures. Many forces within the country have set their eyes on them, leading to wars for the artifacts, including our master. Hearing Ju Xin speak, Yi Han immediately asked, Ji Wu Hu, does senior mean Ji Leon? At the same time, he thought, Yin Yang Jade, this name seems related to the Yin Yang divine eyes that I possess. Could it be? Ju Xin senior replied, that's right, it's Ji Leong from the ancient state of Shu. It is said that he became dominant in his region with the help of these three treasures. However, I don't know much about the royal classics and tube inscriptions. As for the Yin Yang Jade, my master mentioned it a couple of times before his disappearance. Yi Han then inquired, What is the history of the Yin Yang Jade and who possessed it back then? Ju Xin Sr. answered, At that time, there were numerous powerful forces and the situation was extremely chaotic. It's unclear in whose hands it finally fell. The Yin Yang Jade is said to be the protector of a prominent Yin Yang clan, with a mysterious history dating back to the era of the spring and autumn warring states. There are inscriptions on it, indicating the determination of the monarch and the legacy of the Yin Yang Divine Eyes. Upon hearing this, Yi Han appeared contemplative and remarked, The era of the spring and autumn warring states, it sounds quite mystical. I wonder if it has any connection to my yin-yang medical art. Observing Yi Han's curiosity, Ju Xin Sr. continued, It does indeed sound dubious. I was skeptical myself before meeting you. However, 
After encountering you, I now believe that this legend might hold some truth. Seeing this, Yi Han expressed his gratitude, saying, Thank you, Senior, for sharing this information with me. I am sincerely grateful. If you encounter any difficulties in the future, please feel free to reach out to me. Having gained valuable insights, he thought, this journey to the Yi Mai sect not only helped cure Ling Keo's illness, but also provided information about the Jade Pendant and a bit of insight into my parents' background. It was worthwhile coming here. Upon hearing Yi Han's words, Ju Xin Sr. happily replied, I don't think you need to wait until later. If you want to repay, you can do it now. Surprised by Ju Xin's suggestion, Yi Han hurriedly responded, Senior, if you're talking about marrying Xian Er, I truly cannot fulfill that request. Other matters are fine, but this one specifically is not possible. However, Ju Xin Sr. clarified, Not that matter. I want you to become the supreme elder of the Yimai sect, with authority equivalent to the sect leader. Normally, you may not need to worry about sect matters, but issues related to the survival and prosperity of the sect must be addressed. With this proposition, Yi Han thought, the fate of the Yi Mai sect for the next century may depend on my capabilities. Hearing Ju Xin Patriarch's words, Yi Han immediately replied, Want me to be the Patriarch? This doesn't seem right. I think being an outsider and sending Yi Mai, who is entirely female, would be more appropriate, considering I am a man. He pondered, If I agree with Ju Xin, wouldn't I bear the burden of the survival of a sect? The responsibility is too great. Yi Mai Patriarch waved his hand and said to Yi Han, don't worry, I have a way. Ye come closer to me. Ye Han approached Ye my patriarch and asked, Senior, what you want? Then, Ju Chin matriarch used the nine heart link seal to strike towards Ye Han, making him startle and sit down on the ground. He asked anxiously, Senior, what is this? Ye my patriarch laughed and said, Consider it done. Seeing this, Ye Han immediately questioned, Senior, why did you attack me? Juch Sin Matriarch immediately shouted, Don't talk, immediately sensed the spiritual energy in your body. Upon hearing that, he quickly sensed it, and when he lifted his robe, he found a mark. Unable to contain his curiosity, he asked, What is this? Yi Mai Patriarch wiped his sweat and replied, Indeed, it was successful. Yi, rest assured, this is the inherited mark of my condensed cultivation power. After you absorb it, it will help you advance in strength and it won't harm you. Yi Han quickly stood up and asked, Senior, why did you have to do that? This is a lifetime cultivation effort of yours. If you want to pass it on, you should pass it to your own disciples from the Yi Mai faction. Yi Mai Patriarch explained solemnly, You think I don't want to. But unfortunately, only those with similar spiritual energy cultivation can inherit my legacy. However, individuals with this type of life force are truly rare. I had to wait on this Yume mountain for nearly a hundred years before you finally came. Although you are not from our Niyumai faction, you are considered to have a close relationship with Wu Yu and Ling Wu Fei. Hearing this, Yi Han asked, Senior, what happens to your body after transferring the spiritual energy to me? Ju Xin Matriarch, upon hearing the question, said, This old-fashioned lady has long exhausted her strength, and it's because of the Yi Mai faction that I've continued to hold on. If I hadn't met you, I wouldn't have been able to endure for a few more years. Yi Han, I'm not asking you to care too much about the Yi Mai faction. I just ask that if the Yi Mai faction faces life and death situations in the future, you can help us out of respect for this old lady. At this point, Yi Han finally agreed and expressed, Senior, you've spoken like this. It seems there's truly a heavy burden. Yi Han, I swear by the heavens and earth here. If the Yi Mai faction encounters trouble one day, I will do my utmost to help. He took the golden command token that Juke Sin Matriarch handed to him and added, Senior Juke Sin's feelings are truly profound. I can only accept it with gratitude. With everything settled, Ye Mai Patriarch turned around and said, With these words, I can rest assured. If the matter is resolved, then this old lady won't trouble you and the young lady anymore. Staying firm for so many years, this old lady can finally rest peacefully. Seeing this, Yi Han immediately bowed in gratitude and said, Senior, take care. He silently admired, Senior Ju Xin, thinking for the development of the Yi Mai faction throughout your entire life. Living a tired life like this, 
But such individuals make me even more respectful. A few days later at Shanghai Airport, Yi Han joyfully said, Finally, back home. Ruin Ling Kiao expressed her appreciation, saying, Yi Han, thank you for helping me so much. I, I want to invite you to my house for a meal. Are you free? Hearing that, Yi Han happily replied, Of course, I'll bring this sister, Duan Ni, and also invite Zhao and the others to your house for a hearty meal. Come to think of it, it's been a while since everyone gathered together. Ruling Ling Kao reluctantly pretended to be happy, saying, Sure, that's fine, it's good to have a get-together. In her heart, she felt sad, thinking, Ye Han, I actually just want to be alone with you. At that moment, a red car pulled up in front of the three. Duan Nai stepped out of the car with excitement, calling, Li Han, seeing Duan Ni. Ye Han also appeared delighted, extending his arms and smiling. Duan Nai, how did you know I'd be back today? I missed you a lot. Duan Ni, equally joyful, raised her hands and said, Li Han, I missed you too. However, Duan Nai immediately changed her attitude, angrily grabbing Yi Han's ear and scolding. You scoundrel, how do you still know the way back? You had so much fun outside. You didn't even answer my calls. I won't let you off the hook today. With Duan Nei pinching his ear, Yi Han winced in pain, hastily explaining, I was in the Yi Mei Mountain. The signal was very weak. I didn't ignore your calls on purpose. It hurts so much, it hurts. Ruin Ling Kiao stood observing, witnessing the interactions between Yi Han and Duan Nei, and thought to herself, They are an official couple. Ruin Ling Kiao, what dreams are you still holding on to? Suddenly remembering something, Yi Han leaned close to Duan Ni's ear and said, All oh right, Ling Kao is here. Don't create a scene. Hearing this, Duan Ni couldn't help but feel angry, thinking, And I forgot, there's someone else next to Yi Han. Seeing that Duan Ni had let go of his ear, Yi Han happily remarked, Finally, I've escaped the calamity. Duan Ni then said, We'll settle the score tonight. Hearing that, Yi Han laughed joyfully and said, Then I'll be waiting for you. He felt triumphant, thinking, Now that my strength has increased significantly, I must make her call me father tonight. That evening, Yi Han hastily grabbed his clothes, rushed out of the villa, and shouted, Duan, Duan Ni, it's almost dawn, I really have to go home. Duan Nai, wrapped in a bath towel, also came out, yelling, Yi Han, you can't escape, I'll come to your house tomorrow. Yi Han continued running without turning back, just raising his hand and saying, Tomorrow's matters. Let's worry about them tomorrow. Once he was out of Duan Ni's house, he walked sadly, saying, I thought with this increase in strength I could change my role. But it turns out, it's just a tired ox, not a blooming flower. The ancients were right. Suddenly, his phone rang, and as he looked at the caller's name, he thought, Hu Feng. Calling this late must mean something's up. As he answered the phone, Yi Han immediately asked, Hello, Hu Feng, what's up? Hu Feng, soaking in a bathtub, responded, If there's nothing going on, why would I call you? Why disturb your happy time with your little girlfriend? Upon hearing Hu Feng's words, Yi Han pretended to cough three times and said, If there's something, just say it. Don't drag irrelevant matters into the conversation. Hu Feng, still in the bathtub, Sipping on fruit-infused water, spoke, fine, on the side of the safety bureau. There's a new mission for you. After all, you've been quite idle lately. The specific documents have been sent to you, and the mission location is Fushan University. All you need to do is protect the target for one month. Hearing this, Yi Han exclaimed loudly, Fushan University? Come on, you're not telling me to take the entrance exam there, are you? I haven't even graduated from high school yet, and now you want me to take the university entrance exam. Are you kidding me? Hu Feng laughed and said, Don't worry, I've taken care of your identity. Just go find Principal Zhang. That's it, got go. After saying this, she hung up abruptly. Yi Han hurriedly shouted into the phone. What's going on? I haven't agreed yet. Hello. Realizing that Hu Feng had hung up, Yi Han angrily said, Forget it, I have to accept this mission. Consider it repaying the favor to Hu Feng for helping me back in Yan Jing. In the following days at Fuchan University, Yi Han looked at the information sent to his phone, which included a picture of a girl. He remarked, The target to be protected this time is named Lai Han Yan, an exchange student from Huanjiang University who transferred here. 
There's no other information. It seems the background of this girl, named Lai Han Yan, is not simple. Right at that moment, the university security guard loudly exclaimed, Hold on. What are you doing? Are you a student of our school? If you are, quickly show me your student ID for verification. Yi Han, still looking at his phone, responded with two words, Not yet, but soon. The security guard, hearing this, sneered and said, Don't talk nonsense. Do you think I don't know what you're up to? You want to come here to admire the campus beauties, huh? You don't even have the decency to look at yourself in the mirror. Students here don't resemble thieves and robbers like you. Be sensible and leave. Hearing the security guard's words, Yi Han could only manage to say, Oh, just then, a girl in a red convertible arrived and asked, What's going on? The security guard, seeing her, happily explained, Miss Wang, you've arrived. It's nothing. Just a guy who doesn't know his place trying to pursue a female student from our school. I'll chase him away immediately. Upon hearing this, the girl in the red car disdainfully said, a toad wanting to eat swan meat. With someone like this, we absolutely cannot let him into our school. Hearing the words of the girl referred to as Miss Wang, the security guard immediately assured, rest assured, Miss Wang, I guarantee I'll complete the task. Hearing Miss Wang's remark, Yi Han, puzzled, said, I, I'm a toad wanting to eat swan meat. Following Ms. Wang's instructions, the security guard sternly scolded Yi Han. Close your eyes and leave immediately, or do you want me to take action against you? Yi Han calmly took out his phone and made a call, taunting in the meantime, hit me and in a little while, we'll see who hits whom. Hello, is this Principal Zhang? I'm Yi Han, currently being barred from entering your school while you were security guards. Upon hearing this, the school security guard burst into laughter, saying, Are you trying to tell me that you're familiar with the school principal? Stop pretending. You can make a phone call if you want. Ask the principal to come here. You're dreaming too big. People around, upon hearing about the principal's arrival, each murmured to themselves, Is this kid crazy? Just to enter the school, he dragged the principal into this mess. The principal hasn't been seen for a year. Probably doesn't even know this person's name. He must have just randomly picked someone to scare off. I want to stay here for a while and see how he embarrasses himself. Meanwhile, Teacher Wang arrived in a red car, expressing her frustration. The dignity of Fuxian School must be upheld. How can we justify letting an ignorant kid disrupt it? I'll definitely recommend to the principal to reinforce the security staff. Principal Zhang, still on the phone, rushed over, sweating profusely, and said, All right, wait for a moment. I'll be there immediately. Principal Zhang was running and happened to meet Wang Chao on the way. Seeing Principal Zhang in a hurry, Wang Chao asked in surprise, Principal Zhang, where are you rushing off to like this? Upon seeing Wang Chao, Principal Zhang immediately said, Teacher Wang, your timing is perfect. There's a student who has been specially transferred to your class. Please come with me to welcome this student. Hearing this, Wang Chao was taken aback and asked, What? Are we supposed to go together to welcome a student? Principal Zhang, did you make a mistake? What kind of student could make both of us go and personally welcome them? Principal Zhang replied, This student is. I can't disclose the details. Anyway, just follow me. This new student has a very special background. Hearing this, Wang Xiao thought, A special background, maybe a research genius, or someone who has won numerous awards nationally and internationally. But it shouldn't be to the extent that the principal has to do this. Meanwhile, at the entrance of Fushan University, a crowd had gathered, each person continuing to mock Yi Han. Who is that kid standing there half a day? When he speaks, you might not believe it, but he claims that Principal Zhang is personally coming to welcome him. He must think he's some kind of national hero. The stuff he's wearing doesn't even cost 300 yuan. He probably isn't from a wealthy family. Is he obsessed with playing the role of a rich kid to such an extent? The school security guard sneered, saying, Kid, it's better not to argue here anymore. You've made your phone call, but even if the principal is coming, my advice is for you to leave now. If you continue causing trouble here, I'll have someone kick you out. Despite hearing the comments from the people and the security guard, Yi Han remained calm, looking at his phone and saying, It's been a while. Maybe the person is almost here. At that moment, Principal Zhang's voice echoed. What are you all doing gathered here? Hurry up and go to your classes. The security guard greeted him, thinking, 
I didn't expect him to come with Teacher Wang. Could it be that they're really here for this kid? Wang Xiao approached, saw Yi Han, and thought, Why is this troublemaker still here? She immediately pointed at Yi Han and said, Security, why haven't you kicked him out yet? Do it now. The security guard, receiving the order, cheerfully said, Certainly, I'll immediately have someone escort him out. He thought to himself, If Teacher Wang and Principal Zhang had come together because of this kid's phone call, she wouldn't have said what she just did. It seems I was just scaring myself. As for the people around, upon hearing Teacher Wang's words, they started buzzing with speculation. When Principal Zhang appeared, I was a bit surprised. I thought it was really because of him. But now that I think about it, Principal Zhang is the head of Fuchan University. How could he know someone of this lower status? It seems Principal Zhang just happened to be here coincidentally. The school security guard forcefully twisted his wrist and said, You little troublemaker, leave now or don't blame me for using force to kick you out. Seeing this, Principal Zhang hurriedly said, Wait, however, the security guard immediately responded, Principal, no need to worry about this matter. I'll take care of this troublemaker right away. Principal Zhang immediately gave the security guard a slap on the ear and scolded, Deal with your own head. Everyone around was instantly surprised and started buzzing. This can't be true. I didn't see it wrong. Principal Zhang, usually so gentle, is now hitting someone. Moreover, the person he hit is a security guard. What's going on? Could it be that this kid really managed to call the principal here? The security guard, who was struck, sat on the ground, bewildered, saying, I got hit. What on earth is this about? At this moment, Yi Han approached the fallen security guard, showing sympathy, and saying, I call the principal right in front of you. If you weren't afraid then, it's too late now. You brought this upon yourself. Wang Xiao, witnessing this, was startled and thought, could it be that the person the principal wanted us to welcome is this troublemaker? Principal Zhang rubbed his hands, revealing a smile with perfectly straight teeth, and spoke with a soothing tone. Miss Gu Feng, you already mentioned it to me earlier. I am the principal of Fu Shan University. If you encounter any difficulties at school, you could come to me anytime, and I will definitely help you resolve them. Upon hearing this, Yi Han coughed lightly before responding, No need for unnecessary compliments. I came here to fulfill a duty, and I can't afford to reveal my identity. Drawing too much attention from students would cause trouble. Principal Zhang smiled warmly and hinted, Understood. Then he gestured with his hand, saying, All right, stop hanging around here. Do whatever you need to do. Those who haven't left yet don't expect high grades this semester. Hearing this, the students had no choice but to disperse, discussing loudly as they walked away. Just quickly leave this place. I wonder which rich kid it is. Unexpectedly, even Principal Zhang personally came to the school gate to welcome him. Don't say anything. Although he dresses normally, his appearance is quite handsome. I'm a bit interested too. I spit, he's just after material wealth. Clearly, he's interested in other people's money. I have a hunch. Fushan University might not be peaceful in the coming days. The security guard at that moment was stunned, with foam almost coming out of his mouth, thinking to himself, it's over. Even Principal Zhang has to show respect to him. Just a moment ago, I wanted to hit him. I, I'm probably done for. Principal Zhang, at this point, pointed at the security guard and hinted to Yi Han. Yi Han, all the students have left. As for this security guard, I didn't expect him to dare speak disrespectfully to you. He's immediately fired. Yi Han waved his hand to explain. Principal Zhang, there's no need for that. I really don't have anything that proves I'm a student of this school. It's the duty of the security guard to prevent me from entering, and there's no need to punish him. Hearing this, Principal Zhang nodded in agreement. All right, Yi Han, if you say so, I'll let him off this time. The security guard, grateful for the forgiveness, quickly stood up and pledged. Thank you. Yi, you can rest assured that I will work diligently, serve you attentively, and maintain order and security at Fushan University. At this point, Principal Zhang introduced Wang Xiao, the history teacher, saying, Ye Han, this is our history teacher, Wang Xiao. You'll be in her class in the future. After the introduction, he reached out to Wang Xiao and advised, Wang Xiao, this is Ye Han. He will transfer to your class. Please pay attention to and take care of him. 
If he has any requests, make sure to respond promptly. Wang Chao, upon hearing this, immediately approached and bowed apologetically. I'm sorry, Yi Han, for my earlier behavior. Yi Han smiled and waved his hand, saying, It's a small matter. No need to worry about it. If you've had some free time now, Teacher Wang, please guide me to the class. There's no need for any special treatment. Just treat me like an ordinary student. Wang Xiao, seeing that Yi Han was not dwelling on the previous incident, gladly responded, Sure, sure, Yi, please follow me. As she led him, she couldn't help but sigh and think, Fortunately, Yi Han is a friendly person and doesn't hold a grudge against me. However, Principal Zhang even has to treat him with such respect. What exactly is his status, coming to our school? As Yi Han was led to the classroom in the history department, he looked at the focused Lai Han Yan sitting there and thought, This is the person I need to protect this time, Lai Han Yan. Well, aside from being fair-skinned, slightly beautiful, and taller, there's nothing particularly special about her. While lost in thought, suddenly a friend from behind spoke up, reminding him of the present. Hey buddy, don't stare so intensely at our school's beauty queen like that. Your eyes are about to pop out. This friend, a bit chubby with a few freckles, named Liu Main, held up a self-introduction book and said, Are you a new transfer student? Let's get acquainted. I'm Liu Mang. Yi Han friendly replied, Nice name, Liu Mang. I'm Yi Han. How did you know I'm a new transfer student? Liu Mang confidently pushed his glasses up and said, only new transfer students stare at Lai Han Yan like that. Don't be fooled by the fact that Lai Han Yan has only been at our school for a few days. Now she's already one of the campus beauties. Those who pursue her have to queue up from here to the gate. You surely don't stand a chance with her. Yi Han showed interest and asked, Oh, impressive, huh? Right, Liu Meng. Could you explain it in more detail for me? He thought to himself. This might be a good opportunity to gather intelligence related to Lai Han Yan within the school. Liu Meng happily put the book aside, leaned closer to Yi Han, and began telling the story. I knew you'd ask. Initially, our Fushan University had four campus beauties, but after Lai Han Yan arrived, it became five, each with their unique charm. Countless people pursue them. Among Lai Han Yan's pursuers, the strongest is Wu Tian Fu. This guy is not only handsome and wealthy, but also the young master of the Wu family conglomerate. While passionately sharing, suddenly Teacher Wang slammed her hand on the desk and scolded, Liu Meng, you're not paying attention to the lecture. What nonsense are you talking about? Startled, Liu Meng stammered, Teacher Wang, I, I was listening to the lecture. Furious, Teacher Wang demanded, Really? Then tell me, what was the content of what I just said? If you get one word wrong, Copy the content of this book 100 times as a punishment. Nervously, Liu Meng fumbled. Um, I, I remember. I recall that Teacher Wang just mentions something about a dictatorship war, and the specific date was. Seeing his attitude, Teacher Wang immediately affirmed. I knew you weren't paying attention to the lecture. Copy this 100 times for me, and if you make one mistake, continue for another 100 times. If you don't finish copying, don't expect to pass next semester. Liu Meng, holding a thick stack of papers, weakly pleaded, Teacher Wang, 100 times is too much, can it be less? I promise to be diligent and attentive in the future. Teacher Wang, unfazed, continued flipping through the pages, saying, Stop bargaining with me. There's more to come. I order you to copy it 100 times. Despairingly, Liu Meng slumped into his seat. This is it, copying 100 times. My arm is practically broken. Yi Han, Observing his struggle thought, come to think of it, Liu Meng was penalized because of me. Should I help him? With that in mind, Yi Han stood up, raised his hand, and expressed his opinion. Teacher Wang, I feel that punishing Liu Meng so severely is excessive. I recently transferred here and am still unfamiliar with many things. He just explained the lesson to me, so I didn't catch what you were lecturing about. Upon hearing this, Teacher Wang looked up, and the other students started gossiping. This new kid is quite bold, unexpectedly challenging Teacher Wang in front of everyone. The last student who questioned Teacher Wang had to transfer to another school overnight, leaving even his belongings in the dormitory. Let's wait and see how this kid cries and begs for mercy from Teacher Wang later. Liu Meng, feeling anxious, whispered to Yi Han, Yi Han, don't provoke her. 
The consequences of opposing Teacher Wang's stern face are unbearable. Yi Han smiled, turning to reassure him. It's okay. Just observe from the side. I'll be fine. At this moment, the sound of Teacher Wang's footsteps grew closer. Liu Meng trembled, holding his head and muttering, It's over, it's over. Yi Han, I'm doomed. Teacher Wang will surely punish me this time. However, things didn't unfold as everyone expected. Teacher Wang just placed her hand on Yi Han's shoulder, then smiled and said, Student Yi Han, you made a valid point. The punishment I intended for Liu Meng was indeed a bit harsh. Liu Meng, hearing this, opened his mouth wide in astonishment. Ha! Huh, am I hearing things, or did Teacher Wang not punish Yi Han? She even agreed with him. The whole class was equally shocked, buzzing with discussions. What kind of joke is this? Teacher Wang isn't angry, and she even praises him. Although this student is somewhat handsome, he's not so attractive that Teacher Wang would change her demeanor. Could he be from a wealthy family, making even Teacher Wang hesitant to touch him? Yi Han gestured with his hand towards Liu Meng, hinting to ask, Teacher Wang, what about the punishment for Liu Meng? Teacher Wang, with a wink, responded, I'm not heartless. If the cause is clear, there's no need to carry out this punishment. Remember, Liu Meng, be more careful next time. Upon hearing this, Liu Meng immediately stood up, bowing repeatedly, saying, I remember, Teacher Wang, I will definitely listen attentively in the future. In his heart, he couldn't stop marveling. Ye Han, so impressive. I didn't expect that just with a single sentence, he could make the teacher change her mind. I must stick close to him. After resolving the issue, Teacher Wang also left the room. The students continued to be puzzled. I've been in Teacher Wang's class for two years, and the first time I met her, I was already punished. This Yi Han, what exactly is his background? If I can be friends with Yi Han, could I also escape from being punished? Right at that moment, a voice spoke up, Teacher Wang. Lai Han Yan stood up and expressed, I believe that a serious attitude towards studies is necessary, and punishing Liu Mang is not wrong. Regardless of his personal reasons, the truth is he disrupted the class. Hearing her words, Yi Han furrowed his brows involuntarily. Liu Meng once again fell into a state of fear. Teacher Wang seemed somewhat uneasy as she said, Well, Lai Han Yan, your attitude towards studying is commendable, but we need to establish the root cause for everything. Liu Meng, it's also because you are helping a new student, so we can overlook this matter. Lai Han Yan persisted, Oh, is that so, Liu Meng? I want to ask you, were you really teaching the new student just now, and not just chatting? In her mind, she was irritated thinking, this Liu Meng is truly detestable, talking behind my back, and finally, this time I have a chance to deal with him. Yi Han looked at Lai Han Yan and silently assessed. Interesting, Lai Han Yan seems calm and gentle on the outside, but deep down, she is a complex and profound individual. Liu Meng once again turned red and stammered, well, about this, I... Teacher Wang intervened to salvage the situation. Lai Han Yan. Let's discuss this after the class. Let's continue with the lesson. Lai Han Yan was determined to resolve this issue and insisted, Teacher Wang, as the representative of the student council, I think we should address this matter right now to prevent others from using the same excuse as Liu Meng and disrupting the class. Do you agree? Teacher Wang also concurred. Yes, what you say makes sense. She recalled, when Lai Han Yan enrolled, Principal Zhang specifically reminded me to pay more attention to her. Yi Han should also pay attention, care for everyone. I don't have time to care for so many people. Being a teacher is indeed not easy. The students began to murmur and gossip among themselves. It seems like Lai Han Yan intentionally targeted Liu Meng, right? Well, who asked Li Meng to be so talkative, always gossiping about Lai Han Yan? Lai Han Yan doesn't like him from the start. This time, with a valid reason, even Teacher Wang can't say anything. Liu Meng, it seems like there's no escaping the punishment, considering Lai Han Yan's background. Teacher Wang really can't afford to lose face. Lai Han Yan continued to interrogate Liu Meng. Student Liu Meng, if you can't answer my question, it seems like you weren't teaching the new student just now. In that case, please continue to memorize the content of today's lecture on the American Dictatorship War. If you can't recite it correctly, you'll face the consequences. At this point, she turned to Wang Xiao and asked, Teacher Wang, do you have any other suggestions? 
Teacher Wang sighed and said, Liu Meng, stand up and start memorizing. Liu Meng nervously clasped his fingers together and mumbled, The American imperialist war it is. He burst into tears, lamenting. If only I had known, I wouldn't have conspired behind Lai Han Yan's back. It serves me right. Now Yi Han stood up, pointing to himself, and expressed, Teacher Wang, no matter what, Liu Meng is getting punished because of me. Can I take his place in memorizing? Helping others when they're in need is the right thing to do. Seeing off the Buddha to the West is a duty. I'll help Liu Meng once again, and it's also a good opportunity to get to know Lai Han Yan. Hearing that, Teacher Wang couldn't help but hesitate and said, You want to replace Liu Meng in memorizing, student Yi. The content of the American dictatorship war is extremely long, and besides, you've just arrived. Yi Han raised the book confidently and said, No problem, I find memorization quite useful. If I make a mistake, I'll copy it 100 times. He was so confident because he had a plan in mind, with his yin yang divine eyes that could see through everything. Memorizing a history book was a simple task for him. People continued to doubt and discuss. Memorizing is just like going to class. This can't be possible. The content of the American dictatorship war must be over 10,000 characters. Student Yi Han has never even looked at that book. How can he copy it 100 times? I don't think he can. Yi Han asked, Student Lai Han Yan, if you have no objections, then let's begin. Lai Han Yan opened the book with a smile and replied, Sure, I'll see what you can do. I hope you really know the content of the book and can copy it entirely. In her heart, she couldn't help but feel a sense of disdain, thinking, Ye Han, just like Liu Mang, needs to be taught a lesson. Yi Han activated his yin yang divine eyes, touched the book, and confidently said, Let's get started, the American dictatorship war. A minute later, Lai Han Yan was still smiling and praising. Not bad, the entire front part is correct. Five minutes later, her expression couldn't help but tense. She gritted her teeth and thought, unexpectedly, not a single mistake. It seems this person might have memorized the entire content of the book. However, the most challenging part is yet to come. There were times when I stumbled over this passage while reading, and I can't believe he can handle it. Ten minutes later, Yi Han finished reading. The war concludes on its own. Finally finished reading. Lai Han Yan, how did I do, correct? Lai Han Yan slammed the book down, clutching her head, and exclaimed, Correct, but this is too absurd. Classmates discussed animatedly, this guy, unexpectedly reading every word accurately, truly impressive. Initially, we thought he was clueless about everything, but turns out he's a top student. Lai Han Yan, you've encountered a strong opponent this time. Even Teacher Wang was equally surprised. I didn't expect he could do that. Liu Meng happily approached. Gi Han, so awesome. Thanks, my brother. I don't need to copy punishments this time. Yi Han waved his hand. It's a small matter. After all, this is my doing. Teacher Wang clapped her hands to refocus. Lai Han Yan, Yi Han, you've read the entire passage. Do you have any comments now? If not, let's continue with today's lesson. Lai Han Yan was furious. Her eyes reddened. Grinning her teeth as she said, Consider yourself skilled. Then she turned back to her seat, raising her voice, Teacher Wang, I have no objections. Whispers among classmates ensued. Judging by her appearance, it seems Lai Han Yan is holding a grudge against Yi Han. Making the beauty so angry might leave a lasting impression on her. This time is interesting. Next time, I'll try to anger Lai Han Yan as well. My friends, appearance matters in this situation. If you mess with Lai Han Yan, who knows if you'll get beaten up. Yi Han grinned contentedly. First step of getting acquainted, success. The bell announcing the end of class rang, and Teacher Wang quickly gathered her books, saying, dismissed. As Yi Han was about to leave, Liu Meng approached, slinging his arm over Yi Han's shoulder, saying cheerfully, Brother Yi Han, thanks for helping me just now. Come on, I'll treat you to a meal. At the university cafeteria, Yi Han proudly lifted his tray of student meals and exclaimed, Do you call this a delicious meal? Liu Meng, chewing on a chicken drumstick, asked curiously, Two chicken drumsticks, a basket of eggs, and you don't call this good. Brother Yi Han, what's your family like? Yi Han, now awake, chuckled awkwardly. 
Well, two chicken drumsticks aren't bad. Internally, Yi Han sighed, almost forgot. I'm a student now. Eating in the university cafeteria is the norm for students. At this moment, a girl approached the table where the two were sitting and inquired, Excuse me, student, is anyone sitting next to you? Yi Han turned around to respond, No one. You, when he saw the girl, Yi Han suddenly froze and exclaimed, This girl is truly beautiful. Si Ham Sin shyly tucked a strand of hair behind her ear and asked, So, can I sit here? Liu Mang, seemingly out of nowhere, grabbed the cloth to clean the chair, smiling broadly as he knelt down and said, No problem, fellow student Kexi. Feel free to sit here. I've already cleaned this spot. Yi Han was a bit speechless at this and thought, Liu Mang, this guy changes his attitude immediately when he sees a beauty. Si Han Sin placed her tray on the table and sat next to Yi Han, saying, Thank you. Others in the cafeteria, upon seeing her, widened their eyes, their envy evident. This guy is really lucky. Who would have thought he could share a table and even eat with our school's beauty, Si Han Sin? If I had known, I should have given up my seat earlier, maybe leaving a good impression. Now it's too late for this little guy. The student sitting next to this guy couldn't help but get angry and shouted, Are you stupid? Stop staring at people like that. Your drool is all over the table. Liu Meng leaned in towards Yi Han and whispered, Brother Yi Han, you're really lucky. Just arrived in Fushan, and you're already eating with our school's beauty, Shi Han Sin. You should know it's not easy to get a spot at the school cafeteria with her. Yi Han turned to look at Xi Han Sin's plate, which only had rice and vegetables. He thought to himself, the school beauty, eating such simple food, it seems Xi Han Sin's family situation isn't great. No wonder she's called the common beauty. Thinking this, he picked up a piece of chicken drumstick from his plate and said, Xi Han Sin, you're too thin. Eat a bit more. To excel in studies, you need a healthy body. I haven't touched this chicken drumstick yet. Go ahead and eat it. Xi Han Sin hesitated, waved her hand in refusal, and said, No, it's okay. I can eat these. You spent money on this chicken, so you should eat it. Yi Han tried to persuade her, don't refuse hastily. Anyway, this meal was treated by someone else. Consider it as a little gift. Besides, this chicken drumstick is already in your tray. You can't just put it back. It was only then that Xi Han Sin blushed and agreed, saying, okay, okay then. The people in the cafeteria erupted in admiration, saying, our common beauty. And she let that kid pick the food for her. What did he do to deserve it? Admiration to the extreme. If it were me, it wouldn't be allowed. Our school's beauty is not someone you can easily approach. After a focused meal, Shi Han Sin also stood up. Before leaving, she expressed, I've finished eating. Thanks for your chicken drumstick. Once she left, Liu Meng winked and asked, Lei Han, do you have a crush on the common beauty? Let me tell you, compared to Lai Han Yan, who's like a noble princess, Chi Han Sin is more like a friendly neighbor. That's why she's easier to get along with, and many people in the school pursue her. Yi Han chuckled as he explained, You're overthinking it. I just simply appreciate a beautiful girl like her. Chi Han Sin, despite her difficult background, I believe that with her looks, she will have a better life. It's not difficult, it's just that she chooses a different path, one of perseverance. In a society obsessed with wealth and fame like today, there aren't many girls like her. I hope she can continue to maintain this ideal way of living, not be tainted by the society's negativity. Hearing this, Liu Meng agreed and added, You're right. No matter how many wealthy boys pursue Shi Han Sin in school, she rejects them all. Not only that, Shi Han Sin gets a scholarship every year. Moreover, she holds a diplomatic position at the school. It's said that she sends most of her earnings back to her family, keeping only about $2 million a month for personal expenses. Sharing this information really evokes sympathy from others. Yi Han, holding an empty tray, urged, All right, finished eating. Let's go. While walking, he looked at Xi Han Sin's back and thought to himself, If there's a chance, I'll see if I can help Xi Han Sin. At least, I can help her live better in the future. Liu Mang raised his hand to wipe his mouth and cheerfully said, Let's go. There's no class this afternoon. You've just arrived in Fushan not long ago. I'll take you for a stroll around the campus. Yi Han placed the tray on the table and replied, No rush. 
We'll have plenty of time to explore later. You know usually, when Lai Han Yan doesn't have a class, she goes to the library. We can try going there and see our luck. Yi Han reminded himself, My mission at Fu Shan is to protect Lai Han Yan. I must not forget about this. Not aware of Yi Han's true identity, Liu Mang teased, Kid, you indeed have intentions. Still hoping to catch Lai's attention. Liu Mang slung his arm over Yi Han's shoulder, walking and chatting. Normally, if there's no class, Lai Han Yan likes to go to the library. We can try going there to test our luck. Meanwhile, outside, Shi Han Sin was being cornered by a few guys, led by Liu Mang. She exclaimed fearfully, Please move. I'll be late for work, and they'll deduct my pay. The troublemakers pulled out a wad of money, teasing. Why bother making money? Aren't you heading to those clubs to entertain others with drinks? Instead of going out to serve someone else's drinks, why not join us? I have a few thousand yuan to cover you for a month. Shay, our beautiful lady, we sincerely invite you. Our boss is waiting for you. The group of students seethed with anger, but they couldn't do much. They were no match for these troublemakers. All they could do was stand there and curse. Damn it, these wretched gangsters from the neighborhood are bothering Si Han Xin. That scoundrel Pan Zheng Xiong is pursuing Si Han Xin, and now he sends his underlings here to harass her. Truly an unpleasant situation. Can't fight them. And as soon as we call a teacher, they'll leave. They're really a bunch of villains. Upon hearing this, Yi Han quickly ran over, urging, Let's go over there and see what's happening. Liu Mang, sensing trouble, hastily raised his hand to advise, Oh, Yi Han, don't provoke them. We shouldn't mess with gang members. Pan Zhen Xiong is one of the top three big shots at Fushan. It's better for us to call a teacher. Yi Han pulled his hand away from Liu Mang's grip and said, by the time the teacher arrives, these troublemakers will be long gone. If you're scared, step aside and let me handle it. Seeing Yi Han's determination, Liu Mang, feeling encouraged, resolved. Scared of what? Let's fight if we have to. I've had my eye on these villains for a while. Si Han Sin, frightened, teary-eyed, shouted, Please, step back. I'm about to be late for work. The thug smirked raising his hand to his face provocatively. This isn't your place. I just feel like standing here. What are you going to do about it? If you have the guts, go ahead and hit me. Having just spoken, that guy was immediately approached by Yi Han. A swift slap echoed through the air, and Yi Han shouted, If you've opened your mouth, let me help you fulfill your wish. The mischievous student was slapped so hard that he stumbled backward, hitting his head against the wall. His lackeys panicked and cried out, Boss! Yi Han stood up, smirked, and said, You all heard it just now. He willingly asked for it. I just helped him fulfill his wish. The other students couldn't help but wonder when they saw Yi Han intervene. Who is this guy daring to hit someone from the gang? The gang dominates our school, and this kid dares to cross them. Surely he won't have a good outcome. Although I must admit the beating was quite impressive. I've long wanted to teach them a lesson, but I'm just too timid. The one who got slapped sat up, his face showing signs of the beating. His companions asked with concern, Liu, are you okay? Liu, how do you feel? Liu, the one who got slapped, stood up, pointing at Yi Han, cursing. You dare to hit me again. Come at me. Break that kid. Following Liu's command, the gang rushed forward, shouting challenges, daring to hit someone from our gang. You're done for. Brothers, get him. Crippled him. We won't spare him. Yi Han sneered and said, A bunch of trash, get lost. He unleashed his moves, and in the blink of an eye, he sent the group flying, and they fell to the ground behind him. The voices of the crowd echoed in astonishment. This guy is too formidable. We are not his match. Liu Mang, clenching his teeth, thought to himself, So many people, and they can't handle a kid. Pointing accusingly, he asked, Who are you? I've been in Fushan for a while, and I've never heard of someone like you. Yi Han, with folded arms, stood confidently in front of the guy and replied, I'm Yi Han, a friend of Xi Han Xin. From now on, anyone who dares to bully her, don't blame me for being impolite. Hearing this, the guy became frightened and hastily got up to run away. While running, he turned back to warn, wait and see. If you have the guts, don't run. I'll bring someone here. Dare to offend someone from our gang. You're as good as dead this time. 
His group of lackeys also quickly followed, shouting, Wait there. We'll call the gang leader. Just wait to die. After they left, Shi Han Sin expressed her gratitude, saying, Li Han, thank you for helping me just now. However, people from that gang are not to be messed with. Perhaps you should lay low for a while. Yi Han waved his hand reassuringly. No need to worry. It's just a bunch of insignificant troublemakers. Yi Han extended his hand, suggesting, Taxi, I feel like we have a connection. How about we become sworn siblings? Of course, you don't need to think too much about it. I don't have any other intentions. Liu Meng also cheerfully agreed and advised, See, there's no need to worry. Yi Han will definitely protect you. We saw his skills just now. He's really powerful. Si Han Sin hesitated and said, Well, but we just met, and I don't want to cause trouble for you. If something happens because of me, I would feel guilty. Looking at Yi Han's sincere and gentle smile, she couldn't help but think, Yi Han is different from the people I've met. There is a simplicity in his eyes, no hidden desires. He really resembles my brother. Yi Han assured her, Don't think too much. I will handle this. I just want to take you as my foster sister, and all you need to do is follow your heart and answer me. At this moment, Shi Han Sin blushed but agreed. Okay, Yi Han. In her heart, she felt a warm sense of protection. This feeling of having someone to rely on is really comforting. Liu Meng teasingly suggested, Say, I also stood up to protect you just now. Maybe you should consider having one more older brother. Yi Han immediately scolded him. Do you think we're at a market, buying one and getting one free? You stay out of this. Shi Han Sin, upon hearing this, burst into a cheerful laugh and replied, Having Yi Han is enough for me. Both of you have been very kind to me, and I will never forget your help today. Realizing she had other matters to attend to, Shi Han Sin turned and bid farewell, saying, I have to go to work now. Yi Han, Liu Meng, goodbye. The onlookers witnessing this scene couldn't help but feel jealous. One of them remarked, Si Han Sin, never expected you'd take that guy as a foster brother. If I knew earlier, I would have joined the brawl with those gang members. Don't just dream there. If you confront them, you'll just become their punching bag. Moreover, becoming the foster brother of Si Han Sin means trouble with the gang members. Yi Han is in for big trouble. Liu Mang, looking at Si Han Sin's departing figure, couldn't help but express regret, lamenting. It's a pity. If only I could become Shi Han Sin's brother, I would be so much prouder. Yi Han sighed, grabbed Li Mang by the collar, and pulled him along, saying, Enough of your complaints. Let's go to the library and find Lai Han Yan. Hearing this, Liu Mang couldn't help but fume, exclaiming, Just became foster siblings with Shi Han Sin, and now you want to find Lai Han Yan. Yi Han. Are you a bad boy or something? Yi Han, hands in his pockets, walked towards the library, responding, Bad boy, my foot. I have no intentions with either of them. Inside the Fushan University Library, there were many people at the moment. Yi Han and Liu Meng sat in a corner observing Lai Han Yan. Liu Meng whispered, Look at Lai Han Yan over there. Truly the campus bell, just sitting and reading. Yet she looks so beautiful. Yi Han suddenly wondered, Lai Han Yan, is she always this lonely at school? Liu Meng lowered his voice to reply, Usually yes. Lai Han Yan arrived not long ago and doesn't have close friends yet. Suddenly, someone approached, Wu Tian Fu. He held a bouquet of flowers and, dressed elegantly, walked over, calling out, Han Yan. The female students in the library couldn't help but sigh in admiration and envy, discussing, it's the campus heartthrob Wu Tian Fu. He looks so stylish today, even holding roses. Is he planning to confess? Wu Tian Fu seems to want to confess to Lai Han Yan. Looks like I've truly lost my chance. What does Lai Han Yan have that's so special? She's just a bit fairer, slimmer, and prayer than me. These guys only know how to judge by appearances. Inner beauty is useless. On the other side, Liu Meng, upon seeing this, smirked sarcastically. Wu Tian Fu, what's your agenda today? It's not Valentine's Day. Lai Han Yan didn't even bother with a so-called rich kid like him. Yi Han turned to look and asked, Is this one of the people pursuing Lai Han Yan, whom you mentioned? What kind of person is this Wu Tian Fu? Internally, Yi Han contemplated, 
If it's just a normal pursuit, I don't need to intervene. But if it's like Xi Hang Sin's relentless pursuit, then I might have to step in. Liu Mang frowned as he recounted. Don't be fooled by Wu Tian Fu's elegant appearance. In reality, he has impregnated several female students, some of whom were even forced to undergo abortions. It's just that due to his family's influence, this matter was smoothed over. This guy is truly despicable. Hearing this, Yi Han responded, Is that so? His eyes sparkled as he thought, Let me use the Yin Yang divine eyes to investigate this. At this moment, Wu Tian Fu presented the bouquet to Lai Han Yan, expressing, Han Yan, these roses were personally picked by me on campus. I hope you'll like them. Annoyed by the disturbance, Lai Han Yan couldn't help but express her anger. Wu Tian Fu, I've told you before that I don't like you. Can you please stop bothering me and wasting your time while I'm trying to read? Wu Tian Fu suddenly knelt on the ground, appearing sincerely and said, Han Yan, please give me a chance. I've prepared a big surprise for you at the Five Star Hotel, just this once. If you agree to give me a chance, and if you still don't like me afterward, I swear I won't bother you again. Hearing that, Lai Han Yan hesitated. This. After some deliberation, Lai Han Yan finally agreed, saying, All right, I agree with you this time. Just don't continue to bother me in the future. Wu Tian Fu continued with sweet words of assurance. Rest assured, Han Yan. This time you will surely accept my love. However, as Lai Han Yan walked away, Wu Tian Fu revealed a dangerous expression, thinking to himself, you wretch, pretending to be noble with me. After you drink my drugged water, I'll make sure you regret it. At this moment, Yi Han, through the yin yang divine eyes, saw the sleeping pills in his pocket. He stood up, slamming the table. Indeed, there's a problem. Wu Tian Fu has a date rape drug in his pocket. This scoundrel surely has ill intentions toward Lai Han Yan. As Wu Tian Fu and Lai Han Yan left, Yi Han followed closely behind. Liu Meng was puzzled. Ye Han, where are you going? Yi Han replied, going to teach that scoundrel a lesson. Wu Tian Fu, while sweet-talking Han Yan, said, What do you like to eat? I'll immediately order the chef here to make it for you. Lai Han Yan arrogantly replied, Whatever you want, I'm not picky right now. Yi Han squeezed in between them from behind, smiling casually. Sorry for the interruption, just passing through. Taking advantage of the situation, Yi Han deliberately hit Wu Tian Fu's pocket, causing the drug bottle to break, and the liquid seeped into his pants. Wu Tian Fu panicked, exclaiming, My medicine, not my pants. He frantically thought, It's not easy to find this type of medicine. That brat spilled it all. Wu Tian Fu enraged, pointed at Yi Han, and shouted, You rotten brat, your eyes are just for decoration, huh? My pants are custom made in Italy, cost 10 million each, you. Yi Han interrupted with a smile, asking, Headmaster Wu Tian Fu, maybe it's not about the pants, but something else, right? If your pants are torn, you pretend not to know what's in the bottle, wouldn't you? Lai Han Yan, feeling uncomfortable with the smell, pointed at Wu Tian Fu, questioning. Wu Tian Fu, what are you hiding in your pants? Wu Tian Fu stammered an explanation. Well, this is medicine I carry with me. My health is not good. Sometimes I faint, so I need to take this medicine. Seeing his feeble attempt to explain, Yi Han exposed him further. Then, Headmaster Wu Tian Fu, can you tell us what illness you have? What's the name of this medicine? Wu Tian Fu brushed away Yi Han's hand with the medicine, angrily cursing. It's none of your business. This is my private matter. You stay out of it. Then, he approached Lai Han Yan and urged, Han Yan, don't pay attention to his words. Let's go. However, at this moment, Lai Han Yan no longer wanted to go with him. She turned away and said, It's quite embarrassing. Headmaster Wu, suddenly, I feel uncomfortable. Please excuse me, and I suggest you leave as well. She could sense the issue, saying, Wu Tian Fu, this is obviously malicious. That bottle of water must have a problem. Wu Tian Fu, bewildered, asked, What, Lai Han Yan? Yi Han followed behind her, turning back to remind, Headmaster Wu, Lai Han Yan has made it clear. If you don't leave, why are you still standing there yelling? Wu Tian Fu, now with a darkened face, pointed challengingly, Fine, you all just wait for me. After speaking, 
he angrily turned and walked away, muttering to himself, Zhuai Han, you dare ruin my good fortune. I will never let you off. As for Lai Han Yan, one day, I'll make her kneel and beg for my mercy. The students, witnessing this, started discussing. Why did Wu Ti and Fu suddenly leave? Surely something is going on. We need to talk about this. There's definitely something wrong with the medicine bottle in his pants. This scoundrel is probably up to no good with our campus beauty. Yi Han is quite bold, unexpectedly daring to expose Wu Ti and Fu's true colors in front of everyone. Wu Ti and Fu won't let this slide for sure. Yi Han followed behind Lai Han Yan and warned, Lai Han Yan, Wu Ti and Fu is not a good person. You should keep your distance from him. Lai Han Yan turned around and replied, I also realized he's up to no good. But what is that purple liquid he had? Yi Han leaned close to her ear and whispered, It's a very potent aphrodisiac. Hearing the answer, Lai Han Yan couldn't help but get angry. She gritted her teeth and cursed. This scoundrel unexpectedly used such despicable tactics. Yi Han raised his hand and said, Some people dress neatly on the outside, but underneath they have a savage side. Lai Han Yan, you should still be cautious. As he prepared to leave, Lai Han Yan called out, Wait, why did you help me? After all, I attack you in the lecture just now. Yi Han continued walking, waving his hand as he explained, I just don't like that scoundrel Wu Tian Fu. Lai Han Yan watched Yi Han's figure and thought to herself, Is it really that simple, Yi Han? You seem to be hiding quite a few secrets. Yi Han returned to the library and sat back with Liu Mang. The students around them looked in disgust. This guy scared Wu Tian Fu away without saying a word, but he seems to be friendly with Lai Han Yan. In the afternoon, he even helped the ordinary campus beauty escape from the troublemakers near the canteen. On the other side, someone whispered, a new student who hasn't been here for long can be friendly with both the campus beauties. He's not simple at all. I can see he's clearly aiming for the beauty. Sooner or later, he'll bring trouble upon himself. Liu Mang, looking at him, couldn't help but exclaim, Vai Han, you're truly amazing. You've quickly diffused the tension with Lai Han Yan. Looking at the two, when can you teach me a few tricks? Hearing this, Yi Han slammed the book on his head and said, Read your own books. I have no interest in Lai Han Yan. I just happened to help her. Liu Meng, rubbing his head from the hit, then grinned and gestured toward a girl behind him, saying, You're not interested in Lai Han Yan, so aren't you interested in Zhang Menjin? Just now, when you exposed Wu Tian Fu, she couldn't take her eyes off you. Upon hearing that, Yi Han glanced at the girl and mumbled, Zhang Meng Yin, huh? The moment you looked at her, she immediately lifted her head and winked at you. Feeling caught peeking, Yi Han, embarrassed, quickly hid his face behind the book and asked in a low voice, Who is she? Liu Meng whispered back, Zhang Mengyan, another campus beauty here. She's lively and outgoing, but her background is mysterious. You're not dealing with a simple person. Just arrived at Fushan, and she's already drawn attention from the three campus beauties. Now, I'm suspicious. Are you from a wealthy family? specializing in being surrounded by hot girls. Yi Han smirked and retorted, Don't talk nonsense. I already have a girlfriend. Zhang Menjin kept looking at Yi Han, silently smiling and thinking. Just now, he accepted Kazi Han Sin as his foster sister and has a mysterious relationship with Lai Han Yan. Yi Han, I like you more and more. At this moment, a group of people rushed in, wearing martial arts uniforms, shouting loudly, Who's Yi Han? Come out here. Yi Han stood up with a frown, asking, I am Yi Han. What you want? Liu Meng, also angered, exclaimed, What are you trying to do? This is the library. Fighting here will result in punishment. One person in the group sneered and said, Fighting with our gang members won't let you live in peace. You have two choices. Either follow me to our gang and duel with our leader or kneel in front of everyone and apologize to us right here. The followers echoed, Kneel down. We're not sure if we'll forgive you. The six of us are all trash, unexpectedly beaten up by a new guy. I advise you to know your place. Otherwise, if we get involved, you'll end up disabled. Other students couldn't help but express their indignation, condemning a shameless gang causing trouble in the library. It seems that within this gang, there are some rich kids. As long as they don't cause excessive trouble, the school will turn a blind eye. 
Their leader, Zheng Shang, is one of the school's top martial artists. He once broke a student's leg. Yi Han, I think you're in trouble this time. Faced with this situation, Zhang Mengin looked at Yi Han and thought, Lei Han, what will you choose? Yi Han sneered disdainfully and said, A bunch of worthless people coming to school, but not studying, only knowing how to fight. Having said that, he walked past this group, heading towards the door. Yi Han challenged, Get lost. Today, I will personally defeat this Zheng Xiong, so you won't know how formidable I am. Liu Meng also ran after him provocatively, exactly our gang leader is the champion of the world. The gang leader noticed Yi Han's confident attitude and couldn't help but be intrigued, saying, All right, Yi Han, you're something. I'll wait until you're beaten to death by our gang leader. Let's see if you're still so arrogant. After speaking, he raised his hand and commanded, Let's go. The group of young people followed, and the guy in black stood up, astonished, saying, Unexpectedly, Yi Han, daring to challenge Zheng Xiong, the gang leader. It's the hottest news today. Zheng Xiong is one of the top three martial artists in the school. I bet a meal on it. Yi Han, you're sure to get a beating. The guy in the green jacket chuckled excitedly, urging, What are you waiting for? Let's go. We'll witness the excitement. John Mengian also stood up, joining in the lively atmosphere. She was curious about Yi Han's abilities, thinking, Interesting. If Yi Han dares to accept Zheng Shang's challenge, there must be a reason. I want to see how formidable Yi Han really is. At this moment, people from all directions had gathered, ready in front of the martial arts arena to witness this intense battle. Excitement and anticipation were evident on every face, and discussions were ongoing. Unexpectedly, a new student dares to challenge our school leader. We have to watch this drama. It's going to be entertaining. Although Zheng Xiong has a bad reputation, his strength is undeniable. After all, he is one of the top three martial artists in the school. But I hope this new student teaches Zheng Xiong a lesson. Knowing this might be wishful thinking, though. The gang members of the martial arts clubs sat down on the ground, forming a chessboard-like formation. A scholarly-looking person, not wearing the uniform but the gang's attire, discussed with a guy named Pan Zheng Xiong, cautioning him. Leader, Miss Kit Yi Han, unexpectedly took the initiative to challenge you. He surely has some martial arts skills. You need to be careful. Pan Zheng Xiong smirked in response. Martial arts skills. Just a few tricks, that's all. He tightly clenched his fist, confident that victory would be his. He confidently said, Our martial arts arena is the most formidable. Apart from us, everyone else is trash. Later, you'll see how I defeat that kid. Yi Han and Liu Mang proudly entered the martial arts arena. In Yi Han's eyes, he observed the camaraderie among the gang members and complimented, The attire of the martial arts club is pretty cool. One gang member leaning against his hip with a self-satisfied expression, proudly boasted. Of course, our martial arts club is one of the largest gangs at Fushan. In the gang, we have over 300 members, exerting influence throughout the entire school. Upon hearing this, Yi Han just gave a casual hmm. Then he continued to move forward, showing no signs of surprise or admiration. Yi Han waved his hand, smirking, and proposed to the gang members. Actually, as you said, this place isn't bad at all. So let's change the name of this martial arts arena from the Martial Arts Club Arena to the Chinese Martial Arts Prosperity Hall. The onlookers outside, eagerly anticipating the drama, were astonished and impressed. Yi Han, unexpectedly demanding to change the name of the Martial Arts Arena. This is like uprooting weeds. Quite bold, who gave him such courage? This new student's martial arts skills might be formidable. Otherwise, he wouldn't speak like this. It seems the excitement today is not small. Zhang Menjin was also in the crowd, stroking her chin in contemplation. Changing the name of the martial arts arena? Yi Han really said that. Hearing Yi Han's recent words, Pan Zheng Xiong was furious. His face darkening as he shouted, Arrogant brat, you think you could change the name of our martial arts arena just because of you? Dream on. Members of the gang also stood up in indignation, loudly expressing their anger. School leader, Today you must teach this kid a lesson. At the very least, break one of his legs. Liu Meng stood behind Yi Han, looking pale with fear. He placed his hand on Yi Han's shoulder and shouted nervously, What are you doing? Do you want to gang up on him? 
I said it was a one-on-one -on -one challenge. You can't break the rules. Yi Han remained calm. He casually said, A council, huh? Then, his eyes brightened, and he turned to look at Liu Mang, giving a like to Liu Mang's recent statement. His face showed great enthusiasm as he said, Liu Mang, your idea is not bad at all. Yi Han stomped one foot heavily on the floor, pointed at the densely packed gang members, his face stern. So be it. Charge at me, all of you. Today, I'll take on all of you alone. Liu Mang, stunned, tried to stop Yi Han. Oh my god, Yi Han, I'm afraid they will gang up on you. Why are you adding more trouble to yourself? He covered his mouth and whispered to Yi Han. They are all older brothers and sisters. You shouldn't complicate things right now. Yi Han patted Liu Mang on the shoulder, confidently, saying, Don't worry. He raised a finger and taunted the gang, his face arrogantly saying, What's wrong? Am I too much for you to handle alone? The gang members looked determined and aggressive. One of them shouted, Don't be afraid, brothers. Let's go and beat him. If he's looking for trouble, don't blame us. Deal with this arrogant guy, saying that all the gang members rushed forward, charging towards Yi Han. Yi Han's eyes suddenly glowed red, and he sneered, A bunch of losers. Then, he leaped into battle with the gang. Yi Han's speed was like lightning, effortlessly weaving through every nook and cranny, delivering precise blows to their abdomen, arms, and legs. The gang members staggered, bent over, and collapsed, emitting painful sounds. Yi Han didn't exert any effort at all. The previous confrontation was just a warm-up for him. He casually stuffed his hands into his pockets, looked at the gang members lying on the ground with bruised faces and injuries, and wore a satisfied smile, arrogantly saying, Is that all? It's not enough to get me warmed up. The intimidated gang members mumbled, His speed is too fast. We couldn't see clearly. Our leader can only rely on him. The atmosphere in the room became completely silent, and the onlookers were holding their breaths, their faces filled with awe at Yi Han's abilities. They began to whisper and discuss. Oh my god, am I hallucinating? Yi Han single-handedly took on the entire martial arts club. Yi Han, I thought he was just talking big, but he can actually take on the entire gang by himself. The man in the green shirt, with a serious expression, said, Don't be hasty. There's still Pan Jung Chong. He's the real trump card of the gang, and the strategies of the others can't compare to his. Zhang Mengin flashed a smile her face carrying a mysterious and contemplative expression. Yi Han, can you really do it? Liu Mang's eyes lit up, visibly impressed by Yi Han's performance. He raised both hands in support of Yi Han. Yi Han, you're amazing. If you can defeat Pan Zheng Xiong, today we can truly change the name of our martial arts community. Pan Zheng Xiong only revealed his moves at this moment. He stomped his feet forcefully on the floor and shouted loudly, Don't compare them to me. A green aura emanated from his entire body, his face wrinkled with determination as he asserted his position. I am the leader of the martial arts community, a black belt master recognized by the Global Martial Arts Association. Yi Han tightened his fist, a fiery aura emanating from him as he grinned and said, Sounds quite formidable. I wonder how many of my strikes you can withstand. Pan Zheng Xiong leaped towards Yi Han, loudly proclaiming, Go to your death. The martial arts community members were delighted, thinking victory was in their grasp. They laughed loudly, believing that Pan Zheng Chong's appearance marked the use of his ultimate technique, a formidable move with a force of a hundred pounds. Once it hit, Yi Han would surely be disabled, paying the price for underestimating their martial arts community. Yi Han stood in a defensive posture, ready for whatever might come. And after offering some remarks on Pan Zheng Chong's attack strategy, he commented, your moves are too slow. They may look fierce, but in reality, they are futile. Just a few superficial strikes. Then he shouted loudly, unintentional roar of the tiger, accompanied by a fierce burst of fire, shooting out like a speeding tiger. Two forces collided, creating a whirlwind of wind. Pan Zheng Xiong seemed unable to hold on any longer. He looked shocked and wide-eyed, muttering in disbelief. This can't be. He then let go of his hands, surrendering as its strength depleted, a painful cry echoing through the entire room. Pan Zheng Xiong fell to the ground, blood spurting from his mouth. The martial arts community members were stunned, like birds with broken wings, lost and confused. They rushed forward, trembling all over, 
unable to believe their eyes, saying, The leader was defeated with just one punch. This is impossible. Yi Han, I never thought you would be so formidable. Pan Zheng Xiang propped himself up on the ground, coughing continuously. He struggled to get up, dragging his body against the wall. Despite his defiant stance, he said, I absolutely cannot lose. Yi Han stood near him, raising his voice threateningly. Chi Han Sin is my little sister. If you continue to harass her, it will be like this wall, an insurmountable barrier for you. One might have thought that the punch would land squarely on Pan Zheng Xiang's face. But no, intentionally, Yi Han veered it towards the wall, causing the wall to dent and crack. Pan Zheng Xiang held his breath in fear, his face turning pale. He tightly clenched his lips, and his trembling teeth chattered against each other. Understanding his position, he replied, I know, I know. After dealing with the situation, Yi Han slipped his hands into his pockets, turned his head indifferently, and walked out of the room. Before leaving, he didn't forget to remind them, remember to take down the martial arts community sign and change the name to National Martial Arts. The martial arts community members turned their heads, watching his departing figure. Suddenly, the one who initially boasted about the fame and abilities of the martial arts community hurriedly removed the martial arts uniform, tossing it to the ground without hesitation. He kneeled down, clasping his hands together, a fervent expression on his face, pleading, Ye, Master Ye, I want to learn national martial arts. Please accept me as your disciple. Seeing this, the other members followed suit, shedding their martial arts uniforms simultaneously. The sounds of fabric rustling echoed throughout the room. They kneeled one by one, bowing to Yi Han as their master, earnestly requesting him to take them as disciples. Master Yi, I also want you to teach me martial arts. I want to leave the community right now. Take care of yourself in the future. I want to worship Yi Han as my master. Forget about the so-called martial arts community. National martial arts is undoubtedly superior with a thousand years of Chinese history. Pan Zheng Xiong felt a deathly silence in his heart as his long-established career crumbled in a single battle. He furrowed his brow in panic and shouted, You, all of you. Blood sprayed from his mouth increasingly. Spectators outside eagerly discussed, Yi Han, unexpectedly defeating Pan Zheng Xiong. A supposed martial arts leader, he is truly too powerful. A group of people simultaneously requesting to leave the martial arts community, a precedent never seen since the establishment of Fuchan University. Not only that after today, the martial arts community, one of the three strongest forces in the school, might be permanently erased. John Mengid smiled with interest, thinking to herself, This man has successfully captured my attention. She then stepped forward, the heels tapping on the floor creating rhythmic sounds. Zhang Menjin waved her hand, smiling, Hello, Yi Han, I am. Before she could finish her sentence, Yi Han quickly interrupted with a loud voice, What? I don't accept disciples, let go of me. Yi Han hastily fled from the tumultuous scene and the martial arts community members eager to become his disciples chased after him, loudly calling out, Master, wait for me. Don't let the master run away. On the stage, only Zhang Mengyin remained, waving her hand to greet Yi Han, but she was ignored. Feeling embarrassed and awkward in front of everyone, she tried to salvage the situation, saying, Well, he didn't even bother to look at me. Zhang Mengyin stomped her foot on the floor in frustration. Furious, she exhaled smoke-like anger and said, Yi Han, just wait for me. Yi Han and Li Meng rushed out onto the street, escaping the troublesome crowd. They stopped, leaning on their knees, catching their breath. Yi Han wiped the profuse sweat from his forehead with his hand, saying, These people are overly enthusiastic. Liu Meng, with a proud expression, remarked, Yi Han, your martial arts skills are amazing. How did you become so formidable? Can you teach me a couple of moves sometime? I also want to become stronger. Yi Han smiled in response. You want to become stronger? It's simple. Do 100 push-ups and 100 sit-ups every day. Run 10 kilometers, and you will naturally become stronger. Liu Meng chuckled at the proposed regimen, saying, Maybe I should just pass on that. With my current physique, even 10 push-ups would leave me breathless. Suddenly, Three well-dressed young men with a refined demeanor emerged from the house. Polite and composed, one of them called out, You must be Yi Han. Yi Han and Liu Meng looked at them. The leader with a friendly smile introduced, 
I'm Ken Ji Chung, and these are Tu Chung and Hua Ma Wen. We are in the same class, and also your roommates. Tu Chang approached and patted Gi Han on the shoulder, saying, Gi Han, we've heard all about your exploits today. You're truly formidable, taking on the entire martial arts community on your own. Hua Ma Wen also chimed in, Our dormitory has a hero now. We should celebrate with a feast today, right, Ken? Ken Ji Chong smiled and replied, Absolutely. The four of them then walked away, joking and laughing. Hua Ma Wen added, Today, it's on me. Everyone just enjoy yourselves. In their narrative, Liu Meng was left out, and he called out loudly, Hey, take me with you. In the nightclub, provocatively dressed girls were immersing themselves in the rhythmic beats of the music. The lyrics echoed, Finally, I became someone else's lover. You also know it's not because of love. Our protagonists swayed to the music, forming a harmonious wave. Yi Han and his newfound friends sat in the VIP room, chatting casually. They laughed and invited each other to drink. Chen Ji Chong raised a beer, toasting with Yi Han. Once again, he praised Yi Han's talent, saying, Yi Han, your martial arts skills are impressive, but your drinking capacity can't compare to mine. I grew up with alcohol, since I was a child. Tu Chang also raised his beer, affirming, That's right, Chen's drinking capacity is formidable. Yi Han, be careful not to get him to drink you under the table. Liu Meng added jokingly, Yi Han, don't worry, drink until he's scared. Yi Han lifted his beer with enthusiasm, saying, Let's empty our glasses. He then touched his glass to Chen Ji Chong's, accepting the challenge. Both Yi Han and Chen Ji Chong lifted their glasses, drinking in unison until the glasses were empty. After a round of lively chatter about various life topics, Yi Han put his glass down on the table, looking quite clear-headed and alert. He asked, Can you still drink more? Ken Ji Chong, on the other hand, had a flushed face, and his limbs were a bit unsteady. Nevertheless, he boldly declared, Keep drinking. Tonight we'll drink until dawn. Huo Mo Wen smiled, raising his hands in surrender. I can't drink anymore. Yi Han, you drink like you're drinking water. Truly impressive. Tu Chang, I'm impressed too. Yi Han, you'll be the head of our room from now on. Yi Han modestly replied, We are all brothers. No need for such formalities. All right, let's go. Let me take care of Chen. Everyone agreed, saying, All right. The group left the VIP room and stepped out into the nightclub. Liu Meng, Tu Chang, and Hua Ma Wen draped their arms over each other's shoulders, pointing towards the lively, provocatively dressed girls dancing fervently. Their eyes revealed an intense desire, and their mischievous smiles added to the playful atmosphere. Tu Chang commented, These tall girls aren't bad. Liu Meng sighed, saying, Unfortunately, Yi Han has a girlfriend and can enjoy this pleasure. Yi Han walked alone to the window near the staircase, took out his phone, and dialed Du Wan Ni's number. He thought to himself, leaving without a word last time, Du Wan Ni must be upset. Now, calling to cheer her up a bit, that's what a handsome, talented, and considerate boyfriend should do. As he looked out the window, he noticed a familiar figure. Numerous questions filled Yi Han's mind. Ha, huh, Du Wan Ni. Why is she here? Who's the man beside her, holding roses? Yi Han quickly called Du Wan Mei to inquire about the situation. Du Wan Mei, what are you doing? I have a new assignment these days. Might not be able to come back for a while. Du Wan Mei's voice sounded somewhat reserved as she replied. It's okay. You're busy. Just go ahead. I'm in a meeting, and lately my workload has increased. I might have to work overtime. If you're tired, rest. I'll call you tomorrow. Facing Du Wan Mei's blatant lie, Yi Han remained remarkably calm. Instead of exposing her, he gently reminded his girlfriend, All right then, have a good night. After that, both hung up. Du Wen Ni, after deceiving her boyfriend, appeared remorseful and distressed. Her eyes fell onto her sad face. The well-dressed man quickly handed her a bouquet of roses, opened the car door, and said, Du Wen Ni, let's go. She responded dejectedly, Okay. Yi Han stood by the window observing their every move until the car departed. He became tense, his face darkened, lost in contemplation. Duan Ni, what happened? Why did you have to lie to me? Due to frustration, 
He sighed while smoking a cigarette. Thoughts defending his girlfriend's actions surfaced. Duel on knee. She must have had a reason for not telling me straightforwardly. But who is that man after all? Duel on knee. Why were you sitting in his car? And why so late? He closed his eyes, haunted by unanswered questions. Then, Yi Han turned to alcohol to drown his sorrows, muttering, Forget it. Don't want to think too much. If there's an issue, Duan Nai will surely tell me. Maybe being drunk now is better than being sober. He raised the bottle of liquor, gradually finishing its contents in determined gulps. A tall girl, wearing a dazzling red dress, confidently approached Yi Han and greeted him with a wave. Hello, may I ask if anyone is sitting here? Yi Han looked up at her and uttered a sound of surprise, then continued, You. The cheerful girl smiled brightly, explaining, Every other seat is taken, except for yours, that's why. Pointing to the chair, Yi Han spoke coldly, Sit, as long as you can drink with me. You're welcome. It's my treat. The girl took a seat, her face filled with excitement, saying, Being invited is always a joy. She elegantly crossed her legs and began chatting animatedly, asking Yi Han, However, handsome, do you have any stories to share? Yi Han didn't respond. Instead, he handed her a bottle of wine and invited, drink. Carefully pouring the wine from the bottle into a glass, she took a few sips with professionalism. She spoke, wine is meant for savoring, not for drowning sorrows. Handsome, are you trying to get drunk over a broken heart? Yi Han raised the glass she had just poured for him, smirked, and said, a broken heart? Do you know what that feels like? The girl in the red dress replied, I don't know. I've never had a broken heart. The man meant for me hasn't arrived in this world yet. Hearing this, Yi Han chuckled and said, Well, then I wish you find your other half soon. The girl also smiled and responded, Thank you for your wish. So the two touched glasses, toasting together and emptying their cups. After a while, Yi Han had consumed a considerable amount of alcohol. His face flushed as he sprawled in distress on the seat. Next to Yi Han, the girl was also intoxicated. Alcohol had rendered Yi Han somewhat incoherent as he muttered, Where's the wine? Why is it all gone? Yi Han looked at the table in front, filled with empty wine bottles, and said, We're out of wine here. Subsequently, Yi Han helped the dazed girl up and said, Let's go outside to find more wine. The girl, with a foggy mind unable to think clearly, agreed to follow Yi Han outside upon hearing the word wine. As they walked, she slurred, All right. Tonight, I won't go back sober. On the other side, Li Mang's group noticed Yi Han leading an enticingly shaped girl away and couldn't help but exclaim, Yi Han is still impressive. He just arrived not too long ago and already managed to take a girl away. However, Li Mang was not convinced, expressing concern. How can we just watch Yi Han leave like this? Who knows what he might encounter? The person beside him disagreed, saying, There might be nothing wrong. Yi Han drank so much earlier without getting drunk. Suddenly, he's intoxicated now. What does that prove? We better not ruin his good mood. After hearing this, the other two nodded in agreement, and they continued dancing. The next morning, in the hotel, sunlight streamed through the window into the room. On the bed, Yi Han's eyes were gradually opened by the light, and he slowly woke up. Seeing the unfamiliar surroundings, Yi Han felt a throbbing headache and asked, Where? Where is this? Yi Han then sat up, looked around the room, and quickly deduced that it was a hotel. Not knowing what was happening, he questioned, Why am I here? Where did the girl from last night go? However, the blood stain on the bed caught Yi Han's attention, and he exclaimed in surprise, Ha! Huh, what is this? A bold thought crossed Yi Han's mind. The girl and I, could it be that we? As he thought about it, Yi Han regretfully held his head, angrily scolding himself. Why did I do something reckless like that, and with innocent girl no less? Alcohol truly is the source of all troubles. Then, Yi Han quickly got out of bed, walking around to find the girl from the previous night. However, after searching for a while, he couldn't find her anywhere. He looked around, suspiciously saying, Where could that girl have gone? What's this letter she left? Yi Han's gaze fell on the piece of paper placed by the door. Holding up the piece of paper, the words written on it read, Consider everything between us as just a dream. Seeing this line, Yi Han was taken aback, his head scratching in frustration as he muttered, leaving no trace. 
Does she not want any contact with me? I guess I can consider it a one-man stand. At Shanghai Airport, the girl who had spent the night with Yi Han had been standing here since early morning, holding a suitcase, ready to board the plane. She looked around and silently said to herself, Five years have passed. It's time to go back. As for that guy, consider it just a dream. Then, without any hint of regret, she stepped onto the plane and left this place. Back at the hotel, Yi Han descended to the hotel lobby and leaned in to ask the receptionist, Hello beautiful, I wanted to ask, what's the name of the girl in room 503 from last night? The receptionist, bound by service principles, politely refused, saying, I'm sorry, but we cannot disclose personal information of our guests to others. Yi Han, feeling embarrassed, hesitated and confessed. Actually, I'm not entirely unfamiliar with her. Well, we spent the night together. Hearing this, the receptionist quickly deduced that the man in front of her was nothing more than a shameless character. The receptionist's face immediately turned darker, and she coldly interrogated, Mom, you've slept with someone and don't even know their name. In her thoughts, she muttered curses at Yi Han. Looks handsome, but unfortunately, just a player. Seeing the receptionist unwilling to disclose information, Yi Han had to resort to another method. He pulled out a large sum of money, waving it in front and sternly demanded, I'll ask one more time, what's her name? However, before the money could fan out, it was snatched away from Yi Han's hand with lightning speed. Yi Han was equally surprised at having his money taken. Unexpectedly, the receptionist was so resolute and quick in turning the tables. On the other side, the receptionist's eyes sparkled like stars as she looked at the money in her hands. In the face of money, professional ethics or merely transient. The receptionist quickly provided information about the girl from the previous night, saying, Dear customer, the guest in room 503 last night is Ren Zai Han, 28 years old. I hope this information is helpful to you. Having obtained the needed information, Yi Han nodded and said, All right, thank you. Afterward, Yi Han turned and left the hotel. Reflecting on the information about the girl from last night, he rubbed his chin in contemplation, just knowing the name won't be of much use. It seems finding her is nearly impossible. Moreover, if Duan Nai finds out about this, Duan Ni, thinking of Duan Nai, Yi Han halted, a painful ache in his heart, along with self-questioning. What are you hiding from me, after all, my dear? Yi Han sighed deeply, expressing his frustration. Forget it. Better return to executing the mission at hand. Despite his weariness, Yi Han's heart continued to hold on to hope and trust. I believe in my feelings and do one knee. Whatever happened, she will eventually tell me. At Fushan University, Yi Han walked slowly into the classroom. Seeing Yi Han, the students below excitedly chattered. Yi Han is here. Heard he single-handedly performed the entire Tai Chi martial art last night, truly formidable. A girl with heart-shaped eyes looked at Yi Han and said, I didn't notice yesterday, but today I realize Yi Han is quite handsome. I wonder if he has a girlfriend. The girl next to her snorted and said, Dream on. Yi Han is not only close to Lai Han Yan, but I heard Zhang Mengian is also keeping tabs on him. No chance for you. Yi Han waved to Lai Han Yan sitting beside him, saying, Hello, fellow student Lai Han Yan. Lai Han Yan looked at Yi Han with a smile and said, Last night you helped me and I haven't had a chance to thank you. From now on, you can call me Han Yan. Yi Han scratched his head hesitantly and said, Sure, Han Yan. In his heart, Yi Han couldn't help but speculate, This girl seems to like me. If I don't confirm the mission target clearly, Hu Feng will surely not let me off. It's better to stop this. Lai Han Yan propped her chin on her hand, staring at Yi Han and said, Heard that you displayed great martial prowess at the village meeting yesterday, and you also have a close relationship with the Khan duty Shi Han Sin. Yi Han chuckled, saying, It's nothing, just a bunch of unknown little skills. Yi Han continued to explain, As for Shi Han Sin's situation, I think she's a girl with a difficult fate. Without someone to protect her, anyone could bully her. Isn't she quite pitiable? Lai Han Yan stood up and said, I didn't expect you to be so kind-hearted. Lai Han Yan then made a suggestion. Let's go out for a stroll in the evening and have dinner. I just arrived at Fushan, and I don't have any friends, so it's quite lonely. Seeing that it was time for class, 
Lai Han Yan left. Yi Han stood up to stop her, saying, Hey, are you just going to leave like that without attending the class? Lai Han Yan waved her hand, saying, This period is a self-study session. No teacher will come. Let's meet at the school gate in the evening. After saying that, Lai Han Yan walked out of the classroom, while Yi Han stood there, nodding and saying, All right, sure. In Yi Han's thoughts, but she took the initiative to invite me. I don't want to actively pursue her. Everything I do is to fulfill the mission. Seeing Yi Han Lai Han Yan chatting, the class erupted in discussions. Did I just hear it right? Lai Han Yan is making plans to go out at night with Yi Han. Someone expressed concern. If Wu Tian Fu hears about this, he'll probably go crazy. He's been pursuing Lai Han Yan for almost a month, and she hasn't agreed to go out with him any day. Now, Lai Han Yan is actively making plans to go out with Yi Han. Another person lamented, My goddess, how could you agree to go out with him? Just by looking at him, you could tell he's not a good guy. Right at this moment, outside the classroom, a girl peeked inside and called softly, Yi Han. Yi Han, seeing Si Han Xin, became suspicious and asked, Si Han Xin. Blushing, Si Han Xin walked up to Yi Han. Seeing the gratitude in Yi Han's eyes, he gently asked, Why are you here? Is there something you need? Blushing, Shi Han Sin said with embarrassment, This is for you. Shi Han Sin took out a gift box and handed it to Yi Han. Surprised, Yi Han exclaimed, A gift? Why? Taking the gift box in his hand, Yi Han asked Shi Han Sin curiously, Today isn't any special occasion. Why do you want to give me a gift? Shi Han Sin clasped her hands together, bowing her head with a flushed face, saying, I heard about what happened in the martial arts village. Thank you for helping me. I personally made this gift, and I hope you'll like it. Yi Han opened the gift box, revealing a neatly folded handkerchief inside. Yi Han held the handkerchief in his hand, smiling brightly as he expressed his gratitude. Fall is approaching, and this gift is both timely and useful. Thank you. Seeing that Yi Han had accepted her handkerchief, Shi Han Sin's face lit up with sweet happiness, saying, As long as you like it, that's good. If there's nothing else, I have to go to my part-time job. I'll go ahead. Without giving Yi Han a chance to respond, she quickly turned and left. Yi Han looked at the hand-knitted handkerchief in his hand, and then at Shi Han Sin's departing figure, contemplating, regardless of good or bad, she's still a student at Fushan University. It seems like it's time to help Shi Han Sin find a new job. In the evening, as agreed, Yi Han went out with Lai Han Yan. Lai Han Yan, in a beautiful dress, walked beside Yi Han. Confidently, Lai Han Yan remarked, Strolling around with me can be tiring. You won't give up halfway, will you? Yi Han, feeling Lai Han Yan's skepticism, confidently replied, Of course not. Yi Han extended his arm showcasing his strength, and confidently declared, With my physical fitness, even if you stroll through the entire city of Shanghai, I won't break a sweat. Observing Yi Han flaunt his strength, Lai Han Yan couldn't resist reminding him, That's too confident. Be careful not to embarrass yourself. A moment later, Yi Han found his boast thrown back at him. Exhausted, he followed Lai Han Yan like a tired dog, carrying both large and small bags, gasping for breath. Yi Han moaned. I, I can't go on. Let's find a place to get some water. Seeing Yi Han in this state, Lai Han Yan covered her mouth and chuckled, saying, So, you can't handle a stroll through the city of Shanghai. Terrified by Lai Han Yan's comment, Yi Han sat on the ground, groaning. Who knew you could stroll around for so long? Internally, Yi Han sighed. This is more exhausting than facing ten experts in the microcosmic orbit realm. Seeing Yi Han in such a weary state, Lai Han Yan crossed her arms and said, All right, I'll let it slide this time. Then, she pointed to a restaurant ahead and suggested, Let's take a break in there and grab something to eat. Yi Han, feeling rejuvenated, full of energy, exclaimed, Sure, and followed Lai Han Yan into the restaurant. As Yi Han stepped into the shop, his gaze immediately focused on the female attendant standing there. It wasn't Xi Han Xin. Lai Han Yan also noticed Si Han Sin on the other side and remarked, crossing her arms. It seems like this is her part-time job, but it looks like she's in trouble. At another table, a stout owner with a flushed face grabbed Si Han Sin's hand and in a creepy tone said, 
beautiful lady, you're so stunning. Have a few drinks with us. Seeing this, the people accompanying him not only did not intervene, but also made derogatory remarks, saying, looking so beautiful and having to work as a service staff, what a pity. Why not join us for a good time? We'll introduce you to a better job. We're all directors of big companies, and the jobs we recommend will surely help you earn three times as much as here in a month. Facing the difficulties created by the people in front of her, she had Sin remain calm, trying to free herself from the man in front. Smiling, she said, I'm sorry, I don't drink, and I don't want to change my job. However, he refused to let go. She hand Sin quickly pulled her hand away, saying, I have other commitments. Please enjoy your meal, sir. Using too much force, she hand Sin made the man fall backward. Due to his intoxication, he fell to the ground, and the bottle of wine on the table spilled onto him in the process. The surrounding crowd murmured at the scene, whispering, not good. They quickly stood up and looked towards the man. He was visibly angry, gritting his teeth and swearing, giving her a chance to save face, yet she refuses. The man pointed directly at Xi Han Sin as he stood up, loudly addressing the owner. Boss, your staff here has dirtied all my clothes. Believe me, with just a word from me, your shop will have to close down. The owner, hearing the commotion outside, hurriedly rushed out, saying, This is really embarrassing really embarrassing. The owner clasped her hands together, bowing slightly, and gently explained, Dear customers, this girl is new and doesn't understand the situation. On her behalf, I apologize to all of you, and today's meal is on the house. However, the man was not willing to let the matter rest. He pointed at Xi Han Sin and threatened, Sure, you can treat us, but I want this girl to drink with us. If not, with just one phone call, I can make sure your business closes down. Sihan Sin widened her eyes in horror and pointed to herself, asking, Me? Seeing the situation getting out of hand, the owner approached Taxi Han Sin and whispered in her ear, Xiao Xie, just have a drink with them this time. I'll double your salary today. These are regular customers, and that man is the director of a large company with extensive social connections. It's better not to offend them. Shi Han Sin knew it would be like this but she didn't want to drink. With teary eyes, she shook her head and refused, saying, Sorry, boss, I'm just a waiter taking orders, not a hostess serving drinks. I can't agree to this. The man, feeling rejected, was relentless and reached his chubby hand towards Si Han Sin. He menacingly threatened, Today, whether you agree or not, you will agree. If not, I'll make sure you have no place to work. Just as his hand was about to grab Si Han Sin, a bamboo cane swiftly flew in, jabbing into the middle of his arm. Blood sprayed out like rain, and the man, holding his bloody arm, tears and snot streaming down, howled in pain. Ah, my hand, my hand. Furious, he turned towards the direction of the cane and shouted aggressively, Damn it, who did this? Yi Han, not hiding his involvement, stepped forward with authority, saying, It's me. Seeing that her rescuer was Yi Han, Shi Han Sin covered her mouth in emotional astonishment, saying, Ye Han. Yi Han hurried over, placing his hands gently on Si Han Sin's shoulders, comforting her. It's okay, Han Sin. I'm here now. Leave the rest to me. Right at that moment, the man rushed forward, angrily shouting, You miserable wretch, how dare you lay hands on me? He immediately ordered his companions, Brothers, get him. Disable that guy for me. Following their leader's command, the men grabbed bottles of wine and charged towards Yi Han. They menacingly declared, Brat, you're seeking death by provoking us. Today, we'll cripple you. He alone isn't strong enough to resist us. We'll beat him to death. Facing the approaching group, Yi Han smirked and retorted, A bunch of drunkards. He then lifted his leg, delivering consecutive kicks to their faces, angrily saying, Get lost. The three men writhed in pain on the floor, blood continuously spewing from their mouths. In agony, they cried out, It hurts to death, my joints feel broken. The man watched his comrades lying on the ground in pain, panic-stricken, yelling, What? Fear gripped him as he thought, This kid is so formidable. Yi Han turned to the man in front and spoke with a cold tone, Daring to force my sister to serve drinks, it seems you've lived too long. The owner hurriedly intervened trying to defuse the situation. Ahem. 
Let's not say such things. It's just a misunderstanding. Why let it escalate into a fight? Yi Han loudly scolded the woman. Shut up. These people are obviously no good. Not only did you force my sister to serve them, but you also dared to say one more word, and I'll hit you as well. The owner helplessly retorted, You're quite something, considering yourself formidable. The bullying director continued to berate Yi Han. Kid, don't be too hasty. Behind me is the business empire of the Wu family clan. If you dare touch me now, believe me, with just a word from me, you can rot in jail. The owner, sensing the power of the director, eagerly sided with him and addressed Principal Zhang. Mr. Zhang, don't worry. If the police come for evidence, I will testify for you, proving that this kid is the one who initiated the violence. Si Han Sin, hiding behind Yi Han, anxiously provided information about the Wu family clan, saying, The Wu family clan is a large conglomerate, ranking at the top in the Huanan region. They wield immense power. Meanwhile, Yi Han silently pondered, The Wu family clan conglomerate, which family clan does it belong to? Seeing the unfavorable situation, Lai Ham Yan advised Yi Han, Yi Han, let's stop here today. The Wu family clan conglomerate is not something you can afford to offend. Principal Zhang, soaked and furious, shouted, Get lost. Stop dreaming. He threatened Yi Han, Kid, kneel down and apologize immediately, or I'll make sure you won't survive. Yi Han jumped up, attacked Principal Zhang, and taunted him, You're a dead man. All that could be seen was blood splattering and Principal Zhang lying on the ground, groaning in pain, cursing Yi Han. Wretched, you dare to hit me. Terrified, Shi Han Sin exclaimed, Ye Han. Lai Han Yan was left speechless with Yi Han's actions. Ye Han, you've gone too far with your agitation. The pub owner went almost insane. This is madness. You know Principal Zhang's status, and yet you dare to hit him. Life is truly unbearable. Principal Zhang, standing up, threatened Yi Han. Kid, I won't let you off today. Just wait. I'll bring someone here. Shi Han Sin, anxious and tearful, urged Yi Han. Yi Han, please run. It's my fault today, and we can't let anything happen to you. Yi Han reassured Shi Han Sin, don't worry. Even Wu Tan Fu, the crown prince of the Wu family conglomerate, can't stand against me. Do you think I'd be afraid of a Wu family dog? Leave the rest to me. Yi Han confidently retorted to Principal Zhang. Not just anyone could be called for assistance. I have my connections too. Principal Zhang, appearing more assertive, chuckled and replied, Kid, who do you want to call to deal with me? Not planning to summon a bunch of scum, are you? Yi Han just smiled and made a call, saying, Hello, Mr. Kyle. This is Yi Han. I need your help with something. There's a company in Shanghai City called Golden Dragon Internship. I want them to go bankrupt overnight. Mr. Kyle responded eagerly, Oh, no problem, Yi Han. You're my friend, and I can certainly handle this. However, if this company is backed by the Wu family conglomerate, there might be some trouble. On the other end of the phone, Yi Han affirmed to Mr. Kyle, If it's the Wu family conglomerate, it might be a bit challenging. But for a subsidiary like this, it's as easy as pie. Excitedly, Mr. Kyle responded, I'll await your good news then. Yi Han then smiled as he looked at his phone. Principal Zhang, infuriated, shouted loudly, Kid, are you insane? One phone call, and you want to bankrupt my company. Who do you think you are? Lai Han Yan remained silent, looking at Yi Han, and silently thinking. With his personality, he's probably not joking. That phone call must be. As for Yi Han, he smirked disdainfully, and Principal Zhang remarked, To know how things unfold. You'll find out later. The stubborn principal retorted, You little rascal. After a while, his phone rang, and he looked at it inquisitively, saying, Ha, who's calling? Both Shi Han Sin and Lai Han Yan were puzzled when they saw this. It's a phone call? Could it be? Noticing Principal Zhang's hesitation, Yi Han mocked him. Why not answer the phone? Afraid to hear something. Being pressured. Principal Zhang reluctantly took the call, grumbling, Fine, I'll take it. Do you think I'm afraid of you, kid? You're just trying to intimidate me. I won't be scared so easily. Answering the call, Principal Zhang gruffly shouted, What is it? I'm having my meal. 
Why bother calling me in a hurry? Immediately, his expression changed, and he exclaimed, What? You're saying our partner wants to withdraw their investment? On the other end of the phone, Principal Zhang's subordinate continued to berate him. Boss, you've really offended someone. Our phones are under attack. Not only is the partner demanding withdrawal, but also our suppliers are finding various excuses to refuse supplying goods. We need to figure out what to do. If this continues, we won't be able to withstand another day. Principal Zhang exclaimed helplessly. How could this happen? He quickly issued orders to his subordinates. Where is the Wu family conglomerate? Contact them immediately for assistance. The subordinate reported the situation. I just contacted the Wu family conglomerate. They seemed to be at banquet, but afterward, the call was abruptly cut off, and when I called again, it was a disconnected number. Furious to the extreme, Principal Zhang threw his phone to the ground, cursing. A bunch of wretches. Regretting his years of dedication, he muttered, Wretched, I've sold my soul to them for so long, and they don't even bother to care about my situation. Now Yi Han smiled faintly and said to him, You're just a dog of the Wu family conglomerate. Don't expect them to save you. Who do you think you are? Principal Zhang truly felt fear from Yi Han at this moment. He stammered, I, I. Yi Han raised his voice, kneeled down and confess. Do you want your family to be ruined before admitting your mistake? Principal Zhang, with a bowed head, begged forgiveness from Yi Han. Sir, I was wrong. I truly apologize. Please forgive me this time. I have an elderly mother and a small child. The whole family relies on this company to survive. If the company collapses, my family will starve. Please spare me. At this moment, Yi Han turned to Xi Han Sin and commanded, The person you need to apologize to is not me, but my little sister. Principal Zhang turned to Xi Han Sin, slapped himself hard, and begged for forgiveness. I was wrong to you. I'm not human. I shouldn't have forced you to drink. Please forgive me. I truly can't bear it anymore. Seeing him slap himself, Shi Han Sin exclaimed, What are you doing? Feeling uneasy about the situation, Shi Han Sin said to Yi Han, Brother Yi Han, look at what he's doing. Yi Han chuckled and said to her, Han Sin, if you want to forgive him, consider today's incident over. If not, I guarantee he'll be begging for food on the streets tomorrow. With a compassionate heart, Han Sin decided to let Principal Zhang go. Go away. Forgive him. In the end, I'm still safe and sound. Principal Zhang, with his head bowed in gratitude, said, Thank you. Thank you. But Yi Han continued sternly. Forgiveness may be granted for mortal sins, but not for those who continue to live in sin. Yi Han expressed his expectations to Principal Zhang. If you have so much money, why not invest a hundred million in a scholarship fund for underprivileged children? Principal Zhang was bewildered. What, a hundred million? That's my company's profit over the past three years. Yi Han coldly replied, Then wait for your company to go bankrupt. Hearing this, Principal Zhang, terrified, hastily agreed. I'll contribute, I'll contribute. Yi Han was pleased with his response. Tomorrow, news of your contribution to underprivileged students should make the front page, or else. Yi Han left the rest unsaid leaving it for Principal Zhang to comprehend on his own. Then, together with Xi Han Sin, he departed, saying, Let's go. The tavern owner remained in a state of bewildered surprise. Who is this kid? I can't believe that with just one phone call, he could bring Mr. Zhang's company to the brink of bankruptcy. What's more, I've just offended him. What should I do now? As the tavern owner worried, Yi Han realized he hadn't dealt with her yet. He said to her, I find the ambience of this place a bit unpleasant. It's better to close down for a year while I renovate. Principal Zhang volunteered for the task promptly. Understood, understood. Leave this task to me. The tavern owner was taken aback, closed down for a year. Shocked, she fainted on the spot. Oh my God. After being disciplined for a while, Principal Zhang, without any remorse, was now calling someone to seek revenge against Yi Han, young Master Wu. Please don't hang up first. It's not about my company. He lurked behind the wall, insidiously smiling as he spoke. I saw Lai Han Yan. Aren't you interested in pursuing her? She's on the business street. The scene shifted to the bustling business street, where Xi Han Sin expressed her gratitude to Yi Han with a joyful heart. Thank you, Yi Han. If it weren't for you today, 
I might have been in real trouble. Yi Han warmly patted Si Han Sin's head and replied, No need to thank me. I'm not your foster brother. This is something I should do. You don't have to say thank you in the future. Si Han Sin blushed and nodded gently. Seeing her, Lai Han Yan cheerfully greeted, Si Han Sin, I didn't know this before, but you're so beautiful. I'm Lai Han Yan, just recently enrolled at Fu Shan University. We can go out together sometime. Si Han Sin also agreed happily, Sure, sure. But I usually work extra hours. I only have free time in the afternoon. Concerned about Han Sin's struggles, Yi Han spoke to her. Han Sin, temporarily stop those part-time jobs. In the coming days, I'll help you find a more stable job. You must not engage in dangerous work like today. While speaking, Yi Han silently thought, See Han Sin, a strong girl. Giving her money directly will surely be refused. I'll have to find another way to help her. Upon hearing this, Han Sin appreciated and agreed. Yes, Yi Han, I will follow your advice. After that, Lai Han Yan said to Han Sin, All right, it's getting late. Let's call a car and go back to school. Right at that moment, a luxurious car turned the corner, adorned with romantic roses. It was Wu Tilan Fu. After being informed by Principal Zhang, he came to express his feelings to Lai Han Yan. Excitedly, he said, Han Yan, I've come to pick you up. Yi Han, seeing him, thought to himself, This guy truly can't get rid of his bad habits. He's here bothering Lai Han Yan again. He held a bouquet of bright red roses, waved with a smile and announced to Han Yan, Han Yan, it's Wu Tian Fu. Today, I officially pursue you. Please agree you be my girlfriend. I swear to only love you for the rest of my life. Wu Tian Fu's entourage enthusiastically cheered. Agree, agree. I've never seen Wu Tian Fu so sincere before. Lai Han Yan, you must agree. Wu is handsome, wealthy. Whoever stays by his side will live in luxury forever. People on the street and the onlookers felt uneasy about Wu Tian Fu's actions and his gang, creating this whole spectacle again. The rich kids are picking on others. I know Wu Tian Fu. He must have harmed many other girls before. Truly a scoundrel. Unexpectedly, someone still believes in his sincerity. Huh. It seems that girl is still a student, remarkably beautiful. But what a pity. Lai Han Yan arrogantly asked Wu Tian Fu, Why the ostentatious display of roses? This shameless individual expressed to her, As long as Lai Han Yan likes it, I can give her lots of roses every day. We can even grow a whole farm together, and we'll go there every day. Lai Han Yan decisively threw his bouquet of roses to the ground, and she firmly stated, Unfortunately, someone else's roses smell sweet, but yours are rotten. I'm sorry. I don't like them. Wu Ting and Fu, feeling somewhat embarrassed by the rejection, tried to salvage a hint of fragile hope. Han Yan, what do you mean by saying that? Yi Han, not wanting this guy to bother Han Yan any further, stood up to shield her and scolded Wu Tian Fu. What's there not to understand? Get out of here now. Wu Tian Fu, ashamed and angered, exploded. Damn it, a poor wretch dares to tell me to leave. The shoes I'm wearing are worth more than everything you have on you. As Wu Tian Fu was boasting, Lai Han Yan took decisive action placing a kiss on Yi Han's cheek. This not only left Wu Tian Fu stunned and incredulous, but also surprised Si Han Xin. Mischievously, Lai Han Yan told Wu Tian Fu, Yi Han is my boyfriend. Now he could tell you to leave, right? Yi Han felt a bit embarrassed. He spoke softly to Han Yan. Hey, are you serious? We've only known each other for two days. But Lai Han Yan just smiled and replied with a hint of playfulness. What's wrong with that? Didn't you say you were here to protect me before? Hearing Han Yan's words, Wu Tian Fu was infuriated. He pointed straight at Yi Han's face and shouted, No, I don't believe it. How could this poor devil beat your boyfriend? What does he have that's better than me? Wu Tian Fu had never heard of the name Yi Han before. His group of followers joined in, cursing and clamoring. I can't believe this guy dares to snatch a woman from young Master Wu. This brat is tired of living. In terms of appearance, he's not even worthy to be a doormat for young Master Wu. In terms of abilities, for the rest of his life, he shouldn't even dream of surpassing young Master Wu. We despise the white-faced boys like him the most. Kid, I advise you to immediately stay away from Lai Han Yan. Otherwise, with our capabilities, making you disappear from this world, 
permanently won't be difficult. Some bystanders outside were also surprised by Yi Han. Really or fake? Looking at this situation, I never expected that this kid is the boyfriend of that beauty. Heaven must be blind. Even he had such a beautiful girlfriend. Suddenly, I feel more confident about myself. Let's see how this kid deals with Wu Ting and Fu. If he lets that guy achieve his goal, won't the unluckiest person be this girl? Yi Han glanced at Lai Han Yan, feeling a bit discontented after being forcefully kissed by the beauty. He teased her. Are you using me as a shield? Lai Han Yan innocently replied. What's wrong with that? Don't you agree? Han Yan genuinely wanted Yi Han to out with the other guy this time. Yi Han suddenly found himself in a comfortable situation with the beauty like Han Yan. He would miss this golden opportunity. He quickly extended his arm over her shoulder and said, I must say, serving a beauty like you is my honor. While Han Yan was still perplexed by this feeling, Yi Han performed a charming act. He provocatively challenged Wu Tian Fu. Why are you still standing there like a fool? Do you want to witness Han Yan and me getting intimate? Wu Tian Fu felt like he was about to explode. His verbal threats weren't working. He took out his wallet, thinking that a poor guy like Yi Han would surely be tempted by a few bucks. He nervously said to Yi Han, As long as you stay away from Han Yan, I'll give you 100,000. With that, he pulled out a credit card from his wallet, trying to sound imposing. If that's not enough, 500,000. Heck, I'll make it a million. Just name your price. Wu Tian Fu can definitely handle it. Don't doubt the power of the Wu family conglomerate. But the little guy there had no idea that he was standing before the most powerful financial force in Zhang Gu Agu. Of course, Yi Han was just pretending to be a college guy. Yi Han casually flicked his hand, making the cards fly away. He replied, So according to you, Han Yan is only worth that much. The cards scattered on the ground as Yi Han delivered some advice on how to impress a girl to the little guy. Sorry, in my heart, Han Yan is priceless. Wu Tian Fu was furious. He had endured enough, but this guy wouldn't yield. The kid's face turned red, and he gritted his teeth, saying each word with resentment, Li Han, believe me, with just one phone call from me, I can make you leave Fu Shan immediately and become a beggar on the street. If you want to challenge me, you'll find it very hard to live with the consequences. Seeing the argument taking a turn for the worse, Shi Han Sin worried that Yi Han might have to face this arrogant young master. She stepped forward and whispered, Lai Han, don't argue with him anymore. His influence is very strong. I'm afraid something bad might happen. Wu Tian Fu regained a bit of his pride after hearing Si Han Xin's words. He arrogantly taunted Yi Han. Ha ha ha. Did you hear that, Shi Han Xin? Know that I'm very powerful. If you challenge me, the outcome won't be good for you. I advise you to obediently listen to her and get out of here for my sake. Yi Han. Disdainful of these deceitful tactics, sighed and replied. Originally, I didn't want to engage in a contest with you, because doing so would lower my own value. He dialed a few numbers and raised the phone to continue. But to avoid causing worries for my little sister, I still have to let you see what true strength is. Hey, young master A. Tang, I'm on the main street, being provoked by a newly rising rich kid. I'm bringing some people over here. Seeing Yi Han making a call to his subordinates, as if it were a joke, Wu Tian Fu pointed and laughed sarcastically. He mocked Yi Han. Ha ha ha. Yi Han, what are you pretending? Still trying to call someone. Are you planning to summon a group of thugs to deal with a small gang leader like you? Indeed, it's laughable. This cunning guy might be approaching his astrological expiration without knowing it. His followers rolled on the ground, laughing at each other. This kid has probably watched too many gangster movies thinking he's a big boss commanding the winds and storms. Ha 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 ha, no matter who you call here, they'll have to kneel before Wu Tian Fu and call him daddy. A bunch of poppers daring to challenge Tian Fu. Ha ha ha. I advise you to find a hospital for a checkup or just replace your brain sooner. While the kids were still busy laughing, suddenly the blaring sound of car horns echoed from the other side of the boulevard. Wu Tian Fu turned his head and was startled to witness a convoy of luxurious cars approaching them. Just as Yi Han had mentioned, Wu Tian Fu's followers were astonished, shouting out, the youngsters having never seen such a scene before in their lives. BMWs, Mercedes, and even Bugattis, we're done for. Why are there so many luxury cars? 
Are the rich families in Shanghai City really gathering here? Or is this just a show put on by that pretentious guy? The young princes from the most powerful factions in Shanghai City slowly stepped out of their fancy cars. They advanced towards Yi Han in unison, seeing the city's influential figures, Wu Ting and Fu, who had been quite audacious before, was now dumbfounded. He didn't dare to speak as loudly as before. Young Master Lai, Young Master Liu, and Young Master Wang, why are you all here? Did you come here to gather, or? The young masters brushed past the impudent kid without bothering to respond, walking straight up to Yi Han, bowing respectfully as if to say one hears one, says two hears two. Witnessing this scene, Wu Tian Fu, with eyes wide open and jaw dropped, stammered, Young Master Yi, this can't be real. Did you actually call these people here? Yi Han felt sorry for the kid and responded calmly, Originally, I wanted to live a normal student life. Now I have to deal with such a rotten guy from your family. No need to pretend anymore. I'll reveal the truth, Ki. Tang Hai Ben approached enthusiastically, unaware of what amusing story Yi Han wanted to share with them. However, he decided to start with grandeur. Yi Han, do you approve of my setup? Lin Ban Mo observed the surroundings and partially guessed Yi Han's story. He walked over and sighed. These people didn't come here out of respect for me. They came for Yi Han. Why are you provoking like that? Tang Hai Bin, feeling embarrassed, tried to maintain his pride and replied, Well, we're like brothers with Yi Han. Let's not talk too much. Getting to the main point, Tang Hai Bin asked, Who is Yi Han bothering so much that the eldest young master has to discipline him? Yi Han pointed towards Wu Tian Fu and said, It's that guy. He's the eldest son of the Wu family conglomerate and he claims to be quite arrogant. Upon hearing this, Wu Ting and Fu's legs and arms went limp, unable to distinguish between heaven and earth. Tang Hai Bin showed surprise. Oh, the Wu family conglomerate. Sounds familiar. He immediately recalled the business dealings with the small Wu family conglomerate, which had sought opportunities several times. Tang Hai Bin stepped forward and spoke up. I remember now, a few days ago, their chairman even came to our door probably wanting my dad to help them with something. Taking advantage of the situation, young Master Tang performed a play to intimidate the Wu Tian Fu and his group. I returned home and immediately told my dad to reject that request. How dare they offend my good friends? Even if the Wu family conglomerate is number one in Shanghai City, I'll level the playing field. Lin Bai Mo also cautiously reconsidered the business perspective and became suspicious of the Wu family conglomerate our Lin family seems to have some cooperation with the Wu family conglomerate. I'll return and instruct our people to cancel all contracts with them. Young masters from other powerful factions caught the emotional wave and simultaneously signaled to Yi Han. I remember too. The Wu family conglomerate wanted to have a store in our commercial chain. Let me immediately go back and reject this contract. They seem to want to source our products. I'll probably tell my dad to refuse any collaboration with them. The Wu family conglomerate, what audacity to offend young master Ye. Let's join forces and drive them out of Shanghai City. At this moment, across the street, there was someone sweating profusely, their face drained of blood, and their imagination running wild with horrifying scenarios that could befall the Wu family conglomerate. The only wish they had was to know the name of the person they had offended just a few minutes ago. Approaching Yi Han, they asked, Who are you really? Yi Han smiled warmly in response, I am Yi Han, currently just a regular university student. Oh, and I know a bit of medical skills and martial arts. Upon hearing this, Wu Tian Fu's followers finally realized that there was a Yi Han in the world who had accomplished unimaginable feats. He's the one who defeated the Blood Clan, the Yi Han who even dared to confront the Celestial Sect. If we knew it was him, we wouldn't have dared to provoke. We dumb master, sorry. I suddenly remembered there's a pot of soup left boiling at home. I'll go ahead. With that, the whole group of Wu Ti and Fu's followers scattered and ran, leaving no one behind. In just a moment, Wu Ti and Fu found himself without any loyal companions by his side, abandoned and without anyone to defend him. Frustrated, he cursed at the followers who had deserted him. You, you miserable lot dare to. Before he could finish his sentence, Yi Han's voice called his name freezing him in his tracks. Wu Tian Fu. Yi Han walked silently towards him. This time, he asked very gently, Do you still want to fight with me? Whether it's skills, abilities, or physical strength, 
I'll play with you to the end. Wu Tian Fu nearly wet himself, looking at Yi Han as if he had seen a ghost. He trembled, his tongue stumbling over his lips, not even knowing what he was saying. I'm Yi Han. You guys are quite something. Consider today your lucky day. We're not finished yet. Having said that, Wu Tian Fu leaped away, thinking that these people led by Yi Han were just putting on a martial arts show. Yi Han calmly stood, watching the cunning fellow make his move, smiling disdainfully. He raised his hand, signaling to his comrades, Hold on, he still wants to drive away. Why make it so simple? Smash his car for me. The five hundred companions of Yi Han, hungry like a pack of wolves, rushed forward to surround Wu Tian Fu's luxury car, using all sorts of sticks, branches, soil, and stones to tear it apart as if they were tearing prey apart. Daring to offend Yi Young Master and wanting to leave so easily, Yi Young Master spared your car just because. You should consider yourself lucky. Ha 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 ha. Don't say that, breaking the luxury car is a piece of cake. Wu Ti and Fu helplessly sat on the ground, sobbing and wailing. Oh heavens, my car. It's a limited edition. My dad worked hard to buy it. Yi Han. You. You. Yi Han came here not to waste time playing with these cunning guys, so he raised his spirits, looking deadly serious. He shouted loudly, Get out of here immediately. Wu Tian Fu stopped running and crawled forward to ensure he wouldn't be attacked. The little guy was still defiant, cursing at Yi Han while crawling away. Yi Han, just wait. I'll definitely be back. Tang Hai Bin watched the cunning fellow with regret and asked Yi Han, Yi Han, why let him off so easily? Why not give him a lesson? Yi Han had made up his mind beforehand and replied, Not necessary. He explained, They're just a bunch of college kids, not like the bloodthirsty gang or the celestial sect. There's no need to be overly heavy-handed. Tang Hai Bin nodded, thinking Yi Han's approach was reasonable. He casually glanced behind and saw the two beauties, Lai Han Yan and Xi Han Xin, still holding each other and looking at Yi Han with confusion. He asked in surprise, Hey Yi Han, who are these two beauties? Introduce them to me. Seeing beautiful girls, Tang Hai Bin didn't know where heaven or earth was anymore, his eyes shining like stars. Yi Han looked at the two girls and introduced, This is my adopted sister, Si Han Sin, and this is my classmate, Lai Han Yan. The two charming girls looked at everyone innocently, not knowing what to say. Seeing this, Yi Han quickly introduced his brothers to them. Right, they are Tang Hai Bin and Lin Bai Mo, both good friends of mine. Si Han Sin, the Pollet Rain Girl, bowed to the handsome guys, saying, Hello, Tang and Lin. Lai Han Yan, who had just escaped the boring encounter with Wu Tian Fu, finally learned about Yi Han's background. She teasingly remarked, Yi Han, you really are deep and mysterious. Yi Han was somewhat embarrassed unable to hide its special status from the beautiful girls any longer. He said, I didn't intentionally hide my identity. You didn't ask either. Lai Han Yan was temporarily reassured about her new friend, seeming to like Yi Han. She waved the Han Yan and said, All right, I'll let it go this time. You still have a bunch of people to deal with. I'll head back to school by myself. Yi Han pretended to smile and responded, Sure, be careful on the way. Watching Lai Han Yan gradually walk away, Yi Han seemed to have some plans in mind. He turned to whisper to Lin Bai Mo and Tang Hai Bin. Bai Mo, find a few people to discreetly protect Lai Han Yan. Ensure her safety when she returns to school for me. Lin Bai Mo nodded in acknowledgement. All right, I'll arrange it right away. Shi Han Xin, seeing that there was nothing left for her to do here, walked up to greet Yi Han and Tang Hai Bin. Yi Han. It's getting late now. I should head back too. Yi Han placed his hand on Xi Han Xin's shoulder and said, No rush, I'll take you to find a better job. It seemed that Yi Han had some plans to assist Xi Han Xin, and Tang Hai Bin's work was not beyond his concern either. Turning to him, Yi Han asked, Regarding the company we talked about last time, how are the preparations going? Tang Hai Bin, somewhat surprised, hurriedly replied, If you had mentioned it, I almost forgot. This guy always distracted by beautiful girls. Despite that, the work assigned by Yi Han had been arranged long ago. Tang Hai Bin grinned and answered, Everything is sorted out. We can start the business next week. Now there's just one missing piece. 
Yi Han, have you thought of a name? Yi Han, pretending to be a scholar contemplating, mumbled a few names while tapping his mouth. After a moment of consideration, he finally selected a catchy name and said to Tang Hai Bin, how about calling it Dragon Sky Group? Tang Hai Bin had never dared to criticize Yi Han's ideas before, and upon hearing this, he smiled and nodded in agreement. Sounds great, the name is quite powerful. I like it. After finishing the discussion with Tang Hai Bin, Yi Han turned his attention to Xi Han Sin and said, Han Sin, next week, come to Dragon Sky Group to work. This is my company, and there's absolutely no one who would dare to bully you. Hearing the news of a company welcoming a new member, Tang Hai Bin was ecstatic and quickly welcomed her. Sister, rest assured, I will definitely arrange a good position for you. Si Han Sin, with her unfortunate background, felt deeply grateful to have encountered Yi Han and his friend's selfless help. She could only bow her head and express her gratitude. Thank you, Yi Han, and thank you, Tang. Seeing the obedient girl expressing her thanks, Hai Bin felt pleased and approached, saying, Tang Hai Bin, I might not be good at anything, but I'm good at being courteous. By the way, how old is your sister? Where does she live? How many people are in her family, and does she have a boyfriend? Knowing Tang Hai Bin's playful nature, Yi Han decided to interrupt and said, All right, stop teasing. I have something to ask you. Finding a more private spot, Yi Han lit a cigarette for a moment of relaxation. Tang Hai Bin, curious about Yi Han's intentions, asked, Vai Han, what do you want to talk about? Yi Han, exhaling smoke, spoke in a deep voice, How's Duan Nai recently? I haven't seen her for a few days. Hai Bin, somewhat surprised, as the one closer to Duan Nai lately, knew the situation quite well. After a brief pause, he replied, Whenever you mention her, I actually think of something. Recently, there's a guy named Feng who keeps hanging around her. They've been together a lot, and I feel like she might be torn between the two. Sensing the frustration in Hai Bin's tone, Yi Han pondered for a moment before continuing his inquiry. What's the background of the Feng family? I've never heard of them before. Hai Bin, having proactively investigated the Feng family's history, explained in detail, I did some digging. The Feng family is said to be the most prestigious aristocratic family in Baifan. Moreover, the current head of the Feng family, back then, went through hardships with Duan Ni's father. Although the two families have limited contact, their relationship is quite good. Tang Hai Bin felt sorry for Yi Han, his most respected friend facing such a situation. Hai Bin shared his concerns with Yi Han. Ye Han, I'm worried about Duan Nai. Hearing his friend's words, Yi Han empathized with Hai Bin's thoughts to some extent. However, since meeting Duan Nai, he had never doubted her. Yi Han quickly pushed Hai Bin's hand away and clarified for him that he couldn't entertain doubts about Duan Nai. Hai Bin, you don't need to say anymore. I believe in the relationship between Duan Nai and me. Tomorrow, I'll find her and help her solve this problem. Observing Yi Han's serious expression, Tang Hai Bin had to quickly express a more conciliatory attitude. Yi Han, I didn't mean it that way. I was just concerned that Duan Ni might not withstand the pressure from her family. I've met Duan Ni's father before, and from his appearance, he seems like a very traditional person. Yi Han quickly grasped some essential information and pondered the situation. He responded to Hai Bin, As long as Duan Ni trusts me, I can surely persuade her family. After saying that, Yi Han flicked away the unfinished cigarette. Time was short, and he signaled, Let's go. Returning to his enthusiastic demeanor, Yi Han, alongside Hai Bin, stepped out with anticipation. Let's welcome those who helped us solve the trouble. We should treat them properly. Late in the evening, after bidding farewell to those who assisted him, Yi Han escorted Xi Han Xin back to Fushan University alone. The serene night enveloped them as they strolled through the campus. Han Xin spoke up, Li Han, thank you for standing up for me today and finding me a new job. Yi Han felt a bit awkward at the sweet and adorable words of the young girl. He replied, You really? I've told you not to thank me. I'm like your older brother. These things are what family should do. Hearing the echo of her words in her head, Han Sin was half dazed and half pondering. He's not a biological brother. Luckily, he's not a biological brother. Yi Han, catching a faint murmur from Han Sin, was curious and asked, What did you say? I couldn't hear clearly. 
Han Sin hastily waved her hand, signaling, Oh, it's nothing. Han Sin wanted to give Yi Han a surprise when they were alone. She turned to him and said, Yi Han, could you close your eyes? I have a gift for you. Yi Han was surprised. Another gift. Feeling intrigued, he immediately closed his eyes as per the little girl's request. Curious, he asked, Han Sin, what's this gift so mysterious? Seizing the perfect moment, Han Sin tiptoed and planted a warm kiss on Yi Han's cheek. Yi Han, caught off guard by the unexpected kiss, opened his eyes immediately. The young man, half delighted and half astonished, blushed and exclaimed, Han Sin, you. Feeling embarrassed, Han Sin hurriedly ran away, bidding farewell to Yi Han. Goodbye, Yi Han. I'm going back now. Yi Han escorted these beautiful girls through one surprise after another. Watching Han Sin's departure, he sighed. First Lai Han Yan, now Shi Han Sin. But I already have a girlfriend. Yi Han, left behind near the basketball court, sighed. Let it go. Going back is probably the better choice. The Fu Shan University basketball team was passionately practicing at night when their ball accidentally flew out towards Yi Han. Someone shouted, Watch out, the ball flew out. Yi Han glanced at the basketball with his profound eyes. The teammates on the basketball team feared that the ball might hit Yi Han's head and shouted to him, Hey, watch out, move away quickly. Yi Han thanked them, saying, It's okay, not enough to hurt me. After saying that, he caught the ball without turning his head, as if he had eyes behind his neck. The basketball team members were amazed, thinking they were hallucinating. He didn't even bother to turn around, and still managed to catch the ball. The ball flew with such force just now, yet he effortlessly caught it with one hand. A friendly teammate chuckled and said, Sorry, but can you throw the ball back to us? Yi Han, still maintaining his reserved demeanor, nodded, Sure, catch it. Keeping his back turned, Yi Han tossed the ball backward. The ball spiraled and smoothly entered the basket, as if guided directly to its destination. The basketball team members stood there in shock, each looking like they had seen a ghost, gaping at the ball rolling gracefully on the court. After a moment of astonishment, everyone exclaimed, Standing so far from the basket, and he could still make a shot. Is this a coincidence? Even Captain Wang couldn't do this. Some people stood watching Yi Han's moves in awe and admiration, commenting, Lucky guy. I think he's more of a talent than just lucky. I forgot to ask his name, but I found out he's called Yi Han. Yesterday, he single-handedly rearranged the whole basketball team, and I stood beside, thoroughly entertained. Yang Zhuang, always the best basketball player at Fushan University, seems like he has finally met a truly formidable opponent this time. The next day, in Du Yi's office, she had been busy since early morning with a pile of documents scattered around her. Unexpectedly, someone knocked on the door, asking, Director Zhu, do you have a moment? Duan Ni, as usual, raised her eyebrows in response. No time. I'm busy. It was her usual response when immersed in work. But this time, it was undoubtedly an exception. Duan Nai immediately stood up, her face radiant as she greeted. Ye Han, why are you here? I heard from Tang Haimbin that you're not studying at a university. Right. Ye Han entered, discreetly closed the door. He replied, I'm not intentionally trying to surprise you, am I? Stepping in front of his girlfriend, Yi Han gently lifted her chin to admire her, saying tenderly, Have you missed me lately? Duan Nai leaned her head against Yi Han's chest, showing signs of annoyance. She scolded, Who cares to remember the name of your wicked family? Last time you disappeared like that, I was so scared. Are you trying to scare me? Yi Han embraced the two of them together and responded, Duan Ni, my dear, how could you say scary things about me? Unable to contain themselves, they hugged each other tightly, sharing a passionate kiss. It had been a long time since they had been able to touch each other like this, and the scene was truly romantic. Yet in the midst of this moment, someone intruded without invitation, pushing the door open without Duan Ni's consent. A clueless young man, holding a bouquet of flowers, entered and called out, Duan Ni. Startled, Duan Ni quickly let go of Yi Han and stood behind him. Blushing with embarrassment, she pointed her finger at the intruder and scolded, You, why didn't you knock before coming in? Yi Han gave the intruder a serious look. The young man, 
looking quite naive, approached and pointed his finger at Yi Han, asking his silly question, Du Wan Ni, who is this? Standing close to his girlfriend, without waiting for Du Wan Nai's answer, Yi Han spoke up boldly, I am Du Wan Ni's boyfriend, Yi Han. You're from the Feng family, right? I heard you've been following Du Wan Nai around lately. Hearing the mention of the Feng family, the young man placed the bouquet on the table and engaged in conversation with Yi Han. His face appeared quite content, as if he had anticipated meeting Yi Han to see how he would react. Responding, he said, I know you, Yi Han, just a freeloader. He arrogantly continued, stating as if it were the truth. Moreover, I'm not clinging to Du Wan Nai. Currently, Du Wan Nai is single, and we are childhood friends. I am, in fact, proposing to Du Wan Nai. Du Wan Nai struggled to explain to Yi Han immediately, hastily saying to him, Yi Han, don't misunderstand me. There's nothing between me and him. I'm just trying to respect my father's wishes, so I agreed to meet him a few times. Yi Han looked at Du Wan Nai with affectionate eyes, holding her hand reassuringly. It's okay, Du Wan Nai. I trust you. Yi Han dealt with the somewhat foolish Feng confidently. He stepped forward calmly and stated, Marriage matters are something I will discuss with Du Wan Ni's father later. Then he gestured angrily, ordering Feng's family. Ads for you. Know your place and leave here promptly. Seeing Yi Han speak like this, Feng's family became furious. They flexed their wrists, moved their feet, stepping forward challengingly. Tell us to leave. Afraid you don't have the ability. Yi Han warned them. Don't be arrogant. I don't like to resort to violence. Feng, the foolish one, clapped his hands, conjuring a swift and disdainful attack. He taunted Yi Han. I want to see how capable you really are. He lunged straight at Yi Han, and his Hu Yu Wen Jiangfa was a well-known ancestral martial art technique of the Feng family. Yi Han sensed that this fool was asking for trouble, no longer desiring Duan Di's affection. Yi Han reluctantly countered, shouting loudly, Indeed, you have no sense of your own strength. Yi Han's three elements strike instantly dispelled the aura of Fang's family technique within a split second. Moreover, the intense force also struck directly at Fang himself, too fast for him to evade. Fang exclaimed, What is this? Yi Han's technique landed a painful blow to Fang's chest. However, Yi Han had reduced the force by seven units, sparing Fang from more severe injuries. Feng was sent flying out of the door with a loud thud, his nose bleeding as if he had sustained a serious injury. Yi Han casually approached, leaning against the door, arms crossed, and asked the Feng family mockingly, so still want to continue the fight? Yi Han seemed unenthusiastic about facing these weak opponents. Feng struggled to get up, wiping his mouth clean. He was infuriated but knew he could match Yi Han's strength. Through gritted teeth he said, Huh. Didn't expect your martial arts to reach this level, Yi Han. I admit you're a worthy opponent, but haven't. Yi Han was also surprised. Although Feng Bing seemed inexperienced, he demonstrated remarkable resilience after that strike. Taking one of my punches without serious injury, Feng Bing, you're not as weak as I thought, Yi Han remarked. Du Wen Ni, recognizing that Feng Bing was no match for Yi Han, intervened before things escalated further. She stepped forward to stop the confrontation. Enough? Feng Bing, don't fight with Yi Han anymore. Feng Bing, perplexed, looked at Du Wan Ni, who was hand in hand with Yi Han. He deliberately asked, Du Wan Ni, why are you stopping me? Du Wan Ni, infuriated, pointed directly at Feng Bing's bewildered face, making it clear for him. Feng Bing, today, I'll make it crystal clear to you once again. I've always liked Yi Han. Don't waste your time with me. There's no chance for us. Feng Bing, the self-deluded optimist, couldn't believe what he was hearing. He had been genuinely sincere toward Du Wan Ni, and he was taken aback. But Du Wan Ni, you agreed to give me a chance before, he insisted. Du Wan Nai realized he had misconstrued the situation and corrected him, saying, Feng Bing, the chance I mentioned was for us to figure out how to address that fabricated engagement issue together. It wasn't an invitation for you to pursue me. You've misunderstood. Duan Nai embraced Yi Han, making it clear to Feng Bing that she was in love with Yi Han. She said, Ju Duan Ni, I have liked and loved only one boy my whole life, and that person is Yi Han. Yi Han looked at Duan Nai with a smile, his arms around her. Turning to Feng Bing, 
Yi Han replied, Du Wanmei has made it very clear. He then spoke up to chase Feng away, saying, You better leave now. Why are you still standing there? Feng Bing, with a shattered expression, pointed accusingly at Yi Han. Yi Han, I'm not finished with you. Just you wait. With that, he left nursing his grudge. Yi Han watched him leave cautiously. Du Wanmei sighed and said to Yi Han, Before, I took the time to meet him hoping that Feng Bing could resolve this matter peacefully without involving you in trouble. Unexpectedly, it turned out to be. Yi Han comforted Du and Ni, stroking her gently. I've looked into the Feng family. They have some money from their business, that's all. They can't compare to the power of the blood sugar family. Du and Ni, what are you worried about? Du and Ni hesitated but didn't want to hide the truth about the Feng family. She said, there's something else you may not know. Feng Bing's father is Kao Yuan Wan. I heard that he holds significant influence, and very few in Baifang dare to cross him. Kao Yuan Wang, have you heard of him before? Yi Han responded, then contemplated for a while before saying, I heard that Kao Yuan Wang is the king of a border region in Baifang. Under his protection, there are about 13 powerful adopted children, and Feng Bing might be one of them. Du Wan Mi, feeling helpless, had not taken any decisive measures yet, she intended to involve adults to prevent any uncertain incidents involving Yi Han. She held his hand and said, Yi Han, maybe I should ask my dad to explain this matter. Yi Han, aware of the child's concern for him, had a lot to think about. He hugged Du Wan Nai tightly and whispered into her ear, It's okay, Du Wan Nai. Even if the sky falls, I'll carry it for you. Don't worry. However, we may need to find an opportunity to meet your dad. Otherwise, this son-in-law title of mine may not be officially recognized. Du and Ni, hearing her lover speak of it, expressed the concern she had been pondering for a long time. She scolded, now you know about it. Yi Han had mentally resolved the matter with Du Wan Nai. His body was itching, and he couldn't wait any longer. He lifted the baby in his arms and said, Ha ha, Du Wan Nai, we haven't seen each other for a few days. Yi Han didn't explicitly mention the intimate matter. But Du Wan Ni, pretending to be embarrassed, said, Yi Han, what are you doing? Yi Han carried the baby straight into the room, ignoring her protest. This is an office. The door, the door is still open. Yi Han playfully placed her on the tidy table, and the young man replied, Just close it. What's the big deal? Blushing, Du and I didn't dare to say anything more, waiting for Yi Han to discreetly close the door. Yi Han didn't need to step out. He waved his hand, and the door closed with a solid click, securely locked. Then, he immediately engaged in the story, teasing Duan Nai with a grin. Duan Nai had to exclaim, Yi Han, take it slow. After a passionate night full of fiery passion, Yi Han returned to Fushan University in time for his classes the next morning. While strolling on the campus, Yi Han thought to himself, In the end, I've sorted out Duan Ni's matter. Unexpectedly, Liu Meng ran up from a distance, out of breath due to his heavy build, and exclaimed, Yi Han, you're finally back, catching Yi Han. Liu Meng felt like he could breathe again. He eagerly recounted, Yang Zhuang, the captain of the Fushan basketball team, boldly declared a challenge to you in front of the whole school. Yi Han, who had always appeared gentle and mild-mannered at school, expressed surprise at the news. Scratching his head, he asked, who is Yang Zhuang? And why does he want to challenge me? I don't think I've had any conflicts with him before. Liu Meng empathized with Yi Han's situation, explaining slowly, Yang Zhuang is one of the three top talents in our school, extremely powerful and excellent at basketball, known as the basketball overlord. Honestly, I don't know why he wants to challenge you either. Liu Meng continued excitedly, but now he has announced it to the whole school. Everyone knows about it. The entire school is eagerly anticipating the basketball match between you and Yang Zhuang. Yi Han, I don't think you can avoid this anymore. Yi Han responded playfully. Ha 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 ha, in my dictionary, there's no room for the phrase avoiding. I've long anticipated days like this. I'm stepping into the school with the usual calmness, thinking about a few interesting things. While walking, Yi Han asked Li Mang, Where is Yang Zhuang? Lead me there. Let's spice up life with some excitement. Liu Mang, thrilled by Yi Han's spirited attitude, signaled, The gang is all at the basketball court, probably gathered quite a crowd by now. 
Come on, I'll take you there. Almost all the students of Fushan University had now gathered at the basketball court, eager to witness their idol, the music star with a confident and flamboyant attitude, Yang Zhuang, standing tall. He lived up to his nickname. The crowd buzzed with discussions before the match. It seems that Yi Han has revealed his basketball skills and is being hailed as the new generation idol. Yang Zhuang felt threatened by this and couldn't accept it, hence challenging him. Our school's basketball king wants to face off against Yi Han. Do they have any history or rivalry? Not long ago, Yi Han flattened the entire doxia, and today, unexpectedly, he's competing with Yang Zhuang. It's going to be an exciting show. The footsteps of Yi Han and Liu Mang approached. Without hesitation, amidst a crowd of thousands, Yi Han walked straight up to Yang Zhuang, hands in his pockets, and asked, Are you Yang Zhuang? Heard you want to challenge me. Finally, Yang Zhuang got what he waited for. He replied straightforwardly, That's right. Heard you have better basketball shooting skills than me, so I came to challenge you. Yi Han, free from any burdens today, opened up possibilities for his friend. In that case, how do you want to play? One-on-one -on -one or as part of a team? Yang Zhuang had planned ahead. Without any hesitation, he said, playing as a team is too complicated. Let's go one-on-one. -on -one. In half an hour, whoever scores the most baskets wins. Yi Han was excited. It seemed that his friend was also decisive, showing a decent level of courage. He replied, no problem. I don't have anything to do this afternoon and playing basketball to pass the time is not a bad idea. Yang Zhuang had never found an opponent capable of defeating him before. This time, he didn't have high expectations either. Facing the slender young man like Yi Han, he sarcastically said, hope you won't suffer a humiliating defeat at my hands later. The audience was also thrilled with this duo. On one side was the number one basketball player of Fushan University, on the other was the rising star, Yi Han. A one-on-one -on -one duel, this is interesting. The intense rivalry between the two, with the powerful martial arts skills of Yi Han. We wonder how he'll play basketball. Our school's basketball king deserves his title. Liu Meng, always leaning towards his friend Yi Han, stood alone in the crowd, loudly cheering for him. Come on, Yi Han. Yang Zhuang didn't need to know Yi Han's basketball skills, but he still gave Yi Han the advantage. As the ball was thrown in, he said, Ball for you. I'll let you attack first, and I'll defend. Yi Han, not waiting for any formalities, grabbed the ball immediately, but the atmosphere seemed a bit flat. Yi Han wanted to make the game more lively, so he playfully teased Liu Meng and threw the ball away. Liu Meng, still immersed in cheering for Yi Han, got hit on the head by the basketball. His friend squinted, rubbed his nose, and adjusted his super-twisted glasses. The crowd, led by Yi Han, mistakenly believed that he failed to catch the ball, and teased him. Li Han, can't believe you can't even catch a ball. What's the point of showing off your fighting skills? Maybe Yi Han really doesn't know how to play basketball. Liu Meng frowned, playing along with the crowd, shouted loudly, Oh, Yi Han, you're not pretending not to know how to play, are you? Why act like you're skilled? Yi Han pretended to be embarrassed, running to pick up the ball, smiling at his silly friend, Whoops, just an unexpected accident. You're okay. Right, Liu Mang. Seeing Yi Han acting all flustered, Yang Zhuang couldn't help but doubt himself. He didn't want to imagine an embarrassing scenario. He thought to himself, My ball was even uncatchable. Did I challenge the wrong person, or does this guy deliberately tricking me? Yi Han livened up the atmosphere, satisfied with the effect. He then began to enter the game, dribbling the ball in his hand. Yi Han signaled to Yang Zhuang. All right, it's my turn. Yang Zhuang was ready, responding enthusiastically. Come on, let me see how strong you really are, whether you live up to what everyone says. Yi Han dribbled the ball, looking completely serious, and shouted loudly, three steps to the basket. The crowd cheered in excitement. Go, Yi Han. All eyes were on Yi Han, and discussions broke out. He looks quite impressive. His earlier mistake was just an act. Yang Zhuang. Can you defend against this? Approaching with the ball, Yi Han barely touched Yang Zhuang before the latter effortlessly snatched the ball away. The young man's face turned as blank as a monkey's, and the spectators were left disappointed. Witnessing Yi Han's playful scene, everyone stood still for about 50 seconds. Liu Mang, holding his head, 
regretted trusting his seemingly innocent friend. He sighed, failure, Yi Han. The audience, with disappointed expressions, remarked, he couldn't even reach the basket. His skills are truly lacking. Pity for those who bet on him. Yi Han's turn was over, and despite having the advantage of receiving the ball first from Yang Zhuang, he failed. Yang Zhuang picked up the ball and expressed his disappointment to Yi Han. I thought you had some skills, but you've let me down. This match probably doesn't need to continue. Yang Zhuang genuinely didn't want to waste time on such pointless matters. Young Yi Han, with a playful smirk, stepped forward towards the basket, responding to Yang Zhuang's words, I haven't lost yet. It remained unclear how long this young man intended to keep up his mischievous antics. Taking a defensive stance, Yi Han, with an expectant expression, spoke to Yang Zhuang. Go on, Yi Han. I still want to see if Yang Zhuang's true strength lives up to the rumors. Sensing that Yi Han enjoyed teasing him, Yang Zhuang felt a bit annoyed. Pride surged within the undefeated player, and he retorted, Indeed, you seem unaware of your own limits. With that, Yang Zhuang dribbled the ball, showcasing his agile moves in front of Yi Han, all while saying, I'll make you admit defeat willingly. The audience erupted in applause and cheers. Here it comes, the incredible ball-handling skills of Yang Zhuang. Yang Zhuang effortlessly surpassed Yi Han, charging straight towards the basket, and with a swift move, he released the ball towards the target. Fans concluded, Yi Han, indeed, can't match up to Yang Zhuang. Feeling it was time to display some skills, Yi Han called out to Yang Zhuang, who rushed towards him. Yi Han leaped, and just as Yang Zhuang thought he could slam the ball into the basket, Yi Han intercepted, jumping and sending the ball flying much to the surprise of both him and the mesmerized crowd. Yang Zhuang stared at Yi Han incredulously, muttering, What the hell? He couldn't believe the stark contrast in Yi Han's actions compared to earlier. The crowd erupted in debates, and everyone shared Yang Zhuang's sentiment. Is it real or fake? Yang Zhuang's ball was blocked, maybe just a stroke of luck. I don't believe this kid can stop Yang Zhuang's ball. It doesn't seem like luck. Look at Yi Han's powerful jump. It's impressive. Liu Meng, thoroughly surprised by Yi Han's unexpected move, burst into laughter, saying, Ha ha ha. Yi Han, I knew you could do it. Quickly unleash your true strength and let this Yang Zhuang God realize your prowess. Yang Zhuang, seemingly in a daze, maintained his skepticism, but composed himself and addressed Yi Han. Yi Han, didn't expect you to have some courage. However, just now, it was my mistake. Next time, I won't let you score a single point against me. Yi Han is truly pitiful for his arrogant friend who seems oblivious to his true identity. Perhaps there's no need to mock him any further, he responded. Yang Zhuang, I advise you not to speak too loudly. Otherwise, it will be self-inflicted and very painful. Yang Zhuang didn't believe Yi Han could defeat someone undefeated like himself. Losing patience, he shouted, Stop the talk, and let's begin. This time, I will make sure you lose. But as soon as he finished speaking, Yi Han glided past him like a gust of wind, the ball sticking to his hand. While passing by, Yi Han remarked, You can't stop me. And just like that, before Yang Zhuang could turn back, his spirit was still uncollected. A second after Yi Han dumped the ball into the shattered hoop, his triumphant roar echoed like a roaring tiger, shaking the entire basketball court. Yang Zhuang stood dumbfounded, staring at the ball rolling away, seemingly unable to comprehend what was happening. What the heck? How can your speed be terrifyingly fast like that? The audience widened their eyes for a moment. Yi Han's skills are truly unprecedented. Wow, the goal he scored just now was incredibly handsome. Yang Zhuang didn't even have time to react. Faced with Yang Zhuang's arrogance, Yi Han made him slap himself in pain. Liu Meng Witnessing Yi Han's goal, erupted in joy, shouting gleefully, Ha 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 ha, Yi Han, you're too formidable. Making friends with Yi Han is indeed a wise decision in life. Yi Han stepped up to Yang Zhuang, tossed the ball to him, and spoke, So you still want to play? Honestly, Yi Han didn't want to see Yang Zhuang suffer a humiliating defeat at his hands. However, Yang Zhuang's pride wouldn't allow him to easily submit to anyone. Yang Zhuang visibly angered, gripped the ball tightly and defiantly replied, play, of course we'll play, I don't believe I'll lose to you. Subsequently, 
Yang Zhuang attempted to jump towards the basket again, but every time he went for a shot, Yi Han would swat the ball away. Yang Zhuang was sweating profusely, struggling to score even a single point. On the other hand, when it was Yi Han's turn with the ball, he effortlessly executed various moves, continuously sinking shots. It was like a one-sided game of shooting hoops, scoring one, two, three points consecutively. Yi Han observed Yang Zhuang's pitiful state, knowing it was only because he forced him into such a situation. As the final score approached, Yi Han took a long run-up and leaped. He signaled to Yang Zhuang, saying, This last one is for you to witness my prowess. Yi Han soared straight towards the basket, moving like a spider, and slammed the ball into the rim. His outstanding performance concluded before the entire school, defeating the reigning top player of Fushan University. This awe-inspiring scoring move left Yang Zhuang trembling and unable to stand. He knelt down and exclaimed, from the three-point line, followed by a jump shot into the basket. I never expected you could perform at such a superlative level. Even professional basketball players can't execute moves as gracefully as you. Audiences have never witnessed such superior basketball skills in real life. They gasp in amazement and exclaim, Oh my, the movements are so intricately difficult. Even at the national level of basketball, it's rare to witness such prowess. Yi Han, compared to his previous performances, is truly on a different level. Couldn't it be that he was only pretending before, just fooling everyone? Yi Han once again steps forward to Yang Zhuang, holding the ball up and asks, Well, have you seen my true strength now? Do you still want to compete with me? Yang Zhuang, deeply impressed, bows respectfully to Yi Han and replies, No, I dare not. I admit defeat. You are truly a superhuman. Scoring consecutively with such high skill and not even a bit tired, I can't compete with you. The crowd pities Yang Zhuang, saying, Yang Zhuang, being directly defeated is already admirable, losing in such a miserable way. Yi Han, you're too formidable. I'm about to become his fan. First, he advocates for social justice, and now he uses basketball playing techniques to win others over. Yi Han, He's only been in Fushan for a short time, yet he's already accomplished so much. In this world, Yi Han only despises those who are ignorant of right and wrong, those who don't know their own limits. When he sees that Yang Zhuang is a sensible person, Yi Han smiles and helps him up, saying, not bad at basketball. Let's stop here for today, we can play together some other time when we have the chance. However, despite Yi Han's well-intentioned gesture, Yang Zhuang is not pleased at all. Not only was he defeated miserably by Yi Han, but he also felt lost and disheartened. He looks at Yi Han as if he has seen a ghost, quickly gets up and runs away, shouting for help. No, I'll never play basketball with you again. Yi Han watches his friend's departure, feeling helpless. Initially, I just wanted to kill some time during leisure, but unexpectedly, it created a shadow in Yang Zhuang's heart. I hope he doesn't become pessimistic in the future. Just then, Yi Han's phone rings. He takes it out and sees that it's a call from Tang Hai Bin. He answers and asks, Hello, what's up, young master Tan? Hai Bin's voice on the other end is rushed and urgent, reporting some unpleasant news. Hello Yi Han, I heard some information. The Mo Dung family is planning to establish some business alliance in Nanfang. Hurry back and take a look. After a moment of contemplation, Yi Han calmly responds, I only know about business alliances in Baifang, not sure what monkey business they're up to in Nanfang. Tang Hai Bin had to explain to Yi Han. Similar to the Baifang Business Alliance, the Nanfang Business Alliance is where major corporations in Nanfang gather to form a united front. However, it has a larger membership and its distribution is quite extensive. The Nanfang Business Alliance is not officially established yet, but it has already recruited a significant number of business members in just a few days. The information provided by Hai Bin was of high quality, and Yi Han had some plans in mind. He said to Hai Bin, Business alliances, the forces behind them are never simple. Tang Hai Bin replied, The person behind the Nanfang Business Alliance is Mo Dong Ki Tian. He is the brother of Mo Dong Tan Guang. He has always been devoted to cultivation. After Mo Dong Tan Guang's death, he became the new leader of Nanfang. This information surprised Yi Han and he didn't expect life to change so rapidly. He responded, I see, I will immediately return to Chengju. Also at Fushan University, 
Please pay some attention to my behalf. Help me ensure the safety of Lai Han Yan and Shi Han Xin. Tang Hai Bin knew that Yi Han would bring up this matter and confidently replied, Don't worry, Yi Han. Leave this matter to me. After a while, Yi Han arrived at the Fushan University Library. He had made a prior appointment with the beauty Lai Han Yan here and approached her, saying, I have something to attend to. I need to temporarily leave the school for a while. Lai Han Yan, despite her deep concern, inherently proud, nonchalantly replied, Go wherever you want. No need to inform me. Yi Han looked at her defiant face seriously and cautioned, I'm not joking with you. When I'm not around campus, try not to leave the school grounds to avoid any danger. He handed Lai Han Yan a business card and continued, If Wu Tian Fu comes looking for trouble again, call my brother, Tang Hai Bin. Here's his number. He will help you. Lai Han Yan smiled, looking charming. She responded, Don't worry. Last time, you made Wu Tian Fu lose face in public. He couldn't stand the ridicule and quit school. Heard he went to Changzhou, so as long as he's not here, no one will cause trouble for me. Yi Han, pleased with the news, chuckled. Ha, Wu Tian Fu quit? Seems like this clever guy couldn't handle the humiliation. Feeling much relieved, Yi Han turned away, bidding farewell to Han Yan. I didn't expect Wu Tian Fu to be so weak, but it's good if that's the case. I'm leaving. Take care of yourself. In his mind, he thought, well, that's good. Now I could travel to Changzhou without worries. Lai Han Yan watched as Yi Han's figure gradually disappeared, her heart filled with an indescribable sense of emptiness. Why is it that whenever I see Yi Han, I feel so hollow inside? Returning to the current setting in Changzhou, inside Yi Han's mansion, he was waiting for someone introduced by Hai Bin. Finally, the two met, and Tex Uvexai approached to greet Yi Han. Young Master Yi, I'm a friend of young Master Tang. He asked me to come, and he said it's okay for you to call me Xu Xi. Yi Han shook hands with his new acquaintance. No need for formalities. If we're friends, just call me Yi Han. Or you could start by discussing the Southern Alliance Business Federation matters with me. Yi Han seemed eager about this story, and Tex Xu Xi nodded in agreement. He had carefully prepared some information over the past few days and began to speak. The Southern Alliance Business Federation, organized and established by many influential figures in the South, is scheduled for tomorrow evening. Major businesses from the South will attend. Su Vexai had a lingering question, and he straightforwardly asked Yi Han about it, expressing his desire to know Yi Han's thoughts. Vai Han, when you killed Mo Dong Ti and Guang before, I was worried that I might cause you trouble. Yi Han empathized with Suixi's concern, waving his hand to reassure him. No need to worry. If they dare to come after me, they will be the ones at a disadvantage. Tomorrow, I'll accompany you there. Suixi noticed that Yi Han's demeanor was truly extraordinary, and his expression remained unchanged even when discussing significant matters. He began to have a bit more confidence in Yi Han, and nodded in agreement. Suddenly, Suixi revealed an interesting detail. By the way, Yi Han, before we head there, are you interested in participating in a car race? This race is organized by the wealthy elite in Nanfang. It could be an opportunity for us to gather information on the other party. Yi Han was extremely excited, amazed that Su Xi had such insights. He promptly responded, Such an interesting event. I must attend. In no time, Yi Han and Tex Su Xi arrived at the night race an underground entertainment worth millions for the big city boys in Nanfang. Shen Uexi's car followed Yi Han's as they roared towards the venue. Kechu Uexi stepped out, and several Nanfang young elites had been waiting for him. For a while, the atmosphere seemed tense, with accusing glares from every direction. One after another, they pointed fingers at Kechu Uexi, criticizing him. You guys are so late. No sense of time at all. Do you even want to participate? If not, leave immediately. You didn't come late on purpose because you were scared, did you? Listening to their sarcastic remarks, Hexu felt a twinge of irritation. Regardless, they were already there, and he retorted angrily, enough with the unnecessary words. Each of us sends one representative, and we race across that mountain. Whoever returns first wins. Unexpectedly, at this moment, there was an interruption in Hexu narrative. Wait a moment. It was Wu Tian Fu who arrogantly approached, hands in pockets, responding to Xu Xi. Racing like that is so boring. 
why don't we add a bit of excitement to the competition? The crowd, intrigued by his words, turned their attention to Wu Ting and Fu, and his familiar voice caught Yi Han's ear. He looked surprised. Is that Wu Tian Fu? The person in question stood proudly alongside other young elites, not yet recognizing Yi Han's presence. After observing for a while, Yi Han grasped the situation to some extent. Unexpectedly, Wu Tian Fu, after leaving Fu Shan University, comes here to display his prowess. It seems he has become the leader of another group of people. Su Xi, well aware of Wu Tian Fu's arrogant nature, couldn't contain his impatience. He stepped forward to challenge him. Enough of the nonsense. How do you want to compete? Wu Ting and Fu, always extravagant in his playful demeanor, contributed bold ideas. He explained, very simple, run around the mountain, but not uphill, run downhill. Whoever returns first is the winner. Not done with the amusement, he enthusiastically revealed more. Of course, if we're going to compete, there has to be a prize, right? Each participant must prepare a billion, given to the winner. Let's see how it goes. The group of young gentlemen, with eyes wider than usual, stood behind each other, expressing their disdain for Tian Fu's unconventional and reckless idea. Running downhill, is he crazy? This mountain is treacherous, and it's already dark. If something bad happens, falling into the abyss, even our lives won't be spared. This competition is too dangerous. This guy definitely has no good intentions. This isn't a competition. It's playing with lives. One audacious individual in the midst of the crowd yelled loudly, a bunch of useless people. If you're afraid, go back and suck on your mother's teeth. By saying so, he implied that he was the first to accept the challenge, showing some interest in this crazy game. A sophisticated young lady, a daughter of a prominent tycoon, also confidently stepped forward, speaking up, I'll play with you, just one billion, a small matter. Wu Ti and Fu looked ahead displaying his arrogance and challenging everyone else. What about the rest of you? Do you dare? Some of Xu Xi's friends, feeling the need to save face, had one of them speak to Xu Xi. Brother Xu, let me handle this. Xu Xi, always a cautious individual who despised reckless behavior, waved his hand dismissively. No, this match, I concede. I won't risk the lives of our brothers for a mere spectacle. Xem Xi walked up to Wu Tan Fu straightforwardly stating, I apologize. We withdraw from this match. You can continue without us. Wu Tian Fu's group had swollen faces and angry brows, cursing Tzu Xi's family. This is not a place where you dictate the rules, refusing to play with us. Are you looking down on us? A bunch of trash afraid of life and death, with so many people, yet not a single one dares to step up and compete. Truly a bunch of useless individuals. At this moment, as the tension reached its peak, Yi Han calmly stepped out from the crowd. He stood in front of Xu Xi's group, calmly speaking. Who said no one would participate? Allow me. All 37 brothers looked at Yi Han in surprise, and Wu Ting and Fu just now recognized Yi Han with a surprised expression. This shooting star, why does he always cling to him, wherever he goes? The others also immediately recognized Yi Han, and the reputation of this young man made everyone cautious. That's Yi Han, didn't expect him to personally step up. Yi Master, be careful. This competition is very dangerous. Even experts can't guarantee nothing will happen. Su Xi and his friends, concerned for Yi Han's safety, approached him, offering advice. It's not necessary. Don't bother with those arrogant fools. Yi Han, this match is too risky. We know you're formidable. But in case something happens, Yi Master, don't get provoked. With your status, there's no need to compare yourself with them. However, these new friends didn't understand Yi Han's nature. Once he decided to do something, it couldn't slip from his grasp. Yi Han responded to his friends. Don't worry, I dare to participate, so I've already secured the victory. Yi Han knew in his heart. With the Yin Yang divine eyes, my speed is even faster. I can do it too. Wu Tian Fu saw his enemy appear and his blood boiled with anger pointing straight at Yi Han and cursing. Yi Han, I didn't expect to find you here. Last time you made me lose face, this time I'll make sure you know how formidable I am. Yi Han raised his hand to mock Wu Tian Fu, chuckling disdainfully. Ha 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 ha. Wu Tian Fu, no matter how many times we compete, you can never beat me. 
Wu Ti and Fu finally realize what karma he had sown in his past life to always encounter this troublemaker Yi Han. Fuming with rage, he turned and walked back towards his supercar. Emph, let's wait and see. He may lose to Yi Han in the city, but in this speed race, he's always been the leader among the rich kids. Wu Ti and Fu was familiar with the treacherous terrain of this mountainous area, smirking to himself. Driving against traffic on this dark mountain road, Yi Han might have an unexpected accident. Ha 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 ha. Turning back to Yi Han and Texu Xi, Yi Han asked his group, Does anyone have another car? I can handle this racing car. He gestured towards the red car Xu Xi had used to bring him here. A skilled driver among them stepped forward and said, Young Master Yi, my car has been modified. It's no less capable than their racing cars. With that, he handed the keys to Yi Han. Appreciating the heroic spirit of his friend, Yi Han accepted the key and replied, Great, thank you. In his heart, Yi Han vowed to win to repay the kindness of his comrades here. He approached to inspect the car, a specialized off-road vehicle. Not to mention that it had been significantly modified. The opponent sneered at Yi Han, mocking. What's the situation? A representative from the other side comes, and he doesn't even use a racing car for racing. It seems he's just an amateur. He will soon see him being quickly defeated by someone else. And so, the racers geared up for the death race, ready on the starting line. The female referee stood gracefully, waiting for the golden moment. Three, two, one. She counted down and waved the flag to signal. The game begins. As the flag went up, all the racing cars revved their engines, echoing loudly through the forest. Smoke rose. Engines roared straight ahead. Here, the media team had set up unmanned aerial cameras, broadcasting live on air. One by one, the cars of the skilled participants in this race took off. Wu Ti and Fu was at the rear, while Yi Han and the eldest sister were neck and neck on the same track. The remaining opponents seemed to have a slight advantage in starting skills, but everyone's attention seemed to be focused on these three particular individuals. The eldest sister arrogantly matched Yi Han's demeanor. She enjoyed these kinds of challenges and provocatively teased Yi Han. Young man, not bad at all but compared to me, you still have a long way to go. Yi Han felt a bit excited that the beautiful girl paid attention to him. He let her broaden her horizons and replied, a long way to go. I don't see it that way. Saying this, Yi Han stepped on the gas, adjusted the steering wheel, and his car made an astonishing 90-degree turn around the corner. This made the eldest sister exclaim, what is this, a 90-degree turn? How is this even possible? The eldest sister had never seen a racer with such terrifying skills before, wondering, Yi Han, who is this guy after all? From a distance, Shu Vexai observed through a small screen video and was incredibly thrilled. Yi Han, I didn't expect you to have such extraordinary skills. Yi, you're so cool. I didn't think Yi, the young master, could be so good at racing. The surrounding crowd buzzed with discussions. Some marveled in amazement. He can surpass the eldest sister, rise to second place, quite formidable. But that young guy still can't beat Wu Tian Fu. Wu not only has excellent skills, but his car's features are also the best. He'll definitely win. In front of Yi Han now, there was only Wu Tian Fu left. This guy's skills were top-notch. Leading the race from the start, undoubtedly undergoing rigorous training every day. Keeping a close eye from behind, observing through the rearview mirror, Yi Han had already grasped Wu Ti and Fu's steering techniques. He spoke up, Wu Ti and Fu, I'll pass you very quickly. However, it seemed that Wu Ti and Fu had no intention of racing from the start. He also had been assessing Yi Han's speed all this while. Suddenly, he said, the opportunity has come. Wu Ti and Fu forcefully hit the brakes. He made a 180-degree turn, facing Yi Han head-on. He shouted, Yi Han, if you're looking for death, then I'll grant it to you. Saying this, he stepped on the gas, charging straight towards Yi Han. Yi Han remained calm, having calculated in advance, treating Wu Ti and Fu as if he already knew the guy would stick his head into the trap. Yi Han also prepared for the steering wheel, gleefully responding, I foresaw your trickery early on, he. He stepped on the gas, deftly steering in a graceful fan like motion, his car gliding smoothly past Wu Ti and Fu. The latter, bewildered, just realized he fell into Yi Han's trap. He looked at Yi Han with a gasp. Impossible. 
Yi Han replied with a friendly smile, trying to crash into me, huh? You're still far from it. Wu Tian Fu's car was speeding too fast, and he couldn't brake in time. He yelled, quick, stop. It's not good. Ahead was a towering mountain wall, and Wu Tian Fu's car, true to its aggressive style, crashed directly into it, the mountain echoing with a thunderous roar. The audience, witnessing this solo fast and furious maneuver, stood in awe. Wu Tian Fu, being outsmarted by Yi Han in such a miraculous way. Yi Han can do a 180 degree turn on the spot. Oh my, am I dreaming? That's too incredible. Even if you're a professional racer, it's impossible to execute such a difficult move in a reverse driving situation. Ha 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 ha, Wu Tian Fu, the guy wanted to crash into Yi Han, and the result is crashing into the mountain himself, truly deserving. Yi Han stood still, looking at Wu Tian Fu's smoke filled car with disappointment. Oh, Wu Tian Fu, it seems I've won this race again, and you'll probably be at the end. Ha ha, teasing the foolish younger brother straight, Yi Han didn't want to waste any more time. So he stepped on the gas and raced ahead, leading the pack. Bye bye, little brother. After a while, Wu Tian Fu finally regained his senses and stepped out of the car. His engine was completely burnt out, and there was no way he could continue to the finish line. Fuming with anger, his face turned red, blood trickling from his nose. He roared, Lei Han, just you wait, we're not done yet. The moon on the mountain's peak shone brightly, illuminating the road ahead for Yi Han, helping him speed towards the finish line. Your friend's modified car is truly outstanding. The group of friends cheered proudly for Yi Han. Young Master Ge's car has reached the finish line, and the others are still nowhere in sight. Truly formidable, the person on the opposite side now knows who the fool is and who is truly skilled. Wu Tian Fu is done for, making a mess and daring to challenge, deserves a broken spine and a beating. Ha 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 ha. Wu Tian Fu's friends stared endlessly without a trace of their companion, their faces turning pale and red. Unbelievable. Yi Han's driving skills are this outstanding. Wu's young master and him are simply not on the same level. His driving technique is beyond excellent. Even in a life-threatening race, he could still win. After a while, the racing team of the eldest sister and the others finally crossed the finish line, officially concluding this thrilling race. The racers stepped out of their cars, seeing Yi Han standing confidently without a sight of Wu Tian Fu. They immediately understood. It seems this kid won. Knowing his capability, there's nothing we can do. We can only accept it. The skilled racers approached Yi Han, each pulling out a banknote and handing it over, showing their sportsmanship and acceptance. Each person expressed, We accept defeat. Won't default on the bet. Don't want to lose face. Unexpectedly, after a round trip around the mountain, they ended up handing over millions, making Yi Han ecstatic. He, making money is so easy. The elder sister showed considerable interest in this young man, Yi Han, and boldly approached him with a proposal. Young man, you're quite impressive. Would you be interested in joining our racing club? Thanks for the suggestion, beautiful elder sister. Yi Han responded promptly. Actually, my driving skills are just average. It's just that my reaction time and speed are a bit faster than others. So, joining the racing club, or something similar is unnecessary. Let's forget about it. The elder sister chuckled upon hearing this. If your driving skills are considered average, then ours must be like beginners getting a driver's license. But it's okay, no pressure. If you don't want to join, that's fine. A young man who lost the race stepped forward, sincerely praising Yi Han. Hey Ye, very skilled. I admire you, and if you ever need help, just give me a call. I'll be there to assist. After a while, Wu Tian Fu finally emerged, looking around cautiously. Its younger siblings had to come to pick it up, or else it would spend the night on the mountain. From a distance, it loudly called out, Yi Han. Seemingly this stubborn buffalo still hadn't come to its senses. It continued to criticize Yi Han. You, you almost killed me on the racetrack just now. This match doesn't count. You don't deserve to be at the top. Its senseless words were countered by Yi Han with a touch of mockery. He spoke loudly for everyone to hear. Ha 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 ha, Wu Tian Fu. I think everyone here saw it all. My car never collided with yours. You falsely accused me of hitting you. Where did that happen? The comrades with Yi Han and other friends immediately joined in, cursing the one who played but couldn't handle it and even tried to twist the truth. Wu Tian Fu, 
You're really shameless. Clearly, you wanted to crash into Yi Han, but failed, ending up crashing into the mountain on your own. Now you want to turn the tables. It's true. We all have surveillance from the unmanned cameras to witness it live. Can't admit defeat. Wu Tian Fu, can you still be called a man? Wu Tian Fu, furious, holstered his weapon, grinding his teeth with intense resentment towards Yi Han. Fine, Yi Han, you are ruthless enough. It then commanded its subordinates. Let's go. Saying so, it turned to leave. But it seemed Wu Tian Fu might have forgotten something. Yi Han silently stepped forward and called, Wait a moment, Tian Fu, did you forget something? The cunning fellow angrily threw a banknote towards Yi Han, yelling, Humph, it's just a small amount. Do you think I value it? Sooner or later, I will reclaim everything. Yi Han calmly observed Wu Tian Fu's disheveled appearance. Now, even the Nanfang forest had no place for Tian Fu's face. Then it reluctantly crawled into the car, with a few ears and horns on its head, displaying towering hatred towards Yi Han. Lai Han, just wait, I will settle the score with you one day. Yi Han handed over the spoils of victory to Xu Xi, instructing him with determination. Xu Xi, help me withdraw the money from this check and transfer it to my account. The Thin Long Group has just been established, and we need that amount of money. Tachu Xi nodded without hesitation, but the celebration had just begun. Today Yi Han, along with his friends, would surely celebrate their triumph. Taxu Xi added, That's right, Yi Han, a celebration feast, tomorrow night. Don't forget. The next day, right on schedule, Yi Han and Taxu Xi dressed elegantly and appeared at the banquet hosted by the Nanfang Business Alliance. In the Grand Hall, faces from the upper class were present, leisurely strolling and observing their surroundings. Taxu Xi took the opportunity to share important information with Yi Han. In this Grand Hall, it includes all the elites in Nanfang. If they just make a move together, the entire business community in Nanfang will be shaken. Yi Han, your Thian Long group has just started, and if you can get their support, it will undoubtedly be smooth sailing. Yi Han listened to Xu Wixi's sincere suggestions and felt appreciative. It was his first encounter with the wealthy class of Nanfang, and he was excited about it. He replied to Xu Xi, Yes, what you say makes a lot of sense. The more allies, the smoother the path. While chatting, an elegant lady in a dazzling black outfit approached and greeted them proactively. She called out Yi Han's name as if they had known each other before. Yi Han scratched his head in confusion. Why does someone suddenly recognize me here? The lady continued to approach, smiling as she asked, You didn't expect to see me here. Yi Han responded, I'm sorry, may I ask who you are? Do we know each other? The polite lady placed her wine glass down and introduced herself. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Zhang Mengin, also a student from Fushan University. Consider me your senior classmate. This mysterious lady possessed an alluring charm. Yi Han immediately realized Zhang Mengin, he had heard about her when he was still at Fushan University. He extended his hand to shake hers and said, So, you're Zhang senior sister. Nice to meet you. He thought, Zhang Mengin, one of the beauties of Fuchang University, rumored to have a mysterious background. But to meet her here, it seems her status is not simple. Zhang Mengin was excited to meet the national idol from her school. She praised Yi Han. You were a famous figure in school, and now you can attend the Nanfang Business Alliance's reception. It seems your status is quite remarkable. Yi Han didn't want his true identity to be known too soon. He replied, just came with a friend to broaden our horizons. Unlike you, why are you here? And dressed so provocatively. Aren't you afraid of getting unwanted attention? Hearing Yi Han's provocative words, Zhang Menjin was amused. She gracefully showcased her curves in front of Yi Han, reminding him of his comment. Do I look provocative? Approaching this playful and witty young man, Zhang Menjin whispered into Yi Han's ear, as if pouring honey into it. So little brother, do you want to bother big sister a bit? Mengin affectionately caressed Yi Han's face. The flag has been raised, and mouths are watering. However, Yi Han tries to remain calm, but the official duties on him are hard to neglect. He releases himself from Mengin's embrace, attempting to find a way out, saying, Haha, senior sister is just kidding. I wouldn't dare. He warns that there might be a mischievous older sister around, 
But Zhang Menjin keeps her eyes on Yi Han. She laughs and says, Ha 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 ha. Just kidding for fun. Look at how worried you are. Su Gexai, seeing Yi Han being pursued by the beauty without adapting in time, comes over and jokes, Come on, Yi Han, seize the opportunity. Behind Zhang. Mengian is the Zhang family, a prominent clan from one side of Del Magu. If you can get her help, it would be extremely advantageous. Yi Han responds to friends like Su Ixai. Don't talk nonsense. I just met her today. At that moment, a voice arises from the stage. Ladies and gentlemen, the host of today's party appears before everyone, attracting the attention of all. It's Mo Dong Ki Tian, a name frequently mentioned in recent days in Nanfang. He continues, Thank you all for sparing your precious time to attend this banquet. John Mengin carefully reminds the two, Yi Han and Tex Yu Xi. He is the organizer of this party, Mo Dong Ki Tian, and he has arrived. Observing Mengin's cautious demeanor, Yi Han has many thoughts. The crowd of guests in the room responded with honor. Mo Dong Ki Tian, he is the representative chosen by the Mo Dong clan. However, someone whispered differently, just chosen, and he's already organizing a business alliance banquet in Nanfang. It seems his ambition is not small. Wow, Mo Dong Ki Tian is both young and handsome. I wonder if he has a girlfriend. Yi Han observes him, considers the recent remarks from the public, and internally analyzes. Mo Dong Ki Tian, his younger brother Mo Dong Tian Guang died at my hands. He will surely become my enemy in the future. I should be prepared. Mo Dong Ki Tian continues with his prepared speech, announcing to everyone, Ladies and gentlemen, up until now, the Nanfeng business community has been scattered, lacking unity, with oversized individual interests. This is the imbalance of the Nanfeng and Baifeng business communities. But starting today, with the establishment of the Nanfeng Business Alliance, everything will improve. His sharp and articulate words astound the crowd. Mo Dong Ki Tian declares firmly, I hope that from now on, we will work together in unity and create the future. The applauding crowd expresses agreement, nodding in unison, acknowledging the assertive leadership style of Mo Dong Ki Tian. Mo Dong Ki Tian, well said. If the Nanfeng Business Alliance can achieve what he just said, there should be no issue in joining. With the Mo Dong clan behind it, there shouldn't be any major problems. Mo Dong Ki Tian concluded his speech, marking a successful start. Satisfied. He respectfully addressed the crowd. Finally, I hope everyone will have a joyful evening filled with music and dance. The music prepared for the party was incredibly elegant, fitting for royalty. People immersed themselves in the romantic evening at the Mo Dung family's banquet hall. Without much need for contemplation, John Mengin shared her perspective. With music like this, we just need to let loose. That's how I see it. She then hinted at Yi Han. Hey, Junior, care to dance with me for a round? Yi Han appeared surprised, but quickly regained his composure. With a beauty like her paying attention, Yi Han couldn't afford to miss the opportunity. He promptly took her hand, responding, I am honored. Yi Han added with a playful tone, I just hope you can guide me well. Dancing is not exactly my fort. Zhang Mengian, without hesitation, embraced Yi Han and instructed her junior, Then you must hold onto my waist tightly. Many eyes will be on us, and any mistakes won't be good. Observing his daughter spending time with a handsome young man, Zhang Hao Tian, Zhang Mengian's father, became annoyed. Ridiculous. I called her here to get closer to Mo Dong Ki Tian. Never expected that she would stay at the party and dance intimately with another man. Had she forgotten her engagement to Mo Dong Ki Tian? Seeing Zhang Hao Tian looking tense, Mo Dong Ki Tian approached from a distance and inquired, Uncle Hao Tian, today is a joyful day. Why does your expression look unpleasant? Did someone upset you? Without needing a second word or Zhang Hao Tan explaining, Mo Dong Ki Tan cast his gaze ahead and immediately noticed the affectionate scene between Zhang Mengian and Yi Han. He couldn't help but be astonished. Mo Dong Ki Tian gradually lost his enthusiasm, lowering his voice to ask Zhang's patriarch, Is this Mengian? And the man dancing with her it is. Zhang Hao Tan seemed uneasy in the presence of Mo Dong's young master. Hesitatingly, he replied, Ki Tian, it's my lax supervision that led my daughter to be ridiculed. Saying this, the elder of the Zhang family stepped forward, determined to teach his daughter a lesson. Ki Tian, rest assured, 
I will provide a suitable explanation to her. Though Mo Dong Ki Tan didn't say anything, his inner thoughts were resolute. He pondered, as long as I secure the support of the Zhang family, it doesn't matter who I choose. But once they are mine, no one is allowed to interfere. Even though Yi Han was engaged in the dance with Men Gian, he couldn't help but notice his surroundings. Sensing something amiss, Yi Han signaled, Sister, it seems someone is looking for you. Zhang Mengjin glanced in that direction and immediately recognized who it was. She suddenly appeared uneasy when addressing the elder. Dad, is there something you need from me? Zhang Hao Tian, furious, retorted with a sarcastic tone. Humph, you still recognize me as your father, huh? Zhang Hao Tian pointed accusingly at his daughter without mercy. You haven't been home for two years, and today, I'm not forcing you to attend the party. Do you plan to avoid me for the rest of your life? Zhang Mengin was confused, unsure how to explain to her father. After all, his words were entirely true. She returned today without visiting her father first, adding fuel to the fire. Zhang Hao Tian continued his scolding. Fine. I don't want to hear any more excuses. Later, you and Ki Tan will have a meal together to foster a better relationship, and we can conveniently discuss your engagement. Facing her father's anger, Men Jin couldn't utter a word. After the admonishment, Zhang Hao Tan glanced at Yi Han, casually observing him. The elder continued, You'd better stay away from men outside. They don't have any good intentions towards you. I know better than anyone. If you don't deem my advice, the one who will suffer is yourself. Yi Han thought today would be a peaceful day, but trouble seemed to find its way to his doorstep. He pondered, I just met Zhang Menjin today. How did it turn into me having intentions with her? Zhang Menjin felt heartbroken and didn't feel like responding. She had always harbored a silent sorrow that she couldn't share with anyone. Sai, my father remains the same as before, always viewing me as a tool to solidify his own interests, never bothering to ask whether his daughter agrees or not. Everything feels like it's just out of a dream. Mo Dong Ki Tian appears nearby, his eyes bright and smiling as he greets Zhang Mengjin. Mengjin, it's been a while. I apologize for my busy schedule, always lacking time to meet you. But come, let's go over there and chat for a bit. The engagement doesn't need to be rushed. We can discuss it after you finish your studies. The guest, having nothing else to do, is drawn to the conversation about Mo Dong Ki Tian and Zhang Mengjin. Unexpectedly, Mo Dong Ki Tian and the daughter of the Zhang family in Demagu had an engagement from before. The Zhang family's power is formidable, being the wealthiest family in the country. The Mo Dong family stands at the forefront of martial arts in Nanfang. When these two families unite, there's no equal. Truly a perfect match, they look splendid together. Mo Dong Ki Tian extends his hand proactively, but Zhang Menjin has regained her composure. She responds in a peculiar manner. Ki Tian, I'm sorry. This time, I can't keep retreating. Men Jin is resolute. Mo Dong Ki Tian furrows his brow, feeling uneasy with her strange attitude. He asks sternly, Men Jin, what do you mean by this? It seems he has sent something amiss. John Men Jin replies bluntly, I'm sorry, Ki Tian, but I simply do not like you. Men Jin may fear her father's reaction, but when it comes to her own life, she refuses to let her parents dictate. Continuing boldly in front of Mo Dong Ki Tian, she adds, There's no need to discuss our engagement. I, I already have someone I like. John Hao Tan suddenly erupted in anger, swinging his hand to slap his daughter's hand. Her words struck his ears like thunder. Zhang Mengyin, what nonsense are you spouting? Mengyin struggled to respond. Father, please. Everything I said is true. I don't like Mo Dong Ki Tian. I don't want to marry him. These words felt like salt rubbed into his heart. He had expended considerable resources to engage with the Mo Dun family to elevate his career and status. Zhang Mengyin, his daughter, was his key card. Feeling deeply wronged, he delivered a powerful slap across Mengyin's face, labeling her as an impediment. The slap sent Zhang Mengyin collapsing in pain. The guests had now gathered around, words pouring forth. Who would have thought Zhang Mengyin would refuse to marry Mo Dong Ki Tian? This is beyond everyone's expectations. Having the engagement broken off by the daughter in front of everyone. Today, John Hao Tan will lose face completely. By the way, won't Mo Dong Ki Tian be cuckolded? What a drama! John Hao Tian pointed directly at Mengyin, declaring adamantly, John Hao Tian, I have no daughter like you. 
Leave now. Yi Han was the only one to help Mengin up, leading her slowly out of the Grand Hall. Concerned, he asked, Elder sister, are you all right? Zhang Mengin wiped away her tears, enduring the pain in her heart, replying, I'm fine. Reflecting on what just happened, Mengin felt a sense of relief after finally letting out all the feelings that had been weighing on her heart for so long. It's all right, that household, I have nothing to cling to anyway. I'm leaving now, at least I can have my freedom. Hearing this, Yi Han understood some of the complexities in Zhang Mengin's life and replied with consolation, Elder sister, let me take you away then. But at that moment, Zhang Hao Tan spotted him, his old eyes glaring as he unexpectedly pulled Yi Han back and rebuked him bluntly. Despicable. Are you the one seducing my daughter? I won't spare you. Unjustly targeted, Yi Han began to feel heated. The old man, ignorant and behaving like a street thug, lacked the dignity to deserve respect. Yi Han slapped him across the face, shouting loudly, Get lost. Yi Han was forced to speak out what needed to be said. Ironically, it seemed that sometimes the young had to educate the old. Look at yourself now. Do you deserve to be called a father? These were things Yi Han had never dared to say before. But seeing it necessary, Mengian intervened in the altercation between the two, saying to her father, Dad, can we stop this unnecessary conflict? None of this concerns Yi Han. Upon hearing Yi Han's words, Mo Dong Ki Tian suddenly became animated. Yi Han, is that you? He couldn't stay still any longer, stepping forward and speaking up. Are you one who killed my younger brother, Mo Dong Time Guang? You've got quite some nerve. Killing a member of the Mo Dong family, and you still dare to show your face in front of me. Mo Dong Ki Tian seemed determined not to let Yi Han off this time, but this scenario wasn't beyond Yi Han's expectations either. He confidently stepped forward and retorted to Mo Dong. You're right, I killed Mo Dong Tan Guang. I stood on the arena and openly killed Mo Dong Tan Guang. Why should I skulk around and not dare to appear? Zhang Menjian was truly shocked to learn the truth. Mo Dong Ki Tan had endured years of hardship, only hoping for the day to avenge his brother. Now fate had brought Yi Han to his doorstep. How could he let it slip by? With a roar, he exclaimed. Fine, then let's settle our old scores together. In Mo Dong Ki Tan's eyes, Yi Han was just a useless person who happened to get lucky and kill someone. Mo Dong Ki Tan didn't act himself, but ordered his subordinates. Where are the Mo Dong family guards? Come here and kill him for me. The guards promptly obeyed the command, slowly encircling Yi Han. The guests in the Grand Hall began to feel uneasy. Everyone whispered and speculated about the astonishing tale unfolding between the Zhang, Yi, and Mo Dong families. Has Mo Dong Ki Tian gone mad? How can he dare to do this in front of so many people, casually taking someone's life? We used to hold him in high regard, but now he seems quite arrogant. We absolutely cannot allow him to have unchecked power within the Nanfang Business Alliance, or else something significant might happen. Some of the dignitaries in the crowd knew a thing or two about Yi Han. Just that young Yi Han. Seems like he's in for trouble today. Trouble? Don't kid around. Yi Han is extremely resolute, capable of wiping out the blood hand path. Mo Dong Ki Tian wants to tangle with him, but who knows who will come out on top? Seeing the bustling Mo Dong family guards retreating, Yi Han chuckled and asked, Mo Dong Ki Tian, aren't you relying on these useless bunch to take me down? Mo Dong Ki Tian, however, wasn't foolish. He'd have planned ahead, shouting loudly, Enough talk, Mo Dong family guards. All of you, attack. In his mind, he thought, My useless younger brother, Mo Dong Tan Guang, may have a dim wit but his martial arts skills aren't bad. Yi Han could confront him directly in combat. His strength mustn't be underestimated. Today is the perfect opportunity to see his true power. The guards lunge forward like hungry beasts, berating Yi Han. Dare to kill a member of our Mo Dung family, you're dead meat. Today, no matter what, you won't leave this Grand Hall alive. Young Master has said it. There's no need to hold back, just beat him to death. Yi Han remained calm, hands in pockets. Watching the sluggish bunch make their move, he smirked. A bunch of trash dares to come at me, Hu Tiaokuan. His strike aimed at the heart of the flashy Mo Dung family formation, scattering the guards like confused birds. The bunch of useless fellows cried out in disarray. One by one, they fell clumsily around Yi Han, 
experiencing such martial arts for the first time, they groaned in pain. Too strong. What technique is this? Mo Dong Ki Tian had some knowledge of this technique. He stood still, pondering Yi Han's background. Tiger shooting fist, it seems Yi Han follows the principles of Hing Yi Quan. Could he be from the Xing Yi Gate? But clearly, I'd never heard of anyone like him from there. The speculator still couldn't fully grasp Yi Han's strength. Yi Han spoke to Mo Dong Ki Tian with disdain. A weak soldier makes the whole army weak. If a general is incompetent, it affects the entire army. Mo Dong Ki Tian, your subordinates are nothing but trash. It seems you're not much better. Yi Han pointed at the instigator, relying solely on you to try and kill me. I bet sooner or later, you'll end up down there keeping my younger brother company. Using rhetoric to test the patience of this fool, Mo Dong Ki Tian was indeed led by Yi Han. He angrily stepped forward to retort, Ha Yi Han, if you're that confident, then I'll personally come to inquire about your crimes. With no other option, the Mo Dong clan had to confront their own father's enemy. Mo Dong Ki Tian stepped forward, his footsteps causing the ground to shatter. The scene seemed quite grand, both hands already employing two techniques. Seven kills palm. He roared as he charged towards Yi Han. Yi Han must die to avenge Mo Dong clans. Yi Han enthusiastically welcomed him. Right on time, I also want to see how much stronger you are compared to Mo Dong Tan Guang. Yi Han gathered his energy and directly executed his technique. Dragon's War Palm, his exquisite divine skill. The collision between the two caused a burst of martial energy, illuminating the room and echoing intensely like thunder. The spectators were startled, wondering amongst themselves, Wow, such formidable power. Who will emerge victorious? Is this the battle between the two strongest young men of Zhang Guagu? Their techniques are as tight as a drum. Yi Han, knowing he should show some mercy, backed off a bit. Mo Dong Ki Tian, unaware or unmoved, remained in his defensive stance. Yi Han assessed him and nodded slightly before declaring, Mo Dong Ki Tian, you are indeed slightly stronger than Mo Dong Tian Guang but only by a small margin. Encountering such arrogance for the first time, Mo Dong Ki Tian dared to evaluate himself. He retorted, Vai Han, I didn't expect you to have some skill. Then with a hint of arrogance, he provocatively continued, but earlier was just a playful exchange. Now, I'll reveal my true strength. As Mo Dong Ki Tian prepared to unleash his full power, unexpectedly, from within the grand hall, the voice of an elderly person rang out, That's enough. This will do, causing Yi Han, Mo Dong Ki Tian, and everyone else to pause, directing all attention toward the source of the voice. Mr. Ren approached along with other esteemed elders. The eldest among them spoke up. Today, regardless, marks the establishment day of the Nanfang Enterprise Alliance. Could the two young heroes show some respect to us elders and refrain from fighting for now? The guests murmured amongst themselves. Oh my, isn't that Mr. Ren? I didn't expect him to be here. He's quite a prominent figure. He's been out of the business scene for a long time, traveling all over Zhang Guagu. Who would have thought he'd show up today? Mo Dong Ki Tian hasn't been able to invite him until now. Looks like Mr. Ren is here of his own accord. Seeing the stature of a venerable figure like Mr. Ren, Mo Dong Ki Tian was surprised to be receiving him here today. He respectfully replied, Mr. Ren jests. If that's what you say, then let's leave it at that for today. Mo Dong Ki Tian's deference towards Mr. Ren surprised Yi Han, piquing his curiosity about this elder. Mo Dong Ki Tian, to show such respect to this elder, who is he exactly? Mr. Ren, leading on his cane, approached Yi Han with a familiarity that surprised the latter. The elder addressed him. You're Yi Han. Mm. Finally, I get to see you in person. You look quite handsome and your skills seem profound. Not bad. Not bad at all. Listening to this mysterious elder speaking, as if he were prophesying, Yi Han became even more curious and had to impolitely inquire, Excuse me, may I ask, what brings you to seek me out, sir? Mr. Ren smiled enigmatically, responding with an equally cryptic answer. Nothing specific, just wanted to see you. He paused for a moment, then seemed to recall something and mentioned casually, by the way, my granddaughter's name is Ren Zai Han. Are you acquainted with her? Yi Han vaguely remembered the name. Ren Zai Han. Suddenly, 
The image of a girl in a strepless dress, flirtatious with him after drinking, flashed in his mind. The girl who got tipsy and ended up sleeping next to me in a haze. Mr. Wren approached gently, saying, Seems like you remember now. The elder spoke as if he could read Yi Han's thoughts. My granddaughter is quite beautiful, isn't she? I heard you two even drank together. Yi Han felt embarrassed. Why discuss this with elders? He chose his words carefully. Um, yes, your granddaughter indeed has a good tolerance for alcohol. He thought to himself. Well, if Mr. Wren knew that after we got drunk, I ended up sleeping with his granddaughter, he might react differently. Seeing Yi Han's discomfort, Mr. Wren calmly patted his shoulder to reassure him. Ha 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 ha. Don't stress. I'm just here to observe. I'm old, and I don't want to meddle in the affairs of the younger generation, nor do I have the energy to bother with it. Mr. Wren suddenly changed his tone, his voice taking on a different quality as if to emphasize. It's just that upon meeting you, I've noticed a striking resemblance to someone. Mr. Wren gazed deeply at Yi Han's appearance. This elder's demeanor was undeniably peculiar. Yet his words carried a certain trust that Yi Han couldn't quite articulate. Curious, Yi Han queried Mr. Wren, May I ask, who do I resemble? In this world, Yi Han didn't resemble his father, nor did he recall resembling any of the neighbors. Mr. Wren didn't answer directly. Instead, he diverted the conversation smoothly. Oh, just someone from the past. Forget it. Must be my imagination running wild. With that, the elder hesitated briefly before turning away, leaving the mystery hanging for Yi Han. Yi Han scratched his head, feeling puzzled by this elder's cryptic words. Mr. Wren signaled to his subordinates. We're done here. There's nothing more to see. Let's go, my old friend. Though departing, Mr. Wren had a purpose in mind. Vai Han, he's becoming too much like him. No, I can't let this slide. I need to send someone to thoroughly investigate this young man's background. Yi Han breathed a sigh of relief, reflecting on his escapade with Ren Zi Han. Thankfully, Mr. Ren is progressive enough not to pursue the fact that I slept with his granddaughter. The guests, having had a rare encounter with the legendary Mr. Ren, couldn't stop discussing. Did you see how Mr. Ren was talking with Yi Han earlier? They seemed so familiar. What's the relationship? It seems Mr. Ren went out of his way to find Yi Han. If he's backing Yi Han, then Yi Han and Mo Dong Ki Tian must be adversaries. I've made up my mind. I'll immediately establish a good relationship with Yi Han. Under his leadership, there might be opportunities beyond just dragon groups. Tomorrow, I'll proceed with cooperation plans with them. The sudden appearance of Ren disrupted the life and death struggle. Mo Dong Ki Tian glanced at Yi Han and said, Zlai Han, your luck is quite good today. You may escape this calamity, but next time, your luck might not hold. Fuming inwardly, he thought, damn it, Ren seems to have ties with Yi Han. Directly attacking him may not be feasible now. I must find another way to eliminate him. Yi Han smirked at the one who only knew how to sneer and scoff. Ha, whose luck? One can never be sure. Next time we meet, it might just be your funeral. As Yi Han was lost in his calculations, he noticed Mo Dong Ki Tian leaving. Zhang Menjin approached him, saying, Yi Han, let's go. I don't want to linger here any longer. A sudden idea seemed to flash in Yi Han's mind. He oddly draped his arm around Mengen's shoulder and winked at her, saying, Big Sis agrees. Let's go. With that, Yi Han carried Mengen away, causing her to cry out in surprise, drawing everyone's attention. Seizing the opportunity, Yi Han spoke loudly and clearly, deliberately provoking Mo Dong. Mo Dong Ki Tian, your unwedded fiancé is now mine. Ha ha ha. He continued to carry her out of the grand hall, leaving the guests witnessing the drama to gossip and chatter. Mo Dong Ki Tian intended to use Yi Han to boost his prestige, but who would thought Ren would show up halfway through, resulting in a loss for both, losing his unwedded fiancé in front of everyone. From now on, Mo Dong Ki Tian is bound to become a laughingstock in Nanfang. How ironic. He thought he was too proud, wanting to grasp the economic pulse of Nanfang in his hands, but now he's been slapped in the face. Mo Dong Ki Tian was teased and humiliated to the point where even fireflies seemed to mock him. His eyes were filled with rage, boiling with an insane fury. He could only lament that he couldn't devour Yi Han today. Li Han, I'll remember this humiliation. Sooner or later, I'll tear you into a hundred pieces. 
The only one currently forced to reluctantly follow Men Yin was Zhang Hao Tian, her father. He being accustomed to calculation, remarked, I never expected that Yi Han would have such a close relationship with Ren. If Men Jin chooses to go with him, it might not be unacceptable. Who knows, it might even help me establish a connection with Ren in the future. Outside the hotel's main entrance, Yi Han was giving Men Jin some comfort, albeit just borrowing her to infuriate Mo Dong. He stepped forward and apologized, I'm sorry, sis. I couldn't help but provoke Mo Dong Ki Tian just now. I hope you don't mind. Contrary to his expectation, Mengyin seemed rather pleased, though she pretended otherwise. It's okay, Yi Han. I didn't pay attention. She then hesitated and confided in Yi Han. It's just that leaving that place, all of a sudden, I don't know where to go. Being in such an involuntary predicament, she dared to speak her mind. Upon hearing this, Yi Han immediately comforted his elder sister. The world is vast. Surely there will be a suitable place for you to go, to break free from constraints. It's good for you. At least you can later seek what truly belongs to you, without living in a glass cage anymore. Menjin felt somewhat reassured, feeling much lighter. She didn't expect Yi Han to be so accommodating. She replied, Yi Han, you're right. I've made up my mind. First, I'll return to Shanghai City and start anew from there. As Menjin took her steps, she softly reminded Yi Han, Oh, by the way, little brother, intentionally leaning close to Yi Han's ear, she whispered, don't forget what you said in front of everyone today. I'm your woman now. Her words hit Yi Han like thunder, leaving him trembling all over, unsure how to handle all the beauties of the world. Elder sister, I, I was just joking, he stuttered. Ignoring his protest, Mengin cheerfully walked away. I'm going now, little brother. Next time we meet, don't refuse my demands. Yi Han stood there, dumbfounded, watching the departing figure of the beauty. After a while, he regained his composure and sighed, can't cut it off, don't know what to do. Oh well, let her do as she pleases. Xiao Zhu Xi stepped forward with words of praise for his friend. Yue Han, you've truly stood out among the senior figures in Nanfang's business community this time. However, you must be extremely cautious of Mo Dong, Ki Tan's revenge. He's not someone to be trifled with. Understanding Su Xi's concern, Yi Han replied, no worries. Mo Dong Ki Tian isn't any more formidable than Mo Dong Tian Guang. If he dares seek revenge, I'll show him the consequences of defying fate. Moreover, this time, I've used Ren's reputation as leverage. Mo Dong Ki Tian is extremely suspicious by nature. He won't act recklessly until he clarifies our relationship. Xu Xai felt reassured by Yi Han's meticulous planning and responded, All right, you know what to do. As the two concluded their discussion, Yi Han received a phone call, and upon answering, he was quite surprised. It's Yang Zhuang, the captain of the basketball team at Fushan University. What does he want with me? Yi Han picked up the phone and said, Hello, this is Yi Han. What can I do for you? The sudden remembrance of this new acquaintance made Yi Han curious. Yang Zhuang on the other end of the line hesitated before saying, Yi Han, I heard you're currently in Ji Zhang. After a pause, Yang Zhuang continued, Um, I have a favor to ask. Would you be willing to help? Yi Han didn't hesitate to respond straightforwardly. I am indeed in Ji Zhang. Just tell me what you need. Why speculate what you can wait and see? Yang Zhuang must have something important to ask for after all. Yang Zhuang responded immediately. Well, it's like this. In a few days, our school and the Ji Jiang University basketball team are organizing a friendly match, which concerns the honor of our school's basketball team. Since you're quite skilled in basketball, I'd like to invite you to help dominate the game. What do you think? Yi Han understood and thought for a moment. Oh, a basketball match. Let me see. He recalculated his work schedule, then replied to Yang Zhuang. All right, I'll be free by then anyway. Just let me know the time, and I'll come to Ji Jiang University to check it out. With his support and agreement aligned with Yang Zhuang's intentions, Yi Han was extremely delighted. Yang Zhuang then finalized with Yi Han. Great, we'll meet at Ji Jiang University then. Three days later at Ji Jiang University, the stands were packed with spectators since early morning. This was one of the most anticipated events each year, where the top two schools in the region in basketball would have a friendly match. The audience buzzed with excitement. The friendly basketball match between Jijiang University and Fushan University is about to begin.
Last time we lost to them, but this time we must win. Trust me, the team captain said they have a new incredibly skilled player named Wu Weifeng. He's only been here for a year, but has already earned everyone's respect in the team. With him, we're definitely going to win. Don't be too sure, though. Fushan University is still a formidable opponent. Their main player, Yang Zhuang, is not to be underestimated. The Fushan University team was warming up when Yang Zhuang spotted Yi Han approaching. He exclaimed joyfully, Yi Han, you're finally here. Yang Zhuang stepped forward, introducing everyone to Yi Han to acquaint him. This is our coach, Fang Wen Yuan, he said. Yi Han observed briefly to get a preliminary understanding of each person's identity. Then, Coach Fang Wen Yuan approached, extending his hand and addressing Yi Han. Hello, Yi Han. Yang Zhuang mentioned that you're quite skilled in basketball. Could you lend us a hand with a few tricks? Yi Han didn't want to stand out too much. He kept his response modest, saying, Having Yang Zhuang here is enough. I'm just here to enjoy the atmosphere. The Ji Jiang team supporters cheered loudly, eagerly watching the basketball court. Look at Wu Weifeng warming up. Wow, he's so handsome. And not just that, his basketball skills are impressive too. He's the ideal boyfriend material, they exclaimed. Those exaggerated comments piqued Yi Han's curiosity. He turned to observe the Ji Jiang team on the court. A player wearing jersey number four, with a headband, was warming up vigorously. His movements were agile and swift, executing difficult maneuvers with ease. After a few steps and a powerful jump shot, he effortlessly dumped the ball into the basket. The crowd in the stands cheered incessantly. Wu Nuifeng. Yi Han observed that this player's skills were somewhat unusual, so he immediately used his yin-yang divine eyes to understand the situation. Unexpectedly, there's a cultivator of the nurturing essence realm in the Ji Jiang University team. Let's see. His physique and techniques have a hint of the essence of fist intent. Could he be from the Xingyi Gate? Yang Zhuang and the coach also approached regarding Wu Weifeng. Yang Zhuang's tone was cautious as he mentioned him. That kid is the ace player of Ji Jiang University team, named Wu Weifeng. I've watched him play. He's incredibly fast and strong in technique. It's because of him that I had to invite you to suppress this match. Yi Han empathized with Yang Zhuang's concern. He smiled reassuringly and encouraged Yang Zhuang. All right, I understand. Go ahead and play aggressively. If things don't go well, I'll step in. Yang Zhuang nodded in agreement. As the call for the match about to begin was announced, Yang Zhuang signaled, The match is about to start. Yi Han, I'll go to the court first. Yi Han focused all his attention on the court. He pulled Xu Xi up to sit in the stands for a clearer view. As soon as Tu Xi sat down, he became overly excited, surrounded by young female students as charming as fresh grass, making him unable to contain his excitement. Wow, that one has such fair skin, and that one has a stunning figure. Oh, and those legs. Yi Han blushed with embarrassment at Xu Xi's comments. He just wanted to give him a good scolding for being so lecherous. Hey, Xu Xi. Can you tone it down a bit? You're not new to society. Do you really need to be like this? Mr. Tsu Keksi draped his arm over Yi Han's shoulder and said, Ha ha ha, college life and the outside world are quite different, aren't they? Surely you've heard of university life. Just hearing about it gives off a hint of freedom. Yi Han couldn't find a way to remedy Tsu Keksi's behavior. He rolled his eyes at him, hoping to shut him up. All right, can you please keep your inappropriate comments to yourself? The referee on the court tossed the ball up high, signaling the start of the match. The two teams faced off against each other, with particular excitement surrounding the showdown between Yang Zhuang and Wu Weifeng, as they were the key players determining the success or failure of their respective teams. Yang Zhuang leaped forward to receive the ball, but Wu Weifeng swiftly jumped up from below and snatched it away before him. Arrogantly, he taunted, Trying to steal a ball from me? You're way out of your league. With his skills, Yang Zhuang indeed proved to be no match. Losing possession of the ball to the opponent, Yang Zhuang gritted his teeth and retorted, How infuriating! He called out loudly to the whole team, Quick defense! Don't let Wu Weifeng break through! Yang Zhuang was genuinely concerned about this new emerging threat from the Ji Zhang team. The Fushan team organized their defense, seemingly providing special attention to Wu Weifeng.
There were always at least three players marking him closely. Don't let him pass. Quickly coordinate to intercept. Listening to the whispers of these people made Wu Weifeng itch his ears. But he didn't bother paying attention to anyone. With the ball in hand, he charged forward, disdainfully mocking. You guys think you can stop me with just a few rookies like this? Like a gust of wind, Wu Weifeng dodged past two opponents as if they were handing him a sandwich. They couldn't comprehend what was happening. Is Wu Weifeng some kind of demon or a human? He's too fast. I couldn't react in time. This is true strength, the ace player of Jijiang University team, one of them remarked. The entire Fushan University team stood dumbfounded by Wu Weifeng's performance. He smoothly advanced straight to the basket, as if gliding through empty space, and leaped up to slam the ball into the hoop spectacularly. Two points for me, he declared. The enthusiastic cheers erupted from the crowd of young fans. Wow, Wu Weifeng is so cool. Wu Weifeng, we love you. Our Weifeng is the best, Fu Shan, you're definitely losing. Yi Han, observing from the stands, paid close attention. The martial arts displayed just now resemble the forms of the Seven Star Sect, a supreme skill of the Xing Yi Gate. It's not something an ordinary disciple can learn. The person behind Wu Weifeng is definitely not ordinary. Wu Weifeng advanced towards the Fu Shan University team with the ball, proudly taunting the entire team. Your skills are too weak. With just me alone, I can defeat all of you. Yang Zhuang wasn't willing to concede so easily. He responded, The match has only just begun. Let's wait and see. Deep inside, he eagerly awaited the moment when Yi Han would enter the court, while Wu Weifeng remained arrogantly self-assured, disregarding everyone else. He declared, Ha 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 ha, as far as I'm concerned, the match is already over. And indeed, as he said, as soon as the referee's whistle signaled the continuation of the match, he effortlessly scored three more impressive points, with the entire Fushan team struggling to defend against him. Somehow, the court had become Wu Yifen's personal stage. He glided past defensive players as if they were mere obstacles, and his Jijiang team hadn't broken a sweat from the beginning of the match until now. Too easy, he remarked. As the second round ended, both teams took a halftime break. After a while, the referee blew the whistle to announce. The third round begins. Once again, it was Wu Yifeng's turn to take possession of the ball, and the entire Fu Shan team remained extremely vigilant against him. After several failed attempts to stop him, Yang Zhuang leaned in and whispered to his teammates, devising a plan of action. As soon as Wu Yifeng gets the ball, we all move up. We don't care how, but we have to stop him at all costs, or we'll definitely lose. Wu Yifeng dashed straight from his own half of the field, his stance derived from the forge of martial arts. Regarding these ordinary folks, he thought, these commoners playing ball with me, it's just child's play, too simplistic. Wu Yifeng, come here, let's end this. The Fushan team felt a surge of hostility as he approached. This ball, you absolutely won't be able to put it through the hoop, we'll definitely stop you this time, they threatened. Wu Weifeng scoffed at Fu Shan's antics. Oh, you think you can stop me like this? A burst of energy erupted beneath his feet, flames flickering strangely, as he charged towards Yang Zhuang, shouting, Get out of my way! Yang Zhuang barely realized there was something abnormal about this guy when, in the blink of an eye, propelled by a force, he sent everything, blocking his path flying, effortlessly piercing through Fu Shan's defensive line. Fu Shan's teammates exclaimed, What's happening? Wu Weifeng clearly didn't touch us. Why do I feel like someone else hit me? He once again leaped straight for the hoop, encountering no resistance from anyone. Ha 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 ha, you can't stop me, he jeered. A player propelled by Wu Weifeng's force stepped on another's foot, unnoticed by anyone, only realizing he was in pain as he clutched his leg, writhing. Damn it, my foot seems to be broken. The referee blew the whistle immediately, signaling for the medical team to assist. A player from Fushang University is injured. The match is temporarily halted. At this point, Yi Han truly felt indignant, unable to sit still any longer. This Wu Yifeng guy, daring to use his body to emit such aggressive energy, employing fake martial arts tactics against ordinary people, it's really too much, he remarked. Despite seething with frustration, Yang Zhuang couldn't lay a finger on Wu Yifeng. Despicable, Wu Yifeng must be playing dirty tricks. Otherwise, how could Bing fall so miserably? 
he muttered. Fang Wen Yuan, witnessing the disastrous match from start to finish, found it hard to remain composed. Bing is injured. We can only send in a substitute. But now the score difference is too vast. If things continue like this, there's basically no chance of turning the tables, he calculated. In the midst of chaos, Yi Han somehow managed to find a spare jersey, stepping forward right after Fang Wen Yuan spoke. Let me onto the field. I'll deal with that Wu Duifeng guy, he declared. Although the coach had placed a lot of trust in Yi Han, given the current score margin, he no longer harbored much hope, reluctantly conceding, there's no other option now. Go ahead and enter the field. Yang Zhuang, however, remained hopeful in this young man Yi Han, passing the ball to him and saying, Yi Han, it's all up to you. The other teammates also anticipated that Yi Han would bring about a change in the game situation. After Bing was carried off, the referee blew the whistle signaling, resume play. The ball was thrown back into the court for free play, with players from both teams rushing in to seize it. Seeing Fushan's team substitute a stranger onto the field, Wu Weifeng taunted, Ha, whoever stepped onto this court is utterly useless. I am the lord of this basketball court. Yi Han approached with a smirk still lingering on his face, retorting, Ha 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 ha, you're feeling quite pleased, too soon. Wu Weifeng was momentarily taken aback by the power emanating from Yi Han, not having time to react before Yi Han swiftly snatched the ball from his hands executing a deft spin move. Yi Han easily evaded him, leaving Wu Weifeng with an astonished expression. What the hell? This technique? In the blink of an eye, Yi Han effortlessly shot the ball into the net. Then he provocatively pointed straight at Wu Weifeng's face, saying, Counterattack, starting now. Outside, Coach Fang Wen Yuan marveled continuously, his face filled with pride as he remarked, From now on, Every attempt will be passed to Yi Han. Whether he can reverse the situation or not, it's all up to him. His teammates standing nearby heard this and cheered ecstatically. What a beautiful shot into the net. Yi Han, we didn't expect you could break through Wu Nuifeng's defense to score. His basketball technique is indeed formidable. At this moment, the opposing team saw Yi Han's counterattack, furrowing their brows in anger as they remarked, Fu Shan's new player is quite formidable. Didn't expect to snatch points from Wu Weifeng. Hearing this, the long-haired guy hurriedly chimed in. He tried to remain calm as he looked on and said, For now, we're still leading by a lot with little time left. This kid's prowess won't change the outcome. Meanwhile, the girl standing beside seemed mesmerized by Wu Weifeng's charm, her face filled with admiration and love as she said, That kid is just a blind cat stumbling upon a dead mouse. Our Weifeng big brother is the strongest. On the other side, Wu Weifeng gripped the basketball tightly, glancing at Yi Han and remarking, didn't expect Fu Shan's team to have a martial artist. He licked his lips and continued, interesting, next, I'll play with you. Hearing this, Yi Han blinked, his expression disdainful as he replied, I didn't even want to step onto the court in the first place. Then, in a fit of anger, Yi Han shouted at Wu Weifeng, his voice booming, how dare you use martial arts tactics against ordinary people? That's too much. Seeing Yi Han's attitude, Wu Weifeng couldn't help but startle, grinning his teeth as he glared at Yi Han intently. Not keeping Yi Han waiting for long, Wu Weifeng quickly engaged in the match, roaring with anger. You still lack the qualifications to instruct me. In just a moment, Wu Weifeng could maneuver past Yi Han. Then, with a satisfied glance at Yi Han, Wu Weifeng thought to himself, once I display my superior technique, it'll be easy to surpass him. This kid is just average. On the sidelines, Fu Shang's team saw Wu Weifeng gaining possession of the ball. They observed and evaluated. Look, Wu Weifeng has successfully outperformed that kid. With Wu Weifeng on our side, we're definitely not losing this match. I thought that kid was skilled. Turns out he's only at this level. Seeing this, Fang Wen Yuan panicked and quickly shouted, Quick, defend and stop Wu Yifeng. Hearing this, Yi Han's other teammates immediately turned to their coach and followed suit. At that moment, as Wu Yifeng leaped high, preparing to score, he confidently chuckled, saying, Trying to stop me? Dream on, I've got these two points for sure. Suddenly from behind, Yi Han leaped high, swiftly snatching the ball back, and mockingly replied, Sorry, you celebrated too early. Surprised, Wu Weifeng couldn't help but look at Yi Han in astonishment and exclaimed, What? 
Without hesitation, Yi Han quickly threw the ball into the net, securing the points. Yi Han laughed loudly and continued, You can't take these two points. Surprise, Wu Weifeng couldn't react in time, so he could only stare in shock as Yi Han scored. Seeing this, the crowd in the stands was astonished, looking on and saying, Oh my, Wu Weifeng unexpectedly blocked by that Fushan kid, how could this happen? With Wu Weifeng in the match, I always watch, he's always the one blocking others, who could possibly block him? I suddenly have a bad feeling, maybe Fushan can turn the tables and win this match. At this point, the match had entered a tense phase, with the ball lying on the ground. There was a loud shout echoing, quick, get the ball. Hearing this, Yi Han and Wu Weifeng immediately rushed to compete for the ball. Wu Weifeng looked bitterly at Yi Han and said, I underestimated you earlier, but this time, I will definitely win. Hearing this, Yi Han just laughed and replied, No matter how many times we play, the winner can only be me. In no time, Yi Han and Wu Weifeng reached out to grab the ball. Suddenly, there was a loud bang, dust filled the air, and people behind raised their hands to shield themselves in astonishment. After seeing Wu Weifeng writhing in pain on the floor, he muttered to himself, Damn it! His strength is much greater than mine. Seeing this, Yi Han held the shattered ball in his hand, looking somewhat embarrassed, he muttered, I forgot this was just a regular ball. I simply can't handle the strength of the two of us. At this point, the audience began to buzz, murmuring to each other, Oh my, I've watched many basketball games, never seen anyone break a basketball. These two are insane. But honestly, if the ball hadn't burst, that Fushan kid would probably have won. Anyway, he's still standing while Wu Weifeng has fallen. At the same time, the referee hurriedly blew the whistle to announce. Ball burst. Game temporarily paused. Upon hearing this, Wu Weifeng grumbled. You're definitely not an ordinary martial artist. What martial arts sect do you belong to? Who is your master? Without hesitation, Yi Han calmly replied. You're overthinking it. I have no martial arts sect. No master. My name is Yi Han. Just a regular student. Hearing this, Wu Weifeng felt embarrassed and angry. He muttered indignantly, being so strong and still claiming to be ordinary. This guy's shameless. After a brief rest period, the referee walked forward, raised his hand high, and announced loudly, fourth quarter begins. In no time, Yi Han scored a goal, causing Wu Weifeng to fall again and again. This time, Yi Han's strength and talent were different. He continuously scored goals in succession. Seeing this, Wu Weifeng cursed in frustration. Despicable. Once again, Yi Han scored a goal. At this point, the scores of Ji Jiang and Fu Shan were closely matched, with Ji Jiang scoring 59 goals and Fu Shan scoring 60 goals. Seeing this, Fang Wen Yuan happily raised his hand, pointing at the scoreboard and said, The score has been reversed. Hearing this, Yi Han's teammate hastily added, Yi Han is so cool almost single-handedly dominating Ji Zhang. As for that fool Wu Weifeng, he's simply not Yi Han's match. In the stands, the audience was amazed by Yi Han's talent, continuously exclaiming, Since that Yi Han guy from Fushan entered the field, we've practically been unable to score any points. He's truly terrifying. Goodness, before the match, I wouldn't have believed that Wu Weifeng could be beaten so ruthlessly by someone else. Finishing her words, the girl sitting beside emotionally continued, Lifing brother, clearly you've made efforts like that. How could they overlook you? Yi Han, you have no heart. During the match, members of Wu Yifeng's team began to feel fear. They were bewildered and didn't know what to do against Yi Han's power. They panicked, saying, Captain, we simply can't handle Yi Han. There's not much time left. If we continue like this, we'll lose. Hearing that, Wu Yifeng, enraged, turned around and shouted loudly, stop all the nonsense and give the ball to me, we absolutely won't lose. Pass me the ball later, I'll take care of that Yi Han guy. On their side, only Yi Han can play, as long as we figure out how to neutralize him, we'll surely win. Hearing this, the group hastily replied, guide. Then they focused intently to observe the situation. On this side, Yang Zhuang, with a worried expression, said, Yi Han, be careful. That Wu Yifeng guy is looking at you with an unusual look. He might be up to something cunning. Hearing this, Yi Han quickly responded. 
Don't worry, if he dares to play dirty tricks, he'll be the one to suffer the consequences. At this moment, Fa Zhengsheng swiftly threw the ball towards Wu Weifeng and shouted loudly, Captain, ball incoming. Hearing this, Wu Weifeng immediately caught the ball in his hands, then swiftly ran forward. He smirked and said, Lei Han, show me what you've got to defend against my dribble. Seeing this, Yi Han showed no fear. He stood his ground in front with a provocative expression, replying, Come on, I'll show you what desperation looks like. Seeing this, Wu Weifeng sneered and said, Fool, take the bait. Then, Wu Weifeng stomped his foot forcefully, leaping far ahead. He transformed into a tiger-like figure and swiftly charged towards Yi Han. Upon seeing this, Yang Zhuang, angered, shouted loudly, saying, Damn it, you're overstepping. Yi Han, quickly move over here. On this side, Fang Wen Yuan, with a tense expression, said, This doesn't look good. It's probably a collision. Yi Han, be careful not to get injured. Meanwhile, Wu Weifeng, with a determined look, ball in hand, said, Wai Han, you're finished. Seeing this, Yi Han remained calm and stood firm, pointing directly at Wu Weifeng's face, boldly stating, You don't know your limits. Wu Weifeng, you brought this upon yourself. Finishing his words, Yi Han used his martial arts skills to counter Wu Weifeng's attack. At this moment, Wu Weifeng's tiger-like figure lunged towards Yi Han. Yi Han calmly fought back. In just a moment, Wu Weifeng was sent flying far away, crashing to the ground. Wu Weifeng was seriously injured. He struggled to get up, saying, How could this happen? My tiger form failed me. Seizing the opportunity, Yi Han immediately grabbed the ball in his hand. Yi Han looked at Wu Weifeng provocatively, saying, we learn martial arts to strengthen ourselves, to protect those we care about, not to bully ordinary people like you. You lost. At this moment, a long whistle sounded, signaling, the match is over. Fushan University wins. Seeing this, the group from Fushan hurried over to surround Yi Han, cheering and shouting, Yi Han, we've won, all thanks to you. Turning defeat into victory feels amazing. On the other side, Wu Yuifeng, bitter, raised his hand to wipe the blood from his mouth, his eyes glaring at Yi Han, angrily saying, Yi Han, just wait and see. The power behind me is greater than you can imagine. Soon enough, we'll meet again. Yang Zhuang happily ran up to hug Yi Han and exclaimed, Yi Han, you're the hero of today's victory against Captain Ji Jiang's team. Tonight, let's go to the karaoke bar together to celebrate. Yi Han smiled and replied, I still have some matters to attend to. I have to return to Shanghai City tonight. We'll have another chance to celebrate together next time. He thought to himself, I still have the duty to protect Lai Han Yan. It's better to return sooner. Hearing this, Yang Zhuang couldn't help but feel regretful. He scratched his head and said, You're busy then. On the streets, Yi Han and Tetsu Xi had a heart-to-heart -heart conversation. Yi Han spoke up, expressing, Tu Xi. I want to establish a business headquarters in Hangcheng. Hearing his sudden proposal, Hexu Xi couldn't help but be curious. Why do you want to open a headquarters? You're not short of money. Yi Han smiled and explained. My goal isn't to make money. The business world and the underworld are different. Relationships aren't built solely on violence. It needs to be done step by step, establishing connections in various aspects. I need this headquarters to accumulate relationships in every aspect. To deal with Mo Dong Ki Tian. Hexu Xi was quickly persuaded by his reasoning, his eyes sparkling with admiration as he exclaimed, That's a great way of thinking. I support you. Is there anything I can help with? Yi Han raised a stack of money and said, I won't be staying in Hang Chang for long, so I want to entrust this headquarters to you. I've already given you five billion from the winnings of the previous race. It's all up to you how to use it. Hexu Xi happily took the money, assuring, Negotiation is my fort, Yi Han. You can rest assured. I'll definitely help you develop this headquarters well. On the other hand, in Mo Dong Ki Tan's office, he was sitting arrogantly on the sofa, casually smoking as he spoke. Call you guys tonight. There's something I want you to do. Wu Shai Chong and Wen Dao immediately asked. What's the matter? Isn't there anything that young master Mo Dong can't handle? Mo Dong Ki Tian exhaled a puff of smoke and said, dealing with Yi Han. 
Upon hearing this, the two men were immediately surprised and exclaimed, What dealing with Yi Han? Seeing the exaggerated reaction of the two, Mo Dong Ki Tian frowned and asked, What's the problem? Wu Shai Shang lowered his head on the chair and explained, Yi Han's situation is quite favorable now. Dealing with him might be a bit difficult. Wen Dao wiped his sweat and replied, And Yi Han has Ren as his backing. He's someone we can't touch. Mo Dong Ki Tian sneered coldly and said, Direct confrontation isn't feasible, and we can't touch him elsewhere. How about striking from behind? Then he stood up, slammed his hand on the table, and proposed fiercely, Let's take action against those around him. Yi Han's girlfriend has a company in Shanghai City, doesn't she? At this moment, Wu Shai Xiong remained silent, while Wen Dao hesitantly responded, Young Master Mo Dong, perhaps you should consider finding someone else. Mo Dong Ki Tian threw a stack of documents towards the two, his tone cold as he ordered, These are temporary documents for the management committee of the Nanfang Business Alliance. As long as you agree to help me, I can add your names in, and the benefits of this alliance will be 80%, with full authority granted to you. Upon hearing this, Wen Dao couldn't help but be surprised. He stood up abruptly and asked, Full authority. Young Master Mo Dong, is this for real? Mo Dong Ki Tian turned around, smiling a dangerously cunning smile, replying, I've never joked about such matters. Seeing this, Wen Dao nudged Wu Shai Xiong, urging, Xiong, this is a great opportunity. Let's think it over. Faced with such a lucrative opportunity, Wu Shai Xiong couldn't resist either. He tightened his grip on his fist and said, All right, we'll help. Mo Dong Ki Tian then flicked his cigarette butt away, praising, Very good. Seizing the opportunity is the mark of a true leader. Suddenly, his expression turned stern as he emphasized, But let me make it clear, if this goes wrong, you'll bear the consequences. The other two immediately stood up and assured, Young Master Mo Dong, rest assured, this will definitely not fail. Just watch us handle it. At Du Wenni's company, the blonde man continuously typed on his keyboard, and after a while, he smiled and announced, Dealing with this crisis for me, it's too simple. The employees in the company couldn't help but be amazed, exclaiming, The stocks for sale have stopped, truly worthy of Gu Wang. So powerful. The company has been saved. Gu Wang is indeed our savior. On the other hand, at Wu Shai Chong's company, his employees signaled, the opponent has brought in a master. The stocks for sale have stopped. Upon hearing this, Wu Shai Xiong slammed his hand down on the table and shouted, What? A bunch of useless people can't even handle a little task. Wen Dao chuckled and advised, Xiong, don't get angry. There's only one opponent. I'll call in dozens of experts. Not afraid we can't bring him down. At Du Wenmi's company, the blonde man stood up proudly. It's done. Miss Zhu, your company is about to be out of danger, and through my actions, the stocks will even rise. Seeing this, Feng Bing took the opportunity to boast, Du Ni, have you seen it? A real man can truly help you weather the storm, unlike someone who, when your company faced trouble, only knew how to speak beautifully, but had no real effect. Irritated by his constant references to Yi Han, Du Nai expressed her anger. Feng Bing, you helped me, I appreciate it but it doesn't mean I will fall into your arms. I will rely on market prices and pay you a fair fee. At this moment, Yi Han pointed and reassured, Do on me, there's no need to pay any fee. Just look at the stocks. At this point, on the computer screen, the lines were continuously dropping low, and people in the company began to worry and lament. What's happening? Why are the stock prices dropping? Could it be that even Gu Wang Malphite can't revive them? If this continues, the company will go bankrupt. Feng Bing, in a tense state, hurriedly urged the foreign man, Mr. Malphite, what's going on? Didn't you say it's been resolved? Malphite was sweating profusely, rubbing his chin as he looked at the computer screen and replied, the, the situation, how could this happen? Suddenly, a bunch of hedge funds jumped in to attack. I, I couldn't control it anymore. Hearing this, Duan Nai couldn't help but despairingly cry out, even Gu Wang has no solution. Couldn't it be that the company will really go bankrupt today? Yi Han gently held her hand to reassure her. Don't worry, didn't I just say? I'll take care of the company's affairs. Seeing the two holding hands like this, Feng Bing couldn't help but feel jealous. He sarcastically criticized. Yi Han, 
don't act so big, even Gu Wan Malphite failed, what solution do you have? Yi Han casually raised his phone and said, if Gu Wan can't solve it, then let Gu Shen handle it. He contacted several phone numbers, and when the other party picked up, Yi Han went straight to the point. Hello Nicholas, are you Miss City of Shanghai? Could you possibly come here to help me with something? The other person immediately replied, No problem, just send me your location, and I'll come right away. Malphite, upon hearing the name Nicholas, was surprised and questioned. Nicholas, the one known as Gu Shen, did you just call him? Yi Han chuckled calmly and asked, What do you think? There can't be another Gu Shen named Nicholas in the world, right? Feng Bing laughed scornfully and taunted, Ye Han, you're exaggerating too much. This man named Nicholas is in the West, just a wave of his hand can influence the stock market. How could he come here just because of a phone call from you? Gu Wang Malfi also agreed, saying, That's right, as far as I know, Mr. Nicholas is currently attending an important conference. He can't come here. The employees in the company began to discuss in whispers, This young man, isn't he just showing off? If he can't help, then he should leave. Our boss is so outstanding. Why would she look for a boyfriend like that? Just then, a knock on the door sounded, and a man burst in, panting as if he had just rushed there, and said, Ye Han, I'm probably not late, am I? Ye Han, seeing him, greeted him joyfully. My old friend, you come at just the right time. Nicholas embraced Ye Han warmly, and the employees, seeing this, changed their attitudes and exclaimed, I can't believe my eyes. It's Gu Shen Nicholas. So Yi Han wasn't just boasting. Finally, my suspicions are dispelled. Yi Han's connections are indeed formidable. Our boss's discerning eye is truly exceptional. With a boyfriend as outstanding as this, even with a flashlight it would be hard to find. Feng Bing, witnessing this scene, broke into a sweat, grinding his teeth and muttering, How? How is this possible? How could that little brat Yi Han possibly know such a prominent figure? He seethed inwardly. Damn it, if Gu Shen resolves this raid, then everything I've done so far will have been just paving the way for Yi Han. Nicholas, with his arm around Yi Han, chatted amiably. Yi Han, I specially declined all conferences and invitations to come here. Whatever you need, just say it. We don't need any pretense between us. Yi Han pointed to the computer screen and said to the man, Here's the situation. Someone wants to short sell my girlfriend's company. I need your help to defuse this attack, and, while you're at it, uncover the mastermind behind it. Nicholas bent over to examine the situation on the screen, then immediately assured, Don't worry. When it comes to stock market matters, as far as I'm concerned, they're all minor cases. I can handle it in two minutes. In no time, the man resolved the issue and turned around to announce, it seems I overestimated this fellow. It's all taken care of in just a minute. The mastermind behind it has been identified as the Super Alloy Corporation and the Five Continents International Group. I also took the opportunity to acquire 60% of the shares of the Super Alloy Corporation, which means we now have control over it. Upon hearing this, Yi Han gratefully placed his hand on the man's shoulder. Well done, Nicholas. I'll remember this favor. Nicholas modestly replied, It's just a small matter. He suddenly rubbed his chin in curiosity. But what about the Super Alloy Corporation and the Five Continents International Group? How do you plan to handle them? This is clearly a premeditated attack. Yi Han frowned. I hold no grudge against them. It's all undoubtedly orchestrated by Mo Dong Ki Tian. Daring to lay hands on my family, Mo Dong Ki Tian has dared to meddle with someone important to me. He will pay the corresponding price. At Mo Dong Ki Tian's house, Wen Dao urgently pleaded, Young Master Mo Dong, I've sacrificed all my resources to help you. Please consider. Mo Dong Ki Tian leisurely sipped his tea, a smirk playing on his lips. Rest assured, I've investigated. There's no connection between Yi Han and Mr. Ren. Once I'm done with Yi Han, not only will you regain your company, but you may even swallow up his. Wen Dao still couldn't shake off his suspicions and scratched his head, asking, is that really the case? Mo Dong Ki Tian immediately furrowed his brows, scolding coldly. I, as the head of the Mo Dong family, need to deceive you. Hearing this, Wen Dao couldn't help but feel fearful, his body trembling as he stammered. Of course not, young master Mo Dong, you wouldn't deceive me. 
I'll rely on you in the future. At this moment, Wu Shai Xiong interjected, suggesting, But Yi Han has already investigated us. Given his character, I fear he might come knocking on our door directly. It might be better for us to act preemptively. Mo Dong Ki Tian, provoked by this suggestion, retorted, He's just a brat. If he dares to come, I'll make sure he doesn't leave. Just then, Yi Han approached the door confidently and taunted, Make sure I don't leave. Mo Dong Ki Tian, your arrogance knows no bounds. Ha! Huh. Seeing all three of them surprised, they exclaimed, Yi Han! Mo Dong Ki Tian crushed the glass in his hand, while Wen Dao, in a mix of fear and curiosity, asked, Yi Han, how did you find your way to our door so quickly? Wu Shai Shang reassured, Don't worry, with young master Mo Dong here, Yi Han is just seeking his own demise. Mo Dong Ki Tian swaggered up to Yi Han and arrogantly stated, Yi Han, you're beyond my expectations, but without Mr. Ren backing you, you're just an ant. I'll do as I please. Yi Han immediately tightened his fist, smiling. In the end, we'll see who prevails. Only through action do we truly know. With that, Mo Dong Ki Tian's face darkened, and he lunged forward, throwing a barrage of punches, shouting, You dare to be insolent in front of me? If you seek death, then I'll send you to meet the King of Hell, battling the celestial beings for supremacy. Yi Han smirked disdainfully, showing clear contempt as he retaliated with a punch. You think you can kill me with such petty tricks? Today, I'll show you there's no escaping your fate. Seal of Death Fist. A surge of internal energy shot out, piercing through Mo Dong Ki Tan's abdomen, as if passing through his body. He coughed up fresh blood from internal injuries caused by the energy penetrating his body, gasping. How? How could I lose? With that said, he collapsed to the ground, lifeless. Both Wu Shai Zhang and Wen Dao, seeing this, paled and exclaimed, What? Mo Dong Ki Tian, he's dead just like that. How? How is this possible? Yi Han approached them, his voice cold as he asked, Do you two still want to oppose me? The two immediately dropped to their knees, begging for forgiveness. Wen Dao pleaded desperately, Master Han, I dare not defy you anymore. Please spare my life. I'll hand over my company to you. Wu Shai Shang cried and begged. Master Han, I know I was wrong. I have an elderly mother and young children. Please, have mercy on me this time. Yi Han didn't make things difficult for them. He gave a cold snort and turned away, reminding them. Your loyalty was coerced by Mo Dong Ki Tian. This time, I'll spare your lives but you should be more mindful in the future. With that, he walked away without looking back. Watching Yi Han's departing figure, the two couldn't help but marvel. We never expected Yi Han's tactics to be so lethal. In the future, when Yi Han rises, the outcome seems predetermined. It's doubtful anyone can stop him. From then on, Yi Han unified the underground forces of Zhang Guagu, becoming the martial emperor of Zhang Guagu. Thank you for taking the time to watch my video. If you enjoyed the content, please don't hesitate to hit the like and share buttons. Your support is a huge motivation for me to continue creating more videos. Additionally, there are many other interesting story videos on my channel, so feel free to check them out. Thank you.